A man live streams to help people with fortune telling. It's free if it's not accurate. But if it's accurate, only 10 rockets need to be rewarded. Netizens all think he is crazy about money. And even millions of fans personally come forward to expose the true face of this fake master. Unexpectedly, because they listened to his criticism, they saved their own lives and directly gained a large number of fans by brushing 10 carnivals on the spot. His name is Chen Yu, originally just an ordinary factory worker. He has been dependent on his mother Wu Shaolan since he was a child. 10 days ago, when he was working, he happened to see the boss's son bullying a girl who had just entered the factory. Unable to bear it, he taught the boss's son a lesson and then was fired without receiving his wages. Afterwards, the girl sent a message blaming Chen Yu for delaying her progress. But misfortunes never come singly. Chen Yu's mother's old illness recurred at this time, and it was particularly serious, requiring surgery that cost over tens of thousands. Chen Yu, who lost his job, grabbed his hair, his eyes gradually becoming moist and red. But in order not to worry his mother, he still returned to the ward and squeezed out a smile telling his mother that he was not short of money and would go for a security guard interview in the afternoon. By then, he could earn several thousand a month. After coaxing his mother to sleep, Chen Yu left the hospital and stood on the street somewhat dazed, not knowing where to get the tens of thousands of surgical fees. At this moment, a system prompt sounded in his mind. The cultivation system detected the touching filial piety of the host, and began to bind. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the permanent binding of the cultivation system. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the technique of celestial secrets. Along with the falling of the system prompt sound, a massive amount of information suddenly poured into Chun Yu's mind, accompanied by a series of images flashing continuously. A figure stood proudly above the sky, with long hair flying, and with a wave of his hand, a sea of thunder spread for 80,000 miles, on top of a thousand-foot mountain. An old man lightly pointed his finger and boundless rain fell to the mortal world. A peerless sword immortal split open the heavenly gate with a sword, causing the stars to fall and the myriad races to submit. After a few minutes, everything returned to normal. The streets were bustling with cars, horns blaring, pedestrians crossing the road under traffic lights, gathering into streams, hurrying along, and nothing had changed. Chen Yu stared blankly at all this, then burst into wild joy. A poor loser like him unexpectedly possessed a system that could embark on the path of cultivation. Wouldn't that mean he had the ability to save his mother? After taking several deep breaths, Chen Yu finally calmed down and began to check the system. The cultivation system can help the host cultivate into an immortal and achieve the supreme immortal emperor. The celestial secrets is a profound technique that directly points to the supreme path, with various incredible uses. However, at this stage, Chen Yu can only use it to deduce people's fortunes and misfortunes. In other words, he is currently just a fortune teller, but unlike those frauds, with the celestial secrets as his foundation, his accuracy rate is as high as 100%. There are two ways to cultivate the celestial secrets. The first is to breathe in the spiritual energy of heaven and earth and gradually improve through water mill practice. The second is to peek into the secrets of heaven, modify the secrets of heaven, become an adult in the right way, and become an immortal in the opposite way. Cultivation is originally going against the heavens. By modifying the secrets of heaven, one can obtain the secrets of heaven to cultivate. Nowadays, with the exhaustion of the spiritual energy of heaven and earth in the Dharma ending age, it is impossible to talk about absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth. Therefore, if you want to cultivate immortality, the only way is the second method, which is to modify the secrets of heaven. So Chun Yu asked the system, if he changes other people's destiny by fortune telling, is it modifying the secrets of heaven? After getting the affirmative response from the system, Chun Yu was immediately excited. Looking at the bustling street, he tried to activate the celestial decision. Instantly, relevant information about the people he focused on emerged, and he could see clearly what would happen in the future. Now he truly became a divine calculator. Chen Yu clenched his fists tightly, his heart beating wildly. After several attempts, he found that this ability was currently limited to people only. Predicting things like lottery numbers was out of his reach. However, with this ability, if he started a live stream fortune telling, he would definitely earn enough for his surgery fees. His fortune telling would be 100% accurate, which was unique on the internet. With this ability, how could he not become popular? So, after returning to his rented room, Chun Yu put on a mask and started the live stream. He wore the mask because he knew that with this extraordinary ability, his fortune telling would definitely make him famous. If he were recognized in the future, it would inevitably affect his normal life, which was something he didn't want to see happen. At this time, Chun Yu sat in front of the camera in the live broadcast room with a pair of couplets just written on the wall behind him. The upper couplet reads the universe's yin and yang are all understood. 
and the lower couplet reads all fortunes and misfortunes in life are known. The rules for fortune telling were also displayed on the public screen, fortune telling through live streaming. It's free if it's inaccurate, but if it's accurate, please give 10 rocket gifts as a reward. The fortune telling live broadcast room is officially open. At first, there was no one, and the screen was silent. Although Chun Yu was anxious, he could only wait patiently. 10 minutes or so later, a few people came in one after another. A fortune teller? That's a big mouthful of couplets. 10 rockets? Why don't Nima go grab it? On the fast tone platform, one rocket is worth a thousand dollars. 10 is 10,000. That's a price. No less. In the live broadcast room, all of them are scolding Chen Yu for wanting money like crazy. On the other hand, inside the Feng City's Weiman Bureau, Xiao Lu was happily paddling for fish and brushing his fast tone. Yo, live fortune telling? Holy shit. 10 rockets? This guy is interesting. As I was thinking about it, a netizen named Tomorrow's Wind made a comment. Anchor, tell my fortune. Chen Yu's eyes lit up as he suppressed some of his excitement and said, If you want to tell your fortune, just connect the mic. Okay. Soon after, the streak was successful. Across the room was a young man, dressed in hipster cool. He was covered in designer labels and was well off. Several comments immediately popped up on the live feed. I go, isn't this Li Nan Rue, a netizen with millions of fans? Is this his trumpet? Chen Yu's mind moved. Netflix? What do you want to count? My friend? Hey, hey. Whatever counts, let me see the master's methods. When he spoke, he bit the word master very hard. Fortune telling? Ha, I've faked so many people. How could I be fooled by you? Let's see what you, a fake guru, have up your sleeve. By the way, do you need me to tell you the birth date or anything? Li Nan Rue smiled and said. His demeanor relaxed. No need. Xiao Dao. I tell fortunes to peer directly into the heavens. Chen Yu spoke faintly. The usual fortune telling, which requires a combination of birth characters, palmistry, face reading, and so on, is cumbersome. However, the heavenly chance technique was an immortal cultivation technique, and it was not comparable to these means. Li Nan Rue raised an eyebrow and couldn't help but skim. Doesn't this guy have a process for lying? You're not good at business. On the public screen, comments swiped several times. I'll be damned. The anchor is loaded enough. Let's see how the anchor peeks into the sky. TSK, TSK. I'll give you rockets if the anchor does the math. Shaola stared at the screen and shook his head in disdain. Nowadays, scammers are so bad at scamming. How can you cheat the victim if you don't put on a full show? It seems that this scammer is just getting into the business. Shaol had a scrutinizing look on his face. Somewhat disinterested. In the room, Chun Yu looked at Li Nan Rue, a flash of purple light in his eyes. The entire world seemed to change as the Tianji skill was unleashed. All the information away from Nan Rue was presented in front of Chen Yu. Li Nan Rue, real name Lu Mo, a junior at South City University of Science and Technology, started sophomore year and was introduced to the self-publishing industry. Chen Yu spoke eloquently and gave the information about leaving Nan Rue with a plate. Li Nan Rue's smile slowly disappeared, and his body subconsciously moved toward the screen. A flash of astonishment surfaced on Li Nan Rue's face. This guy, how does he know my real information? He, really, can tell fortunes? The live broadcast room was astonished. Hey, you guys look at Li Nan Rue's look, as if the anchor has hit the nail on the head? I saw that too. Holy shit, there's something about that anchor. Suddenly it feels kind of fun. I'm a flying pig sends a little heart to the anchor. Xiao Lu was also a bit surprised. He rested his chin on one hand, calmly analyzing. Is this the person who investigated the Liami in advance, or is the hyphenated person a trustee? Being from a science class, Xiao Lu has learned a lot of criminal investigation knowledge in school and has always gotten good grades. I just joined the workforce not too long ago, but I've not seen a lot of fraudulent scams. One of them is to get someone to act as a trustee, which is one of the most common methods. Xiao Lu almost instantly made the judgment that the so-called fortune-telling was a bureau. The purpose is clear, to create this god's calculating persona. Then we'll see what kind of tricks they're planning to thick blood. Xiao Lu rose some interest in Chen Yu. Li Nan Rue stared at Chen Yu, his heart in disbelief. Soon, though, he laughed without caring. Being a netizen in your own size, all this information is available online. It's no big deal. Gee, that makes me almost believe it. Tell me something I don't know. Li Nan Rue clasped his hands to his chest and made a gesture of invitation. Come on, show. Chen Yu smiled faintly and proceeded to peer into the heavens. Li Nan Rue's face is, in fact, very good, a face of great wealth. Now, however, there was a thick blood red aura on his forehead, which was a sign of a blood light disaster. You're about to have a major disaster. If you don't listen to me, it's hard to escape death. Chen Yu spoke faintly, 
The entire broadcast was silent. It's hard to escape death? No. Is that the first thing that comes out of this dude's mouth? Holy shit. That's a scary thing to say. Seriously? I'm a little scared. It's over. The anchor is about to be exposed. Hey. Hey. First I scare you. Then I make you do whatever he says. The old fortune telling routine. Lee Nanrue was dumbfounded. But in the next moment, he let out a poof. Covering his stomach and laughing so hard that tears came out of his eyes. Hey goo. I can't hold it in. I still have blood in my veins? Then master take a quick look. What should I do? I'm so scared. Li Nanrue deliberately acted like he was in shock. Amusing the audience in the live broadcast. Shalo raised his eyebrows and a wise light flashed in his eyes. Ha! It all makes sense. Leaving Nanrue as ATO. First pretending not to believe it. Then picking up a reversal. In this way, it was possible to build this god calculated crypto. In the future, when this god calculated fast sound number becomes a big network red, it will start to bring goods to cut leaks. It's all a ruse. And I don't know. What media company planned it? The corner of Xiao Li's mouth gently hooked, already seeing through everything. Chen Yu looked as normal and let out a long sigh. In half an hour, there will be a traffic accident under your house. If you go downstairs, it's hard to escape death. Li Nanrui's heart shook with an inexplicable flash of panic. There was one thing to be said for that, and he did intend to go out later. But after hearing these words from Chen Yu, he was afraid. There were only about 10 people in the live room, but they were all hotly debating at the moment. Holy shit. Why do I feel a little bit of trust in the anchor? That's a bit scary to say. Nanrue mustn't go out, or something will happen. Shaola sneered. These two are good actors, with their expressions, movements, and details well taken. A compassionate man, a face with three parts skepticism, three parts worry, and a few parts hesitation. Much better than the fresh meat. Good actor. Unfortunately, in front of a professional like me, it's like a joke. Just now. This godly man had said that Li Nanrue lived in the Pearl Elegant Residence. Later, I'll check this place for car accidents. Let me, for one, put an end to this farce. Shaola hugged his arms and scrutinized Chen Yu in the screen. He had already decided to make the two men's routine public on the air when he found out more. Then, promote a wave of anti-bombing apps. At this moment, Li Nanrue sat in front of the screen, subconsciously gulped, his heart pounding. Am I, really, going to have an accident? That can't be right. It sounds fake at first, but what if, after a moment of agonizing, he bit his teeth hard. Good, I'll just wait half an hour. I'll check downstairs then and come back to explain the situation to everyone on the air. If it's really like you say, I'll swipe you a gift. If you miscalculate, I will poke you. Chen Yu nodded. Yes, the live stream immediately went quiet. Everyone was waiting, waiting for half an hour. Xiaolu also didn't exit the live broadcast, but kept staring coldly at Chen Yu. He was waiting for the moment when the truth would finally be revealed. As time passed, Li Nanrue became more and more annoyed. During that time, he received several messages. Nan, come out and play. That nine-point girl from last time is here too. Come on out and let daddy take you to the top. Li Nanrue felt so stupid. Why would he believe this fortune teller? He couldn't wait to rush out and let loose with his buddies. But after much agonizing, he was still afraid to go out. After a hard half hour of simmering, Li Nanrue stood up with a bang. Wait for me my friends, I'll go out and check it out now. Li Nanrue left the room and sprinted all the way to the entrance of the cell. When he saw the scene in front of him, his entire body froze. At the entrance of the neighborhood, there was a crowd of people, talking to each other. Not far away, a red Mazda, crashed into a tree on the side of the road, and its double blinkers were flashing. On the ground, there were broken branches and various parts scattered. A middle-aged man with a bleeding head was sitting on the side of the road covering his head with one hand. Here, there really was a car accident. Hey, I really didn't expect that a car accident could happen on our road. That's right, it's a good thing we didn't hit anyone, or we'd have surely crashed and died. Listening to the comments of the people around him, Li Nanrue was shaken and hurriedly asked what was going on. A pang of fear ran through him as he listened. This driver was drinking until the wee hours of the morning yesterday, dismissed and drove home. As a result, when they arrived at the entrance to the neighborhood, they crashed head-on into a large tree because of fatigue driving. Li Nanrue was chilled and pale. His legs were also so weak that he could barely stand. If, indeed, one had gone out earlier. Now, then, one is dead. Life and death. It's just a split second. Boy, what's wrong with you? Seeing Li Nanrue's appearance, the people next to him were a bit curious. Ha, huh? no, nothing. Wiping a cold sweat off his face, Li Nanrue jerked his head back to his house. Master. That one really is a master. He really does tell fortunes. 
he's not a fraud, identity information and whatnot can be found in other ways. But the crash in front of us was completely random and could not have been designed. He, himself, had indeed met a man of the world. My chow, master, I've come to give you a gift. Li Nanrui scurried back. At the same time, Chen Yu was resting with his eyes closed when he suddenly felt a stream of pure energy injected into his body. He opened his eyes, a little agitated. The first deal was a success. Originally, it was to die away from Nanrue, but with his own intervention, Li Nanrue managed to survive. The heavenly chances had changed, and he himself had gained heavenly chances and chi luck, and his cultivation had been improved a bit. Soon enough, Li Ananwe returned to the screen. Seeing Li Nanrue, the quiet live broadcast room immediately became lively. Woohoo! The little dudes came back alive. Dude come on, what's going on? Is it time to start punching anchors in the face soon? Gee, what the hell is going on downstairs? Shaola clasped his hands in front of his chest, the corner of his mouth gently hooked up with a touch of mockery. Come on, start the show, and then wait for me to expose you. In the room, Li Nanrue looked at Chen Yu with near adoration. My chow, master is truly divine, I'm convinced. There really was a car accident downstairs in my house. Thank you master for saving my life. Li Nanrue is supposed to be a netizen with good verbal skills. The whole thing was blown out of proportion by him. In his mouth, Chen Yu became a generation of divine calculators, unrivaled in the world. Master, say nothing, I'll give you a gift. Away from Namri swipe 10 carnivals in one breath. Fast tone platform, 1 carnival is worth $5,000, 10 is 50,000. Removing the platform share, Chen Yu can get his hands on 25,000. The live stream completely blew up. I'll go for 10 carnivals, big brother, Nima. It really counts? It can't be a fake, can it? It also feels a bit fake to me. Could it be scripted? Ha ha, I've always believed that there are strange people in this world. And it's true, the live feed was a hot mess. A disdainful smile appeared at the corner of Xiao Li's mouth. Ha, hey, a bunch of idiots. Can't you see that this is all a scripted setup? Hey, there are too many idiots in this society nowadays. For a while, Xiao Lo lost interest and didn't even bother to reveal it. Turning off the live stream, Xiao Lo got up and stretched. Others can be fooled, but you want to fool me? Just kidding, we're government officials. After thinking about it, he picked up his cell phone, found the phone number of an acquaintance in the traffic control and called it. Hey, Li, it's me, Xiao, Xiao Xiao. What's up with your brother Li? A bright voice came from across the room. There's something I'd like to ask. Was there a car accident in front of the Pearl Arcade just now? Holy shit, Xiao how did you know? Rico exclaimed in shock. Xiao Li's expression froze and he stared with wide eyes, somewhat confused. Crap, a real, real car accident? Yeah, I just got the notice too. This time it's unusual. I heard that the one who got into the accident was Chief Zhao's brother, and I'm dealing with that. By the way, don't spread this around. Tu Dolu. Li hung up the phone, and only Xiao Lu stood frozen in place, his face full of incredulity. How did this happen? All this isn't scripted? But how could he have foreseen all this if it wasn't scripted? Could it be that he really can tell fortunes? At this moment, Xiao Li's mind seemed to be exploding with millions of thunderbolts. All previous judgments were reversed. No, there's got to be some reason for this. I can't believe this is happening. Xiao Lu was about to enter the live room again when he was called to work. By the time it was dry, it was time for lunch. Opening his cell phone and scrolling through it, Chen Yu had already gotten off the air. Xiao Lu found Chen Yu's fast voice account and tapped on a wave of followers. Tomorrow, wait until tomorrow to see if you're that godly or not. Room. Chen Yu turned off the live stream and shouted in excitement. Telling fortunes one after another is mentally and physically draining. But Chen Yu was exuberant now. The first live broadcast, only half a day, and made more than 50. 000 dollars ah. Looking at it this way, I'll soon be able to make enough money to pay for my surgery and medical bills. On top of that, he had also harvested 5 copies of Heavenly Chi Luck, and his cultivation had risen quite a bit. The realm had also reached the body tempering realm minor achievement. Right now he was in unbelievably good shape. According to his estimation, this physical quality now, if he participated in some Olympics, he should be able to break the world record easily. Live streaming, what a moneymaker. Chun Yu couldn't help but lament. It was a live broadcast with only a dozen or so viewers. But every time a fortune is told, a gas brings out on the air. And each time the bounty was very generous. Imagine a living god who says what he wants. Who dares to be stingy when it comes to this reward? Tomorrow, should make enough money for my mother's surgery. Chen Yu was very confident. Network wide, he's one of a kind. No one else could imitate it if they wanted to. After a little bit of recuperation, Chen Yu began to scrutinize the immortal cultivation system. 
Before his eyes, an interface appeared that only he could see. There are all kinds of categories on it, and there's some kind of mall or something. Chen Yu tried, but was currently unable to unlock it due to his cultivation level being too low. The Immortal Cultivation System. This is my chance. I want to become a red dust immortal. Change my fate and my mother's. Chen Tai, I will definitely find you. I want to see what you really look like. I'm going to ask you why you left me and my mother behind. Do you have an ounce of guilt? In the simple and dilapidated rented room, Chen Yu knelt on the ground and let out a low roar like a wild beast. Two lines of clear tears ran unbridled across her cheeks. Years of aggravation, despair, resentment, pain, and stress came rushing out at this moment. Chen Tai is Chen Yu's father, although he had never seen it. Wu Xiaolan had spoken the name in his nightly dreams. He had also asked where the hell his father had gone, but Wu Xiaolan always kept her mouth shut. It was just that many nights he saw Wu Xiaolan sitting alone in the living room sobbing. Every New Year's Eve, other people's families are reunited and happy. The two of them, he and Wu Xiaolan, guarded the cold house, and every second seemed so long and silent. On the other side, after Li Nanrui turned off the live broadcast, he was still red-faced and his body was gently trembling with excitement. Pulling out his cell phone, he broadcasts a call. Dad. Ha ha, you'll never guess what kind of strange people I met today. There's a solution to our family's troubles. A cottage with a bright and spacious study. A middle-aged man held a cigar in one hand and a phone in the other. Oh, the odd man out? What's going on? When he heard the call from Li Nan Rue, he raised an eyebrow, a little surprised. The man's name was Lu Tianhao, a famous wealthy businessman in the southern city and the chairman of the Tianchang Group. The house in the Pearl Elegant residence that Lu Mo is now living in was also bought for him by Lu Tianhao. I met a fortune teller online, leaving Nan Rue, or Lu Mo, to make peace with what had happened. Lu Tianhao listened quietly, his frown deepening. Dad, that master is amazing. You must meet him. Isn't our family in trouble now? If we have his help, we'll definitely be able to resolve it. Li Nanrui's tone was agitated. Tianchung Group is involved in many industries, but lately, I don't know why, but everything has been going wrong. The project was robbed by others, inexplicably caused many lawsuits, and many backbones left their jobs. A series of things that are just too strange. Li Nanrui always wondered if it was bad luck. When he met Chen Yu today, it suddenly occurred to him that perhaps Chen Yu was able to help Tianchang Group get through its difficulties. Lu Tianhao was silent for a moment, let out a long sigh, and shook his head slightly. Little M.O., you're still too young. This kind of crook, it fooled you? What fortune telling? It's just a scam. Lu Tianhao inhaled his cigar and exhaled a mouthful of smoke, sneering. Not really, he's so good at math. He can count car accidents. Li Nan Rue hurriedly defended himself. A car accident? Ha! Couldn't someone who really wanted to lie to you have gotten a car accident on purpose? But why would he lie to me? There's no reason. Li Nan Rue still didn't believe it. Lu Tianhao's face, hidden in the smoke, a pair of eyes with the vicissitudes of reading a thousand sales. Why? Because you are my Lu Tianhao's son, making such a big commotion. I'm afraid that the drunkard is not drunk. Lu Tianhao didn't believe in so-called fortune-telling masters. In all these years, he had met so many bullies and demons. What outrageous things had he not seen? The so-called fortune tellers are nothing more than frauds. Lu Tianhao was a famous rich merchant in the southern city. How many people were hitting on him? It made sense to approach him through Lu Mo. But dad, Li Nan Rue wanted to continue his defense. There's no need for buts. The group's business is not something that can be solved by a district crook. You should also keep your eyes peeled. So you don't fall for this kind of clumsy trickery. I have something else to do. So I'll leave it for now. Tu Do Lu. Lu Tianhao hung up the phone and shook his head with a cold smile. Master of Divine Calculations? Ha! <laughs> Ridiculous! On the opposite side, Li Nan Rue secretly gritted his teeth and did not agree with Lu Tianhao's words. If car accidents are frauds, what are other people's fortune telling? It's all a trust? It's unrealistic to even think about it. Master is never a liar. Tomorrow live broadcast, and then ask the master to calculate for Tianchang. On the other hand, in the South City Health and Civil Affairs Bureau, Xiao Lu was eating lunch in the cafeteria. Master, do you think that in this world, there really is a master fortune teller? Across the street, a middle-aged man with a face full of vicissitudes, who had just picked up a mouthful of rice, lifted his head at the words and grinned. Of course I have. I've caught fortune-telling masters over the years, 800 if not a thousand, and they're all in the number telling fortunes right now. The man's name is Zhao Yuanshan, an old constable, substitute word, you know, in the Weiman Bureau, and Xiao Li's master. No, I mean the kind of person who can really project the future. Does this kind really exist? Xiao Lu immediately explained. Zhao Yuanshan raised his eyebrows, looked Xiao Lu up and down, 
and puffed. Little brat, were you fooled? Here, tell me, what has the swindler used to get a ghostly wit like you to fall for it? Shaola didn't hide it and told Zhao Yuan Shan about the live broadcast. Yo, this is interesting. This scammer is playing big. Zhao Yuan Shan raised his eyebrows and was filled with surprise. Master, you say this is designed? But the one who got into a car accident was director Lu's brother. So this can be designed? Shaola stared with wide eyes, somewhat in disbelief. To the exclusion of all possibilities, the impossible is the truth. How in the world could anyone possibly calculate a car accident? It must have been elaborate. Don't forget, that Li Nanrue, is Lu Tianhao's son. This crook probably wants to do something big. His target is Lu Tianhao. Listening to Zhao Yuanshan's analysis, Xiao Le felt very reasonable. But vaguely, he felt something was wrong somewhere. Zhao Yuanshan took a mouthful of rice, grinned, and rubbed his chin. But this crook is interesting. I'll join you tomorrow to see how he's going to keep playing. That night, Shen Yu went to the hospital to accompany the bed. The owed medical fees paid. There is a more than 30. 000 remaining. Holding this money, Shen Yu was more energized. The next day, he was shocked when he turned on the air. Yesterday there were only a dozen people in the live room, but today it suddenly skyrocketed to more than 2,000 people. Ha ha, master is online. Nan Rue sends his regards. On the other end of the screen, Li Nan Rue logged on to the big one and typed a quick greeting, a little agitated. There are so many people on the air, and he has a lot to do with it. Many people were curious about Chen Yu after he shared his fortune-telling experience on his live stream last night. That's why they're all here today. Master, that's him, that's the man. In the Wayman Bureau, Xiao Le pointed at Chen Yu in the screen and unconsciously shouted. Zhao Yuanshan narrowed his eyes, his gaze as sharp as a falcon's, constantly sizing up Chen Yu. Master Yu, ha, doesn't look very old, but he has a big mouth. Master Yu, is Chen Yu's nickname on the fast sound platform. Let me get a good look at him today. Zhao Yuanshan encircled his hands as if he was interrogating a prisoner. The usual rules apply. If you want your fortune told, just connect the dots. The public screen was very lively. Really? Is this fortune telling accurate? It feels a bit fake. Is it some kind of setup? This glance is fake. It can't be real. The comments were full of skepticism and most people weren't convinced. Lianonwi was trying to connect, but another man beat him to it. When the connection was successful, there was a woman across the room. A man in his mid-thirties, good-looking, a six or seven. She was exquisitely made up and wore a long wraparound dress with a lot of style. Master, can you do some math for me? The woman smiled and opened her mouth, hooking her finger at Chen Yu. Calculate it correctly. Sister has a reward yo. Obviously, the woman did not believe Chen Yu, and her tone was full of flirtation. A wolf howled in the live room. Ow oh, wow. The imperial sister is molesting the fortune teller online. Master. Hurry up and fool this sister and let me have her. It feels like the guru is going to flip today. It is obvious that the beauty is more popular with the general public than Chen Yu. Chen Yu didn't care about the woman's attitude and unleashed the heavenly chance technique. Yao Ruoyan, 31 years old, native of the southern city, director of the sales department of the Lu Si group. Listening to Chen Yu's words, Yao Ruoyan's smile gradually disappeared and her eyes grew whiter and whiter. Like before she left Namri, she was surprised. What Chen Yu said was surprisingly not even close. A lot of this information is so private to her that outsiders have no way of knowing. This master feather, he can't really tell fortunes, can he? In the live broadcast room, the others were also shocked when they saw Yao Ruoyan's face change. Ha, huh? what's wrong with sis? Why do you have that look on your face? Holy shit, it's not going to hit the mark, is it? Bro, if you're serious, you'll lose. Do you understand the live set? Ha, huh? this woman must be a trustee. The acting is good. Li Nanrui skimmed his lips and sneered. Tor, how is that possible? The master's methods are heavenly, and you mortals don't even understand them. Master, what do you think? Xiao Lu opened his mouth to inquire. Keep looking. Zhao Yuanshan's eyelids shrugged in a calm manner. Yao Ruoyan stroked her hair to hide her shock. Master, there's no point in talking about this. Talk about the future. Chen Yu let out a long sigh and shook his head. You don't have a future because, you're about to die. When these words came out, the live broadcast instantly exploded. Inside the Wayman Bureau, Zhao Yuanshan's shrugged eyelids immediately lifted, and a horrifyingly refined light burst out from his eyes, about to die. Such words immediately caused a furor on the air. Holy shit, that's really bold too. Does the anchor know what he's talking about? What's the deal with feeling a little scared all of a sudden? Shaola turned his head to look at Zhao Yuanshan, his pupils shrinking slightly. Master, is this, is this one of the means of deception? Zhao Yuanshan's face was serious and he didn't say a word. Honestly, 
He had encountered a lot of bizarre and strange things in his many years of practice. Many charlatans, too, will fool their victims with words like bloodshed, but this is live. The two were so far apart and so many people were watching. The chances of being dismantled are high when you say something like that. The only possibility is that this woman is an arranged trust. Li Nanrui looked at the lively public screen and skimmed his lips. A bunch of mortals. How dare they question the master. Ridiculous. Yao Ruoyan looked flustered and barely managed to squeeze out a smile. Oh master. You're teasing me. Aren't you? How am I going to die? Chen Yu said. In another 15 minutes, there will be a roving bandit disguised as a courier knocking on your room door. This man's name is Wu Luo. He's vicious and carries several lives on his back. After you open the door, he'll come rushing in and then look at you in all your glory. Eventually, after he's robbed something, he'll get you killed and roam again. Chen Yu's voice was flat and did not carry the slightest bit of emotion. The crowd in the live broadcast room, however, felt a cold air from the bottom of the feet straight up. Those words, they're so creepy. Yao Ruoyan's scalp went numb. Her heart thumped wildly, and her breath trembled. Yourself, will you die? Xiao Le stared in disbelief. Master, this, is this true? Zhao Yuanshan stared dead at the screen. Wu Luo, this person does exist. Just two days ago, a meeting was just held above to notify that Wu Luo had strayed into South City. But this news, how did this guy know? If this is a hoax, how is he going to end it in 15 minutes? He's related to Wu Luo? Or can he, indeed, tell fortunes? No, not right. I get it. The woman is a trustee. So that's how they arranged it. After all, Zhao Yuanshan was a veteran constable, and with a flash of his eyes, he made a judgment. Master, what shall I, what shall I do? Yao Ruoyan's teeth chattered and she couldn't stop trembling. Newspaper well, call the guardianship bureau at once. In the meantime, you lock the door and don't let anyone in. But, but what if he doesn't come? He will definitely come. Chen Yu was decisive. I, I know. Yao Ruoyan nodded, picked up her other cell phone, and tremblingly dialed the Wayman Bureau. After being informed of the situation, Yao Ruoyan went to the kitchen and grabbed a kitchen knife, clutching it tightly in her hand. Time. Minutes and seconds pass. Everyone in the live feed was waiting with bated breath. No one expected to see this content just by watching a live broadcast. Zhao Yuan Shan, however, narrowed his eyes and smiled coldly. It's quite a performance. Unfortunately, fake is just fake after all. Not only is Yao Ruoyan a trustee, but the so-called Wu Luo is also a trustee. Most likely, this master feather had heard some news about Wu Luo, so he casually borrowed a name. Just now, Yao Ruoyan was just pretending to make a phone call. Someone will come to the door later and play along with the act. Yao Ruoyan didn't open the door, and another set of people arrested the so-called Wu Luo. Finally, Yao Ruoyan opened the door and showed the people in the broadcast room the full picture. In this way, the scam completes the closed loop. The charlatan's divine arithmetic persona took hold. It's not a small gesture, and it's cleverly designed, but it's just a little contrived and unnatural looking. I've been in the business for so many years, and this scammer is only a little above average. Zhao Yuanshan skimmed his mouth and commented condescendingly. Xiao Lu looked at Zhao Yuanshan, somewhat confused. Zhao Yuanshan told Xiao Lu about his deduction. Is that so? Xiao Li's face was odd. Like, I got hit in the face like that yesterday? The atmosphere in the live room was depressing. Soon, 15 minutes passed. Knock knock. There was a knock on the door. Yao Ruoyan shivered in fear. The live stream was even more explosive. There's a knock on the door. Man, someone's really coming. Calm down. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Yeah, not necessarily true. Holy shit, that's so scary I can't even look at it. Yao Ruoyan staggered up, clutching the kitchen knife tightly as she walked towards the door. Since he was mic'd up in the living room, the camera was pointed right at the front door so the people on the air could just about see everything. Hello, the delivery you ordered has arrived. Please open the door. Outside the door of the room, a low male voice rang out. The doors are not very good quality and the soundproofing is very poor. The comments flew up as they were heard in the live room. My chow, what a courier. Man, talk about a hit. Never open the door or you're dead. I have a feeling. Could this be a coincidence? Coincidence? Is there such a thing as coincidence in your family? I'm sure it's a setup. Anyway, if the pretty girl doesn't open the door, we can't see what's going on outside. Magic shows have touts, and this woman might be a tout too. In the room, Yao Ruoyan had already walked to the door. She was pale and shaking, one heart already in her throat. Through the cat's eye, she saw that outside, a man with a ducktail hat, holding a suitcase, was standing outside. I, I didn't order a delivery. You, you delivered the wrong one. Yao Ruoyan opened her mouth. 
There was silence outside for a moment and said, The delivery address is indeed written as your home. Please open the door and confirm it first. No, no, you go. There was another long silence. Pretty girl, please open the door and take a look. We are going to get a complaint for returning the item. Seeing the other party so persistent, Yao Ruoyan's scalp tingled and her heart had gripped together. She was 100% certain that the guy out there was no good. Live in the booth, viewers witnessed the whole thing. Quite a few people's thoughts were in line with Xia Yuanshan's. As I expected, we didn't see the man outside the door by the end of the day. It was obviously a trick. Gee, there are so many scammers on the internet nowadays. What a tactic. Nan Rue ah, uh, you can grow up. You are purely being fooled. Zhao Yuanshan looked at the comments on the public screen and nodded with a smile. Not bad. It seems like there is still a high level of anti-bombing awareness, which is commendable. But just at this moment, a sudden commotion resounded outside the door. Don't move. On your knees. Cuff him. Wu Luo. Where the hell are you running to? After the clamor, the door was quiet. Moments later. Knock knock. The knock came again. Hello? We're from the Guardian Bureau. Please open the door. Yao Ruoyan looked through the cat's eye before she dared to open the door. After opening the door, seven or eight men in uniform appeared on the live feed. Wu Luo was handcuffed behind his back and dropped to his knees. Girl, thanks to you reporting the well, we were able to catch this bastard Wu Luo. Don't worry, it's okay. After pacifying them, they took Wu Luo away from the scene. The live stream was completely abuzz. Really, Naya it's true. Holy shit, this isn't a setup? This nigga, did I just see the arrest scene? Holy shit, it's scary to think about. Now does anyone say it's a setup again? Man, this master is too awesome. The first divine calculator, the absolute number one divine calculation, comments off on bipolar reversal. All of them were worshipping Chen Yu. Zhao Yuanshan stared at the seven or eight people at Yao Ruoyan's door with white eyes. Lao Zhang, Er Zhang, and Egg Tao. Those involved in the operation were all his colleagues. Yao Ruoyan, it wasn't an act just now. He really called? Master, this, what does this say? Xiao Lu was confused. What the hell else to say? Have this master feather come to the Guardian Bureau and cooperate with our hanging investigation? Xiao clicked and left a comment on the live stream. Hello, the South City Health and Human Services Department has your attention. Please come and file within 24 hours. The netizens were shocked to see Xiao Li's comment. My Chao, master is so awesome that the Guardian Bureau has been alarmed. All that can be said is that the master is awesome. Would love to know what the comrades at the Guardian Bureau look like now? Ha ha, I guess a face. If the master joins the Guardian Bureau, won't the crime solving rate rattle upward? Chen Yu also saw Xiao Li's message, but didn't care. There's no fear of ghosts knocking at the door if you haven't done anything wrong. Even if it does go to the guardianship board, it's nothing. Master, what now? Xiao Lu opened his mouth to inquire. Zhao Yuanshan clenched his fists and said, Ask the people from the technical section to help out and find out who this master feather really is. Make sure he comes over and checks it out. Even if there's no problem, it's still a case. Being able to know Wu Luo's whereabouts made it hard not to wonder if Chen Yu had some kind of relationship with Wu Luo. Good, I'll get right on it. Let's not rush it yet. And then we'll see it live. Zhao Yuanshan wanted to see what other amazing things this Chen Yu would do next. The live stream continues, but the heat has completely taken off. The number of people in the live stream also skyrocketed several times. Many people are commenting, apologizing for the earlier questioning. Gifts of all kinds pretty much dominate the screen. The people who came in behind them were all in a daze. Seeing this, Li Nanrui grinned. Earlier, they had questioned Shen Yu, and Li Nanrui had desperately refuted them. Unfortunately it didn't work at all. Now that the polls are reversed, it's just not a good time. Yao Ruoyan returned to the camera and bowed repeatedly to Chen Yu. Thank you master, thank you master. Woohoo, if it wasn't for master, I, I, I'll swipe a gift for master right away. Speaking to the emotional point, Yao Ruoyan could no longer control it and cried like a pear with rain. She clicked her fingers together and swiped 10 carnivals. After deducting the platform draw, another 20, 000 or so arrived. Well, have a nice life. Next, Chen Yu broke the streak. At the same time, a strand of pure energy came from the void and merged into Chen Yu's body. After changing Yao Ruoyan's destiny, he also gained heavenly Qi Qi. After telling Yao Ruoyan's fortune, there were quite a few more people who even miked their fortunes. Every time I have my fortune told, it has been very accurate without the slightest deviation. Li Nan Rui tried several times, but did not grab the opportunity to connect the microphone, anxious and scratching his ears. Finally, before Chen Yu was about to go off the air, Li Nan Rui succeeded in connecting with the microphone. Master, it's me, Li Nan Rui. This time, 
I want to ask you to help me calculate the matter of my father's company. Look at this can you count? Turning to the camera, Li Nanrui took out a picture of Lu Tianhao. It can count. Chen Yu unleashed the heavenly chance technique and a flash of purple flashed in his eyes. All the information. Chen Yu grasped all of it. About to speak, Li Nanrui stopped Chen Yu. Master, can I add you as a friend in private message with me? Chen Yu thought about it and nodded, leaving Nanrui in great joy. He disconnected the connection and swiped 50 carnivals in a row. Chen Yu was all taken aback by the largesse. After getting off the air, Chen Yu sent a private message to Li Nanrui. After reading Chen Yu's private message, Li Nanrui clenched his cell phone fiercely. Finance Director Su Mingsheng, so it's you, the mole. How dare you betray my father and collude with the Sun Group? Just you wait, I won't let you go. After thinking about it, Li Nanrui sent another private message to Chen Yu, wanting to meet with Chen Yu in private and make friends. Chen Yu thought about it and did not refuse. Lu Tianhao was a wealthy man in the southern city, and befriending his son would be a good connection. After agreeing to base himself below the line tomorrow, Chen Yu began to take stock of this time's harvest. First is income. Today a live broadcast, after deducting the platform share, Chen Yu earned a full 160, 000 dollars. The cost of my mother's surgery is no longer a problem at all. The second is cultivation. After absorbing the heavenly chi and luck, his realm was also upgraded. Nowadays, he was already at the strength of the chi practicing realm's minor achievement. In the path of immortal cultivation, the realms are clearly defined. Chi refining, foundation establishment, node dan, yuaning, god transformation, void refining, harmonization, mahayana, and transition. Each realm is subdivided into minor, major, and perfect. Although Chen Yu was only a small success in the chi practicing realm, when placed in the modern world, it was more than the imagination of an ordinary person. Nowadays, his physical quality exploded, and his strength, speed, and agility had been greatly strengthened. Go to the hospital first and pay for the surgery. Go rent a nicer house again, and mom can recuperate when the surgery is over. Making up his mind, Chen Yu went out to do his business. Inside the Guardian Bureau, Xiao Lu and Li Yuan Shan stared at the cell phone screen without saying a word. The broadcast had ended, but the two still hadn't returned to their senses. Master, say, is this, is this true? Shale's brain was a mess. Right now, he didn't know if he should trust Chen Yu or not. Zhao Yuanshan had two big heads. He was also a little confused. At first, Chen Yu was a liar in his eyes. Everything, it's just a ruse. But watching it live, that's not the case at all. These people in Lian Mai's fortune telling are from all over the world. Again, everyone counts a variety of things. After counting, they all thanked Chen Yu profusely. What kind of people has Zhao Yuanshan not seen over the years? Whether it was pretend or real, he could tell at a glance. It turned out that everyone's reactions were so true all the way through. He didn't believe that anyone could fool him. And, damn it, your own co-workers have gone to arrest people. How can this be fake? Since he's from South City, let's get him first. I'm going to go find the old quarter and report back on this. Zhao Yuanshan left the room and came to Ji Dongming's office. Across the desk, a middle-aged man with graying hair was staring at a piece of information in his hand with a frown on his face. Seeing Zhao Yuan Shan come in, Ji Dongming frowned. I say Zhao Yuan Shan, don't you know how to knock when you come in? I'm your leader at least, can you show me some respect? Zhao Yuan Shan sat across from him with a big grin and waved his hand. Don't care about these details, what are you looking at? Ji Dongming let out a long sigh and put the information down, rubbing his brow. What else can I look at? Of course it's Wu Luo's information. Wu Luo has arrived in our south city in the past two days. I'm worried about what to do. This guy has a strong sense of counter-surveillance, and he is ruthless, and he has escaped from the roundup many times, so he is as slippery as a loach. If I don't find out soon, I won't be at peace in my heart, and I wonder, in a month's time, if we can catch him? Saying that, the worried look on Ji Dongming's face increased. Zhao Yuanshan grinned and said, Don't worry about it, Wu Luo was just arrested. What? Arrested? What happened? Ji Dongming rose up with a wide-eyed look of incredulity. It had been less than an hour since Wu Luo had been arrested, and the news hadn't reached Ji Dongming's side yet. Zhao Yuanshan didn't hide it, and told Yao Ruoyan the truth about reporting the well. Really? Great. Oops. This Yao Ruoyan is very resourceful and didn't open the door. However, how did she know that person was Wu Luo? Zhao Yuanshan said, This is exactly what I'm talking about. If I say that this is a fortune teller telling Yao Ruoyan, do you believe me? A fortune teller? What a joke. You're also a decades old constable. You believe in the tactics of this kind of charlatan? Blankly looking at Zhao Yuanshan, Ji Dongming looked like he was looking at an idiot. Zhao Yuanshan laughed bitterly. Look at this. 
Pulling out his cell phone, Zhao Yuanshan played the live video he had just recorded. Ji Dongming was speechless. I'd like to see who it is that can make a fool out of an old constable like you. At first, Zhao Dongming didn't care. Gradually, his face changed. After watching the entire process, Ji Dongming's eyes widened in shock. How is this? How is this possible? Zhao Yuanshan hugged his arms and laughed heartily. For some reason, seeing Ji Dongming like this was inexplicably a bit cool. Damn, still talking about me? Aren't you scared out of your wits? What's the feeling now? Old quarter? Still think he's a liar? This, Ji Dongming was speechless. Reason told him that fortune telling and all that was simply not possible. But the video is right here. If it's not fortune telling, how does that explain it? I've called out to check on him, and perhaps meeting him face to face will solve all the mysteries. Ji Dongming nodded as Zhao Yuanshan finished speaking. Good, get him here. I'd like to see how the hell he did all that. Fortune telling? I've been doing this for so many years. What haven't I experienced? I don't believe it. Slapping his hand on the table, Ji Dongming's eyes erupted with a refined light. Tian Chang Group, Chairman's Office. A roar continued to ring out. Wastes, a bunch of wastes, can't even manage an acquisition project. What's the use of having you guys? Get out, get out of here, all of you. After everyone had gone out, Lu Tianhao slapped his butt on the boss chair and let out a long sigh with a weary look on his face. Just a moment ago, Tan Chang Group's acquisition project was yellowed again. Recently, the Tan Chang Group has encountered a lot of trouble. Instead, it's the competition, Sun Group, that's riding high. All this made Lu Tianhao very troubled. Just then, Li Nanrui walked into the office. Dad, what's wrong with you? Nothing, what brings you here? Lu Tianhao pulled himself together and inquired with a frown. Li Nanrui grinned and said, I've come to help the Tianchang group. I had that master do the math. And I already know why the Tianchang group has become like this. Enough. This is nonsense. Lu Tianhao interrupted Li Nanrui's words with a roar. What fortune teller again? Are you out of your mind? Can't you see that this is a setup? I single-handedly created the Tianchang group. Through how many storms and tribulations? A fortune teller can help my Tianchang group? Tell me instead. How can he help? Can it be that if he draws a peace talisman? My Tian Chang group will be fine? Lu Tianhao slammed the table and growled loudly. Li Nanrui said, Don't be angry. Dad, it's like this. The master has done the math. And everything that's wrong with the Tian Chang group is the result of the financial controller. Su Mingsheng, he has secretly colluded with the Sun group to bring us down. The few things that have happened recently are all because Su Mingsheng leaked the secrets of the Tian Chang group in advance. This afternoon, he and Sun Fury, the eldest son of the Sun group, We'll meet at the Rueda Cafe on Jiaming Road. The next day, Su Mingsheng will report to you about investing in the South Lake project. On that project, our Tianchang group will suffer a big loss. Lu Tianhao froze. You, where did you get this information from? It was calculated by the master. The grandmaster also said that if it continues, the Tianchang group will go bankrupt in a year. Li Nanrui was a bit anxious. Dad, you must trust the master. Lu Tianhao was silent. Fortune telling and all that. He naturally didn't believe in it. But after this, he did feel that there was something wrong with Su Mingsheng. There was more or less a bit of Su Mingsheng in the recent events. I didn't care before. But now that I think about it more, it's a little odd. I know. I'll keep an eye on it. After sending Li Nanrui away, Lu Tianhao thought about it and made a call. Not long after, a middle-aged man of similar age to Lu Tianhao came to Lu Tianhao's office. Lu Dong, what is it that you are looking for me? The visitor's name was Xiao Yun and they had been together since the beginning of Lu Tianhao's business. Old Shaw, you're the person I trust the most. This afternoon you go to the Rueda coffee shop on Jiaming Road and help me make sure of one thing. Lu Tianhao told Su Mingxing's story in a nutshell. Although Li Nanrui spoke bizarrely, this kind of thing was better to be believed than not. Without making sure, Lu Tianhao's heart was hardly at ease. Su Mingxing, he is a traitor? Dong Lu, where did you get this information from? Lu Tianhao let out a bitter smile and looked odd. Would you believe me if I said that I got the information from a fortune teller? Fortune telling? This, Xiao Yun was dumbfounded. People like Lu Tianhao, who is the character of my destiny, never believed in the so-called fate. And now, as a result, trusting a fortune teller? Well, don't ask too many questions. Go on. I know. Xiao Yun left the room with doubts. Lu Tianhao let out a long sigh. His body slammed heavily on the back of the chair and smiled to himself. I can't believe that I would trust a fortune teller? Ridiculous. Half a day passed quietly, and it was soon after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Lu Tianhao paced back and forth in his office, unable to sit still. Just then, Xiao Yun called. Lu Dong, it's been confirmed. Su Mingxing and Sun Fury met. He, indeed,
betrayed the group. Boom! As if Lu Tianhao had been struck by five thunderbolts, he froze in place and did not return to his senses for a long time. So, everything that's been going on lately is really that guy's doing? Good, really good. Su Mingsheng, I didn't think you'd dare to do such a thing? Sha, come back. I know. After hanging up the phone, Lu Tianhao's eyes were fierce and scary. It's not scary to have a mole. It's scary to not know who the mole is. Now that it's been exposed, it's no longer a threat. All that has been done will leave a mark. With a goal in mind, the investigation becomes easy. According to these things Su Mingsheng has done, it's already completely possible to send him in. It seems that that friend of Xiaomas is not an ordinary person. Lu Tianhao narrowed his eyes, his eyes meaningful. He still didn't quite believe that there was such a thing as fortune telling in the world. But being able to point out that Su Mingsheng was the mole made Lu Tianhao curious. After thinking about it, he made a call to Li Nanrue. M.O., I'd like to thank that master friend of yours. Can you arrange that? Ha ha, dad you finally realize how powerful the master is, right? No problem. It just so happens that I'm going to see him tomorrow. Yes. Ending the call, Lu Tianhao turned his head to look at the cityscape outside the floor-to-ceiling window, somewhat lost in thought. What kind of a character could this master really be? At the same time, Chen Yu was accompanying his bed in the hospital when his body suddenly shook. He felt that there was a stream of pure heavenly qi luck injected into his body from the void. Looks like it's away from Nan Rui's father's side of things. Just as he was thinking about it, a call came from Li Nan Rui. Dinner? That's okay too. No need to be so polite. I'll just take a cab there. It's okay. Then you'll pick me up. Okay. I'll send you the address later. Tomorrow night, Lu Tianhao hosted a banquet at the Four Seas building for Chen Yu. During the daytime the next day, Chen Yu went live again. This time, the number of online viewers in the live broadcast room exceeded 5,000. After Chen Yu Lian Mai's fortune telling, he had received a lot of heavenly chances and luck, and his cultivation had improved a bit more. Not long after he went off the air, Ji Dongming looked at a piece of information in his hand with a sharp gaze. Chen Yu, is this the fortune telling master? Bring him here, and I'll ask him to his face what trick he's playing. South City Health and Human Services, a conference room. Chen Yu sat in it with an odd expression on his face. Never in a million years did he expect to be called out here. On the opposite side, there were Ji Dongming, Zhao Yuan Shan, and Xiao Lu. What exactly is the matter with calling me here? Three of you? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire without the slightest bit of fear. Although he had just stepped onto the path of immortal cultivation for only a few days, his mindset had already changed drastically. If placed in normal times, being called out by an organization like the Guardianship Bureau, Chen Yu would be very apprehensive and afraid. But not now. He wasn't flustered at all. Immortals and mortals are different. No matter how strong the Guardian Bureau is, it's just a grain of sand in the red dust. This is the bottom line and calmness that comes with strength. Ji Dongming looked Chen Yu up and down, secretly surprised in his heart. I really didn't expect that the so-called fortune teller would be so young, especially those eyes. Were those really the eyes of a young man in his twenties? It was as calm as a dome without wind. Ji Dongming had also met many big names, but when compared to Chen Yu, he was appalled to realize that it seemed that those people were inferior to Chen Yu. The thought startled him, coughing lightly twice. He settled down and spoke slowly. Chen Yu, I invited you here to find out about Wu Luo. How did you know he would go to Yao Ruoyan? Coincidence? Design? Prejudgment? Ji Dongming went straight to the point. Chen Yu laughed. It's very simple. It's fortune telling. You think that I would believe such a thing? Ji Dongming's face sank, pretending to be angry. Chen Yu remained unchanged, saying, whether you believe it or not, this is the truth. Humph. In that case, do the math for me and see what happens to me next. On the side, Zhao Yuanshan opened his mouth with a cold smile, his aura aggressive. Xiao Lu glanced at Zhao Yuanshan with secret admiration. Generally speaking, but all the scammers, they have to cloud a mountain of a mess in order to gather some information in the conversation for the next scam to lay the groundwork. However, Zhao Yuanshan struck directly, not talking much at all and not revealing any information at all, which showed a wealth of experience. You say you can tell fortunes? Well, then, direct count. How else are you going to fake it? Chen Yu looked at Zhao Yuanshan as the heavenly qi technique was unleashed. Ten minutes from now, you'll get a call from your wife that your son got into a fight with someone at school and was asked to be a parent. In twenty minutes, one of your female co-workers will bring you three milk teas. Zhao Yuanshan stared at Chen Yu with wide eyes. Incredulously, Ji Dongming's body shook as he stared dead at Chen Yu. Xiao Li's mouth opened wide in confusion. The average fortune teller wouldn't even dare to go into such detail. After all, the more detailed it is, the easier it is to dismantle. So many times, fortune tellers say vague things, 
That way whatever the future holds can be explained. But Shen Yu isn't. His answer was too specific. You can tell if it's real or fake in a heartbeat. What fortune-telling charlatan would dare to play like that? For a while, the three of them were wide-eyed, not knowing how to continue their inquiry. Chen Yu's words had completely disrupted their thoughts and plans. Master, why don't you wait? Xiao Le gulped and opened his mouth. Okay, just wait. Zhao Yuanshan took out his cell phone and put it on the table. I'd like to see if my wife will call later? My son has always been a good boy and would never fight. Chen Yu smiled without saying anything and sat quietly. Time, slowly lost. The three men stared dead at the cell phone on the table, their breathing becoming tense. Ten minutes later, buzz, buzz, jingle bells, the cell phone is ringing. On the screen, the words Mother Tiger stood out very harshly. Holy crap, a real phone call? Zhao Yuanshan let out a cry of surprise and picked up the phone. What, Kotomine got into a fight at school? You're heading to school now? Good. Ji Dongming and Xiao Li's eyes were wide with astonishment. Really? Really? Well, really. The three of them sucked in a breath of cool air as they looked at Chen Yu in shock. They all know very well that it is never possible to falsify in such matters. Could it be that this young man in front of him, really knew how to tell fortunes? Again. Wait. No. Isn't there still milk tea? Ji Dongming gulped. He didn't even notice himself that his voice had taken on a touch of awe. The three continued to wait. After another ten minutes, a female co-worker with a ponytail walked in carrying three cups of milk tea. Han, what are you doing in here? Hey. The milk tea store was having an event. Buy four, get three off. So I got you three a cup as well. Looking at the milk tea placed on the table, Ji Dongming's three men were dumbfounded. Raising their heads to look at Chen Yu, the three of them simultaneously shuddered. When all possibilities are eliminated, the last impossibility becomes the answer. The young man in front of me can really tell fortunes. He really can be unpredictable. In this world, there really is such an existence. At this moment, the three felt like their worldview had collapsed. Gentlemen, may I go now? Ha, huh? oh, that's fine. That, you, you can't mess around with your powers. Be a good, qualified, law-abiding citizen. Ji Dongming subconsciously opened his mouth. Please don't worry, I understand. Chun Yu got up and greeted him, leaving the conference room on his own. In the room, there was dead silence. You guys, what do you think? After a long silence, Ji Dongming opened his mouth to inquire. Zhao Yuanshan stared at his cell phone with a bitter smile on his face. How else can I look? Get on your fucking knees and watch. I really didn't think that there really is such a strange person in this world. It's really a small life scratching my ass and opening my eyes. Xiao La nodded and said, I'm long in the tooth. Zhao Yuanshan let out a long sigh and nodded. Yeah, it's too powerful. I really didn't think that this kind of existence still exists in this world. Thinking about what had just happened, Ji Dongming still had the unreal feeling of dreaming. This was completely beyond the scope of the trio's cognition. Today's events are to be kept strictly confidential and must not be divulged. Zhao Yuanshan and Xiao Lu nodded and left the conference room. Ji Dongming thought for a moment, took out his cell phone, and dialed a number. Uncle Li, are you home? I have something I want to report to your place. Okay, I'll be there after work. Hanging up the phone, Ji Dongming secretly clenched his fists. With such a foreigner, Uncle Li should be very interested. Chen Yu left the Weiman Bureau bought some nutrients, and returned to the hospital to accompany the bed. In the next two days, when the conditions are right, we will have to do the surgery for mom. Chen Yu is also a little nervous. Mom, have an orange. Chen Yu sat on the edge of the bed and peeled an orange and fed it to Wu Xiaolan. Wu Xiaolan's complexion was much better than before, thanks to the many supplements Chen Yu had bought. Feather, there won't be any problems with the surgery. Will there? Mom's a little scared. Don't worry mom, the doctors here are all highly qualified. There won't be any problems. Chen Yu sighed softly in his heart. Unfortunately, his realm was still too low, and he was unable to use many immortal cultivation techniques. Otherwise, this kind of disease would not need surgery at all, and by directly refining a pill of rejuvenation, it would be able to be completely cured. It's still important to find a way to improve your strength as soon as possible. Making up his mind, Chen Yu stayed at the hospital until evening before going home to take a shower and change his clothes. On the Tian Chang group's side, Lu Tianhao was in a Rolls Royce, escorted by a Mercedes Benz in front and behind. Smoking his cigar, Lu Tianhao's eyes were like electricity. Master Chen, I've come to meet you. The sun is setting and the golden afterglow is spreading all over the land. The neighborhood where Chen Yu rented a room was very old, and there was a touch of decay in this sunset. Downstairs in a building, seven or eight middle-aged women gathered together and were chatting about their parents. Egu, that kid in my family is not competitive. He got a job the day before yesterday. 
and it's only about $200,000 a year. Oops, that's good. My brat is worse. Graduate school still has to study for a year. His tutor thinks highly of him and wants to introduce his own daughter to him. How nice for you to have your children around. Unlike my boy, who graduated and is working abroad and doesn't come back. It looks like a complaint, but it's a take. As they chatted, the topic came to Ching Yu. By the way, what's up with the tenant at the 403? They've been staying in their room for the last couple days and not going out to work. The tenant of 403 refers to Ching Yu. Hey, who knows? I heard the kid didn't even go to college. Just screwed in the factory. An older woman bristled with disdain. The other few people were filled with surprise when they heard this. These days, there are still people who haven't even been to college? Gee, that's no good. I heard he was fired for molesting a little girl in the factory a while back. Now it's a hobo. A goo. What a sin. Isn't this scum? Who says it isn't? And I don't know how we're so unlucky as to be neighbors with such people. That's not a nice person oh. Next time tell the 403 landlord to hurry up and get rid of him. A few people gossiped and looked down on Chun Yu. When compared to his own juniors, Chen Yu was really too far apart. In the middle of the discussion, there was a sudden commotion in the neighborhood. A Rolls Royce, slowly approaching. The sculpture of the flying goddess in front of the car shines with a golden luster in the afterglow of the setting sun. Two pure black Mercedes Benzes were in front and behind, like two faithful guards. The residents who were walking around, all looked sideways. This neighborhood isn't exactly an upscale one. On a normal day, an ordinary Audi or BMW is already considered a luxury car. A car of Rolls Royce's caliber is insulated from their world. Never expected to show up here today. A few middle-aged Amazons who were chatting idly, immediately stared in disbelief. Boy, what big shot is this? Ouch. I've heard my son talk about this car, like tens of millions of dollars. OMG. So expensive? As several people looked on in shock, the three cars got closer and closer and finally stopped in front of them. The car door opened and Lu Tianhao got out, with Lu Mo following closely at the side. In the middle of the neighborhood, all the gazes converged over, filled with curiosity. This is it? Lu Tianhao observed the environment of the neighborhood and was somewhat surprised. A grandmaster, and he lives in this shitty place? Well, this is the place, and the master said to call him when I got there. Lu Mo took out his cell phone and broadcast Chen Yu's number. A few of the older women stood frozen in place, their eyes glazed over. Maestro? What guru? We've lived here for decades. We've never heard of any masters. Is it the old Lee's house on the second floor? Nope. He's in business. But he's just plain. Or chose on the sixth floor. It's not right. Xiao Xiao usually carries bags for the leaders. Not that much energy. Thinking through their heads, they didn't know who this so-called master really was. Da 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 da. Inside the building, there was the sound of a step coming down the stairs. A figure, stepping out of the shadows, appeared in the afterglow of the setting sun. Chen Yu appeared in front of the crowd. Master, Lu Mo's eyes lit up, seeing Chen Yu's eyes. He was certain that the man in front of him was Master Yu. Breezy, transcendent, not like people in the red world. Only Master Feather seemed to have boundless skies in his eyes. Li Nan Rue, hello. Chen Yu smiled and nodded as a greeting. Off to the side, a couple of Amazons had their mouths wide open, completely confused. Isn't this the tenant from 403? Isn't he unemployed? What? How did you become a master? And a Rolls Royce to pick it up? That? Are you guys mistaken? He? He's just a tenant. An older woman opened her mouth to warn. Lu Tianhao ignored it and went straight forward to shake Chen Yu's hand with a smile on his face. Master Chen? Oh, my name is Lu Tianhao. Nice to meet you. I've already arranged a dinner in the Supreme Hall of the Four Seas Building. Please get on the bus. Master Chen. Okay. Thanks. Chun Yu looked calm, got into the Rolls Royce, and sailed away. What used to be a bland neighborhood is now like a boiling frying pan. Whether they were walking or gossiping, they all stared wide-eyed and watched Chun Yu leave in the luxury car. Even the residential buildings were full of people poking their heads out to watch the whole thing. Gee, who's that young man? Is he from our neighborhood? That guy seems to be a tenant in building 3? Oh my god. What kind of big shot is this that he surprised the Rolls Royce to pick him up? I didn't realize that there was such a character in our neighborhood. Even though Chun Yu had already left, the discussions about him did not stop. Everyone was speculating as to Chun Yu's identity. Some say that Chun Yu is the illegitimate son of some big shot, and is now being taken back. Some say Chun Yu is a young president with a $10 billion fortune. There were all kinds of rumors going around, leaving many young women secretly annoyed at how they had missed out on this kind of dominatrix in the same neighborhood. The few Amazons who had previously discussed Chun Yu were now wide-eyed and all dumbfounded. Everything just now was like a dream. A factory worker, transformed into a master? Lu Tianhao, my god, 
He's the chairman of the Tianchang Group, the great tycoon of our southern city. My son works in a company under their group. The other older woman also slapped her thigh hard. For C's house, that's one of the most upscale hotels in South City. The rich and famous, upscale hotels, set up banquets, respectfully. When these words came together, even a fool would know that Chun Yu was not ordinary. As soon as they thought of looking down on Chun Yu earlier, a few of them turned red and picked their feet in embarrassment. Are they even talking about this kind of existence? Car. Chen Yu sat in the back seat and closed his eyes. Li Nan Rue sat in the passenger seat, looking at Chen Yu through the rearview mirror, with strong admiration in his eyes. Lu Tianhao looked at Chen Yu with curiosity in his eyes. This is the fortune teller? Is he really that good? With a twinkle in his eye, Lu Tianhao smiled and opened his mouth. Master Chen, I heard that you are proficient in the way of fortune telling, saved Xiao Mo's life, and also solved my Tianchen group's crisis. I can't thank you enough. I don't know how Master calculated all this, can you give me another calculation? As soon as the words fell, Lu Tianhao's eyes turned and suddenly became much sharper. The lordly temperament brought about by years of drifting in and out of the business world is on full display at this moment. He wanted to see if Chen Yu was really capable or just an ordinary liar. Chen Yu locked eyes with him without the slightest avoidance, and his expression did not change. After thinking about it, Chen Yu slowly opened his mouth. I tell fortunes for money. Chen Yu spoke extremely seriously. Wealthy couple Dharma land. Although he had just stepped onto the path of immortal cultivation, Chen Yu's strength today was not yet able to transcend the red dust. Since money is important in this world, Lu Tianhao is such a rich man. It's reasonable to charge him some money for fortune telling. Lu Tianhao clearly froze. The next moment he slapped his thighs and laughed. Don't worry about it, Master Chen. As long as you've done the math correctly, I'll dedicate this amount. Lu Tianhao raised a finger and smiled. A hundred thousand? Lu Tianhao shook his head. One million. As long as Chun Yu was able to prove himself, then his value would be more than just a mere million dollars? Deal. Chen Yu looked at Lu Tianhao. A purple aura flashed in his eyes as he unleashed the Tianji skill. Lu Tianhao inexplicably shuddered, feeling as if he had stripped naked under Chen Yu's gaze. Everything is completely exposed. This young man is not simple. Lu Tianhao was secretly shocked. He had seen a lot of various characters in his decades of business, but there was no one like Chen Yu who gave him such a special feeling. Light, airy, and even a bit unearthly. Hey, I didn't expect it. Chen Yu averted his gaze. Master has calculated it? Lu Tianhao hurriedly asked after him. Aha. Uh -huh. So, how was it? It's bad. Chen Yu opened his mouth, causing Lu Tianhao to freeze. Forcing a smile, Lu Tianhao opened his mouth and inquired. What does Master mean by this? Chen Yu laughed. Master, slow down. That intersection ahead. Remember to stop. Ha, huh? why, there's no traffic light or pedestrians at that intersection? The driver froze, very surprised, but did as he was told. Lu Tianhao was stunned, not knowing what Chen Yu meant. The car came to a stop at the intersection. Just the next second, a young man suddenly sprang from the curb and dashed across the road. The speed was so fast that several people could only even see a flash of residual shadow. Lu Tianhao was startled and his hair stood on end. This person appeared too suddenly, if he hadn't stopped. Then according to the speed just now, this person would have already been knocked away. The reason why Ching Yu opened his mouth to remind him turned out to be because of this matter? He, who had counted on all this, what kind of divine trick is this? Undeclared? At this moment, Lu Tianhao's heart set off monstrous waves. What just happened couldn't have been arranged in advance. The only possibility was that Chen Yu really knew how to tell fortunes. Lu Tianhao's perception was completely turned upside down. At this moment, Chen Yu became incomparably mysterious giving him a feeling of looking up to him. In the car, the driver's face was white as a sheet, and he was trembling from fear. Apart from being shocked, Lu Mo had more admiration, especially seeing the shocked look on his father's face made Lu Mo's body tingle with pleasure. Dad, see, this is the real master. In the car, only Chen Yu remained calm. His name is Lu San, a college student who would have died in the crash. Tian Chang group suffered as a result, and Lu Mo was ostracized at the university as a result and finally broke up his relationship with you. Chen Yu spoke faintly. There was a touch of heavenly chi luck falling from the void, integrating into his body and enhancing his cultivation. Lu Tianhao trembled. Just thinking about the result made him feel unacceptable. Thank you, master. Thank you, master. At this moment, Lu Tianhao was heartily convinced and no longer dared to have the slightest doubt. After asking for Chen Yu's bank card number, Lu Tianhao transferred 1 million to Chen Yu on the spot. This was followed by a card. Master Chen, this is the door card for Villa 1 of Yunshang Heavenly Palace. It's considered my filial piety to Master Chen. Please smile. 
Li Nanrui sucked in a mouthful of cold air and his eyes went round. Yunshan Tiangong is the best upscale neighborhood in South City. Villa One is even the most expensive one inside, worth up to $300 million. At that time, Lu Tianhao had spent a lot of effort to buy this villa and beat many competitors before he succeeded. And as a result, it was just given away? It's too expensive. I can't have it. Chen Yu was also startled and opened his mouth. How can a villa be as expensive as Master Chen? Please also be sure to accept it. After several excuses, Lu Tianhao was still too kind to refuse, and Chen Yu could only accept it. Originally, he was going to rent a better house and wait until Wu Xiaolan was discharged from the hospital to use it for convalescence. Nowadays it's a relief from the difficulty of finding a house. Thanks, I owe you a favor. I'll help you in the future if you need it. Saying this, Chen Yu did not feel the slightest bit of discomfort. Lu Tianhao was able to exchange a set of houses for a promise from him. It was Lu Tianhao who took advantage of the situation. After all, he was a true immortal cultivator. Although nowadays the strength is still shallow and can only observe people's fortune telling. But as his cultivation grew deeper and deeper, his methods would become more and more subtle. Solving the difficulties Lu Tianhao encountered was not a problem. Really? Thank you master. Lu Tianhao cracked a smile. Isn't it Chen Yu's promise that he's throwing away so much money for? Money that can be earned again. But Chen Yu, this kind of extraordinary person, may be the only one in the whole world. It's a good call as to who is more important of the two. I really didn't expect that Tianhao would be able to meet a god like Master Chen. This is truly the creation of Tianhao. I know a doctor who is famous throughout the country. Master Chen's mother's surgery, it's on me. Master Chen's ability to see through the destinies of all beings is truly awesome. After ascertaining Chen Yu's ability, Lu Tianhao talked and laughed to draw closer to Chen Yu. While listening to Lu Tianhao's boasting, Chen Yu was secretly sighing. He can count others, but not himself. What he wanted to do most right now was to find out exactly where his father, Chen Taiyi, was. What happened back then, before he and his mother? This question could only be asked after Wu Xiaolan was discharged from the hospital. The group quickly arrived at Four C's house. The Four C's building was extremely luxurious as the most upscale hotel in South City. The entire hall was gilded. In the middle of the hall is a sculpture of a dragon, which is rumored to have been sculpted by a famous contemporary master for four months, and is worth $20 million. But anyone who could go to the Four C's restaurant for dinner was either rich or noble, and was considered a dignified figure in the southern city. Master Chen please, Lu Tianhao led the way in front, leading Chen Yu to the elevator and straight to the Supreme Hall on the top floor. As he crossed the hall, a few people were talking and laughing not far away. One of the young women stood out. She was tall, with long hair that fell over her shoulders, and was wearing a solid-colored, knee-length dress, and was covering her mouth as she giggled softly. With an unintentional glance, he happened to see Chen Yu enter the elevator. With just one glance, she froze. This guy, why does he look so familiar? Kairu, what's wrong with you? Frozen? Someone from the side of the room spoke up and inquired. The woman looked back and shook her head. Nothing, I think I saw a classmate. Looking in the direction of the elevator again, the woman's eyebrows furrowed slightly. That guy, seems to be my high school classmate. Chen Yu, but he dropped out of school before his senior year and I heard he went to work in a factory. How could he have come here? Could I be wrong? The woman's name is Xia Keiru, and she is now in her junior year at Kim Myung University in South City. The one who had just asked was Xia Keiru's sister-in-law. Xia Ling. Classmate? Who's that? It's awesome to get on that elevator. Looking at the gradually rising elevator, Xia Ling stared with rounded eyes. Hey, is that elevator special? Natsuka was a little curious. It was the first time she had come to eat at the Four C's house, and she didn't know much about the place. Xia Ling smilingly explained, That elevator is not ordinary. That is the special elevator of the Supreme Hall. A dedicated elevator? Natsuka froze slightly. Yeah, Four C's house is the best hotel in South City. It's very high class. The top floor is the Supreme Hall, which takes up an entire floor and is the hotel's most upscale box. A meal there costs at least $100, 000 or more, and you need to be extremely high status to get in. Looking at the elevator, there was a touch of awe and burning in Xia Ling's eyes. This special elevator is for the Supreme Hall. How can an ordinary person take it? If I get to ride this one time, it'll be worth it for the rest of my life. What is the origin of this classmate of yours? Ah, not bad oh. Xia Keiro covered her mouth in disbelief. It was the first time she had heard of these things. The treatment of the powerful is far beyond the imagination of ordinary people. I was wrong. It's not my classmate. Natsuka shook her head. She knew something about Chen Yu's situation. I'm afraid that people who go into the factory to work will never come to this place in their lives. Not to mention dinner at the Supreme Hall. Well, let's get inside. 
Don't be delayed as your eldest uncle is hemorrhaging money today and has invited us to eat here. Xia Ling greeted Xia Keiru and walked down the hall to one of the booths. In the Supreme Hall, a dozen people stood upright. These were all the executives of the Tianchang group, called out by Lu Tianhao as chaperones. Right now, Chen Yu had not yet arrived, and as they chatted idly with each other, they were all curious as to who exactly Lu Tianhao was feasting on today. After all, it had been a long time since Lu Tianhao had made such a big fuss. Ding dong, the elevator sounded. Chen Yu has arrived. Hello, glad to be of service. On either side of the elevator, for tall beauties in Chang Sam's bent respectfully in greeting. Master Chen please. Lu Tianhao had a humble attitude and smiled as he led the way in front. Everything was seen by the senior management of the Tianchang group. My, my god, what's going on here? Hiss, who is that young man? How dare Lu Dong be so humble? Even in the face of those bigwigs in Feng City, Lu Dong has never had such an attitude. Now, this, what in the world? Looking at Chun Yu, everyone was surprised and amazed. Come, come, Master Chen, let me introduce to you. These are our Tianchang group's executives. This is Zhao He, Vice President, MBA Master, Rich Experience and Outstanding Ability. This is, Lu Tianhao introduced them in turn, and each of them was like a dragon and phoenix among men. This is Master Chen Yu Chen, it's my Lu Tianhao's brother and honored guest. Good day, Grandmaster Chen. The crowd opened their mouths, their hearts shaking. Once seated, wine and food were served. Led by Lu Tianhao, the crowd raised their glasses to Chen Yu and toasted him until the glass was dry. Chen Yu sighed in his heart. A few days ago, he was just a screwing overtime dog in a factory. These bigwigs, let alone meeting, don't even get a chance to hear about it. But today, these people showed the most humble smiles in front of themselves. Life is so unpredictable. AI, if I get my life all by myself, it's not called planting a golden lotus in the fire. The root of everything comes from strength. Chen Yu let out a dark sigh, only feeling that his thoughts were quite a bit more enlightened. A very enjoyable meal. Chen Yu was in the middle of the table telling the fortunes of several people, and got quite a few more heavenly chances and fortunes. After it was over, surrounded by the crowd, Chen Yu came down from the Supreme Hall. Aya, uh, Master Chen, today is really an eye-opener for us. As previously stated, please make sure that Master Chen is our group's consultant, with an annual salary of $1 million. At the entrance of the hotel, Lu Tianhao clutched Chen Yu's hand tightly with a red face. He was obviously drunk and a little oblivious. The same was true for the people of the Tianchang group. After this scene, everyone admired Chen Yu. Li Nanrui was even completely transformed into Chen Yu's little fan, his eyes full of little stars. Thanks to Dong Lu. It's okay. Chen Yu didn't refuse either. Good good good, then we have a deal. The guests are happy and the situation is great. Ha, huh? Chen. Chen Yu? Suddenly, a voice came from the side. Natsuka, you're here too? Chen Yu froze with a surprised look on his face. The two were high school classmates in the old days and used to sit at the same table. Xia Keiru was the school flower, and with all the attention, she was naturally impressed. God, it's really you? Natsuka covered her mouth with wide eyes, her face full of incredulity. When a group of people descended from the special elevator just now, Xia Keiru and the others happened to be preparing to leave. Once again, Xia Keiru saw Chen Yu, she still couldn't resist, so she went up to ask. Never in a million years would I have thought that it was really him. Looking around, Natsuka was in a bit of a trance. Black Rolls Royce, a host of imposing bigwigs. How come all these things she had to look up to were surrounding Chen Yu? Doesn't he work at the factory? Didn't he not even go to college? Doesn't he have a normal family? Was this really the same boy he had sat at the same table with? Who had some low self-esteem and was an introvert? What a surprise to run into you here. Chen Yu smiled faintly and nodded slightly. There was some sighing in his mind. The two were classmates. But that was all. Xia Kairo's family background is very good. Far from being comparable to Chen Yu. Chen Yu had always believed that the two would never cross paths again. Now that I've seen it, it's really a creation. Yeah, I, I didn't expect that either. Natsuka opened her mouth, not knowing what to say. Well, I have things to do, so I'll talk to you later. Chen Yu gave a greeting and left the hotel surrounded by Lu Tianhao and the others. At that moment, Xia Ling and the others came to Xia Keiru's side. Yeah, that's Lu Tianhao, the chairman of Tianchang Group. Hey, who is that young man? How dare Lu Tianhao be so humble? Keiru you know? Natsuka nodded. His name is Chen Yu. He's my high school deskmate. As soon as the words fell, there was a gasp of surprise. Egu, really? This young man is so powerful. Does he have a date? I think he's quite nice. Keiru, you have to hold on to him. Yes, 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 yes. This kind of person can't be spared. 
and must be chased into the hand. The crowd made some comments that made Xia Kaoru blush. Biting her lips lightly, Xia Kaoru looked at Chen Yu's departing direction, a ripple in her heart. I wonder if he'll come to the reunion in a few days. On the other hand, in a quaint old house in South City, Ji Dongming looked at the old man in front of him with a respectful face. Ah Dongming, did you come to see me for something? The old man, dressed in a Chinese mountain suit, smiled and opened his mouth. Ji Dongming said, Uncle Li, I'm here this time because of a person. I don't know. What do you think about things like fortune telling? Ji Dongming's face was extremely serious as he stared at the old man in front of him, Li Filon. This one, it's not a small one. He's a legendary big shot who retired after the founding war. A presence good enough to be written in a textbook. After those stormy times, Li Filong had seen a lot of strange people and strange things that could not be imagined by ordinary people. So after meeting Chen Yu, Ji Dongming found Li Filong. LOL, Uncle Ji, what's wrong with you today? How could you ask such a question? Did you drink too much yesterday and are you confused? Not far away, a young woman came smiling. The woman was not very old. Similar to Chen Yu and her eyes were dripping with a sly glint. There is a sense of spirituality in the way you raise your hands and feet, like an unrestrained lark. Ji Dongming laughed. Little Linger, you're just good at flirting with your eldest uncle. Li Filon also shook his head helplessly. You girl, you're really no big deal. Li Linger playfully spat out her tongue and made it to Li Filon's side, hugging his hand and pampering him. Hey goo, I'm just kidding. Li Filon's chiding had just reached his mouth, but he hardened and held it back, turning his head. Li Filon pondered for a moment before speaking. The saying of fortune telling has existed since ancient times, but it's basically a charlatan's trick. Although there are also some strange people who are proficient in the eye count and are able to divine good and bad fortune, but those kinds of characters are all godlike and almost impossible to see. When I was in the army, I did have the honor of meeting an old Taoist, very powerful. Taking a sip of tea, Li Filong showed a look of reminiscence. Back then, when Li Filong was young and leading soldiers to war, he had helped an old Taoist halfway through the war. Before he left, the old Taoist gave him a hanging and told him that he could prosper when he met the water to the east. Li Filong initially didn't care, but then he really came across a big river. Originally, according to the plan, they were supposed to head west, but when Li Filong thought of the old Taoist's words, he changed his plan and headed east. Later they realized that the enemy had long ago ambushed heavy troops in the west, and if they went there they would surely die, detouring through the east, right around the back caught them off guard, and it was that big win that started the legend of Li Flynn. Later I realized that that old Taoist was an unearthly master. Without his guidance, I'm afraid I would have been long gone. Li Filon let out a long sigh, and there was still a strong admiration in his eyes. Did that old Taoist say why he told Uncle Li to send you east? Did he calculate that there would be an ambush in the west? Ji Dongming hurriedly pursued the question. Li Filon rolled his eyes. How is that possible? It's a fortune teller and diviner, but it's only a vague knowledge. Even such wondrous men as Zhou Wenwang, Yuan Tiangang, and Li Chunfeng, who have been famous for thousands of years, couldn't have been so accurate in their calculations. King Wen of Zhou, deducing the Zhou Yi, Yuan Tiangang and Li Chunfeng, the two masters of prophecy, combined their efforts to write Pui Bei Tu, which used 64 hexagrams to foretell the prosperity and governance of the future generations. These three men have a very high place in history. It can be said to be the granddaddy of all fortune tellers and enjoys generations of reverence. What the hell happened to you? Looking Ji Dongming up and down, Li Filon was a bit puzzled. Ji Dongming smiled bitterly and said, Uncle Li, I met a fortune teller. A fortune teller? No wonder you're asking about that. Such people usually have some skills, so it's a good idea to befriend them. I do know a master who has deep attainments in the way of ease. If he's on good terms with you, I can introduce him and let him study a little deeper. Li Filon laughed softly and didn't take it to heart. He has seen too many characters in his military life. A fortune teller? Nothing special. Ji Dongming looked odd. In his case, I'm afraid that he doesn't need to further his education. At that moment, Ji Dongming did not hide anything and told all about Chen Yu. Live fortune telling and live predictions of the future. There is not the slightest omission. What did you say? There are such characters? Li Feilong's face was full of incredulity. No longer the calmness he had earlier. Li Linger covered her mouth, her eyes wide. Uncle Ji, have you been tricked? This kind of thing isn't scientific ah. Ji Dongming laughed bitterly. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it either. That's why I came to see Uncle Li. Li Feilong's face was stoic, his brows deeply locked. After a long silence, he sighed heavily. If that's true, then this one's a big deal. And how does that compare to that old Taoist that Uncle Li met? Li Feilong shook his head. It can't be compared. I'm afraid that if Zhou Wenwang, 
Li Chunfeng, or Yuan Tian Gang, all these high men in the world, would have to bow their heads and bow their heads in front of him. Boom! A thunderclap exploded in Ji Dongning's mind, his eyes wide with shock. Those three, they're legends in the history books. Not as good as him? Li Linger blinked, her brain buzzing. Where is he? I want to meet him. Li Filong pursued. I'll call right away. When he met with Chun Yu before, Ji Dongming left Chun Yu's cell phone number. Hello? The number you have dialed is temporarily unavailable. Listening to the cell phone beep, Ji Dongming was somewhat speechless. One should not be blackmailed by Chin Yu, right? Never mind. There's no rush on this matter. Let's talk about it later when we have the chance. All right. I won't disturb Uncle Li's rest. I'll leave first. After Ji Dongming left, Li Filong sat in the courtyard, looking at the garden full of silver moonlight, squinting his eyes in silence. Grandpa, what are you thinking? I was thinking maybe we could get him to join the Inhuman Bureau. What? Join the Inhuman Bureau? Li Linger exclaimed. The Inhuman Bureau, as the name suggests, is full of inhumans. In today's society, many people worry a lot about houses, cars, tickets and objects. There is no superman, no tall man, only faggots. Everyone is living hard. But, that's just the society that the average person understands at its most superficial, and beneath the surface. There are many hidden things that ordinary people don't know and aren't qualified to know. Ancient martial arts families, superpowers, this kind of thing is remembered as something made up in novels, movies and TV shows. But the truth is, it's all true. It's just that normal people don't have access to it at all. The Inhuman Bureau is a mysterious organization established by the Dragon Kingdom. It's full of beings with extraordinary abilities. They have all sorts of incredible means and are able to do what normal people cannot. These people, above the red dust. That's just it. Let's wait until we meet him. After thinking about it, Li Filong waved his hand. After all, everything was just Ji Dongming's side of the story. Maybe Ji Dongming was tricked. There have been such jokes in the past. Someone has discovered the Inhumans and wants to be absorbed into the Inhumans Bureau. It turned out that the other party was just a scammer during the inspection. Li Linger nodded and said no more. Li Chanfeng looked up at the bright white moon and muttered, Chen Yu Ah, what kind of person are you? There was no talk all night. The next morning, Chen Yu continued to broadcast live. As soon as the broadcast started, the number of people in the live room directly rushed to 10,000. On the public screen, various gifts were swiped. Before he even started to tell fortunes, Chen Yu had already made over $100,000. The viewers who came to the live broadcast room in the back were directly confused when they saw the situation. Have people's tastes changed now? Instead of watching Black Silk Ladies Dance, you're watching a fortune teller? And this doubt turned into worship after Chen Yu's fortune telling. Nima, man of God, how can a black silk lady look as good as this? In the morning, Chen Yu counted a dozen people. By the time it was off the air, the live stream had reached 20, 000, 000 viewers. With the increase in heavenly chi luck, Chen Yu smoothly broke through to the chi practicing realm perfection. In the afternoon, Chen Yu came to the hospital and after signing a series of agreements, Wu Shaolan was pushed into the operating room. With Lu Tianhao's arrangement, Wu Shaolan received the best treatment, so the surgery was successful. For the next few days, Chen Yu broadcast live in the morning and stayed in the hospital with his bed in the afternoon. Wu Shaolan's body, too, is gradually recovering. When Wu Shaolan had almost recovered, Chen Yu went through the discharge procedures. Mom, let's go home and I'll show you your new home. Chen Yu smiled and said, A new home? Feather, did the landlord evict us? Wu Shaolan froze slightly and slowly lowered her head, guilt in her eyes. Son, Mom has put you through this. Chen Yu was supposed to have a bright future, but it was all because of his own procrastination that he didn't go to college. At a young age, they have to go into the factory to work and suffer the hardships of the world. Perhaps, one should never have been cured, and death would have been better for Feather. At the very least, he won't be burdened. Mom, you're overthinking it. I'm the one who found a new job. Come on, let's go and have a look around. Chen Yu gently wrapped his arm around Wu Shaolan's shoulders and smiled faintly. Life in the future. Ah, won't be any more bitter. Taking a taxi, Chen Yu brought Wu Shaolan to Villa 1 of Yunshan Heavenly Palace. Small, three-story, high-end building. Enter the door. Sunlight poured into the room through the huge panoramic glass windows in the living room. Unpriced furniture, luxurious amenities, a growing bonsai, and the expensive glassware on that dining room table. Crystal clear in the sunlight. Wu Shaolan stood dumbfounded at the entry foyer, her mouth wide open and unable to close it for a long time. This, where is this? Mom, this is our new home. From now on, we'll live here. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Looking at the shocked look on his mother's face, Chen Yu was proud. Wu Shaolan shuddered. 
pointing at everything in the room and staring at Chen Yu with wide eyes. We're staying here? No, it's too expensive. We can't afford it. Oh, mom you don't have to worry. I saved a big boss and he's out of the country, so he lent us the villa to live in. Regarding the matter of cultivating immortality, Chen Yu did not say much. This kind of thing was so bizarre that once it was leaked, it was bound to attract unimaginable covetousness. Maybe, one will be captured by others to be used as a mouse for research. And the fortune-telling one, though a bit more outrageous, is still valid. It wouldn't be too late to tell Wu Shaolan everything after he was strong. After listening to Chen Yu's explanation, Wu Shaolan's mood was a little more peaceful. But the next moment, she suddenly thought of something and grabbed Chen Yu's shoulders in horror. No, we can't live here. If the Lu family finds out, they'll never let us go. Quick, let's move out. The Ryu family? Chen Yu froze. Mom, who are the Ryu family? Why won't they leave us alone? No, nothing, come on, let's go out and rent a house. Mom doesn't like it here. Mom has recovered enough to go to work. Wu Shaolan looked flustered and hurriedly changed the subject. Mom, tell me, what's going on? Chen Yu looked serious, feeling that Wu Shaolan was hiding something from him. At first, Wu Shaolan was reluctant to say, but could not stand Chen Yu's repeated questions. Finally told Chen Yu everything. The thing, it's about the father, Chen Tai. After Chen Yu heard this, he only felt his blood boiling all over his body, his anger almost bursting his chest. More than 20 years ago, Chen Taiyi and Wu Shaolan were originally lovers. After Wu Shaolan was pregnant with Chen Yu, Chen Taiyi met the daughter of the Song family in Jiangling province. Song Yao. The Song family was a noble family with huge power in Jinchuan city, the capital of Jiangling province. Chen Taiyi finally chose Song Yao and came to his door as a backward son-in-law. But, it's not the end. Song Yao is good-natured and despite robbing Chen Taiyi, she still can't see Wu Shaolan having a good time. She purposely arranged for the Lu family in the southern city to suppress Wu Shaolan and Chen Yu. In order to do so, it's a bad time for Wu Shaolan's mother and son. What's wrong with robbing your lover? What I see, I either get or destroy. Bitches like you only deserve to live in the dirt. I'm sick of seeing you. These were Song Yao's original words back then. Moreover, in order to prevent Wu Shaolan from leaving the southern city, Song Yao had come up with a number of damaging tricks. Everything, it all came out. Chen Yu came to a sudden realization. Over the years, whenever the mother and son were doing better, something would happen to them that would bring them down. When Wu Shaolan found a slightly better job, he was fired. He or she obviously has good grades, but can never get into the top classes. There is so much more to it than that. Chen Yu had thought before that it was their bad fate. Now it seems that this is not the case at all. It's all because the Lu family is behind this. Song Yao, Lu family, you deserve to die. Deadly clenching his fists. Chen Yu's eyes were crimson and his back teeth were clenched in pits. They're the ones who caused their mother to live a life of misery for more than 20 years. Little Feather. We're just ordinary people. We can't fight them. Come on. Mom please. Wu Shaolan grabbed Chen Yu's arm. Tears rustling down her face. Chen Yu's heart felt like it had been pulled hard. Age never fails a beauty. But since when did my mother have so many more wrinkles on her face and so many more gray hairs on her temples? In those 20 years, my mother never had a good day. Only fear and trepidation. Thinking about this, Chen Yu's heart was dripping blood. Mom, you live in peace. The big boss I saved is not an ordinary person. And the Lu family can't deal with him. When he gets back, we'll go out and rent a house. Chen Yu comforted for a while before Wu Shaolan let go of her hanging heart. Even so, she constantly cautioned Chen Yu that he must not look for trouble with the Lu family and must keep a low profile. After settling his mother, Chen Yu drilled into his study and dialed Lu Tianhao's phone. Ha ha, Master Chen. What is it that you are looking for me for? Dong Lu, I want to ask you something. I don't know if you know about the Lu family in South City? The Lu family? Why would Master Chen ask about them? Lu Tianhao's smile faded and he was a bit puzzled. I happened to hear about this family and asked about it. I see. This Lu family is very powerful. After Lu Tianhao organized his thoughts, he opened his mouth and said, The Lu family is considered one of the largest families in the southern city. The Lu group has a wide range of businesses, real estate development, financial investment, entertainment and catering, and other industries. So. How does the Tianchang group compare to the Lu group? Chen Yu pursued. Lu Tianhao laughed bitterly, truth be told. Although Tianchang group has grown a lot in these 10 years, it can't be compared to Lu's group. The Willow group has a deep background, and rumor has it that there are some incredibly tall people. Back then, the Lu group also encountered some rivals, but those people all somehow died or went crazy and eventually went up in smoke. The reason why Lu Tianhao befriended Chen Yu was also because of this reason. The rules of this world are far from being as simple as they appear. Tianchang group has developed so far, 
and if it wants to make a breakthrough again, it is very, very difficult if there are not some special high-profile people inside. Chun Yu, on the other hand, is this kind of tall man? Master Chen, you wouldn't have offended someone from the Lu family, would you? Lu Tianhao opened his mouth to inquire. No, just understanding. Chen Yu responded indifferently. That's good. A word of advice to Master Chen. Behemoths like the Lu family cannot be messed with. One more month will be the 70th birthday of the Lu family's old family head, Lu Chuan Shang. I'll accompany the master to meet the Ryu family when the time comes. Yes. Chen Yu nodded his head in response. After hanging up the phone, Chen Yu sat quietly. The room was dead silent. Looking up at the clock on the wall, the monstrous anger turned into a cruel smile. 70th birthday? Lu Chuan Shang. This gift, you will definitely like it. In a month's time, I'll deliver the bell to your Lu family. All day long, Chen Yu stayed in his study, thinking about the matters concerning the Lu and Song families. Neither of these two are average in terms of the information available. Although he himself had embarked on the path of immortal cultivation, he was only just starting out and his abilities were limited. Even if he was already much stronger than an ordinary person now. So what? There are so many things in this world that can destroy him. A simple pistol would have ended him. He had tried to deduce the Lu family and the Song family with the Tenji skill. However, the Heaven's Chance technique had a limitation. And if it was involved with itself, it would be interfered with by itself and could not be deduced. The two families have been involved with themselves for over 20 years, and that road is kind of blocked. It's still necessary to raise your strength as soon as possible. This month, you must reach the foundation establishment stage. Chen Yu's eyes were shining brightly as he secretly clenched his fists. Strength is king. Only with absolute strength would one be able to step on the Lu and Song families. The foundation establishment stage was the first hurdle in immortal cultivation. Breaking through to foundation establishment from practicing qi would be a huge change. When one reaches these realms, one crosses over from the realm of the Hotian to the realm of the innate. After establishing the foundation, one would be able to draw on the spiritual qi of heaven and earth to cultivate. And when one raises one's hands and throws one's feet, one would have great power. However, nowadays was the age of the end. Normally, even if one reached the foundation establishment stage, it was impossible to go further. Because he was unable to absorb the spiritual qi of heaven and earth, his cultivation naturally could not break through. But Chen Yu was different. After building the foundation, the Tianji skill would change drastically. At that time, he could directly ingest the heavenly fortune in the underworld to use for cultivation. Without having to rely on fortune telling to modify the heavenly chances to obtain the heavenly chances of starting luck like now, the speed of cultivation would be much faster. During this period of time, I'll have to broadcast more and get as much heavenly qi luck as possible. The other side, an old compound on the east side of South City. The compound is a building from the 1980s, showing traces of vicissitudes and mottling everywhere. The only small four-story building is all covered with creepers. The iron shelves of the windows were covered with rust. The only good thing about it is that it's a small footprint and the sun shines down brightly everywhere. Li Filong, Li Ling'er, and Ji Dongming were sitting in the courtyard basking in the sun. Li Filong looked indifferent. Li Ling'er was filled with curiosity. And Ji Dongming looked in awe. Uncle Li, this, this is the legendary South City in Human Bureau? Gulping, Ji Dongming looked around like Lu 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 entering the Grand View Garden. Well, how does it feel? I didn't expect that. I really didn't. Ji Dongming suppressed some of his excitement and spoke. The Bureau of Inhumanity, an extremely mysterious organization, is under the direct management of the top and is not subject to local jurisdiction. All the people in there are highly skilled, and the dossier is classified. Although Ji Dongming had heard of it, he had never come into contact with it. The reason is also simple. He's not at a high enough level. It was also thanks to the fact that his father and Li Filong were life and death friends that Li Filong had brought him along this time. Otherwise, he couldn't even enter the gate. Ha ha, Elder Li. This is a magpie on a branch today. You even came in person? A bright laugh rang out. And not far away, a big man who looked like an old farmer walked with a smile. Behind him, there were four others. Men, women and children. From the clothes alone, it was no different from the average person in the community. He he, you little Yuan Ching, you're poking fun at me too. Li Filong smiled and spoke. Aya, uh, how dare I. It's not to see your old man happy. And these two are? Looking at Ji Dongming and Li Ling'er, Yuan Cheng had a puzzled look on his face. Oh, my two late bloomers. Dong Ming, this is Yuan Cheng, the director of the South City Inhuman Bureau. After a brief introduction, Li Filong went straight to the point. If I'm here this time, there's someone I want you to meet to see if he can join the Inhuman Bureau. Oh, what man? Yuan Ching came to be interested. The four people behind him were also filled with curiosity. 
Although the Inhuman Bureau had a high rank and status, there were very few who could enter it because of its special nature. It had been five years in a row that no newcomers had entered the South City Inhuman Bureau. It's a young man named Shen Yu. Li Filong let Ji Dongming do the explaining. That means he could possibly know how to read the I Ching and tell fortunes? Well, if it's true, it's not too sloppy. Frowning in thought, Yuan Cheng's brows were slightly disappointed. When Ji Dongming saw this, he couldn't help but freeze. Such an awesome character. How come in Yuan Qing's mouth? It seems like he's not very good? That, and he's so good. He's getting a lot of attention online. In the past few days, the fast sound platform is all filled with small videos of his live broadcasts, and the entire network calls him the Divine Calculation Master. After Ji Dongming finished speaking, Yuan Cheng and the few people behind him looked at each other and tacitly all laughed, a smile with a touch of disinterest. He he, Brother Dongming may not quite understand that the Inhuman Bureau is different from other organizations. To you, maybe he's great, but to us, it's just ordinary. Let's just say that anyone in the Inhuman Bureau who goes out on the air is a total sensation. Xiaolin, show brother Dong Ming, the youngest of the four, a small man, smiled and nodded. Uncle G, watch this. He pinched his orchid finger with one hand, and a fallen leaf on the surface five meters away was actually taken into his fingertips through the air. Go! With a flick of his wrist, Kobayashi's fallen leaves transformed into a stream of light and shot out. Filed under, with a crunching sound. The fallen leaves embedded themselves directly into a large tree 10 meters away. I, Nima, Ji Dongming's eyes rolled back in his head and he was so scared that he burst out. Spacing out is even better. The leaves are so soft that they can nestle into the tree like darts? Wouldn't this be if it was used to kill someone? Oh, didn't scare you. Yuan Chang walked forward and patted Li Dongming's shoulder, his face full of triumph. Xiao Lin he practiced ancient martial arts. This flickering finger is quite powerful. Ancient martial arts? Flickering fingers? These things really exist? Not something made up in a novel? Ji Dongming felt a shock to his three views. It's not bad. It's just that this is a world that ordinary people can't access. Now do you still think that that Master Chen, as you call him, is awesome? This. Ji Dongming was dumbfounded. Yuan Cheng laughed. Among ordinary people, he is indeed powerful. But to us, it's just ordinary. At this moment, Ji Dongming suddenly felt a bit lost. It's like you're giddy to get your best stuff out. Turns out the other guy looked at it and came up with a bunch of better stuff. Oh, common or not, we'll talk about it later. Li Filong smiled and said, Dong Ming, that Master Chen's live broadcast is about to start, isn't it? Let Xiao Yuan and the others take a look. Okay. Ji Dong Ming pulled out his cell phone and clicked on Chen Yu's live stream. Li Filong came this time to let a few people see if this Chen Yu was a liar or not. After all, only the inhuman knows the inhuman best. Soon, the live stream began. This time, the live stream had reached 50, 000 people. Gifts were flying around on the public screen, and all the viewers were shouting Master Chen's name. Seeing this, Yuan Cheng and the others smiled and skimmed their mouths with some contempt. Hey, ordinary people, they've never seen the world. If we put on a live broadcast, it'll scare the hell out of you. This time, Chen Yu calculated the lives of more than 20 people. When the live broadcast ended, Li Filong looked at Yuan Cheng. Yuan, is he really a fortune teller? Well, it is indeed true. This young man, he has deep attainments in the Yi Dao. Although Yuan Qing was surprised, he wasn't particularly shocked. And what class would he be categorized as according to the Inhuman Bureau's ability grading? Ji Dongming perked up his ears and looked at Yuan Qing. Yuan Qing thought for a moment and spoke. He should be able to classify if classified. If you divide it, he barely reaches C grade. After careful thought, Yuan Chang spoke. There was a strict system of dividing strength within the Inhuman Bureau. According to the strength of their abilities, the Inhumans are categorized into four grades, A, B, C, D. And on top of that, there are S rank, SS rank, and SSS rank Inhumans. For C grade, it's only slightly higher than D grade, just C rated? Li Filong was a bit surprised, not expecting it to be so low. Ji Dongming was also a bit unable to accept it after hearing the grade division. Director Yuan, that Master Chen is very powerful. It can't be this low. Yuan Qing spread his hands and said, this is normal. Our Inhuman Bureau's rank division is still mainly measured by battle strength. He can tell fortunes, but other than that, he doesn't have much fighting ability. On the other hand, I also understand some things like fortune telling. Although Yi Dao is capable of deducing heavenly chances, it also has many limitations. If he gets into the Inhumans, he can only be used as a support. Upon hearing this, Li Filong frowned. Thinking about it, it made sense. Ji Dongming couldn't say anything else. But this type of auxiliary type of ability is quite rare and has some characteristics. 
Maybe he can play a bigger role later. Yuan Qing turned his words around and said, Elder Li, I want to meet him. Li Failong nodded and told Ji Dongming to ask Qingyu to meet him. In Villa 1, Chen Yu received a call from Ji Dongming, learning that it was someone from the Guardianship Bureau again. Chen Yu was quite helpless. It's just a lie fortune telling. Is there a need to be so nervous? But after all, this was an official organization. And Chen Yu didn't want to make too much of a mess right now. After agreeing on a meeting place, he took a cab to get there. Half an hour later, he arrived at the Inhuman Bureau compound. Li Failong, Yuan Chang and the others were waiting. Upon seeing several people, Chen Yu unleashed his heavenly chance skill to probe everyone's information, and then he was shot in his heart. Inhuman Bureau? You've come to a great place. Oh, hello Chen Yu. Introduce yourself. My name is Li Failong. These are. Li Failong took the initiative to step forward and opened his mouth with a smile. Hello Elder Li. Everyone. Chen Yu greeted them one by one in an unassuming manner. I asked you to come here this time to invite you into the Inhuman Bureau. After Li Failong finished speaking, Chen Yu was slightly stunned and somewhat surprised. But if you think about it, you'll understand. He made a lot of noise live on the internet, and it is normal for him to receive official attention. I just didn't realize that there was such an institution as the Inhuman Bureau. So it seems that this world is not as simple as one thinks. In the past, with a low status and a poor family, they all ran around for three meals a day and had no access to such organizations. Chen Yu, let me introduce you to the Inhuman Bureau. Yuan Qing opened his mouth smilingly. You can think of him as an iron rice bowl, a good unit that you don't have to pass a public examination to get in. Here, the pay is good, the benefits are good, the benefits are good, the vacations are good. It's also very simple to do, carry out orders, fulfill tasks, and supervise the world's inhumans. You've seen the anime One Man's Life, right? We're similar to the Natatone company in it. I know this is too much of a shock for you. You can think about it. After all, there hadn't been any recruiting for five years. And although Chen Yu wasn't highly rated, he was always a character. Getting him on board wouldn't be much use right now, but maybe it would work wonders when it came time for a mission. No need to think about it. I refuse. Without the slightest hesitation, Chen Yu rejected Yuan Qing's invitation. Honestly, the Inhuman Bureau is really good. But, one is a cultivator of immortality, seeking great freedom and liberty. Joining the Inhuman Bureau and enjoying the perks also puts a shackle on you. It was something he was very reluctant to do. Yuan Qing froze. Behind him, the four Kobayashi men were stunned. This kid, he refused so dryly? Does he know what kind of great opportunity is in front of him? If there's nothing else, I'll be on my way. Chen Yu turned around and prepared to leave. Yuan Qing skimmed his lips and didn't stay. This young man, he thinks a little highly of himself. As the director of the Inhuman Bureau and with an A-class rating, inviting Chen Yu was already giving face. Since the other party doesn't know how to raise his voice, just forget it. On the side, Kobayashi snorted coldly and remaced. Ha, you really don't know what's good for you. You think we care about you? Let me tell you. Here, you're nothing. With a flash of his eyes, Kobayashi's flickering fingers were unleashed. Five leaves on the ground were instantly pinched in his hands. With a fierce push, the leaves shot out. Bam! Five leaves were nestled in the trunk, swaying gently in the wind. Telling fortunes? Ha! You do the math. Can these five leaves abolish you? A word of advice. Don't think too highly of yourself. There are many people in this world who are better than you. Li Filong sighed and shook his head, a touch of regret on his brow. It was his chance for the Inhuman Bureau to invite Chen Yu this time, but now in this situation, Chen Yu obviously couldn't get in. Later, he will know what kind of great opportunity he had missed. Jai Dongming also sighed a little. Before coming to the Inhuman Bureau, he thought highly of Chen Yu. But now, in front of these monsters, Chen Yu seemed to have nothing left. Looking at Xiao Lin, Chen Yu smiled coldly. These five leaves can't ruin me, but that stone tablet in your courtyard, I'm afraid it's going to be ruined. The monolith is ruined? The people present froze and looked to a corner of the courtyard. A stone tablet, 20 centimeters thick, was standing there quietly. What does he mean? What are you going to do? In doubt, Chen Yu moved. Now that Chen Yu was at the perfection of qi refining stage, a trace of true essence had already been condensed in his body. The sliver of true essence passed through his body and attached itself to the five leaves embedded in the trunk of the tree. Go! With a fierce wave, five leaves shot out towards the stone tablet. Boom! A dull roar sounded, and the fragile leaves were actually like a bomb, ruthlessly smashing into the stone monument. The stone monument, which was incredibly hard, was instantly blown apart. For a while, smoke and dust rose in all directions. In the compound, there was dead silence. Everyone was dumbfounded, their brains buzzing, 
Tiny leaves that blasted the monolith to pieces? This, what kind of horrible tactic is this? Yuan Cheng stared at Chen Yu with deathly white eyes. There was unbelief in his eyes. Kobayashi stayed where he was, looking at the place where the monolith had disappeared. Nima, didn't you say he was a fortune teller? How come they didn't say he had this kind of power? Li Failong was also dumbfounded. He knew about that stone tablet. Even bullets couldn't penetrate it. He, with a casual wave of his hand, made it break defense with a leaf? Looking at the crowd's shocked appearance, Chen Yu indifferently smiled and glanced at Shaolin. There may indeed be many stronger than me in this world, but certainly not you. Under a cloud of attention, Chen Yu left the inhuman bureau compound. After a long silence, Li Changfeng spoke with a bitter smile. What do you think, guys? How? Li Feilong's question knocked heavily on the hearts of several people. Hey, we underestimated him ah. Yuan Qing shook his head. With five leaves, it shattered the stone monument. Such a means is simply unimaginable. Xiao Lin, what level of strength do you think he's at? Xiao Lin's mouth moved as he looked at the blasted stone monument, and a flash of fear flashed across his eyes. I'm now a Houghton master with a B rating. In his words, he is at least at the peak Hotian realm, and has even reached the innate master ground. In terms of rating, it should have already reached a rank, and there's even a chance to hit S rank in the future. In the realm of martial artists, there is a distinction between the acquired and the innate. The gap between the two is enormous, especially in modern times. The banning of weapons stops it. Not only are martial artists rare in number, they are extremely difficult to see. Hotian martial artists were already rare. And as for experts of the innate realm, who were good enough to start a sect, they were even rarer to find. Hiss. Not only the few people from the Inhuman Bureau, Ji Dongming and Li Linger were all taken aback. When they chatted earlier, they already knew that Yuan Chang was A-ranked. Chun Yu. He is actually already comparable to Yuan Cheng? Yuan Cheng shook his head and said, You're wrong. That young man, he's now at S rank. Me, not as good as him. Boom. A few people's bodies shook, their eyes rolling with incredulity. S class. It's even better than Yuan Cheng. My god. This, this. Ji Dongming's eyes rounded. Li Failong had raced through the storms and had long since developed a big heart. But now that he heard Yuan Cheng's words, he was still shocked. S class. Looking at the entire Jiangling province, only the director of the Jiangling province and human bureau had reached such a realm. The status is equal to that of the lord of a province. He, on the other hand, is in his fifties, Chun Yu is only in his early twenties, and he has reached this point? Elderly, I was wrong this time. He, must join our inhuman bureau. Yuan Qing's eyes were burning and his face was red. If Chen Yu joined, then the strength of the entire South City inhuman bureau would be greatly enhanced. Li Failong wore a bitter smile on his face. Can't you see that he doesn't have it in him at all? Regardless, I'm going to try my best to give it a shot. I'll report back to the provincial bureau. That, all right. Hopefully you'll make it. Li Feilong's few people left the Inhuman Bureau and returned to their respective homes. As soon as Ji Dongming returned to the Weiman Bureau, Zhao Yuanshan and Xiao Le came to his door. Old Ji, how did you ask about the Chun Yu thing afterward? Zhao Yuanshan went straight to the point and opened his mouth to inquire. Ji Dongming waved his hand and said, Don't ask. That's not something we can ask. What he had seen today had completely exceeded Ji Dongming's knowledge. He had also come to understand that an existence like Chen Yu was simply not something that could be passed over at his level. On a certain level, Chen Yu had gradually exceeded the constraints of worldly rules. What's that supposed to mean? He's great? Zhao Yuanshan was a bit dazed and asked after him. Ji Dongming nodded. Well, that's impressive. He, in a world we need to look up to. Ji Dongming's voice was low and complex, with a few strands of sighing. Zhao Yuanshan stood frozen in place, looking at Ji Dongming with his mouth open. After knowing Ji Dongming for so many years, it was the first time he had seen Ji Dongming like this. Nonetheless, the current Ji Dongming's expression was like that of a mortal who suddenly saw a god. Gods? Could it be that Chun Yu is a god? Zhao Yuanshan was taken aback by the idea. Xiao Lu, who was on the side, was even more dumbfounded. The world we look up to? What kind of world is that? Chun Yu, is he actually such an incredible person? In Villa 1, Chen Yu came back to the study, exhaling a mouthful of turbid air. The corner of Chen Yu's mouth was drawn into a smile. To have such strength when I've reached the completion of the Qi practicing realm, what will I be able to achieve if I reach the foundation establishment stage? Practicing Qi to foundation building was a big threshold. Once you cross over, it's a very different world. At that time, One's cultivation style and speed of cultivation would change greatly. And according to the system's information, after reaching the foundation establishment stage, one more system reward would be given. By that time, one's strength will have a qualitative increase. 
Chun Yu was looking forward to this. I really didn't think that there were places like the Inhuman Bureau in this world. Maybe later, I'll meet a lot of different people. Who would have thought that there is such a different world behind the society of traffic? Immediately, Chen Yu's eyes narrowed, flashing a cold light. Jiang Ling Song family, Southern City Lu family, I'm afraid there are some foreigners among them. Otherwise they wouldn't have such a supreme status. I'd better be cautious and build up my strength as soon as possible. Although he was not very old, Chen Yu had worked hard all the way through the years, especially after three years of working in a factory. I've seen so much, and most of those peers are still in their ivory towers and haven't seen the humanity of the human heart. It has also made him far more thoughtful than his peers, and he has developed the habit of being thoughtful and steady. The two families were behemoths after all, and although Chen Yu had embarked on the path of immortal cultivation, he did not dare to be careless. Ding dong. Just as he was thinking about it, his phone received a group message. When he opened it, it was Xia Keira who was at him in his high school group. Chun Yu, are you coming to the high school reunion this weekend? High school reunion group, a group from long ago. Since dropping out of school, he set up message immunity. In three years, he has never participated in group chats or attended any events. Again, no one in the group ever paid attention to him. Everyone's in college. You're the only one who's gone into the factory to work. What's there to talk about? Each other. It was like two worlds that never intersected again. Just now, the group was discussing the potluck. Xia Keira then at Chen Yu. Quite a few people froze. Natsu Keiru, the high school school beauty, has many suitors. Chun Yu, a factory dog. In the past, when everyone gathered, no one ever shouted out Chen Yu. Xia Keiru in the group has always been a high cold look. This time how suddenly thought of Chen Yu? I'm not going. You guys have fun. Chen Yu returned a message. If it's not meant to be, why see you again? The destiny had been broken three years earlier, and it didn't make much sense to get together again now. Seeing Chen Yu's reply, many people secretly sneered. Rather, they are somewhat self-aware, knowing that the gap between them and us is too great to come over. Big schoolgirl, Chen Yu still has to work. How can he have time to party? That's just it. The factory works 12-hour days. He doesn't have time for that. The venue for this meal is at the Jumming House. Everyone a. It's also a few hundred dollars each. He can't afford it. Several people spoke to the group with an inexplicable sense of superiority. When Xia Kaori saw Chen Yu's reply, her heart was a little lost. She felt a little amused at the shady replies. Work in a factory? Can't afford it? How do you all know the way Lu Tianhao was humbled in front of Chen Yu in the Four Seas building? It's not that you guys don't see Chen Yu, but Chen Yu doesn't see you. The group continued to discuss. And Xia Kaoru saw that Chen Yu did not speak, and lost interest in the discussion. Chen Yu had just put his cell phone down when Lu Tianhao's call came over. Master Chen, I have a favor to ask, and I would like to ask for your help. What is it? During the weekend, Zhou Shang, the old director of the Zhou group, has asked me to talk about something at the gathering house. Can you accompany me there? Chen Yu froze. Weekend? Gathering house? Isn't that where Xia Kaoru and the others meet for dinner? What a coincidence. After a careful chat with Lu Tianhao, Chen Yu understood the beginning and end of the matter. The Zhou group, another large group in the South City, was comparable in strength to the Tianchang group, but there are some differences between the two. Zhou Shang this person, is a hawker origin, all the way to fight out. In the South City is known as Master Zhou, is the underground world of the number one big man. This time, Zhou Shang invited Lu Tianhao to dinner, mainly because the two parties have a dispute over a project development. Lu Tianhao was worried that something would happen. So he wanted to bring Chen Yu with him to see if there would be any danger. Yes, I'll go with you. Really? Thank you. Master Chen, time is quickly approaching the weekend. Lu Tianhao personally drove to pick up Chen Yu and went straight to Gathering Tea House. Zhou Shang had already booked a large box on the fourth floor. Lu Tianhao had wanted to bring more people with him, but Chen Yu said it wasn't necessary. So only the two of them came here. Just after the two of them entered the box on the fourth floor, Xia Keiru and the others arrived. A group of young people chattered and entered a box on the third floor. Inside the fourth floor box, Chen Yu met Zhou Shang. Zhou Shang is in his fifties, bald, tiger-backed, and has small eyes. Although he was smiling, a glint came out of his eyes from time to time, and there was a strong sense of oppression. The box was large, with a table large enough to seat over twenty people. At this moment in the box, besides Zhou Shang, there were seven or eight big men. Each man is strong and strong, with a cold, heavy face. Yo. Lu Dong is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dong Lu just brought a little brother over? This boldness. Zhou Sheng admires it. Glancing at Chen Yu, Zhou Sheng was somewhat surprised and opened his mouth with a smile. Lu Tianhao was slightly flustered in his heart, but after looking at Chen Yu, his heart was slightly at ease. 
Master Zhou is not saying anything. We're just here for a meal today. Master Zhou won't lay a hand on me, right? Ha ha, won't won't. Lu Dong don't think too much. Come on, sit down quickly. Zhou Sheng snorted and guided the two to the seating area. Chen Yu was watching from the sidelines. The two appeared to be polite, but their words implied an exchange of words. After being seated, wine and food were served, and Zhou Sheng greeted Lu Tianhao, calling him brother and brother, drinking and mingling in a joyful atmosphere. Chen Yu sat on the side. Zhou Sheng just glanced twice and casually asked questions, then stopped talking to Chen Yu. With his position, he could not look at a young man like Chen Yu. Chen Yu was also happy to be at ease, eating to himself, so happy. In the middle of the day, he answered a call, and it turned out to be Yuan Qing from the Inhuman Bureau looking for him. Chen Yu hadn't wanted to get involved. However, Yuan Chang's respectful attitude and the fact that he had to come to him made him a little uncomfortable. Helplessly, Chen Yu reported the address. Lu Dong Ah, our brother this feeling's no words, is that piece of land thing? You see you cannot cut love, let me do to my brother? Zhou Shang shook the small wine glass in his hand and opened his mouth with a smile. Instead, there was a flash of coldness in his eyes. Lu Tianhao was shocked in his heart. Here we go. Figure out the dagger. Looking at Chen Yu and seeing that Chen Yu was unconcerned, Lu Tianhao's bottom line was much stronger. Before he came, he had asked Chen Yu to do the math. This project, in the end, will still end up in his hands. It's not like anything will happen at this meal. So don't worry about it. He he, brother Zhou, as you know, our Tian Chang also values this project. This is really difficult for me ah. Lu Tianhao doesn't want to give up this project. Zhou Sheng gently put down his wine glass. His smile completely disappeared and became very somewhat cold and heavy. Ha, in that case, Dong Lu is going to compete with me? Hey, what are you talking about? Master Zhou, we're just making a living. Lu Tianhao's words were soft and he opened his mouth lightly. Yeah, I'm curious. What's your bottom line? Him, this rice bucket who only eats. Glancing at Chen Yu, Zhou Sheng sneered and flirted. Chen Yu was the person Lu Tianhao brought in, and by scolding Chen Yu, he was also slapping Lu Tianhao's face. Zhou Shang used this method to embarrass Lu Tianhao. During the seat, the seven or eight people brought by Zhou Shang laughed and flirted with Chen Yu. Lu Tianhao's face changed as he said, Zhou Shang, you've gone too far. Master Chen is not something you can insult. Master Chen? Hearing this, Zhou Shang froze and looked at Chen Yu with a touch of surprise. What's that supposed to mean? This kid is not Lu Tianhao's follower? Instead, he's here to sit for Lu Tianhao? Who is he to make Lu Tianhao so? Although surprised, Lu Tianhao didn't take it too seriously. Hands clasped in front of his chest, Zhou Shang leaned back in his chair, squinting and skimming at Chen Yu, his eyes full of contempt. Master? I'm curious. What is he capable of that would warrant the title of master? I've been hanging out in South City for so many years, and no one has dared to call themselves a master in front of me. As soon as the words were out of his mouth, there was a knock on the door of the box. The door to the room opened and Yuan Cheng led the four Shaolin into the box. Lu Tianhao was a bit surprised, not knowing who these people were. Zhou Sheng's face, however, changed wildly. He sprang to his feet and trotted over to Kobayashi, rubbing his hands together. His face was piled with a fawning smile, no longer the lordly aura of a moment ago. Master Lin, you, why are you old man here today? Who are these people? Zhou Sheng spoke in a tone that compensated for caution. He had had the honor of seeing Kobayashi's methods earlier when he was on a mission. It was also after that one time that his third opinion was refreshed. Subsequently, he was even more vaguely aware of Kobayashi's identity. He himself was the underworld's master Chao in the eyes of others. But in front of Kobayashi? Just a little shrimp. So, he's in awe. Shao Lin, whose full name was Lin Tu, raised an eyebrow upon seeing Zhou Shang. Zhou Shang, you're here too? This time, I came with Boss Yuan to run some errands. Boss Yuan? Looking at Yuan Ching on the side, Zhou Sheng trembled. Kobayashi has been extraordinary. Then his boss. Hiss. Big man. The big man in the sky. Hello Master Yuan. Small man Zhou Sheng. Nice to meet you. Zhou Sheng attitude seniors. Bowing repeatedly. Lu Tianhao was shocked by this scene. Zhou Sheng is a ruthless character who is not afraid of the sky and has always defied others. What exactly is the identity of these few people that they scared Zhou Sheng like this? Yuan Cheng swept his eyes and gently nodded. His expression indifferent. This kind of society was not something he had much interest in reaching out to. In the next moment, he walked over to Chen Yu and bowed respectfully. Master Chen, I'm really sorry for what happened last time. Yuan Cheng makes amends to you. Behind Yuan Cheng, Kobayashi and the others bowed at the same time in a respectful manner. Zhou Shang was dumbfounded. His eyes almost glazed over. Crap, what's going on here? A figure like Master Lin. In. 
in bowing to that youngster? Chen Yu raised his eyebrows, somewhat surprised. I thought that after the last time, the two sides would never cross paths again. I didn't expect Yuan Qing to chase him here. You didn't come here just to apologize, did you? Good. There's one more thing about being here today. We would like to ask Master Chen to serve as the Jianling Prefect. The Prefect? Chen Yu was a bit surprised and puzzled. In the third floor box, a dozen or so young men were partying lively, all bragging about each other and doing their best to distinguish themselves in front of Xia Keiru. At that moment, a boy hemmed and hawed, and after looking to his left and right, he mysteriously opened his mouth. You know what? There are two big shots here at the gathering of the Ming House today. Lu Tianhao of the Tianchang Group and Zhou Shang of the Zhou Group. These two bigwigs are here for talks today. Third floor box. There was a gasp of surprise as everyone looked at the man who opened his mouth. Hey, what's going on? Tell us about it. Seeing this, the man was quite a bit pleased with himself and secretly glanced at Xia Keiru. His name was Chui Ji, and in his senior year, he was known as the class little wizard, with a wide range of information. When he went to college, he was in South City, as was Xia Keiru. On top of that, quite a few others are also attending college in South City. Among them was Qi Xiang, the class president. Chui Ji, don't sell yourself short. Just tell us. Yes, sir. Tricky pointed upward with his index finger. Do you guys know? Right above us, in the box on the fourth floor, the two big brothers, Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang, are eating together right now. I don't need to tell you who they are. The people in the room nodded. We are all from the South City, so we naturally know the status of the two men. Lu Tianhao, chairman of the Tianchang Group, is rich and powerful, involved in many industries. Zhou Shang, a big shot in the underground world, was honored as Master Zhou. In the eyes of these students, both men were heavenly godlike figures that could only be looked up to from afar. They're eating here today, and they're actually competing for a project in the Wujin district. Can you guys imagine? What kind of sparks will collide when these two big shots get together? The scene was quiet. A group of young people were each mesmerized. This kind of meeting of the mighty bigwigs, just thinking about it, makes one feel hot and bothered. Natsuka blinked and her mind wandered. Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang are negotiating? I wonder if he's coming over. At this time, Shi Xiang raised the wine glass in his hand. Everyone, we are all pillars, with our abilities. As long as we work hard, we will definitely have a chance in the future. To be able to be looked at by such a great man, we are different from those who work at the bottom of the factory. We have a future with unlimited possibilities. Come on, let's all drink from the same cup and we'll meet at the top in the future. The atmosphere was baked to a peak by Qi Xiang. The crowd rose up and raised the glasses in their hands, tilting their heads and drinking. It seems that they have stood at the top of the social ladder. Qi Xiang drained his glass to the last drop and stole a glance at Xia Keiru. Ha Keiru. See, I'm in a great mood. Who the hell is Qing Yu? How can a factory dog like him compare to a 211 college student like me? It's a pity that Qin Yu didn't come today. Otherwise it would have been better to show off my style. Xia Keiru looked at the crowd in front of him and let out a light sigh, secretly shaking her head in her heart. She knew that Qi Xiang was referring to Qin Yu, but how did they know that Lu Tianhao, who was unattainable in their eyes, was humble in front of Chun Yu? For a while, Xia Kairu was a bit disinterested and just wanted to hurry up and end this boring party. Putting down their glasses, the crowd took their seats. Qi Xiang was full of smiles, and with a three-point drunkenness, he laughed and began to show off. Fellow students, to tell you the truth, I'm actually already a management trainee of the Tianchang Group. After graduation, I will directly enter the Tianchang Group and become a key cultivator. A statement that made the people in the audience gasp in amazement. Class president. Awesome. After graduation, remember to take care of me. Wow. Tianchang Group's management trainee. That's not something an average person can be selected for. Not bad for a class president. I've heard that Tianchang Group's management trainees are paid $300,000 a year as soon as they join the company. In the future, if they do a good job, they might be able to go to a mid-level position. Enjoying the envy and bragging of the crowd, Qi Xiang felt almost like flying. Pressing his hand, he looked up at the ceiling, his face open with confidence. Maybe 10 years from now, I will also be qualified, beside Lu Dong, to participate in the negotiations between the two big brothers. The crowd looked up, so curious to know what kind of saga is unfolding in the private room on the fourth floor. Fourth floor box, Lu Tianhao, Zhou Shang, and the others, all left their seats and stood as minions in the corners. They looked at Chen Yu with faces full of awe. The house father? What's that? Chen Yu was puzzled. Yuan Qing laughed. Master Chen, this is a position in the Inhuman Bureau. I told you, I don't want to join. Master Chen is at ease. Yuan Qing hurriedly explained. 
Master Chen has read metaphysical novels, right? The so-called prefecture Zun is similar to a sex guest elder. Guest elder? Not bad. As a house father, you are not bound by rules, and you don't need to go to work or go off work or perform tasks. It's just that when the need arises, Master Chen will be asked to help. Of course, whether or not to make a move is also entirely up to the individual's own volition, and will never be forced. Even if you go out on a limb, you're bound to be rewarded handsomely every time. Chen Yu frowned. If that's the case, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take over the position. Moreover, in this way, one would also have something to fall back on. And in the future, when dealing with the Song and Lu families, one's bottom line would be much stronger. This position, what level is it considered? Yuan Qing laughed and said, rampant within the province of Jiangling. Chen Yu's eyes lit up. Good, I'll take it. Great. Yuan Qing clapped his palms heavily, in an excited mood. Chen Yu is from the South City and was recommended by himself. After becoming a house dignitary, it would be a heavenly benefit to the South City in Human Bureau. Master Chen, I'll go back and handle the formalities. I'm really sorry for disturbing your meal today. We'll take our leave then. Yuan Cheng led Xiao Lin and a few others to exit the box. Before retreating, Yuan Qing coldly swept his eyes at Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang. Please keep today's events a secret. The two men simultaneously had a jolt. Their backs instantly drenched in cold sweat, nodding their heads like garlic. That one look just now made the two feel like the entire world had changed. That terrifying killing intent made them feel like they were in a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. In just a moment, the two of them knew that this Yuan Qing's identity was by no means simple, and was an existence that they should never mess with. There is a sublime gap between them. That Chen Yu who was treated so respectfully by Yuan Chang. Looking towards Chen Yu, the two of them gulped in unison. Rampant in the province of Gangneng. Those four words they heard loud and clear. Lu Tianhao's brain buzzed. He had thought that Chen Yu was just a divine arithmetic master, but now it seemed that it wasn't that simple. Zhou Sheng trembled in fear, and his blood seemed to freeze. Man, had he just spoken out and offended such a big shot? Poof. Zhou Sheng knelt down on the spot and slapped himself furiously. Chen. Master Chen. I was wrong. I'll apologize to you. Please. Your honor. Snap. A clear, crisp voice resounded throughout the box. Chen Yu acted as if he didn't realize it only quietly picking up a piece of braised pork and placing it in his mouth. Zhou Sheng secretly grumbled in his heart, but he didn't dare to stop at all. Don't look at him as a big shot in the underground world, but if those big shots wanted to kill him, they would just crush him with their hands. After slapping dozens of slaps, Chen Yu then opened his mouth. Get up, the food is getting cold. Thank you, Master Chen. No, thank you, Prefect. Zhou Sheng then slumped down and hurriedly got up and bowed. The feast continued but it was very different. Chen Yu became the absolute protagonist. Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang, never mentioning the project, instead surrounded Chen Yu with a humble face. The two men kept toasting, both to the point of drying their glasses. Chen Yu took the juice and just gently sipped on it. Right in the middle of dinner, there was a commotion outside the door. What's going on? Go check it out. Zhou Shang frowned and immediately ordered a junior to go out. It wasn't long before my little brother returned. Master Zhou. It's a group of youngsters from the third floor box who drank too much and offended Su Wu, and are now being taught a lesson. Chen Yu froze slightly at his words. Third floor box? It's not Natsuka and the others, is it? What's going on out there? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. Seeing that it was Chen Yu who asked, the little brother was frightened. Back to Master Chen, the matter is like this. It's not a big deal, to say the least. After getting drunk, Chui Ji goes forward to the restroom, and it just so happens that Su Wu is also there. Shuiji saw that Su Wu was dressed in clothes worth a lot of money, and he also made a date with a lover to spend the night. Shit, I'm not even seeing anyone, and you're going to flirt with a girl? The wine was strong and Trei Chi went up to pick a fight. Although Su Wu was also a Taoist, but Chui Ji had practiced sparring. After a fight, Su Wu suffered a loss. Chui Ji returned to the box and was bragging about it when Su Wu brought his men and blocked Chui Ji and the others in the box. Right now Su Wu is in the third floor box. Those youngsters, they'll have to suffer a bit. The little brother opened his mouth with a smile. Zhou Sheng laughed and raised his glass. Master Chen, this is all a small matter. It's not worth your concern. Come on, come on, I'll toast you again. Su Wu had followed him for some time now, and he knew the other party's character. Simply put, it's vindictive and ruthless. Those youngsters can do more than just suffer a little. Without retiring a layer of skin, I'm afraid I won't be able to leave this gathering house. Those guys, they're my classmates. Chen Yu spoke indifferently. Hearing Chui Ji's name from his little brother, he knew everything. Xia Keiru, a few people, should be gathering in the downstairs box. 
I just didn't realize that they had messed with the community. After all, they were classmates, and Shen Yu couldn't bear to see them being bullied too badly. Zhou Shang was shocked at his words. What? Your classmate? Aha. Uh -huh. Gee, look at this whole thing. It's so wrong. I'll immediately call Su Wu over and have him apologize to you face to face. Xiao Lei. Quickly go to the third floor private room and shout that bastard Su Wu over. Zhou Shang yelled. Xiao Lei did not dare to delay for a moment. Hurriedly nodded his head, and hurriedly rushed out the door. Third floor box. It's a mess at the moment. The table was overturned, spilling drinks and dishes all over the floor. A thin, flat-headed middle-aged man sat in a chair with his legs crossed. The Su cigarette in his hand was burning quietly, rising in wisps of smoke. He is Su Wu. Opposite him, Xia Kero and the others were cornered by Su Wu's men, looking terrified. Trei Chi was lying curled up on the ground, covered in wounds, and was moaning in pain. Tell me, how will this be resolved today? Fifth master I'm on fire right now. Su Wu narrowed his triangular eyes and swept over the crowd. When it reached Xia Kero's body, a flash of greed flashed through Su Wu's eyes. Gee, that's a real strip. It would be great to press and get it. Xia Kero and the others were pale and frightened. They grew up in the ivory tower that is school. I've never seen anything like this before. Just now, someone tried to make a call, only to have his cell phone directly snatched and several slaps made blood flow. All of a sudden, the crowd was honest and never dared to say anything more. Everyone looked at Qi Xiang, earlier at the dinner table, when Chui Ji said that he had beaten up someone. Qi Xiang had patted his chest and said that his family connections were not bad and that he was able to smooth things over. Qi Xiang felt the gazes of the crowd and screamed in his heart. He was so scared now that both his legs were trembling. But so many people were looking at them, and for the sake of face, they couldn't wimp out at this point. Gritting his teeth, Shi Xiang took a step forward and squeezed out a smile. This friend, this matter is our fault first. Look at you. You've beaten up people and lifted the table. It's time to take this breath. We apologize to you, and we'll pay for all your purchases today. So let's leave this matter at that. What do you think? Su Wu looked at Qi Xiang and puffed. Ha! A brat with no hair on his head dares to talk to me like that? What if I don't want to leave it at that? You! Qi Xiang's face changed, clenched his teeth and said, Friend, see you should also be on the road. My father also has some contacts on the road. There is no need to do so absolutely. Oh, who is your father? Qi Xiang threw his chest out and was quite proud of himself. My father's name is Qi Shangming, and my friends call him Ming to save face. All around. The crowd looked at Qi Xiang with a touch of awe and admiration. Men, by nature, respect power and strength. How great must it be to be able to deal with the other side with such an attitude? I didn't realize there was such a side to the class president. It's a long way to go. However, Su Wu just raised his eyebrows and swept Qi Xiang up and down, followed by a burst of contemptuous laughter. Who did I think it was? But Lumpy Ming's son? When he sees me, he also has to respectfully call out Fifth Master. You little brat. How dare you be arrogant in front of me? Qi Xiang froze, and in the next moment steeply rounded his eyes. Master 5. You, you're Su. Su Wu. Qi Xiang's voice changed. Talking with his father before, Qi Sheng Ming had mentioned Su Wu many times, and every time he did so, a wave of fear washed over him. I didn't realize that today. It's him that I've offended? It's over. Qi Xiang was instantly covered in cold sweat. Fifth. Master 5th. I'm really sorry. We were wrong. Please spare us if you're so kind. We're, we're still kids. Su Wu grinned and said, Since you're Lumpy Ming's sons, I won't make things difficult for you. This kid, I'm going to break one of his legs so that he'll learn from his mistakes. Pointing at Chui Ji on the ground, Su Wu spoke faintly. No one dares to speak. Su Wu pointed at the people present again. You kids, each of you kowtow and apologize for your mistakes, and forget about it. And you, Su Wu pointed towards Xia Keiru. I've got a lot of fire in me tonight and you need to let it out. You, what do you want? Natsuka blushed in fear and shrank back. Not for anything, just to sing and drink with me tonight as an apology. I don't want it. Xia Keiru immediately shouted. Her heart clenched together. Su Wu is the jackal. Singing and drinking with him, God knows what will happen to him. Shi Xiang hurriedly opened his mouth and said, Fifth master, this matter of accompanying the wine should be dispensed with, or I will drink with you. Get out. Su Wu let out a broken cry scaring Qi Xiang so much that he didn't dare to take more than a breath of air. What are you? Any more nonsense and I'll kill you. At this moment, Su Wu's ferocious appearance was revealed. Turning his head, he was filled with a cold smile as his gaze scanned every corner of Xia Kairu's body with reckless abandon. Little girl, this matter of accompanying alcohol, today you have to agree or not. Xia Kairu shivered and turned her head to look at Qi Xiang. Xia, Xia Kairu, why don't you, why don't you just stay with? 
Stay with Master Fifth and have a drink. Qi Xiang lowered his head, his eyes averted, not even daring to look at Xia Kaori. Two lines of tears fell silently. At this moment, Xia Kaoru was desperate. Snap. At this time, a round of applause rang out. Lei walked into the room with a grin on his face. Su Wu, you're quite domineering. Su Wu turned around and saw Xiao Lei. His expression was shocked and he immediately stood up, jogging over to Lei. A smile piled on his face. Yo, Lei, what brings you here? What's the matter? Oh, naturally there's something going on. Let's go. Follow me to see Master Zhou. Su Wu's pupils shrank, and his heart and mind trembled fiercely. Master Zhou is looking for me? Lei nodded and looked at Natsuka and the others. They're coming along. Da 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 da. The group headed to the fourth floor box. Su Wu was full of winks and came over to Xiao Lei's side. Brother Lei, Master Zhou called me over. What exactly is the matter? Ha, you'll see when you go. Get ready. Patting Su Wu on the shoulder. Xiao Lei sneered. Su Wu's heart was furtive, and he became more and more apprehensive. Behind them, Qi Xiang and the others all lowered their heads, their bodies gently trembling, their hearts filled with fear. Chowder, the big man of the underground world in South City, an existence like a god in the sky in their eyes. Why would you call them over? Is it going to be against them? But why? We don't amount to shit in the eyes of such bigots. The more I think about it, the more scared I get. Qi Xiang and Shui Ji and the others had all gone weak in the knees and would have almost paralyzed on the ground if they hadn't been holding onto the railing on the side. The third floor box is close to the fourth floor box. But with such a short journey, Qi Xiang and the others only felt that every second was so long. Like, heading towards hell. Crunch. Lei pushed open the door of the fourth floor box. Master Chen. Master Zhou. The people have all been brought. The fourth floor box was extremely large, and even if twenty or so people came in, it didn't seem crowded. Beside Xiao Lei was Su Wu and his group of men. Qi Xiang and the others were behind Su Wu, so they did not see Chen Yu at first. Hey, Master Zhou, what is it that you called Little Fifth over for? Su Wu's face was full of fawning, smiling and rubbing his hands. Qi Xiang and the others were shocked in their hearts. Is this the majesty of Master Zhou in South City? A ferocious man like Su Wu is like a small chicken in front of him? Humph, Su Wu. You really can. Daring to touch them? Do you know? Who are they? Them? Aren't they a bunch of students? Su Wu blinked his eyes. Unsure. Students? They're Master Chen's classmates. Su Wu. You dog. I can't wait to skin you. Zhou Sheng was in waves of anger and opened his mouth viciously. He had already offended Chen Yu just now. Now if because of Su Wu, he made Chen Yu dissatisfied with himself again, that would be the end of it. Su Wu was completely confused. Master Chen's classmate? The young man next to Master Zhou? What the hell is he that makes Master Zhou so? Well, Reverend? Shi Xiang and the others were also confused. Master Chen? Classmates? We have such awesome classmates? Can you hook up with a big shot like Zhou Sheng? Natsuka shivered and clenched her fists tightly. Excitement. Incredibly excited. Yes, it's him, and him alone, who has that kind of energy. Chen Yu, raising her head, from amongst the people, Xia Keiru saw Chen Yu. A large round table was set with wine and food. Chun Yu sat in the center with a bland expression. On either side of him, Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang accompanied him on the left and the right. Their attitudes incomparably respectful. Covering her mouth, Natsuka's eyes filled with tears. She didn't even know how to describe what she was feeling right now. Master Zhou, this, is this some kind of misunderstanding? Su Wu panicked and hurriedly opened his mouth. Zhou Shang was still full of anger. Misunderstanding? Humph. Just you wait. Turning his head to look at Chen Yu, Zhou Shang was immediately filled with smiles. Master Chen, what do you think about this? You give the word, and Zhou Shang will take care of it for you. Chen Yu gently shook his head. I know all about it, and I can't blame him entirely for this. Forget it. Okay, okay. Zhou Shang nodded his head like garlic. Then as soon as he picked up the ashtray next to him, he smashed Su Wu's blood. Su Wu, why don't you fucking kneel down and thank Master Chen? Su Wu was not stupid. Although he did not know Chen Yu's true identity, but to make Zhou Shang so humble, Chen Yu was by no means ordinary. He didn't dare to be slow, and hurriedly brought his own little brother to kneel on the ground, kowtowing to Chen Yu and apologizing for his mistake. It was not until this moment that Qi Xiang and the others saw Chen Yu. At first it was confusing. After three years of absence, they had forgotten what Chen Yu looked like. After a good deal of reminiscing, it was only then that he sucked in a mouthful of cold air and stared at Chen Yu dead in the face. You. Your Chen Yu? Qi Xiang's eyes widened in shock. In the room, there was a sound of cold air being sucked in. A dozen young men, just staring straight at Chen Yu, their brains buzzing. Chen Yu, the guy who dropped out on the eve of his senior year? Didn't he work in the factory? 
What's going on now? Why is he sitting between Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang? It looks like the two bigwigs are still so respectful of him. Chen Yu's expression remained unchanged as he smiled faintly and nodded slightly. Squad leader Qi, it's been a long time. Seeing the crowd, Chen Yu also had a touch of emotion in his heart. Back then in high school, Qi Xiang was a popular figure. Family conditions are not bad, and people are lively, and study is also passable, is a character of eight sides. The same goes for other men and women. The family is not rich and wealthy, but it is considered well off. The high school colleges I hear are all good too. I thought that dropping out of school that time would be the last time I would cross paths with these people, but I didn't expect to meet here today. In this way, three years of light, they are enjoying their reckless youth in the ivory tower, himself in the midst of a factory, bearing the burden of life. And now, one step ahead of the other, one becomes a human being, power, money, at your fingertips. They also have to worry about finding a job after graduation. The changes in life's encounters are truly inscrutable. For a while, Shen Yu was somewhat disillusioned. Su Wu, don't make things harder for these classmates of mine, okay? Su Wu was shaken and hurriedly said, if you give the word, Master Chen, little fifth son will definitely follow it. Young brothers, this time it is my Su Wu's fault, please bear with me. All of your spending tonight is on me, Su Wu. After Su Wu finished, he slapped himself seven or eight times to make amends. Qi Xiang and the others looked at this scene dumbfounded, with a feeling of unreality. This man who was now humble to the core, was he really the domineering and arrogant Su Wu just now? Everyone was looking complicated. Everyone understood that the reason for this was all because of Chen Yu. Qi Xian wanted to ask Qing Yu what was going on, but in the end, he didn't say anything. The gap between them was too great, so great that he didn't have the courage to speak. Well, it's about time to break up this meal. Chen Yu got up. Lu Tianhao and Zhou Shang immediately stood up and followed Chen Yu left and right, leaving the box. Su Wu followed behind on his ass, nodding his head. Qi Xiang and the others stood aside like minions, watching Chen Yu leave. Goodbye, never again. The large box fell into a dead silence. Qi Xiang and the others were speechless for a long time, still immersed in great shock. It was several minutes before Trei Chi spoke with a bitter smile. I didn't realize that he had gotten this far. We, truly, look like clowns. No one has refuted it. The thought of what they had said earlier as they raised their glasses and drank felt incredibly awkward. What a top meat. What is different from a factory dog? Slap in the face. They couldn't catch up with Chen Yu even if they spent their entire lives. This class reunion came to a close with a few moments of despondency and shock. When Natsuka got home, she dove into her room. Taking out his cell phone, he opened the chat software and found Chen Yu, gently biting her lip with a little shyness. Xia Kero typed a line in the chat box. Chen Yu, do you have time tomorrow? I'll treat you to dinner. Thank you for helping me. Sending the message. Xia Keiru's face flushed red and her heart thumped. He's so pretty. He shouldn't say no. No, definitely not. When people want to buy me a meal, I don't always say yes. Thinking about this, Xia Keiru was quite confident. At the same time, there are some regrets. If he had known that Chen Yu was so powerful, he should have maintained a good relationship with him in the first place. Although they had been deskmates for a long time, Xia Keiru and Chen Yu hardly had any friendship. Xia Keiru, at that time, was known throughout the high school as the school flower. How many guys want to add her social accounts? Chun Yu is not only a single parent, but also from a poor family. In such a situation, Xia Kairo actually couldn't look at Chun Yu at all. So all along, Xia Kairo was in front of Chun Yu in a high and cold manner. However, he did not expect Chun Yu to go this far. Ding dong, the cell phone is ringing. Natsuka hurriedly picked up her cell phone and looked at it. No need. Only two words. Natsuka stared at the screen. Fuming slightly, he, uh, rejected me? How? Me? I'm the school beauty. How many boys want to buy me a meal? I won't even agree. Offered to invite him. How come he refused? A little angry. A little upset. However, once she thought of Chun Yu's positional status, Xia Kaori could only suppress all these emotions and continue the invitation. Chun Yu looked at the chat message and scratched his head. This not Soka. She's really persistent. He had clearly refused himself, but he was still unforgiving. After a few times, Chen Yu had no choice but to agree. The next day Chen Yu came to the scheduled hotel as promised. Natsuka had been standing in the doorway for a while. Today she was especially dressed up. Had her hair done, wore delicate makeup, and dressed in a way that looked conservative but was actually seductive. A short skirt danced gently with the wind, and the two long legs stepped on high heels, making them even whiter in the night. Standing on the side of the road, many people gave it a sideways glance, their eyes somewhat unable to move on Xia Keiru. Chen Yu was dressed plainly, 
A simple pair of slacks and a plain t-shirt and that's it. Seeing Chin Yu arrive, Xia Kairu's eyes lit up and she quickly greeted him. He he, Master Chen, you're finally here. It's not gentlemanly to make a girl wait for half a day. Natsuka smiled and opened her mouth. Chen Yu was in a bit of a trance. The woman in front of me with a smile on her face. Is she really the iceberg woman from high school? There's been some things that have delayed it a little. There were no apologies, no over explanations. Chen Yu's tone remained flat. Natsuka froze. If any other boy had heard this from himself, he would have been terrified and rushed to explain why and pray for forgiveness. This guy, just answer me? Oh, go on in. Xia Kairu digressed and led Chen Yu into the restaurant. During the meeting, Xia Kairu ordered drinks, iced drinks, and seemingly unintentionally revealed the charger in her bag. Overnight outing kit, sort of all together. Chen Yu saw through it and didn't say anything, just eating quietly. Chen Yu, I really didn't expect that you changed so much in three years. What exactly happened? Xia Kairu was like checking her account, wanting to understand Chen Yu's situation in these three years. Chen Yu just casually dealt with it and didn't reveal too much, but in Xia Kairu's eyes, the more she felt that Chen Yu was mysterious. After dinner was over, Xia Kairu dragged Chen Yu stiffly to take a walk by the lake again. Chen Yu, do you have a girlfriend now? Not yet. Chen Yu shook his head. For the past three years he has been working to earn money and worrying about his mother's medical bills. There is no time or energy for a relationship. Then, this lady will give you a chance to come after me. I'm very optimistic about you. Yo, Natsuka spoke half jokingly, half seriously. Chen Yu was already handsome, plus he had a superb status nowadays. Compared to him, those suitors in college were thrown out of sight. How can you let a guy like that go? Natsuka was confident in herself. She is a school beauty with countless suitors and a good sense of humor. Previous boyfriends that I dated were also rich. It's long past the first time, but it's better than experience. Such a condition is more than enough to match Chen Yu. But, Chen Yu just shook his head. No need. We shouldn't cross paths in the future. The atmosphere would instantly reach freezing point. Xia Kairo stood frozen in place, looking at Chen Yu in dismay, filled with surprise. He, uh, refused? I'm the one who gave him a chance. Why? Natsuka blurted out. Chen Yu smiled and looked at Xia Kaori, a pair of black eyes that were as deep as the vast universe. We two have sat at the same table, but we don't know each other very well. After I dropped out of school, I didn't really contact each other for three years. Ask yourself, Natsuka, do you really have a crush on me? No, you're just shocked because of my position, because I'm unattainable, that's all. If I, Chun Yu, were still working in the factory, you wouldn't have invited me to dinner, much less given me the chance to chase you, even, you don't want to see me. When I am in the valley of the low, you and I are not in the same company, nor were you and I in the same way the day I soared into the sky. Chen Yu's voice was flat, without the slightest fluctuation of emotions. I, Natsuka had the intention to retort, but no words came out. Chen Yu's words, word for word, completely exposed her small mind. Indeed, she was just attracted to Chen Yu's power. In these three years, the name Chen Yu had never occurred to her. Even if you hear it, there's nothing special about it. Thanks for the treat, and good luck with your studies. Chen Yu smiled and turned to leave. The night breeze gently blows the lake. Ripples flooding the lights of the traffic. Xia Kaira looked at Chun Yu's departing back in a daze, revealing a self-deprecating smile after a long time. Yes, you are an eagle soaring in the nine heavens, but I am just an ant on the earth. So, my pride is worthless in your eyes. I thought that with my looks, I would be able to easily pin down Chun Yu. However, he did not expect that in Chun Yu's eyes, these were simply meaningless. It was a moment that hit Natsuka hard. Chen Yu walked alone on the night road, his mind in an ancient state. Since embarking on the path of immortal cultivation and experiencing these many things, his mindset had changed drastically. Seeing people and things is more transparent and transcendent. Natsuka wants to be her girlfriend? Honestly, she's not good enough. Natsuka, you're not even close to her. Chen Yu shook his head. A girl's face comes to mind. Xiao Yunyue, the woman who came to visit a year ago. She was grateful to the point of tears just because she had helped her out a little in the first place. Don't mind your family. Don't mind being a factory dog. The woman who laughs and encourages herself that everything is going to be okay, who treats herself to street food, who presses the pavement with her, and who sings loudly and indulgently. The woman who made her heart pound was in the capital of Gangneung province, Jinchuan City, Xiao Yunyue, we will meet again, then, I'll definitely chase you. Chen Yu tightened his fists and folded his arms to go home, my past self was not qualified to pursue love, but it's different now, there was no talk all night, early the next morning. Chen Yu opened the live broadcast as usual. On his face, a flash of excitement. 
the practice went much smoother than expected. Unsurprisingly, he would be able to advance to the foundation establishment realm today. The live feed opens. The master is here. The fright sky gang greets the master. Small gifts to brush up. Does the master accept disciples? On the public screen, there was a buzz. The number of people in the live room quickly surpassed 100. 000 people. Li Nanrue stared at the live broadcast, blushing with excitement. Today's Chun Yu has become a phenomenal internet celebrity across the board. In a short period of time, the number of fans had already exceeded 20 million or so, shocking the entire network. As a witness, there is a special sense of pride away from Nanrue. In just one hour, Chen Yu counted eight people. When the ninth one had been counted, the heavenly chi flowed into Chen Yu's body, giving him a special feeling. It's like a big tank of water that keeps adding water to it. The day will come when it is full. And now the tank is full. He himself was finally going to break through the foundation establishment realm. Fellow Taoists, I have a decision to announce. Facing the camera, Chen Yu spoke faintly. After I'm off the air, I'm retiring from the network and this account will be cancelled. Thank you all for being with me all the way. A sentence that completely blew up the live broadcast. Aight so, backing out of the net? Master why did you quit the net? Master isn't broadcasting anymore? You have over 20 million fans. Did something happen to you? Master? Don't back out of the net guru. Above the public screen. A retention. Shen Yu's decision was out of everyone's expectation. The fast tone platform. Is an excellent place to strike gold. How many people go to great lengths to cultivate a Netflix number and then cash in on the traffic? Chen Yu had accumulated 20 million fans in just 10 days from the start of his live broadcast. This miracle is unique to the fast tone platform. Everyone thought that Chen Yu would definitely cash in on the traffic. I didn't realize that he had dropped out of the net? And to cancel the account? Is this crazy? Li Nan Rue sighed in his heart. Shocked but understanding. After the party that night, Lu Tianhao told him about Chen Yu. Zhou Sheng pays his respects and the mysterious big man comes to visit. How proud was Chen Yu's identity? How could he possibly engage in something like fast sound live streaming again? Hey, from now on, on the fast sound live broadcast, there's one less strange person. Shaking his head, Li Nan Rue let out a long sigh. Master, even if you want to withdraw from the network, you have to give us a reason. What exactly is the reason? On the public screen, someone asked this, and it was immediately echoed. Chen Yu thought for a moment and slowly spoke. I'm going to cultivate immortality. After advancing to the foundation establishment realm, one could directly absorb the heavenly chi. There is no need to change the celestial chi for cultivation. So naturally there is no longer a need for live fortune telling. The upgrading of the cultivation method allowed Chen Yu to get rid of his dependence on live broadcasting. As for money, with the means he had today, there was no longer much of a problem. It's time for this short life career to come to an end. In the live room, many netizens couldn't hold their breath. Hell, you can say something came up at home or that you made enough money. And the result? Cultivating immortality? You fix a hammer. That's what I'm getting at? But there are those who are convinced. It makes sense for the master of divine calculus to go into immortality, doesn't it? Amidst a murmur, Chen Yu closed the live broadcast. Log out of your account and set your phone aside. The whole movement was in one fluid motion. An account with 20 million followers is naturally extremely valuable to others. But to Ching Yu, it was no different from Dung. At this moment, on his face, a flash of anticipation rose. It's time for a breakthrough. Sitting down with his knees crossed, Chen Yu closed his eyes and concentrated, mobilizing the Yuan Qi in his body to start impacting the foundation establishment realm. The realm of foundation building is casting the foundation. Only after reaching this step could one be considered to have truly stepped through the door of immortal cultivation. Practitioners will also return to the realm of the innate from the state of the latter. The vital energy in the body will form true essence. Chen Yu followed the cultivation method of the heavenly qi technique, invoking the Yuan Qi in his body to continuously travel the major passes of his entire body. Lap after lap, the Yuan Qi gradually condensed and gradually liquefied. Ding dong. It was as if a drop of water had fallen into a calm lake, causing ripples. Chen Yu finally condensed a drop of true essence at the Dantian location. The true essence was shaped like a water droplet and appeared milky white with a faint halo. With the appearance of true essence, Chen Yu only felt as if an invisible shackle had been opened within his body. At the same time, a large amount of black impurities were expelled from the body along the pores. The stench instantly filled the room. At this moment, Chen Yu felt that the entire world had changed. The eyes were so clear and bright that the lines on the table were clearly visible. His ears were unusually sharp and the sound of the wind rattling from the wings of a small insect flapping in the corner was clearly audible. Smell, taste, touch, the functioning of all the senses is geometrically enhanced. It seemed as if the world was unveiled before his own eyes. An unspeakable sense of power surged forth. 
There seemed to be an inexhaustible amount of strength in his body, and his energy was unbelievable. Chen Yu opened his eyes, looked down at his hands and grinned, finally breaking through the foundation establishment realm. Ding, detected the host breaking through the foundation establishment realm, now distributing breakthrough rewards. The system, which had not appeared for a long time, appeared again. Ding, reward the host with immortal emperor memories. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining a cultivation infusion. Ding, congratulations to the host for reaching the minor completion of the foundation establishment realm. A series of voices that rang out in his head, before Chen Yu had time to react. He suddenly felt a vast and incomparable memory pouring into his mind. It was the life of an immortal emperor named Bei Xian. Since the rise of the humble beginnings, all the way up against the heavens, defeating all the heavenly prides and pointing straight to the great Tao. Cultivation tips, countless battle techniques, alchemy, artifacts, formations, and insights. It took half an hour for Chen Yu to absorb all of this. Opening his eyes again, his aura changed radically. At this moment, he seemed to be incarnated as an immortal emperor, experiencing the vicissitudes of time and the rotation of light. There is only the indifference of eternal pride at the top. That's a gift. That's a lot of money. Chen Yu let out a sigh of relief. His emotions complicated. The life of an immortal emperor. Ah, the value of such an epiphany was simply immeasurable. Previously, although Chen Yu had already set foot on the path of immortal cultivation, he was just a white boy. Compared to the ordinary people in the city, that is naturally transcendent. But if you put it in a world of immortal cultivation, it's a fledgling, and it's still a fledgling who doesn't know anything. But it was different now. The Chen Yu of today was equivalent to an immortal emperor reborn. Eyesight, insight, and means cannot be compared to earlier. Now that I've reached the foundation establishment realm, I'm already able to refine the recovery pill to cure my mother's strange illness. Tightening his fists, Chen Yu was somewhat excited. Although the operation was successful last time, Wu Shaolan's strange disease was not cured, but only temporarily controlled. And the doctors diagnosed and concluded that in a year's time this strange disease is feared to return. In the event of another attack, it will be life-threatening. This had always been on Chen Yu's mind. Now after obtaining the immortal emperor's memories, these were not a problem at all. Go take a bath first, and you can prepare for the alchemy later. Walking out of the room, he happened to run into Wu Shaolan. Feather, what have you gotten yourself into? It's not like you fell into a cesspool, is it? Wu Shaolan pinched her nose and frowned. The corner of Chen Yu's mouth twitched. Mom, can we wish our son well? Rolling his eyes, Chen Yu didn't say anything more and moved forward to take a shower in the bathroom. At the same time, the parlor of the South City Inhuman Bureau. Yuan Chang looked at the several people across from him, his brows furrowed, a few of you, when we previously asked Chen Yu to assume the position of Prefecture Zun, we didn't say that we would test him, Yuan Chang's face was full of dissatisfaction, the appointment of a prefectural honored one required the personal approval of the director of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province, for this matter, he made a special trip to Jinchuan City, after patting his chest and assuring him, this was the only way to get the position of the house dignitary, today, Originally he was going through the application process. I didn't realize that the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province had lined up someone to come over. The pretense was to see Chen Yu's strength. But in the end, it wasn't because they didn't trust him. There were a total of five people in the inspection team, headed by an old man. The old man was a good-looking man with long hair and a goatee. There's something even more special about wearing a suit. If you don't look at the face and just look at the body, it really looks like a tall male lead coming out of an idol drama. His name is Mu Bai and he's the leader of the group this time. Yuan Chang, you shouldn't mind too much. It's really because what you said is a bit hard to believe. That's why the chief, he asked us to come. It's a necessary part of being a prefect. When Yuan Chang went to ask for the position of prefecture Zun, he went so far as to say that Chen Yu was in his mid-twenties and had S-class battle power. Who would dare to believe that? There are only three government honors in the entire province of Jiangling. Giving it to Chen Yu like this was ultimately a bit unsettling. That's exactly why the inspection team came. Humph, you guys just don't believe me. Forget it, whatever. But I can tell you guys, be nice in your attitudes. I had a hard time getting Chen Yu to agree. Yuan Chang was afraid that Mubai's few people would annoy Chen Yu and opened his mouth to remind him. Oh, don't worry, we'll pay attention to proportion. Let's introduce these people first. Xiao Luo, Xiao Luan, Xiao He, you've seen these three before. A-class combatants. This is Mr. Feng Suqiu Feng, he has also just passed the examination and has become a Jiangling Provincial Government Zun, S-Class Battle Force. This time, the assessment is mainly in the hands of Feng Suqiu Feng. Hiss. Yuan Cheng sucked in a mouthful of cold air and looked at Feng Suqiu. Feng Suqiu was in her fifties, 
tall and thin, sitting there, head slightly raised, I seem to open and close, own a proud momentum. Hello, Mr. Feng. Yuan Ching snorted. Feng Suqiu nodded slightly and said, Don't worry, I won't hurt Chen Yu in this examination. After all, he is a junior. Yuan Ching's eyebrows jumped, and there was some secret dissatisfaction in his heart. This Feng Suqiu has a big rack. Master Feng shouldn't be careless. Chen Yu is very powerful. Feng Suqiu grunted and didn't say anything. Mu Bai laughed and patted Yuan Chang on the shoulder. Yuan Chang, you're afraid that you don't know Mr. Feng's strength. Have you ever heard of it before? Shura hands? Yuan Chang nodded. Naturally, I've heard of it. Shura hands, who became famous 15 years ago, is a deviant who does no evil. Once, in one night, 13 girls were murdered. At that time, the Inhuman Bureau also expended a great deal of energy to pounce on this Fong. However, the Shura hands were extremely strong, having stepped into S-class combat power, and their movements were secretive, making them extremely difficult to deal with. What was unexpected, however, was that someone later found the body of Shura hands on top of a barren mountain. There is an end to this matter. Yuan Ching had been personally involved in this matter and was extremely impressed. He he, then let me tell you, 15 years ago, it was Mr. Feng who chased after the Shura hands for three days and three nights and finally killed them. At that time, Mr. Feng had already reached S-class combat power. Boom. Yuan Ching suddenly got up and looked at Feng Suqiu with wide eyes. I can't believe it's him? Kobayashi and the others sat on the sidelines, also terrified. 15 years ago, and you already have S-class combat power? Then what level has the current Feng Suqiu reached? Looking at the horrified Yuan Chang, Feng Suqiu gently smiled with a proud expression. Do you think that Chen Yu will be better than me? Yuan Chang, the moment was lost on him. Mu Bai smiled again and said, Yuan Chang, let me tell you one more thing. Mr. Feng has already reached the peak of the Hotian realm. In the future, even if he breaks into the innate realm and achieves the prestige of a patriarch, it is not impossible. Boom. At this moment, Yuan Chang was like five thunderbolts. Innate master realm. He, has he reached this level? In the Inhuman Bureau, ranks are divided by battle strength. The apex of the S rank among them was the peak Hotian realm. One step further, breaking through the innate realm and returning to the basics, would be SS level combat power. In the entire Jiangling province, there was no one who had reached this level. Even that director is only at the peak of Hotian. Feng Su Chao, comparable to that director? Although Chen Yu was powerful, how could he be an opponent? Director Yuan, don't stand. Sit down. Feng Su Chao glanced at Yuan Cheng and let out a cold smile as she pressed her palm violently in the void. A strong force instantly pressed on Yuan Cheng's shoulders, pressing him into a sitting position. Yuan Cheng's mind was shaken. That hand just now had made him feel Feng Su Chao's strong strength. Seeing Yuan Cheng's face full of shock, Feng Suqiu then inquired. Now, does Director Yuan think I can beat Chen Yu to death? Yuan Chang was silent. After a long time, he arched his hand to Feng Suqiu. I also asked Mr. Feng to be merciful and mindful of the limits. Ha 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 ha. Good. With your words, I won't make things difficult for that little guy. Feng Suqiu let out a loud laugh. Looking smug. The reason for this is also intentional on his part. There were only three prefecture Zun positions in total in Jiangling province. Other than Chen Yu. Feng Suqiu had already sparred with another person. The opponent was undefeated and bowed his head to Feng Suqiu. If he then overpowered Chen Yu, then he would be the number one prefecture Zun in Jiangling province. For this reason, he had to give Chen Yu a downward spiral. Well, make an appointment with Chen Yu. Mu Bai smiled and spoke. Yuan Chang nodded and gave Chen Yu a call. Chen Yu happened to come out of the shower and was wiping his wet hair. The house father expedition? Could be. Okay, I'll take a cab there later. Hanging up the phone, Chun Yu had some expectations. Listening to Yuan Ching, the inspection team is very strong. It was just as well that he had just broken through, so he could also see what level of strength he had now reached. After cleaning up a little and saying hello to Wu Shaolan, Chen Yu left the house. An hour later, Chen Yu arrived at a hill on the outskirts of the city. Yuan Cheng and the others were already waiting here. Director Yuan, you guys really know how to pick a place. Looking around, Chen Yu opened his mouth with a smile. There's not many people here. So even if they make more noise, it won't have any effect. Yuan Cheng looked a little worried. And after greeting Chen Yu, he looked at Feng Susiyu again. Mr. Feng, Chen Yu is still young. Please take care of him. Feng Suqiu carried her hands behind her back and nodded with a smile. Don't worry. After all, he'll be under me from now on. I won't be too hard on him. Looking towards Chen Yu, Feng Suqiu looked proud. Chen Yu, I am the prefect of the Inhuman Bureau of Jianling Province. Feng Suqiu. 
your expedition today will be carried out by me. You need not fear, I will take care to stay my hand. Chen Yu frowned and coldly looked at Feng Sucho. Is this guy that good at pretending? Above the small mountain, the mountain wind was blowing, the sun was shining, and there was something faintly pleasant about the blue sky. Chen Yu looked at Feng Sucho and frowned slightly. Chen Yu, do it. Feng Sucho carried her hands behind her back, her chin slightly raised, proud and satisfied. Today's expedition was nothing more than a child's play in his eyes. After letting Chen Yu know what it meant to be in awe, he would continue to dive into his training and look for a way to break through the innate realm. Chen Yu stood unmoving, a touch of loss between his brows. He had thought that he would be able to give his strength a good try with today's expedition, but it was only after meeting Feng Sucho that he realized that he had overthought things. The Feng Sucho in front of him didn't have any value worth striking out for. It's not so much ego as it is confidence. The moment his eyes met, Chen Yu knew that Feng Sucho was far inferior to him. If he wanted to, he could kill Feng Sucho with just one move. In an instant, Chen Yu was disinterested and completely lost interest in getting his hands dirty. What? Scared? Tell you what? How about I stand here and let you have three moves? Seeing Chen Yu not moving at all, Feng Sucho raised an eyebrow. Mu Bai watched from the sidelines. His brows slightly furrowed and there was a touch of disappointment in his eyes. This is the candidate Yuan Cheng has been striving for to become a prefect? Facing Feng Sucho, not even having the guts to make a move. What qualifications did he have to hold the position of prefecture Zun? Beside Mu Bai, the remaining three people skimmed their mouths, with a touch of disdain on their expressions. Director Yuan, it seems that your vision, is not good. Yuan Cheng's face turned red and was filled with embarrassment. After all, it's just a young man starting out with a bad heart. Facing Shaolin and the others was fine, but when it came to characters like Feng Sucho, they didn't even have the courage to make a move. Although Chen Yu's strength was not bad, his performance today had disappointed Yuan Cheng. As the crowd watched, Chen Yu slowly shook his head. No need. You do it first. What did you say? Feng Sucho froze, wondering if she had heard wrong. This kid, letting me make the first move? The others were also a bit surprised. Yuan Chang was slightly stunned and screamed in a dark voice. This kid isn't too scared. He's too crazy. He wouldn't think that he could win over Feng Sucho. Chun Yu, since Mr. Feng asked you to make the first move, you don't have to be polite. Yuan Cheng immediately reminded. Chun Yu looked at Yuan Cheng and said indifferently, I don't want to kill him. Now that he had just made a breakthrough, although he knew that Feng Sucho was far inferior to himself, he couldn't tell just how big the gap was. In case the strike was too hard and Feng Sucho was killed by a single blow, it would be difficult to end it. There was a wind that rattled the leaves and resounded with the sound of salsa. The crowd stared at Chen Yu with wide eyes. Stunned. No one expected that Chen Yu would suddenly come up with such a sentence. Feng Sucio was also baffled. What did the kid say? You don't want to kill me? Did he think that he could win against me? God. Is he kidding? Pust. Feng Sucio laughed. At first, he just covered his stomach. Then he just threw his head back and let out a loud laugh. Waves of sound rolled and swept far and wide. Wiping the tears of laughter from the corner of her eyes, Feng Sucio looked at Chen Yu and shook her head repeatedly. Kid, I thought I was already crazy enough, but I didn't realize that there are talented people in the rivers and mountains, and you are much crazier than me. Do it. I'd like to see how you can kill me. Feng Sucio stood proudly, her eyes as bright as electricity. Chen Yu's expression remained indifferent as he shook his head once again. I'm not controlling my force very well right now, so it would be bad if I miss and kill you. I'll stay put. You do it. Chen Yu spoke with extreme seriousness and sincerity. After thinking about it, he added, Don't blame me if I shock you. Crowd. God. Crazy. This kid is absolutely crazy. Chen Yu. What are you talking about? Apologize. Yuan Cheng screamed in his heart. Shit. Wrong idea. This kid is simply a fearless master. Let Feng Suqiu make the first move? How many lives can you put in there? Granted. This was just an expedition. And as required, no lives were to be harmed. But what could a person like Feng Suqiu do if she really killed Chen Yu with a cruel hand? The Inhuman Bureau would not offend a strong person like Feng Suqiu for the sake of a dead man. Even if Feng Suqiu stayed her hand, she could completely waste Chen Yu. Mr. Feng, he's still a child. Please don't ever get on his bad side. I will apologize to Mr. Feng on his behalf. Yuan Cheng hurriedly arched his hand to Feng Suqiu. Chen Yu was a good seed. He didn't want Chen Yu to fold here. Ha 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 ha. Good. 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 Yuan Cheng, your southern city has recommended a good prefecture Zun. Feng Suqiu's skin smiled and her eyes boiled with fury. He took a step out and tightly forced his eyes on Chen Yu. Kid, since I became famous, no one has ever dared to speak so loudly in front of me. You, the first, today, I will do as you wish. If anything goes wrong, 
You can't blame me for being ruthless. Feng Suqiu took another step forward. His breath bulged around him, and his robes hunted without wind. Between breaths, there was actually a faint sound of wind and thunder. Chen Yu's words really made him angry. Yuan Qing's pupils shrunk, his scalp tingled, and his body stiffened a bit. Nowadays, Feng Suqiu, just standing there, made him feel a strong sense of oppression. This, is this the strength of a peak Hotian powerhouse? Yuan Qing muttered. In the Inhuman Bureau, although there were various types of Inhumans, the ones that made up the vast majority were still ancient martial arts powerhouses. The peak of Ho Tian, even when placed amongst ancient martial powerhouses, was an existence of one in a million. Put in a martial arts novel, such characters are all first-class masters of the Jianghu. Several people in Kobayashi looked in awe and secretly gulped. Mubai sighed lightly, his eyes filled with emotion. I really don't know how Feng Suqiu had cultivated all these years, but she had already reached the peak Ho Tian realm. I also wonder if it's possible for him to go further and step into that legendary innate realm? The innate realm? A realm that countless martial artists could only dream of. This kind of character is the existence of a land god. Throughout the ages, it has been the object of awe for all. Feng Suqiu is only one step away accordingly, but it's that step that's hard as hell. How many amazing and talented people have never taken this step until they die? But once you step through, the eagle strikes the sky, the fish flies to the bottom, and the frosty sky competes for freedom. Chen Yu looked at Feng Suqiu in such a state and sighed lightly in his heart, just like what he thought. This Feng Suqiu was really too weak. He was right to keep his hands to himself just now. One slip up could have killed him. If I had been allowed to acclimatize for the past two days, I would have been able to control the force. Right now, it's still not possible. Just as he was thinking, Feng Suqiu let out a violent roar. Kid, this punch of mine has 50 years of power, so watch out. Feng Suqiu took a step and her entire body rushed towards Chen Yu. Along the way, it surprisingly pulled out a series of phantoms, while the crowd had yet to react. His fist had already rushed out from between his ribs, resembling a heavy artillery, blasting towards Chen Yu. Bang! A loud sound suddenly spread throughout the mountains. Feng Suqiu's punch was extremely domineering. It is the cannon fist of Xing Quan. With a single punch, the body knuckles through, and in an instant, it could burst forth with the strongest power. With this punch, Feng Suqiu did not hold back at all. Chen Yu's earlier words had completely enraged him. The fist solidly bombarded Chen Yu's chest. That popping sound was the work of Feng Suqiu. This kid is finished, Mr. Feng's punch was so powerful. This kid was completely unresponsive and couldn't dodge it at all. One of the inspection team skimmed his mouth, looking at Chen Yu with some disdain in his gaze. With that kind of reaction and alertness, you're also qualified to be a prefect? Ridiculous. He turned his head to look at Mu Qing and was about to scoff twice when he suddenly froze. Mu Qing's brows were tightly locked as he stared at Chen Yu, his face incomparably grave. Ma Ku Lao, what's wrong with you? It's not right. What's wrong? It's not that he can't hide. He's not even trying to hide. Mu Qing's gaze burned as Chen Yu's figure was reflected in her eyes. What did you say? He, uh, didn't try to hide? The person who opened his mouth was confused and turned his head to look at Chen Yu. You didn't try to hide? Why? He, who doesn't care to hide? What's the case for not bothering to dodge an opponent's attack? Does that mean? Several members of the expedition looked at each other. The same crazy thought coming to their minds. He, didn't take Mr. Feng seriously? Chen Yu stood still, looking at the fist that blasted at his chest and slightly cocked his head. Is this the so-called Hotian peak expert strike? Too weak. It didn't feel like anything other than a little bit of a shock. If the level of the Inhuman Bureau's housefather is like this, then I should already be strong enough to defend myself. Putting away the thoughts in his mind, Chen Yu looked up at Feng Suqiu. That's it? Stomp. Feng Suqiu retreated three steps in a row. Her body slightly tilted back, her pupils fluttering madly. On the blade of his fist, a smear of stinging pain made goosebumps stand up all over his body. The wrist bone had been fractured due to the force of the recoil. Even the chi and blood in his body was shaken to the point that he was somewhat unable to hold it. He threw a punch with all his might, and not only was the other party fine, but he was injured just by the force of the recoil? How come? Xing Quan is inherently overbearing. There is a clout on the boxing scripture. Taiji ten years do not go out. Xing Yi one year killed people. He studied Xing Yi Quan since he was a child, and later acquired authentic Nei Zhen Gong, with decades of hard cultivation. Even a boulder could be blown away with a single punch. But now, the situation was obvious. Feng Suqiu lost. Chen Yu won the battle by standing still. Mu Bai's few people sucked in cold air. They thought of several possibilities, but never thought that the situation would be like this. Dang Mr. Feng. Surprisingly, Mubai couldn't say any more. He had been completely shot. 
Yuan Qing let out a long breath, his heart in his throat finally falling. At the same time, he had a flash of deep shock. Unexpectedly, even someone as strong as Feng Suqiu was no match for Chen Yu. Previously, Chen Yu had shown his hand in a small way at the Inhuman Bureau. Now, it seemed that Chen Yu had still hidden his strength at that time. I was really right not to make a move. You're so weak that if I had done it, there's a real possibility that I would have killed you. Chen Yu looked at Feng Suqiu and spoke faintly. Feng Suqiu's face turned red. It is someone Feng who is not as skilled as others. I didn't realize that being at the same Hotian peak, your horizontal training skills are so strong. Between words, Feng Suqiu was still a bit unconvinced. Chen Yu didn't say anything, just shook his head and took a few steps to the side. Ahead of him was a lush forest. Chen Yu put his fingers together and swung violently towards the front. In a flash, the true essence in his body burst out. A golden sword chi shot out, cutting down all the large trees within dozens of meters in front of him. Boom, 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 boom. The large tree crashed down with a loud bang, causing quite a commotion. At the breaks, all smooth as a mirror. The scene, dead quiet. Time seemed to hit the pause button in this moment. Everyone was collectively petrified. Their expressions unmistakably uniform. Eyes rolled back in his head. Mouth wide open. Stunned. Shocked. Confused. After a full dozens of seconds, Feng Suqiu let out a steep scream. True Qi externalization. You, you're not a peak Hotian. You're an innate sect master. Boom. At this moment, thunder rumbled in the flat earth. Mu Qing's body trembled violently and took a step backwards. Rumor has it that the legendary, first, innate sect master, heavens, this, how is this possible? The remaining three members of the expedition team couldn't stop their bodies from trembling as they looked at Chen Yu with a gaze filled with awe. Innate master awe. This, this is what is recorded in the ancient books. A figure like a land god. Yuan Chang blinked her eyes, no longer able to speak. Chen Yu, an innate master? Is he crazy? Or is the world crazy? Earlier at the Inhuman Bureau, he had also said that Chen Yu might reach the innate master realm. But, that was just a casual remark. After all, he didn't know what kind of realm the innate master had actually reached. Later going for the position of Chen Yu's house dignitary, he traveled to Jiangling Province's Inhuman Bureau to apply for it. There, he chatted with his supervisor and realized what a legend the ascended masters were. The greatest characteristic of an innate master is that the true qi in his body can be released outwardly, forming an extremely powerful killing force. People who have reached this stage can no longer be measured by common sense, and are completely walking humanoid weapons. The only way to eliminate such a character was to use something of mass destruction, in addition to being equally strong. Placed in ancient times, such a character would be an invincible being. Even if he is placed in the midst of thousands of troops, he can still come and go as he pleases, and that's why they're called land gods. After that meeting, he decided that he had overestimated Chun Yu, not to mention an innate master. Even if it was the peak of the Hotian, Chen Yu might not even reach it. Because of this, he thought that Chen Yu was not Feng Suqiu's opponent. But now that I look at it, it's still my own fucking imagination that's not enough. That, he's really an innate master? But he's only in his twenties. Kobayashi couldn't help but speak up. A sentence that was again like a thunderbolt that made everyone's hair stand on end. Yeah, he's only in his twenties. Historically, it seems like the youngest innate patriarch was over fifty years old. A twenty-year-old innate master? What kind of demon is this? At this moment, Everyone looked at Chen Yu as if they were looking at a ghost or god. Now, am I considered to have passed the inspection? Chen Yu smiled and inquired. Feng Suqiu was shaken and hurriedly took two steps forward, bowing respectfully to Chen Yu. Master Chen is above. Please forgive Su Qiu for her earlier rudeness. From today onwards, you are the number one prefecture Zun in Jiangling province. Feng Suqiu looked in awe. We worship the first prefect, Master Chen, Mu Bai, Yuan Chang, Xiaolin. The people present all saluted Chen Yu with incomparable respect. The mission was thus concluded. After leaving, Mu Bai took out his cell phone and called Sun Shandao, the director of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. On the other end of the line, there was a laughing, flirtatious voice. Elder Mu, how is that Chen Yu kid? Don't let Mr. Phone break him. Office of the director of the Inhuman Bureau of Gangnam Province. Sun Shandao made a phone call, holding a thermos cup in his hand, gently blowing on the hot air and taking a sip. A relaxed frown was written across his brow. On the other end of the phone, Mu Bai was silent for a while. Chief, the expedition is over. Sun Chandao raised an eyebrow and looked at the clock on the wall. Oh, that was pretty quick. Maku Lao, I know you're strict, but the Inhuman Bureau still needs to add some fresh blood. Yuan Cheng doesn't have a bad eye. The person he has his eye on should be good. Shen Yu even if it is worse. But after all, it is still young. 
there is still a lot of room for growth in the future. Even if it doesn't meet the standard, we can still make a special deal and give him the position of the prefect first. In its position, seek its own politics. Young people more pressure burden, always can grow. Sun Xiandao knew that Mu Bai was strict and was afraid of brushing Chen Yu off, and opened his mouth to remind him. Mu Bai had a bitter smile on his face and the corners of his mouth twitched. Chief, you're mistaken. It's not that he didn't meet the standard. He passed. Passed? Yo, this kid is quite alright. To last 100 moves in Feng Suqiu's hands? Sun Xiandao raised his eyebrows in some surprise. This expedition was dominated by Feng Suqiu. The criteria for adoption are also simple. As long as you last 100 undefeated moves in a fight with Feng Suqiu, you will be considered to have passed. I thought that time was so fast. It was Chen Yu who lost. I didn't expect Chen Yu to pass. This gave Sun Xiandao the feeling that he had picked up a treasure. Director, you're wrong again. It wasn't Chen Yu who lasted 100 moves. It was Mr. Feng who lost. What? Feng Suqiu lost? Sun Xiandao's voice pitched a little higher. A stunned look appearing on his face. Feng Suqiu was a peak Hotian expert and had been in this realm for decades. Even if they were at the same Hotian peak, it would be difficult to defeat him. The fact that Chen Yu was able to make it this far really surprised Sun Chandao. Well, they both didn't suffer any major injuries, did they? Sun Chandao was a little nervous. It's hard to control when you cross paths with similar battle power. The slightest miscalculation will result in a lose-lose situation. This was just an expedition, and it would be a great loss to the Inhuman Duro if the two were injured as a result. Chen Yu was not injured. Rather, it was Mr. Feng who blasted his fist over and broke his wrist by the force of the recoil. You, what did you say? Sun Qian Dao stood up violently, his eyes wide with surprise. What the hell is going on? How did they cross paths? Mu Bai didn't hide it and told Sun Qian Dao the whole process. Stand still and take a hard punch. With a wave of his hand, his true essence was released. Barta, the cell phone fell to the floor. Sun Qian Dao stood frozen in place, his eyes straight out of focus his brain buzzing. Nima, this young man recommended by Yuan Qing was an innate master? But how old is he? A 20-something year old innate master? That's not even this sick in history, is it? In the modern world, isn't that like Superman? With this kind of terrifying potential, how far can he grow? Chief, are you there? Chief, hello, hello? Sun Chanda's body shook and immediately picked up the dropped phone. Shou Lao, don't come back yet. I'll go to the South City right away. I want to meet this master Chen in person. Hanging up the phone, Sun Xiandao immediately had someone book a ticket for departure. South City. Villa 1. Chen Yu sat in his study with a slight frown and a long sigh. It's not good to refine the Yuan Dan this time. Yuan Hui Dan is the basic elixir for immortal cultivation. The vast majority of the raw materials involved are not hard to find. The hardest thing to find is one of the main ingredients. Thousand-year-old blood ginseng. Now is the age of the end of the law. This kind of thousand-year-old blood ginseng is extremely rare and it is hard to get a glimpse of it at all. I wonder if Lu Tianhao can get this with his connections. After thinking about it, Chen Yu made a call to Lu Tianhao. Hey, Mr. Chen, what are your orders? Previously, Lu Tianhao had always called Chen Yu as Master Chen. However, at Chen Yu's request, he still changed his address to Mr. Chen. I have a favor to ask you. Chen Yu told Lu Tianhao all about the raw materials needed. Gee, what a coincidence. There's an auction tonight. And one of the things in it is a thousand-year-old blood ginseng. Oh, Chen Yu was stunned, followed by a burst of surprise. What a snooze. I didn't think it would be just in time. Mr. Chen, why don't you come with me to the auction in the evening? Good. In the evening, Chen Yu said hello to Wu Xiaolan and left Villa 1. Lu Tianhao was already waiting outside, getting in the car. It was almost 40 minutes before the two arrived at the place. When you get off the bus, there is a quaint building in front of you, on a plaque at the top. Three words were written in dragons. Scattered Treasures Pavilion. Scattered Treasure Pavilion? That's an interesting name. Chen Yu raised an eyebrow. Somewhat curious. The general business is known for gathering wealth and such. The word loose treasure offends a lot of business people. Lu Tianhao smiled and said. Mister doesn't know. Scattered Treasure Pavilion is an auction house. And the owner can be very powerful. He once said that he would scatter the treasures of the world only for those who are destined to be there. Under this philosophy. The scattered treasure pavilion business grows bigger and bigger, and the amount of money in each transaction is really not small. Sir, please. Lu Tianhao took out his invitation and entered the auction house with the two of them. Shan Yu. The whole auction house. Like a theater. At the very front was a high platform, while around it were three levels, top and bottom, arranged with a single box. Sir, scattered treasure pavilion is a high-end auction house, and every auction is by invitation. 
Those who can come here are not ordinary people. To put it somewhat wildly, anyone worth less than a hundred million dollars is not qualified to enter. These compartments also have excellent privacy and service. Please follow me. Lu Tianhao guided Chen Yu and entered one of the private rooms. The box is very tasteful, luxurious with a low key. The decoration style is both classical style, but also with a modern flavor. The perfect blend of the two reveals the outstanding ability of the designer. In the box, two tall women dressed in Chong Sam's Oda bow to Lu Tianhao and Chen Yu. Both women were not bad looking, wearing exquisite makeup, and when placed outside, they were someone's goddess. Under the Chong Sam, the perfect lines were set off in full view. Side high open fork to the root of the leg, lotus step lightly between a piece of white shaking, there is a kind of inexplicable temptation. These are the box attendants, all virgins and with at least a bachelor's degree. Each of them is paid half a million dollars for their services, and they can do whatever they want with them here. If you take their first time, then you need to add an extra million dollars. After that they will be dismissed from the scattered treasure pavilion. Chen Yu was a bit stunned, then smiled and shook his head. Damn, rich people just play with flowers. After thinking about it, Chen Yu's eyes narrowed as he opened his mouth to inquire. For this auction, will that Lu family come? The Ryu family? Lu Tianhao froze, then nodded. The youngest member of the Lu family, Lu Ao, loves this kind of auction. He'll definitely come. Willow Ao? Well, he's the first grandson of Lu Chuan Shang, and he can be said to be lawless in South City. The first grandson. Chen Yu's head hung slightly, and a cold glint flashed in his eyes. Tell me about it. This Ryu Ao. Lu Tianhao didn't think much of it and explained to Chen Yu. This person, Lu Ao, is a good person and is vindictive. Among the southern city, there have also been quite a few people who have offended Lu Ao and ended up in miserable situations. Has the gentleman ever heard of the contenders group? Chen Yu nodded. The contention group was also a top big group in the south city back then, almost to the point of being a household name. Chen Yu had heard about it when he was small, but seven or eight years ago, Zhang Baichuan, the helmsman of the contention group, committed suicide by jumping from the group's building, and the huge contention group collapsed. Hey, actually, there was a reason for Zhang Baichuan's death. Lu Tianhao let out a long sigh and said, all of this, was done by the Lu family. Oh, Chen Yu was a bit surprised. The Lu family did this? Well, at the time, Willow Pride had just turned 18 and was going to an entrepreneurial dinner with her family. Right there, he's got his eye on Zhang Baichuan's only daughter, Zheng Zisan. That night, Zheng Zisan was abducted and disappeared for three days. By the time it was discovered, it was at the Heavy Circle Hotel in the Willow family's name. Zheng Zisan, locked up by Lu Ao, played for three days, then she went crazy, and finally fell off the Hu and died. Poor Zheng Zisan was already studying in a famous university at that time and had a boyfriend with a good relationship. All ruined by Lu Ao. AI. Lu Tianhao took a deep breath and gently shook his head. Chen Yu frowned and asked, then Lu Ao is just getting away with it? Lu Tianhao was filled with a helpless look. How powerful is the Lu family? And with a high-ranking person in attendance, there is simply no evidence to prove that Lu Ao did it. In the end it was a non-event. Zheng Baichuan wants to avenge his daughter's death, and it's still hard to shake the Lu family with all the ways he can think of. I heard that in the end, he jumped to his death, and it was also inseparable from the Lu family. And in the end, the contention group was swallowed up by the Lu family. In the room, the atmosphere was a little heavy. Chen Yu narrowed his eyes slightly as a flash of disgust flashed across his eyes. The Ryu family, what a pest. Sir be careful what you say. Lu Tianhao's face changed and he hurriedly looked around and lowered his voice. Although Mr's status is not bad nowadays, the Lu family is extremely powerful and has connections in the middle of Jiangling province, so it's best not to mess with them. Also, I would like to remind you sir, in this auction, don't compete with Lu Ao. Oh, why is that? Chen Yu was a bit curious. Lu Tianhao laughed bitterly. Lu Ao's temperament is extremely small. If we don't let him here, he will hold a grudge and will be retaliated against later. Not competing with Lu Ao. This is already an unspoken rule of the auction. Yeah. Chen Yu rubbed his fingers for a moment before looking straight at Lu Tianhao. Lu Tianhao, I have a piece of creation for you. I wonder if you dare to take it. Creation? What does the gentleman refer to? Lu Tianhao froze, somewhat unsure. Chen Yu spoke faintly. You're Lu family. Do you want to replace the Lu family and be the number one family in this southern city? What? Lu Tianhao was so scared that his scalp went numb and his entire body was confused. Taking, replacing the Ryu family? Man, this, does it mean that Mr. Chen, he, is going to deal with the Lu family? This, 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 what am I supposed to do? On the side, the two Chung Sam women, too, were frightened. 
They had just graduated from college, but they had been working here for a while and had seen not a lot. Can we be the first family in South City? It was the first time they had heard of such a heavenly thing. What is this young man's identity? How does he have the gumption to be able to say such things? The two women looked at each other, their beautiful eyes filled with shock, recalling the many bigwigs they had met. They were horrified to realize that none of them seemed to be able to match him in terms of grandeur. Shun Yu was like a god on high. Just a little bit of his hand and he was able to change everything. Well, dare you? I'm going to use your Lu family's money tonight, and what I'm going to give you is the whole of South City. Chun Yu quietly looked at Lu Tianhao. These days of contact, Lu Tianhao was very good to Chen Yu, although Lu Tianhao was also trying to curry favor with Chen Yu, but on signs regardless of heart. Chen Yu also remembered this good. Tonight was an opportunity given by Chen Yu. As for whether or not it could be grasped, that would depend on Lu Tianhao himself. Immortal destiny is hard to find, and whether or not you can keep it when you find it also depends on your own vigor. Bang, bang, bang. Lu Tianhao's heart was like a beating drum beating frantically. His face had turned red and his blood seemed to boil. This moment was torn to the core. Ah, the Ryu family. What a behemoth that was. None of those who had previously offended the Lu family had a good ending. Could one really challenge the Lu family? But now it's a godsend. Once you miss it, it's never possible again. What to do? What the hell do I do? Within a short period of time, Lu Tianhao's inner heaven and earth were at war countless times. Finally, he raised his head, his eyes bloodshot and fierce. Damn it, the emperor takes turns. This year it's my house. Sir, Tianhao will entrust the Lu family to you. Chun Yu smiled and said, In the future, you will be proud of your choice. Beside them, the two women had looked dumbfounded. Lu Tianhao's entanglement and determination. Chen Yu's cloudiness. This is a big thing that shook the entire South City. Just like that? This somewhat handsome young man, what is his identity? How can you be so calm? Man, it turns out that in this world, there really is that kind of character who uses heaven and earth as a chess game. I'll be sure to send a friend post after tonight. Let's just say I've witnessed a dramatic change in South City. The room, once again, fell silent. People kept coming and going into the various boxes. Lu Tianhao introduced Chen Yu one by one. Shortly afterward, there was a commotion from outside. Lu Tianhao's body sat violently straight and his expression became serious. Lu Ao is here. Oh, Chen Yu got up with a smirk on his lips. Let's go. Let's see what this Lu family's great young man is really like. The two walked out of the box and stood in the hallway. The people in the other boxes came out into the hallway and looked toward the main entrance to the hall. There, a group of people clustered around a young man. Striding in, the man was tall and thin, with sunken cheeks and a pair of triangular eyes that carried a touch of sinister and arrogance. When the people around him saw him, they all smiled and greeted him with a touch of unnaturalness in their expressions. He's Lu Ao? Chen Yu narrowed his eyes, his eyes flickering slightly. Yes, Lu Tianhao was slightly nervous, despite deciding to do it, he was still a little jittery at the sight of Lu Ao. Ha, good. Chen Yu folded his arms and returned to the box. Willow family, what you did to my mother, I will return it one by one. Today, will be the beginning. The auction, it's about to start. All the invited guests had already entered their respective boxes. Lu Ao sat in the middle box on the third floor, leaning back in his chair, slightly squinting his eyes, idly waiting. Beside him, there was an old man in a tang suit who was looking at the introduction of the auction items. Elder Wang, that thousand-year-old blood ginseng, is it really that effective? Lu Ao opened his mouth to inquire. The old man grinned and nodded. Not bad, thousand-year-old blood ginseng is a rare thing. It's not common these days. When it appears in the auction this time, young master must take it. At that time, not only will it be good for your body, it will be that aspect that can be prolonged for much longer. Lu Ao's eyes glowed and he licked his lips. All those years of drinking and living had emptied his body. Although the family is rich and powerful, but he's a man. After all, this biologically inferiority makes him very slightly inferior inside. The thousand-year blood ginseng is mine. No one can fucking snatch it from me. Lu Ao clenched his fists and said viciously. At that very moment, a woman in a hip-wrap dress walked gracefully to the high platform at the very front. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Scattered Treasure Pavilion. Today's auction will be hosted by Xiao Han Mi. The rules are clear to everyone, so I won't say any more. You all have a presentation booklet in your hands with descriptions of all the auction items. The auction will now officially begin. First up is the first auction item. Two women pushed a wheelbarrow to the top of the high platform. A western longsword lay on the cart. This is the 13th century sword of Sardar the Great. Rare and precious. Starting at 3 million. Xiao Han was very professional in her presentation and extremely encouraging. After a short silence, 
sporadic offers were made and it finally sold for $5, 2 million. Lu Ao did not make a move. And Chen Yu was also lacking in interest as he stared at the introduction booklet and looked at it. The thousand year blood ginseng was the ninth auction item. And there was still a not so short wait. As for the previous eight pieces, none of them appealed to him. Ryu Ao was the same. Right now, all of his mind was on the thousand year old blood ginseng. And he couldn't even look at anything else. The auction went faster than expected. In just 20 minutes, the first eight auction items had all been bought. Xiao Han was a little disappointed in her heart. Today's eight auction items didn't cause anything too big of a ripple, falling short of the expected dragon fight. The ninth piece of the thousand year blood ginseng. I'm afraid there won't be any major twists and turns, though the thousand year blood ginseng is special. Who can come here who lacks money? The weekdays are regimented by a specialized nutritionist, and there are a lot of various health supplements. This thousand year old blood ginseng, I'm afraid, has limited appeal to them. Having said that, Xiao Han's face didn't show the slightest bit of passion, still wearing a smile. Gentlemen, this next item in the collection is unusual. As Shiohan's words fell into place, two women pushed their carts onto the stage once again. On the cart, a ginseng lay on top. The ginseng was not small, about 30 centimeters. Its body was blood red, and there seemed to be a hidden fluorescent light flowing inside. Thousand year blood ginseng with incredible magical effects. Excavated in the Changbai Mountains. This is a treasure only found in novels oh. The starting bid is $5 million. The scene was quiet. A ginseng is just a ginseng, even if it's more expensive. It's just a meal. The $5 million price tag is hard for many people to accept. Xiao Han has her eyes and ears open. When he saw that no one had made an offer, he sighed in his heart. It looks like the first stray item of the day may be coming up. $5 million. I'll take it. Lu Ao opened the door to the box and stood in the hallway, raising one arm in the air and yelling. He stared at the blood ginseng dead on, his eyes filled with excitement. That's the thing. Eat him and I'll get my manhood back. Seeing that it was Lu Ao who had auctioned this item, the others were even less inclined to fight for it. Xiao Han sighed in her heart, guessing that no one would bid again. But it's always good to see that it didn't go to auction. Smiling softly at Lu Ao, Xiao Han looked around the room. Ladies and gentlemen, are there any more bids? No one answered. Lu Ao is a miserly master, and the thousand-year blood ginseng is not a necessity, so there is no need to offend Lu Ao. Seeing the crowd's reaction, Lu Ao's nose hummed. Make an offer? Are these things up for bid? Who dares to rob what I see? Five million and one. Suddenly, a voice that piggybacked on the flirtation rang out. Shen Yu sat in the box, his head propped up with one hand, a faint smile on his lips. He, quote, Lu Tianhao froze. Plus, plus a dollar? Isn't that, isn't that a provocation? Mister, he, just went head to head? While vaguely somewhat uneasy, a touch of inexplicable excitement appeared in Lu Tianhao's heart. That's right. Since we're replacing the Ryu family, let's start now. The two waitresses, too, covered their mouths in surprise. Shen Yu's offer was too provocative. If you add a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars, others can still understand. But for an extra dollar? Even a fool would know that this was aimed at Lu Ao. The scene, immediately, was in an uproar. There was consternation in all the boxes. A dollar increase? Who's this? Hiss. Not only are you competing with Lu Ao, but you're being so provocative? Lu Tianhao's box? Has he gone crazy today? How dare he? This guy? What's in his gourd? On stage? Xiao Han froze. The offer caught her a little off guard as well. Lu Ao's face changed and he violently turned his head to look at the box where Lu Tianhao was, with a fierce light in his eyes. Lu Tianhao? You're a fucking bitch. Aren't you? Dare to compete with me? Crunch. The compartment door opened. Lu Tianhao walked out of the room and stood in the corridor with a smiling face. Young Lu, since it's an auction, it's natural for the highest bidder to win. Is there anything wrong with my offer? Gur, fuck you. Lu Ao was furious and anxious, but couldn't refute it. The rules are laid out here, and no one used to fight him because they were afraid of him. But there were real offers, and even if he wanted to deal with the other guy, he'd have to do it after the fact. What are you raising the price by a dollar? To amuse me? Chen Yu also walked out and stood beside Lu Tianhao. He had his hands behind his back, his expression indifferent as he coldly looked at Lu Ao. Beneath those calm eyes was the accumulated anger of his own mother's 20 years of misery. What? Is there anything in the rules that says you can't add a dollar? Turning his head to look at Xiao Han, Chen Yu smiled faintly and opened his mouth to inquire. This, indeed, does not limit the offers of the honored guests. Xiao Han hesitated slightly. In the scattered treasures pavilion, there is no limit to the price of each round of offers. But after all, it's not just anyone who can come here. Who doesn't want a little face? 
which increase in price is not in hundred thousand dollars. In all the time she's been in business, it's the first time Xiaohan has encountered an extra dollar. Good, 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 damn. You guys want to play right? I'll play with you. Turning his head towards Xiaohan, Lu Ao raised his index finger with a roar. Ten million dollars. Lu Ao's voice echoed throughout the auction site. The anger in it seemed to be turning into substance. Quite a few people in the box walked out. They were curious as to how far things would go. Xiaohan's heart thumped and a pretty face turned red. Thousand-year blood ginseng was something that was rare, but there was little demand for it in the market. At five million dollars, it's considered normal. As for ten million dollars, honestly, Xiaohan couldn't even think about it. Although he didn't know why Qingyu wanted to compete with Lu Ao, it was good for the scattered treasure pavilion. Young Lu was really rich and generous. This gentleman, I don't know about you. Ten million and one dollars. Xiao Han was about to ask Qing Yu about it when she was interrupted by Qing Yu's offer. Another dollar was added. At those words, Xiao Han looked delighted. Ten million dollars is far more than expected for this blood ginseng. But who would mind earning too much when they are open for business? Originally, she had only asked Chen Yu as usual, but hadn't reported too much hope. After all, the price has gotten so far that no one in their right mind would be following it. Unexpectedly, before the words were finished, Chen Yu opened the price. Another dollar was added. This situation is the favorite of those who do auctions. All around, the commotion was even greater. Many people looked at Chen Yu with surprised faces. Hiss, this young man beside Lu Tianhao. What exactly is his origin? This is completely tearing his face off with the Lu family. Lu Tianhao, is he, is he going to deal with the Lu family? Could it be, that this kid has some kind of remarkable origin? There's no fool who can come here. Seeing that Chen Yu had actually fought hard against Lu Ao, they all fought a lot. Lu Ao stared deathly at Chen Yu, his forehead veins rippling. As long as he had grown up, no one in the entire South City had dared to provoke him like this. Kid, who are you? Know who I am. Me, I'm a debt collector. Chen Yu smiled and said, but there was only a chill in his eyes. Willow Ao froze. Debt collectors? This guy, he's a loan shark? Grass, damn a little crawler from the bottom of the social ladder. With a couple of bucks, you dare to call my bluff? Good. I'd like to see if the debt you've collected is enough for you to play here? Come on, kid, don't be a wimp. Let's keep playing. Pointing at Chen Yu, Lu Ao had a fierce look on his face. Fifteen million dollars. Lu Ao raised the price by another five million dollars. Fifteen million and one. Twenty million dollars. Twenty million and one. Shit. Twenty-two million. Twenty-two million and one. The two men had reported the price for a dozen rounds, and the starting price of the thousand-year-old blood ginseng which was only five million dollars, hardened to fifty million and one piece. Chen Yu added one dollar at a time, no more, no less. The atmosphere had been completely ignited. Even though the people present had all seen great storms, they were still shocked by the bidding in front of them. This bidding is like a dragon fight. It's brilliant. Lu Ao was like a ferocious beast, dominating and overwhelming every time, wanting to end it in one hand. Chen Yu, however, is like a heavenly mountain god. Let you a thousand means. Just a light finger. Press you cannot lift your body. Xiaohan's breathing was ragged and her face was flushed. A pair of beautiful eyes. Staring intently at the two. Fifty million dollars. Never would I have expected that the biggest surprise of this auction would be this least favored blood ginseng. Who the hell is this young man? How dare you call Lu Ao's bluff like that? Looking Chen Yu up and down. Xiaohan frowned slightly. Hosting auctions all year round. She had seen too many big shots. It can be said that there are people of all colors. Arrogant domineering, condescending, indifferent, but none of them had an indefinable air about them like this young man. If I had to say, it would be like a heavenly immortal traveling through the red earth. What is heavenly in your eyes is trivial to him. This kind of temperament actually made Xiaohan feel a sense of awe. Although the auction was still going on, she had a vague feeling of foreboding. This time, Chen Yu will win. The door to the box. Lu Tianhao secretly clenched his fists, his heart beating wildly. An unspeakable thrill made him tremble with excitement. He, himself, really had to go up against the Lu family, and he even suppressed the other side. Chen Yu remained aloof, his demeanor not changing in the slightest, as if he had only done a trivial and insignificant thing. On the opposite side, Lu Ao was squeezing the railing with one hand, his eyes were bloodshot, and his breathing was incomparably ragged. At this moment, he had completely lost the ability to think and only wanted to tear apart the guy in front of him. He added a few million each time, originally thinking that he would be able to scare Chen Yu, but I didn't realize that it didn't work at all. And the other guy adds a dollar every time? Can you fucking add more? Good, 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 let's keep playing. 6. Barta. 
Elder Wang grabbed Lu Weio's arm and gently shook his head. Young master, over. That kid obviously came prepared and won't let you have it. But I can't swallow the discount. That thing? It should be mine. Lu Ao gritted his teeth, his body trembling gently. Whether or not you can revitalize yourself depends on it. How can it be taken away from you? Elder Wang smiled coldly and said, If you want this thing, you don't necessarily have to take it at auction. At those words, Lu Ao froze. What do you mean? Oh, it's normal for people to die in accidents like falling into water or falling off a building, isn't it? Don't forget, young master, old man is an ancient martial artist. Elder Wang swept his eyes at Chen Yu and smiled coldly. In his eyes, a murderous intent flashed in his eyes. Lu Ao's eyes lit up and he grinned. Good, good enough. Looking towards Chen Yu, Lu Ao gave a thumbs up. Kid, you're awesome, but there's something I have to remind you. It's dark and slippery. Don't be careless and go out and fall to your death. Making a neck wiping motion, Lu Ao returned to the box. Chen Yu's expression was bland and his eyelids were lowered. It seems that tonight, there will be one less ancient martial artist in the world. Just now, although the two men's voices were extremely low, with Chen Yu's current strength, he could hear them clearly. Come on, back to the box. Chen Yu brought Lu Tianhao back to the box, and the people who were watching returned to their respective boxes. In the end, Chen Yu bought the thousand-year-old blood ginseng at a price of 50 million and one. Sir, I don't know what you want the thousand-year-old blood ginseng for? In the box, Lu Tianhao was a bit curious. Alchemy. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Behind them, the two mates couldn't help but cover their mouths and laugh lightly. This handsome guy is so funny. He can think of such reasons. I don't think he's going to say he can still practice immortality. Lu Tianhao, however, had glowing eyes. If someone else had said that, he would have thought it was a fart. But that's what Chen Yu said. Could it be that the so-called alchemy remark is not false, but true? Lu Tianhao's offer Chen Yu deepened. For the next auction, Chen Yu did not even make a bid. When it was over, he and Lu Tianhao came to the back hall of the scattered treasure pavilion to handle the handover of the auction items. Both of you, it's dark and the road is far, and the little ghosts are infested, so you should be careful. Xiao Han hinted at the two. Thanks. Chen Yu nodded his head in greeting, his expression unchanged in the slightest, and left the scattered treasure pavilion with the thousand-year-old blood ginseng. Xiao Han looked at Chen Yu's departing back, a flash of confusion in her eyes. What a special aura. I wonder if we'll meet again in the future. It was not long after the two Chen Yus left. The corner of a building. Elder Wang slowly stepped out from the shadows. Staring in the direction Chen Yu had left. A murderous intent flickering in his eyes. Blood Knight with Blood Ginseng. Ha! Perfect match. The night is late. In the sky, dark clouds blocked out the moonlight. The traffic was no longer seen. And everywhere was quiet. Chen Yu took Lu Tianhao and walked on a road that was closed for construction. Not a pedestrian in sight and not a single car. The street lights were dim with a touch of spookiness. Mr. Chen, what are we? Lu Tianhao frowned and opened his mouth, his face full of puzzlement. After coming out of the auction, Chen Yu did not choose to take a car, but instead chose to walk. That's even if the choice was a road closed for construction. To do something, it seems, coming. Chen Yu ignored Lu Tianhao and instead raised his head to look not far ahead. Lu Tianhao froze, raised his eyes and his pupils contracted violently. Under the black night, an old man in a tang suit stood in front. With his hands behind his back, he narrowed his eyes, a chilling smile hanging at the corner of his mouth. Oh, my little friend, nice graveyard you've chosen for yourself. It's you, the person beside Lu Ao? Lu Tianhao's forehead was immediately covered in cold sweat, spooky appearances, saying creepy things. Any way you look at it, it's coming from a bad place. He expected Lu Ao to retaliate, but at best, it's just commercial suppression. With the scale of the Tianchang group, even if it was affected, it could still hold out for a while, but I didn't expect it to be so quick and direct. This, is to directly get Chen Yu and himself killed? TSK TSK, Dong Lu is really good at being bold. Going against the Lu family? Unusual. Wang Lao walked to the side of the road and sat down on the curbstone. Beside it, against a pile of building stone, he laced his hand upwards and his five fingers snapped, and the hard stone was crushed into powder like tofu. Spread it on the ground casually, and when the wind blows, it scatters without a trace. Hiss. Lu Tianhao sucked in a mouthful of cold air, his eyes glaring out. Is this? Is this the tactics of the Lu family's senior members? What kind of finger power is that to pinch a rock and turn it into powder? Finished for the night. Shouldn't have gone this way. Lu Tianhao was so flustered that he put his hand in his pocket and felt for his cell phone. Looking at Lu Tianhao's shocked appearance, Elder Wang smiled even more happily. The reason for doing so was to give Lu Tianhao a hard scare. Turning his head to look at Chen Yu, 
His smile was a bit surprised. Chen Yu just stood there, his expression flat, without the slightest surprise or shock. Even, is there a hint of mockery in the trance? This kid, he's not scared? Surprised, Wang Lao's face was a bit unsettled. Chen Yu's expression made him feel like a clown. Standing up and clapping his hands, Elder Wang heatedly sneered. His expression looked eerie in the dim light. Kid, looks like you're not afraid of me. Just as well, it's a blessing to be able to die without fear. At least it won't be like Zheng Baichuan back then, who was so scared that he peed his pants before he died. Lu Tianhao exclaimed at his words, was it really the Lu family that did it back then? Elder Wang smiled and nodded. Yes, his daughter is the one I grabbed for young Lu. What a nice girl. Those nights of screaming, old man I was out there listening to my heart pounding. A flash of disgust flashed across Chen Yu's face. This old thing has heavy tastes. All right, you're all going to die soon anyway, and I'm not an uncaring old man. Any last words? Wang Lao stared at the two men like two pigs and sheep to be slaughtered. Lu Tianhao subconsciously took a step back. His face was pale, and the knot in his throat trembled up and down. Elder Wang's tactics just now had really scared him. Although he knew that Chen Yu was not ordinary, he had not seen it after all. So he lacked confidence in Chen Yu. Chen Yu's expression was calm as he looked at Elder Wang and slowly opened his mouth. I do have a question. Oh, it's good to have questions, laddie you ask. Back then, Chen Taiyi became the Song family's backward son-in-law. What exactly is going on? At those words, Elder Wang's face suddenly changed as he looked at Chen Yu in shock and uncertainty. How do you know about this? Who are you? My name is Chen Yu, Wu Shaolan's son. Chen Yu did not hide anything and spoke faintly. What? You're that bitch's son? Elder Wang let out a cry of surprise and looked at Chen Yu in amazement. Chen Yu's eyes flashed as his killing intent suddenly boiled over. However, he instantly hid his killing intent again for the sake of the condescension. Elder Wang only felt a cold shiver run through his body and his heart contracted hard. But the feeling came and went quickly, so he didn't pay much attention to it. Smiling coldly, Elder Wang looked Chen Yu up and down and did not answer Chen Yu's question. I really didn't expect that you would be able to get this far, standing with Lu Tianhao? I would have thought that by poisoning your mother, you too would have had a miserable time. You've got a lot of wind in your sails. It makes me a little reluctant to kill you. How about crippling your limbs, cutting out your tongue, and blinding your eyes? Boom! Chen Yu's head exploded as he stared deathly at Elder Wang. My mother's strange illness. Did you cause it? Had had. Not bad. It's exactly the work of the old man. You two bitchy mothers and children. Your lives are good. It's too much better than I imagined having a good life. It's decided. I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to waste you. After all, this was an order from Miss Song back then. As for what happened to your father, TSK, that story from back then was really wonderful. When I think about it now, I can't help but feel a couple of emotions. You want to know? Hey, if you can get me killed, maybe I'll tell you. Miss Song, is Song Yao of the Song family in Jiangling province. At that time, after Chen Taiyi became the inverted son-in-law, it was she who gave the order to let Wu Shaolan live meticulously and miserably. So that's how it is. Chen Yu took a deep breath and looked up at the black sky. The dark clouds gradually receded and the bright, clear moon reappeared. The street lights around them went out, spilling the silver moonlight onto the ground. It's silent. It's cold. In that case, there is no need for you to live. Chen Yu carried his hands behind his back and spoke indifferently. The narrow eyes were silent and cold. Hoomf. Big talk. Looking for death. Seeing Chen Yu's appearance, Elder Wang's anger surged. Little mole cricket. How dare you pretend to be a bully in front of yourself. He took one step and rushed towards Chen Yu with extreme speed. The silver moonlight glow seemed to be carried in a ripple. Lu Tianhao only felt a blur before his eyes. And when he reacted, Elder Wang had already arrived in front of Chen Yu. The scene scared him so much that his scalp went numb. That kind of speed. Even those world-class sprinters can't reach it. How could this unimpressive old man have such amazing explosive power? On your knees. With a broken cry. Elder Wang put one hand on Chen Yu's shoulder and fiercely exerted himself. At the corner of his mouth, a sardonic smile emerged. It seemed that he had already seen Chen Yu kneeling in front of him. But the next moment, his eyes rounded. Chen Yu was still standing in place, like a pale pine, without the slightest change. This pressure of his didn't do anything at all. No way. Unbelieving. Elder Wang let out another furious cry, and his five fingers suddenly hooked and exerted force once again. The result? Still the same. Chen Yu had his hands behind his back, his expression indifferent as he coldly looked at Elder Wang. That's it? Just this. Two words, like knives, ruthlessly stabbed at Wang Lao's heart. Himself, to be underestimated by a little kid? Little bastard. Kneel down for me. Roar. Wang Lao's foot stepped hard, and his body leapt more than a meter in the air. 
The palms of the hands that pressed on Shen Yu's shoulders, the veins were coiled together, and the knuckles were a little pale because they were too hard. He had used all his strength, but it still didn't work. Shen Yu just stood still with his hands behind his back. His expression relaxed. Lu Tianhao stood on the side with an odd expression on his face. What's this old guy up to? Just now, a hand crushed the stone with horrible finger strength. That one rushed over with amazing speed. How come now? That's how it's behaving? Doesn't seem to be anything but a high jump? Wang Lao landed on the ground and stopped back three steps in a row. Deadly staring at Chen Yu. His face was horrified. It can't be. It can't be. He shook his head and muttered. You're a master of ancient martial arts yourself. With a full outburst, even a thousand pound boulder was able to be lifted over his head. Now it's pressed on a young man. And the other guy is not even a little bit okay? Then what level of strength did the other party reach? It's over? My turn then. Chen Yu coldly smiled and raised his finger, swinging several times in the air. True essence shot out. Click. 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 The sound of a crisp fracture rang out. In just the blink of an eye, Wang Lao's four limbs were broken and he lay on the ground, letting out a gurgling heart-rending scream. Lu Tianhao's eyes were glazed over. I'm Chao. I grass grass grass. What did Mr. Chen just do? Waving a few fingers casually. And the Lu family's expert was wasted? This. 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 Is this the true Qi externalization in martial arts novels? Oh. My god. Is there really such a person in the world? Me? What kind of thigh did I sign up for? At this moment, Lu Tianhao was shouting madly inside. Although he knew that Chun Yu was powerful before, it was more from a side understanding. Aside from fortune telling, he hadn't seen Chun Yu make a move. Later on, at the auction, the decision to listen to Chen Yu's confrontation with the Lu family also had the factor of impulsive, hot bloodedness. After that, he was worried inside. This time, the big gamble is a matter of life and death. What if? On the other hand, you lose the bet? But now, those concerns are completely gone. Nima is a master of martial arts. What's there to be afraid of when you embrace such a thigh? The old man made the right bet. Ha! 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 At this moment, Lu Tianhao only had shock and excitement. Wang Lao lay on the ground, looking at Chen Yu in shock. You, you're a fucking innate master. I'm not an innate master. I'm an immortal cultivator. Chen Yu spoke indifferently, walking over to Elder Wang and squatting down. Now, can you tell me about Chen Tai? Elder Wang trembled as a desperate smile appeared on his face. The innate master. How many martial arts practitioners dreamed of the supreme realm and could not reach it even after exhausting their entire lives? Now, a young man in his twenties has done it? Who would dare to believe such a thing when it is told? The Lu family is in bad luck. Even the Song family in Jiangling province is going to have a big problem. Worthy of being Chen Tai's son, it's really powerful. You want to know about Chen Tai? Hey, hey. Get down on your knees and beg me. Wang Lao endured the severe pain and grinned. He didn't beg for mercy. Having lived such a long life, he was well aware that both sides had already made a deadly enmity. There was no way Chen Yu would let himself go. Staring at Wang Lao, Chen Yu was silent for a moment before violently stomping on Wang Lao's knee. In an instant, Wang Lao's knees were trampled to pieces. The intense pain caused Elder Wang to scream miserably. If you don't tell me, I'll make you beg for your life. Elder Wang gasped for air. His eyes reddened. Hey, 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 little bastard. So what if you're an innate master? I'll tell you, that was indeed a wonderful thing back then. And your mother may not even know it. But I just won't tell you. Old me has lived a long life. And when I'm dying, I can make a teenage innate sect master suffer. Old me has earned it. Ha 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 ha. Tilting his head and laughing twice. Wang Lao's eyes rolled over and he was already dead. He did a great job of shattering his own meridians. Chen Yu was a little sad. His own strength was too weak now and many of his cultivation techniques could not yet be used. Otherwise, even if Wang Lao was dead, he would still be able to use his soul-searching technique to find things out. So what if you don't? After abolishing the Lu and Song families, everything will naturally come out. Chen Yu's eyes were bland and he was not too chagrined. There comes a time when things are cleared up. He had waited long enough and didn't care to let the bullets fly a little longer. Lu Dong, let's go. Lu Tianhao was startled and hurriedly followed. Mr. Chen, that he. Never mind, it will be taken care of. Chen Yu made a call to Yuan Chang and told him what had happened. What? Attack? Who the fuck dares to attack our house father? I'll plunge in and fuck him now. Oh, clean up the scene? Yeah, okay. Hanging up the phone, Yuan Ching was a bit helpless. I thought I was going to make a big splash, but I'd become a scavenger. The moonlight, once again, was obscured by dark clouds. Chen Yu and Lu Tianhao walked back on the road, their long shadows pulled out by the streetlights. Lu Tianhao still couldn't hide his excitement and kept asking questions. 
Sir, is this a martial arts master from a martial arts novel? No, what's that? Cultivation. Ha ha, sir is really humorous. Are all martial arts masters so humorous? Chen Yu. It was ten minutes late at night when I got home. Chen Yu eased his footsteps and looked at Wu Shaolan's room. The door was left open. Just enough to see inside. Wu Shaolan had fallen asleep. And even with the covers on, her body could be seen curled up. The gray hairs between his temples were faintly visible. A tightly furrowed brow with a hint of exhaustion. Chen Yu was in a bit of a trance. I remember my mother as the strong woman who held up the sky like a giant. Today, it is so weak and helpless. Even in my sleep, it's like I'm in fear. Chen Yu gently walked in and gently straightened the quilt to cover his shoulders. Stretching out his index finger, he smoothed Wu Shaolan's furrowed brow. Mother, you have protected me for 20 years, in the future. I will protect you for the rest of my life. No one can bully us mother and son anymore. I've already begun to collect my debt from them. I'll get to the bottom of Chen Taiyi's matter. At that time, I will bring him to you and make him apologize to you. And that Song Yao, I promise, I'll pay her back tenfold and a hundredfold. Taking a deep breath, Chen Yu quietly exited the room and brought the door with him. Early the next morning, Willow Ao rose from the hotel bed and stretched her back. On the bed, a woman was sleeping soundly. Lu Ao looked at the other party and tightened his fists hatefully. Damn it, if I had that thousand-year-old blood ginseng, I definitely wouldn't have lost. I don't know, did Wang Lao get his stuff back? Just as he was thinking about it, the housekeeper at home called. When it was answered, an anxious voice rang out. Young master, it's not good, Elder Wang. Elder Wang is dead. What did you say? Willow Ao snapped. Receiving this kind of call early in the morning made Lu Ao's entire body bad. What the hell is going on? The butler made peace with the situation. Just today on the morning news, an unnamed elderly man fell into a river was broadcast. It was later identified and confirmed as a slip and fall. The image that flashed in the video was none other than the Lu family's elder Wang. Young master, the master is calling for you to come back quickly. After hanging up the phone, Lu Ao stared at him. Stunned. Dead? How could he be dead? Ancient martial arts masters, you're telling me about falling into a river? How the hell is that possible? Who really killed Wan Lao? Lao Tin Ho? No way. He's not that good. The young man? Nor would he, he was so young, and by no means had such means. Willow Ao was a little clueless. Suddenly, he slammed his fist down on the bed. If old man Wang died, wouldn't the thousand-year-old blood ginseng be gone? It's over. How am I supposed to get back on my feet? At that exact moment, the woman beside him woke up leisurely. She wrapped herself around Lu Ao like a water snake. Young Lu, you said yesterday that you're going to toss me to death tonight, so I'm a little scared. Why don't you buy me a bag to comfort me? Scared? Scared of your paralyzed. I can't do it anymore. Lu Ao was furious and slapped the woman to the ground. Yesterday, he was still thinking about getting the thousand-year-old blood ginseng to fight for 300 rounds. There you go. Chicken and egg. The blood ginseng is gone. Even the man. Putting on his clothes, Lu Ao didn't make any stops and rushed towards his home. It was not too much to say that the Lu family was the number one family in Fengshan. Stayed at a manor house not far from the center of town. The front and backyards are green and grassy. The small five-story building is lavishly decorated and comes with its own internal elevator. In the rich and spacious living room, the ceiling picks up to a height of more than six meters. Every piece of furniture is luxurious. The living room was already full of people when Lu Ao arrived home. Lu Ao's parents, as well as his second uncle, third uncle, fourth aunt and so on, all came. Everyone's face was grave and deeply frowning. An old man sat in the topmost eunuch's chair with a dragon head cane in his hand and a somber look on his face. Ru Chuan Shang, the old family head of the Lu family. In less than half a month, it would be his 70th birthday. At that time, the southern city shook and many upper-class celebrities would come to celebrate their birthday. Seeing that Lu Ao had returned, everyone's eyes flashed. A middle-aged woman stepped forward quickly, her face full of anxiety. Xiao Ao, what's going on? Didn't Elder Wan go back to the auction with you yesterday? Why did he die so quickly? The woman was called Zhao Qin, Lu Ao's mother. His father, Ryu Kai, was frowning and scowling. Come on, what the hell was going on last night? Elder Wan was an ancient martial artist, and was extraordinary to the Lu family. Over the years, many of the Lu family's unseemly things were done by Wang Lao. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that there was no small amount of credit to Wang Lao for the Lu family's current position in the southern city. It was never possible for ordinary people to get Elder Wang killed. Only a being who was also an inhuman was able to make it this far. Who's on the other side? What is the purpose? To take on the Ryu family? All the doubts made the crowd not dare to slack off. Lu Ao also knew what was at stake inside. 
and immediately told him what happened yesterday when he attended the auction. Ridiculous, for the sake of a thousand-year-old blood ginseng, to have taken Elder Wang's life, I can't wait to kill you, this rebellious son. Lu Kai was furious and raised his palm to hit Lu Ao. Zhao Qin hurriedly stopped in the middle. What are you doing? Xiao Ao he's still a child. If it wasn't for the sake of healing his body, why would he go and buy that thousand-year-old blood ginseng? I blame that Lu Tianxiong. Why is he fighting with Xiao Ao? Lu Kai gritted his teeth. You. Well, isn't that messy enough? Lu Chuan Shang slammed his dragon head walking stick heavily on the ground with a muffled thud. Lu Kai and Zhao Qin then sat down, looking around the room for a second. Lu Chuan Shang frowned lightly. Xiao Ao, you said earlier that there was a young man beside Lu Tianxiong? That's right. Lu Tianxiong seems to respect him. It looks like he has a bigger rack than even Lu Tianxiong. Grandpa, do you suspect that it was that guy who killed Elder Wang? Impossible. There's no way that guy could have gotten Elder Wang killed. Lu Ao waved his hand repeatedly. Lu Chuan Shang snorted coldly and said, When a lion fights a rabbit, it also uses its full strength. You, Lu Ao, are not an ordinary person. Are there no other young people in the world who are like you? Being lectured like this, Lu Ao didn't dare to speak. Looking at Lu Ao, Lu Chuan Shang sighed and shook his head helplessly. Lu family three generations, thin people, only Lu Ao so a male. Otherwise, how could he have let Elder Wang protect him from childhood to adulthood? He just didn't expect that just for a thousand-year-old blood ginseng, Elder Wang had lost his life. Old G, you are Old Wang's senior brother and came to my Lu family at the same time back then. What do you think about this matter? Ryu Shansong looked to a corner of the living room. There, an old man was sitting on a chair with his hands clasped in front of his chest and was resting his eyes. Hearing the question, he opened his eyes. Wang Xian's death must be just a coincidence. Wang Xian, that's Wang Lao. His name is Ji Jin. All the people in the Lu family pricked up their ears. Lu Chuan Shang raised an eyebrow. What does this mean? The family master should know that my master and brother, the two of them, were originally disciples of the ancient martial arts sect, the Four Fiends sect. More than 20 years ago, I was invited by the Song family in Jiangling province to the Lu family. But my Four Fiends sect has a mortal enemy, the White Cloud sect. To this day, we are still fighting with each other and there are deaths and injuries. Wang Xian is afraid that he was killed by someone from the White Cloud sect. The great hermit is hidden in the world. The small hermit is hidden in the wild. In modern times, ancient martial arts families and clans have not disappeared. Instead, it faded into obscurity with the times. For the average person, you may never meet one in your lifetime. Only when the power reaches a certain level will you encounter these characters. And the reason for the existence of the Inhuman Bureau in the Dragon Kingdom is based on this. On the one hand, Many special tasks need to be handled by the Inhuman Bureau. On the other hand, there is the need to regulate these hidden forces of the Inhumans. Do you mean that Lu Tianhao and that young man had nothing to do with Elder Wang's death? It was just a coincidence, Ryu Chuan Shang inquired with a frown. Ji Ji nodded. Not bad, as far as I know, there aren't any young people in the White Cloud sect. So it is. Lu Chuan Shang nodded, his heart a little more at ease. If it was just a sectarian fight that didn't involve the Lu family then there wouldn't be too much to worry about. Old G, so are you guys going to make any moves recently? Do you need my Lu family's help? Ryu Chuan Shang inquired falsely. Ji Jin shook his head. I'm afraid that all forces will have to settle down a bit lately. Oh, why? Lu Chuan Shang was a bit surprised. The four furies are not good men and women. It was a bit unexpected for him to have no intention of taking revenge when his disciples were killed. Ji Jin let out a long sigh and said, because I just got a message this morning. What news? After a slight pause, Ji Jin said, The Jiangling Province and Human Bureau has issued a notice that the first prefect of Jiangling Province has taken office. What did you say? The first house father? Lu Chuan Shang stood up abruptly, his eyes wide with incredulity. Although the Lu family was located in the southern city, he was also aware of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. The house dignitary is the guest elder of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province in general. In the entire Jiangling Province and Human Bureau, there were only three positions of prefectural zone. As a result of the house's respect, it is rampant. It is evident that its high status is evident. And the first prefectural dignitary is at the top of the list. It's a position that's been empty for years. But I didn't expect it to come out of nowhere this time. The reason why the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province released this news was enough to cause an earthquake among the major powers. Ah, uh, first prefect. At this time if anyone dares to make things happen, wouldn't they just be running into the mouth of the Inhuman Bureau's gun themselves? Ji Jin smiled coldly and said, The White Cloud sect is lucky to have caught up to this time. Otherwise, will I spare them this time? Lu Ao was filled with curiosity. Elder Ji, 
What exactly is the meaning of this Fu Zun? He's awesome? Lu Chuan Sheng fiercely looked at Lu Ao and angrily rebuked. Idiot, how do you know the power of this house father? In terms of strength, to be able to serve as one of the prefecture Zuns means that he or she is at the peak of the Hotian realm. In terms of status, throughout the entire Jiangling province, the prefecture Zun is located at the apex, and all the bigwigs have to be humble and courteous when they see it. In terms of influence, he is able to mobilize all forces for his use with a single command. Lu Ao stared with eyes filled with shock. Surprisingly so powerful? Wouldn't that be stronger than our Lu family? The Ryu family? Lu Chuan Shang looked at Lu Ao with an expression of hatred. In front of that kind of existence, my Lu family is nothing. If he wants to, just by casually moving his finger, he can make my Lu family go up and smoke. You idiot, how dare you compare my Lu family to it. Ouch. The dragon's head cane was thumped by Lu Chuan Shang, gasping for breath. Lu Ao shrunk his neck, not daring to speak. Zhao Qin rushed forward and held Lu Ao in her arms, comforting her with a face full of heartache. Dad, Xiao Ao is still young, so don't be so mean to him. Ji Jin, however, shook his head and let out a long sigh. Lu family master, there's a sentence you're saying wrong. According to the notice, this first prefecture Zun is not at the peak of the Hotian. Him, an innate master. Bam, the dragon's head cane fell to the ground. Lu Chuan Shang stood frozen in place, foolishly looking at Ji Jin his mouth shivering slightly. First, innate master? In the middle of history, the so-called land god realm? Ji Jin nodded, with a touch of deep awe in his eyes. Not bad, this is the realm. The human body breaks away from the shackles of the acquired nature and returns to its innate origin, and when it raises its hands and throws its feet, it has a great deal of power. When you gently lift your arm, it has the strength of a thousand pounds. With a casual leap, you can jump seven or eight meters high, running at a rapid pace. A hundred meters is but a few breaths. The true chi in your body can be released more than ten meters, killing people in the air. Longevity is even able to reach two hundred years. The entire living room was silent. The entire Lu family was all wide-eyed and brain-dead. They had also heard of the so-called acquired and innate. However, they had no concept of how the innate realm actually was. Ji Jin said so and scared them completely silly. Is this, is this still human? A lifespan of two hundred years? Can people really live that long? My god. Wouldn't this kind of person break all the world records if he went into a sports program? Monster. This is a monster. If such a character does something, who can stop him? Looking at the crowd's shocked appearance, Ji Jin sneered. Without such prowess, how could it be referred to in the history books as the realm of the land immortals? I really didn't expect that Jiangling province's first prefecture Zun this time would be such a great person. Lu Kai's body shook and hurriedly asked Ji Jin, Elder Ji, then how are you? The Four Fiends sect and the White Cloud sect. In front of the innate patriarchs? Ji Jin froze, looking odd. We, to be honest, we're about as good as you guys when it comes to this kind of existence. After a pause, Ji Jin slowly said, All of them are mole crickets. On the scene, there was dead silence. The crowd was even more shocked. The Four Fiends sect, in the eyes of the Lu family, was already a gathering place for worldly experts. I didn't expect it. For a while, the crowd was even more in awe of the so-called first prefecture Zun. Elder Ji. Who exactly is that first prefect? Do you know? Ryukai continued to inquire. Ji Jin frowned and gently shook his head. That I do not know. The Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province has not revealed the personal information of this first prefectural honored one, and it seems to be intentionally concealing it. Is that so? Ryukai bowed his head in contemplation, considering whether or not to inquire. Ji Jin saw what was going on in Lu Kai's mind and snorted coldly. I advise you not to pry without knowing what you're doing. Since this big shot doesn't want to divulge his personal information, your rash prying will only cause the other party to be offended. Perhaps, it will invite trouble for your Willow family. The innate patriarch is already a very human being, and it's anyone's guess as to what kind of temperament he has. At those words, Lu Kai was startled, and his forehead was suddenly covered in cold sweat. Elder Ji taught me a lesson. I know. Ji Ji nodded and said, You don't have to ask about Wang Xian's death. Our clan will take action on its own. Lu family master. It will soon be your 70th birthday. You may instead consider how to prepare for it. At that time, I'm sure it will be a great event in South City. Lu Chuan Sheng picked up the dragon head walking stick on the ground and a smile appeared on his face. Oh, it's to get ready. It wasn't easy for my Lu family to get to this point. Looking around the room for a moment, Ryu Chuan Sheng was a little smug. Over the years, he had combined his forces and used all his means, which had allowed the Lu family to come to its current state. Vaguely having the majesty of the first family in the South City. This time, he had given early notice of his 70th birthday. 
The purpose was to let everyone know the majesty of his Lu family. Suddenly, Lu Chuan Sheng thought of something and looked at Lu Kai. Kai, that Wu Xiaolan and Chen Yu, how are they now? But don't forget the orders MS. Song gave us. Ryu Kai froze and scratched his head, stumbling a bit. Should be having a bad time. Two molehills and no attention for a couple years. But father don't worry. Three years ago Wang Lao poisoned Wu Xiaolan and forced Chen Yu to drop out of school and work in the factory. Then they even sold the house and lived in a rental. I haven't paid any attention to them in the past few years. But with that bitch Wu Xiaolan dragging them around, they can't get any better. At those words, Lu Chuan Shang nodded. Immediately, he seemed to remember something and laughed coldly. By the way, for this old man's birthday banquet, give them both. An invitation. The entire Lu family froze. Here, an invitation to those two things? Do they deserve it? Ryukai inquired with wide eyes. Lu Chuan Shang's smile was even colder. Well, after suppressing them for more than 20 years, it's time to let them see how prosperous my Lu family is nowadays. The whole Lu family was stunned. Then they laughed. Ryu Chuan Shang's idea, everyone got it. So it is. Was this to stick another knife in the heart of Wu Xiaolan and Chen Yu? Look, our Lu family has been crushing you for over 20 years. All you can do is watch our Lu family feast and smile, but you can't do anything about it. Excellent idea father. Lu Kai smiled and spoke. This is also considered a cheer for father's 70th birthday. Yes hey, I haven't even seen Wu Xiaolan's mother and son before. This time it's just right to take a look. He he he, this time it's really cheap for them. I guess they've never attended such a high profile banquet in their lives. A burst of laughter resounded in the Lu family mansion. The atmosphere was relaxed and pleasant and everyone was all smiles. Everything about today's gathering was so complete. Except for the news of Elder Wang's death. Knowing that the first prefecture Zun was such a great person. He also learned that he was about to humiliate Chen Yu's mother and son. Life, ah, is always surprising in every way. Okay, I'll go get ready. The Willow family crowd dispersed. Villa 1, South City. Chen Yu sat in his study, looking at the desk in front of him and scratching his head. On the table, there were raw materials for refining the Yuan recovery pill. The most conspicuous among them was the 1,000-year-old blood ginseng. But this thing? How the hell do you make it? Immortal cultivators who make pills need to have an alchemy furnace, an earth fire, fanning Taoist children, and so on. But right now, none of that. Don't mention the alchemy furnace, which is rarer than a thousand-year-old blood ginseng in the modern world. Don't even think about earth fire. There's no way to talk about such things in the end times. Unfortunately, my cultivation is too low. If my cultivation reaches a high depth, I can transform my true essence into fire and refine pills in the void. Where is the need for any pill furnace or earth fire? From the inherited memories of the Bei Xian immortal emperor, back then, when he concocted pills, it was a shock, condensing formations in the void with supreme greatness. The majestic and vast true essence transformed into the burning sky true fire. All sorts of heavenly materials were placed in the formation and boiled into a thick medicinal juice by the burning sky true fire. With a terrifying and overwhelming divine thought, immortal emperor Bei Xian fused the medicinal juices in turn, ultimately forming an elixir that was strong enough to induce a heavenly tribulation. What Dan Furnace, Earth Fire, Dao Children, all of them are not used. Hey, having strength is so awesome. Now if we make pills, we'll have to make do in the kitchen. Coming to the kitchen, looking at the gas cooktop and the pots and pans, Chen Yu fell into deep thought. The recovery pill was not difficult to refine. Moreover, Chen Yu had grasped the life experience of immortal Emperor Bei Xian, so there was no problem with experience. In terms of divine sense, it had also been drastically enhanced earlier when he inherited the memories of the Northern Xian Immortal Emperor. Well, it could be a try. After thinking about it, Chen Yu decided to make a move. Feather, what are you doing? Wu Xiaolan came to the kitchen door. A little curious. Did you not eat enough in the morning? Mom will cook instant noodles for you. No, I'll make something for you to eat. Mom you go ahead and watch TV in the living room. Chen Yu pushed Wu Xiaolan into the living room. The boy. Wu Xiaolan shook her head. Her heart warming. What a blessing to have a son like that. Sitting on the sofa, Wu Xiaolan happily watched the TV. Chen Yu opened the natural gas stove and the fire rubbed straight up, put the pressure cooker in place and added water to it. The materials needed to refine the recovery pill were laid out in order. So, let's get started. Rubbing his hands together, Chen Yu followed the order and put the ingredients into the pressure cooker. 100 grams of cashew seeds, 100 grams of wolfberries, 10 yunchuan flowers, 20 minutes on high heat. Simmer until melted. Cover the pot and wait 15 minutes until everything is thoroughly melted before adding the other ingredients. After repeating this four or five times, the herbs in the pot have completely melted. The previously clear water was a turquoise color and gave off a faint scent. 
Shen Yu picked up the thousand-year-old blood ginseng and took a deep breath. Last step, put in the thousand-year-old blood ginseng, boil it for an hour, and then control it with your true essence. Condense the liquid into a dan, putting the thousand-year-old blood ginseng into the pressure cooker. Shen Yu stood quietly in the kitchen, not moving a muscle. Time, minutes and seconds pass. Shen Yu was like an old monk in meditation, fully concentrating. An inexplicable scent rose up, spreading from the kitchen and filling the space. Wu Xiaolan took a deep breath, only to feel her pores stretching out, saying she was indescribably comfortable. I didn't realize that Feather had this craft. Looking in the direction of the kitchen, a flash of surprise surfaced on Wu Xiaolan's face. A whirlwind of heartache followed. How could he have learned to cook in the past few years if he hadn't had to take care of himself? At this age, he should have been carefree, eating takeout and playing games with his roommates in the university dormitory. Ah, when I recover, I'll be sure to make a few more delicious meals for Little Feather to make up for it. Wu Xiaolan thought darkly in her heart. South City. In Human Bureau on the way to Villa 1. A business car is coming up fast. Sun Qian Dao, Mu Bai, Yuan Cheng, and Feng Suqiu were all in the car. On every face, there was anticipation. After learning that Chen Yu was an innate master earlier, Sun Qian Dao couldn't sit still. He rushed to South City that day. Because of their previous contact, they already knew that Chen Yu lived in Villa 1. After resting for the night, the next morning, the group came to look for Chen Yu. On the way, Sun Chandao chattered. That Chen Yu, is he really only in his twenties? Is he really that good? Mr. Feng, you really can't win against him? Looking at the rambling Sun Chandao, the few people were rather speechless. They have explained these things many times, but Sun Chandao still flip-flopped and asked. But then, thinking about it, he was able to understand. After all, it's so unbelievable. Who would dare to believe it without seeing it with their own eyes? Soon, the car arrived at the entrance of Villa 1. Yuan Chang went forward and knocked on the door of the room. Wu Xiaolan was a little puzzled when she opened the door. You are? Hello ma'am, may I ask if Chen Yu is home? We are all his friends. Oh, a friend of Feathers, come on in. He's in the kitchen fixing dinner. Upon entering, Wu Xiaolan went to prepare tea. After a few people took their seats, Yuan Chang sniffed his nose. His body suddenly shook and his eyes steeply widened. He only felt as if all the pores in his body had opened up, and every part of him was permeated with a sense of coziness. The fatigue of the past few days dissipated in an instant, and the whole person was much clearer. What shocked him even more was that the true chi in his body, which seemed to be absorbing the odor, was flowing automatically. Several of you, do you feel that this smell is very, very special? Gulping, Yuan Cheng opened his mouth to inquire, his voice trembling slightly. Everyone else was pretty much the same. Their faces covered in shock and amazement. After smelling the odor, they had a feeling they had never felt before. It seems that no kind of tonic is as good as 1% of it. This, this smell, it's not ordinary. Hiss, what the hell kind of stuff is Mr. Chen doing? How? Why don't we go check it out? After Mu Bai finished speaking, several people looked at each other and nodded in unison, getting up and following the smell. The few people came to the kitchen and saw Chen Yu standing in the kitchen, on the stovetop. The pressure cooker sat on the embers. That peculiar flavor comes from that pressure cooker. What's in here? Exactly? Yuan Chang stared at the pressure cooker and gulped. Mr. Chen, I wonder what kind of stuff you're working on. Yo, you guys are here? Chen Yu turned back and saw Yuan Chang and the others. They are? Oh, this is the director of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. Sun Qian Dao. Yesterday, I knew that you passed the first prefecture Zun's examination, so I came here to see you. Yuan Qing opened his mouth to explain. Sun Qiandao smiled and spoke. Hello Chen Yu, my name is Sun Qiandao. Welcome to the Jiangling Province in Human Bureau. Looking at Chen Yu, Sun Qiandao felt emotion in his heart. Such a young innate master ah, I really don't know how the hell he cultivated. I guess it will scare a lot of them this time when they notify all the sects. After learning the news yesterday, Sun Qiandao arranged to release the news of the first prefecture's Zun. Over the years, despite the management of the Inhuman Bureau, there have been quite a few small private actions by various sects and factions. The news is now being released to deter all parties. Director Sun? Hello. Have a seat first. I'm almost done on my side. Chen Yu only glanced at Sun Qiandao unexpectedly before he regained his composure and spoke indifferently. Sun Qiandao's pupils shrank as he secretly marveled. He was the director of inhumanity in Jiangling province. And within Jiangling province, he was definitely the top group of people. Not to mention ordinary people. Even those big men in the sex have to be respectful and cautious when they see him. But Chun Yu is still so calm. This calmness alone is something that many people cannot have. He he, 
It looks like we're blessed to be able to eat dishes made by the first prefecture Zun today. Looking at the pressure cooker, Sun Xiandao had a peculiar expression on his face and said half jokingly. Chen Yu shook his head. I'm not cooking. And this is? I'm making pills. Chen Yu didn't avoid it and said it. Alchemy. Alchemy? Sun Xiandao stared wide-eyed, his mind somewhat not turning around for a while. The others were likewise, frozen in place. I wonder if the alchemy you're talking about is, perhaps, the kind of alchemy the Taoists call alchemy? With a face of uncertainty, Sun Xiandao opened his mouth to inquire. Chun Yu nodded seriously. Aha. Uh -huh. Several. Looking at the pressure cooker, several people had complex faces. How was something as lofty as alchemy different from what they thought? Isn't this supposed to have a huge Dan oven? And the result? A pressure cooker? And it's written in the book that alchemy requires an earth fire. Now what's this? A natural gas stove? How can this be used to make pills? Is it so modern? Are times moving too fast? Or are we just too old? Well, it's almost time. It's time to gather the Dan. Please leave me alone. A few of you. Chen Yu gave a slight instruction and opened the lid of the pressure cooker. Inside, everything completely melted into a bright red puddle of medicinal liquid. The foreign fragrance was even stronger than before. Chen Yu probed out his palm and rolling true essence burst out from his palm. Gather. Under the manipulation of the true essence. All of the medicinal liquid was instantly gathered and continuously compressed and condensed. A minute later, the pot of medicine disappeared into thin air. A reddish elixir lay quietly in the pressure cooker. Yuan Hui Dan. Refined. The exotic fragrance that filled the room also reached a peak at this moment. When Yuan Cheng and the others smelled this odor, they only felt light and incomparably comfortable. The true qi in his body began to flow on its own. It was the cultivation level that had not been loosened for a long time that was somewhat loosened. This. This. Several people rushed into the kitchen and looked at the potion in the pressure cooker. Their eyes nearly glazed over. Man, just smelling it makes you feel that way. So what would happen if you ate it? All the people present were not ordinary people, and their qi cultivation efforts were extremely deep, but all of them were blushing and breathing heavily at the moment. They were like hungry wolves who had been holding back for three years and suddenly saw a stunning duty and instantly charged. The recovery pill was only the most basic kind of pill. However, in this era, it was a supreme treasure. Enough to make an ancient martial artist go crazy for it. Chen. Mr. Chen. This. Is this really a potion? Sun Qian Dao spoke in a trembling voice. The elixir. It's something out of the history books. Who's ever seen this in the real world? Not to mention watching it being refined with my own eyes. Well, this is the recovery pill. When an ordinary person eats it, all diseases will be eliminated and their lifespan can be increased by five years. Hiss. Eliminates all diseases and increases longevity. It's an anticlimactic divine elixir. This is the kind of stuff that pours out of your kitchen at home? It's fucking sci-fi. In the next moment, several people looked at Chun Yu in unison. Their gaze is even more reverent. An alchemist. This kind of character, only seen recorded in history books ah, uh, and also very few. Rarer than innate masters. Feather. What did you make? Why does it smell so good? Chen Yu smiled and handed the Yuan recovery pill to Wu Shaolan. Mom, I made you a little snack to try. Yeah. You've been messing around for half a day. And you just made this? Really? It looks like you can't cook with this. It's better if mom comes to cook for you from now on. Despite saying so, Wu Shaolan joyfully received the elixir. The wrinkles at the corners of her eyes all smiled. When your son makes something for himself, you have to support it anyways. The corners of Yuan Qing's several people's mouths twitched viciously. Ma'am, it's not about cooking. It's a potion. A potion. Several people watched as Wu Shaolan consumed the elixir. The moment it was ingested, the Yuan Hui Dan was completely dissolved. An extremely pure energy flowed through Wu Shaolan's limbs and bones. Smells good, Wu Shaolan exclaimed. In the mouth, the unspeakable aroma went straight to the sky. All over, it seemed to be soaking in warm water. Feather, why am I so sleepy? Wu Shaolan suddenly yawned, her eyes fighting. Because the food is good. Mom go get some sleep. The recovery pill was very potent for ordinary people. Once Wu Shaolan took it, the powerful medicine would repair his body and would lead to drowsiness. Well, you greet the guests then. Wu Shaolan went back into the house and closed the door. Chen Yu watched Wu Shaolan enter the house and exhaled softly. It's a relief at last. After this sleep, my mother's body will be able to get completely well. The next biggest thing is the Ryu family. Returning to his senses, Chen Yu greeted Yuan Qing several people. After sitting down, Chen Yu spoke. Several of you have come today. I wonder if there's anything you want to do. It's nothing special. Just that I heard that the first prefecture Zun is an innate patriarch. So I've come to pay my respects. Sun Qiandao smiled and opened his mouth. With you, Chun Yu, 
my Jiangling province and human bureau has hardened its back quite a bit. In the future, Chun Yu, if there is anything you need, there is no harm in saying so. The Inhuman Bureau is not known to the usual people, but it still has a lot of energy. A touch of confidence surfaced on Sun Qiandao's face. Chun Yu nodded slightly and said, I do have something that I need a favor from you guys. What is it? Chen Yu narrowed his eyes and smiled coldly. I'd like to pick off the Ryu family. Chun Yu made his request and had considerations. With his current strength, he could naturally exterminate the Lu family. But what happens after that? He is indeed better than average now, but it's not ridiculously strong. He couldn't fight against a wide-range heat weapon. In modern society, the power of the state is extremely strong. And in society, you can't do anything too much. If you pass, you will be cleaned up. If one bloodied the Lu family, there was no guarantee that there wouldn't be some force from above that would strike against them. Since they don't have the ability to transcend the rules yet, they have to follow them. It was also for this reason that Chen Yu did not refuse when he was asked to become a house dignitary at that time. It's good to have your back to a big tree. Since they're from the Inhuman Bureau, there should be some preferential treatment. It would be great if we could use the power of the Inhuman Bureau to deal with the Lu family. I would like to ask, what exactly is the grudge between you and the Lu family? Is it possible to resolve it? Chen Yu shook his head and slowly spat out eight words. A life and death vendetta. Not to be shared. Sun Qiandao's pupils shrank and he was silent for a long time. I see. Since that's the case, there's no need for the Lu family to exist. Don't worry. The Ryu family will disappear. But you can't kill them. After all, none of them are inhumans. And the higher-ups look at this piece very seriously. Laying hands on ordinary people is a bottom line that must never be breached. Chun Yu grinned. Indeed. As he thought, since there was an inhuman bureau, it meant that the piece had his own rules of operation. That said, a bloodbath between inhumans is possible. But, if one strikes out at an ordinary person, it is a felony if one is found out. I don't want to see them die either. Death is really a relief for them. Lu family, you've been oppressing us mother and son for more than 20 years. If you die, won't it be a clean sweep? Time, cruel time, is the best punishment for you all? Ha, huh? I want you to spend the rest of your lives experiencing the pain of losing your money, power, and freedom. Good, don't worry Chen Yu, leave this matter to us. Sun Chandao patted his chest. Next, the people discussed how to deal with the Lu family. Finally, it was determined to do it on the day of Ryu's 70th birthday. After leaving the Lu family, Yuan Cheng was a bit puzzled on the road. Secretary Sun, will this be a bit too much? No matter what, the Lu family is also a top-tier family in South City, and it's also connected to the Four Fiends sect. If we move the Lu family, the Four Fiends sect is afraid that they will come to us for an explanation. Sun Xiandao let out a cold laugh and said, Which do you think is more important? The Four Fiends sect or an innate master? That's naturally more important for an innate patriarch. Yuan Cheng was not stupid and spoke directly. That won't do. So what if they are offended? Do I still need to give them a statement when I act in the Bureau of Inhumans? Don't forget, the heavens are huge. And in Jiangling Province, I, the Inhuman Bureau, am the biggest. Earlier in Chan Yu's home, Sun Xiandao looked like a kindly old man. But now, his domineering style as the director of the Inhuman Bureau was completely revealed. Go get ready. Contact the various units. The Lu family can't be too clean to get this far. It's time to clean them up. Yuan Chang nodded and pulled out his phone to start making contact. The action against the Lu family was considered to have begun completely. Chen Yu sat on the sofa and closed his eyes. Everything was as one would expect. Use the power of the Inhuman Bureau to uproot the Lu family. It was the best means of dealing with a situation where one's strength had not yet completely transcended the rules. After thinking about it, he called Lu Tianhao. Hey, Mr. Chen, what's up? Nothing, to inform you that after Lu Chuan Shang's 70th birthday, the assets of the Lu family will be yours. Be prepared to accept it. Tu Do Lu. Listening to the busy tone on the phone, Lu Tianhao was stunned out of his mind, somewhat unable to believe his ears. God, I'm, I'm about to overtake the Ryu family? There's no planning or how to do it. Just one sentence could make a behemoth like the Lu family fall completely? Mr. Chen, you, what kind of god are you? Looking at the white clouds outside the window, Lu Tianhao looked incomparably in awe. The next moment, he excitedly pulled out his cell phone and issued a series of orders to the group. Wu Shaolan slept for a long time this time, until the sun set, and then she turned around and walked to the living room. The golden afterglow of the setting sun spread diagonally across the living room through the floor-to-ceiling windows. Chen Yu clasped his hands on his chest and sat on the sofa to doze off. Sword brows and starry eyes. A majestic look. Wu Shaolan looked at Chen Yu with a trance-like feeling. Feather. When did he become so mature? 
Was it when you were slapped hard by yourself and stubbornly held your head high even when you wanted to quit school and earn my medical bills? Was it that time after the rain, when he carried me on his back, through a puddle of water, and got a cut on his calf? Or was it that night when he deadened the sound of his sobs in the hospital hallway? What a lot of trials and tribulations a boy has to go through to grow into a man. They say that women are weak, but mothers are strong. But what about boys? A boy has nothing to worry about. Saving his mother's life is worth a thousand pounds. At that thought, Wu Shaolan's eyes reddened. Mom, you're awake? Chen Yu now had 16 senses and immediately opened his eyes when he sensed someone. Ha, huh, right. Wu Shaolan was startled and came back to her senses. How do you feel now? You don't say. After taking that pill, it's like your whole body is soothed and you're in good spirits. Chen Yu nodded and smiled. That's good. Mom, go take a look in the mirror. Look in the mirror? What for? Wu Shaolan froze, and although she was puzzled, she went to take a look. A startled cry came from her at the dresser. Wu Shaolan looked at the mirror with wide eyes and kept touching her face, full of incredulity. The gray hair has turned black again and the wrinkles in the corners of my eyes have disappeared. The color is rosy and the cheeks are full. It looks, like, in his thirties. It's, I, how I. Chen Yu stepped aside and leaned against the wall with his hands clasped, smiling as he looked at Wu Shaolan. The mother, now, was transformed back into the beauty she remembered as a child. Feather, is, is that the pill? Well, I met an old herbalist in the park earlier. He knew you had a strange disease and gave me a prescription for that pill. The medicine for your strange disease, Chen Yu told a good-natured lie. I, I'm better, not a drag on you anymore? Wu Shaolan looked at Chen Yu with a stunned expression. Hmm, well, mom you've never been a drag on me. You're my umbrella from the wind and the rain. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. At this moment, he wasn't some immortal cultivator, nor was he the first prefecture Zun. He's Chen Yu, Wu Shaolan's son. That's all. Wu Shaolan covered her mouth and jumped into Chen Yu's arms, crying into tears. Feather, mommy's dragging you down. Ooh, it's mommy's fault you didn't go to college. Mom ruined your life. Do you know that the day you entered the factory? Mom's heart ached so much. Mom hated herself so much for not being able to do anything. Chen Yu patted Wu Shaolan's back and softly comforted her. Mom, why don't you cook a roast pork tonight? I'm hungry. Hey, mom's on it. She's on it. That night, mother and son had a great time eating dinner. The only thing missing was that Chen Tai was not there. Both men tacitly refrained from mentioning it. Early in the morning of the next day, Chen Yu went to a nearby park and practiced the Tianji skill. Just as he was practicing, two people, an old man and a young man, were walking in the park. The young girl was about 17 or 18 years old and exuded an aura of being uninviting. Grandpa, what do you think? How did the White Cloud sect have the guts to make a move against our four fiends sect? The young girl was dressed in black with a fair complexion, her brow gently furrowed and her eyes sharp. Her name was Xiao Lingling, and she was the daughter of Xiao Mingshan, the current master of the four fiends sect. The old man was her grandfather, called Xiao He. After learning of Wang Kai's death yesterday, they came to South City. Although he couldn't take action against the Four Fiends sect, there was no problem investigating though. Xiao He shook his head and let out a long sigh. I don't know either. We and the White Cloud sect are world enemies, but we haven't fought for a long time. I also don't know why they made a move on Wang Kai. Xiao Lingling snorted coldly. I met Wang Kai and Ji Jin last year. Both are not good people. That Song family isn't any good either. And that middle-aged woman. Song Yao. I dislike. Xiao He laughed. The Song family had once shown favor to our clan. Previously, at their request, they placed Ji Jin and Wang Kai in the Lu family, which is a way of repaying this favor. Strictly speaking, the two of them are no longer considered our four fiends sect, but since it involves the White Cloud sect, we still need to investigate. Alright, accompany Grandpa for a stroll in this park. This South City has a nice view. Let's take a good look. Where the two of them were, was a small park by a lake. Early morning daylight is not strong. The breeze is warm. The lake is gently rippling waves willow branches swinging in the wind. There were quite a few people exercising along the shore. Some middle-aged and elderly people dressed in white practice clothes were practicing Tai Chi. He he, maybe we can meet some ancient martial arts experts here. 2. Xiao He smiled and opened his mouth. Xiao Lingling glanced at the exercising crowd and grunted through her nose. How can there be an ancient martial arts expert in a bunch of flowery fists? In contemporary society, people are becoming more aware of their health, and there are many who study traditional martial arts. Tai Chi, Bagua, Baji, Xingyi and so on are incredibly complicated. But, those who practiced these punches in the world were far from the true ancient martial arts powerhouses. Although these people in front of me have stretched their hands and have beautiful postures, they are just fancy but not useful. Whom, that young man? 
Xiao Lingling saw Chen Yu who was practicing by the lake. After the minor completion of the foundation establishment realm, Chen Yu would be able to directly absorb the heavenly qi to cultivate. When he came to this place this morning, he cultivated according to the heavenly chance technique and exhaled the heavenly chance. His movements were slow and ordinary. It's just simple push palms, kicks and such. But with these movements, there was a metaphysical celestial energy in the underworld that was channeled into his body. This was the mystery of the Tian Ji skill. If it was any other immortal cultivation technique, it needed to use the aura of heaven and earth as a guide. If the aura of heaven and earth is missing, one cannot cultivate immortality. And the Tian Ji skill could not only absorb the aura of heaven and earth, it could also absorb the qi of the Qian Kuan. Even at the end of the age, you are able to practice. Ha! The movements are so insubstantial, not even as good as those flowery frames. It's miserable. Xiao Lingling skimmed her mouth, her face full of disdain. Xiao He at first merely swept his eyes and did not care. However, a moment later, his pupils suddenly shrunk, and his expression was somewhat astonished. Ha, huh, this feeling? Xiao He frowned tightly, staring closely at Chen Yu's movements. It looked as if Chen Yu was just a newcomer with no foundation, but in Xiao He's eyes, it's all different. Each of Chen Yu's movements seemed to contain the supreme principles of heaven and earth, incomparably natural. It seemed as if the entire world had disappeared and Chen Yu was the only one. This side of the heavens and earth were all in motion with Chen Yu's movements. Between heaven and earth, he is the master. He is everything. Grandpa, what's wrong with you? Seeing Xiao He froze, Xiao Lingling was a bit surprised. Ha, huh? no, nothing, come on, let's go over there. Xiao He walked towards Chen Yu. Intuition told him that this young man in front of him was definitely not ordinary. On the shore, Chen Yu held up the sky with both palms, then slowly closed and pressed down. The breath around the body returned to the Dantian. From his mouth, he exhaled a cloudy breath. It's worthy of being called the heaven's chance technique. It's really powerful. This cultivation speed is much faster than me going to fortune telling. In time, I'll be able to break through to the foundation establishment realm's grand completion. And at that time, I'll be much stronger back. There was a flash of anticipation in Chen Yu's eyes. After stepping into the foundation establishment realm, the heavenly chance technique evolved and was able to absorb heavenly chances for cultivation. The progress of cultivation is also getting faster and faster. He he, what are you practicing? Little friend? A voice broke Chen Yu's contemplation. Looking up, Xiao He and Xiao Lingling were already standing in front of them. Nothing, just randomly practicing blindly. Chen Yu spoke indifferently and was about to walk away. Xiao Lingling frowned and grunted coldly. Hey, do you know what it means to be polite? Asked you a question. What do you count as walking away? Chen Yu's footsteps lurched as he swept Xiao Lingling, his eyes cold. He didn't bother to say anything and continued to walk off into the distance. Being ignored by Chen Yu made Xiao Lingling's face ugly. Go, can you walk? Picking up a stone on the ground, Xiao Lingling flexed her fingers and shot it towards the bend of Chen Yu's leg. Chen Yu's face turned cold, and with a slight stagger, he dodged the stone. Xiao Lingling was stunned, not expecting Chen Yu to be able to dodge his attack. You, very uninformed. Chen Yu turned his head and looked at Xiao Lingling, his eyes already extremely cold. A terrifyingly fierce aura rose steeply. Xiao Lingling only felt a sudden chill in the temperature and winced. While she was being surprised, Xiao He was numb and terrified. Xiao Lingling's cultivation was still lacking, and she didn't feel it that deeply. But in Xiao He's eyes, Chen Yu had completely changed. This young man seemed like a supreme overlord who had climbed out of a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. That aura made his body feel cold and his blood seemed to freeze. Ha, not very old, but you have a big mouth. I'd like to see that you, Ling Ling, Shut up! Xiao Lingling was about to teach Chen Yu a lesson, but was interrupted by Xiao He's angry roar. Looking at her grandfather in surprise, Xiao Lingling was about to ask why, but in the next moment, she steeply widened her eyes. Xiao He's body was upright, and he actually bowed to Chen Yu with a deep cupped fist. Sir above, please spare the little girl child her insolence. Xiao He lowered his head, cold sweat bearing down his forehead and dripping onto the ground. Xiao Lingling was dumbfounded. What? What's going on here? My own grandfather, but he was the old master of the Four Fiends sect. Even when they met those big shots in the South City, they were only peers. But why is this happening now? This young man, in the end, Chen Yu looked at Xiao He and didn't speak for about 10 seconds. These 10 or so seconds seemed to become infinitely long for Xiao He. He was jittery and tense to the limit. Remember, there won't be a next time. Finally, Chen Yu spoke, and after he finished speaking, he turned around and left. Xiao He or Xiao Lingling. They were all too small to waste too much time. Thank you sir, greetings, sir. Xiao He then got up and let out a long breath. At this moment, he looked like he had been pulled out of the water, and his body had been drenched in cold sweat. 
Grandpa, what? What's going on? Xiao Lingling's eyes were wide with incredulity. Xiao He shook his head with a bitter smile. You little girl, you've just walked on ghosts. Do you know what cultivation level that young man is? What kind of training? Xiao Lingling froze at the question. He's also an ancient martial artist, but I didn't feel it at all. Hey, you didn't feel it. That's because your cultivation level is too low and your perception isn't sharp yet. Xiao He looked in the direction Shen Yu had left, shock lingering in his eyes. I saw that young man just now, and he didn't even have the courage to lift a finger. If he wanted to kill us, it would only be in the blink of an eye. What? How is this possible? Xiao Lingling stared with rounded eyes, almost unable to believe her ears. He, is that strong? Then how strong should his cultivation be? Xiao He let out a long sigh. If it was just the peak of the Hotian, it wouldn't have given me this feeling. That young man, I'm afraid he's already stepped into the innate realm. Shed your mortal body, return to the innate, and embark on the supreme path of pursuing the martial way. This son, it's remarkable. Xiao Lingling was struck by lightning and her brain buzzed. Innate master? The young man about his own age? How is that possible? This kind of character has never appeared in history. Xiao Lingling didn't doubt Xiao He's judgment in the slightest, but the more so, the more unbelievable it becomes. I, just now, made a move to provoke an innate master? At that thought, Xiao Lingling shivered with fear. South City hides crouching tigers. I really didn't expect to meet such a big shot just by strolling around the park. Xiao He squinted his eyes, still immersed in the shock that Chen Yu had just brought. Grandpa, do you think, he could be, that, that first prefecture Zun? Xiao Lingling suddenly opened her mouth to inquire. Xiao He's pupils shrunk and he slammed his thigh. Gee, it's really possible. An innate master is not a cabbage. How could it be so easy to encounter? A first prefecture Zun had just been released, and then a teenage innate sect master. The probability of that is too small. If he's the first prefecture Zun, that's something. All the various sects and forces in the entire Jiangling province will have to bow down in front of him. In modern times, ancient martial arts clans and lineages have been hidden in response to the times, not revealing themselves to the world. Although the Inhuman Bureau claimed to regulate ancient martial arts sects, the relationship between the two was still rather delicate. On the one hand, the Inhuman Bureau represented the Dragon Kingdom and wielded power, not something that ancient martial arts sects could fight against. But on the other hand, the ancient martial arts sects had a long history of inheritance, and there were many experts among them, far beyond the imagination of ordinary people. Even the Inhuman Bureau didn't dare to say that it could steadily crush a head in the face of an ancient martial arts sect. Even. Some ancient martial arts sects were so powerful that they were above the Inhuman Bureau. And since ancient times, chivalry has been forbidden by the use of force. The characters who were able to achieve success in the ancient martial arts, all of them did not have the guts to give up everything. If you really push it, then you can do anything. It also creates a special relationship between the two. We all give each other face. You don't trouble me and I don't trouble you. Maintaining a delicate balance. But Chun Yu's appearance broke this balance. The innate master. One person was able to slaughter a clan. This strategic deterrent can be too great. From now on, the great sects were afraid that they would have to bend down before the inhuman council. An innate master. Is it even this powerful? Xiao Lingling looked shocked. Yes, this is the shocking power of an innate master. Otherwise how could one be called a land god? Let's go. Go to the Lu family. After all, when you're in someone's territory, you always have to pay your respects. Although Xiao Lingling was reluctant, she could only obey. The two left the park and took a cab to the Willow family estate. Learning that the two were from the Four Fiends sect, the Lu family became respectful. Aya, old mister, Zhao's great presence, my Lu family is really flabbergasted. Come, 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 this is the finest iron guanin, old mister. Xiao taste it. After taking his seat, Lu Chuan Shang was beaming with joy. Ji Jin sat on the side with a respectful expression, and his heart was also very shaken. Xiao He was the bottom of the Four Fiends sect and his martial arts cultivation had already reached the peak Hotian realm. On weekdays, he stayed in the sect, cultivating and seeking the opportunity to break through the innate, never going out easily. I didn't expect to come to South City this time. It seems that the appearance of the first prefecture Zun, as well as Wang Xian's murder, is of great concern to the sect. Ji Jin thought darkly in his mind. Oh, old mister. Xiao, the South City has beautiful scenery and outstanding people, so you can have a good time. Xiao He nodded and let out a long sigh. Yes, this is indeed a good place. The old man just wandered around the park today and met a heavenly pride ah. This person is estimated to be just in his twenties, yet he is already an innate master. It's truly shocking. Boom. In the living room, there seemed to be an explosion of thunder that startled everyone. Young, teenage innate sect master? 
Ryu Chuan Shang's brain buzzed. This is no joke? A 20-something-year-old teenage innate master? What the hell kind of demon is this? Lu Ao's mouth was open, filled with stupefaction. 20-something years old, about the same age as himself, and he's an innate master? Earlier, Lu Chuan Shang had introduced what an innate patriarch was. That's a land god that's been written about in the history books. Which one of them is not extremely old and has been through a lot? 20-something? I can't even climb a fucking flight of stairs without gasping for air. And he's already standing probably over a lot of bigwigs? How is the gap between man and man wider than between man and dog? Old sect master. This, is this true? Could it be that you're mistaken? Ji Jin opened his mouth to inquire. What? You're doubting me? Xiaoyi's face changed. And Ji Jin immediately waved his hands in fear. Lu Chuan Shang thought for a moment and asked. Old mister. Xiao. I wonder what the name of this teenage sect master is. My Lu family is still slightly known in the southern city. So I might even recognize this junior patriarch. Xiao he returned. At that time, that patriarch left in a hurry. And I didn't ask in detail. Well, that's a shame. Ryu Chuan Shang was a little disappointed. He had wanted to take advantage of Xiao He and get to know this teenage patriarch. Once they get on the line, with the Lu family's skill in slipping up, will they not be able to serve this patriarch comfortably? When people are happy and support the Lu family, the Lu family will take off. Gathering up his mood, Lu Chuan Shang smiled again. Old mister. Xiao came all the way here. Please let me do a little bit of the landlord's friendship in these two days. It just so happens that my 70th birthday is coming up. So please be sure to attend. Old mister. Xiao. This. Okay. Xiao he wanted to refuse. But thinking that he might be able to meet that teenage patriarch again. He agreed. Lu Chuan Shang immediately sent someone and arranged a residence for Xiao he and Xiao Lingling. After leaving, Lu Chuan Shang opened his mouth to ask Lu Kai. Have all the invitations been sent out? Well, it's all been sent out already. Good. Where is Wu Shaolan's mother and son? Has the invitation been given? Don't worry father. It's already been sent to them. Lu Chuan Shang nodded, squinting his eyes and taking a deep breath, a flash of anticipation in his expression. I also wonder, will the junior patriarch that Xiao He mentioned appear at the old man's birthday banquet? Lu Chuan Shang fantasized about the sight of the Lu family hugging the leg of an innate patriarch and soaring to the heavens, with even the Song family humbling themselves. On the other hand, Shen Yu had just returned home when he received a cross-down courier. The delivery was transferred from a previously rented house. Opening it, the red invitation appeared. 70th birthday. Invitations? Lu Chuan Shang. You old dog. Your heart is poisonous enough. Shen Yu narrowed his eyes as a cold aura appeared in his eyes. Staring at the invitation, Shen Yu looked at it for a while. Ryu's intentions with this move are clear. Shame. It's all about humiliating your own mother and son. It's not enough to press for 20 years. You have to stick a knife in people's hearts. The more he thought about it, the more his killing intent boiled over. Feather. What's wrong? In the room, Wu Shaolan opened her mouth to inquire. Shen Yu put away the invitation and folded his arms to return to the house. Nothing, by the way. Last time I heard from you. Mom, didn't a few of your friends want to go on a driving trip to the Qinghai Tibet line together? Mom you should go too. Shen Yu smiled and opened his mouth, digressing from the topic. He had tried several times earlier and Wu Shaolan didn't want to see the Lu family at all. That's why he didn't want his mother to get involved in dealing with the Lu family this time. As a son, just do the right thing and tell your mother the result. Yeah, yeah, ouch. They have their itinerary all planned out. I hear the night sky is beautiful there. And yeah, they say there's food there. Wu Shaolan's eyes were glowing as she rambled on. But after a few minutes, she looked glum and suddenly stopped talking. Forget it, I'm too lazy to go out these days. I'm not going. Chen Yu's heart gently ached. This excuse of Wu Shaolan's was so bad that it could be seen through at a glance. She obviously wanted to go, but she didn't dare to leave South City because of the threat of the Lu family. Mom, go if you want. It's been a while since you've been out and about. Go see old friends and get away. But, don't worry. Your son I've grown up. I can resist anything in the sky. The Lu family, can't stop us mother and son. Wu Shaolan was shaken and stared straight at Chen Yu. Although she didn't know why. Wu Shaolan felt that what Chen Yu said made her believe. It seemed that even if the sky collapsed, as long as there was Chen Yu, it wouldn't be a thing for her. After watching for a full 10 seconds, Wu Shaolan slowly reddened her eyes. Sniffling hard, she rubbed her eyes and smiled proudly. Good, listen to your son. Mom will go out with them tomorrow. After this trip, we'll leave South City and go live in another city. If we work hard, we can land anywhere. Mom doesn't care about the Willow family's threats or anything. Earlier Chen Yu had lied to Wu Shaolan that he had won the lottery and made millions. So Wu Shaolan wasn't worried about money. By the way, the day after tomorrow is the 18th birthday of your third aunt's child. 
invited us. You go there. Wu Shaolan gave the task to Chen Yu because she was about to go on a trip. Chen Yu froze and smiled coldly. It's really rare. Hasn't she been looking down on us mother and son all these years? Why is she suddenly inviting us over? Is it her conscience that has learned the value of kinship? Chen Yu's third aunt, named Wu Mingjin, was Wu Shaolan's sister. Unlike Wu Shaolan, Wu Mingjin is well married and her husband Yang Yi is a minor figure in the system. The two have a daughter named Yang Qingqing, who is a freshman at a 985 school in South City. Suffice it to say, this is a modest home that surpasses many families. Although they were both in the southern city, however, Chen Yu had not seen Wu Mingjin many times since he was a child. As for Yang Yi, there are even fewer of them. Every time they met, Yang Yi also had a stern, unsmiling face and didn't even talk to him much. When he was small, Chen Yu just felt that this third aunt's husband was a bit of a stranger. When he got older, he realized that such things were called prejudice and arrogance. And in these three years, after Wu Shaolan got a strange disease, Wu Mingjin, except for a visit to the hospital at the very beginning, never saw it again after that. Hey, Mingjin also has her own difficulties. Your third aunt's husband is a leader after all. Getting too close to us is not good for him either. Mingjin also has to consider their relationship as a couple. Chen Yu smiled contemptuously and snapped his fingers. Leadership? What kind of leader is he to his current self? I know. Mom go travel in peace. I'll be there. Considering that Wu Shaolan cherished affection more, Chen Yu did not refuse. That night, Wu Shaolan happily packed her bags for the trip, and at noon the next day she set off on a trip with a few girlfriends. After another day, Chen Yu followed the address given by Wu Shaolan and came to Wu Mingjin's house. Ding dong. Chen Yu carried a companion gift and rang the doorbell. Coming. Click. The door opened and a middle-aged woman opened it. The middle-aged woman didn't look very pretty, but thanks to proper maintenance and a high-class dress, she looked good. She looked Chen Yu up and down with a touch of suspicion in her eyes. Ha, huh, I didn't order takeout. Did you deliver the wrong one? Chen Yu froze, his face oddly colored. Hello, my name is Chen Yu. I'm Wu Shaolan's son. Ha, huh, it's Little Feather? A Gu. Third aunt is really old and her eyes are failing. I didn't expect Little Feather to look so handsome now. Come in quickly. The middle-aged woman was none other than Wu Mingjin. Not recognizing Chen Yu, Wu Mingjin looked a little embarrassed but quickly found an excuse to get around it and acted enthusiastically. Chen Yu sneered slightly in his heart and did not poke at this superficial politeness. Entering the room, Wu Mingjin said, Where is big sister? Why isn't she here? My mom's out traveling. Ha, huh? she's willing to go on a trip too? Wu Mingjin was taken aback, and then felt it was inappropriate and immediately changed her words. Hey, big sister is used to being frugal. It's good to go out this time to have some fun and relax. You can sit anywhere you want. Don't be formal. I'll go cut some fruit for you. Yang Yi, Little Feather is here. Wu Mingjin greeted Chen Yu in and went to the kitchen by herself. In the living room, the slightly balding Yang Yi, sitting on the sofa, was quietly watching the news channel. Inside, national news was playing. Hearing Wu Mingjin's greeting, Yang Yi turned his head to look at Chen Yu. Hello third auntie husband. Well, sit down. Yang Yi faintly answered and looked at the news again, not bothering with Chen Yu's mind. Chen Yu casually sat down and didn't speak. He was now well-traveled and had seen countless great people, so he didn't feel uncomfortable. Yang didn't say anything, he was happy to be quiet. Instead, Yang was a bit bound up. Ever since Chen Yu sat there, he was a bit constrained. The feeling is like being in a unit where one is in the office of a handful of people, alone in a room with a handful of people. What's wrong with me today? Why am I a little moody? Yang Yi had some doubts in his mind. He didn't realize that this was all due to Chen Yu's aura being too strong. As a matter of fact, this was still a situation where Chen Yu had already tightened his grip. The aura of a handful of people is only suppressed by the status that comes with the position. Without the office, that aura is gone. But this aura of Chen Yu's was naturally generated by the powerful strength of an immortal cultivator. It's like a rabbit, that natural nervousness when facing a tiger. This kind of aura is not something that status can bring. Frowning, Yang Yi looked at Chen Yu and opened his mouth to ask questions in an attempt to calm down. Upon hearing Yang Yi's question, Chen Yu instantly blushed oddly. He, how can he ask me such a question? Chen Yu was in a bit of a trance and was silent for a moment. Yang's question really caught people off guard. He went so far as to ask Chen Yu what he thought of the current phenomenon of young people lying down in large numbers. I hadn't thought about it, but one lives one's life, one way or another. As long as one enjoys oneself and has no regrets, laying flat is a choice, and it's not a bad thing. Excessive blame is just a form of arrogance that doesn't understand the suffering of others. After thinking for a moment, Chen Yu gave his answer. With three years of factory dog experience, he's seen too much human suffering. Is it the young man who wants to lay flat? 
No, it's reality that makes them lie flat. Overworked, tweeted paychecks, high housing prices, a game of liver and kryptonite. Liver emperor players who have put their lives together are not as good as kryptonite players who move their fingers a little bit. Who wants to play this game anymore? Plus, how are these young men lying flat? Is it wrong to stay home and play games? Is it wrong to go to work in peace? Refusing to suck up to the leader, working overtime, or being pua is called laying down? What a load of crap. Yang Yi froze, not expecting Chen Yu to say such words, but a moment later, he smiled disdainfully. Not a bad thing? Accusations are arrogance? Take a look. What kind of thinking is this nowadays? Young people, it's not like us back in the day. When we stood in the snow for more than three hours in the middle of winter just to be able to show our faces in front of the leaders, to have a chance encounter with the leader, the harpies are not teachable. No wonder they dropped out of high school and are relegated to the lowest rung of the social ladder. Pushing down his glasses, the reflection of the sunlight just blocked Yanya's contemptuous gaze. Then do you have any research on the current financial industry? What do you think of the recent interest rate hike policy? Yang then inquired. I don't know enough about finance to have an opinion. Chun Yu shook his head and answered truthfully. He dropped out of high school and went to work in a factory. In the three years that followed, how could one find time to study finance when one is already fighting tooth and nail just to keep both mother and child alive? And now, he had set foot on the path of immortal cultivation, pointing straight to the supreme way. Power and money are at his fingertips whenever he wants them. More than that, they don't care about some of the world's campy tactics. Then what do you think about the furry bear conflict abroad? Young continued to pursue the question. I haven't been paying attention. Do you watch the news every day? Not looking, not interested. Several questions in a row made Young roll his eyes. Chessless and self-absorbed. This junior is not up to speed. Young people, it's not good to be unmotivated. You still have to struggle. Yang frowned and opened his mouth lightly, filling it with an educational flavor. Chen Yu laughed and was non-committal. He shook his head and continued to look at Chen Yu, not bothering to talk to him anymore. What kind of people do you see on a regular basis? Talking and laughing. There are no white men in the world. Which one of them is not a dignified and highly educated person? It's really degrading to talk so much to a young man who works in a factory. The atmosphere became a little dull, with only the sound of the news broadcasting on the television. At that exact moment, Yang Yi's cell phone rang. Yo, when he saw the cell phone number, he, who was originally calm, reflexively bounced up from the sofa and jogged to the balcony. Answering the phone, Yang Yi's tone immediately became fawning. What's the matter, leader? Oh, good, good. Just don't worry. I'll make sure it's done. Okay. I understand. I understand. I'll arrange it right away. Hey, you were right to leave this to me. Oh, good, good, good. Leader you are still working on big things on weekends. It's really hard work. Make sure you take good care of your rest. Your body. It's our most valuable asset. Chun Yu looked at Yang Yi and shook his head helplessly. People, there are two things they fear the most. One is too much of himself and one is too little of others. In the middle of the emotion, a young girl came out of the bedroom inside. The young girl was upper middle-aged, with an okay figure and a strong youthful vibe. Seeing Chen Yu, she froze slightly. Ching Ching, this is your great aunt's son, your brother, Chen Yu. Wu Mingxin carried a fruit plate and came out of the kitchen. Brother? Yang Ching Ching froze and looked Chen Yu up and down. Is this the Chen Yu dad was talking about earlier? High school dropout into the factory. Uneducated Chen Yu? Why is he here at my birthday party today? That's right. After all, it's the great aunt's kid, so it's always a good idea to shout. Although she was surprised in her heart, Yang Qingqing did not show the slightest bit on her face. Hello Feather. Hello. After a quick hello, the two stopped talking. That's kind of normal. Yang Qingqing, whose family is well off and goes to school in 985, does not regard Chen Yu as a class of people in her heart. Chen Yu was an immortal cultivator, and the people he interacted with on a regular basis were characters like Yuan Cheng and Lu Tianhao. With a little girl like Yang Qingqing, there wasn't much in common. At that moment, Yuan Qing's call came. Mr. Chen, do you have time tonight? There's a dinner party that a few bigwigs from the city government want to invite you to, to pay you a visit in person. The Inhuman Bureau is special, but it's also in the system. Yuan Cheng, as the director, had an extremely high status in South City. The big brothers he referred to were naturally the people in the highest authority in South City. I have something to do tonight. I'm not going. Chen Yu hung up the phone and watched the news on the TV, but his mind had already flown out. Today, Yang Qingqing's birthday banquet is just a walk in the park for Wu Shaolun. What he valued most now was still Lu Chuan Shang's 70th birthday in a few days. According to the news, the invitations for the Lu family have all been sent out. All the famous and powerful people in the South City will be there by then. 
After more than 20 years of feuding, the time has finally come to end it. The Ryu family, it's time to disappear. Shen Yu secretly clenched his fists, somewhat out of breath. Feather, what are you thinking about? Eat the fruit. Wu Mingjin greeted Shen Yu and brought him back to his senses. Okay, thanks Aunt Sam. Well, how is your mother? Feeling better? It's been good. That's good. Are you still working at the factory? Your third aunt's husband knows a few entrepreneurs. Why don't you let him arrange an easier job for you? Wu Mingjin had just finished speaking when Yang Yi happened to walk in from the balcony. He was a little upset and said, The companies that my friends have are very strict about qualifications. Wu Mingjin was still about to open her mouth when Shen Yu jumped ahead of her. Thank you Aunt Sam. No need. I'm working quite well now. He himself works as a consultant for Lu Tianhao's company. She hasn't been to the company until now. And she still has 100. 000 dollars a month. So she doesn't need Yang Ye's introduction. Oh, that's fine. If you need to talk to Auntie San. Third aunt can't bear to see you suffer either. Wu Mingjin went down the slope and didn't continue the topic. Chun Yu saw through it without pointing it out and smiled faintly. Wu Mingjin secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Somewhat regretting that she had just spoken too much. After all, Chen Yu's education was too low, so if he really arranged it for him, wouldn't it be a disgrace to Yang Yi? Lao Yang, who was on the phone just now? Dai Bureau's on the phone. Yang Yi's face was a little excited. He asked me to arrange a dinner at the Four Seas house tonight. The highest ones in the city are going to be there. Wu Mingjin's face changed with some surprise. Aya, uh, isn't Qingqing's birthday banquet also at Four Seas house? Wouldn't that be a great way to meet the big guys? Wu Mingjin's eyes were glowing and her face had a touch of excitement. Old Young, haven't you been competing with two other people for that promotion slot recently? Do you think if you were in the Four Seas house and spoke to the big shots, you would be able to? Young rolled his eyes. You're overthinking it. This party is full of big shots. I'm a leader in size, but I'm nothing at all in the eyes of those people. Want to go and get a couple of words? Hard, hard, hard. Hearing this, Wu Mingjin was a little disappointed. However, Xiao Tao, the son of Duro Qian, has always liked Qingqing, so when the birthday banquet is held today, you can let Qingqing have more contact with him. There's also Boss Ding's son, Mingzi, who is also interested in Qingqing, so he can also pull some strings. Yang Yi looked at Yang Qingqing and taught him assiduously. Qingqing, for your birthday banquet this time, the people that dad called out are all young and promising characters. It'll be good for you to get in touch with them more often. Yang Qingqing looked at Chen Yu and let out an O. Chen Yu watched all of this from the side, his expression unchanged. The sky is the limit. The world is bustling with interest. Today's Chen Yu is in a transcendent and comfortable state of mind. There was no contempt for the idea of Yang Ye's family. After all, none of this has anything to do with you. Well, pack up and let's head out to the hotel. Yang Yi looked at Chen Yu and called out to Wu Mingjin, Miyoung Jin, come inside for a moment. Once in the bedroom, Yang closed the door. What's wrong? Wu Mingjin was a bit puzzled. Yang Ye's face was ugly. His brows locked together. What's up with that sister of yours? Since she's not coming, it's better if none of them come. What's the point of having Chun Yu here? All these young people coming today have good backgrounds. What's he, an uneducated guy, doing in there? Wu Mingjin held her hand to her forehead, somewhat helpless. Originally, I was just shouting off the top of my head and thought that big sister and the others wouldn't come. I didn't expect to have Chun Yu come over. After all, he's my nephew. So come on. I'll just instruct him later. Yang Ye's face slowed down a little, but his tone was still harsh. Tell him later not to talk nonsense at the drinking table. I, Yang Yi, can't afford to lose this person. The two men conferred for a while longer and walked out of the bedroom. After a little bit of packing, the group rushed to 4C's house. Yang Yi drove a 200, 000 or so Honda. Wu Mingjin sat in the passenger seat. Chun Yu and Yang Qingqing sat in the back row. Yang Qingqing had been playing with her cell phone and deliberately sat to the side, not wanting to have too much contact with Chun Yu. Chun Yu was also happy to be at ease, placing his hands on his thighs, closing his eyes to rest his mind and secretly running the heavenly mechanic's skill for cultivation. Wu Mingjin turned back and smiled as she struck up a conversation with Chen Yu. Little Feather, tonight your third aunt's husband invited some young handsome people. Their family backgrounds are all very good. You listen more, watch less, and learn well. Got it? Okay. Chen Yu opened his eyes and faintly answered. Well, for C's house is a high-end hotel. A meal costs several thousand dollars. Third aunt will take you to eat something delicious today. Thank you Aunt Sam. Chen Yu was quite helpless, for C's house he had already been to. Previously, Lu Tianhao had invited himself to a banquet in the Supreme Hall of the Four C's building, and it was just like that. He didn't really want to go to this dinner if it wasn't for mom's orders. Half an hour later, 
Several people arrived at the Four Seas building, parking the car and entering the lobby of the Four Seas building. I saw the dragon sculpture. This is the Four Seas building. It's awesome. Yang Qingqing looked around, especially at the dragon sculpture, and marveled as she took pictures. Yang Yi smiled faintly, a touch of arrogance in his expression. Well, this is the Four Seas house. This is the highest end hotel in South City. That dragon sculpture is a masterpiece. There is also that elevator, which is an exclusive elevator that goes straight to the Supreme Hall at the very top. There are only a handful of people among the South City who can do that elevator up for dinner. Wu Mingjin marveled in awe and also hurriedly took out her cell phone to take pictures, so curious to know what that topmost hall of supremacy is really like. Yang tilted his head and let out a long sigh as well. I'm afraid that in this life, we won't see each other again. There are some things that you don't have when you're born, and you don't get to have them again in this lifetime. Chun Yu was somewhat helpless and shook his head. This scene was seen by Yang Yi. His face sank as he said, Little feather, what do you mean by shaking your head? Chen Yu said, It's nothing. The Supreme Hall is actually just like that, except for a better environment and better service. It's nothing special. Yang Yi coldly grunted, looking unhappy. After all, he is just a factory worker. This is really short-sighted. Wu Mingjin looked odd and was quite speechless. Yang Qingqing skimmed her mouth and was sending out friend circles to herself, not even bothering to look at Chun Yu. Okay, let's go to the box first. Wu Mingjin greeted and went to the box. Chun Yu had just walked into the box with his front foot, and the lobby manager saw Chen Yu with his back foot. Ha, huh, he seems to be, the distinguished guest who went to the Supreme Hall for dinner last time. Mr. Chen, the image of Lu Tianhao inviting Chen Yu last time had left a deep impression on him. This time, when Chen Yu came, it touched his memory. Taking out his cell phone, he dialed Su Hongsheng, the owner of Four C's house. Boss, that Mr. Chen seems to be here. Su Hongsheng is currently eating with his guests in a box upstairs. In addition to him, Yuan Chang and Lu Tianhao were also there, as well as a few people with outstanding temperament, precisely the highest few bigwigs in the South City. Oh, go back to the surveillance room and confirm. Let me know when you're sure. Su Hongsheng was a bit surprised. When he chatted just now, he had already learned that Chen Yu had a supreme status, and this dinner party was also supposed to be a banquet for Chen Yu. One very important topic was to discuss how to deal with the Lu family. They had acted immediately after Chen Yu had spoken earlier. Finance, business, bullying. Things that the Lu family hadn't considered to be a problem had now become weapons for them to use against the Lu family. They were still sorry that they hadn't invited Chen Yu. I didn't expect Chen Yu to come by himself. Okay, I'll get right on that. The lobby manager immediately went to the surveillance room. Chen Yu walked into the box and found that some of the young people that Yang Yi had invited had all arrived. The men were young and varied in dress. Some are more casual, some are more hip and cool, and others are dressed more business formal. But they all had one thing in common, the clothes were of excellent quality and value. It sets off their temperaments superbly as well. Hello Uncle Yang. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to celebrate Cyan's birthday. Come on. Come on. Everyone sit down. After taking his seat, Yang Yi was introduced one by one. Chen Yu was placed in the position furthest away from the door. This is Qian Tao. Well educated by the Qian Bureau. Just returned from studying abroad. This is Ding Mingzi. Your senior O. With the support of his father, has opened a company and started a business. And this one, when introduced to Qing Yu, Yang Yi paused and then opened his mouth. This is Chun Yu, my wife's sister's child. It was briefly mentioned and then skipped over. Chun Yu lightly laughed in his heart and did not care. Soon, the dishes were served, and Yang Qingqing's birthday banquet was considered to have begun. On the other hand, the lobby manager made a call to Su Hongsheng. Boss, it's confirmed. It's Mr. Chun. Su Hongsheng's eyes lit up. I know. After hanging up the phone, he smiled and looked at Yuan Cheng and the others. Gentlemen, good news for everyone. Good news? Yuan Cheng and the others looked at Su Hongsheng with some confusion. Su Hongsheng smiled and said, Bureau Yuan, didn't Mr. Chen fail to show up before you invited him? My men just told me that Mr. Chen is also eating at 4C's house today. It's in the box in the first floor lobby. What? Yuan Cheng stood up in a flash and stared at Su Hongsheng. Really? Well, I've had my men check the surveillance and it is indeed Mr. Chun. Su Hongsheng was beyond certain. The crowd looked at each other and couldn't help but laugh. That's a coincidence. A middle-aged man with glasses and a dignified look stood up and smiled faintly. Gentlemen, since Mr. Chen is here, we should always go have a toast. His name is Wan Li, and he is the highest big shot in the South City Government Office, sitting firmly in the first chair. It was also his opinion that he wanted to invite Chen Yu. The others rose and nodded their heads in succession, echoing Wan Li's proposal. Exactly. Go, 
Go, go, let's go make a toast. Oh, as it should be. I'm also eager to meet the style of this land god. Chen Yu's identity was naturally unknown to the general public, but those who can sit here are the ones who have their hands full, still aware of these situations. Good, gentlemen, please follow me. Su Hongshang led the way in front of him. In a box in the first floor hall, a lively scene. Yang sat in the main seat, talking and laughing with the young men in the room. Today he was also taking the opportunity of Yang Qingqing's birthday banquet to make more connections. Behind those invited here, other than Chen Yu, none of the others were a party of figures in the southern city. The crowd pushed cups and exchanged glasses. A moment to talk about the international situation. A moment to talk about the political world clouds. A moment to analyze the business sea sinking and floating. So lively. Yang's face was flushed and his eyes narrowed as he smiled. Look at these young people. How brilliant. Oops. Who should Qingqing choose in there later? Mi Young Take? His family is in business and is well off and materially well off. Just not a big help to me in my work. Chantal? Well, Qian's son. If Qingqing is with him, I'll be able to get Qian's support, and I'm bound to go to the next level, but certainly not as material as Akazawa. Dinky? He's also very good. He'll come to the table, and his background is good, so he's not bad for the future. It's so hard to do. At this moment, Yang Yi quite had the feeling of being in a mess. He was so proud of his ambition that he tilted his head and took a drink. Just at this moment, he unintentionally swept his eyes at Chen Yu who was eating. A flash of distaste surfaced between his brows. How did a high-end party between swans get mixed up with something like this? Hey, after all, the level is too low and the insight is too little. From the beginning to now, he doesn't talk to anyone else at all except for food. But yeah, he couldn't get involved in those topics. I'll also have to remind Mingjin in the evening to have less dealings with such poor relatives in the future. Wu Mingjin's ability to read people's words is also very strong. Looking at Yang Yi and then at Chen Yu, he immediately understood. She shook her head darkly. Never mind. After all, it's his nephew, so consider it a good meal to bring him here. There won't be much walking around in the future anyway. Yang Qingqing looked at Qian Tao and the others with admiration in her eyes. Like a little fangirl. These brothers are so awesome. So much more mature and stable than those boys at school. Brother Chantal is a bit of a leader. Brother Myuntake looks like a bully. Dinky brother is so artistic. It's all very good. Then look at Chen Yu. Aha. Never mind. I choose not to watch it for the health of my eyesight. Qian Tao and the other group of young people did not pay attention to Qin Yu either. Their family is well off, and with their long time exposure, their eyesight is not bad. It didn't take long for the birthday banquet to begin, and they could tell that Yang Yi didn't treat Chen Yu well. Naturally, there was no interest in ignoring Chen Yu, but this, Chen Yu felt good instead. They were all brats, and Yang Yi wasn't much of a character, so there was no point in talking about this with them. The pursuits of both sides are not even on the same channel. Nowadays it's best to have a quiet meal and then go back to your homes without disturbing each other. Uncle Yang, I heard that those big shots from the city are also eating at Four C's house today. At the dinner table, Qian Tao asked Yang Yi. Yang put down his glass and nodded, lifting his index finger toward the ceiling. They're up there, the box for dinner, or I arranged it. A touch of smugness surfaced on Yang Yi's face. Qian Tao's few people cried out in unison. Yeah, those big shots let you arrange all the meals for Uncle Yang. That leader thinks highly of you. That's right. It looks like Uncle Yang will soon be going to the next level. Come, come, come. Let's toast Uncle Yang together. The crowd rose and raised their glasses. Ha 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 ha. Thank you kids. Yang Yi laughed openly and tilted his head back to drink the wine in his cup in one gulp. His face glowing red. After sitting down, Yang Yi laughed. It's a pity. Although I arranged it. But I'm not qualified to go to dinner yo. Although he said it with some regret. Yang Yi's face couldn't help but show off. Several of Qian Tao's people laughed. They could see that Yang Yi wasn't really sorry. Who are those people? The highest ranking group of people in the South City Yaman. Those of them, although their family backgrounds are all good, want to reach those people further up? Hard hard hard. Unless they elevated one more step, they would not be qualified to go up there and be a cow. As for now, not even a chance to get into the eyes of the big boys. Oh, Uncle Yang you don't have to be presumptuous. With your abilities, you're bound to be able to go further. Qian Tao complimented. That's right. Uncle Yang has made progress. So take care of us. Maybe just because of this incident. All those bigwigs recognize Uncle Yang and come directly to our box to toast Uncle Yang. Yang laughed openly, the corners of his mouth grinning up to his ears. See, what it means to be young and handsome. What does it mean to be both intellectually and emotionally intelligent? This little mouth. It's as sweet as honey. It simply wasn't something that an ordinary citizen like Chen Yu could compare to. Thanks for the kind words. Come on, come on, 
Everyone, eat and drink well. Yang greeted the crowd. Knock knock, the door to the box room knocked. Yang Qingqing got up and walked to the door, opening it a small amount and seeing a group of people standing at the door. Although he didn't recognize it, Yang Qingqing was considered to have seen a lot. As soon as he saw these people, he felt that the other party's temperament was not ordinary. This group of people, all of them are not of low status. In Yang Qingqing's mind, she immediately had a judgment. What's the matter with you guys? Yang Qingqing opened her mouth to inquire. One of the leaders looked kind and had a good attitude. Hello, we're here to make a toast. A toast? You guys know my dad? Yang Qingqing froze, opened the door a little more and looked at Yang Yi who was sitting in the main seat. Dad, someone's here to toast you. Who is it? I'm eating and someone knows? Yang was full of ambition. His head was high, and he was full of pie. Then he saw a group of people at the door. Boom! Thunder exploded in his head. Yang's eyes snapped open, almost bursting out of their sockets. Even speaking, he began to stutter. You, you, you are, one, one. Yang Yi stared blankly at the gate, a thousand thunderbolts ringing in his head. That face, isn't it the one of the big guy? Ten thousand away, the big man of the court. Standing proudly at the top of South City, a casual sneeze would set off a storm in South City. Whether it was Lu Tianhao or Zhou Shang, the bigwigs in the eyes of these ordinary people were nothing in front of this being. And he, Yang Yi, was even more worthless. How did he get here? Oh, my god, I don't think I've been told. I'm here to toast me. Am I? Am I? Am I so valued? Yang Yi's heart was beating frantically and his face had turned red. Lao Yang. Lao Yang. Wu Mingxin clutched Yang Yi's arm tightly. Her face red. Although she was a woman, she knew a lot about the power structure in South City thanks to Yang Yi. I've never met Wan Li face to face, but I've seen him on TV a few times, so at a glance she recognized it. Today, Wan Li's meal at the Four Seas building was arranged by Yang Yi. The highest status in this is also Yang Yi. There was only one possibility for Wan Li to come here. That is to come and thank Yang Yi. Opportunity. Here's a chance for your own husband. To make good relations with Wan Li was to embrace the biggest thigh in South City. How else are the other two going to compete with their husbands for the promotion slot they were talking about earlier? Qian Tao and a kind of other young people also got up with shocked expressions. Despite their different identities, they all knew something about the upper class of the South City as well. Lu Tianhao, second in command. Which is extraordinary. Not to mention Wan Li. Even their fathers were not qualified to sit and eat with Wan Li. Now that Wan Li had taken the initiative to come and toast, it was simply unimaginable. It had to be Wan Li who admired Yang Yi. And that was why he came over in person. Yang Yi is going to be rich. In the future, he must get along with Yang Yi. For a while, several people looked at Yang Yi with a touch of fire in their eyes. Shen Yu did not get up like the others, but remained seated. He raised his eyes and raised an eyebrow. He didn't recognize Wan Li, but Lu Tianhao and Yuan Qing were actually here? It seemed that he had come to the Four C's house and had been discovered after all. Earlier, he knew that Lu Tianhao and the others were hosting a banquet here. But he was here today only to fulfill the task his old mom had given him. Have a quiet dinner and then flash. Unfortunately, not after all. With a sigh in his heart, Chen Yu was about to speak when Wu Mingjin grabbed the opportunity to speak first. Old Young, why are you still standing there? Quick, go greet the leader. Ha, ah, right, right, right. Yang Ye's body shuddered in reaction and immediately jogged to the door. He held Wan Li tightly with both hands, his face full of smiles and bowed humbly. Leader, why are you here in person? Hey, you command. I'll go upstairs to toast you ah. Wan Li froze, looking Yang Yi up and down with a head full of questions. And that, you are? Ha, huh? leader, it's me, Xiao Yang. Yang Yi. Yang was a bit surprised, but he still sold his explanation. Yang Yi? This, Wan Li withdrew his hand without a trace, still looking confused. A deputy next to him quietly whispered a few words in Wan Li's ear. Oh, under little Zhang's hand? Daughter's birthday banquet? Aha. Uh -huh. A little bit of impression. I think I've seen him in a meeting before. Wufeng District is responsible for investment promotion. Right. Seeing this, Yang Yi and Wu Mingjin looked at each other, seeing each other's consternation. What's going on here? He doesn't seem to recognize me? Then why did he come over for a toast? Qian Tao's few people were also a bit uncertain. Why does it feel like? Something's not right? Ahem. That, little Yang, I didn't know it was your daughter's birthday. Excuse me, please step aside. I'm going to see Mr. Chun. Wan Li looked at Chun Yu. As soon as he entered, Chen Yu caught his attention. At his level, the strength of his eyesight was beyond human imagination. The aura on Chen Yu was very special. In just an instant, he knew that Chun Yu was the Mr. Chen he wanted to call on. Mr. 
Chen, Yang Yi looked puzzled and followed Wan Li's gaze. Eyes, gathered on Chen Yu. What? Yes, is he? Wan Li came here for him? At this moment, Yang Yi was struck by lightning and his mind went blank. The glaring eyes were filled with incomparably intense horror. How could it be him? Isn't he a working man? How come it's Mr. Chen all of a sudden? Is it a mistake? Maybe Wan Li recognized the wrong person? I don't think so. How can you get something like that wrong? Wu Mingjin covered her mouth, her eyes full of astonishment. Feather, it's Mr. Chen, this. Chen Tao and the other group of young people also had their brains buzzing. A big shot like Wan Li came here for him? Earlier on the table, Chen Yu was the most inconspicuous one ah. He he, Mr. Chen, ah, I've heard about your name for a long time, and today I finally meet my father. Earlier I regretted not inviting you, but I didn't expect fate to bring us together here. Wan Li brought Lu Tianhao and the others to Qing Yu. As soon as they met, Wan Li was holding Qing Yu with both hands, a smile blooming on his face. Chen Yu smiled gently, somewhat helplessly. I didn't expect that either. I was just going to have a casual dinner and leave. Lu Tianhao laughed at the side. Oops, Mr. Chen Yu were going to say you're going to eat here as well, so I'll book the Supreme Hall for you in advance. After having you in the Supreme Hall last time, I was thinking about when I would invite you to try the new dishes again. Yang Ye's family of three was, once again, shocked. Did he just say Supreme Hall? It's the luxury box on the top floor of the Four Seas building? The place where they feel so much emotion that they can only look up? Chun Yu, he, has eaten there a long time ago? Actually, the Supreme Hall is just that. The image of Chun Yu's earlier critique instantly broke into their minds. I had thought it was just the self-congratulation of the lower classes, but now it looks like that's not the case at all. This, an objective review from someone who has experienced it. Jesus, what the hell is going on with Chun Yu? How did you suddenly go from a factory dog to the top big shot in South City? Little you ah, this, what's going on? You didn't even say anything to Auntie San. Wu Mingjin's eyes rolled and she purposely opened her mouth to interject, pointing out her identity. Regardless of how Chun Yu had gotten this far, one thing was certain. He was close to Wan Li. Then it's normal for Chen Yu to help his third aunt, right? Yang Yi immediately reacted and hurriedly opened his mouth. Little feather ah, this child of yours is also, didn't even tell third auntie husband that you even know a few leaders. Between words, Yang Yi appeared to be familiar with Chen Yu. Chen Yu's expression remained unchanged as he lightly glanced at Yang Yi, a faint cold smile emerging from the corner of his mouth. Yang Yi, just because I'm not angry doesn't mean I don't have a temper. Just because I don't care, doesn't mean I have a good temper. My mother cares for her family and can tolerate some things, but I'm different, and I've seen everything you've done over the years. You and my family, we are relatives, but only relatives. You can't take advantage of my Chen Yu yet. You, get it? The atmosphere of the room dropped to freezing point. There was no sound, and breathing seemed like thunder. Chen Yu's expression was indifferent, leaving no mercy behind. He's not a Madonna and has his own code. He who is gracious to me, pours out his strength to repay it. Those who have a grudge against me will be avenged with all their might. I have no need to befriend those who alienate me. I don't have to please those who dislike me. How did you Yang Yi do all these years? Don't you have any numbers in your own heart? Chun Yu remembers very clearly. When he was a child, his family was poor, and once because of an urgent need for money, Wu Shaolan had called to borrow money from Wu Mingjin. At that time, Yang Yi's clear voice came from the phone. Why is this big sister of yours so annoying? Borrowing money? Can she afford to pay it back? I still have to buy a car and send gifts to the top. How can I have money to lend her? No borrowing. It's her incompetence if she can't get by. Who made her not love herself, get pregnant out of wedlock, and get dumped at the end of the day? That day, he stood by and watched his mother hold the phone, her hands and face red with embarrassment. In his clenched fists, his nails pierced the skin and oozed reddish blood. At the end of the day, it didn't work out to borrow money. Wu Xiaolan was able to get through that time by overdrawing her paycheck, plus going back to part-time odd jobs in the evenings. It was also after that time, even if this Wu Xiaolan suffered from a strange disease for three years, and dumped his family's money. She also did not open her mouth to borrow money from Yang Yi's family. Chen Yu understood Wu Xiaolan's stubbornness, so he bites the bullet and earns money. Even if he gritted his teeth and swallowed them into his stomach, he did not contact the so-called third aunt's husband. And Wu Mingjin, as her third aunt, was even more fearful of her own mother. In the past, when Wu Xiaolan called this sister of hers, she just wanted to chat and care about her sister. But what happened? Wu Mingjin often doesn't answer her phone. Even when they picked up, they excused themselves as being busy and hung up quickly. Chen Yu knew very well that this was Wu Mingjin's fear of her mother and son pestering her family and asking for her help. Now that he's soaring, he wants to climb the ladder? Ha! 
On what grounds? Yang Ye's face turned red with embarrassment. Xian Tao and the others looked at each other without saying a word. Little feather. How can you talk to your third aunt's husband like that? Wu Mingjin opened her mouth to rebuke Chen Yu. Just before she finished her words, she met Chen Yu's gaze and could no longer speak. How could she not be aware of those things in the past? Only in the past she had pretended not to see it. Moreover, she had never imagined that one day Chen Yu would be able to reach the position he was in today. How else would they have dared to treat their mother and son that way? In terms of status, Chen Yu was far above her. In terms of reasoning, she was the unreasonable party. And how could one go about reprimanding Chen Yu? Yang Qingqing, however, had a face of righteous indignation. Chen Yu, aren't you going too far? Chen Yu smiled faintly and swept his eyes at Yang Yi. I'm just a few words, and you think it's too much. Then you might as well ask your parents if what they did back then was excessive. Wan Li and the others took everything in and pondered. How intelligent they were. They could probably figure out the relationship of the people present with just one glance. Mr. Wan, since we've met, let's go sit in your box. Chen Yu opened his mouth. It's come to this, and there's no point in staying here any longer. He he, so it's best. Mr. Chen please. Wan Li made a gesture of invitation. Chen Yu nodded and walked out of the box. The others followed close behind. When Wan Li reached the doorway, his footsteps lurched and he looked back at Yang Yi. Yang Yi right, I remember. Your character, your vision, it's not good. Shaking his head, Wan Li walked out of the box. The others followed close behind. The originally lively box was instantly dead silent. Yang Yi poofed and sat down on the chair with a disoriented expression. At the moment, he was like falling into an ice cellar. With these words, Wan Li almost pronounced his death sentence. This is completely discredited. Not to mention going further. It's already a blessing to be able to keep the current position. More likely, he's going to be targeted. Xian Tao and the others looked at each other and spoke. That, Uncle Yang, I still have some things to do at home, so I'll take my leave. Uncle Yang, it's getting late, so I should get going. Uncle Yang, I'm really sorry, my family sent me a message urging me to go back. A group of young people all left the box. Everyone is shocked plus regretful. Never would have expected that the person who was thought to be the most insignificant person at this banquet would be the big brother that their fathers had to look up to. What is even more unexpected is that Yang Yi and he were originally relatives, but did not hold this kind of phi? How stupid does one have to be to do something like that? At the moment the feast was not even halfway through. There were many more dishes on the table and wine in glasses, but the people had pretty much left, and there was only Yang Yi's family of three. Reality is so cruel. Who would dare to socialize with Yang Yi after Wan Li said those words just now? If he offended Wan Li and Shen Yu because of this, it would be nothing short of doom. How did this happen? How did this happen? Wu Mingjin went limp and slumped in her chair. Yang Qingqing was filled with indignation. This Chen Yu, what an abomination. Mom, what in the world happened before? What gives him the right to treat us like this? What kind of character is this? The corners of Wu Mingjin's mouth moved, and only after holding her tongue for a long time did she open her mouth with some lack of breath. Just, even if we were wrong before, can't he return the favor? Anymore, I'm his third aunt. Yang Qingqing's body shook and froze in place. Just that one sentence made her understand. It was her Yang family that was in the wrong. Suddenly, Yang Yi fiercely grabbed Wu Mingjin's shoulders as if he had grabbed a life-saving straw. Yes, you're his third aunt, you're his third aunt. Mingjin, call Wu Shaolan and ask him to persuade Chen Yu. I'm his third aunt's husband, he can't help his third aunt. Wu Mingjin hesitated for a moment, nodded, and dialed Wu Shaolan's number. Mi Young Jin, why are you calling me all of a sudden? That, big sister, I... I have something I want to ask for your help. There might be a bit of a misunderstanding between little you and old young. Wu Mingjin roughly described what happened. Across the room, Wu Shaolan was silent for a moment before slowly speaking. Little Feather is older, and I can't persuade him. Everything, it's fate. After the phone hung up, Yang Ye's heart was ashen. It's over. I'm totally screwed this time. Yesterday's cause is today's effect. The cycle of karma and retribution. Yang Yi and Wu Mingjin were beyond regret. Chen Yu didn't care about this, whether his young family rises or falls is his young family's business. Just, want to take advantage of your light? No way. After arriving at the upstairs box, Chen Yu became the absolute protagonist. Even Wan Li was respectful. As the first prefecture Zun, strictly speaking, his status was above Wan Li. It was a party with a lot of guests. The people also discussed a plan to deal with the Lu family. Chen Yu was satisfied after hearing this. For the next few days, Chen Yu had a very pleasant time. While cultivating, he waited for the day of Lu Chuan Shang's great birthday to arrive. Time passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye, it was the day of Lu Chuan Shang's 70th birthday. 
On this day, South City's high society was in an uproar. Lu Chuan Shang's 70th birthday, held in the Mingyue building. It was one of the highest grade hotels in the South City, in line with the status of the Four Seas House. What was different was that Mingyue House belonged to the Lu family's property and adopted a membership system, not a place where money gets you in. It is situated in a busy part of the South City, with constant traffic in the surrounding area. Today, there was a major congestion here. Buses, private cars, and battery-operated vehicles were all blocking the road and could not move at all. In the sunlight, it reflected harsh bright spots. The traffic policeman had a whistle in his hand and was struggling to direct. On the bus, many passengers kept complaining. Gee, this is too much traffic. What's going on today? That's right. It's not even the morning rush hour. It's all jammed up. Hey, you guys don't know yet, but today's traffic jam is all because of the Lu family. The crowd immediately looked at the person who spoke. Their faces showing curiosity. The man was a bit smug and pointed to the minute house. Today Mingyue House is hosting the 70th birthday of the Lu family's old man. All the dignitaries of the South City are here for the birthday banquet. So naturally they bet. Look at the road guys. Aren't there a lot of luxury cars? The crowd looked over and realized that there were indeed many luxury cars converging. Mercedes-Benz S-Class and BMW 7 Series are the most usual. Even vehicles such as Maybach and Rolls-Royce are not uncommon. Through the glass of the bus, you could also see the entrance of Mingyue building. And people kept walking down from these luxury cars. The crowd was envious. Those who can walk into this Mingyue building are all big shots in the South City. Yang Yi drove his car with Wu Mingjin and Yang Qingqing, also blocking a short distance away. He watched as one big shot walked into Mingyue building, his eyes filled with envy and despair. In the past few days, he teared up and lost weight. Regret and panic tormented him constantly. Himself in the beginning. How come he didn't flatter Chun Yu? Wu Mingjin felt the same way and regretted it. Dad. Look. That. That's not Chun Yu. Suddenly, Yang Qingqing pointed in the direction of Mingyue building and opened her mouth to remind. Yang's out of place gaze refocused. Chen Yu appeared in his field of vision taking out an invitation and handing it to the porter. He walked into Mingyue building with a bland ease until he disappeared from view. Yang clutched the steering wheel tightly for a few moments before suddenly loosening it feebly. A bitter smile appeared on his face. He blocked himself in and he went into the scene. The atmosphere in the car became more depressing. Chen Yu walked into Mingyue building and followed the guide to the hall where the birthday banquet was held. The lobby space is very open, the size of a soccer field. The decor is lavish with huge crystal chandeliers that fall from the super tall top floor, which is more than 10 meters high. The floor was covered with expensive Persian carpets, which were soft and soothing to step on. This time, the birthday banquet was different from the usual, in a buffet mode. It's also considered a communication platform for the upper class in South City. There were a number of tables and counters in the hall, with exquisite cuisine set out on them. Just looking at it is extremely appetizing. Tuxedoed waiters, Carrying dinner trays with one hand and various types of drinks on them, traveled through the hall. Many people, men, women and children, had already come to the site. They were carrying drinks, gathered in twos and threes, talking and laughing. The conversations, too, were about high-end topics like land, business models, and company shareholdings. Lu Chuan Shang, you old dog knows how to play. Shen Yu took some food and came to a corner, quietly watching everything. The purpose of Lu Chuan Shang making such a big show could not be more obvious. To highlight the status of the Lu family and expand its influence. If I hadn't set foot on the path of immortal cultivation, I wouldn't know how miserable it would be if I arrived here today with my old mom and looked at this full of prosperity. Only now, everything is different. Chen Yu gently smiled as a cold aura dotted his eyes. Earlier at the Four Seas building, Yuan Chang and the others had already told him the plan to deal with the Lu family. I have to say, it's better to be a professional at what you do. After listening to it, Chen Yu had only two words to say about the program. Perfect. Today, he is both a protagonist and a spectator. Oh, is this Chen Yu, Wu Shaolan's son? A soft laugh interrupted Chen Yu's thoughts. Turning his head, he saw that it was a couple of young men. The first person, named Lu Hong, was considered a side branch of the Lu family. Behind him were some of the young descendants of the Lu family. You are? Me, Lu Hong? How have you been these past 20 years? Is it comfortable? You haven't eaten anything here. Have some more. You won't be able to eat it when you go out. A few people laughed. Teasing the poor unlucky guy was a blast. They were eager to see. Chen Yu's angry, powerless, yet cowardly and inferior appearance. But they were disappointed. Chen Yu just looked at the several people and nodded gently. Well, yeah, it's true that after this outing, the Willow family won't be able to eat anything. After today, the Willow family collapses. All these Ryu family things will also disappear together. 
It's not wrong to say it's the last meal. The laughter came to an abrupt end. Several people froze and looked at Chen Yu with a surprised expression. What's the situation? Isn't this kid a factory dog? What's with the reaction? Why is it so bland? Chen Yu just sat there, his face devoid of sadness and joy. There was no anger or low self-esteem. This made Lu Han very uncomfortable. A touch of humility was even born. It's as if he or she is a clown selling a show. The other man, on the other hand, was quietly admiring his own ugliness. It's a mistake, isn't it? How did this happen? Damn, I'm too lazy to talk to you. Lu Hong was defeated and ran away with a harsh word. He had a feeling that even if he said any more, he'd just be making a fool of himself. Watching Lu Hong and the others leave, Chen Yu crossed his legs, smiled gently, and took a bite of cake. What a bunch of youngsters. Enjoy the last of the glory. People, it's getting bigger. Even the large banquet hall was slightly crowded. The influence of the Lu family was evident. Hiss, sir. Suddenly, a cry of alarm rang out beside Chen Yu. Chen Yu turned his head to look and was stunned. Aren't these the two people we met in the park? The visitors, an old man and a young man, were none other than Xiao He and Xiao Lingling. Seeing Chen Yu, Xiao He was filled with excitement and quickly came to Chen Yu, rubbing his hands together. I was wondering if there was any chance of meeting Mr. Here, but I didn't think the sky would follow my wishes. Last time in the park, it was really abrupt. You mustn't mind. Xiao He bowed deeply. Xiao Lingling was not as arrogant as last time and bowed her head like a good girl to apologize. It's all in the past. No harm done. If it's okay you go ahead and leave me alone to eat. Chen Yu was too lazy to be bothered and waved his hand. Okay, then you can rest and I'll come back to pay you a visit later. Xiao He didn't dare to ask more questions and bowed his back to retreat. He didn't straighten up until he was several meters away. With a surge of joy, he stomped towards the place where Lu Chuan Sheng and the others were. See the innate master again, when the birthday banquet is over. Be sure to flatter. Maybe a little guidance from him will take me to the next level. At this age, Xiao He didn't care about anything else anymore and only wanted to break through the limits and step into the innate. Old Mr. Xiao, you look happy. What good things have happened to you? Seeing Xiao He's joyful, Lu Chuan Shang was a little surprised. Xiao He grinned and said, You'll never guess what kind of people I've met. What man? The Lu family's crowd was piqued with curiosity. Xiao He paused and spoke slowly. Innate master. What? Innate sect master? The Lu family crowd exclaimed in unison. That kind of existence. Surprisingly, arrived here? Old Mr. Xiao. This, this is true? Are you sure you're not mistaken? Lu Chuan Shang still couldn't believe it and hurriedly asked after him. I certainly can't be wrong about characters like that. Xiao He spoke. He's the one I met in the park. Thinking of the image just now, Xiao He still couldn't help but be excited. The living innate patriarch. Ah, appeared right in front of his eyes. Thinking about it now is like a dream. Kai, among the people we invited this time, is there this patriarch? Lu Chuan Shang turned back to Lu Kai and opened his mouth to inquire. Father, no, I have checked all the lists, and there is no such figure. No, that's strange. Then who could this innate patriarch be? Lu Chuan Shang frowned with suspicion. Next to him, Lu Ao slapped his thigh violently. Grandpa, do you think it could be that rumored first prefecture Zun? The first prefect? Lu Chuan Shang's body shook as he gazed at the thought. It's possible. Highly likely. The probability of two innate masters appearing one after another was too small. Xiao He was silent. The Ryu family's judgment was in line with what they thought. He also thought that the teenager should be the first prefecture Zun of Jiangling province. Ha ha. Father, I'm sure that first prefectural exalt must have known about your 70th birthday today and came over to take a look. Ryukai opened his mouth with a wide grin. The other Lu family members nodded in agreement. Lu Chuan Shang leaned on his dragon head crutch, his eyes glittering with essence and his face flushed. That's right, that must be it. That first prefectural sovereign must have come to the scene because he knew about my Lu family's position in the southern city. Otherwise, where else would there be people he cared about above this banquet? Only I, Lu Chuan Shang, can draw the attention of the first prefect. When he thought of this, Lu Chuan Shang only felt like people were going to float. He he, don't talk nonsense, what are the virtues of me? Lu Chuan Shang, how could that first prefect come to me? Despite saying this, Lu Chuan Shang's mouth simply couldn't close. What a fucking fabulous day. Elder Mr. Xiao, I wonder where his excellency the prefecture is now. I'm going to pay my respects. I can't lose my manners. Xiao he waved his hand. Not good. I went to pay my respects to Mr. Just now, and they were all chased away by him. That means he doesn't want to cause too much commotion right now. If you go at this moment, you will rather tend to displease him. This. Lu Chuan Shang froze, his face hesitant. After a little thought, it was indeed as Sha River had said. 
Well then, thanks to old Mr. Xiao for mentioning it. You're welcome, Lu Family Master. I would also like to congratulate Family Master Lu for having a patriarch in person on the occasion of his 70th birthday. It looks like the Lu family is going to be revitalized. Xiaoyi smiled and returned the salute with a much better attitude than before. He had his own considerations, regardless of why that one appeared here. It was always related to the Lu family. If the Lu family were to embrace the thighs of a junior patriarch in the future, then the Lu family would soar. Although he was the old master of the Four Fiends sect, he didn't dare to offend. Ha 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 ha. Overstated. Overstated. Lu Chuan Shang laughed out loud, smugness written all over his face. The atmosphere of this birthday feast just keeps getting better and better. More and more people are coming. By the time 12 noon rolled around, the climax was upon us. The Lu family crowd walked up to the high platform at the very front of the hall. The whole hall, at once, was quiet. All the gazes converged, with a touch of awe in their eyes to a greater or lesser extent. The Lu family has an extraordinary position in the South City, and their hands are all over the place. Lu Chuan Shang, who created all this, is considered to be a lord. Who dares to offend such a character in South City? Lu Chuan Shang stood at the very center of the high platform, leaning on his dragon head cane, his face full of smiles. Gentlemen, welcome to the 70th birthday banquet of the old man. I am here to thank you all. Please also enjoy yourselves today. My Lu family, all of us, are here with all our hearts. Wow. Applause. After 10 seconds or so, silence returned to the scene. Lu Chuan Shang thanked the crowd again, and then prepared to walk off the high stage. But just at this moment, a faint voice with a smile rang out. Lu Chuan Shang, is this how it's going to go down? I haven't given you my congratulatory gift yet. The crowd froze and turned their heads to follow the sound. The people of the Lu family froze. The congratulatory gift thing was given back at the entrance. Why does anyone suddenly want to give it this time? And that's a bit of a come on. By the sound of it, Lu Chuan Shang frowned and looked over. Shen Yu got up from the corner with a smile on his face and walked towards the high platform in front of him. The crowd automatically parted into a lane. As Chen Yu passed by, they pointed at him with surprised faces. Who is this? Which family's offspring? There are no rules. What does he want to do? This guy? Is it hard to be crazy? Yuan Cheng and the others were also present. And when they saw the scene, their eyes flashed steeply. Chen Yu, out of the blue. You are? Lu Chuan Sheng narrowed his eyes slightly, a flash of doubt in his eyes. Lu Ao stood on the side, staring at Chen Yu with a deadly stare, his eyes blood red. What the fuck? This asshole is even here? He he, Lu Chuan Shang, you've been suppressing us, mother and son, for 20 years or so, and now I'm standing right in front of you, and you don't even know who I am? Chen Yu smiled and said, you're the son of that bitch Wu Shaolan? Ryu roared violently. The scene, a clamor, was full of surprises. Even a fool could hear that the relationship between the two was by no means good. Lu Ao was even more startled. This guy is Wu Shaolan's son? Isn't that loser a factory dog? How can you be so capable that you can compete with me for a thousand years of blood ginseng? Inexplicably, a touch of uneasiness surfaced in Lu Ao's heart. Xiao He stood on the stage, staring at Chen Yu with wide eyes. His scalp was numb with horror. Nima, what is this idiot Lu Chuan Sheng doing? He, 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 cursed the mother of another innate master? Crap. The old man thought wrong. This patriarch came here, indeed running towards Lu Chuan Shang, but the purpose wasn't to congratulate him on his birthday. He was looking for trouble. Chen Yu's face was grim, his eyes like wolves as he gazed at Lu Chuan Shang. Lu Chuan Shang, I've come to give you a gift today. You take it. Chen Yu took out a clock and threw it on top of the high platform. The scene immediately gasped in shock. A clock at a birthday party? Isn't that what it means to send someone to their death? This kid, how dare he provoke the Lu family like this? Does he want to live or not? Ryu Chuan Shang looked down at the clock at his feet and smiled disdainfully. In young people's terms, is this incompetent rage on your part? By sending this watch to me, will you and Wu Shaolan still have enough for next month's living expenses? Come, let me see. How will you give my Lu family a final send-off? Lu Chuan Shang stood on the stage, leaning on his dragon head cane and looking down at Chen Yu proudly. Arrogant. Bully. Lu Chuan Shang seemed to be the emperor in charge of everything. Probably looking down on Shen Yu as a small shrimp. Are you angry? You're not happy? Are you desperate? So what? No matter what you think, you just have to put up with it. If my Lu family can suppress you for 20 years, I can continue to suppress you for 30, 40 years. All around, a sneering gaze was thrown at Chen Yu. Don't quite understand what's going on though, but going against the Ryu family in South City? It's a little too ridiculous. Who doesn't know that the name of this sky in South City is Lu? Chen Yu looked at Lu Chuan Shang and smiled back. The smile was cold. 
Really? Then you should keep your eyes open and take a good look. Chen Yu had just finished speaking when Ji Jin, who was next to him, took a step forward and forced himself to look at Chen Yu. Little thing, how dare you show off here? Family Master Lu, today is the day of your big birthday, so I'll use this kid to help out. Jumping off the high platform, Ji Jin walked towards Chen Yu with a fierce smile. The pupils of the bigwigs from all sides flickered slightly, and there was a flash of anticipation. It was no secret that there were high-level people among the Lu family in the high-level circles of South City. Only, no one had ever seen it strike. Today, can we finally open our eyes? Just as he was thinking, Ji Jin had already raised his hand. Asshole. A roar that exploded across the room. The voice was so neutral that it made one's eardrums ache. Ji Jin was startled. And in a flash of light, he realized that Xiao He was already standing in front of him, looking at him angrily. Old sect master. What are you? Snap. A loud slap was thrown hard on Ji Jin's face. Sinful animal, how dare you be powerless against a gentleman. Xiao He hurriedly turned around and made a deep bow to Chin Yu. Sir, I'm really sorry, Ji Jin. He didn't know your identity and didn't mean to offend you. Please don't be angry. Looking down at the floor, Xiao He sweated coldly. His body was trembling uncontrollably because of too much fear. It's a sin, Ji Jin. You're a big fucking idiot. It was supposed to be between the Ryu family and him. What the fuck are you jumping in for? You brainless pig. You're going to make a move on an innate master? Do you know how to write the word death? On the scene, there was consternation. What the hell is this? A high-ranking member of the Lu family. And he was beaten by an old man before he even made a move? Who is that old man? Why is he so respectful to this teenager? Ji Jin covered his face, completely confused. What? What's going on here? Old sect master him. Why is he so respectful to this guy? The Lu family's cadre of people were also filled with consternation. Lu Chuan Shang's eyes were wide with incredulity. Nima, Xiao He, aren't you on our side? Why are you helping Chen Yu now? You're the old master of the four deadly sect. Why are you so scared? This kid is a factory dog. What's so scary about that? Hmm, and so on. Nope. Lu Chuan Shang suddenly shivered, only to feel a chill going straight to the sky. Just now, Xiao He had said that there was a teenage innate sect master in this venue. Could it be? No. It won't. He, he's been crushed by my Lu family for 20 years or so. How could it be? It would be a teenage patriarch? No way. Never. I must be overthinking this. Overthinking it. Lu Chuan Shang's body trembled, feeling a breathtaking sense of unease. Xiao He, you people from the Four Fiends sect, you're quite bold. You guys, are you trying to make an enemy of me? Chen Yu's eyes were clear and cold as he spoke faintly. Xiao He trembled, his heart terrified. To be an enemy of an innate master? And it's highly likely that the other party is still the first prefect? I'd like to live two more fucking years. He gritted his teeth and turned to stare at Ji Jin, his eyes bloodshot, sinful animal, looking for death. Xiao He blasted his palm onto Ji Jin's dantian. Wow. Ji Jin sprayed out a mouthful of blood, his face full of shock. Old sect master. You, you wasted me? For ancient martial artists, the dantian is the source of everything. Boxing scripture has a saying, if you raise a breath in the dantian, 10,000 tales of gold will not be shared with others. When the Dantian was heavily damaged, the mouthful of true chi in the body dispersed, and many of the power movements could not be made. Then this ancient martial artist, too, is wasted, offending the innate master. It's light for me to waste you. Don't kneel down yet. Shout he let out a broken cry, scaring Ji Jin with a jolt. He looked at the expressionless Chen Yu like five thunderbolts. First, the innate master? I, I just, had to fight an innate master? Poof. Ji Jin fell to his knees and slumped to the ground, shivering. Sir spare your life, sir spare your life. There was an uproar all around. Everyone stared at this scene with wide eyes in disbelief. The Lu family's high-ranking person, who previously had a lofty and arrogant look. But now, to be kneeling in front of Chun Yu like a dog? Who is this young man? Haven't seen much of it. I don't know. What's going on? Crap. I've seen this guy before. Suddenly, a young man stared and yelled, catching everyone's attention. I've seen him before when I went to inspect the factory below the group. He's a worker on the assembly line of my family's factory. There was another outcry at these words. Isn't that fucking funny? A worker on a factory assembly line who brought a high-ranking member of the Ryu family to his knees? Am I crazy? Or is the world crazy? The entire Lu family. All of them were staring in death. Horrified. The person who has been suppressed by our Lu family for 20 years or so is now an innate master? Stump. Lu Chuan Shang retreated three steps in a row his face pale and bloodless. At this moment, his blood was cold and his body was weakening. Innate cleric, how could he be an innate master? He's just a wild dog that's been stepped on by my Lu family. 
How did it suddenly become a beast of supreme ferocity? It's all fake. It's all fake. Chen Yu looked at Ji Jin, and after a moment of silence, he casually slapped his hand and sent Ji Jin flying to the side. Xiao He, you're smart. Watch the show from the sidelines. I, Mr. Xia. Xiao He bowed deeply, secretly relieved. As Chen Yu spoke, the four fiend sect was considered safe for the time being. Bowing his head and backing away slowly, he realized that he was drenched in cold sweat, as if he had been fished out of the water. Lu Chuan Shang, it's time to settle the score between us. Chen Yu stared at Lu Chuan Shang and bloomed into a smile, a smile that seemed to be drenched in blood. That's 20 years, the best years of my life and my mother's have been ruined by you guys. Chen, Chun Yu, you, what do you want? I'm telling you, this is a society of law and order. You, you don't mess around. Lu Chuan Shang backed up, trembling. The innate master, killing people like cutting grass. He hadn't lived enough to want to die. Kill you? Don't worry. I'm a good law-abiding citizen. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Behind him, Yuan Chang and a few others walked out. These guys, they're all big shots in the government offices. After Chen Yu showed up, it was time for them to make their debut. Lu Chuan Shang, we have thoroughly investigated the Lu family and found evidence of your many crimes. The Ryu family, it can fall. The Ryu family is going down. When these words came out, the scene was in an uproar. In South City, if anyone else had said that, there was no way anyone would have believed it. But who are these? The big man of the court. On weekdays, they were all divine dragons, hidden in the high heavens like immortals, never easily vocalizing their voices. But once they speak, it represents unshakable will. Although the Lu family is strong in the southern city, and it is also a handful, but that didn't mean that they had the ability to call the shots with the existence behind these people. Who the hell is this teenager? How could he invite them? You? Who the hell are you? Surprise? Surprise? Lu Chuan Shang looked at Chen Yu, his voice trembling. Yuan Qing stood aside and smiled coldly. Lu Chuan Shang, open your dog's eyes and see clearly. In front of you is the first prefecture Zun of Jiangling province. What? You're the first prefect? No way. That's impossible. Ryu growled. A guy he's been stepping on for 20 years. Just a factory dog. How could he be the first house dignitary? The entire Lu family. All of them were like five thunderbolts. So scared that their jaws were about to drop. The first prefectural father. That noble being they had talked about so many times. How could it be him? How could it be him? Chen Yu took in the appearance of the Lu family's crowd. He laughed softly. With a hint of mockery. Lu Chuan Shang. Don't you want to see how I'm going to give your Lu family a death wish? Now. What do you think? Lu Chuan Shang's body trembled and almost collapsed to the ground. He clutched his tap cane tightly, which was barely standing. You, so what if you're the first prefect? My Lu family follows the rules and laws. You, you can't touch us. Lu Chuan Shang gritted his teeth and braced himself to speak. Chen Yu didn't say anything, but the several magistrate bigwigs beside him all laughed. Reu Chuan Shang, do you believe that yourself? Your son has forcibly insulted three young girls, and your grandson has done more than that. Defiling four. The huge amount of taxes the Lu family has evaded over the years have all been accounted for. Zhang Baichuan, Guo Mingxin, and Li Shunda. The cause of death of all three of these people was also found out, and it was you and your son who instructed them. Besides, you guys are. Several people made all of the Lu family's crimes public. With each line listed, the Lu family's crowd despaired one point. By the time it was all said and done, the Lu family crowd could no longer hold their breath. In full view of everyone, they all fell limp to the ground their faces pale. Only Lu Chuan Shang, despite his body shaking terribly, still stood on the spot with his hands supporting his dragon head cane. Reu Chuan Shang, these crimes are enough to keep your Ryu family in the rats for the rest of their lives. The Willow family's assets should all be frozen by now. 2. The Lu family, it's over. Bam. The golden dragon head walking stick smashed down with a loud bang. Ryu Chuan Shang couldn't hold on any longer and fell to the ground. Like a dog, he crawled all the way from the high platform to Chen Yu's feet thumping and kowtowing his head. Chun Yu, I was wrong. I was wrong. Please, spare our Lu family. I'm already 70 years old. Have mercy on me as an old man. Seeing this scene, the crowd had complex expressions. Not long ago, Lu Chuan Shang was high on the list, enjoying congratulations from all directions. But not even half an hour later, he was kneeling at the feet of a young man. Life changes, when it really is too fast. The rest of the Lu family also kowtowed towards Chen Yu hoping that Chen Yu would spare them. Chen Yu's expression was icy cold as he looked down at Lu Chuan Shang. Pity pity? And have you ever taken pity on my mother? Twenty years. Do you know what kind of life we, mother and son, have had during these twenty years? 
Did you ever think this day would come when you trampled on other people's lives at will? When the human heart gives birth to a thought, heaven and earth all know it, if good and evil are not rewarded, there will be selfishness in Chen Kuan. Lu Chuan Shang, use the rest of your life and the future of your Lu family to atone for this sin. Chen Yu thumps Liu Chuan Shang with a low kick. At this moment, he only felt like he had exhaled as much as he could in his heart. Immortal cultivators seek an open mind. He was not a good man, and could not do anything to forget his hatred, much less repay it with kindness. All he had to do was to have his revenge, and to pay back his grudges. He had a blast destroying the Lu family. Of course, Chen Yu did not intend to get Lu Chuan Shang and the others killed. Death is a relief for them. He wants to keep Ryu Chuan Shang and the others alive. Spend every day, every hour, experiencing the pain of losing everything. The scene, silent. The crowd was in shock. Wan did not expect that today they would witness the South City change its sky. This young man, with just a few light words, made the large Lu family go up in smoke. But just at this moment, a light laugh suddenly rang out. Gee whiz, I didn't think I'd see a good show today. Lu Chuan Shang, I wanted to congratulate you on your birthday, but I didn't expect you to kneel. The sudden appearance of the voice instantly attracted the crowd to look over. A young man stood with his hands in his pockets at the entrance to the banquet hall. He held a smirk, full of flirtation and disinterest. If you looked deeper, you could see the pride in his eyes. It seemed that everyone present was not in his eyes. The crowd murmured and speculated about who this young man, who had suddenly appeared, was. A flash of curiosity also flashed across Chen Yu's eyes. Only Lu Chuan Shang, upon seeing the young man, first froze, then looked ecstatic and cried and roared. Mr. Xing, save my Lu family, save my Lu family. Mr. Xing? Chen Yu was a little curious as to who this guy really was. The young man snapped his fingers. Okay, I'll save you. The next moment, he stepped on his foot. The crowd only felt a blur before their eyes and realized that the man had already arrived in front of Lu Chuan Shang, looking at Chen Yu with a smile on his face. His face was a picture of confidence and calmness. Yuan Qing's pupils shrunk. The young man's blow just now was not something an ordinary person could do. This guy, he's an ancient martial artist. Chen Yu's expression remained calm, just a little curious. My friend, my name is Xing Sen. I'm from the Silent Thunder sect and I live in the Song family in Jiangling province. Give me face and spare the Ryu family. Xing Sen still had his hands in his pockets and was all smiles. Chen Yu's eyes flashed. Song family in Jiangling province. This guy, He's with that bitch Song Yao. You on Qing's face. However, changed. Silent Thunder sect? Who is Xing Qian Lei to you? Yo, uncle has good eyesight. Xing Qian Lei is none other than my grandfather. You on Chang's fist secretly tightened. Now that's trouble. I didn't realize that this young man in front of me was the grandson of that old monster Xing Qian Lei. Chen Yu's expression remained unchanged as he just quietly looked at Xing Sen. What if I don't give you face? Xing Sen was still smiling, with the confidence that he was in control of everything. Not giving face? Then I'm sorry. I'll just have to get my grandfather to kill you. By the way, my grandfather is also an innate master O. You say, do you give me this face? Will you give me face? Although he asked this, but from Xing Sen's face, he couldn't see the slightest inquiry. Only dominance. He also has that under his belt. Other people were afraid of Chen Yu because Chen Yu was an innate master. But his grandfather was also an innate master. In terms of age. Criminal Thousand Thunder's rich experience was not comparable to a young man like Chen Yu. This face of his own, he can't help but give it. Ha 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 ha. Lu Chuan Shang climbed up from the ground and laughed crazily, as if he were insane. He looked at Chen Yu, his eyes blood red, his face carrying endless complacency. Chen Yu, so what if you are an innate master? With these words from Mr. Xing, do you dare to touch me? Ha ha, let me tell you, in this life, my Lu family is set to eat you. Pointing at Chen Yu, Lu Chuan Shang only felt incomparably smug. Innate master. Ah, a lofty existence. A single thought can determine a person's life or death. But now what? I'm right here. And there's nothing you can do about it even if you hate me to death. I love it when you look like you can't stand me. But you can't fuck me. All the people in the Lu family breathed a long sigh of relief. Smiles, once again, appeared on their faces. Ha ha, it's okay, it's okay. TSK TSK. Innate sect master O, come on, come on, you're killing our Lu family instead. He he, it seems that my Lu family's fate should not be over. After today, my Lu family will still eat and drink in style. Master Chen, it seems like you can't move my Lu family. All around, the crowd sighed darkly. I didn't expect there to be so many waves at Lu Chuan Shang's birthday party today. I thought that the Lu family would die for sure. But now it seems that it may not be the case. Although they didn't know Xing Sen's identity, by the looks of it, 
This was a pivotal big shot. Yuan Chang's pupils shrank and his mind was shaken. Criminal Qian Lei this old monster, really has broken into the innate master realm. This is not good. He quietly whispered into Chen Yu's ear. Chen Yu, I'm afraid I won't be able to move the Lu family today. This criminal Qian Lei, is a martial arts expert who has been famous for many years? He is violent and not to be messed with. Chen Yu narrowed his eyes slightly and asked, Yuan Cheng, do you trust me? Yuan Cheng froze and nodded. Naturally, I believe it. That's fine. Today, the Lu family must die. Jesus can't be saved even if he comes. I, Chen Yu, say so. With a flash of his eyes, before Yuan Cheng could react, Chen Yu took a step out and swung violently at Xing Sen. Snap, crisp slaps resounded throughout the scene. Xing Sen's entire body was jerked a dozen meters and slammed hard into the wall. Wow! Upon landing, Xing Sen sprayed out a mouthful of blood. His mouthful of teeth were all knocked out, and half of his face was completely swollen. All around, an uproar rang out. Just now, this Xing Sen dude was so high and mighty, like he was in control of the scene. And the next moment you're getting beat up so badly? The laughter of the Lu family's crowd came to a screeching halt, their expressions completely frozen as their smiles turned into shock. Yuan Chang and the others had their mouths wide open and were filled with surprise. Just, just fight? You. Xing Sen covered his face and stared at Chen Yu with wide, unbelievable eyes. This asshole. How dare he hit me? Does he know that my grandfather is criminal Chen Lei? The innate master? How dare he not give me face? Fuck. You asshole. You dare to make a move on me? Try hitting another one? Since he grew up, Xing Sen had always been high above the rest, and no one had ever dared to disrespect him. For the first time, he was instantly enraged. Snap. Chen Yu swung his hand again, and Xing Sen was once again jerked off and his other cheek swelled up. Crowd. Xing Sen. Fuck. You fight when I tell you to? Why do you listen to me so much? Chen Yu looked at Xing Sen and laughed coldly. It's the first time I've heard a request as bitchy as this one. Still want to get hit? Xing Sen was shaken and didn't dare to speak. His bottom line comes mainly from having a bully of a grandfather. He had thought that he would be able to make Chen Yu jealous, but now it seemed that he had thought wrongly. The guy in front of me doesn't care. Seeing that Xing Sen stopped talking, Chen Yu smiled coldly. Remember, the person I'm going to deal with. You're not qualified to stop. Yuan Chang, do it. Yuan Chang took a deep breath and nodded. With a wave of his hand, a group of government officials rushed in from outside the door. Take the Ryu family away. Yes, immediately, all the people of the Lu family were all shackled and escorted away in unison. Since Chen Yu had opened his mouth, all they had to do now was to give their full support. Mr. Xing, save me, save me. Lu Chuan Sheng hissed mournfully and looked at Xing Sen. Only, Xing Sen just watched quietly, not saying a word. Walking up to Qing Yu, Lu Chuan Sheng gasped madly. Chen Yu, Chen Yu, don't be complacent. The Song family, the Song family will avenge me, will avenge me. Ryu Chuan Sheng looks like a hellish ghost. Spittle linked in silken threads in the wide open mouth. Chen Yu's face was calm and he just looked at Lu Chuan Sheng. Don't worry. The Song family won't be able to run away. Debts. I'll collect them one by one. Lu Chuan Shang was jolted. All his courage dissipated under Chen Yu's glance. He suddenly felt that the Song family was finished. Just as he was about to be taken away, Chen Yu shouted again. Wait. Yuan Cheng stopped. Somewhat puzzled. Chen Yu coldly smiled as his fingers suddenly waved. Brush up. True Essence surged out and wasted all the limbs of Lu Chuan Shang and the rest of the Lu clan. Lu Ao was even more focused and his lifeblood was chopped off. For a while, there was a series of miserable screams. Take it away. Chen Yu spoke indifferently. Deadly sins are forgiven, but living sins are not. Chen Yu was not a kind man or woman, and the abolition of their limbs was considered to be some interest for these 20 years of suffering. Ah, did you guys see that? He's making a move on us. There's no law. Lu Chuan Sheng hissed mournfully. Yuan Chang looked away and whistled. He didn't touch you guys, so how did he do it to you? It's obviously your Lu family's bad genes and your limbs are having an acute freeze attack. Ryu Chuan Shang was confused. The crowd looked odd and quietly watched Yuan Cheng spouting nonsense. Soon, all of the Lu family members were taken away. The noisy hall, quieted down. The crowd looked at each other with odd expressions. Nima, I came over to congratulate you on your birthday, but you lost the main character? Go. Chen Yu turned around and prepared to leave. Wait. Xing Sen called out to Chen Yu. Something? Your name is Chen Yu? Today's matter will not be forgotten just like that. Xing Sen gritted his teeth, his gaze resentful. My grandfather will be back from abroad soon, and he'll come for you. Chen Yu raised his eyebrows and smiled gently. I'll wait. If he dares to come, I'll even beat him up. Marshal Dao Patriarch. It raised a flash of interest in him. 
although others called him an innate master. Chen Yu himself knew very well that this was nothing more than a misunderstanding on the part of others. He was not an ancient martial artist, but an immortal cultivator. It was only because he had stepped into the foundation establishment realm that he was mistaken for an innate master, and how the so-called innate masters among the martial arts experts really were. He was eager to see. Xing Sen stared at Chen Yu's departing back. His fists clenched. Chen Yu, just wait. When my grandfather returns, I want you to kneel in front of me and lick the soles of my shoes. A magnificent feast that dispersed. The Lu family, which was the main protagonist, crumbled apart. The news felt like it had grown wings, quickly spreading throughout the entire South City hierarchy overnight. Chun Yu became a godlike name in the southern city. A lively scene in a hotel box. A group of people were eating, and Yang Ye's family was there. It had been hard for them to adjust their mood after the last incident with Chun Yu. The meal was also organized by a colleague. After a few glasses of wine, a man spoke mysteriously. Have you guys heard? The Lu family in South City was picked off by a big shot. A remark that immediately caught the attention of the crowd. Mom, what's the Willow family? Yang Qingqing was a bit curious. Wu Mingjin let out a long sigh and said, The Lu family, in the southern city, is a godlike family. Yang Yi nodded. Qingqing, you're still young. It's normal for you not to know. The Willow family is usually more low-key. So it's not too revealing. But, if we talk about it, the Lu family can be considered the number one family in South City. The Lu family has been hovering in the South City for more than 20 years, and is a well-deserved giant. Whether it's the temple or the far reaches of the jungle, the Lu family has meddled. Even if the Lu family says a word, this southern city will tremble three times. The old head of the Lu family, Lu Chuan Shang, is even a generation of lords. A touch of awe appeared on Yang Ye's face. He is also in the government office though, a leader in size, but compared to a behemoth like the Lu family. It was a small shrimp. Hiss. Yang Qingqing sucked in a mouthful of cold air, her face full of incredulity. The first family of the southern city. This name, is not so easy to bear. How could such a family fall? Who did it? Yang Yi let out a long sigh and shook his head, a deep reverence in his eyes. I also can't imagine that in this southern city, there are still people who can move the Lu family? At this time, the person who had spoken earlier stabbed Yang Yi in the arm with a smirk on his face. Hey, you don't know. Yang. That big man is a young man. Just yesterday, Lu Chuan Shang held a birthday banquet for his 70th birthday at Mingyue House. And on the spot of the birthday banquet, Lu Chuan Shang knelt in front of that great man on the spot. Mingyue House, young man? Yang Yi's three looked at each other, somewhat stunned. A figure that surfaced in the minds of all three at the same time. Yesterday, they had watched Chen Yu walk into Mingyue building with their own eyes. It's hard not to. Should. I don't think so. Wu Mingjin forced a smile. Yang Yi frowned and looked at the person beside him who had opened his mouth. Chow, don't sell yourself short. Who the hell is that young man? The others also looked curious and kept urging. Chow Chow hemmed and hawed and said triumphantly. Tell you what, I also heard it from a big shot who was there at the time. That young man, his name is Chen Yu. Boom. Yang Ye's trio was struck by lightning and were completely dumbfounded. Chen Yu, is it really him? He, uh, picked off the Ryu family? This, how is this possible? Although he knew that Chun Yu was not ordinary, it was the Lu family. Chun Yu, is he already this strong? Can you step on the Ryu family? Xiao Chao described the scene yesterday to the others in vivid colors. Delivery of clocks, waste of limbs, the entire Ryu family was taken away. These, to the three Yang Yi, were like thunder. The more they listened, the more they regretted it, and they couldn't wait to slap themselves hard a few times. What kind of thighs are you missing out on? A group of young people were meeting and chatting in a tea house. Chen Yu's high school classmate, Xia Keiru, was also there. These people are also father to son. Each other's fathers are friends. They are doing business. In the system, listed company executives and so on. In terms of South City, it's considered upper middle class. There were both men and women among the young people. And several of the men looked at Xia Keiru with a hint of burning in their gazes. By the way, did you guys know? Something big happened in South City yesterday. A boy looked at Xia Keiru and deliberately opened his mouth to draw the crowd's attention. My dad was having dinner with some uncles when he heard that the Ryu family had been wiped out. Hey, the Lu family? It can't be that South City's number one family, right? I'll go. Really? How could an existence like the Lu family be exterminated? None of them were of low class, and they had grown up hearing about the Lu family. In their impression, the Lu family was like an ancient tree that stood steadily in the southern city. Untouchable. Now the ancient tree has fallen? Bullshit. Natsuka blinked with curiosity. The man came even more energized at the sight of Natsuka. Hey, don't you guys believe it? It's true. Just yesterday, 
On Lu Chuan Shang's 70th birthday, a young big shot named Chen Yu made a scene. A crowd of young people listened with fervor and amazement. Only Xia Keiru, dumbfounded, stood on the spot. Chen Yu, my table mate is a young bigot, and destroyed the Lu family? This, she knew that Chen Yu was powerful. But how could she not expect that it would be so powerful to such an outrageous extent? That's the Ryu family, the first family of South City. You're just going to say it's over? She thought about a lot of things in this moment. How he himself could not see Chen Yu at that time. Chen Yu saved her by talking and laughing. He himself wanted to pursue Chen Yu backwards, but was rejected by Chen Yu with a single word. For a moment, she suddenly felt bad inside. Himself, once clearly had a chance to have him, but it was missed forever. Sorry, I'm a little sick. I'll go first. Natsuka didn't want to hear it. The more she listened, the harder it was for her. Making an excuse, Natsuka left the party in a bit of a mess. Villa 1. Chen Yu was resting in the living room when the doorbell rang. When the door opened, a middle-aged man with white hair was holding a four-year-old girl. The little girl was adorable, with eyes like black jewels. When he saw Chen Yu, he pulled the little girl and plopped down on the ground. Un Kong, please accept a bow from Sun Chong, Xiao Man, Kowtow to Un Kong. Chen Yu froze, unsure. After hearing the explanation, he figured out why. Sun Chong was a businessman and did a lot of business in the southern city. But just three years ago, Lu Ao took a fancy to his daughter-in-law. After the spoiling, the woman had a nervous breakdown and jumped into the river to kill herself. His son also died a martyr's death, leaving only a daughter. Sun Chong had a white head all night, and he was thinking about justice all the time. But, the Lu family is too powerful. Justice was not sought, and the family was made to suffer. Later, he learned from a friend that the Lu family had been destroyed, and by all means he found Chen Yu's address and came to his door to thank him. My son and daughter-in-law, they can rest in peace ah, I will go down to see them later. I can give them an explanation. Woohoo. Sun Chong cried a lot. Xiao Man knelt on the ground and wiped Sun Chang's tears with her small hands. Grandpa be good oh don't cry. Mommy and daddy live in the stars and will be back soon. Xiao Man even dreamed about mom and dad yesterday. And they said they'd be back in a little while to take Xiao Man to the amusement park. Four year old Xiao Man. Milky voice to comfort Sun Chong. She doesn't understand yet. The meaning of life and death. After the two left. Chen Yu looked at their backs and sighed in his heart. Human beings. How many sorrows and joys? Unfortunately, I can't change the earth. There is always a limit to manpower, and the only thing we can do is to strengthen ourselves. It is only when you become strong that you can have justice and fairness. It's only then that you can guard those around you and be truly uninhibited. Chen Yu gently squeezed his fists and secretly said in his heart. Another day later, Wu Shaolan came back from traveling. She was excited and apprehensive. As soon as he saw Chen Yu, he hastily pulled Chen Yu's hand. Little feather. Quick. Let's hurry up and get ready to leave the South City while the Lu family still doesn't know. Wu Shaolan looked flustered and a little nervous. Over the past 20 years, she had been suppressed by the Lu family and had developed a psychological shadow. Chun Yu looked at Wu Shaolan with some heartache, wrapping his arm around her shoulders. Chun Yu grinned. Mom, don't worry, the Ryu family is gone. No, Wu Shaolan froze, blinking with a stunned expression. They are, like, really gone? Yeah, you watch the news. Chen Yu pulled out his cell phone and flipped through the South City News. Among them, the front page headline was the news of the destruction of the Lu family. All the evil deeds of the Lu group over the years have also been turned over. Wu Shaolan stared intently at the screen, watching the news content word by word. Mom, now do you believe it? They're all gone. Chen Yu was all smiles. Wu Shaolan covered her mouth as tears barred her eyes. The suppressed whimpers mimicked her youth. Oh 20 years of youth. These are the 20 years of despair. The betrayal of a favorite. Years of suppression. How many midnights had she wanted to just die? It was only every time she saw Chen Yu that she stiffened up again. A moment later, she suddenly flung herself into Chen Yu's arms and bawled uncontrollably. It's gone. It's good that it's gone. Mommy can take you on trips now. And mommy can get a better job. Woo woo. Chen Yu gently wrapped his arms around Wu Shaolan and patted her back. It's okay. Mom. It's okay. This scene was like Wu Shaolan putting her arms around him when he was a child. It was a long time before Wu Shaolan stopped crying. Feather, how exactly did the Willow family disappear? Chen Yu grinned and pointed at himself. I, your son, am an immortal. The moment I reveal my kingly aura, the Lu family kneels on the ground law. Wu Shaolan snorted and wiped the tears from the corners of her eyes. You child, net nonsense. Work hard and save some money, and mom will find you a daughter-in-law later. If you have a big fat boy, mom will bring him to you. The corner of Chen Yu's mouth twitched. Mom's rhythm is really fast once she gets up to speed. By the way mom, I got a good job as a designer in Jinchuan City, 
the capital of the neighboring province of Jiang. The company also arranged to take classes at the university. I'm going to work over there in a couple days. Now that the Lu family had been destroyed, there was no longer much point in staying in South City. Next, it was time to travel to Jinchuan City and deal with the Song family. And that she, too, is in Jinchuan City, and the father that I've never met. It's been more than 20 years, so it's finally time to meet him. Ha! Huh? Shen Yu doesn't intend to tell Wu Shaolan the truth. Everything. Really? That's great. Wu Shaolan's face was delighted. What she felt most guilty about was dragging Chen Yu down. If not for her, Chen Yu would have been overflowing with youth in college. Now that Chen Yu had a chance for a better life, how could she stop it? Well, well, well. Let's go down to the restaurant today and celebrate for you. Wu Shaolan was red faced and happy. On this day, Wu Shaolan unprecedentedly drank a lot of wine. This was the happiest Chen Yu had seen his mother in 20 years. After returning home that day and settling Wu Shaolan down, Yuan Chang made a special effort to come. His face was grave, and there was a touch of sadness on his brow. What's wrong with you? Chen Yu was a bit curious. Yuan Chang let out a long sigh and said, Chen Yu, you've gotten into big trouble this time. Is that Xing Qian Lei? Not bad, it's exactly him. Do you know what kind of character he really is? Chen Yu shook his head. He had no understanding of these people. Yuan Qing explained. Xing Qian Lei was an expert who became famous 30 years ago. At that time, he was already a peak Hotian expert, and he was even in the same realm with a pair of two, killing one person and seriously injuring another. Later, he went into hiding in order to break through to the innate. By all rights, he should have died at the end of his life more than 10 years ago. The fact that he's still alive today means that it's been at least a dozen years since he broke through to the innate. Although Chen Yu was also an innate master, he was young after all. So how could he fight against an old powerhouse like Xing Qian Lei? Chen Yu raised an eyebrow, but did not worry too much. Instead, he was somewhat eager to try. He really wanted to see his cultivation of foundation realm and this kind of ancient martial arts powerhouse to fight. In the end, who is better? I know. If it's okay you can go back. I'm going to bed. This, Yuan Chang was speechless and left Chen Yu's house after a long sigh. He knew it, and this was a wasted visit. Under the starry sky, Yuan Chang looked back and secretly clenched his fists. No matter what, I can't let you die like that. It seems that we can only report upwards and get those old monsters in the Inhuman Bureau up there to come out and be peacemakers. Yuan Chang hurriedly left with a heavy heart. The bleak land of the far north, a desert of yellow sand. The wind and sand rolled in, and there was no one in sight for thousands of miles. On the ground, scattered dead bones of animals could occasionally be seen. There were centipedes and other venomous insects that climbed back and forth in the crevices of the dead bones. Here, it's a no-life zone, and just as bad as this is, it's not all quiet. Just a short distance away, bursts of roaring sounds continued to ring out. Looking around, that area was clearly a sea of thunder. Within a radius of one kilometer, dawning thunder danced wildly. Terrifying bursts of sound shook the four fields. In the sea of thunder, a silhouette was actually faintly visible. He was naked and sitting cross-legged on a rock. The gnarled muscles were like cast steel, full of a strong sense of power. If one looked closely one could realize that the thunder all around him was bursting out from the hundred clubs point at the top of his head, and subsequently returning again from every pore on his body. Everything, forming a perfect closed loop, not far from the sea of thunder. There was a middle-aged man who was quietly looking at the rioting sea of thunder with a touch of awe in his eyes. Half an hour later, the sea of thunder dissipated and disappeared. Only then did he see the figure. Surprisingly, it was an old man. He slowly opened his eyes. Two terrifying thunderons burst from his eyes and arc of electricity crossed his body from time to time. Congratulations master, your martial arts cultivation has improved again. Master teachers for extinction thunder decision is even stronger. The middle-aged man arrived from a distance and opened his mouth with a smile. The old man let out a long breath and a smile curled up at the corner of his mouth. After spending many years, this for extinction thunder decision has finally taken another step forward. You said earlier that Xing Sin was beaten up? The old man was none other than criminal Qian Lei. The middle-aged man was his disciple, named Zhang Amo. Yes, Xing Sin has been at Song's house and went to have some fun because Lu Chuan Shang had his 70th birthday. It just so happened that we came across Chen Yu looking for trouble from the Lu family. Then such events occurred. Xing Qian Lei smiled coldly and said, Teenage innate sect master. Interesting. He he, the old man has been lonely for more than 10 years. I didn't expect the Dragon Kingdom to produce such a figure. Looking towards the desert of barren sands, Criminal Thousand Thunder looked into the distance with a touch of melancholy. It's a pity that a good son or daughter is going to die at the hands of the old man. Zhang Yimou, give the battle cry. Yes, Zhang Yimou knelt down on one knee, a flash of excitement on his face. 
it's been so many years since I followed my master. Ah, and ever since my master broke through to the innate sect master, he hasn't made a move. Over the years, Zhong Yimou had seen Xing Qian lay many times at night with his hands behind his back, standing under the roiling stars, his eyes filled with loneliness. Today, for the first time in his life, he felt excitement in the body of criminal Chen Lei. Chen Yu, I hope you can hold out a little longer and let Master Yu play a little longer. After two days, Chen Yu was resting at home when he suddenly received a call from Yuan Chang. Chen Yu, come to the Inhuman Bureau, there's something big. Yuan Chang's tone was unusually grave, which surprised Chen Yu. With doubts, he quickly arrived at the South City Inhuman Bureau. As soon as he entered the room, Chen Yu froze. In the conference room, a number of people came. Aside from Yuan Cheng and a few people from the Southern City Inhuman Bureau, Sun Qian Dao, as the Inhuman Director of Jiangling Province, had also arrived here. They gathered around the conference table, their faces unmistakable in your midst. On the black conference table was a white epistle. There are only two simple words on it. War book. It is? Chen Yu had a curious look on his face. Yuan Chang let out a long sigh and said, Mr. Chen, this is sent by Inter Chiliai. He, who wants to fight you to the death. Oh, Chen Yu's gaze flickered, feeling something special. Delivering something like a letter of war gave him a trance-like feeling of entering the world of martial arts. That's interesting. Smiling, Chen Yu stepped forward, ready to pick up the war book. Sun Xiandao was quick on his feet and grabbed Chen Yu's wrist with a serious look on his face. Chen Yu, I have to remind you that once you accept this war letter, you won't be able to refuse it. Why? What else is there to say about it? That's natural. Sun Xiandao read the war letter and took a deep breath. The war book is open. See you in life and death. That's always been the rule in the inhuman world. You can completely not accept this letter of war right now, so that even if it's criminal thousand thunder, it won't be good enough to make another move against you. The inhuman realm had a rule that if the opponent placed a battle order and returned it the same way, it meant that they had admitted defeat. But at the same time, it would be bad for the other side to take another shot. But once you take up the battle, it's a done deal, and there's no room for maneuver. Sun Xiandao was very reluctant for Chen Yu to take up the battle. After all, the other party was Criminal Thousand Thunder. That old monster. But he has stepped into the innate master realm for more than 10 years. Chen Yu was only in his 20s. How many years could it be before he stepped into the innate master realm? It's impossible to work out in your mother's womb. Moreover, Criminal Thousand Thunder was ferociously famous back then, and had experienced countless battles of all sizes, and was extremely experienced in combat. Where's Chen Yu? The experience is so much worse than that of the criminal Thousand Thunder. Once the two are paired up, Chen Yu will die nine deaths without a chance of survival. Chen Yu, you're still young. There's no shame even if you admit defeat. Chen Yu just laughed, and with a flick of his wrist, he shocked Sun Xiandao away. He picked up the battle cry and tore open the envelope. Taking out one of the letters, the others came together. On the letter, the pen goes out. On the eighth day of the fifth month, on the Jinchuan River, a battle to the death. Twelve words, like twelve thunderbolts, with a wild momentum. A few of Kobayashi's men came forward, and just by looking at them, they felt a stabbing pain in their eyes. A hammer seemed to have been smothered hard on the heart, and the pain made one grimace. What a strong martial intent. Sun Shen Dao sucked in a mouthful of cold air and looked shocked. From this epistle, he seemed to see an untamed and powerful man, holding thunder and standing proudly between heaven and earth. In the face of this epistle, he unexpectedly rose with a strong fear an innate patriarch's understanding of martial arts had reached an unimaginable realm. Not only was he able to release his true chi outwardly, but he was also able to leave his martial intent on the item for others to observe. On this battle letter, Criminal Chan Lei attached his own martial intent, which was also a wild gesture. The people present were all horrified. A simple letter has the ability to be so mysterious. This Criminal Chan Lei, just how strong is he? Chen Yu looked at it, but only smiled gently. Is this martial intent? Aha! Uh -huh. It's a bit weak when you should say no. It's not on the same level as the will of an immortal cultivator at all. AI, an innate patriarch is going to die in my hands. Shen Yu's five fingers exerted force, and the letter suddenly flared up. As they burned, the words seemed to come to life, surprisingly bursting out with an arc of electricity. It was only under Chen Yu's gaze that it quickly dissipated. Shen Yu, why are you doing this? Sun Xian Dao let out a long sigh and shook his head repeatedly. Shen Yu, however, just grinned. Elder son, don't worry, he can't win against me. If there's nothing else, I'll be on my way. Yuan Chang, remember what I asked you to do. Chen Yu snorted and left the Inhuman Bureau. There was only one thing he asked Yuan Ching to do. Help him get a student status in the Jiangling University of Science and Technology in Jinchuan City. 
This kind of thing is not that difficult for the Inhuman Bureau. Three years ago, he himself ended up dropping out of school and not taking the entrance exam because he had to earn money for his illness. Now even though he has embarked on the path of cultivation, but I still want to feel the atmosphere of the university. There is another extremely important reason. Xiao Yunyue. She's at the Jianling University of Science and Technology. He was going to see the woman who had haunted him. After Chen Yu left, the Inhuman Bureau was quiet. The atmosphere was depressing. Secretary Sun, isn't there any way to stop this duel? Yuan Chang was still unwilling and opened his mouth to inquire. Sun Chandao shook his head. After accepting the letter of war, even those old monsters in the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau, I'm afraid they won't be able to stop it. But it's clearly a fight with a chance of death. Are we watching Chen Yu die? Yuan Chang was anxious and couldn't help but speak. Sun Xiandao let out a long sigh and said, As things stand, there is no better way. For today's solution, the only way is to try to raise Chen Yu's strength as much as possible in these 10 days. How do you raise it? Sun Xiandao's eyes burned as he said, I'm going to ask that old monster to step in and instruct Chen Yu. The crowd dispersed, all with a somewhat heavy heart. The matter of Chen Yu receiving a letter of war quickly spread throughout the entire inhuman world of Jiangling province. All the major ancient martial arts families and hidden sects had received the news. For a time, the inhuman world of Jianling province was completely abuzz. A duel between two innate masters. This kind of event was rare in a hundred years. And everyone was looking forward to ten days later. And Chen Yu had already quietly boarded the high-speed train and set off for Jinchuan City. Jinchuan City. A luxurious manor house. Seven or eight servants were cleaning and trimming the flowers. A middle-aged man ran all the way through the doorway and into the middle house. His face was anxious and his head was covered in sweat. In the living room, an old man was looking at the newspaper and frowned when he saw the man looking like this. Old Zhang, as the butler of my Song family, how can you be so flustered? What's the proper behavior? Old Zhang gasped and said, Master, something has happened. Something big has happened. South City, that little bastard from South City, he transformed into a dragon. The little bastard from South City? Who's that? The old man froze, a little confused. It's that son of Wu Shaolan. Master, you don't know. That kid is something now. He's an innate master. The Lu family was all ruined by him. The butler danced around and told the story of what had happened in the South City. Surprisingly, it's him, an innate sect master? How is this possible? Three questions in a row exposed the old man's shocked heart. The past events of more than 20 years ago came back to the forefront of my mind. In the next moment, he narrowed his eyes and looked gloomy. Humph. So what if you've transformed into a dragon? How dare you agree to Xing Qian Lei's appointment? It's true that people from small places don't know north and south once they have power. Good thing too. There's no need for me, the Song family, to make a move. By the way, when will Song Yao return home? The old man looked at the butler and opened his mouth to inquire. The housekeeper said, Miss and Chen Taiyi are estimated to return in more than three months. The old man couldn't help but let out a soft sigh and shook his head. That would be a shame. They won't get to see Chen Yu die. Forget it, there's no need to care about him. Let's go see this massacre in 10 days. After saying that, the old man picked up the newspaper and read it again. South City. Villa 1. Mr. Chen is going to school in Jinchuan City? Lu Tianhao's son. Lu Mo stared with astonishment. He came today. Sent by Lu Tianhao to find Chen Yu for some matters. I ended up hearing the news just as I walked in the door. Who is Chen Yu? South City bigwigs. Innate masters. Land immortals. A character like that. Going to college? Why the hell does that sound so magical? Well, it's kind of fulfilling a dream of mine. Chun Yu smiled and did not explain much. Did you come to see me about something? Lumo's body shook and nodded. Grinning, he delivered a document. Mr. Chen, this is a shareholding letter. It contains half of Tian Chang Group's equity, and my father asked me to come here to give it to you. As long as you sign, from now on, half of the Tian Chang Group will be yours. For me? Chen Yu was astonished. Tian Chang Group. The heart and soul of Lu Tianhao, had extremely large assets, half of the assets, that's also unimaginably huge. Lu Tianhao just gave it away in a big way. Why? Chen Yu looked at Lu Mo and opened his mouth to inquire. Lu Mo laughed and said, Sir, my father said that this is both a thank you and an investment. First, you brought down the Lu family, and now all of the Lu family's properties are in our Lu family's pockets. A great harvest. It's only natural to show something. Secondly, by giving you these things, I also hope that you will take care of us more in the future. My father said that he believes that Mr. Chen's future is by no means limited to Jianling province, and that he hopes to hold on to Mr. Chen's thigh. Originally he was going to come himself, but he just ran into some emergency and had no choice but to let me come. Lu Mo was open and honest, not hiding anything. 
These are also Lu Tianhao's requirements. These days of contact, Lu Tianhao had already seen it. Chun Yu was extraordinary, a dragon of the subterranean abyss. As long as he was able to become a man from the dragon. In the future, the Lu family would not only be the number one family in the South City, but Jiangling province, and even the entire dragon kingdom, would have a place for him. Lu Tianhao, don't think of playing any tricks in front of such characters. The best thing to do is to be honest. Chen Yu's gaze flickered for a moment before he gently smiled. Your father is smart. You go back and tell him that he won't regret his choice for today. Chen Yu didn't refuse and took the document, signing his name. I have set foot on the path of immortal cultivation, but after all, I am still in this red dust. Money is also needed for daily food, clothing and shelter. By getting 50% of the shares of the Tianqing group, the money worries were gone. Lu Amo was filled with joy at the sight. He and Chen Yu are acquainted with each other. Initially or in the live broadcast room, saw Chen Yu fortune telling. However, he did not expect that in a short period of time, Chen Yu had already come this far. He believed that the Lu family's choice would never be wrong. Touching his pocket, Lu Amo took out another bank card and handed it to Chen Yu. The bank card is black in color with an intricate pattern. It looks very different from a regular bank card. Mr. Chen, there's 200 million in cash in this card. You're going to Jinchuan City soon. This is considered the Lu family's way of practicing for you. Thanks. Chen Yu took it and was not polite. After thinking about it, Chen Yu pulled out a brown round elixir from his pocket. Take this back to your dad. Chen Yu threw his hand and threw the Dan pill to Lu Amo. The pills were small, only pea-sized, and were the pills that Chen Yu had pinched out last time when he was in the kitchen refining pills by grouping together the residue from the alchemy. It is? Lu Amo had some doubts in his eyes. This is a pill. It was left over from the last time I refined it with a thousand-year-old blood ginseng. Potion. Is this thing any good? Lu Amo had an odd expression on his face and didn't really care in his heart. Over the years, Lu Tianhao has also paid a lot of attention to maintenance, and has taken a lot of daily supplements. I'm afraid this thing doesn't mean much to Lu Tianhao. This elixir can cure all diseases and prolong life. Although this elixir's efficacy is a bit weaker, helping your father extend his life by two years is not a problem. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. It was no longer of any use to him. Wu Shalan had previously taken the recovery pill, and this thing wasn't very effective. On the contrary, it is Lu Tianhao. These years of business, socializing a lot, and also do not exercise much, the body is not good. The last time he bought blood ginseng, Lu Tianhao's contribution was not small. This time, this generous gift was sent again, and Chen Yu was somewhat embarrassed not to show it. Mi Chao, extend your life by two years? Lu Mo's eyes widened violently with a look of incredulity. Chen Yu smiled and nodded. After a few more moments of small talk, Lu Mo left. That afternoon, Lu Mo came to Tianchang Group and entered Lu Tianhao's office. Lu Tianhao put down the book and opened his mouth with a smile. Well, did everything get delivered? It's delivered. And Mr. Chen took it all. And let me tell dad that you won't regret your choice. Lu Tianhao smiled, looking slightly dazed. Just a short while ago, Chen Yu had also said this to him. Then not long after that, the Lu family fell. And he, the Lu family, became the number one family in South City. Now that Chen Yu was saying such words again, it made Lu Tianhao raise a lot of expectations. By the way dad, Mr. Chen asked me to bring you something. Look. Lu Mo pulled out the Dan pill and placed it on the table. This is the elixir that Mr. Chen gave you, saying that it can cure all diseases and extend your life by two years. At those words, Lu Tianhao froze, dumbfounded. This Mr. Chen, he has some humor. How can there be a single elixir that can cure all diseases? My family doctor is coming to check me out later and I'm afraid I'm going to laugh when I hear that. Lu Tianhao obviously didn't believe much of what Chen Yu said about the efficacy. Lu Mo smiled and said, Anyway, what Mr. Gave is definitely not bad. So just eat it. Dad. Lu Tianhao thought about it and nodded. That's fine. Eat it as a jelly bean. Then, thinking so, Lu Tianhao picked up the elixir. Gulp. Lu Tianhao swallowed the elixir with a touch of disinterest on his face. But the next moment, his face changed. When the elixir entered his mouth, it immediately turned into a hot stream that cut through his throat and went straight into his abdomen. A fire that seemed to ignite in his stomach. Rolling waves of heat starting from the belly and spreading out towards the limbs. Crackle. Explosions like fried beans resounded continuously in Lu Tianhao's body. The pores of his body, too, opened up in an instant, as if he had learned to breathe, greedily exhaling. An extremely soothing feeling caused Lu Tianhao to moan, his scalp tingling. He slumped into his boss's chair, tilting his head back and closing his eyes, his body trembling softly. Dad, what's wrong with you? Don't you scare me. 
Luomo was shocked and hurriedly walked over to Lu Tianhao and shook his shoulders. After ten seconds or so, Lu Tianhao slowly opened his eyes. Ten Glen. He jerked to his feet and looked down at his hands in disbelief. This, this, dad, how are you feeling? Lu Mo inquired curiously. It's incredible. I, I feel as if my whole being has been given a new lease of life. Lu Tianhao could hardly believe it. Although Chen Yu was powerful, after all, he was only strong in battle. The so-called elixir was nonsense in his opinion. At best, it's similar to healthcare pretty much. But now, he felt wrong. How can those health supplements you take have such miraculous effects? Perhaps, Chen Yu's words about extending his life by two years were not false. Is there really such a magical thing in this world? Knock knock. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. A middle-aged man with gold-rimmed glasses walked in carrying a suitcase. Lu Dong, today is the day of your regular physical examination. I came to give you a physical examination. The man's name is Xiao, and he is Lu Tianhao's personal physician. Every once in a while, Dr. Zhang would come to Lu Tianhao's home to give him a physical examination. Okay, Dr. Xia you help me check it out. Lu Tianhao's mind moved. Chen Yu said that this elixir could cure all diseases, and now it was the right time to let the doctor take a look at what was going on with his body. Dr. Zhang nodded and opened the case, taking out some instruments. Stethoscope, pulse meter. Lu Dong, last time I checked, your health condition is very bad. Too much overdraft and many chronic diseases. This physical, if it's still like this, then you must have a tune-up. Dr. Zhang said as he began to give Lu Tianhao a physical examination, taking out his stethoscope. Dr. Zhang listened to Lu Tianhao's heartbeat. A minute later, Dr. Zhang looked a bit stunned. Ha, huh, this, frowning, Dr. Zhang measured Lu Tianhao's blood pressure again, his frown deepening. Next, Dr. Zhang used all sorts of tactics, even the pulse of Chinese medicine, a set of processes down, Dr. Zhang stared blankly, stood frozen in place, eyes straight, had been completely stupid. Dr. Zhang, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with my dad? Lumo's heart tightened and he hurriedly inquired. Dr. Zhang, what's going on? There's no harm in you being straightforward. Lu Tianhao's heart sank as he spoke gruffly. Dr. Zhang was shaken and snapped his head up to stare at Lu Tianhao, his eyes beaming. Lu Dong, what exactly did you do? In a short period of time, how could you have conditioned your body so well? So many chronic illnesses, completely gone, physically strong, like a young 20-year-old. Man, unbelievable. This is a miracle in the history of medicine. The more he said, the more excited Dr. Zhang became. Lu Tianhao and Lu Mo looked at each other with stunned faces. Did what? But it was just eating the elixir given by Qin Yu. That elixir, it was so effective? Dr. Zhang, do you think there's any medicine that can make my body regulate like this? Never, Dr. Zhang was decisive. Drugs can at most only cure diseases, but this, Mr. Lu, is a renewal of vitality. If there really is such a drug that can do this, then this drug can definitely win the Nobel Prize. The entire history of human medicine will take a giant step forward. This is big enough to go down in history. Man, that's amazing. That's incredible. Dr. Zhang was spitting and looking a bit maniacal. It's not unusual for that to be the case. The drugs of modern medicine are just cures, immortal cultivation pills, on the other hand, target the fundamentals of a person's life. The two, completely incomparable. I know, after sending Dr. Zhang away, the office was quiet. The two of them, Lu Tianhao and Lu Mo, sat in their seats, motionless and with complex expressions. Dad, what do you think? What exactly is Mr. Chen? Lu Mo broke the silence and couldn't help but inquire. I find that I can't see through Mr. Chen more and more. Lu Tianhao had a bitter smile on his face. Not only you, even I can't see through it. If I had to say, Mr. Chen, he is, perhaps, an immortal. Lu Mo's body shook. Cien, in this world, is there really such an existence? Outside the huge floor-to-ceiling windows is the bustling city. Lu Tianhao quietly looked at the flowery world outside and nodded firmly. Maybe not before, but now, that's Mr. Chen. He, is this red dusty mortal? And we, are the followers of this red dusty mortal, Xiao Mo. Remember, from now on, we, no matter what, we will follow Mr. Chen. Lu Mo shuddered and nodded heavily. Villa 1. Chen Yu sat cross-legged on the bed, his five hearts facing the sky and his eyes tightly closed. In the void, a strand of heavenly energy was continuously integrated into his body. After a long time, he slowly opened his eyes and let out a long breath. At this rate, in a short while, I should be able to build my foundation to great completion. 
when the time comes, many means will be available. At that thought, Chen Yu was a bit excited. Jingle bells. It was at that moment that his cell phone rang. Hey, Yuan Cheng, what's up? To the Inhuman Bureau? What happened? Oh, really? Okay, I'll be right there. Hanging up the phone, Chen Yu's eyes were shining brightly. I really didn't expect that even this kind of character was invited. Yuan Chang mentioned on the phone that a heavyweight from the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau had arrived in South City. This figure was named Xin Yuan Chang, an innate master. After a little bit of packing, Chen Yu called a car and arrived at the South City Inhuman Bureau shortly after. The crowd was already waiting for Chen Yu in the courtyard. In addition to Yuan Chang, Xiao Lin, and the others, there were also Sun Xiandao, Mu Bai, and a kind of jangling province in Human Bureau characters, and in the middle of the crowd, there was an old man dressed in plain clothes. He was tall, with a goatee, and his eyes were glittering. Just standing there with his hands behind his back gave people an extremely oppressive feeling. It was as if, he was a mountain that one could only look up to. Seeing Chen Yu, Sun Xiandao rushed forward and pulled Chen Yu to the old man, Shan Yu, by way of introduction. This is Mr. Shen Yuan Chang Shen, the innate master of our Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. I have specially invited him to instruct you. Instruct me? Chen Yu froze. Chen Yu's face was oddly surprised. Before he came, he had only heard that an innate master from the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau had come. Rather, he didn't expect that this innate patriarch would come here in order to instruct him. Chen Yu, Mr. Shen is the one I went to great lengths to invite. You must cherish this opportunity. Sun Chandao opened his mouth. The Dragon Kingdom Inhuman Bureau, by rank, was the superior unit of the Inhuman Bureau of Jianling Province. Among them, there were naturally overwhelmingly strong people. Otherwise it wouldn't be able to deter the world's foreigners. It's just that this kind of strong person is usually in latent cultivation, hoping to become more refined in their martial arts, so they rarely show themselves. Xin Yuanchang has also not been in the public eye for more than a decade. In the past, Sun Xiandao had helped Xin Yuanchang and made the other party owe a favor. It was also because of this layer of relationship that Sun Xiandao was able to invite Xin Yuanchang. In order to give Chen Yu some strength boost in these 10 days, Xin Yuanchang smiled and surveyed Chen Yu with an approving expression and nodded. To reach the innate realm at such an age is indeed astounding. Junior friend Shen Yu, you don't have to be too formal. After all, you've stepped into the innate for a short time yet. So if you have any doubts about cultivation, you can ask me. Yuan Chang and the others had faces of adoration. The guidance of an innate master was a great blessing. Before Chen Yu had come, they had asked Xin Yuancheng for a lot of advice. It had to be said that Xin Yuancheng was worthy of being a great master. Just a few casual words would allow them to benefit greatly and take a big step forward in their martial arts cultivation. Moreover, this was only the result of Xin Yuancheng's casual instruction. When dealing with Chen Yu, Xin Yuancheng would naturally throw his weight around. So I wonder what it would be like then. Chief, do you think that when Mr. Chen instructs Mr. Chen later, we can learn something from it? Xiao Lin came over to Yuan Cheng's side and inquired with some excitement. Yuan Cheng blankly eyed Xiao Lin. What are you thinking? The two of them are innate masters. Land immortals. It's good enough that we can understand the conversations between such characters. Still want to comprehend something? It's simply a fool's errand. At that, Kobayashi also slightly lost it. However, in a whirlwind, he returned to his normal self and looked at Chen Yu. But this is really good luck for Mr. Chen, an innate master's guidance. That's a big gain. Yuan Chang nodded, looking emotional. Yes, Chen Yu was already a supreme demon, and now that he just entered the innate realm not long ago, he was able to receive guidance from an old innate master. This kind of chance is extremely rare, and I wonder how much he will be able to comprehend from this instruction? Yuan Cheng frowned, a little worried. Being young is Chen Yu's biggest shortcoming. He was really afraid that Xin Yuan Chang had spoken too profoundly and Chen Yu had limited absorption. Sun Xian Dao had the same concern and whispered, Mr. Xin. Please also try to explain in more detail later. Oh, don't worry. I'm still good at teaching people. Shen Yuancheng looked confident as he looked towards Chen Yu. But, Chen Yu just shook his head. No need. I don't need directions. He inherited all the parade of a former emperor, which encompassed everything. Feats, battle techniques, combat experience, and countless others. An innate master was not qualified to instruct him at all. The crowd froze at these words. Chen Yu, what are you talking about? This heavenly opportunity, how could you just let it go? Sun Xian Dao was a bit anxious. The big man he hired with favors and just gave up? Xin Yuanchang raised his hand, signaling Sun Xian Dao not to be in a hurry. He he, that's right. After all, little friend has also stepped into the innate realm, so it's natural to have pride. Understandable. In that case, 
Then the old man will take some initiative. Little friend, I will first rehearse a set of boxing techniques, so take a closer look and see if it inspires you. Xin Yuancheng had a smiling face, filled with the demeanor of a tall man. The other's eyes lit up with anticipation. The ascendant patriarch practiced in front of them. It's the kind of opportunity that comes along, maybe once in a lifetime. All right. Chun Yu sighed helplessly. Xin Yuancheng's smile withdrew and his expression suddenly became solemn. Little friend Shen Yu, watch this. Drink. Xin Yuancheng let out a broken cry and took a step out, his aura suddenly changing around him. At first, he was a kindly man. However, once he practiced the boxing technique, the whole person seemed to transform into an angry Vajra. A powerful aura enveloped the entire room, pressurizing the crowd to breathe a little. In Xin Yuancheng's palms, true qi surged, causing his palms to become golden. Vaguely, there were golden hairs spewing out erratically. Xin Yuancheng was slow at first, but gradually his speed grew faster and faster. Until later, the entire yard was filled with his stump. Each stump was a different action, like a freeze frame. A few moments later, all the remnants of the palms erupted with golden light, blocking off the entire courtyard. The sound of gusts of wind and thunder boomed and echoed nonstop in the courtyard, with a feeling of heavenly might. Yuan Chang and the others stood on the side, having looked completely dumbfounded. The mouth was wide open and completely closed. This, is this the means of an innate master? No wonder they are called land gods. This is an inhuman sight. A few moments later, Xin Yuancheng finished his maneuver and suddenly stood still. All the residual shadows converged on Xin Yuancheng at the same time at this moment. Everything just now seemed to be just an illusion. In the yard, there was dead silence. Sun Qian Dao, Yuan Cheng, Xiao Lin, and the others were all shocked beyond words. Chen Yu remained aloof, without the slightest change in his expression. Little friend, how is it? Can you feel anything? Xin Yuancheng smiled and asked Chen Yu. What he had practiced just now was his best skill, the golden wind illusion palm. And since the one who was instructing was an innate master, Xin Yuancheng put up a hundred percent spirit. The rehearsal was at the highest level of his life, and he was very pleased with himself. In that case, he should know the difference between him and me. Xin Yuancheng thought in his heart. Chen Yu looked at Xin Yuancheng and let out a long sigh. It looked like the other party was determined to instruct himself. He really wasn't very good, but after all, he had good intentions so it wasn't a good idea to hit him too hard. After thinking about it, Chen Yu opened his mouth. That's just it. I'll rehearse it as well, and you can decide if you want to instruct me or not. Oh, drill for what? It's what you just rehearsed. What? Chen Yu Chang froze, somewhat in disbelief. You, want to rehearse my golden wind illusion palm? You've learned it? Well, I just learned it after watching you maneuver. I've improved it, so watch carefully and learn it. Chen Yu answered truthfully. On the basis of the other party's good intentions, Chen Yu also does not begrudge giving some benefits. Xin Yu Enqing's eyes snapped wide open, and for a moment, he was a bit brain dead. Ready to learn? And you're gonna teach me how to fucking improve? Are all young people so arrogant nowadays? Sun Chandao was also confused. I asked Mr. Chen to teach you, and you let people learn from you properly? Mr. Chan, see if you're speaking like a human being? Yuan Chang and the others had been dumbfounded. Why is this picture getting progressively weirder? Good, good, good. Oh, it's true that a newborn calf is not afraid of tigers. Mr. Chen, then please demonstrate. I'd like to learn from you. Xin Yuancheng clenched his back teeth and spoke with suppressed anger. Okay, you pay attention and watch carefully. Chen Yu nodded and began to maneuver. Xin Yuancheng clasped his hands to his chest, his face cold and heavy. He was really pissed off. He himself was invited to instruct Chen Yu. And the result? Not only did Chen Yu want to demonstrate his mastery, but he also said it was improved so he could learn it properly? What the fuck is this? Mr. Shen, please don't be angry. Young people, it's normal to be high-minded. Humph, old man won't be able to see eye to eye with him. Shen Yu Wanchang smiled coldly. The golden wind illusion palm of the old man was created by the old man who gathered a lifetime of martial arts experience. It was only after exchanging with quite a few strong people in the back, and continuously improving, that it reached this point today. I'd like to see how he improves? Young people nowadays are too impetuous and have no idea what it means to have a high heaven. Reality will teach him humility. Xin Yuancheng already had plans in his mind. When Shen Yu finished his rehearsal, he himself would give a hard knock and grind this guy's temperament. Sun Qian Dao stopped talking and nodded, looking towards Chen Yu. At this moment, Chen Yu had already begun to rehearse. In his palm, a golden light rose up. The footsteps were peculiar, and they kept wandering around the yard. At first, Xin Yuancheng was still furious, but after a moment, his face changed slightly. 
A flash of amazement appeared on his face. A wizard indeed. To actually learn my golden wind illusion palm? Golden wind phantom palm. Was Xin Yuan Cheng's mastery, and when placed in the martial arts, it was considered a first class battle technique. But, that's only in the martial arts. Who is Chen Yu? Immortalist, or an immortal cultivator who had gotten all of the immortal emperor's memories. This kind of gong method, if placed in the immortal cultivation world, would not even be considered at the bottom. Chen Yu saw it clearly with just a single move of his eyes. As Chen Yu practiced, Xin Yu Wancheng gradually watched in fascination. The previous anger was replaced by awe. Shortly thereafter, Chen Yu's movements gradually appeared different from Xin Yu Wancheng's. Xin Yu Wancheng lowered his hands from his chest, his eyes staring dead at Chen Yu. Awe that dissolved into shock. This, this, Sun Xiandao and the others couldn't see it because of their limited realm. But Xin Yu Wancheng was different. Watching Chen Yu's maneuvers, he suddenly had a different feeling. How? It's the sudden realization that what you thought was great is a piece of shit. After Chen Yu improved the Golden Wind Illusion Palm, he made it completely transformed. It's only when you compare it to the past that you realize how surprisingly shoddy a lot of it turned out to be. Ten minutes later, Chen Yu finished his maneuvers and stood in the courtyard. Motionless, he looked at Xin Yu Wancheng, a smile hanging at the corner of his mouth. Now, do you still want to instruct me? I, Xin Yu Wancheng was speechless, unable to say a word. Chen Yu didn't care about him and left on his own. After meeting Xin Yu Wancheng, he probably knew what kind of level a martial Daoanate patriarch really was. There's not much point in continuing the band any longer. Shan Yu, Sun Xian Dao hurriedly greeted and wanted to chase out. But after looking back at Xin Yu Wancheng, he stopped hard. Hey, slapping his thighs, Sun Xian Dao was a bit hateful. He had invited Xin Yu Wancheng to come with great difficulty. Why didn't he know how to cherish it? Mr. Chen, I'm really sorry. I apologize on behalf of Chen Yu. It's not necessary. Xin Yu Wancheng shook his head, looked at Sun Xian Dao, and let out a long sigh. Director Sun, you found a big shot. Mr. Xin, don't say that. I didn't expect that Chen Yu would be like this either. Sun Xian Dao thought that Xin Yuan Cheng was angry and hurriedly opened his mouth to explain. Xin Yuan Cheng just shook his head. There's no need. I've really opened my eyes today. Looking at the direction Chen Yu left, Xin Yuan Cheng suddenly plopped down on his knees and heavily cowed out three times. Thank you, Master Chen, for your guidance. A move that left the crowd dumbfounded. Nima, what's going on here? He, why is he kneeling? Points, thanks. Just now, Chen Yu instructed him? When was it pointed out? How come we don't know? A series of question marks surfaced in the minds of the crowd. Mr. Shen, what are you? What the hell happened? Sun Xian Dao felt something was wrong and opened his mouth to inquire. Xin Yuan Cheng slowly got up with a long sigh. Director Sun, you don't know ah. Uh, just now, Mr. Chen pointed me out ah. Uh. After his improvement, I realized that my golden wind illusion palm was so rough. So, this set of palm techniques can still reach the step. This is something I never dared to dream of. You could say that if I go further in the future, it all depends on today's guidance from Mr. Chen. Mr. Chen's understanding of cultivation is so deep and profound. Man, he's so young. How could he have such insight? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Xin Yuan Cheng was red in the face, unable to suppress his excitement and shock. Although Chen Yu had only improved the set of palm techniques, it was based on extremely majestic experience. In these improved places, some of the supreme principles of cultivation can be reflected, and these places enlighten Xin Yuancheng, making his comprehension of cultivation deeper. Xin Yuancheng even felt that he had received guidance from the gods. Sun Xiandao and the others were wide-eyed and a bit confused. Xin Yuancheng, instructed by Qin Yu, he's on his knees? This, this. For a moment, Sun Xiandao unexpectedly did not know what to say. It was a long time before he opened his mouth to inquire. Mr. Xin, if that's the case, then this time, the battle between Chen Yu and Criminal Thousand Thunder? Xin Yu Wancheng shook his head. I can't say either. Criminal Thousand Thunder is a heavenly talent and has always been unrivaled among his peers. After so many years, I don't know what step he has reached, but I can be sure that his strength is bound to be extremely terrifying. However, Chen Yu is also no ordinary person. Just based on today's contact, his cultivation is far above my imagination. This patriarchal duel will definitely be a peak battle. It can even be said that this is the most shocking battle within a hundred years. If you miss it, you're bound to regret it for the rest of your life. Excitement surfaced on Xin Yuancheng's face. Sun Xiandao and the others all looked shocked, and there was a flash of anticipation in their eyes. Duro Sun, with Chun Yu's level nowadays, I'm afraid that there is no one in the Dragon Kingdom in Human Bureau who can instruct him anymore. Let's just wait for the patriarchal duel afterward. 
Sun Xiandao nodded with a look of emotion. I didn't expect that even Mr. Shen couldn't instruct Chen Yu. Yeah, I didn't expect it either. I really don't know how on earth he cultivated to get to this point. Well, I'm off. After exchanging greetings, Xin Yuanchang left the South City in Human Bureau and returned to the Dragon Country in Human Bureau headquarters. When he returned, he saw a few old friends. A few people looked at Xin Yuanchang with a smiling face. Old Shen, how about going to South City this time? How about that young man Shen Yu? Is he all grateful to you? A few people looked at Xin Yuanchang with smiles on their faces. In this department, there were quite a few staff members, and when they saw Xin Yuanchang and a few people gathered together, their expressions were filled with shock. These people were all innate masters and were not within the establishment of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. Like Chen Yu, they also belonged to the offerings and were not subject to the constraints of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. But if the Inhuman Bureau has something to do, they will be invited to step in. Its status was still above that of the House Father. Its name, Dragon Dignity. Each and every one of them is a martial arts legend. For a variety of reasons, he ended up joining the Inhuman Bureau. On weekdays, these people were hidden all over the Dragon Kingdom, rarely showing up at the headquarters. The fact that it came in such unison this time was a sight that hadn't been seen in many years, and the reason they were gathered here was because of Chen Yu. They were also curious about such a young innate patriarch as Chen Yu. It was also for this reason that they had come from all over the world to question Xin Yuancheng face to face. Hey, it's hard to say. Xin Yuancheng shook his head, his face full of complexity. Oh, how? Several faces were curious. Xin Yuancheng didn't answer positively, but said, Follow me, I'll show you something. Xin Yuancheng led the way in front, bringing the few people to an empty and uninhabited place at the back of the headquarters mountain. Old Xin, what did you bring us here for? Several people were puzzled, not knowing what kind of medicine Xin Yuancheng was selling in his gourd. I would like you to see, my golden wind illusion palm. As soon as Xin Yuancheng opened his mouth, several people froze. What's this old boy up to? Isn't that a donkey's head? Old Shen, what exactly do you mean? What we want to see is how that Shen Yu kid really is. That's right, such a young innate master. It would be a pity if he died in Xing Qian Lei's hands. But, Xin Yuancheng just shook his head and said, You guys read it first. Seeing that Xin Yuancheng was so insistent, a few people could not say anything else. At that moment, he stood back and made way for an open space. Xin Yuancheng took a deep breath and with a solemn expression, he began to rehearse the Golden Wind Illusion poem. A few people looked a little bored. Back then, when Xin Yuancheng created the Golden Wind Illusion Palm, he had communicated with them in depth. A number of these comments were made by them. Therefore, they also had a relatively deep understanding of this Golden Wind Illusion Palm. Even if Xin Yuancheng's attainments in the Golden Wind Illusion Palm were a bit deeper, it was extremely limited. Can't really figure out what kind of drug Xin Yuancheng is selling in his gourd. Patiently, several people frowned as they watched Xin Yuancheng's maneuvers. But, gradually, a few faces changed. At first there was surprise, then amazement. By the end of the day, everyone was staring with dead eyes, itching to see through every movement of Xin Yuancheng. Hey, did you guys see that old Shin's golden wind illusion palm? It's changed. It's like, a person spoke up, looking Xin Yuancheng up and down with a shocked face. It's like being off the grid. The other man immediately picked up and scared. It's different. It's so different. God, what the hell is going on? Old Shin's golden wind illusion palm. How did it evolve so much? Next to them, someone frowned and sucked in cold air. Hiss, it's really marvelous. This place has changed so much. It's simply turning decay into magic. This set of battle skills, now it simply doesn't look like an earthly martial art. That's right. See, the angle and speed of old Shun's slap just now changed. And suddenly there was a feeling of a finishing touch. Yes, this golden wind illusion palm of old Shun's. We all thought it was perfect before. But compared to this current version, it's way off. Now Old Shin's rendition of this version is simply heavenly. How in the world did this happen? They were innate patriarchs whose insights and experiences were extraordinary. They were also more deeply involved in the creation of the Golden Wind Illusion Palm. They had a deep appreciation for the changes in this set of battle techniques. Shocked. They were filled with doubt. What the hell is going on here? This battle technique, why did it change so much? Though curious, for now they could only wait patiently. Finally, after another moment, Xin Yuancheng finished his drill. He pressed his hands down to his dantian and let out a long breath. How about it, guys? Looking at the several people, Xin Yuancheng opened his mouth to inquire. Wow. Several people immediately gathered around and stared at Xin Yuancheng dead in the face. My chow. Old Xin. Quickly tell me. What is going on here? Your golden wind illusion palm. How did it undergo such a tremendous metamorphosis? That's right. Tian. 
It's incredible. I never thought that this palm technique of yours could be evolved to such a level. What the hell happened? Looking at the several people scratching their heads, Xin Yuanchang let out a long sigh. In fact, the reason why the Golden Wind Illusion Palm was able to evolve to this point was because I was instructed by someone high up in the southern city. At that time, I just rehearsed the Golden Wind Illusion Palm once, and he rehearsed it again. Optimize this battle technique as he rehearses it. And there's still a big gap between the version I'm rehearsing now and what he's rehearsing. There are quite a few places in it that I still need to scrutinize before I can comprehend the deeper meaning of it. A statement that was like a thunderous boom, causing several people's brains to buzz. Someone high up, instructed Xin Yuan Chang? But who is Xin Yuan Chang? The innate master, in the path of martial arts, he had already reached the realm of a land god. The golden wind illusion palm he created was originally the pinnacle of martial arts. As a result, someone was not only able to point him in the right direction, but also optimize his pinnacle work in front of him? Nima, this kind of existence still exists in this world? So how high does this guy have to be? Old Shen, what is the name of this person? What does he look like? That's right, Old Shen, hurry up and tell us, what level has this person's realm reached? Old Shen, you're so lucky, I envy you. The matter of Chen Yu had already been put behind their heads by the current high-ranking person. Now, they wondered who this high person really was. Seeing several people look like this, Xin Yuanchang was filled with bitter smiles. This person, is Chun Yu. LOL. The scene was suddenly deathly quiet. Several people were completely petrified and confused. Chen Yu? That young innate master? No. Wasn't it Xin Yuanchang who went to instruct him? How did it suddenly become? Chen Yu instructing Xin Yuanchang? And, it's turned into a tall man? What the hell is going on here? Hey, to tell you the truth. I was in front of him earlier, practicing the golden wind illusion palm, originally wanted to thwart him, but the result, Xin Yuanchang also did not hide, and told him about the trip to the southern city. After hearing this, several people stood frozen in place for a long time without words. After a long time, one person let out a long sigh with a complicated expression. We were all mistaken. It turns out that this teenage innate patriarch is not some nameless person, but an unimaginable bigot. The others were silent, acquiescing to this simply by optimizing the Golden Wind Phantom Palm. It could be seen that Chen Yu's martial arts cultivation had already reached a height that they could not imagine. They, at all, were not worthy of instructing Chen Yu, and were only qualified to follow Chen Yu and learn. It seems that this time, his showdown with Xing Qian Lei will be an unimaginably amazing battle. A few people looked shocked, their faces showing anticipation. Xing Qian Lei, that is also a character that has amazed a generation of time. And Chen Yu, too, was extraordinary. The battle between the two was so unimaginable that it was hard to imagine what it would be like. Why don't we take some time and head to South City to pay a visit to this mister? Chen, the proposal was immediately approved by all. After settling on this, the few people planned to leave for the South City in a couple of days. South City. At the entrance of Villa No. 1. Chen Yu hugged Wu Xiaolan before departing for Jinchuan City. Looking at the bright sky, Chen Yu's eyes were sharp. Song family, I, Chen Yu, am here. Things were pretty much over in South City, and there was no need to stay on. On this day, Chen Yu officially left for Jinchuan City. After arriving at the high-speed train station and checking the tickets with the crowd, Chen Yu sat down on the seat. He sat back in his seat and looked out the window at the speeding landscape, a little lost in thought for a moment. It's all been a dream for a while now. Previously a factory dog, desperate for his mother's exorbitant medical bills. As a result, he accidentally embarked on the path of immortal cultivation and has the power and status he has today. This world, by nature, is cruel. If you want to control your own destiny, you can only be guaranteed by an absolutely powerful strength. Shen Yu secretly clenched his fists, pushed down the disturbing thoughts and began to think about his next actions. Before he came, he had already gained some understanding of the Song family. The Song family was one of the top few families in Jiangling province. Inside their families, there were people who served as officials in the imperial court, people who floundered in the business world, people who had worshipped within the clan since they were young, and people who had married into ancient martial arts families. It's a behemoth. The Lu family was nothing compared to it. Even with a single word, the Song family was able to wipe out the Lu family outright. The Xingxin who was in the Lu family before was also living in the Song family because he was courting a woman from the Song family. Later on, he stayed a bit bored, and that's why he appeared on top of the Lu family's banquet. This was also enough to show how much energy the Song family had. Chen Taiyi, I didn't expect you to be favored by the Song family's eldest lady. Chen Yu secretly sneered. Song Yao was the Song family's eldest miss, and by age, she was in her forties. As the pearl of the Song family, 
she had always been pampered and arrogant. All the misfortunes of him and Wu Xiaolan over the years stemmed from Song Yao's words back then. Song family, the game between us, has officially begun. He himself is now the provincial government honored in Jiangling, and holds half of the equity of Tiancheng Group in his hands. But wanting to use this to bring down the Song family is still slightly insufficient. Only when his strength increased again would he be able to uproot the Song family. In this regard, Chen Yu had some plans. Commercially, it's natural to bring down the Song family. On top of that, he himself was in the court and needed some help. Otherwise, with his current strength, it would be unrealistic to try to completely ignore the rules. Chen Yu had been thinking about things, but did not notice that there was a sister sitting beside him. The girl had a great body and was wearing a pair of blue jeans and a white top. A long head of hair fell straight down, reflecting the delicate face. Even though it was sitting down, you could see its shapely figure. This girl, she has a great face. She had been peeking at Chen Yu ever since she got on the high-speed train. There was no way. Chen Yu was just too special. He was already handsome, and after embarking on the path of immortal cultivation, his face value improved again. And nowadays, he is in charge of life and death and looks down on the red dust. This exaltation and indifference mixed into an unspeakable attraction that made people look sideways. From the moment she knew that Chen Yu was sitting beside her, the girl was overjoyed in her heart. Secretly, there had been a frantic discussion with a few sisters in a small group. Sisters, I met a big handsome guy on the high-speed train today. My god, it's so handsome, the temperament is so good that it explodes. Flying pig, are you a nymphomaniac? Little fuzzy fairy wine, yo. Our great beauty Tang has also moved her mortal heart? What kind of man has charmed you like this? Sister Fei is unusual, no picture. Take a picture. Looking at the discussion in the group, the woman quietly took a picture of Chen Yu's side face and sent it to the group. For a moment, the whole group exploded. Hiss, big handsome. Holy shit, that's so handsome. This temperament, absolute. What are you waiting for when you meet this kind of man? Hurry up and we chat. The woman took several deep breaths, secretly clenched her teeth, and turned her head to look at Chen Yu. That, how are you handsome? I, my name is Tang Chenchen. That I party not convenient to add you a WeChat? Chen Yu was thinking about things when he was shouted at by the woman and came back to his senses. After looking at it, Chen Yu shook his head. Sorry, don't use WeChat. When he finished, he turned his head again and looked out the window. Maybe other guys get all excited when they meet a beautiful woman to add to their tweets. But in Chen Yu's eyes, the woman is just a common person among all the people not the slightest bit special to him, after adding WeChat, he won't waste time chatting with him, so what's the point of adding it, what's more, he only had that girl in mind, Xiao Yunyue, Tang Chenchen froze, Chen Yu's reply threw a pot of cold water on her, in school, she was the school beauty, every day, I don't know how many guys, trying to get her micro signal by all means, want to add her, it was a first for her to take the initiative to add someone else, I didn't expect to be rejected, for a while, she had mixed feelings, sad and resentful. In the group, the messages kept coming, all asking about Tang Chenchen's situation. When Tang Chenchen finished speaking, several people in the group immediately quit. I'll go. Is this guy stupid? Our big beautiful Tang added him, and he still dares to refuse? Ha! This guy's ego is a little too good, isn't it? Did this man see that our Chenchen is too pretty and was too shocked to add it? Hey! Although handsome, but refusing girls to take the initiative to add microblogging such behavior really let a person under the head. That's right, don't be mad at Chen Chen, he'll definitely regret it later. Tang Chen Chen pouted her lips, still full of unhappiness. In response, Chen Yu did not care at all. Even if he had known, he would have laughed it off at best. A bunch of unseen schoolgirls, he didn't give a shit. Soon the car arrived in Jinchuan City. Chen Yu got off the high-speed train and directly took a taxi. The university he was going to this time was Jiangling University of Science and Technology, a national key. Until then, he was still planning to buy a house next to the university. After all, in Jiangling province will not stay for a short time, there is always a place to land. After Tang Chen Chen got off the bus, she looked around and couldn't help but be a little disappointed when she didn't see Chen Yu. The guy really had to just leave. He really didn't want to add me. Sighing helplessly, she called a cab. And the destination is none other than the Jiangling University of Science and Technology. Half an hour later, Tang Chenchen returned to the school and Chen Yu arrived at a property next to the Jiangling University of Science and Technology called Purple Moon Stardust Residence, a rather written name, according to what Lu Tianhao had sent people to inquire about. This property, in Jiangling province, was a premier property, and it's all single-family homes, built on a hill for privacy. Chen Yu got out of the car and went straight to the sales office. The sales office was bustling with people. Only, 
the vast majority of them are just looking and opening their eyes, the ones that actually bought it, none of them. However, there was still a female salesperson who came and greeted Chun Yu. Hello sir, how may I help you, whether you buy it or not, that's the question to ask. Even if you don't buy it, it won't be the dog-eared situation that it is in fiction. This is an essential professionalism for high-end properties. Chen Yu nodded, pointing to the villa on the sandboard that was located at the top of the hill. I'm going to buy this. Please grab it for me. I have to report to school later. The originally lively sales department was quiet at the moment. Everyone looked at Chen Yu with stunned expressions. This young man, he wants to buy that villa at the top of the hill? Which big shot son is he that he's so rich and powerful? Purple Moon Stardust Residence is an extremely high-end property. Its location is extremely favorable. The entire property, which is only about 20 villas, is built on Jin Ming Mountain. Prices rise in ascending order from the base of the mountain to the top. The villa at the top of the hill is the best one in the whole neighborhood. The asking price is a whopping $400 million. A lot of people have come to see it and inquired about it since it opened. But, it hasn't been done until now. After all, with a $400 million villa, there are too few people who can afford it. The sales lady who received Chen Yu was a tall woman in her 20s, wearing black silk, named Yu Jing. She looked at Chen Yu and was also confused. She has been working here since the building opened. During that time, also met a lot of rich people. There are people of all colors, but without exception, both those who want to buy and those who don't behave pretty much the same way. Detailed inquiries are made about each villa's location, price, configuration, and surroundings. Earlier there was a man who came and went four times before and after to buy a cottage at the foot of the mountain. Stay for half a day at a time and ask all the details with the sales lady. It wasn't until the afternoon of the fourth time that this was finalized. Even so, this purchase has been considered fast. But I didn't expect that Chen Yu came to buy it, before and after only a few minutes. It's as easy as going to a roadside kiosk and buying a bottle of water. Don't ask anything, just don't be too dashing. So, sir, you, you're buying Villa 1 at the top of the hill? Yu Jing was still a bit in disbelief and spoke again to make sure. Chen Yu nodded, somewhat surprised. I didn't realize that this villa was the same as the one in the South City, both of which were Villa 1, which was an alternative kind of fate. Hiss, I, I see, please come with me, sir, and I'll introduce you to the villa and talk about the details of the loan and such. Yu Jing's small face was red and she was shaking with excitement as she spoke. No need for introductions. I'm in a hurry. Just swipe your card. I'm not taking out a loan. By here, for one thing, it's closer to the school. Another reason, too, is because it's in the mountains and there's not much disturbance. As for the rest, Chen Yu did not care. All around, a sound of cold air being sucked in resounded. The crowd stared at Chen Yu with white eyes, incredulously. Man, what kind of bullshitter is this? You don't ask any questions. You just go for it? Brother, even if you're buying cabbages by the roadside, you still have to see how they grow, right? Yu Jing stood dumbfounded and had been petrified. What's wrong? What's the problem? Chen Yu inquired with a frown. Ha, huh? no, there's no problem. Just wait a moment. I, I'll do it for you now. Yu Jing had a jolt and trotted off to go through the process. Soon, she brought the POS machine. This card that Lu Tianhao gave to Chen Yu had 200 million in cash. In addition to this, there are various supreme VIP privileges such as unlimited spending amount and instant payment. And that 200 million dollar amount only needs to be paid off in the subsequent year. Chen Yu now holds half of Tian Chang Group's equity in his hands. And this 200 million is nothing. Soon, Chen Yu bought Villa 1. Come on, show me. Okay, fine. You come with me. We have a commercial vehicle to drive you to see your home. After the two left the sales office, the entire sales office completely exploded. Oh my god. What? What kind of person is this? Did you guys see that? He didn't even blink when he swiped his card just now. So there really is a character in this world who buys houses like groceries. Today is really a long time ago. Many people pulled out their cell phones and sent friends to share the news. On the other hand, Yu Jing led Chen Yu and had already arrived in front of Villa 1. The villa has four floors and a basement. Large lawn in front and back with no shade. On the entire top of the mountain, there was only this one villa. And the villas further down were hundreds of meters apart. Standing at the entrance and looking out. On the left is Gangnam University of Science and Technology. And on the right is Lake Sanxian in Jinchuan City. The mountain breeze and the shimmering lake made for a great view. Chun Yu looked at it and was satisfied. Not bad. Very good. As long as you are satisfied. That sir, do you, do you have any other requests? Yu Jing looked at Chen Yu with autumn water swirling in her eyes. We have excellent service. You are a valued customer. If there is anything you need, I, I can accommodate you. 
Yu Jing lightly bit her lower lip, her face full of spring color. Handsome and so generous. If you can have something with this kind of man, it's your own earned ah. There are times when a woman is a tiger and there is nothing for a man. Chun Yu looked at Yu Jing and gently shook his head. No need. I have things to do. Let's go. Ha, huh? oh, well. A touch of disappointment surfaced on Yu Jing's face. By the time she sent Chen Yu away, Yu Jing still had some reluctance in her eyes. What a nice man. Shaking her head, she returned to the sales floor. After buying the house, Chen Yu took a taxi and arrived at the Jiangling University of Science and Technology. Standing in front of the main gate, looking at the university under the sunlight, Chen Yu was quite emotional. I thought it would be impossible to get into college in this life, but I didn't expect to come here. In this way, life, it's marvelous. Shaking his head, Chen Yu stepped into the university, asking people along the way. Chen Yu arrived at the principal's office. It's Mr. Chen, oops, what a welcome welcome. The principal, named Gua Heping, was a middle-aged man in his fifties, slightly fat. After seeing Chen Yu, he enthusiastically poured Chen Yu a cup of tea. The province has already spoken to me. So Mr. Chen can just rest assured that if there's anything at the university, you can look for me directly. Thank you, Principal Guai. Chen Yu smiled lightly and climbed into conversation with Guai Heping. Between the two of them talking, Guai Heping's mind shook. In the process of conversation, Chen Yu is not humble and calm, with a temperament that people of his age do not have at all. Even Guai Heping had a vague feeling that he seemed to be a head shorter than Chen Yu, and had the uneasiness of meeting a big shot. This young man, what exactly is his identity? How could he have this aura? Shaking his head and suppressing the doubts in his heart, Gua Heping opened his mouth to inquire. Mr. Chen, I wonder which department you want to go to. Principal Gua, do you know about Xiao Yunyue? I know. She can be very famous in our school. Those young people but rated her as one of the four school flowers. In the Department of Commerce and Industry and Trade as a junior, Gua Heping pushed up his glasses and opened his mouth with a smile. Does she have a boyfriend? I don't think so. I've heard that there are too many people chasing after her, but she's never accepted. Shouldn't be in a relationship at the moment. Chen Yu said, then I'll choose the Department of Business and Trade. Ha, huh? Gua Heping froze, and a moment later an odd smile appeared on his face. Mr. Chen, could it be that you are? Chen Yu nodded and said lightly, well, I have my eye on her. Peace Kua, forgive him for being so knowledgeable, but he was still unable to be hold by Chen Yu's words. So you're here to pick up girls, ha, huh, kid? It doesn't go with that highbrow demeanor you just had. When Chen Yu came before, it was a big shot from the province who personally gave the word. Gua Heping thought that there was some special reason, but now that he looked at it, he was completely wrong. People come here and really just have fun. Is there a problem? Seeing that Gua Heping did not speak for a long time, Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. Ha, huh? no, nothing. Gua Heping shook his head, his face odd. In that case, Mr. Chen is in the Department of Business and Trade. Okay, thanks. After explaining some more details about clothing, food, housing and transportation, Chen Yu left the principal's office. Gua Heping let out a long breath, pulled out his cell phone, and made a call. Hey, leader, it's me. Peace. Yes, that Mr. Chen is here. All set. What exactly is the identity of this young man? Worthy of your personal appearance? What? He? Is he that high? I. I know. Don't worry. I won't disclose it. Hanging up the phone, Gua Heping stood upstairs, looking at Chen Yu on the road through the window with a shocked expression. On the phone just now. For Chen Yu, he only said one sentence. The position is comparable to mine, and will certainly be above me in the future. Moreover, the other party warned Gua Heping not to ask about Chen Yu's affairs. After hanging up the phone, Gua Heping's brain buzzed. The one on the phone. What kind of person is he in Jiangling province? Chen Yu could actually receive such an appraisal from that person? Such a big shot, coming to college just to pick up girls. Damn, how capricious. Despite years of good qi cultivation, Gua Heping still couldn't help but burst out. Everything, Chen Yu did not know. After leaving the principal's office, Chen Yu walked through the university campus, looking at everything around him. There were quite a few pedestrians on the road. There were boys in groups, clutching basketballs and trotting toward the basketball court. There were girls with books in their arms, walking quickly. There were also men and women who gathered and laughed and played. Everything smells youthful in the sunshine. As Chen Yu watched this, the corners of his mouth unconsciously gently hooked up. What a happy group of young people. So energized. Young? Chen Yu was slightly stunned, a little surprised at this idea of his. It was reasonable to assume that he was about the same age as these people. But looking at them was like elders looking at their juniors. 
It seems that my heart grew old a long time ago, smiling to himself, Chen Yu continued to move forward. Just after walking a few steps, Chen Yu's footsteps lurched as he looked closely ahead, a touch of emotion surfacing on his face. Across the street, a couple of girls, shoulder to shoulder, were walking head on, a girl in the center, about 5 feet 7 inches tall, with shoulder length hair. The delicate features were flawless, as if they were works of art, pale skin, even a little dazzling in the sunlight. Her dress code is simple. The simple casual outfit was plain but had an air of sophistication about it. One never tires of looking at it. Xiao Yunyue, the girl that Chen Yu remembered once again appeared in front of him. Xiao Yunyue was talking and laughing with the others. Unintentionally, he saw Chen Yu. She froze, and after a moment was filled with confusion. You are, Chen Yu? Chen Yu's mind moved. She remembers herself. A smile then surfaced on Chen Yu's face. Oh, big beautiful Xiao. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's really you? How did you get here? Xiao Yunyue was astonished and very surprised. Oh, I'm here for school. What? You went to school here? In what department? Uh, business and trade department. Ha, huh? in the same department as me. Congratulations, it's finally a dream come true. Xiao Yunyue's eyes curved into a crescent moon. Chen Yu also laughed. He could tell that Xiao Yunyue was truly happy for him. It's been a long time, and she's as kind and gentle as ever. In those grayest days, Xiao Yunyue was like a beam of light that illuminated him. It's been a long time. Well, we've got a few things to do. So we'll go first ah, talk to you later. Okay. Chen Yu nodded and said hello before leaving on his own. On the way, a few girls beside Xiao Yunyue chirped up. Yun Yu, who was that handsome guy just now? That's just it. He's got a good vibe. That's right. It's almost as if he's a high roller who stepped out of a comic book. He gives off such a special, unusual vibe. Xiao Yunyue didn't hide anything and told a few people about the process of getting acquainted with Chen Yu. At that, several people froze. He, uh, worked in a factory before? Well, he worked hard, dropped out of high school to raise money for his mother's medical bills, and I didn't expect to see him here again. Hey, he's had a really rough couple of years. Xiao Yunyue was a bit emotional. The other few women's faces became even more odd. A factory worker? How come he came here to go to college? Raising money for your mother's medical bills. That's not a good family situation. Hey, it's a waste of good skin. For a while, several people lost interest in Chen Yu. What's the point of a man being good looking? Society is very realistic and cruel. Yun Yu, don't be mesmerized by him. You'll be at a great loss if you're with this kind of guy. Yeah, Yun Yu you're so kind. Don't be sympathetic. That's right. Looking for a boyfriend still depends on the comprehensive strength. Chang Haoming is very good ah, family and rich, and treat you well. Several people were persuading Xiao Yunyue, fearing that Xiao Yunyue would suffer. Now that they are all juniors, they are no longer the same people who knew nothing when they first entered college, so they are also more realistic. Xiao Yunyue was a bit impatient and said, Don't mention Chang Haoming, I don't have any feelings for him at all. Geez, it's not like feelings can be a meal, so let's be realistic. That's right, if we women are looking for a man, we must keep our eyes open. Nowadays. There are too many underhanded men in society. Several people wanted to persuade Xiao Yunyue further, but Xiao Yunyue was already clearly impatient. If you are still my friends, don't mention Chang Haoming in front of me. I don't like him. If I have to choose between the two, I'll choose Chen Yu. Xiao Yunyue spoke gamely. She had a good feeling about Chen Yu, but it wasn't that exaggerated. However, several people kept on derogating Chen Yu and elevating Chang Haoming, causing Xiao Yunyue to be very slightly dissatisfied. Watching the scene, a few people looked at each other and said no more. It was just that they all sighed darkly in their hearts. Wouldn't it be a joke for a goddess to find a factory worker? A few people went on to other topics. On the road, a person took out his cell phone and opened the WeChat circle of friends, casually brushing, suddenly let out a cry of surprise, startling the others. Hey, you're going to die. Why are you so startled? The man looked up, his face full of shock. Big news. The Purple Moon Stardust residence next to our school. Villa 1 has been bought by a big shot. Ha, huh, bought? The few people who were walking all stopped and exclaimed in shock at the words. They came together and looked at the cell phone of the person who had opened his mouth. On the screen, it was the image of the WeChat circle of friends. Inside, a sale, posted a long quote. The general idea is to describe how the villa was bought. Only the information about Chen Yu was not leaked. Several people stared with wide eyes, their minds shaken. They may be students, but they are juniors after all. Not just white guys who don't know anything. Purple Moon Stardust Residence. Not far from their school. As the highest end neighborhood in Jinchuan City. It would be hard for them not to know. 
In fact, a few of them had even made a point of visiting that property. I'm not buying it, but it's excellent to see it for a long time. Upon arrival, they realized what it meant to have a ceiling, that over-the-top price, the unbelievably flashy decor, everything was like a dream, they had discussed it for a long time since that return, even dreaming about the villa there. One of the villas, Villa 1, is at the top of the heap, with an asking price of up to $400 million, the hilltop is as scenic as a living experience, many people have gone to find out about it since it opened, but none of the ones that actually had an idea, now, it's just bought, man, what kind of character is it that bought that villa, hey, didn't you guys notice what the sales posted, the buyer is a young man, and still went ahead and bought it straight away, another girl couldn't help but exclaim, her mouth hanging open, yeah, 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 sales said he didn't look at anything on the spot and just took it down, before and after only a few minutes, buying a house is like buying groceries, no, it's even faster than buying groceries, it's exactly the same speed as going to the supermarket to buy water, this person is also too powerful, hey, if this guy is my boyfriend, then I'll be so happy, the woman who had just persuaded Xiao Yunyue to accept Chang Haoming now clenched her hands into fists and made a prayerful gesture, next to them, a couple of women couldn't help but laugh and start splashing cool water, who wouldn't want to have a boyfriend like that, but how could that kind of person look at us, that's right, to be able to just buy a 400 million dollar villa, that's an ocean of wealth, Aya, uh, let's be realistic, it's fine if we can find a rich second generation, Yun Yu does have a chance, maybe she can be spotted by that mysterious big brother, right right right, in the future, Yun Yu won't live in the dormitory, she'll live directly in the villa, Several women laughed playfully and flirted with Xiao Yunyue. Xiao Yunyue rolled her eyes straight away, but then she looked to a high mountain in the distance. That's the Golden Mining Hill, a villa worth $400 million, right there on the hill. I really don't know what kind of big shot can afford that kind of villa, but what does that have to do with me? Don't want to think about it. Xiao Yunyue shook her head and smiled gently in her heart. Everyone has everyone's way of living. As long as you are living your life to the fullest, why should you care about how good someone else's day really is? A few people continued walking, but on the way, a girl took out her cell phone and sent a Weibo message to Chang Haoming. Chang Haoming's family is quite wealthy and has been frantically pursuing Xiao Yunyu. The few girls who were close to Xiao Yunyue had been bribed by Chang Haoming and became his wingmen. Regarding some of Xiao Yunyue's daily movements, they would all tell Chang Haoming. Even when Xiao Yunyue's great aunt came, they would remind Chang Haoming to behave more. And Xiao Yunyue had been unaware of this. At the moment, a humming sound was coming from an activity room in the university. This is the martial arts club of the Gangnam University of Science and Technology. It's now a club event for the Budo Club. A well-built man was sitting at the bottom of the field, watching the sparring match between his classmates on the field. He is Chang Haoming, a junior majoring in mechanics. Ding dong. Just as he was watching the sparring match on the field, his cell phone rang, and when he pulled it out, he couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Yo, here comes the intel again. I wonder what news it is about my family Yunyu. Open the chat box and look closely. In the next moment, he suddenly stormed up and slammed the towel in his hand on the ground. I chow, dare to compete with me? This action attracted the attention of several people beside him. Ho Ming, what's going on? Who messed with you? Chang Hao Ming's face sank coldly as he gritted his teeth and spoke. Just now, Zhang Mei sent me a message saying that there's a guy named Chen Yu who seems to be chasing Xiao Yunyue, and it looks like Xiao Yunyue has a crush on him too. The few people beside him looked at each other and froze for a moment. It wasn't a secret that Chang Hao Ming was chasing Xiao Yunyue, and Xiao Yunyue was admittedly difficult to pursue, keeping her distance from all the boys. There wasn't a single boy who could make Xiao Yunyue feel good about herself in the entire university. A formidable enemy has appeared? Ho Ming, what's this guy's story? Chang Hao Ming said, is suddenly come here to go to school, used to work in the electronics factory, is a factory dog. I don't know how he got mixed up in our college. I hear he's very good looking. The crowd was dumbfounded. What, a factory dog? Holy shit, that's okay? Hey, I thought it was some kind of character, but it turned out to be something like this, so what are you afraid of? It's completely incomparable to you. Okay, that's right, besides looks, in terms of studies, family, and future, you're crushing him, that's right, you're still a top 5 expert in our martial arts club. What is that kid? Listening to the comforting words of several people, Chang Hao Ming felt much better mentally, with a cold snort. He was filled with disdain. I certainly didn't think of him as a rival. He doesn't deserve it yet. A few others were up in arms. That's right. That Chun Yu is scum compared to our Hao Ming. Right. Don't think about it. Let's go out and get together tonight. And by the way, I'll give you some advice on how to celebrate Xiao Yunyue's birthday in a few days. Hey. Hey. 
Maybe in a few days, we, Hao Ming, will take the first blood of Shao de Goddess. Yo! Amidst a chorus of compliments, Chang Hao Ming was gradually lost. Shen Yu was put out of his mind, even fantasizing about the sight of Xiao Yunyue accepting herself a few days later and then fighting all night. My Chao, someone in my circle of friends posted a message that Villa One of the Purple Moon Stardust residence is sold. $400 million, cash, in less than 10 minutes, and a young man bought it. Suddenly, a man swiped his friends and jumped up and screamed. The crowd was shocked and rushed around to see what was going on. Sure enough, it was the same as what Xiao Yunyue and the others had seen. It was all sales sending messages. Several young men marveled. Purple Moon Stardust Residence. Ah, that's known as the Divine Community. Villa 1, just bought? Hao Ming, your house is in such good condition. Can you guess? Which big shot? Can take that no. One villa? Several people all looked at Chang Hao Ming. Chang Hao Ming froze and spoke slowly. Are you guys overthinking this? That kind of big brother. Not to mention my family. Even that dependent of my family can't be reached. The way I see it. Only those topmost existences in Jiangling province can make it this far. A roll of the ice sort of put an end to a few people's speculations. Although Chang Hao Ming was proud of himself. He was nonetheless very clear about his own perception. His Chang family has some small money and some connections. But, society is stratified. The big brother who can casually make a move and purchase a $400 million mansion is too many levels above his Chang family. Hearing Chang Hao Ming's words, a few people owed and were somewhat shocked in their hearts. Chang Hao Ming was already considered a human being in their eyes. I didn't realize that even he couldn't speculate. That big guy. He's so scary. Aya, uh, that kind of person is a god in the sky. We ordinary people should not think too much about it. Ho Ming, think about how to give Xiao the goddess her birthday. Chang Hao Ming grinned and said, Don't worry, I have my own arrangements. I've already bribed the guys in their dorm. We'll associate with them when it's their birthday. Brothers can give me an assist in my quest to get on base and get first blood. A few people smiled lewdly and nodded. Don't worry, us wingmen, we're definitely qualified. Chang Haoming nodded and put his heart down. He clenched his fists and smiled coldly. Chen Yu, who the hell are you? How can you compete with me? Jianling University of Science and Technology, 10 dormitory buildings, 604 dormitory rooms. Chen Yu looked at the surrounding scene and nodded slightly. Here, is the dormitory assigned to him. Before he even went in, he could already hear a lot of noise inside. Pushing open the door, the dormitory presented itself. Five young men were hacking in mass, yelling and screaming strangely. My chow, milk me, I'm dying. Old four, you idiot, you can let him get away with this? Damn, the opposite side is so damn shameless. Three people fuck me alone. Ha ha, this idiot sniping against me in the middle? I can't play him. Chen Yu froze, somewhat in a trance. How long had it been since he had experienced this feeling of being uninhibited and playing games at will? Ha, huh, new roommate here? A man turned around to see Chen Yu and raised an eyebrow. Just as a round was finished, several people got up and came to Chen Yu. Yo, handsome, can o oh, shit, better looking than me. No god, dude, my name is Li Pei Yi, the dormitory head of 604. A short man with a wispy mustache extended his hand with a smile, introduced to each other and got to know each other well. Together with Chen Yu, there were six people in the dormitory. They are called Li Pei, Wang Hao, Wang Wenjun, Zhang Ji, Yao Yujing, and Chen Yu. According to age, Chen Yu was the youngest in the dormitory and was directly nicknamed Old Six. In response, Chen Yu had a black line on his head. One thing to say though, the whole dorm has a great vibe. The five came from all over the world and had different personalities, but all were good people. Learning that Chen Yu had worked in the factory before. Not only did he not discriminate, but he looked like a curious baby. I hear all the girls who work at the factory are pretty. Old six. Honestly, have you ever fucking slept with a girl from the electronics factory? Are those girls really spirited? In several of the novels I've read, the passionate stories take place in the factory. Hey, I've heard that handsome guys get reverse pushed in the factory. Did you get reverse pushed? Rarely was Chen Yu's state of mind extraordinary, but he was still stunned by these questions. Then he finally realized why. 604 these five guys, they're all fucking singles, bunch of poor waifs, Chen Yu secretly spat in his heart, after packing up, Chen Yu went to the cafeteria with the five people to have a lunch, the moment I sat down in the cafeteria, the long lost youthfulness hit me, the hustle and bustle of the crowd, men and women of all shapes and sizes, Chen Yu took a deep breath and quietly felt it all, so, this is college, during the meal, a few people chatted while swiping their phones, Wang Hao suddenly exclaimed, my chow, you guys look at the campus forum. 
A mysterious big brother has bought Villa one of the Purple Moon Stardust residents. Hey, is it really fake? Let's see. Several people immediately logged onto the forum to check it out. In the forum, several threads about the mysterious big man all became hot posts. Shocked. Mystery bigwig drops $400 million on mansion. Have you ever seen a house bought like a cabbage? Showing you a different world. First hand from the sales floor. After clicking through, several people were shocked. Not only them, but the entire cafeteria. Many of the students who were eating were hotly debating. Mysterious big brother has become the number one buzzword in JLSTU. My nigga, $400 million. How hoity-toity does this have to be? Zheng Ji continuously smacked his lips. Yao Yu Jing blinked her eyes and said, Playing games in a mansion like that should be pretty cool. You're a fucking idiot. Having that kind of villa and playing games, you don't know to ask a few girls to play? What do you think that big man's life is like? How can you say that? It's a real blast, isn't it? And it's got to be 10 or 8 girls a day? I just don't know. Is this big guy in good health and can he stand it? Chen Yu quietly ate his meal, the corner of his mouth gently twitching. I'm in good health. Don't worry. And no girls. No night and day. He also didn't expect that just casually buying a villa would cause such a big ripple in the school. After eating, a few people left the cafeteria. Chen Yu made an excuse and left the school. Returning to the villa one he had just bought, Chen Yu took out his cell phone and made a call. Not long after, a middle-aged man came to the villa. The middle-aged man had a small flat head a lean look, and sparkling eyes. His name was Lu Ming. He was the vice president of Tianchang Group and the head of Tianchang Group in Jinchuan City. Mr. Chen, what is it that you wanted to see me about? Lu Ming bowed deeply, looking in awe. He was already aware of what was going on in the South City. With his own strength, he had wiped out the Lu family and made the Lu family the number one family in the South City. With such tactics, it is not too much to say that it is a flip-flop. Now that Chen Yu has arrived in Jinchuan City, I don't know what kind of storm is going to be created. Lu Ming, I have something to ask you. Chen Yu opened his mouth. In Jinchuan City, the Song family is in the business world. How is their status? Lu Ming's expression changed, and he was surprised in his heart. Could it be that Mr. Chen is going to make a move against the Song family? Although shocked, Lu Ming didn't show it. Mr. Chen, the Song family's position in the business world is not trivial. There are rumors in Jinchuan City that if you do business in Jinchuan City, you can't offend the Song family if you offend anyone. Yeah. Then, how does the Tianchang group compare to the Song family? Lu Ming had a bitter smile on his face. Tianchang group started out from the southern city and is not very large in Jinchuan city, and is not comparable to the Song family at all. True enough. Chen Yu nodded slightly. It was a situation that was pretty much what one would expect. But Chen Yu was in no hurry. There's no use rushing things in business sometimes. Then do you know who is the boss in the underground world of Jinchuan city? Chen Yu continued to ask questions. If he wanted to deal with the Song family, he still needed to expand his strength some more. There are some great things that the Inhuman Bureau can't do and neither can the Tianchang group. And those in the underworld are the best people to do it. Lu Ming first froze, and then his pupils contracted violently. The underground world? Could it be that you, Mr. Chen, are going to? Chen Yu smiled and faintly said, Well, the underground world of Jinchuan City will have to follow me as their master in the future consecrate me as lord, for words that are so overbearing. Lu Ming stared at Chen Yu in a daze and didn't say anything for a long time. He then shuddered and hurriedly shook his head. Mr. Chen, no, no way, you just came to Jinchuan City, you don't understand the situation here. The underground world here has always been a clusterfuck, with no one being able to overpower anyone. It's not like there hasn't been anyone who wanted to become the king of the underground world over the years, but they all ended up with miserable results. We're doing normal business. There's no need to get into this mess. Lu Ming tried his best to persuade Chen Yu. Chen Yu shook his head. He had his own plans. So naturally he wouldn't listen to Lu Ming. Seeing Chen Yu's resolute attitude, Lu Ming could only compromise. Now in the underground world of Jinchuan City, overall there are three parties with the strongest forces. And the family members are Zhao Gu, Luan Qingqing, and Su Hong. The three forces are somewhat similar to the three kingdoms. Zhao Gu is the strongest and is considered Wei. Chen Yu sniffed and nodded slightly. That's him. Make an appointment for me. I'll meet him tomorrow. Ha, huh? I'll see you tomorrow? Well, on what grounds then? Chen Yu smiled. What reason do you need? Tell him that I'm going to collect him. This, Lu Ming was dumbfounded. The fucking other guy is a big shot in the underground world. Go over there and tell him I'm gonna take you? Will Zhao Gu still blow his top? What's going to happen then? Mr. Chen, do you want to reconsider? No, go ahead and do it. This, Okay, with a helpless sigh, Lu Ming left the villa. 
He had just left not too long ago, so he called Lu Tianhao and informed him of everything. Dong Lu, please persuade Mr. Chun. If it goes on like this, Tianchang Group is afraid that it will be difficult to gain a foothold in Jingchuan City. I thought that Lu Tianhao would be anxious and shocked, but I didn't expect a burst of excited laughter to come from the other end of the phone. Ha ha ha. Well well well, Lu Ming, do as Mr. Chen wishes. Lu Tianhao was aware of Chen Yu, and now that Chen Yu had made a move, there was no harm to Tianchang Group. Naturally, he threw up his hands in favor of it. After hanging up the phone, Lu Ming blinked his eyes and became even more confused. What the hell? Why are they all crazy? Shit, the old man doesn't care. The sky is falling and there's a tall one to hold it. Just do as you say. Lu Ming crossed his heart and started contacting Zhao Gu. Chen Yu stood in front of the villa with his arms folded, looking at Lu Ming's vehicle as it drifted away, the corner of his mouth sketching out a smile. In Lu Ming's eyes, this was something heavenly, but in his eyes, it was just a small thing. The reason for taking these people in was purely for ease of doing business. Although he was an immortal cultivator, he was after all just a human being. Daily practice would take up a lot of his time. It is also impossible to do many chores in person. This calls for some hitters. The Tianchang group is mainly a business, which is considered to be a source of funds, and is only suitable for doing some things on the surface. In the case of the Inhuman Bureau, they were all working for the Dragon Kingdom, and it wasn't appropriate to go and take care of some of their own personal matters. Come to think of it, it's these underworld guys that are the easiest to use. A quaint courtyard in the northern part of the city of Jinchuan, a middle-aged man sat on a taiji chair, playing with a pair of jade balls in his hands. Before his eyes, a group of people were naked and practicing martial arts. They practiced the eight extremes fist, their moves were fierce and domineering, and the sound of humming and hawing echoed continuously in the courtyard, with just a single move of the eyes. One could feel an aura like a blazing fire cooking oil. Okay, all stop. The middle-aged man rose and spoke aloud. The crowd in the courtyard immediately stood still. The middle-aged man smiled faintly and said, There's something fun to tell you guys. Just now Lu Ming from the Tianchang group gave me a call. Tomorrow, one of their new shareholders is coming to visit me. The purpose is simple. To take me in. What should we do? You guys? The middle-aged man was Zhao Gu. And just a short while ago, he received a call from Lu Ming. Upon hearing the news, he laughed on the spot. What the fuck is a surprise? That's it. Someone, who was stupid enough to try to take them. When the people in the courtyard heard this, they were first stunned, and then burst into gales of laughter. My god, is that guy out of his mind, going to take us in? Tan Chang group, what kind of idiot said that? Gee, I'm suddenly curious to see what this idiot looks like. Fuck him, it's clear that he doesn't have us in his sights. A drum roll. Zhao Gu pressed his hand and smiled. Everyone go and get ready. Remember to give them a meat and greet gift tomorrow. Yes, the crowd roared with scoffing looks on their faces. When the crowd dispersed, Zhao Go left one person behind. Tricky, what do you think about this? Shui Ji, Zhao Ji's right-hand man, is quick-witted and a wise general. Hearing Zhao Ji's question, Shui Ji frowned slightly. Brother Zhao, I'm afraid things aren't that simple. Oh, how? Shui Ji thought for a moment and said, Our Zhao company, even though we keep a low profile on weekdays and aren't well known to the public, the Tancheng group still knows some of our details. All along, Everyone has been going their own way. Well water, hardly ever crossing paths. But this time, Lu Ming suddenly sent a message, indicating that they are very sure of themselves, knowing that we're not to be messed with, and still daring to say such words. That mysterious shareholder is afraid to be extraordinary. Zhao Gu snorted coldly and said, So what if we're not average? Are we just average? Although we claim to be a company to the outside world, you know very well that we are an ancient martial arts sect. It's just that unlike those hidden sects, we chose to enter the world to develop. I really don't believe that a mere Tianchang group can make any waves in our place. Zhao Ji's hands violently exerted force, and the two jade balls in his hands were actually crushed into pieces. Chivalry is forbidden by martial arts. So in today's society, most ancient martial arts sects are hidden from the world. But there are also some sects do not want to hunker down in a corner, but want to be in this world of flowers, with their own learning to win a brilliant future. Most ancient martial arts sects chose to cooperate with some big families and enter the world secretly, but there are some radical ones that choose to enter the world as a whole. Of course, with the regulation of the Inhuman Bureau, they dare not touch some red lines. However, being equipped with supernatural arts, the path of development is much better than that of an ordinary person. Zhou's is the latter. Nonetheless, Zhao, you still need to be more careful. Chui Ji continued to remind. What you say also makes sense. Tomorrow when they come here, we'll treat them well. Zhao Gu grinned, a touch of playfulness appearing in his eyes. 
Our sex three gifts haven't been brought out in many years. What? Three gifts? Brother Zhao, you are going to. Upon hearing the three rites, Chui Ji's face suddenly changed, filled with shock. The three rites. It's been old for as long as Trey Chi can remember. In the past years of turmoil, their sex three rites had really scared a lot of people. With the development of the times, there is social stability and harmony. This thing was thought to never come back, but I didn't think it was going to come out again. Zhao, have you thought this through? Will this be too much? Zhao Gu smiled coldly. Since they dared to come, of course I'm going to make an impression on them. Want to take us? Well then, I'll take a good look to see if they have the skills. I see. Chui Ji nodded, and sighed in his heart. Tian Chang Group, I really don't know what you guys are thinking, and why do you have to mess with us? I wonder if you'll be scared out of your wits when you meet Sun Li tomorrow? Shaking his head, Trey Chi left the courtyard and went forward to get ready. Soon it was time for the next day. Chun Yu, accompanied by Lu Ming, arrived at Zhao Ji's residence. Is this Zhao's company? It's quite unique. Standing in front of the gate, Chun Yu looked at the surrounding scene with some surprise. In front of him was a large mansion, decorated in an old style, like an ancient mansion. The gate was vermilion with rows of brass nails. There are two stone lions at the entrance, which are powerful and dominant. It was very empty all around, with little pedestrian traffic. Lu Ming showed a bitter smile on his face and said, Zhao's company has always been more old school. Old school is better. Chen Yu nodded, more than satisfied. Come on, let's go in. Okay. Lu Ming stiffly went to knock on the door. It wasn't long before the door opened and a young man poked his head out. Hello, we're from the Tianchang group and have come to pay our respects. That's you guys? The young man's eyes glazed over with anger. He opened the door to the room and greeted the inside. Tianchen group is here. Brothers come out. Wow. In the courtyard, a group of people rushed out at once, listing in two rows. Everyone was dressed in uniform black power suits, holding a long knife in their hands, standing still and staring at Lu Ming. Poof. Lu Ming was directly paralyzed with fear. His mind confused. Nima, am I on the wrong set? What kind of scene is this for a modern company? It's clearly an ancient bandit den. Lu Ming was a businessman after all, and had been exposed to the usual society since he was a child. He had only seen these things in movies and TV shows too. How could I have imagined that I would see this kind of thing in our society nowadays? Now appearing in front of his eyes, the impact was like a mountain of noise. Chen Yu raised an eyebrow and a smile was drawn on the corner of his mouth. Obviously, the other party was going to give him a hard time. But no matter, this kind of company, it was exactly what he needed. Not so formal, with a touch of banditry. It's only easy to use it later. Walking forward, Chen Yu lifted Lu Ming. Don't be afraid. Let's go. Ha, good, good. Lu Ming took out a handkerchief and shivered as he wiped the sweat from his head. The two of them headed toward the inner room as the crowd watched. Along the way, two columns of swords and axes men stared at the two men in death, their hands gripping their long knives, because they were too hard, their veins bulging. It seemed that the next moment was going to slaughter the two. Lu Ming was so scared that his heart and liver trembled and he shivered all over. Chen Yu looked indifferent, not caring at all. Soon, the two came to the front hall. The house made a crowd. At the very front, Zhao Gu was dressed in a tang suit, sitting on a tie-shirt chair. He was like a fierce tiger, staring straight at Chen Yu. The others were also cold and sullen, their brows filled with fury. He he, Lu Ming, your Tianchang group really has good guts. Dare to come after us? What? No introductions? Zhao Gu had a playful look on his face. Lu Ming hurriedly accompanied the smile and made mutual introductions. Dong Zhao, we didn't mean to offend. You mustn't misunderstand. Mr. Chen came and just wanted to say hello. Zhao Gu looked Chen Yu up and down, secretly surprised in his heart. He had thought a lot about this mysterious shareholder, but it just never occurred to him that it would be such a young man. Chen Yu right, you're taking us in? Well, I need some people to do things for me. Chen Yu did not hide anything and spoke faintly. Zhao Gu raised his eyebrows and his heart tightened slightly. Chen Yu's calm demeanor and lack of the slightest bit of stage fright made him a bit confused about the path. The others looked at each other and didn't say anything, but in each other's eyes, there was a touch of coldness. In Jinchuan City, no one had ever dared to talk to them like that. Even a family like the Song family would not be so arrogant. Let me do something for you? It's not impossible, but it depends on whether you have the skills. Come on, the last three rites. At Zhao Ji's command, someone immediately stepped forward and took out three things. A large knife a Taiwanese chair, and a tub of varnish. Lu Ming took a look at the three items and nearly fainted from fear. First, there was the large knife, which had a number of dark brown blood spots on it, left over from the killings back in the day. 
The Unix chair was different from ordinary chairs in that it was covered with a fine layer of steel needles up to 3 inches long. The varnish sits on a rack underneath a hot charcoal fire that gurgles the oil. What does that mean? Chen Yu raised an eyebrow. Somewhat puzzled. Xiao Gu laughed and said. This is a tradition left by our old ancestors. The three rites. Since Mr. Chen intends to take us in, please sit on this stool. Wash your hands with this intense oil, and receive a cup of big dagger tea. If you can stay alive, even if I take you as my master. So what? I just don't know. Do you dare? Zhao Ji's face was full of smiles and his expression was flirtatious. The people present all smiled, full of contempt. Lu Ming grabbed Chen Yu's arm and shivered. Mr. Chen, let's, let's go. These people aren't normal people. Chen Yu, however, just smiled and shook his head. No harm done, since they want to play. Just play with them. Xiao Gu, remember what you said. Swinging away from Lu Ming, Chen Yu walked over to the eunuch chair, sweeping his eyes over those fine pinpricks on the chair. Chen Yu sat down on the spot. Wow. The people present all leaned forward and stared at Chen Yu with a look of astonishment. Moving out the three rights, they were only there to scare Chen Yu. Unexpectedly, Chen Yu was so reckless that he really had to sit down. Lu Ming was so scared that his face was bloodless and his entire body went soft. Zhao Gu tightly gripped the handrail and stared dead at Chen Yu. This guy, is he gonna get zapped? Xiao Gu, are you afraid? Chen Yu smiled and spoke with a relaxed expression. You, all right? Zhao Gu looked shocked and suspicious, staring straight at the eunuch's chair. Chen Yu smiled without saying anything and slowly got up. Seeing the sight of the eunuch's chair, the scene immediately resounded with the sound of cold air being sucked in. On every face, there was a look of having seen a ghost. Those steel needles on the eunuch's chair were just a moment ago still standing, glistening with cold light. But at this moment, they had all been crushed into a puddle of soft mud. Crap? Lu Ming's mouth was wide open and he subconsciously burst out in foul language. Mister. Chen is okay? And crushed steel nails into the ground with one ass? What kind of steel ass is this? Zhao Ji's mind was horrified, and his eyes were almost glazed over. The steel nails on the eunuch's chair are cast in steel. Even horizontal training techniques such as iron cloth shirt could not achieve such an effect unless they reached a high level. This kid, he's a master of external kung fu? Zhao Gu secretly pondered in his heart. Chen Yu was all smiles as he said. Now, can you let me wash my hands? Zhao Gu suppressed the shock in his heart and waved his hand. The two men brought the boiling hot oil, which had already boiled, to Chen Yu. Some flying insects were so smoked that they fell into the tub of oil and were immediately fried with a loud crunch. Lu Ming's scalp was numb and he had already covered his eyes not daring to look at it again. All around, the others all stretched their necks and looked at Chen Yu. Please, Zhao Gu made a gesture of invitation. Chen Yu smiled faintly and inserted his hands into the boiling oil. The room was silent. Everyone held their breath and stared at the pot of boiling oil. Chen Yu's hand just like that, plunged in. He copied the hot oil and kept washing his hands. The hot oil that was originally boiling was actually cooling down at a speed visible to the naked eye. This can't be right. Seeing this scene, someone immediately shouted. Their eyes filled with disbelief. Lu Ming lowered the palm that was blocking his eyes and carefully looked at it. And then he was completely dumbfounded. What the hell is going on here? Shouldn't your hand be in the hot oil, bubbling and smelling like a skewer? Nothing at all now? Could it be that mister? Chen is a magician? What was happening in front of him was beyond his knowledge and could only be attributed to magic or something like that. Zhao Ji's pupils contracted dramatically as he stared dead at Chen Yu, waves of shock rising in his heart. In all fairness, he, Zhao Gu, couldn't make it this far, but at a young age, he had seen his seniors in the sect do it. That was a peak Hotian martial arts expert. At that time, he had been able to catalyze his true qi and briefly attach it to the surface of his palm. Even if you insert your hands into the hot oil, you will be able to insulate them for a short time. This kid in front of me is actually a peak Hotian martial arts expert. How the hell does he practice? So young to get to this point? Is this what he has to offer to take us in? Zhao Gu, how's it going? Chen Yu fished his hands out of the hot oil and looked at Zhao Gu with a smile. Zhao Gu narrowed his eyes and coldly gazed at Chen Yu. A moment later, a grin. I didn't expect it, but it's actually a peak Hotian teenage expert. No wonder you dared to come here and act recklessly. But don't be too happy too soon. Among the three rites, there is one last one. The Great Sword T. Ah, see, go ask uncle to come out. With a broken voice, a young man immediately stood out from the crowd. After arching his hand, he left the lobby, and shortly afterward accompanied an old man with a head full of white hair. The old man had crane hair, and his eyelids were drooping as if he hadn't woken up. Uncle, when Zhao Gu saw the visitor, he immediately stepped forward and bowed. Xiao Gu, I heard there's a great man who's coming to drink our dagger tea? Yes, 
That's him, pointing at Chen Yu. Zhao Ji's eyes narrowed slightly. His name is Chen Yu, a peak Hotian expert. Swish, the old man's originally shrugged eyelids immediately flipped, revealing a hidden sharp gaze. This gaze was like a knife, and Lu Ming only felt as if a bolt of lightning had crossed the entire lobby between the opening and closing of the old man's eyes. He was given a shiver of fear, secretly smacking his lips at how an old man could have such a sharp gaze. Chen Yu's expression remained unchanged as he just quietly looked at the old man. Oh, heroes come out of youth. I didn't expect that. Zhao Gu looked at Chen Yu and spoke. Chen Yu, next, my uncle, Zhao and Xion, will serve you the great sword tea. My uncle is an expert at the peak of the Hotian, and has been living in seclusion for more than 10 years, only to see through the obstacles and step into the innate. It's an honor to be able to do it yourself now. Lu Ming blinked like a fool. Innate? Post-apocalyptic? What is this mess? You messed up in a martial arts world? Chen Yu swept his eyes at Zhao and Xiong and nodded slightly. That's fine. Cho Un Hong, serve the tea. The corners of Zhao and Xiong's eyes jumped slightly as fire rose in his heart. In all these years, it was the first time someone had dared to speak to him in such a condescending manner. And a junior at that. He he, good. Chen Yu kid, this mouthful of tea from the old man is not a good catch. You have to be careful. As the words fell, Zhao and Xiong undid his top and went naked. A dried up body appeared in front of Chen Yu and Lu Ming. However, in the next moment, he let out a roar and his muscles swelled up at a speed visible to the naked eye. In a matter of seconds, it was transformed into a bodybuilder with exaggeratedly large muscles. Holy crap! Lu Ming screamed in fear, causing the surrounding crowd to burst into laughter. Chen Yu still looked as normal and just watched quietly. Zhao and Xiang didn't say anything, and with a single hand, the large sword next to him was grasped in his hand. With a single vibration of his hand, a cup of tea, landed firmly on the blade. Big knife tea, served with a knife. The person who was served tea either couldn't catch it and was stabbed to death. It's either that or avoid the loss of face. So far, there was not a single person who had actually caught the dagger tea. Chun Yu, take the tea. Zhao Enxion let out a roar and poked his sword straight at Chun Yu's head. With this slash, Zhao Enxion used all his strength. He was like a running thunder, arriving in front of Chen Yu in the blink of an eye, on the arm holding the knife. Veins were rippling and coiled and twisted together, filled with an extreme sense of power. The blade exuded a chilling light. The tip of the knife was facing Chen Yu's mouth. This slash had surpassed the limits of human reflexes. However, the Chen Yu at this moment was already inhuman. He remained where he was, hands behind his back. In the face of this ferocious slash, his expression did not change at all and remained the same. This kid, stared silly, doesn't he know how to dodge? Zhao Gu was shocked in his heart. But the next moment, Chen Yu's maneuver made him so scared that his scalp went numb. Chen Yu was not immobile. Just as Zhao and Xiong sent the knife coming, Chen Yu opened his mouth and bit down on the tip of the knife. Crunch! Zhao and Xiong, who was coming in a hurry, was forced to a hard stop, due to the speed. His hand holding the knife was directly worn through the skin due to the excessive friction. The whole room, in an instant, was dead silent. The people present were collectively petrified, staring dumbfounded at this scene. Caught it? Or in such a simple way? That, that was Zhou Hong's best shot. Zhao Ji's mind was shaken. God, what did he see? The great sword T that no one has ever caught before. But he caught it? Aren't both of them peak Hotian experts? How does the gap seem so wide now? Lu Ming's mouth grew into an O shape and his mind was a mess. Who am I and where am I? Did someone bite the knife with their mouth? Am I dreaming yet? At this moment, Lu Ming's worldview had been completely turned upside down. Zhao and Xiong froze in place, looking at Shen Yu with unbelief. With that slash just now, he did not have the slightest bit of retention and did it with the idea of killing Chen Yu. Never in a million years would I have expected this result. Just as he froze, Chen Yu's eyes flashed as his true essence burst forth. Zhao and Xiong only felt like he had been hit with a heavy hammer in his chest and instantly flew backwards. Chen Yu exerted a little force, and the large sword was bitten off. The cup of tea on the knife fell with it. However, Chen Yu used his true essence to fix it in mid-air. With a single suck of his mouth, the tea turned into a column of water and was sucked into Chun Yu's mouth. Lu Ming rubbed his eyes, confused. What the hell kind of magic is this? The people present were dumbfounded, their scalps numbed by Chin Yu's show. Zhao and Xion let out a terrified scream at the sight. You, you're not a Hotian peak, you're an innate master. Screams that echoed throughout the lobby. The crowd's minds were roaring. Innate master? What do you mean? Hiss. He, he's actually, he's actually an innate master? Initially, the crowd didn't react, and when they realized it, they were all confused. Zhao Ji's gaze was blank and his mouth was open like a fool. This young man, not a peak Hotian powerhouse, but an innate master? 
But, but how is that possible? How old is he? In his twenties, and he's already an innate master? Is there really such a demon in the world? Do you only see it now? That's not a very good eye you have. Shun Yu smiled coldly, like a god, looking down on Zhao and Xiong who had fallen to the ground. Now, what else do I need to do? Wow, Zhao and Xiong immediately rolled over and fell to his knees, his body trembling slightly. Sir above, it's En Xiong who has eyes, please forgive him. Xiao Ge, why don't you all kneel down? Zhao Ji's body shook and immediately kneeled down. In the room, everyone was on their knees with their heads buried deep. We, the others, pay our respects to you. Sir, the sound waves rolled with infinite awe. Lu Ming turned his head and looked around, his eyes filled with shock. Xiao Ge, the underground big shot of Jin Chuan City. Now you're just kneeling in front of Mr. Chen. Looking at that, it was clear that he was scared to death. Get up, Chen Yu shouted, and only then did the crowd dare to stand up. Mr. Chen, the little old man has eyes but does not recognize MT. Tai, please forgive me. Zhao and Xiong was still respectful and lowered his head, not even daring to look at Chen Yu. No harm done. Now that the three rites are over, what else do you have in mind? I dare not. Zhao and Xiong waved his hands repeatedly, looking terrified. It's our good fortune that Mr. Chen wants to take us in. How dare we refuse? The entire Four Fist sect, from today onwards, will serve as Mr. Chen's master, and we will definitely go all out for any dispatch from Mr. Chen in the future. Zhao's company, that's the Four Fists gate. Chen Yu nodded, satisfied that Zhao and Xiong was so sensible. Very well, you will not suffer. Glancing at Zhao and Xiong, Chen Yu laughed. Seeing the way you were just now, you've been harboring essence within, wanting to break through to the innate? Yes, it's just a pity that the little old man's qualifications are dull, so I'm afraid I have no hope in this life. A touch of despondency appeared on Zhao Enxiong's face. He had lived in seclusion for many years, not asking questions about the world, seeking to break through the innate. It's just that now he's getting older and worse by the day. The internal storage of essence was also a helpless move, mainly to avoid depletion as much as possible. That's why it's a thin and weak look on a daily basis. But at his age, even if he tried to collect his essence, he could not resist the erosion of the years after all. As time passed, the hope of breaking through the realm became smaller and smaller, and had become almost impossible. Chun Yu smiled and shook his head. It's not hopeless. While it is important to collect essence, one must also be able to refine it. I'll teach you a method that can help you break through the innate. Chen Yu uttered a catchphrase. This was the most common foundation building technique in the immortal cultivation world and it was trash to Chen Yu, but for Zhao and Xiong, it was nothing less than an amazing treasure. Compared to this gongfu, the martial arts he had previously practiced were simply a trashy mess. After hearing this, Zhao and Xiong knelt in front of Chen Yu and thumped his head continuously. Thank you sir, thank you sir, Mr. Recreation's grace, En Xiong will never forget, will never forget ah. Zhao and Xiong had a snotty nose and a tearful face, and was so excited that he completely lost his temper. Breaking through the innate realm was his lifelong dream. I thought this dream had been dashed, but I didn't expect to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So how can I not be excited? It was a long time before he stood up and wiped his face, a little embarrassed. I'm sorry to make you laugh. Sir, that's okay. Sir, you're just going to give me such a valuable treasure? Aren't you worried that after I break through the innate? Then, Zhao and Xiong didn't finish his sentence, but the meaning of it was obvious. When I break through the innate, we'll be on the same level. At that time, can you still hold me down? The reason why he asked this, Zhao and Xiong also had his own considerations. They, the Four Fist Sect, could work for Chen Yu, but they also had to see if Chen Yu had the ability to do so. Chen Yu just smiled gently, not caring in the slightest. If I can give it to you, I can take it back. In the future, if you have second thoughts, I will just send your Four Fist Sect into the Yellow Springs. Chen Yu's tone was bland, as if he was talking about a trivial matter. However, in the entire lobby, the atmosphere steeply changed and was filled with solemnity. Zhao Enxiong's scalp tingled and his heart contracted hard. Just for a moment, he was sure of one thing. Chen Yu wasn't joking. Even if he himself broke through the innate, he was still far from being Chen Yu's opponent. He's, like, so much more terrifying than I thought. Zhao Enxiong lowered his head, the corners of his eyes popping. The next moment, he suddenly thought of something. Mr. Chen. Recently there was a first prefectural zone in the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. I wonder if you know about it. That man is me. Chen Yu spoke faintly. What? You? Are that first prefectural father? Zhao and Xiong exclaimed in shock. And Zhao Ji's pupils quaked. At the scene, a sound of cold air was heard. The Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province informed all parties some time ago that the first prefecture zone was an innate master. 
At that time, the group of people from the Four Fist sect even discussed for a long time, speculating on who this first prefecture Zun was. Never would I have expected that it would be the one in front of me. En Xiong's eyes are clumsy. Please forgive me, sir. From today onwards, I, the Four Fist sect, am willing to do the work of a dog and horse for the first to take effect, without hesitation. Zhao Enxiong's tone was firm and full of excitement. Earlier, Zhao Enxiong was still somewhat resistant to Qin Yu's desire to take over the Four Fist sect. After all, in doing so, they lose their freedom, but now those resistances are gone. The first prefectural honor. Ah, this has an official background. Working under him would be extremely beneficial to the development of the Four Fist sect. After staying at the Four Fist sect for some more time, Chen Yu left by car. Standing at the door, after sending Chen Yu away, Zhao and Xiang was still red-faced. Xiao Gu, go inform the other two families and ask them to come over tomorrow. Aren't they curious as to who's going to take us in? Now, just tell them. Zhao Gu nodded, looking a little hesitant. Uncle, if we tell them, they're bound to want to throw themselves under Mr. Chen's command. Will it steal our thunder? Zhao and Xiang laughed. Your pattern has to be enlarged. Even if you don't say anything, how long can you hide this matter? Remember, when you work for Mr. Chen. You have to consider things from Mr. Chen's perspective. What my four fist sect family can do for Mr. Chen is limited. What we need to do is help Mr. Chen unify the entire Jinchuan city underground world. From now on, there will only be one king in the underground world of Jinchuan city, and that's Mr. Chen. Zhao Ji's eyes brightened and he nodded heavily. Yes, on the second day, the four fist skate, the other two giants of the Jinchuan underground world arrived as promised, before he even entered. A thunderous laugh rang out. Xiao Gu, which little Thane wants to take you guys, did you beat his ass? With the loud voice, two people, a man and a woman, walked into the four fifth sex lobby and came in front of Xiao Gu. Both are middle-aged. The man had a long, country face and a flat, bushy beard, a pair of eyes like a bull's eye, glistening with essence. The woman was dressed in a long dress and had an excellent figure. The face had some signs of age, but it was obvious that it was also a beauty in her youth. You're here? Zhao Gu looked at the two of them, his eyes flashed, and he opened his mouth with a smile. These two people were the two people who were his equals in the underground world of Jinchuan City. The man's name is Gu Shan and the woman's name is Gong Yin. Like the Four Fist sect, the two were also ancient martial arts heirs, bringing their respective sects into the world and breaking into this family business. Hey, Zhou Go, you haven't answered my question. How about it? Who the hell is it that dares to say that they want to take over your Four Fist sect? Gushan sat down with a big grin and opened his mouth to inquire. Gushan and Gong Yan received the news after Chen Yu sent the message earlier. Both had the same first reaction. It's a fucking joke. At the same time, they were eager to see Chen Yu's jokes. The three of them were the same three big shots in the underground world, and they fought a lot on a regular basis. But for Chen Yu to take in Zhao Gu was tantamount to slapping three people in the face. This is something Gushan and Gong Yan can't stand. Zhao Gu, what the hell is going on? How did you end up dealing with that guy? Gong Yan was curious. You guys really want to know? Zhao Gu had a smile on his face and sold the idea. Ouch. You tell me. Katsushika straightened and slapped his thigh. Zhao Gu let out a long sigh and said, Truth be told, I, the Four Fist sect, have already thrown myself under Mr. Chen's command. What? You're really taken? Gushan and Gong Yan stood up violently and looked at Zhao Gu with wide eyes. Having fought for years, they knew Zhao Ji's character well. Eyes above the ground. No one in sight. Not to mention taking him under his wing, it would be hard to even get him to bend over. Now, how did it get collected? That Mr. Chen, what kind of character is he to be able to make it this far? Both of you, it is also your fortune that you have come today. Join me and become one of Mr. Chen's men. Boom! A burst of thunder resounded in the two men's heads, and their entire bodies were confused. What the hell is this? Xiao Gu, he's trying to drag us into this? Is he crazy? Hmm. Xiao Gu. If you want to be a dog for someone, that's your business. Lao Zi is not willing to do so. Gu Shan was full of contempt and spat. Gong Yan narrowed her eyes and quietly looked at Zhao Gu. I'm curious. What kind of character is this Mr. Chen? That he would make you all bow down for him? Zhao Gu laughed. You guys know that my four fifth sect has three gifts, right? Yesterday, I entertained him with this. Hiss. The two men sniffed and sucked in a breath of cold air. The three rites of the four fifth sect had a great reputation. Although they had not seen it with their own eyes, they had seen it recorded in the canonical books. Just looking at it makes your head spin. So far, no one has survived the three rites. Is it hard to believe that that person even survived the three rites? Gong Yan looked astonished. To have survived the three rites, 
This kind of character is not ordinary, Gushan Sked. Then I can understand why you were taken under his wing. But even after surviving the three rites, didn't Master Zhao and Xiong make a move? Zhao Gu shook his head. You guys are wrong. Mr. Chen did not survive the three rites, but crossed them with ease. My uncle ended up offering Mr. Chen a big knife tea. But Mr. Chen injured my uncle with just a look. That scene. With a long sigh, Zhao Gu seemed to have seen that scene from yesterday again. The mouth bites the big knife, and the dragon sucks water in the air. What a miracle that was. Gushan and Gongyan were stunned and somewhat hard to believe. A look that hurts your uncle? Are you kidding me? Can it be that he's still an innate master? Katsushika forced a smile, thinking to himself that he had made a good joke. Xiao Gu, however, nodded seriously. Not bad, Mr. Chen, is indeed an innate master. As soon as the words left their mouths, Gushan and Gongyan were dumbfounded. Innate master? Man, this legendary character, coming to collect the Four Fists sect? Is this a dream? Seeing the expressions on the two men's faces, Zhao Gu was inexplicably a bit cool. Wanting to get even better, he threw in the towel again. By the way, Mr. Chen has another identity. He's the one mentioned by the Inhuman Bureau of Jianling Province a few days ago. That first prefect, Snort. Thunder exploded inside the two men's heads, and their entire bodies went numb. He, he's that first prefectural exalt. Did I hear you right? This, is this real? Satisfied with the reaction of the two, Zhao Gu smiled and nodded. Not bad, gentlemen, this is an opportunity for you. Do you want to, with us, throw yourselves under Mr. Chen's banner? Gu Shan and Gong Yan looked at each other, and after a few seconds nodded with great understanding. Good, from today onwards, both of us will follow Mr. Chen as our master. The two have been through thick and thin and are not demented. How to choose in this situation in front of them, they understand very well. Soon. The three of them agreed on the specific details and prepared to visit Chen Yu at an opportune time. On the second day, Gangnam University of Science and Technology, Chen Yu was lying on the dormitory bed and was chatting with Xiao Yunyue on WeChat. 6. You're not going to class? The dormitory boss, Li Pei, opened his mouth to inquire. Chen Yu laughed. I'm not good at studying, so I won't understand if I go, so I won't go. He came to college just to experience life. As for studying? Well, forget it. It's nothing to do with myself. Damn. You old six. You're so damn dashing. Let's go then. A few people said hello and left the dormitory. Chun Yu smiled. This college life, carefree, is indeed enjoyable. Looking at the screen, Xiao Yunyue had just sent a message. Do you have time in a few days? There's a field day at school you can join. I'm going to sit this one out. Something's come up. What is it? Well, in a few days I'm going to the Jinchuan River to face off against an expert. Chen Yu was honest. There are still a few days to go before Interchieftain Thunder arrives. He himself will fight him to the death on the Jinchuan River. School field day. I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. Xiao Yunyue sent an emoticon that rolled her eyes. Oh duh. Well, good luck with the flag. I still want you to be in the games. Though, I'll try to make it back then. Okay. By the way, it's my birthday the day after tomorrow. Can I ask the big handsome man to do me the honor of coming to have dinner with me? A big beautiful girl invited. I'll definitely come. Aha, uh -huh, then let's make a deal. No backing out. Never reverse. Putting down his cell phone, the corner of Chen Yu's mouth curled into a smile. No one believes in telling the truth these days. I really want to go to the Jinchuan River to fight to the death. Let's see then. If we can solve the criminal Chen Lei as soon as possible, and rush back to participate in the games. Also, Yun Yu's birthday is coming up. Still need to prepare a gift. With my means nowadays, I can refine a body protection artifact for him. On the other side, in the girl's dormitory, Xiao Yunyue stared at the cell phone screen, inexplicably her heart beating a little faster and filled with anticipation. A few housemates laughed and chatted with Xiao Yunyue, and after learning that Xiao Yunyue had invited Chen Yu, they immediately secretly sent a message to Chang Haoming. Grass. Chang Haoming was at home and smashed his cell phone directly after seeing the message. His eyes were glaring in death, and the fury in his eyes rolled over. Chen Yu, you're also worthy of coming to Yun Yu's birthday party? I'll make sure you know what it means to strike down. Chang Haoming's growl echoed through the living room. A middle-aged man walked out of the study, glancing at the smashed cell phone on the floor. He frowned. His name is Chang De Fa, and he is Chang Haoming's father. Shimmy, what's wrong with you? Dad, I'm not convinced. What gives a factory dog the right to enter our school? And chatting with the woman I'm eyeing? And now, to be invited to her birthday party? Fuck, I don't even qualify for that. And I have to buy off her housemates and go quietly not daring her to find out ahead of time. 
Chang Haoming gritted his teeth and told Chang DFA about the situation. In the living room, Chang Haoming's mother, Zhang Yushan, was also there. Before Chang DFA could say anything, Zhang Yushan was reluctant. Is this woman blind? My son is so outstanding that she can't look at him and has to go chat with a factory dog? Bitchy or not? Mom, don't say that about Yunyue. Humph, what did I say about her? She's just being a bitch. You're a bit out of your league too. Being played by a female. What a shame. If you ask me, just take a hundred thousand dollars and put it in front of her and I'll see if she'll sleep with you? Zhang Yushan hated the iron and was furious. Chang Haoming scrunched his neck, somewhat unconvinced. Yun Yu isn't that kind of woman, or I wouldn't be able to look at her. Zhang Yushan was about to speak when Chang DFA frowned. All right, all of you, settle down. Is this little thing worth talking about? Now that the landscape of Jinchuan City has changed, you guys are still in the mood to talk about this? Chang Haoming and Zhang Yushan froze. Deva, what's wrong? Chang DFA sighed and said, Old Zhang called me just now, saying that something big happened in Jinchuan City yesterday. The three giants of the underground world, Xiao Gu, Gu Shan, and Gong Yan, no longer fight each other. What? Haven't they always been at odds? Why don't they fight anymore? Is it hard not to make an alliance? Zhang Yushan's complexion changed as she opened her mouth to inquire. It's not an alliance, but all three have been taken in by a mysterious big man. They volunteered to be the man's men, so of course they won't fight anymore. I heard that they called that person Mr. Chun. I really don't know. What kind of character is this Mr. Chen? To be able to convince those three giants, Chang DFA looked emotional. Chang Haoming was dumbfounded on the sidelines. The Underworld Triumvirate, a name he had heard Chang DFA mention many times. Every time he mentions it, Chang Defat does so with awe, and the reason why it's so topical is because of business. The Chang family's business depends on a boss named Zhang, and this boss, Zhang, was only one of Gu Shan's juniors in the triumvirate. Now that the landscape of the underground world has changed drastically, it will naturally affect the business of the Chang family. Heavens, what kind of character is this Mr. Chen? Surprisingly, he has this kind of energy? Zhang Yushan covered her mouth and exclaimed in shock, her eyes wide. Then she thought of something and suddenly opened her mouth. Defa, do you think it's possible for us to hook up with this mister? Chen, if we can embrace such a thigh, our Chang family will be rich. Chang DFA rolled his eyes. What are you delusional about? Let alone mister. Chen, even Gu Shan, we are not qualified to see him. Let's know our weight and not upset the big guy. Zhang Yushan smiled sarcastically and said, don't I also want our family to be better? She also knew that it was unrealistic for her to mention this. Chang DFA sighed. The most important thing now is to inquire about the news with old Zhang, with the three giants together. The underground world of Jinchuan City is equal to completing the great unification. The future pattern has changed drastically. A strong awe appeared in Chang Haoming's eyes. These things, just hearing them already made his blood run cold and his breathing ragged. Chang DFA looked at Chang Haoming and spoke in a serious tone. Haoming, you're not young anymore. Don't spend your mind on jealousy. Men, the most important thing is power. A mere factory dog. Is it worth your concern? Your father and I have come as far as I can go. The future depends on you. Maybe in 20 years, you'll have a chance to surpass me. If you can reach the heights of the triumvirate and saddle Mr. Chen, it would be considered my Chang family's glory. When you serve Mr. Chen 20 years from now, you'll realize that a factory dog from 20 years ago is nothing at all. That's just a speck of floating dust, never in the same class as people like us. Chang Haoming's body was solemn and he nodded heavily. Don't worry father, I'll work hard. In his heart, a strong sense of mission suddenly rose. Indeed, who am I? Chang Haoming? The hope of the Chang family. A proper second generation. The kind of goods like Chen Yu has no qualifications to compare with me. I can understand the dramatic changes in the underground world of Jinchuan City. What can Chen Yu know? Play games and order takeout. That's all. He had no access to such advanced information. Once I told the story about the triumvirate at Yun Yu's birthday party, Xiao Yun Yu and the girls were probably going to be scared silly. At that time, I wasn't mopping up and crushing Chen Yu. At the thought of this, Chang Haoming rose with incomparable anticipation. Well, I'm going to go meet old Chang and find out what's going on right now. After Chang DFA finished, he left the house. Chang Haoming returned to his room with a spirited look on his face. He asked Xiao Yunyue's roommate on WeChat what Xiao Yunyue liked. Villa 1, 4th Floor Terrace. Chen Yu sat cross-legged with his five hearts facing the sky, gazing and closing his eyes. He was running the Tianji skill to cultivate. With him as the center, a special aura enveloped the area within a hundred meter radius. Xiao Gu, Gu Shan, and Gong Yan came outside the villa and looked up, just in time to be able to see Qingyu. This is the first prefecture Zun. Mr. 
Chen, so fucking young? Gu Shan's eyes widened in shock. Gong Yan immediately made a silent gesture. Don't disturb Mr. Chen. Can't you see? Mr. Chen is cultivating. Zhao Gu nodded and gazed around with a shocked expression. Have you guys noticed that there's something special about coming around the villa just now? Gong Yan nodded, looking shocked. Indeed. I just looked. And the insects and birds flying nearby all looked as if they were immobilized. In this vicinity, it's enveloped by an extremely large aura that makes these beings not dare to make a move. Katsushika's eyes widened and he looked up and around before rubbing his head. Hey, damn it's true. I wasn't even paying attention earlier. Putting it that way, I'm feeling a little weird too. Like there's a deep sense of awe when I get here. This feels so damn weird. Why the hell is it? Gong Yan looked up at Chen Yu with a complicated expression. What else could it be? Everything is because of Mr. Chen. Right at this moment, Chen Yu finished his cultivation and slowly opened his eyes. All around as if unbound. All living beings regained the ability to move. Seeing the three, Chen Yu's figure flashed. Before the three could react, Chen Yu was already standing in front of them. Greetings, Mr. Chen. The three were shocked in their hearts and hurriedly bowed and clasped their fists, not daring to show the slightest disrespect. Facing Chen Yu, they felt as if they had met the gods in a Taoist temple. You guys are good, and later you'll be proud of the choices you're making now. Willing to serve Mr. Chen. I do have some things for you to do. Chen Yu thought for a moment and slowly spoke. When the three of them heard this, their expressions changed drastically. Mr. Chen. You, you're telling the truth? You are trying to stab the sky. The three of them stared with wide eyes, all of them looking horrified. What Chen Yu had just said had really frightened them. The first thing he wanted the three of them to do was to deal with all of the Song family's properties in Jinchuan City. That's the Song family. Although they were the underworld triumvirate, they knew very well what kind of existence the Song family was. Over the years, they had fought with each other, but never dared to touch the Song family. The Song family had never asked about the three families either, because each other are simply not on the same level. Against the Song family? It was something they hadn't even thought about. Not bad. It's against the Song family. I have a great grudge against the Song family. Either he dies or I die. Chen Yu's expression was indifferent and his tone was very calm. Three hearts and minds. You die and I live. Hearing this, the three of them secretly grumbled in their hearts. Although he knew that Chen Yu must be making a big move by taking them in. But how could I not have expected to be doing something like this? Seeing the trio's fear, Chen Yu did not say anything and just looked at the trio with his arms crossed. Mister. Chen, you, how sure are you? After hesitating for a long time, Zhao Gu opened his mouth to inquire. Chen Yu smiled faintly. 10%. The three people's pupils shrank, and before they could speak, Chen Yu spoke again. If you guys don't want to, I won't force you. In the future, you will only need to help me with some minor matters. It's just that, with the Song family being destroyed, you guys won't be able to take any advantage from it. Chen Yu didn't cover it up. To get the three to work for him, then they would have to be 100% loyal to do so. If the three were forced by force, there would certainly be no problem for a short period of time. But there was no guarantee that the trio wouldn't make any small moves in the dark in the future. By picking it out now, you can avoid a lot of pitfalls later. The three of them looked at each other, their hearts at war with the heavens. To follow Chen Yu, or to refuse on this, it was a matter of choice. It was just like what Lu Tianhao encountered when Chen Yu dealt with the Lu family. The atmosphere, for a moment, became very silent. After a long time, Gushan let out a low growl and said, Damn it, I don't want to, since I'm hugging Mr. Chen's thigh. How can I let go? From today onwards, this life of mine, Gushan, is Mr. Chen's. After Gushan made his statement, Zhao Gu and Gong Yan simultaneously arched their hands towards Chen Yu. Mr. Chen, we have absolutely no second thoughts. Seeing this, Chen Yu gently smiled and nodded. Very well. You will be glad of your decision today. I have another important matter that I need you to attend to. After taking in the three, Chen Yu arranged for the three to procure some things. By the time the three returned again, it was late in the evening. The sun was setting in the west, and the sky and earth were filled with golden afterglow. The three looked at their purchases with some confusion. These are a few things, ranging from valuable gems to very cheap vermilion pigments and the like. There is not the slightest correlation between them. Mr. Chen, what do you need these for? I'm going to refine something. Smithing? When the three of them heard this, their pupils contracted fiercely. They came from ancient martial arts sects and had extraordinary insights. They had all heard of the refining of weapons. It is rumored that there are Taoist masters who can use special means to refine something with great power. It's just that this kind of thing only exists in ancient records. The reality of refining weapons was something they had never seen before. 
could it be that Mr. Shen was refining things to deal with the Song family? Looking at each other, the three were quite excited. Mr. Chen, I wonder what you want to refine. With some anticipation, Zhao Gu opened his mouth to inquire. A pendant. For a girl for her birthday. I'm going after her. So of course I'm going to give her something nice. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth, not hiding anything. Being able to buy things on the market was too common in Chen Yu's eyes. Now that he had achieved a small success in the foundation establishment realm and had the immortal emperor's memories, he could already refine something. The three of them were dumbfounded and looked at Chen Yu stupidly. This, this is what's important? The last moment you were ambitious to destroy the Song family. Next thing you know, you're doing this stuff. Chasing girls? This refining, more or less, is a bit of a non-starter. Chen Yu didn't care what the three thought. He had already collected the materials and proceeded to refine them. Now that it was just a few of them at the top of the mountain, and no one else was disturbing them, Shen Yu made his move directly on the grass in front of the door. True Essence surged and directly wrapped up the various types of materials, making them float in the air. Seeing this, the three of them looked solemn and stared intently to watch. Shen Yu condensed his True Essence into a knife with one hand and continuously carved the shape of the gemstone. With the other hand, he used his True Essence as fire to wrap and melt several materials. Is this the true qi externalization of an innate master? So powerful. Zhao Gu muttered to himself, his face full of amazement. Gu Shan and Gong Yan did the same, smacking their lips in succession. Over time, the gem has been carved into a teardrop shape. Other materials have been melted into solution. The solution is a nice golden color with stars in it. With a vibration of Chun Yu's five fingers, the golden solution wrapped the gem in it. With one of his hands, the golden solution flowed up forming a complicated and intricate pattern on the gemstone. Congeal. With a broken cry, True Essence burst out from his palm, wrapping the gem. All the golden patterns gradually merged into the gemstone and faded away. It was a small formation that had been engraved into the gemstone by Qin Yu. As the formation was incorporated, the gem slowly changed. The entire stone takes on a mysterious purple color. Upon closer inspection, the inside was dotted with stars, like an entire starry sky. Grabbing the gemstone, Chun Yu grinned the first treasure of life, practiced, the miniature formations inside had the effect of nourishing the energy and nourishing the spirit, and they were also able to actively defend themselves when they encountered danger, are you done practicing, sir, the three of them came up and scrutinized the gemstone in Chen Yu's hand with curiosity, it had to be said that after Chen Yu's forging, the gems were very beautiful, the ones you see on the market are not even in the same league compared to this, aha, uh -huh. Chen Yu nodded and attempted to activate the treasure tool, in an instant, the gem blasted out a golden light that directly knocked down a large tree in the distance. Holy crap! The three exclaimed in unison, their eyes straightening. What the hell kind of tactics are these? It's so damn metaphysical. Even if he was born into an ancient martial arts family and had seen many things that normal people had never seen. However, the scene in front of them still overturned the trio's perception. That golden light just now could have completely killed them instantly with one strike. Mr. Chen used this kind of thing to please a woman? What other kind of gift could be as good as this? Is this the world of Big Brother? As he was marveling, a few people came down the hill. The leader of the group was none other than Xin Yuanchang, who had previously been to the South City. Behind him, there were three other old men. Each of the old men, all of them had an immortal appearance, full of the demeanor of a high person. Ha ha, Chun Yu, you've made us look for you. Before the person arrives, the sound is already there. Xin Yuanchang's magnificent laughter came out, attracting the attention of Chun Yu's few people. Zhao Ji's three people's pupils shrunk and their hearts trembled violently, just by feeling the aura emanating from a few people. They knew that these people were experts. Shen Yuan Chang, what brings you here? Chen Yu froze and subconsciously opened his mouth. Zhao Gu froze, first a little confused, then wide-eyed and released a scream. Shen Yuan Chang, that legendary innate master? Looking at the visitor, Zhao Ji's eyes widened and his face was filled with a shocked expression. Gu Shan and Gong Yan were also shocked. Zhao Gu, what did you say? This old man is an innate master? Gushan subconsciously yelled. Zhao Ji's face changed and he hurriedly covered Gushan's mouth. What are you babbling about? Speaking so disrespectfully, be careful that he hears you. And Mr. Chen won't even be able to save you then. Gong Yin frowned and said. Zhao Gu, you know this elder Shen? Zhao Gu shook his head with a bitter smile. Where would I have the opportunity? To know this old timer? To tell you the truth. The reason I've heard of this old man's great name is because of a chance encounter seven years ago. Seven years ago, Zhao and Xiang encountered danger in the uninhabited area of the Great Northwest. At that time, Xin Yuancheng happened to swim there and saved his life. After he came back, he talked to Zhao Gu about all the deeds of Xin Yuancheng. After that time, 
Zhao Gu kept Xin Yuanqing's name firmly in his mind. Unexpectedly, this senior unexpectedly appeared here. Mr. Chen even knows these old timers? This network? It's truly impressive. Gong Yan exclaimed in a low voice. Gu Shan peeled away Zhao Ji's hand and glared roundly. Terribly, an innate patriarch can't even see a single shadow on weekdays. I didn't expect to see two today. Two, you grow some eyes. Didn't you notice that those three people behind Elder Shin are all innate masters as well? Zhao Gu blanked Gu Shan. What a run of an eye for this big dummy. Gu Shan froze, stared carefully at the three old men behind Xin Yuanchang, and couldn't help but suck in a mouthful of cold air. Indeed, as Gu Shan had said, these three old men's temperament was generally the same as Xin Yuanchang's, and talking and laughing with each other, obviously all in the same class. Nima, this is stabbing the sect master's nest? Five sect masters gathered here? This. Gong Yan clenched her fists tightly, looking shocked. Our choice was indeed not wrong. If Mr. Chen can become friends with these four people, wouldn't it be easy to eradicate the Song family? Zhao Gu nodded in agreement. Not bad. I think that Elder Shen and the others also saw Mr. Chen's potential and that's why they befriended him. It's a godsend for us. Chen Yu was so young and had already stepped into the innate realm. It's reasonable for a few people. Chen Yu Wan Chang, to fancy Chen Yu. What do you think Master Shin and the others are doing here? Katsushika inquired in a low voice. Gong Yen said, I think it should be to instruct Mr. Chen, after all. Mr. Chen is too young. Perhaps he hasn't fully adapted to the innate realm yet? Zhao Gu nodded, agreeing more with Gong Yan's analysis. The three of them stood aside and watched as the several people from Shen Yu Wancheng arrived in front of Chen Yu. Ha ha, Chen Yu, we ran all the way here from the southern city. Shen Yu Wancheng opened his mouth with a big smile. After going back last time, Xin Yuanchang demonstrated Chun Yu's improved golden wind illusion poem. The four of them then decided to travel to the southern city to visit Chun Yu. I didn't expect to arrive at the southern city, but I found that Chun Yu had already left. They followed them all the way to Jinchuan City. After inquiring in many ways, it was only then that he realized that Chun Yu lived in Villa one of the Purple Moon Stardust residents. The three looked at each other with some pride in their hearts. See, what it means to have a poker face. In order to see Chun Yu. The four innate masters had actually chased them all the way here. That's the kind of treatment that the greatest generation has. Isn't that what happens in those metaphysical novels? A bunch of bigwigs meet the stunning juniors and carry them all the way. Mr. Chen, that's the kind of demonic offspring in novels. Mr. Chen, after you instructed me last time, I benefited greatly. When we got back, several of our old friends were clamoring to come and ask you for advice. Chen you understood and nodded. Looking at a few people, he was secretly surprised. It seems that there are quite a few masters in this world. Within a short period of time, he had already met several innate patriarchs. On the side, Zhao Ji's trio had a head full of questions. What the hell? Points, please? Is there a mistake? Shouldn't you be instructing Chen Yu? What's with the role reversal? Just as he was thinking, the three people behind Xin Yuancheng took a step forward and simultaneously arched their hands at Chen Yu. Mr. Chen, it's a pleasure to meet you. The three introduced themselves as Du Sun, Unxia and Zhu Xiao, like Xin Yuan Chang, they were both veteran innate masters, only after becoming innate masters, a few of them went into seclusion, unknown to the world, earlier, Mr. Chen instructed Old Shen, which was an eye-opening experience for us, so this time, I came to visit because I also wanted to ask Mr. Chen to instruct us a bit, the three bowed deeply, in a humble manner, Xiao Gu, Gu Shan, and Gong Yan's eyes almost glazed over, is this nigger really here for advice, God, how did this happen? How old is Chun Yu? How old are they already? Now, instead, they look like students? Is Mr. Chen so powerful? Staring at Chun Yu, the three of them realized that they were mistaken. It wasn't because the four Shen Yu and Chengs were happy to see the hunt and wanted to bring up their juniors. Rather, they wanted to seek guidance from Chun Yu. Chen Yu's power was far beyond their imagination. Holy shit, what kind of existence is the Mr. Chen we're talking to? Katsushika looked puzzled and muttered to himself. Zhao Gu looked complicated and said, He, like a divine Buddha, is an existence we can't imagine. Looking at Du Sun, Anxia, and Zhu Xiao, Chen Yu was also a bit surprised. I didn't realize that they had come for thousands of miles to seek their guidance. After thinking about it, Chen Yu did not refuse. These people's status and position were not trivial, and it would be good for them to make a good karma. In that case, thank you, Mr. Chen. Du Sen and a few others were overjoyed and asked Chen Yu for advice cultivation, battle techniques, but anything they could think of, they were asking for advice, even speaking on the spur of the moment, it was practiced on the spot, 
Chen Yu also did not hide anything and pointed out one by one. To him, the four asked something as shallow as a child. Chen Yu's biggest headache was not pointing, but how to go deeper and make them understand. After all, they were not cultivators, and they might not be able to understand if they spoke too deeply. A few people just talked, from sunset until late at night. Zhao Ji's trio stood as minions, watching the exchange between the bigwigs with awe and confusion. Is this the world of Big Brother? The topic is too high-end to understand. What essence guards the one and operates the innate? What gods follow each other throughout the nine palaces? Obviously, I recognize every word, but when I put them together, I just don't understand any of them. Well, do you guys have any more doubts? After chatting for a long time, Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. The four of them looked solemn and after shaking their heads, they actually all knelt down and bowed solemnly to Chen Yu. Sir is above. Please accept the student's bow. Chen Yu's explanation this afternoon had opened a new door for them. If they have another breakthrough in the future, it will all be because of this lecture today. It was then that they realized just how big a gap there was between themselves and Chen Yu. Not just strength, but an understanding of cultivation. It's not even in the same league as each other. Chen Yu had taught them and was considered their mentor. This kneeling is heavenly. Watching the movements of the four, Chen Yu merely carried his hands behind his back and did not stop them. This worship, he could afford it. Zhao Ji's trio stood on the sidelines, already looking dumbfounded. For innate masters, kneel down for Mr. Chen. Oh, my god, who would believe this? The four kneeled and then stood up. Xin Yuancheng looked at Chen Yu and said, Sir, there is one more thing I need to tell you. I've received word that Xing Qian Lei will be leaving tomorrow and rushing to Jinchuan City. Oh, is he finally coming? Chen Yu raised his eyebrows and came to some interest. I have a question. How strong is he compared to you guys? Upon hearing this, the four Xin Yuanchengs looked at each other and froze a little. After a moment, all four shook their heads at the same time. To be honest, although we are similar in age to him, none of us are as strong as him. Xing Qian Lei, back then, he was the one who amazed an era. Du Xin pondered a little and said, Sir may not know that Xing Qian Lei, this person has been overbearing and overwhelming all his life. At that time, he also hard pressed us. After he stepped into the innate sect master realm, he created his own four extinction thunder skill. What exactly is his battle power today? We are not sure. And Xia and Zui Xiao both nodded as well. Mr. Chen, you are gifted and unique in the world, but one should never be careless. Xing Chen Lei has fought countless battles in his life and is extremely experienced. During those years of blood and fire back then, he also went to the battlefield and fought against the Sakura Kingdom's powerhouses, killing countless enemies, and was one who had truly undergone the test of life and death. At those words, Chen Yu was a bit surprised. Rather, I didn't expect Xing Qian Lei to have such experiences. I'd be more than curious. Smiling, Chen Yu did not worry. If we were talking about battle experience, he who possessed the memories of an immortal emperor had experienced more than a billion battles? Mr. Chen, we will take our leave. On the day of the duel, if time permits, we will definitely come to observe. After bowing to Chen Yu again, the four of them left. Zhao Go and the three of them also took their leave. Chen Yu looked up at the starry sky and narrowed his eyes slightly. Xing Qian Lei, you are a man. Unfortunately, your offspring are not of good character. Shaking his head, Chen Yu folded his arms and returned to the villa. There was no talk all night. On the second day, Chen Yu came to the university. Today is Xiao Yunyue's birthday, and in the evening, Xiao Yunyue invited dinner at the restaurant. There is nothing much to do during the day. Chen Yu returned to the university to experience the rare college time. In the dormitory, Li Pei's five people were still hacking and playing games. Seeing Chen Yu, the five of them greeted him. Holy shit, old six you're having too good a time, staying out every night. Shit, Lao Lu is also in the society. Okay, people this nightlife, we can only envy. Hey, old six, you haven't joined a club since you arrived at school, have you? How about joining the martial arts club? Yao Yujing suddenly proposed. Chen Yu was a bit surprised. There's a budo club at the university? Of course, we young people, or learn some martial arts not only can strengthen the body, but also can pretend to pick up girls. Zheng Ji and I are both in the martial arts club. You don't know, do you? But yesterday this bitch, Zheng Ji, staged a hero's rescue and ended up abducting an elementary schoolgirl. Zheng Ji grinned, his face a little smug. He he he, it's mainly because the brother is handsome that the sister will love. Yao Yu Jing you can't experience this feeling. Shit, I'll get you in the game. Yao Yu Jing yelled. Chen Yu lowered his eyebrows in contemplation and nodded with a smile a moment later. Sounds kind of interesting. I'll join the Budo Club and see. Since you're experiencing college life, it's a good idea to join the Budo Club just to get a feel for it. Do I need to do any paperwork? 
Zheng Ji waved his hand. There's no need for anything. I'm close to the president. Just let him know. With that, Zheng Ji pulled out his cell phone and made a call. Hey, old cat. It's me. My dorm buddy wants to join the Budo Club too. Oops. I know that our martial arts club is at a high level and ordinary people can't get in. Specialty? Does the fact that he's quite handsome count as a specialty? Physical? Well, he looks a little scrawny, but he's in pretty good shape. Okay then, that's it ah. Hanging up the phone, Zhang Ji raised his cell phone. Done, I'll take you to meet the president this afternoon. Then we'll have another get together in the dorm at night, and I'll bring that elementary school girl for the brothers to meet. Young has a showy face. Li Pei's few people immediately let out a burst of booze. Damn, the sour, rotten stench of this relationship is so fucking hot. I have something to do in the evening, so I won't be there. Chen Yu opened his mouth. Shit, it's really old six, not even participating in group activities. Say, what's more important than this? Zheng Ji opened his mouth. We're here to show you off, so you all just sit back and watch me show off my love and be done with it. How can there be less people? Wang Wenjun said. Lao Lu, if there's no big deal, then come. If it's not possible, we can wait for you in the second field. Chen Yu said, Tonight is Xiao Yunyue's birthday. She asked me to attend. Wow. In the dormitory, all five people stood up and stared at Chen Yu with wide eyes. Wang Hao rushed up as soon as he could, grabbing Chen Yu's shoulders with both hands and glaring. My Chao, you're talking about, is, is it the big school girl Xiao Yunyue? Chen Yu touched his nose and said, She does look pretty. It should be her. Ow, oh, you old six. How the hell do you know goddess Xiao? Several people in the dormitory exclaimed. That's Xiao Yunyue, in Jiangling University of Science and Technology, the most beautiful school flower ah. How many people want to have a kiss and they don't even look at it? Now, the schoolgirl's own son is invited to a birthday party? What the fuck kind of divine treatment is this? Chen Yu was somewhat helpless and said, before she traveled to South City, she happened to meet up and played together for a few days. Holy chow. In dormitory 604, there was a haunting cry. All five were taught. Yao Yu Jing knelt by the bed, covering her head and hammering on the bedpan. Damn, is this the difference between a student like me, and a socialite like you? Wan Hao gritted his teeth and clenched his fists until his knuckles turned white. Is that just because you're a little more handsome than me? Wang Wenjun tilted her head and closed her eyes, her lips trembling gently. Same handsome guy, I'm still a single dog. You're climbing the colonel's flower. Li Pei sat frozen in front of the computer with a disoriented look on his face. So what if I dominate the entire game? I'm still a single dog? Zheng Ji let out a long sigh and shook his head repeatedly. Gur, I wanted to irritate you guys, but I didn't think I'd be irritated by you. Looking at the five living treasures, Chen Yu couldn't help but cry and laugh. It's just dinner. What's the big deal? Suddenly, Wang Wenjun grabbed Chen Yu with an agitated expression. Old six. Damn it. We've been waiting for you for the second show tonight. You must bring big goddess Xiao here for us brothers to see. The other four were all shaken and immediately surrounded them, staring at Chun Yu like hungry wolves. Right, make sure you bring it here. I, I need a drink with the goddess. The appearance of the five people froze Chun Yu as well. Uh, I know. I'll try. Can't try it. This is a mission given to you by the organization. I'm ordering you in the name of the dormitory chief to fulfill it. Li Pei looked incredibly serious. That's, uh, good. Under the power, Chun Yu, an innate master, still humbly succumbed. Soon the time came to evening. Xiao Yunyue's birthday party was at an ordinary restaurant next to the school. The decor isn't much better, but it speaks for itself. The restaurant was full of customers and seemed to be bustling. Chen Yu arrived at the school entrance early in the morning and waited for Xiao Yunyue. He hadn't dressed up for the occasion either. Just a simple sweatshirt for a casual look. People came and went, and many people looked sideways. Chen Yu was already handsome and after embarking on the path of immortal cultivation, his temperament became increasingly prominent. That feeling of indifference and detachment really touches the hearts of many girls. In response, Chen Yu let out a dark sigh in his heart. This feeling of being watched was not something he liked very much, but it couldn't be helped. Right now he was only a small foundation establishment. His cultivation was too shallow to hide himself well. In the future, when his cultivation level increased, he could act like an ordinary person and wouldn't be so eye-catching. However, College life is really relaxing and so much better than society. When we graduate, I wonder how many of us will still be able to keep the same smile we have today. Looking at the students coming and going, Chen Yu could not help but sigh lightly in his heart. Three years of social experience had made him all too aware of the cruelty of society. Snobbery, hooking up, and the weight of life are enough to dull the light in a young man's eyes. Chen Yu, a greeting brought Chen Yu back from his feelings, turning his head to look. 
Xiao Yunyue was smiling and waving at him. Beside Xiao Yunyue were several people from the same dormitory. He had met a few people the last time he happened to meet Xiao Yunyue. As the sun set, Chen Yu smiled and beckoned, and Xiao Yunyue trotted over. She's dressed clean and nice today. A pair of sky blue jeans showed off the long legs perfectly. The white jumper was a bit baggy, but you could still see the mountains in the haze. The long hair that was draped over her shoulders flipped and danced as Xiao Yunyue ran. Her every movement was filled with the beauty of youth. Coming in front of Chen Yu, Xiao Yunyue took two small breaths. Her small face flushed and cute. Chen Yu, you've been waiting for a long time, haven't you? It's worth it to wait even longer for Xiao de beauty. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Xiao Yunyue pouted, seemingly angry but actually happy. You've been drinking honey. Your mouth is so sweet. Let's go. I'll treat you to a big meal today. Xiao Yunyue waved her hand in a rather grandiose manner. All around, the crowd looked dumbfounded. Isn't Grand Goddess Xiao known as the Ice Beauty? How come it doesn't look like that at all? Damn. Who is that guy? How dare he make the goddess laugh? My Chao. My goddess. Just like this into someone else's arms? Damn. I remember. He was a temporary transfer. Turned out to be working at the factory. What? Me? Beaten by a factory screwdriver? This nigga. Is there any justice left? Many of the students who came and went had a bit of a meltdown. A few of Xiao Yunyue's housemates. Their faces all looked a bit bad. What do you guys say? How did Yunyue fall for that guy? Aside from being a bit more handsome, he's good for nothing. Who says it isn't? Hey, Yunyue is still too simple. I told him a long time ago that you can't just look for a boyfriend to see if the person is good or not. You also have to look at all aspects of the conditions. What's the use of being handsome? What's the difference between a man with no skills and a bad family and trash? Yes. It's hard to find a good job nowadays, but isn't it hard to find a man with two legs? I wouldn't want to give this man to me. It's so aggravating for Yun Yu to find him. Don't worry, isn't Chang Hao Ming also coming tonight? Just let Yun Yu compare and contrast, and with our assists, we'll definitely be able to turn Yun Yu's opinion around. A few people nodded. A schoolgirl like Yun Yu is not something a guy who works in a factory can get his hands on. He doesn't deserve it. Walking forward, a few people deliberately set their faces to Chen Yu, not even greeting him. Chen Yu didn't care and didn't even look at a few people, just talking and laughing with Xiao Yunyue. This made a couple of the women even more fired up, walking on the road, watching Xiao Yunyue and Chen Yu walking side by side in front of them. A few people's lungs were about to explode with anger, muttering and discussing non-stop. What's with the arrogance? How dare you pretend you don't see us? That's right, Chang Hao Ming has to flatter us in order to chase after Yun Yu. What does he count for? Humph, it's true that you're a wage earner. You don't even have this much emotional intelligence. Compared to Chang Hao Ming, you're really far behind. That's just it. It's not in the same league at all. Sisters, make sure he makes a good fool of himself tonight. Several people looked at each other and nodded in unison. Soon, the group arrived at the restaurant. Opened the compartment door. Snap. The two boys twisted the ceremonial flowers in their hands. And suddenly the sky was filled with golden confetti pouring down. Chang Hao Ming stood up and looked at Xiao Yunyue with a big smile. Cloudy moon. Happy birthday, D. Xiao Yunyue frowned in surprise. I didn't invite you. Why are you here? This time for her birthday. Xiao Yunyue only called out to the people in the dormitory and Chen Yu. Completely unexpectedly, Chang Hao Ming came too. At that moment, a girl stepped forward and gave a chuckle. Her name is Jiang Boeing and she is the dormitory head. Aya, Chang Hao Ming was the one I called out. Isn't it lively to have more people? Don't care about these details. A couple of other girls chimed in to help. That's right. Chang Hao Ming is very sincere. We're all here. Let's celebrate Yun Yu's birthday together. A few girls kept saying good things for Chang Hao Ming. Xiao Yunyue was a bit unhappy, but she couldn't say anything more and could only nod. At that moment, the crowd took their seats. Several people insisted on arranging Chang Hao Ming beside Xiao Yunyue, but Xiao Yunyue strongly disagreed and instead sat with Chen Yu. There was no choice but to agree. Chang Hao Ming's face was unsightly to the extreme as he stared at Chen Yu dead in the face. Just now, he purposely did not look at Chen Yu. After all, Chen Yu was not in the same class as himself. But now that he saw Chen Yu sitting beside Xiao Yunyue, Chang Hao Ming couldn't tense up. Ho Ming, it's okay, with us helping you, you're sure to win. Jiang Boeing whispered quietly into Chang Hao Ming's ear. Okay, thanks sister Jiang. After you succeed, I'll send you an LV bag. At those words, Jiang Boeing's breathing immediately became quite ragged. She stood up and clapped her hands to get the crowd's attention. Come on, come on, since everyone is here, let's start cutting the birthday cake. Yun Yu. This is a five-layer cake that Chang Hao Ming customized for you. You and Chang Hao Ming cut it together. In the center of the table, there was a large, beautifully crafted five-tiered cake. 
Chun Yu looked at it and did not move. Xiao Yunyue subconsciously glanced at Chun Yu, then shook her head. Thanks, but I don't want any cake today, so you guys eat. From the beginning to the end, Xiao Yunyue's expression was cold and clear, without the slightest intention to make a move. The atmosphere went cold for a moment. The smile on Chang Haoming's face froze and the corner of his mouth twitched. Oh, yes, 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 we'll eat mainly vegetables today. This cake will be eaten at the end. With that, he and the other man took the cake down. Today is Yun Yu's birthday. I've specially prepared a gift for you. I hope you'll like it. Chang Haoming quickly adjusted and took out an exquisite gift box. He glanced at Chun Yu, a confident smile appearing at the corner of his mouth. Little man, I'll scare you to death when I get my present out. In the small box, all eyes, all converged on the gift box. Chang Haoming is a man of great wealth, and what he took out is by no means simple. Sure enough, once the box was opened, there was a necklace lying inside. The necklace is crystal clear and full of class. Whoa! Aside from Xiao Yunyue, a group of girls let out a gasp. The necklace, it's so beautiful. Xiao Yunyue just frowned and her face was cold. Chang Haoming, this necklace isn't cheap, is it? That's just it. It looks expensive. It's so good looking, can't take my eyes off it at all. Chang Haoming raised his chin and smiled triumphantly. The necklace is worth 80, 000 dollars. Not very expensive, but it's better than exquisite. This is what I specially picked out for Yunyu. There's also an appraisal certificate from Master Yunmao Merchant House in here. Looking at Xiao Yunyue, Chang Haoming's eyes were filled with tenderness. Several girls marveled in awe. Man, Chang Haoming is so good at this, so teasing. Oh, if I had such a wonderful boy after me, I would have said yes on the spot. How am I going to find a boyfriend in the future after looking at boys like this? A few of Chang Haoming's roommates were also up in arms at this time. That's it, sister-in-law take it. Brother Hao Ming had thought about this necklace for several nights when he chose it. Brother Hao Ming is atmospheric. Sister-in-law bring it up quickly. It will look great. Gee, I can't wait to see it. The atmosphere of the table was pushed to a climax. Chen Yu hadn't said anything as he looked at Xiao Yunyue, wanting to see how Xiao Yunyue would react. On Xiao Yunyue's face, there was clearly a touch of impatience. First, we're not that familiar, so please call me by my full name. Xiao Yunyue. Secondly, I am not your sister-in-law, so please watch your language. Thirdly, this gift is too expensive. I appreciate the kindness, please take the things back. The originally lively atmosphere suddenly quieted down. The people in the gallery looked at each other, not knowing what to say for a while. Chang Haoming's mouth opened in embarrassment. That, Xiao Yunyue, there's no taking back a gift that was given. Just accept it, it's not expensive for me. Jiang Boeing and a few other girls also kept persuading. But Xiao Yunyue was adamant. Chang Haoming retrieved the gift and forced a smile. I'm the one who didn't think this through. So let's eat. Wait. Chen Yu opened his mouth and looked at Xiao Yunyue. I have a gift for you too. Gorgeous. The crowd froze, first in surprise, and then they all looked disdainful. What can you give away? Chang Haoming didn't even confiscate his stuff. How could he take yours? Xiao Yunyue raised her eyebrows and smiled for the first time. What is it? Chen Yu smiled and pulled out the pendant from his pocket. It was the very same magic weapon he had refined himself. So beautiful. After just one look, Xiao Yunyue was mesmerized. The stars were shining in that purple color, like a deep and serene starry sky. The crowd also froze the moment they saw the pendant. Did he give you a necklace too? A collision with Chang Haoming? Chang Haoming raised his eyebrows and revealed a cold smile. Lousy's 90, 000 plus necklace. Xiao Yunyue couldn't even look at it. What can you factory dogs come up with? Chun Yu, how much did you pay for this? It's not much money. Just bought some raw materials and processed it myself. It doesn't cost much. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Honestly, if we're talking about price, this necklace he made is priceless. After all, this was a magic weapon, not a mundane object. Xiao Yunyue smiled happily, her eyes completing the crescent moon. He he, then I'll take it without question. You're welcome, I'll put it on for you. Hurrah. Under the watchful eyes of everyone, Chen Yu personally put the pendant on Xiao Yunyue. On the scene, there was dead silence. Everyone had the same look on their face. Deadly wide-eyed. Shock and dismay on his face. The same pendant. Xiao Yunyue rejected Chang Haoming's but accepted Chen Yu's? What does that tell you? Xiao Yunyue has a crush on Chen Yu? Xiao Yunyue. Why is this? This pendant of his isn't even as valuable as the necklace I gave him. Chang Haoming blurted out. His face full of disbelief. Xiao Yunyue coldly glanced at Chang Haoming and spoke faintly. What I don't like. A thousand pieces of gold are as good as dirt. And what I don't like, mediocrity is priceless. I, for one, love Chen Yu's gift. Xiao Yunyue's words were categorical. 
causing Chang Haoming to be embarrassed. He grimaced and clenched his fists tightly, anger burning madly in his chest. Himself, no better than a factory dog? Chen Yu clasped his hands in front of his chest with a smirk at the corner of his mouth. Sure enough, Xiao Yunyue was still the Xiao Yunyue of the past. Chang Haoming, you don't know Xiao Yunyue at all. Seeing the atmosphere drop to freezing point, Zhang Boeing immediately snorted. Geez, it's just a companion gift. No big deal. Don't all stand around. Quickly sit down. The dishes are all up. Let's eat and talk. The others responded and immediately chimed in. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to get drunk tonight. Zhang Boeing pulled Chang Hao Ming and spoke quietly. Hao Ming, Yun Yu isn't that materialistic of a girl. You'll have to win her admiration to do that. Think about it. Why would she treat Chen Yu like this? It must be because Chen Yu has experience working in society and relied on that to impress Yun Yu. But what is all this before you? You've been exposed to much more than he has. As long as you let Yun Yu know that you are more insightful and have more substance, Yun Yu will definitely fall into your arms. An aura flashed through Chang Hao Ming's mind. His eyes glowed and he nodded repeatedly. That's right. That must be it. I was really careless. Xiao Yun Yue is supposed to be a girl who doesn't care about material things. How could I still think of using material things to impress him? Chang Hao Ming, Chang Hao Ming, you are really smart but confused. The confidence that had been dealt a severe blow immediately returned to Chang Hao Ming. Looking at Chun Yu, Chang Hao Ming smiled coldly. Experience? Insight? In this regard, how can you, Chun Yu, compare to me? I'll let you know in a minute how far apart you and I really are. After a small interlude, the birthday party began. The food was laid out all over the table and all kinds of drinks were brought up. After everyone congratulated Xiao Yunyue, they chatted idly. Chang Hao Ming, your parents' business is so big, so they must have been exposed to a lot of fun things, right? Tell us about it. Chang Pak Ching opened his mouth to ask a question. Chang Hao Ming understood the situation and knew that this was Zhang Boeing giving herself a chance to perform. After giving a thumbs up under the table, he glanced at Xiao Yunyue and Chen Yu. Now, it's time for my show. Ahem. Speaking of which, I do have quite a bit of social exposure. These are things you don't get exposed to in school. When it comes to the hottest things, you guys don't have access to them yet. But I do know a few. Looking at the crowd, Chang Hao Ming pretended to be profound. The underground world of Jinchuan City. It's changed. Underworld? A change of heart? At the table, everyone froze and stared at Chang Hao Ming. Xiao Yunyue was the same, with a touch of curiosity in her eyes. They are all students, usually in school, and they don't have the opportunity to be exposed to social things. Underworld, that's high on the list. This unknown and mysterious thing has a great appeal to this group of uninitiated students. Seeing the crowd's reaction, Chang Hao Ming grinned in triumph. Ho Ming, come on, what's going on? What is the underworld ah? Chang Hao Ming took a sip of water and turned his head to look at it with a mysterious expression. That's something you guys don't know. The underground world. That's a world that's hard for us to reach. Let's put it this way. You all know about punks and such. Those people even if they are the bottom of the underworld. And the bigwigs of the underworld have been whitewashed into big businessmen and entrepreneurs. They control very large estates, are well off, and are secretly at war with each other. They have their own set of rules of behavior, and existence outside the sunlight. In this world, a lot of things can be done that can't be done in normal society. An explanation that made the gallery gasp. It was the first time they, the student party, had heard of these things. A while ago, we got an entrepreneur forum. A lot of business bigwigs attended, and it was even on TV. You all saw it, right? The crowd nodded. They are juniors and will be graduating soon and looking for a job. There are many big companies that are presented on such forums, so they all care more. And the bigwigs, to these students, are unattainable. I don't know how many years one has to work hard before there is even the slightest possibility of reaching that kind of height. Even, lifelong hopelessness. Chang Hao Ming laughed. Let me tell you, those giants of the underground world. When it comes to strength and wealth, they are not comparable to those business tycoons on the forum. Hiss, the crowd sucked in a breath of cold air. With the comparison, they always had some vague idea about the bigwigs of the underground world. So, what do you mean by the underworld has changed? Zhang Boeing was very dutiful as a wingman and opened his mouth to inquire. Chang Hao Ming said, In the underground world of Jinchuan City, there are a total of three giants. Like three kingdoms, they fight with each other all year round. But, just recently, all three giants were subdued by the same person. Wow, there was a gasp in the gallery. The triumvirate, with such a high status, was taken in by one man? Ho Ming, who is this man? I don't know. That one is too mysterious and seems to intentionally not want the identity to be known. 
but the word on the street is still circulating that he's called Mr. Chun. The high society of Jingchuan City is now blown away by this news. A lot of famous families and clans are talking about this matter and discussing their next response. Mr. Chun. The crowd was shaken and filled with shock. As soon as I heard the name, it felt full of mystery and high class. At this moment, a picture even surfaced in their minds. In the darkness, a light shines on a throne. Mr. Chen just sat there, unable to see his face. Only the cold corners of his mouth could be seen. At his feet, the three giants of the underground world kneeled respectfully, their heads deeply lowered. That's awesome. Jiang Boeing muttered as her eyes glazed over. The same goes for everyone else. To these students, Mr. Chen was like a god in the sky that they could only look up to. This kind of amazing masterstroke changed the pattern of the whole Jinchuan city. When it is really the weather, let a person be fascinated. Even Xiao Yunyue was covering her mouth in amazement. On the contrary, it was Chen Yu, whose mouth gently twitched. Eh, he himself was just excited to take in Zhao Gu and the three of them. This kind of small matter has caused such a big ripple in Jinchuan City? Chen Yu was somewhat surprised by all of this. Chang Haoming was very satisfied with the crowd's reaction. See, that's what a brother sees. Do you, a factory dog, have access to this level of information? The most you can do is take some little factory news and favor these college kids. Yen Yu will definitely know how big the gap between you and me really is. Right at this moment, Zhang Boeing and the others also began to frantically assist. Aya, uh, Chang Haoming you're really great, knowing this kind of news. That's right, that's a great insight you have. Not at all comparable to us students. How many people in the community, not to mention students, have access to this kind of information? Oh, at the very least, the people who work in the factory are certainly not that knowledgeable. The crowd spoke, secretly belittling Chen Yu. Chang Haoming became more and more complacent, and his body was soothed. He looked like a victorious rooster, desperately puffing out his chest. Xiao Yunyue didn't care about the crowd's boasting. She looked at Chen Yu and joked, that big man called Mr. Chen, it can't be you. Chen Yu pretended to be surprised and said, yo, Xiao Damsel this eyes can ah, this all see out? Alright then, I won't pretend. Yes, I'm Mr. Chen, who subdued the triumvirate and became the king of the Jinchuan underground world. Pust. Xiao Yunyue couldn't help but laugh and patted Chen Yu's arm. You're funny. Chen Yu rolled his eyes and shook his head helplessly. Does no one believe in telling the truth these days? Pretty girl. You're pretty, but you're also really stupid. A remark that made Xiao Yunyue laugh and turn red in the face. This scene dumbfounded everyone in the room. The way the story is going. How is something not right? Chang Haoming watched the scene with his mouth open. Blankly. With a head full of question marks. Didn't we agree that Xiao Yunyue likes insightful boys? I was obviously the one who told everyone the news. He just blurted out some nonsense and it worked so well. Your mom, is this Chen Yu my natural nemesis? I'll compete with you for financial resources. Xiao Yunyue sees your insight. I'm competing with you for insight. Xiao Yunyue sees your humor? Grass. At this moment, Chang Haoming was about to collapse. Watching his goddess, who was so close to a factory dog, almost drove him crazy. Zhang Boeing was keenly aware of everything and immediately opened his mouth to relieve himself. He he, Chen Yu you're too arrogant, can you even say such words? If you're Mr. Chen, I'll run around our school naked. Chen Yu looked Jiang Boeing up and down and shook his head. With your body, running around naked is too hot for your eyes. So you're excused. You, hearing this, Jiang Boeing's face turned white with anger. Well, it's my birthday, so knock it off. Xiao Yunyue spoke out and stopped the argument. A birthday feast that ended in a bizarre atmosphere. The crowd was ready to go back to school after the dispersal. Chen Yu said, you guys go back, I won't go back. Xiao Yunyue was a bit curious, then where are you going at night? Go home. Home, where is your home? The crowd looked at Chen Yu. Chen Yu has a home in Jinchuan City? A sentence that instantly caught everyone's attention. Chen Yu, you don't live in a nice dormitory. Why are you renting a house outside the school? Jiang Boeing frowned at Chen Yu and opened his mouth to question. Chen Yu did not want to pay attention to her, but Xiao Yunyue also opened her mouth at this moment. Chen Yu, the rent of the house next to our school is not low. It's better to live at the school if you don't have to. These words were completely concerned about Chen Yu. Chen Yu's family conditions, as she knew, were not good. Although Chen Yu's mother's illness has now been cured, her current situation is not very wealthy. Money-wise, a little bit of saving is a little bit of saving. Chen Yu was well aware of Xiao Yunyue's concern, and his heart warmed slightly. This girl, as always, is so thoughtful. Don't worry, I'm not renting. I bought a house next to the school. I've made some money over the years. Blinking towards Xiao Yunyue, Chen Yu grinned. At those words, 
The crowd froze. Chen Yu bought a house? Isn't he a working stiff who dropped out of school? How can you have money and afford a house in the provincial capital? No way. Never. Chang Haoming waved his big hand and shook his head back and forth. He looked at Chen Yu with a touch of sarcasm in his eyes. Don't say I look down on you. With you, how can you afford to buy a house in the provincial city? Ridiculous. Do you know how much the house price is in the neighborhood next to the Jianling University of Science and Technology? The lowest is $40.000 flat. Even a small house of over 60 square meters would cost over two and a half million dollars. You can afford it? I don't believe it. Looking at the shouting Chang Haoming, Chen Yu looked calm. Believe it or not, I did buy it. Zhang Boeing smiled and said, Next to our school, there aren't many neighborhoods. Chen Yu which neighborhood did you buy in? Purple Moon Stardust Residence. Chen Yu spoke faintly. Originally he wanted to keep a low profile, but it doesn't seem necessary now. There are some people who will only know to restrain themselves if they are hit hard in the face. Everyone froze and stared at Chen Yu with wide eyes. The scene was, for a moment, quiet. The next moment, bursts of laughter rang out steeply and deafeningly. The group all covered their stomachs and laughed so hard that tears fell from their eyes. A goo, that's ridiculous. What did he say? He bought a house in Purple Moon Stardust Residence? Ha 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 ha. Oh my god. Chun Yu, this humor cell of yours, I really can't compare to it. TSK TSK TSK. Chun Yu, I'm damn convinced. You really are a social person. This is said like it's true. Chang Haoming wiped the tears from his laughter and took a breath before speaking. Do you know what Purple Moon Stardust Residence is? The highest end villa area in Jinchuan City. There's no house in there that's less than 100 million dollars. And you bought a house in there? Holy shit. You're really daring. Xiao Yunyua looked at Chen Yu in surprise and did not understand why Chen Yu would say such words. After a moment's thought, she understood. The reason for this is not caused by people like Chang Haoming? This time, Xiao Yunyue saw the birthday banquet very clearly. All of these people were mocking and suppressing Chen Yu both explicitly and implicitly. Chen Yu must have sensed their malice, which was why he said such words. It's because self-esteem has been hurt that you use lies to protect yourself. Everything, it's Chang Haoming's in their fault. Thinking of this, Xiao Yunyue looked at Chen Yu with some heartache. And for Chang Haoming, she was even more disgusted. At that moment, Zhang Boeing smiled and spoke. Chen Yu, since you bought a house in the Purple Moon Stardust Residence, why don't you take us to see it and open our eyes? In her eyes, an imperceptible shade of coldness flashed. Don't you want to play hard to get? Well, then, I'm going to break the mold and get to the bottom of you. Let's see how you're going to live up to this lie. At that, the other's eyes lit up and they clamored. Right right right, Chen Yu ah, take us to see it. That's right, that's right, oops, I haven't been to the Purple Moon Stardust residence yet. Grand Duke Chen, let losers like me, open our eyes properly. Chang Haoming gave Chen Yu a thumbs up. Chen Yu, if you really bought a villa in Purple Moon Stardust residence, I'll immediately kneel down and call out to your father right now. Chang Haoming was so relieved at the moment that he seemed to have seen Xiao Yunyue's contemptuous eyes after revealing Chen Yu's true colors. I may have bought the villa, but you're not good enough to be my son. Chen Yu spoke flirtatiously, causing Chang Haoming's face to change. Ha, it's useless to talk about this. Do you dare to show us your villa? As soon as Chang Haoming's words left his mouth, all of them immediately looked at Chen Yu. Chen Yu was about to agree, but Xiao Yunyue suddenly broke off. Enough. You've gone too far. The crowd was taken aback and looked at Xiao Yunyue. She frowned, anger hidden in her eyes. Whether Chen Yu bought a villa or not, is none of your business? What gives him the right to show you guys around? Don't you guys feel that you're bullying people too much? If you guys want to go, then go. But whoever goes is not my Xiao Yunyue's friend. A statement that left the crowd completely frozen. Zhang Bojing forced a smile and said, Yun Yu, we are not just trying to see what's going on. It's nothing. Xiao Yunyue looked straight at Jiang Boeing. Jiang Boeing, I still call you dormitory chief. No matter what your purpose is, if you do this again, we're through. Xiao Yunyue was not stupid. She also knew that Jiang Boeing and the girls helped Chang Haoming chase after her. It just hadn't been too much for her. Chang Haoming is in good condition. They may simply be looking out for themselves. But for some reason, Xiao Yunyue couldn't help herself once she saw them joining forces to bully Chen Yu. Jiang Boeing froze in place, somewhat at a loss for words. So did a few others in the dormitory. Don't look at Xiao Yunyue in the dormitory on weekdays soft and harmless. But they know very well that Xiao Yunyue has an extremely strong personality and is very stubborn. Really serious. They don't really dare to go too far. What's more, if Xiao Yunyue had cut them off, Chang Haoming wouldn't have spent money to buy them off at all. Seeing that the crowd stopped talking, Xiao Yunyue turned her head to look at Chen Yu. Chen Yu, thank you for celebrating my birthday tonight. I'm going back to school first. 
Let's chat again on WeChat. After saying hello, Xiao Yunyue casually stopped a cab and left. In the car, she let out a long sigh. Chun Yu, no matter what, I will do my best to protect your dignity. Looking at the far away cab, Chun Yu had an odd expression on his face. This girl, does she also think I'm beating my head against the wall? Which is protecting my self-esteem? This whole thing, oops. Turning his head, he looked at the dumbfounded crowd and opened his mouth with a smile. Why don't you guys check out my villa? Would you like to see my villa? Looking at Chen Yu's smiling appearance, Chang Haoming's lungs were about to explode. See? How? Did you? And? Dare he look? If he really looked at it, this guy, Chen Yu, would definitely tell Xiao Yunyue. By then, he really wouldn't have a chance at all. This guy, who clearly knew all this, deliberately said such things. Jiang Boeing's several faces turned blue, secretly gritting their teeth and not saying a word. Are you guys sure you don't want to take a look? My villa is very nice. Chen Yu continued to speak. He still wanted a few people to go. After a one-time punch in the face, it saves trouble later. But, Chang Haoming and the others never moved. Chen Yu, count yourself ruthless. Chang Haoming's teeth were all clenched, and with an iron face, he took a car and left. Jiang Boeing looked deeply at Chen Yu. Ha, really social people. This empty city trick, fox and tiger play is really skillful. Chen Yu, Yun Yu, this silly girl is just a fool to fall into your trap but we are not fools, and sooner or later, I will reveal your true colors, let's go, Zhang Boeing and his group left the restaurant, Chen Yu froze and shook his head helplessly, one has been truthful, but they still don't believe it, what can be done about it, shaking his head, Chen Yu called a car, left the restaurant and returned to the villa, there was still some time before the second one in the dormitory, so he was just in time to go back and get some things for himself, getting in the car, just after leaving the hotel, in a corner, a couple of girls came out quietly, looking in the direction the vehicle had left. Morn, is this the boy you met on the highway? At the forefront stood a beautiful woman who drew constant sideways glances from men and women passing by. If Chen Yu were to be here he would have realized that this was exactly the same Tang Chenchen who had sat next to him on the high-speed train earlier. That's him. Tang Chenchen had a face of certainty. At those words, the next few girls immediately skimmed their mouths. This guy is also impressive enough to be friends with Xiao Yunyue and that he bought a house in the Purple Moon Stardust residence? How dare he say that? This man is so full of lies. He's a real downer. Tang Chenchen looked at Chen Yu with some contempt as well. The girl's dormitory is also having a get-together here tonight. When he came out after eating, he happened to meet Chen Yu and the others. Xiao Yunyue was, after all, a big school girl like Tang Chenchen. Seeing that Chen Yu was actually with Xiao Yunyue and the others, the girl's gossipy hearts immediately blazed. A few people were curious as to what was going on and hid in the corner to see what was happening. They heard everything that just happened, including the conversation. When Shen Yu said that he had bought a villa in the Purple Moon Stardust residence, a few people almost didn't control themselves and spewed out in laughter. What kind of dream did you have to dare to say such a thing? Hey, what do you guys say we follow him up and see where the hell he's going? A girl suddenly opened her mouth to make a suggestion, and a few people lit up. It's too early to go back to the dorm anyway. It would be fun to go and expose his lies. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Several people quickly agreed. Tang Chenchen looked hesitant and said, That's not good. Why don't we just go back? Don't. Why do you want to go back? Aren't you curious as to who the boy who rejected you is? A girl took Tang Chenchen's hand and opened her mouth with a smile. That's it. Dare to reject our Chenchen. I'd like to see what he has to offer. That's right. It's just a boy. What's the drag? Yes, we're fairies. How humiliating to be rejected by a boy. I won't be happy if we don't rake him over the coals. Hearing the words of a few people, Tang Chenchen hesitated a bit, and after thinking about it, she nodded. And to be honest, she was pretty unconvinced. You're just handsome, aren't you? I've been so proactive in adding you. Who are you to reject me? At the same time, she was curious about Chen Yu, wanting to know exactly what Chen Yu's identity was. On top of that, Tang Chenchen herself didn't even notice that a touch of frustration and jealousy had risen in herself. Xiao Yunyue and I are both schoolgirls. Why did you get so close to him but reject me? Am I inferior to her in your eyes? Tang Chenchen was like a concubine in the harem, trying to win Chen Yu's favor. But the deal is, you guys need to stop belittling him. People haven't done anything wrong, and it's his right to reject me. Tang Chenchen was kinder and opened her mouth to instruct a few people. Okay, okay, we're just curious. Yeah. Just having fun. Let's not badmouth him anymore, okay? Upon hearing this, Tang Chenchen nodded her head. The group took a car and followed Chen Yu's cap closely. Not long after, they realized that Chen Yu had actually arrived at the Purple Moon Stardust residence. 
Several people were lying on the car window, watching Chen Yu get down from the cab and walk towards the neighborhood. All of them were wide-eyed. I'll go. He's really here ah? It can't be that he really bought a house here, right? This guy should be acting. How can it be real? Fake fake fake. He must be afraid that Chang Hao Ming and the others will sneak up and follow him. That's why he came here. Tang Chen Chen looked at Chen Yu flabbergasted, no longer able to hear a few people speak. Chen Yu came to the entrance of the neighborhood, and the security guard, wearing a straight uniform, saluted at Chen Yu. Afterward, a black sedan slowly arrived in front of Chen Yu. Chen Yu got in his car and headed towards the top of the mountain. He, he went in? My god, I thought he was just dabbling and not going in. How did he get in? What's with that limo just now? Like it was waiting for him on purpose? Several of the girls were confused. At this point, the driver looked at the scene and scared. That sedan just now. Ah, is the Purple Moon Stardust Residence's community car, specializing in transporting owners home. The property is equipped with 40 sedans that are available 24-7 for homeowners to use in the neighborhood as they go. It's like a scenic shuttle. Hey, buying a house here at such a young age is awesome. This kind of house, it really depends on the cast. Once you are born you have it, and if you don't, you don't have it. The driver's face was filled with envy and emotion. A few of the girls were wide-eyed and dumbfounded. This is what you get for living in a neighborhood. God, is this a rich neighborhood? Why don't we go check it out? A few people got out of the cab and went to the entrance of the neighborhood. Hello, this is a private area, not accessible to non-owners. If you want to go in, please talk to the owner. The security guard was imperious and spoke politely. A girl pointed to the limo from earlier. Master, that one is my classmate. I have something to look for him, and would like to ask which homeowner's child he is tutoring here? The guard froze, full of oddities. Mr. Chen is the owner of Villa One. How can he be a tutor? Boom. A thunderbolt exploded, leaving Tang Chenchen's few people dumbfounded. Chen Yu? Villa One? Owner? At this moment, heaven and earth were quiet. Tang Chenchen's few girls looked like stone statues, dumbfounded and motionless in place. Their minds went blank. Chen Yu? Really the owner of Villa One? How is that possible? It's a villa worth over 400 million dollars. How many people in the whole Jinchuan city can afford it? He was just a halfway decent student. How could he afford it? Are you really Mr. Chen's classmates? It can't be a fake, right? Please leave now. The security guard looked at Tang Chenchen's few people, his face full of wariness. If they're really Mr. Chen's friends, how could they be mistaken? These women, they don't mean well for Mr. Chen. Maybe it's one of those sultry bitches from society that wants to get close to Mr. Chun. Can't let them in. A few women looked embarrassed and didn't have the face to stay much longer. Leaving in ashes. On the way. The atmosphere was silent. A few people's faces still had a strong shock lingering on them. Who would dare believe it if they didn't see it with their own eyes? But even after seeing it, they still felt it was too magical. Purple Moon Stardust Residence. Villa 1. In their eyes, this is the place where only the gods and goddesses in heaven can live. There will be no interactions with them in this life. But now, they watched as Chen Yu walked in. So, that's the bottom line of his rejection of me. Tang Chen Chen shook her head with a bitter smile. At this moment, her arrogance was completely gone. Not to mention, this villa alone is an achievement that no one can achieve in their lifetime. What did she have to be proud of in front of a man like that? Beautiful? Come on, with assets like that. What kind of babes do you want that you can't get? A few of the other girls didn't retort. Looking embarrassed. The bottom man? Who is qualified to refuse Tang Chen Chen? Exposing Chen Yu's disguise? All disdain and doubts were completely trampled on the moment Chen Yu entered the Purple Moon Stardust residence. When faced with ordinary classmates, they can still be somewhat arrogant. But facing Chen Yu? They can only look up. They felt like a joke when they thought about how condescending they had been earlier. With shock and despondency, a few people slipped away in ashes. Tang Chen Chen turned her head to look at the Purple Moon Stardust residence that was drifting away. Her mind was filled with Chun Yu's figure. Stayed at Villa 1 and came to JLSTU Midway. Chun Yu, what kind of person are you? There had never been any boy that occupied Tang Chen Chen's entire thoughts like Chen Yu did. Chen Yu hadn't arrived home long before Zhang Ji's message came. A couple of 604s are waiting for him in the second field. Old 6, come the fuck on, we're all waiting to see Goddess Sha. I don't know if she wants to, I'll ask her. Chun Yu thought about it and sent a message to Xiao Yunyue asking her if she would like to go to the second field and meet her dormitory friends. But in a few seconds, Xiao Yunyue returned the message and agreed. After the appointment, Chen Yu quickly arrived. Xiao Yunyue had already arrived. And upon seeing Chen Yu, she smiled and waved. Chen Yu, I'm really sorry. It's my fault today. I didn't expect that Zhang Baying and the girls would call Chang Haoming here. As soon as they met, 
Xiao Yunyue hurriedly explained, as if she was afraid that Chun Yu would misunderstand. Chun Yu shook his head and laughed. It's okay, don't worry about it. Seeing that Chun Yu was not angry, Xiao Yunyue secretly breathed a sigh of relief, squeezing the pendant. Xiao Yunyue smiled and said, Thank you for the gift. I love it. If you like it, then Goddess Xiao, can you give us a chance to go to the second field, drink beer and eat crayfish? Chen Yu blinked with a flirtatious expression. Aha, enjoy, go. The two smiled at each other and headed to the second gathering. The second game of 604 was at a night market barbecue stand not far from the school. The place is very busy at this time of day and there are people everywhere. Many tables were set up in the open by the side of the road. Beer bottles were placed everywhere. The air is thick with the aroma of barbecue, tantalizing the appetite. Chen Yu looked and saw Li Pei and the others. Let's go over. Chen Yu took the initiative to take Xiao Yun Yue's hand and walked towards Li Pei and the others. Xiao Yun Yue's body trembled violently, and her face instantly turned scarlet, biting her lower lip. She did not refuse and allowed Chen Yu to hold herself and walk towards a few people. Along the way, her heart felt like a deer in headlights. The amazing heat coming from Chen Yu's palm made her brain dizzy. The corners of Chen Yu's mouth hooked up. His heart filled with a kind of joy and peace. He took Xiao Yun Yue's hand without the slightest bit of intention at all. Very natural. Because a voice in the underworld told him. Xiao Yun Yue was her own. She wouldn't refuse. And it did. Everything just fell into place. Chen Yu suddenly thought of a sentence. Confession. Not a fearless attempt. But a declaration of victory. Himself. Apparently. Had succeeded. Hey. Old Six and the others are here. Goddess Xiao is also here. Holy shit. Old Lu. You're fucking holding the goddess's hand? Li Pei had just greeted Chen Yu when he saw him and immediately exclaimed with wide eyes. One house few people turned to look and all of them stared wide-eyed and wailed. My Chao, you old six, why are you so hung up? Rub it in, you actually chased goddess Xiao into your hands. Lao Lu Ah, you are my idol Ah, teach me this single dog, how to get off the hook Ah. A few people spoke without a word, causing Xiao Yun Yue to shyly lower her head. Chen Yu smiled and shook his head. Although we haven't known each other long, a few people are nice. Chen Yu also treated them as true friends. He was also a bit helpless with these living treasures. Old Six, won't you give us a formal introduction? Zheng Ji raised his eyebrows and smiled. Chen Yu laughed, introducing with everyone. This is my girlfriend, Xiao Yunyue. Who? A few people let out a gasp of excitement. A dormitory brother became the boyfriend of a schoolgirl. Ah, I feel so fucking proud, don't I? Xiao Yunyue's cheeks were incredibly scarlet and she was so shy. Taking a deep breath, Xiao Yunyue gathered her courage to look at Li Pei's few people. Hello everyone, I'm Chen Yu's girlfriend, Xiao Yunyue. This is my first time meeting you, so please teach me more. A few people saw Xiao Yunyue and immediately had their hands full. The first time so close to the goddess, so excited have you. It's like the unattainable fairies have suddenly become your family. It feels, it's so dreamy. The crowd took their seats. And right there on the tiny barbecue stand, they pushed and poured and flaunted the recklessness of youth. Xiao Yunyue also made an exception and drank several glasses of beer, jerking off without regard for her image. Li Pei several single dogs laughed silly. The goddess is with herself, drinking beer and jerking kebabs. It's like a fucking dream. All around, there were also some students from the Jiangling University of Science and Technology who came to eat barbecue. They all recognized Xiao Yunyue and were all stunned for a moment. By the time the second field dispersed, it was past 12 o'clock. Xiao Yunyue's small face was flushed as she suddenly let out a cry of surprise. Startling Chen Yu. What's wrong? Xiao Yunyue had a face that pulled across and said, The dormitory building has already locked its doors. I can't go back. At those words, Chen Yu's eyes lit up. Oh, the white rabbit can't go back? He had an idea. And he didn't know if it was the right thing to say or not. Looking at Xiao Yunyue's flushed side face, Chen Yu's heart and mind swung hard. That alluring look of tenderness with a dash of anxiety gave him an unspeakable rush. Oops. It does get late. The dormitory building locks up at 11. Li Pei dizzily slapped his thigh. Gangneung University of Science and Technology has a rule that students have to return to their dormitories by 11 o'clock. The warden would then lock the gate's iron gate and not open it until early the next morning. After 11 o'clock, it's a pain in the ass to go back. What then? Hey. What are you doing back there tonight? Let's go to an internet cafe and get a room and hack all night. Yao Yujing patted her chest with anticipation. But what about goddess Xiao and Beauty Du? Du Beauty, whose real name is Du Yuan Yuan, is Zheng Ji's new girlfriend. Zheng Ji looked at Chen Yu and raised his eyebrows fiercely a few times. As men, we all understand. Chen Yu understood and gently nodded. It was good that he was an immortal cultivator. He usually had a mind like water and had no desires. But now he was facing his favorite girl. Anymore, he's a normal male. 
Xiao Yunyue is a white rabbit to the mouth. If you don't eat it, are you still a man? That, since you guys can't go back, why don't we just? Before Zhang Ji could finish, Du Yuan Yuan's big eyes glared and she slapped Zhang Ji's thigh hard. Who says we can't go back? I'm on good terms with the hostess aunt. Yun Yu. Follow sister. Sis will take you back to the dormitory. Du Yuan Yuan hiccuped and patted her chest with a haughty look on her face. Just now chatting she already knew that Xiao Yunyue lived in the same dormitory building as herself. Is it really okay? Xiao Yunyue opened her mouth to inquire. Hey, of course you can. For your information, the hostess will open the door for me even if I go back in the middle of the night. And she wants to recognize me as her goddaughter. It's okay. Du Yuan Yuan waved her hand rather ostentatiously. Zheng Ji froze. Nima, sis, can you give a chance? Can't you see that old six and I are watching you too? Yuan Yuan. It's already 12 o'clock. How bad would it be for you guys to go back now and disturb the hostess's rest? Why don't we not go back? Zheng Ji opened his mouth to test the waters. Du Yuan Yuan had already drunk a little too much and slammed the table. Che, no way. You don't believe me? Well then, I'll call my aunt now. Saying that, Du Yuan Yuan directly took out her cell phone and called the hostess aunt's number. Hey, auntie, it's Hope. Well, I'm out drinking with some boys, so leave the door open for me. We'll be right back. Yeah, me and Xiao Yunyue. He he he. I know you love us. We'll be right back. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll definitely go back. If we don't go back within an hour, you call the police to arrest us. Hiccup. Hanging up the phone, Du Yuan Yuan proudly raised her cell phone and lifted her chin provocatively. See, it's done. Zheng Ji was dumbfounded and Chen Yu was confused. Du Yuan Yuan's set of maneuvers flowed smoothly, not giving the two men any time to react at all. You, you big dork. The corners of Zheng Ji's eyes jumped straight out of the corner of his eyes as he held back his anger and opened his mouth. Du Yuan Yuan was reluctant, her eyes glaring. How am I stupid? Most of the time, I'm witty as hell. Young, Chen Yu. Xiao Yunyue also drank a little too much and hugged Du Yuan Yuan, arching her head and talking drunk. That's right, Hope is witty as hell. I'm witty as hell too. Chen Yu and Zhang Ji looked at each other and let out a long sigh at the same time. Shit, the white rabbit is out of the tiger's mouth. Unable to do so, several people had to send the two back. When they reached the dormitory floor, the hostile ant gave Chen Yu several people a hard stare. Old six, I'm sorry. Zhang Ji patted Chen Yu's shoulder and spoke. Chen Yu gave him a blank stare. I'm curious if a womanizer like Du Yuan Yuan needed you to heroically save her at that time or not. I didn't expect her to be so tigerish after drinking either. There was no home run, and Young was full of regret. Although Chen Yu's heart was also somewhat lost, it was not strong. At the very least, today's relationship with Xiao Yunyue was considered settled. The crowd went back to their homes. Chen Yu went back to the villa to rest. Yao Yujing and the others went directly to the internet cafe for the night. The next day, Chen Yu slept directly until noon. Before he could get up, he was awakened by a phone call from Li Pei. Old Six, look at the school forum. You're on fucking fire. Chen Yu was a bit uncertain, but he still clicked on the forum. In the forums, it had completely blown up. The hottest few posts were all about Xiao Yunyue and Chen Yu. Surprise, iceberg schoolgirl Xiao Yunyue, signing hands with a mysterious man, drinking until 12 o'clock in the middle of the night. Who the hell is that man next to Xiao Yunyue? Similar posts with all the heat. Click on it and it's all pictures from last night's second game. Among other things, there are several photos. In the post, there was a lot of ghosting. Ah, my goddess. How come this guy chased her? Who the hell is this guy? Dare to steal my goddess? I can't even dream of holding a goddess's hand. And you're playing with it? Many people said that they wanted to teach Chen Yu a hard lesson. Seeing this, Chen Yu smiled and shook his head, closing the forum. When the matter is over, brush off your clothes and hide your achievements and fame. Brothers continue to be jealous. Let's move on to romance with Yun Yu. However, besides falling in love, there is one more important thing at hand. Tomorrow was the day of the showdown with Xing Qian Lei. Xing Qian Lei, don't let me down. Chen Yu muttered, got up and washed slightly before coming to the upstairs terrace to start practicing. By the time the cultivation was finished, it was already 3 o'clock in the afternoon. At this time, Sun Qian Dao, the director of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province, called Chen Yu. Xing Qian Lei has arrived in Jingchuan City. Chen Yu's eyes glazed over, and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Is he finally here? Made me wait so hard. Chen Yu, you must not be careless. He is very strong. Don't worry, I'm counting. Hanging up the phone, Chen Yu looked at the distant sky with his hands in the air. Song Yao, I wonder how your Song family will react after tomorrow's duel. You, then, in your terror, meet destruction. 
Jinchuan City High Speed Railway Station. A train arrives at the station. The car door opened and many people stepped out. An old man stepped out with a dragon stride. He looked majestic, and his two thick eyebrows were like sword blades, pointing diagonally at the sky. Xing Qian Lei, coming, beside him, there was his personal disciple, Zhang Mo, above the station. It was all bustling with people. Xing Qian Lei looked around with some emotion. It's been years since I've seen earthly prosperity. Just as he finished speaking, a sudden chorus of curses came from behind him. Get out of the fucking way old man. Get out of the way. A couple of young men with gold necklaces and carved arms and bald heads looked menacing. Xing Qian Lei's brows furrowed as he glanced back at the several people. His eyes steepling. Snort. Suddenly, there was falling thunder in the sky, which happened to strike several people. Miserable screams rang out as several people fell to the ground. Scorched black. Travelers screamed and ran everywhere around them, and the platform immediately became chaotic. Xing Qian Lei's face was bland, as if he had just swatted a few bedbugs to death, and turned to leave. Come on, let's go to the Song family first. The Song family. Aya. Mr. Xing. We haven't seen each other for years. Song family head Song Yuan too. Song Yao's father, was very enthusiastic in shaking criminal Chan Lei's hand. Family master Song. It's been a long time. You look as graceful as ever. Criminal Thousand Thunder smiled and opened his mouth. Although he was an innate master and ignored the heroes of the world, the Song family was also very uncomplicated, so he was quite polite in his words. Hey, old minion, can't compare to a martial arts master like you. Song Yuan Tu patted his thighs and shook his head repeatedly, his face filled with a look of emotion. In this statement, half of it is coping and half of it is out of sincerity. Although the two were about the same age, the innate patriarch's vitality was strong and now it was the time of his prime. As for him, Song Yuan too, he had already felt a growing decline in his bodily functions. Criminal Chan Lei laughed and changed the topic. Xing Sen's stay in the Song family these days has caused you a lot of trouble. Hey, where is this coming from? Rather, I'm the one who's very embarrassed to have caused Xing Sen to suffer that strange humiliation in South City. I didn't expect that a mole cricket that I originally didn't look down on in my Song family would now transform into a dragon. Ting Chan Lei clenched his fist and slammed it on the armrest. He regrets it now. When Wu Xiaolan was pregnant, she should have sent someone and gotten her aborted. That way that little sinful child wouldn't have been born and become the scourge it is now. Instead, criminal Chan Lei just laughed. There's no harm in it. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have come back from that bitter cold place. A teenage innate sect master. I'm also interested. Speaking of which, I wonder how Mr. Xing's for extinguishing thunder skill is doing with his cultivation? Song Yuan Tu paused and deliberately said, Chen Yu is a demon. It's very difficult to deal with. If you're not sure, Mr. Xing might as well not go tomorrow. Xing Qian Lei swept his eyes at Song Yuan too, knowing that this was his way of provoking him, but he didn't point it out. With a faint smile, he said, Does Family Master Song want to see old man's methods? Gee, it would be nice to have an eye-opener. Song Yuan Tu's eyes lit up as he guided criminal Qian Lei to the manor's courtyard. Quite a few Song family children gathered around, their faces full of curiosity. Earlier they had stayed in the courtyard, looking curiously through the floor-to-ceiling windows at interchiral thunder. Innate master, this kind of character was only heard of occasionally, but it's the first time I've seen a real person. They were also a bit skeptical about the means of criminal thousand thunder. Now that criminal thousand thunder was going to demonstrate it in person, it made them look forward to it somewhat. Che, what innate master? I think it's just like that. A young man with studded ears, arms clasped over his chest, spoke disdainfully. He had a mohawk, wore tights, and was bulging with muscles. A scar, falling diagonally from the corner of his left eye, added a touch of ferocity. Song Mu, you just came back from abroad. You don't know the terror of these martial arts experts. An innate sect master is not something you can offend. One of the men next to him made a hurried gesture of silence. Song Mu was still full of disdain. Hey, you guys, you just haven't been out of the country and your eyes are too small. What grandmasters? They're all things you guys masturbate yourselves to. If you guys have ever seen a foreign fighting tournament, you'd know that's the real fighting. These so-called experts in the Dragon Kingdom are all lying to themselves. There have been many times when I've seen some so-called domestic masters get their asses kicked when they arrive abroad. Just this old man. I did a Muay Thai flying knee and he was on his knees. Song Mu has been living abroad for a long time. That is, he just returned home yesterday. He didn't understand the situation in the country. And he was full of laziness towards interchiral thunder. When he said this, he didn't deliberately lower his voice, and it was clearly heard by Inter Chilei and Song Yuan too. Criminal Chan Lei looked at Song Mu and narrowed his eyes slightly, revealing a cold smile. He he, Song family master, 
the young people of your Song family are rather high-minded, but after watching some foreign barbarians' tricks, you don't even recognize your own ancestors? Song Yuantu's face was embarrassed as he said, Mr. Xing please calm down, Song Mu, he is young and ignorant, he doesn't know your methods, since I don't know, then I'll teach him a good lesson for you and let him know. As the words fell, Criminal Thousand Thunder raised one hand, between his five fingers, a thunder aura suddenly erupted and blasted towards Song Mu. The thunder on carried a violent roar and flashed with dazzling arcs of light. In just a flash, it reached Song Mu. Everything happened so fast that Song Mu was completely unresponsive and just stood frozen in place, watching the thunder on engulf him. I'm done. I'm going to get chopped up. Song Mu's mind was filled with only this one thought. Boom. There was a loud bang. Song Mu's body jerked back. He hurriedly touched himself and grinned when he realized he was unharmed. See, you guys, I told you the country was full of fake gurus. Am I not fine now? Everything just now was an illusion. Just light and shadow magic. After smiling, Song Mu's face stiffened. What's going on? Why does everyone look so shocked? I'm fine, right? Ha, huh? they're looking behind me? Noticing that the state of the crowd was not right, Song Mu turned his head to look. With just one glance, his eyes widened with a look of utter horror. Behind him, there was originally a three meter high wigwam, but at the moment, the wigwam was no more. The ground was littered with chipped stones with scorched black marks on them. This, this, Song Mu stuttered and opened his mouth, unable to say a complete sentence. His mind was a mess. That's a wigwam made of fine steel rock. Even if you take a hammer to the top, you can only smash out an opening. This old man just waved his hand and blew up the wigwam? That thunderbolt just now. It wasn't an illusion. It was real? How can a human body burst forth with such terrifying power? What martial arts? Qi Gong, these things actually exist? If that thunderbolt had just struck himself, that. Song Mu shivered, his scalp tingling with fear and chills running down his spine. The surrounding crowd looked at Xing Chen Lei as if they were looking at a god. Filled with awe, that hand just now had completely surpassed their imagination. Although he knew that innate masters were land deities, he did not expect that he would be able to make it this far. Manipulating thunder and lightning. Such a means is simply divine. Xing Qian Lei stood with his arms folded, his face cold. On account of the face of the Song family master, I will spare you once. If you do it again, that wigwam will be your downfall. Poof. Song Mu knelt in front of Xing Qian Lei, thumping his head. I was wrong. Old sir, I beg your forgiveness. I beg your forgiveness. Song Yuan Tu laughed out loud, his face full of joy. The vertical sun is ignorant. Mr. Xing must not be offended. I've long heard that Mr. Xing's four extinction thunder skill has the power to take over the creation of heaven and earth. And when I see it today, it really lives up to its name. Tomorrow we will enjoy Mr. Xing's performance. Please invite Mr. Xing inside for tea. Someone, bring me my 200. 000 caddy Long Jing. The Song family, a joyous one. Time, quickly came to the next day. The day of the patriarchal showdown is here. Early morning light, through the glass poured over the 604 dormitory. There wasn't a single class today, so a few of Li Pei's people went really crazy last night and played games all night. All curled up in bed now, sleeping soundly. Chen Yu also did not return to the villa, but stayed in the dormitory. After getting up and washing my face and brushing my teeth, I stretched a little. Looking at the rising sun, there was a sharp look in his eyes. Today is the day of the showdown. Ding ding ding. At this time, Chen Yu's cell phone rang. When he opened it, it was a message from Xiao Yunyue. Hello, are you up yet? It's up. Yeah, you're up so early? I'm still under the covers. I don't want to get up. Chen Yu shook his head and smiled, saying, If you don't get up, the sun is going to shine on your butt. I'd like to get up, but this quilt is abominable. It keeps pestering me. How do you manage to get up so early? Teach me. Chen Yu returned, because I'm going to Jinchuan River to duel with someone soon. A duel? Well, a kung fu master has come to me for a fight and I'm going to get him. Xiao Yunyue was nestled under the quilt, and when she saw Chen Yu's message, she snorted and laughed. Yo yo yo, you're awesome. Come on haha, beat his ass. Good drop. Yes, after the duel, remember to come back for the games. Martial arts masters have to compete for the class. Well, I'll try to make it back. Well, I'll sleep some more, and I'll duel with the comforter too, but I can't beat her. Sleep. Chen Yu put away his cell phone, cleaned up a little, and prepared to go out. Old Six, what are you doing up so early? Wang Hao rubbed his eyes and asked sleepily. Chen Yu laughed, going to duel with an innate master in the Jinchuan River. Damn, with that eloquence, you deserve to have a girlfriend. Wang Hao cursed and rolled over, continuing to sleep. 
Chun Yu smiled and shook his head as he left the dormitory. Jin Chuan River, magnificent. Surrounded by green hills on both sides of the river, the river shimmers and opens up as far as the eye can see. The place of this duel was in no man's land. Although it is close to Jinchuan City, it is a suburb and not many people come. Today, however, the place is bustling. On both sides of the river, one luxury car after another was parked everywhere. Quite a few people gathered in twos and threes. Men and women of all ages, without exception. They, all of them, were bigwigs who got the news and came from all over Jiangling province. There are rich merchants and businessmen, ancient martial arts families, and hidden sects. In a corner, Sun Qian Dao, Yuan Chang, and a group of people from the Inhuman Bureau gathered together. Looking at the surrounding crowd, Sun Qian Dao frowned deeply and let out a long sigh. I didn't expect that this duel would attract so many people. Yuan Cheng laughed bitterly. Yes, the old Zhang head of the bullying fist sect, Mr. San Lu of the Listening Windhouse, and the young Confucian from the Dongming Academy. These people have all disappeared for decades, and all of them are here today. Although he was only the director of the South City and Human Bureau, he nevertheless knew something about the situation in Jiangling Province. The people mentioned just now were all renowned experts in the inhuman world of Jiangling Province. In order to seek a breakthrough in their martial arts path, they had long ago stopped asking questions about the world and cultivated in peace. On weekdays, they never asked about any sect fights, division of interests, or anything like that. It can be said that even if it's a heavenly thing, they don't put it in their eyes. I didn't realize that today. All of them were blown out of the water. Bureau son, what do you say? Chun Yu he has a few percent chance of winning this time? Yuan Ching opened his mouth to inquire. Sun Xian Dao froze and shook his head after a long silence. I don't know, but if Chen Yu loses this time, the impact will be too great. Yuan Ching let out a long sigh, and there was a touch of worry between his brows. The Bureau of Inhumanity, an organization that oversees the inhumanity of the world. But the reason why an inhuman is called an inhuman is because he or she has skills that are unimaginable to the common man. Trying to manage such characters is not easy. As an official organization, the various forces had some respect for the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. But, that's all. The root cause, again, is strength. There wasn't a figure in the Jiangling Province Inhuman Bureau that was strong enough to overwhelm the four directions. In recent years, the Inhuman community in Jiangling Province had become somewhat unstable. A lot of forces were getting restless, and their actions were getting more and more out of the ordinary. Starting to test the bottom line of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. All of this caused Sun Shandao and the others to be under great pressure. And right after Chen Yu appeared, all of this situation was greatly improved. Chen Yu was the first prefect of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province, and was considered half official. In the past, the various forces were still a little light on the Jiangling Province Inhuman Bureau, but facing an innate master, who dares to be negligent. It could be said that Chen Yu was a strategic deterrent that made all the sects not dare to move. Although this appointment by criminal Chen Lei was a personal grudge, it was not that simple in the eyes of others. If Chun Yu won, then in an invisible way, it would highlight the strength of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. From now on, the Inhuman world in Jiangling Province would be more peaceful. Chun Yu, on the other hand, would become the leader of the Inhuman world in Jiangling Province, but if they lost, it would undoubtedly be a huge loss for the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. Not only would he lose an innate sect master, his prestige would also be greatly reduced. At that time, the entire inhuman world of Jiangling province would be even more turbulent, and the difficulty of management would increase geometrically. Hopefully, Chen Yu he can win. Yuan Ching muttered to himself, but he didn't have any half-heartedness in his heart. Sun Qian Dao and the others fell into a long silence. Everyone is jittery. Not far away. Xiao Gu, Gu Shan, and Gong Yan also came. Looking at the scene in front of them, the three of them were filled with shock. Almost all of the top bigwigs in the entire Jiangling province had come to this place. I really didn't expect that this battle has attracted such a huge amount of attention. Mr. Chen can he win? The three men looked worried. Nowadays, they were already tied to Chen Yu. If Chen Yu lost, they lost as well. At that time, they would face the Sun family's retaliation, and their situation would be incredibly difficult. But if they win, they'll be subordinate to the dragon. This is a big gamble, and it's really exciting. Just then, Five cars came rushing by in the distance, raising a cloud of smoke. After stopping, a group of people stepped down. The person at the head of the group was none other than the head of the Song family. Song Yuan Tu. Criminal Thousand Thunder stood side by side with him, his face cold and heavy. Behind the two, were the Song family's crowd. Each one of them was eyeing the world with their heads held high and looking at the world with their heads held high, rather like they were looking at the world as if it were nothing. The crowd's eyes jumped. 
the Song family, finally, the man beside him, then, is, all of the gazes converged on criminal Chan Lei's body, Mr. Xing, let's wait here, Song Yuan too smirked, Ting Qian Lei shook his head, no need, I'll wait for him on the river, he took a step out, pulling out a phantom along the way, and with his feet on the river, he arrived at the center of the Jinchuan River and stood still, the rolling river is as flat as the ground at the moment, for a time, the entire room was silent, staring at criminal Chan Lei with a shocked expression, hiss, this, is this the innate master, a fresh breeze, on the green hills on both sides of the river, the lush mountain forests gently swayed and made a rustling sound, above the surface of the river, the water waves were gentle, crystalline and glittering in the sunlight, Xing Qian Lei stood proudly on the surface of the river, his hands clasped in front of his chest, his eyes slightly closed, with him as the center, within a five meter radius, the river seemed to stand still, without the slightest fluctuation, it was as smooth as a mirror, the vastness of the river was actually inferior to him in terms of momentum, on both sides of the great river, the crowd looked at this scene with awe in their eyes, an old man's eyes were filled with envy and he sighed long and hard, innate master, one step is the difference between immortal and mortal, Xing Qian Lei, back in the day, you proudly surpassed your peers, to this day, you still overwhelm the current generation, he's from the same era as Hyung Chun Lei, as a fellow inhuman, he had also had a heart higher than the sky, looking proudly at the world, believing that he was the absolute protagonist, it's more of a fight with Xing Qian Lei, but it turned out to be a fiasco, back then, he had also let out a harsh word that he would definitely surpass Xing Qian Lei in the future, but decades later, when the deceased met again, Xing Qian Lei had already reached a point he could hardly imagine, Xing Qian Lei, what a legend, another bigwig let out a sigh of relief, there were also rich people who marveled at it, in a society like ours nowadays, such characters are simply omnipotent gods, at the scene, some of the young people who had been brought by their elders to open their eyes had been dumbfounded, stepping on a river, that's not scientific, this is an innate patriarch, could it be that those deeds recorded in the ancient books, they were really able to do it, my god, have I studied physics for the past 20 years or so for nothing? Ah, uh, after all, these young men, though of extraordinary birth, are more exposed than ordinary people. However, an existence like an innate master had never been seen before either. And in the ancient books, the records about the innate patriarchs were divine. What snapping fingers to kill the enemy, flying through the air, one step of 10 meters. These are things that maybe the older generation still believes in. But what are they? New human beings educated in modern society. How can such a violation of science be true? The records in the ancient books are nothing more than the masturbation and exaggeration of ignorant ancients. People, after all, are just people and cannot defy the laws of physics. But when they saw Xing Qian Lei, they suddenly realized that they were wrong. Many of the accounts in ancient books may not be false. It's only because they're shallow and out of touch. On the side of the Inhuman Bureau, Sun Xiandao and the others' faces were incomparably grave. Commissioner Sun, what do you think? Yuan Cheng opened his mouth to inquire his voice grave, Sun Qian Dao narrowed his eyes, his face as heavy as water, Xing Qian Lei, it's even more powerful than I thought, after many years, he doesn't know how far he's gotten out at the innate realm, this battle is hard, at those words, the hearts of the crowd sank and became even more worried, the two of them, Lu Tianhao and Lu Mo, also came, unlike a few people who were worried, the two were confident, Mr. Chen will never lose, not bad, everyone should have faith in Mr. Chen, I always feel that Mr. Chen is invincible. Lu Mo opened his mouth, thinking of all the things he had learned from his acquaintance with Chun Yu. Xing Qian Lei was very powerful, but the kind of aura Lu Mo felt from Chun Yu filled him with confidence. If I had to say, it would be Xing Qian Lei, a very, very strong person. But Chun Yu, however, had already transcended the realm of human beings. Oh, Director Sun, long time no see. I didn't expect to meet here today. In the distance, Song Yuan too stepped forward, smiling and arching his hand. The Song family had an extraordinary status in Jiangling province, and although they didn't deal much with the Inhuman Bureau, they knew each other. When Sun Qiandao saw Song Yuan too, he also arched his hand. I didn't expect that the Song family master would come in person today. He he, Chun Yu wants to get my Song family killed, so naturally I'm going to come and take a look. Having pressed him for more than 20 years, he is going to sink his body in the Jinchuan River today, so I've come to see him off. I've heard that he is the first prefect of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province, and I've come to apologize to Director Sun. Sun Xiandao's face was indifferent as he said, before the end game, it is not yet known. Song family master shouldn't be too confident. In case Chen Yu wins today, 
the Song family will have a hard time in the future. He already knew about the feud between Chen Yu and the Song family. To be fair, he was also very displeased with the Song family. However, if they wanted to deal with the Song family, the Inhuman Bureau was not capable of doing so. He he, I hope he has the ability. My Song family is really lacking a fun toy. I hope he can be that toy. Then I won't bother you all. When Chen Yu dies, I'll go to the Inhuman Bureau to mourn. Song Yuan Tu smiled and arched his hand before walking away. Sun Xiandao narrowed his eyes and watched Song Yuan Tu leave before suddenly deflating. A long sigh filled him. Chen Yu ah, today's hurdle, I don't know if you'll pass or not. Time flies. Half an hour had passed in the blink of an eye. The crowd waited with some impatience. Some people were even speculating whether Chen Yu was too scared to come. Only Xing Qian Lei, still standing proudly still, showed excellent determination. Hey guys, look, there's a cab. Suddenly, there was a sound that drew the attention of the crowd. Many faces were stunned. This place is so remote that there are no people at all on weekdays. There are no buildings for a dozen miles around. Those who are here today are all bigwigs from one side, with luxury cars. What's with the sudden entry of a cab into the picture? This is so unholy. In full view of everyone, the cab stopped and Chen Yu pushed open the door and stepped out of the car. Damn. This place is so remote it cost almost 200 in cab fare. The cab driver, a middle-aged fat man, looked around and sked. Boy, what is this? A movie? Yo, that guy on the river has a good pie. Is that a wigwam? Little old me, are you an actor? Looking at Chun Yu, the cab driver opened his mouth to inquire. Chun Yu smiled and shook his head. Well, I have a family to feed, or I would have stayed and watched you guys film. Let's go. The driver left in style with a flick of the steering wheel. All of the attention converged on Chen Yu with odd faces. On the day of Armageddon, you call a cab? My friend, you're being a little disrespectful. Mr. Chen, Lu Tianhao and Lu Mo waved their hands excitedly. Zhao Gu and the three of them looked at Xing Chen Lei and shrunk their necks, not daring to speak to Chen Yu. Song Yuan Tu narrowed his eyes and looked coldly at Chen Yu, a cold aura flickering in his eyes. Is this the bitch's seat of that bitch Wu Shaolan? What a blunder. I shouldn't have let Yao Yao fool around back then. I should have just gotten the mother and son killed. Today, however, history will be corrected to the right track. Glancing at Xing Qian Lei, Song Yuan Tu grinned and sent a text message to Song Yao. The execution will begin soon. So eat and play nice while you're abroad. Not far away. Sun Xian Dao walked to Chen Yu's side, his face full of worry. Chen Yu, how sure are you? Chen Yu smiled and said, 10%. After saying that, he took a step forward and walked towards Xing Qian Lei. Da 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 da. Chen Yu took one step at a time, stepping on the surface of the river, and soon arrived in front of Xing Qian Lei, an old man and a young man, decades apart in years, just stood opposite each other. Xing Qian Lei sized up Chen Yu with a lot of emotions in his heart. Young, that's so young, an innate sect master in his mid-twenties, it wouldn't be too much to say an absolute demon. Although he was known as a martial arts genius back then and overshadowed his peers, he wasn't young when he broke through to the innate sect master, and after going through that level, he deeply understood how difficult it was to go from Hotian to Innate. Chen Yu was also sizing up Xing Qian Lei. It was worthy of being a character that had made Xin Yu Wan Cheng Cheng esteemed. Previously, he had also met the four Innate Masters, Shen Yu Wan Cheng, Du Sun, An Xia, and Zhu Xiao. All four were guest secretaries of the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau, figures known as Dragon Zun. However, when compared to Xing Qian Lei, it was a bit worse. This gap is unspeakable, yet it can be felt. Thus for this battle, Chen Yu had a few more expectations. You're good. Xing Qian Lei suddenly spoke. At such an age, to have already stepped into the innate realm is truly rare in the world. Chen Yu, originally I was going to kill you, but now, I've changed my mind. If you kowtow and admit your mistake, I can forget about it. Not only that, I'm willing to become friends with you. How about that? Xing Qian Lei spoke aloud. He didn't yell, but everyone in the room heard him as if he were whispering in their ears. At those words, Everyone was dumbfounded and filled with surprise. Xing Qian Lei this is rising love of talent. Do not want to fight? Hey, how is this going to work? We came all this way and he's not going to fight? Playing tricks on us. One young man was immediately reluctant, yelling and venting his frustration. Xing Qian Lei's face sank as he looked over, followed by a wave. A thunderon exploded out from his fingertips. Before the crowd could react, the thunderon had already penetrated the young man's chest. The man fell headfirst to the ground, staring, no longer alive. In the center of his heart, there was a hole the size of a bowl, translucent front and back, surrounded by scorched black marks, without a drop of blood. Humph, you're the one who can judge what the old man does. Xing Qian Lei looked disdainful and spoke indifferently. 
At the scene, there was a sound of cold air being sucked in. The crowd looked horrified, and a shocking wave was set off in their hearts. In modern society, killing is a big deal, and few people will do it. But Xing Qian Lei said to kill, completely treating human life like grass. Not only that, but his means. Killing people by lightning is nothing short of terrifying. Is this the attitude of an innate master? Is this the ability of an innate master? For a while, no one on the scene spoke again. Those who had previously held the mindset of watching the show were at this moment in awe and some fear. Well, what do you think? Xing Qian Lei sized up Chen Yu and opened his mouth to inquire. Chen Yu shook his head. No need to say much. Hurry up and start the fight. After it's over, I have to go back to school and participate in the games. You, what did you say? Xing Qian Lei stared in disbelief. To the games? This is a clash of clansmen today. Something big to go down in the history of the inhuman world. Even if it is decades in the past, it will be remembered by future generations. What the fuck are you saying to me? Hurry up and finish the fight and get to the games? What a rude and perfunctory attitude. Chun Yu, I want you dead. Xing Qian Lei let out a roar and struck out with anger. With one step, he swept across a dozen meters in just an instant. Arriving in front of Chen Yu, five fingers spread out and a palm slammed down. Between its palms, there were bursts of thunder arcs flashing, as if the thunder god was ruling, descending from the sky. Good timing. Seeing the hunt, Chen Yu let out a low gulp, and a fist rushed straight up from the bottom, with the unrivaled momentum of crossing the sky. Boom! Fists and palms collided, erupting with a shocking sound. A fist of fleshly airwaves, centered on the two, spread out in all directions. The river burst into waves. Immediately afterward, it was as if countless explosives had been planted around the two of them, and the bombardment went on and on. The water column rose to the sky, more than 10 meters high. Just the first encounter stunned everyone. Although he knew that innate masters were land deities, he did not expect that they would have such great power. And right after the first exchange, the two didn't stop for a second and made a move again. Xing Chen Lei failed to land a blow, changed his palm into a fist, violently twisted his waist, and his fist was flung out horizontally, rather like the invincible momentum of sweeping away thousands of troops. Chen Yu's expression remained unchanged as he raised his arm to block. Under the collision, the river behind Chen Yu rumbled and exploded continuously, raising nine water pillars. In response, Chen Yu was not affected in the slightest as he swept his foot up, heading straight for Xing Qian Lei's head. Xing Qian Lei dodged sideways. Chen Yu kicked the air but the leg was powerful. The surface of the river was also cut with a nearly 100 meter long incision that lasted a full dozen seconds before slowly dissipating. In the midst of the water splashes falling from the sky, the two of them were like scaly dragons, swimming on the Jinchuan River constantly colliding with each other. They were extremely fast. One moment they were in one place, the next they were already tens of meters away. Fists, palms, fingers, and feet. Any part of the body became a weapon of terror in a frenzied attack. A roaring sound resounded throughout the Jinchuan River. The entire Jinchuan River, completely boiling, all around. Everyone was shocked and unable to close their mouths. Heavens, this this this, this is an innate sovereign? What kind of terrifying destructive power is this? I've lived most of my life and this is the first time I've seen such a sight. Humans, can they really do this? This is like a humanoid Gundam. It's horrible, simply horrible. The two of them, Lu Tianhao and Lu Mo, were red-faced and trembling with excitement. Mr. Chan, Bull, Yuan Cheng stared wide-eyed and gulped. Director Sun, I, I have a feeling that Chen Yu might be able to win? Sun Xian Dao was also filled with shock. His heart was beating frantically and his fists were clenched white. Maybe, it's really really possible, not far away, the Song family crowd was dumbfounded, Chun Yu, this mole, how come he's so powerful, family, family head, that Chun Yu, that, that wouldn't really be able to win, right, snap, Song Yu went to slap the person who opened his mouth and jerked him away, his face filled with a scowl, bullshit, how can that little bitch win, although he said this, under Song Yu and Tu's eyes, a flash of panic flashed through, which even he himself had not noticed, the battle, Still going on, the entire Jinchuan River became the stage for the two. Stones pierced through the air, waves beat the shore, and a thousand piles of snow were rolled up. Waves of air rushed in and the winds raged. The water mist in the sky exploded up, carrying with it a great force, displaying the immense power of the innate master. Ha 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 ha, kid, since stepping into the realm of the innate, it has been a long time since my old man has been so unrestrained. Today's battle between you and I is enough to comfort our lives. After you die, I will definitely give you a generous burial. Xing Qian Lei threw back his head and laughed with incomparable pleasure. The old man has already used 50% of his power, 
and it's a rarity in the world for you to be able to fight the old man to a draw. When the crowd heard this, their faces changed greatly. So far in the great battle, Xing Qian Lei has only used 50% of his power? God, what kind of old monster is this? Shen Yu froze and said, you've used 50% of your strength, not the same as me, using 10% of your strength? In one sentence, the whole room was shocked. Everyone was confused. Xing Qian Lei froze. In the next moment, his face turned red and he roared in anger. I'll shoot you. At this moment, Xing Qian Lei felt incomparably humiliated. The anger was like a volcano erupting. It would have been a compliment to the young man to allow himself to use five points of force. As a result, you say you only used one point? I've been in the world for so long. When have I ever been so scorned by a junior? But he didn't know that Chun Yu really didn't lie. In the series of fights just now, Chun Yu had really only used 10% of his strength. High achievers are hard to find, and those like criminal Chan Lei are even more rare. Since Chun Yu had set foot on the path of immortal cultivation, this was considered to be his first major battle. Seizing such an opportunity, he naturally wanted to take a good look at what level a martial Dawanate patriarch was. Therefore, he didn't dare to use his full strength at all in the beginning. It's like playing cards. Who puts a king and queen plus four twos right off the bat? I'm sure we'll try out a mistress first. I can't help it if you don't believe me. Chun Yu responded calmly, without the slightest bit of panic between his fists and feet, and tangled with criminal Qian Lei. The crowd around them was talking. You guys, is what he said just now true? Did he really only use 10% of his strength? How is this possible? That's a criminal thousand thunder. If you use 10% of your strength, I'm afraid you'd have been killed already. I don't believe it either. This young man should just say that on purpose to save face. Not bad. If he's really that strong, then wouldn't he be able to end the battle in an instant? And how could it drag on for so long? No one believed in Chen Yu's words. On the side of the Inhuman Bureau, Yuan Chang was filled with hesitation. Director Sun, Chen Yu he really only used 10% of his strength? Sun Xiandao shook his head as his eyes tightly stared at the battle on the field. I don't know. With Chen Yu's character, he shouldn't be lying. But if that's really the case, then it's too terrifying. Yuan Chang was stunned, his heart beating hard. Yes, if what Chen Yu said was true, it was simply unimaginable. A mere 10% of the force was enough to withstand criminal thousand thunder. Then what would Chen Yu be like when he exploded at full power? Just thinking about that kind of scene, Yuan Cheng felt a gust of unreality, not far away. Song Yuan Tu laughed coldly. Only 10% of your strength? Chun Yu, you are too arrogant. Saying such words for the sake of face would only enrage criminal Chen Lei. I'd like to see how you'll end up. Despite this thought, there was always a faint touch of uneasiness in Song Yuento's heart. A thought, subconsciously, appeared in his mind. What if, what Chen Yu said was true? No, that's not possible. On the surface of the river, the two men's battle still continued. Criminal Chan Lei no longer hid his clumsiness and began to gradually increase his strength. But he was stunned to realize that no matter how much force he used, Chun Yu could always handle it with ease. Seemingly, there's still room for more? 60% of the force. Chen Yu's face was as normal. 70% of the force. Chen Yu's breathing remained unchanged. 80% of the force. Chen Yu's eyes did not fluctuate in the slightest. Moreover, what was even more unbelievable to him was that Chen Yu's combat experience was too strong. Every move was so exquisite. It even gave him the feeling of going back to when he was a child and he was fighting against his master. At that time, no matter how much he attacked the master, he was of no use at all. Every move and every style was completely under the control of the other party. This is entirely due to the absolute difference in combat experience. But that was just when he was a kid. How long has he been famous now? Enough for decades. The life and death battles experienced are even more numerous. In terms of combat experience, he thought he was unrivaled in the world. How old is Chun Yu? Only worthy of being his disciple's grandson. And yet this happens? At this moment, he suddenly had an illusion. Chen Yu was like the dome of the sky. No matter how much he roared at the dome, it had no effect on it. Could it be that he, he really only used 10% of his strength earlier? No, it can't be. It's impossible. He's just messing with my Tao. The old man has lived a long life. Only I have pressed people. Never anyone has pressed me. The old man has been undefeated all his life. Never before and never again. For extinction thunder technique. Thunder river. Criminal Thousand Thunder let out a roar as his body's true chi surged. He waved one hand, and lightning flashed between his five fingers. Endless electric awnings surged out steeply from his palm. In just the blink of an eye, a pike blasted towards Chun Yu. The pike was all thunder, glowing with a rich white light, ten meters wide, and extremely fast. With a crackling roar, it flew down from a high altitude. From afar, 
It looked like there was a river that surged out of criminal Chan Lei's palm to drown Shen Yu. Seeing this, everyone on both sides of the river changed color. Even though they were far apart, they felt a gust of fear just from seeing the scene. This fear is man's fear of the natural might of heaven and earth. Under the watchful eyes of the crowd, Lei Jiang had already arrived above Chen Yu's head. Chen Yu looked up and narrowed his eyes slightly. He didn't move, just the corners of his mouth gently quirked up. In the next moment, the Thunder River fell ferociously, completely submerging Chen Yu in it. Boom boom boom, above the river, an incomparably thick water column exploded. The water column was more than 10 meters wide and nearly 100 meters high. On the water column, countless thunderons looked like a dragon, circling and roaring. The shockwaves scattered in all directions, and even the onlookers standing on both sides of the river were blown off their feet a bit. Everyone's face was absolutely horrified. Heaven, this, this is heavenly power. Heavenly power. Humans, to be able to harness such terrifying power. This, it's over. This battle is over. No one can survive under this kind of attack. After seeing this strike, everyone thought that Chen Yu was dead. Yuan Cheng and the others' faces suddenly changed, their hearts sinking to the bottom. Xiao Gu, Gu Shan, and Gong Yan's faces were pale and cold. Chen Yu was finished, and so was their future. This big gamble, and they just lost? Ha 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 ha. Chen Yu, you little bastard, you still presume to fight with my Song family? Joke, a big joke in the sky. I tell you, you're a complete tragedy. All your life, you've been a fatherless bastard. Song Yuan too laughed madly, incomparably pleased. That touch of uneasiness finally disappeared without a trace at this moment. Above the river, a column of water rose up in the air and crashed down. Countless splashes of water refracted a rainbow in the sunlight. Criminal Thousand Thunder stood in the distance, huffing and puffing. A bead of sweat, dripping from his forehead, smashed on the surface of the river. He grinned at the sight before him. I'm the strongest, the strongest. Chun Yu, you are truly formidable. To be able to make me fight until I'm nearly out of energy, you're dead. But you're still proud enough to be proud of yourself. It's a pity that you're such a supreme demon. I'll burn some paper for you when your first seven days are up. At this moment, Xing Qianlei's mood was incomparably relaxed. But a voice suddenly appeared. Burning paper is not necessary. The river is calming down. Amidst the horrified gaze of criminal Thousand Thunder, Chen Yu's figure was gradually revealed. He smiled faintly and looked over at criminal Thousand Thunder. This, is this your full strength? On Chen Yu's face, there was a faint smile and a calm demeanor. The mighty wind blew and ruffled his coat. What had just happened was like a dream that had no effect on him. No, it can't be, it can't be. Looking at the unharmed Shen Yu, criminal Qian Lei's eyes widened as he took several steps back. His face was filled with shock and a touch of horror. One's own all-out strike hadn't even caused the slightest damage to Chen Yu? How is that possible? The crowds on both sides of the river, dumbfounded at this scene, had been completely confused. How mighty and domineering was that strike just now? With that kind of heavenly might, even a house would be reduced to pieces in it. How can a human being be okay at all? This, this is still human? Someone gulped and shuddered, muttering to himself. Everyone else was thinking the same thing, looking at Chun Yu as if he was looking at a monster. It turned out that Chun Yu had not lied earlier. He really only used 10% of his strength. Yuan Qing's fists were clenched. His face was red, and he was trembling with excitement. Director Sun. Look, look, Chen Yu is fine. Ha ha, he's fine. Sun Qian Dao nodded repeatedly, his face full of emotion. See, I saw it. Incredible, really incredible. Criminal Thousand Thunder, the hallowed martial arts innate master. With an all-out strike, Chen Yu didn't avoid it in the slightest and didn't have a single fart, which had completely exceeded his knowledge. Chen Yu he, he's even more terrifying than we thought. Lu Emo looked at the several people and scratched his head, somewhat confused. Why are you guys so surprised? Isn't this situation now a normal thing for Mr. Chen? Among the people present, he and Lu Tianhao were the only ones who were always convinced of Chen Yu's victory. A few people looked odd. This little guy, he's so clueless. How did he know what that blow just now really meant? Song Yuan too stood aside, his mouth wide open, his face full of bewilderment. It's okay? This kid's okay? It's not fucking scientific. How could he take that kind of attack head on and remain unharmed? The other Song family members were in an uproar, looking at Chen Yu with a touch of fear. The sound of arguments kept ringing out. Before, when they had learned that Chen Yu was going to deal with the Song family, they had scoffed and were not the least bit impressed. But now, they panicked. Is the enemy the Song family is facing so strong? On the surface of the river, Chen Yu took one step at a time, walking towards criminal Chen Lei. What, are you surprised? Didn't I tell you that I only used 10% of my strength earlier? Da 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 da. 
Criminal Thousand Thunder took a few more steps back, cackling in his throat, unable to speak. It's about time. I've got a school field day to get to and it's time to finish up. Earlier, Chen Yu did not use his full strength, just wanting to see the means of Criminal Chen Lei. After the series of battles just now, his interest was gone. Since it's no longer interesting, it naturally has to end. Sports Day. Criminal Thousand Thunder's face kept changing, a flash of green and white, finally rising to red. Is this amazing duel with the old man not as important as the games? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Thunder Prison. Criminal Thousand Thunder hissed repeatedly and swung his hands rapidly. Thunder On surged, covering the river surface in a circle of several hundred meters. Thunder Ons leapt across the river, making the river a thunder cage. Daojacking thunderbolts burst out from them and blasted towards Chen Yu. Chen Yu did not avoid it in the slightest, allowing the thunder to bombard his body. With his current physical strength, this kind of attack couldn't even break his defense. At best, it made him feel a little tingly. With a wave of one hand, the terrifying and incomparable thunder ons dispersed like smoke and dust. Chen Yu's speed was not affected in the slightest. The distance between the two, getting closer and closer. In the next moment, his eyes flashed as he took a step and instantly disappeared in place. With a blur before his eyes, Criminal Chen Lei had already lost Chen Yu's figure. Where? Criminal Chen Lei looked around, his heart contracting hard. Behind you, Chen Yu stood behind Criminal Thousand Thunder and spoke with a smile as he blasted out with a palm. Criminal Chen Lei simply did not react, hastily condensed the whole body true chi defense, but still was blown away tens of meters. Take advantage of your illness. Chen Yu's eyes flashed as he let out a low gulp lifted his palm and pressed it fiercely against Criminal Chan Lei. In the sky above Criminal Chan Lei, the true essence condensed into a huge palm that covered a circle of tens of meters and suddenly pressed downward. This palm came from the sky. It's like a fairy devil covering the earth. It can't be matched. It can't be fought. Criminal Chan Lei's pupils shrunk dramatically as he roared furiously, using all of his true chi to resist. Boom! The giant palm slapped down hard and smashed above the river. The entire surface of the river shook fiercely and dented downward violently and the next moment there was a series of explosions. Hundreds of water jets rose into the air in a spectacular manner. Even the people on both sides of the river felt a clear tremor. The spectators were appalled. Such a mighty power is truly terrifying. It was a full few minutes before things grew calm. The crowd all looked up, and some even pulled out binoculars to see how it would turn out. In the center of the great river, Chen Yu stood proudly on his own. In front of him, criminal Chen Lei was lying on the surface of the river, coughing up bloody foam from his mouth. His aura, compared to the beginning, had weakened too much. His entire body was torn and tattered, and he was incomparably wretched. Cough cough cough, lost, I lost. Criminal Chan Lei revealed a self-deprecating smile, and his expression was one of incomparable despondency. Chen Yu's expression was indifferent as he quietly looked at Criminal Chan Lei without saying a word. Criminal Thousand Thunder then spoke. Why is the gap between you and I so wide when we are both martial Daoinate masters? He asked out of doubt. He himself had been intoxicated with martial arts all his life and had never dared to slack off in the slightest. How did you lose so much to Chen Yu? Chen Yu was silent for a moment and said, I never said that I am a martial Daoinate master. Boom! A single sentence caused criminal Chen Lei's mind to explode. He stared at Chen Yu with wide eyes and dead eyes. You? What do you mean? Chen Yu looked at the sky and had a kind of silence that would be the best of the best and a view of the mountains. Dare I ask if there are fairies in the world? You walk the path of man but what I seek is that of immortality. Immortal. Way. Criminal Thousand Thunder muttered, and a moment later laughed maniacally. Ha 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 ha. I get it. I get it. The immortal path. So that's how it is. So that's how it is. The legend turned out to be true. In this world, there really are immortal cultivators. I didn't lose. Not by a long shot. Strongly bracing himself to stand up, Criminal Chan Lei stared at Chun Yu. Kill me. Death at your hands is not a loss to me. Chun Yu was silent again. You go. Criminal Thousand Thunder froze and said. Why? I've heard about you. You have fought against the masters of the Sakura Kingdom in the past, in the era of war, and have protected the people of the Dragon Kingdom, and have served the country well, so I will not kill you. I've heard that although it's a peaceful time now, the inhuman realm is not at peace, the foreign countries will not stop killing me, and the Dragon Kingdom and they are still fighting each other. People like you shouldn't die at my hands, they should die at the battlefield merchant. Criminal Thousand Thunder froze. Chen Yu's image, suddenly in front of him, became incredibly tall. In the next moment, under everyone's gaze, he violently knelt in front of Chen Yu. Master Chen is above. Receive a bow from Criminal Thousand Thunder. On both sides of the river, there was dead silence. Everyone's minds were roaring. Criminal Thousand Thunder. Kneeling? 
The mountain breeze is brisk. After the great battle, the Jinchuan River once again regained its tranquility. The river is sparkling. Chen Yu was independent of the river, and Xing Qian Lei knelt down on both knees. The people on both sides of the river were all wide-eyed and incomparably shocked. Not, it's over? Xing Qian Lei lost? A big man stammered and opened his mouth, his mouth wide open enough to stuff an egg. The others weren't much better. All of them looked horrified beyond belief. My god, this this this, how did this happen? Xing Qian Lei was even knocked to his knees? That young man, is he so strong? Incredible, just incredible. Discussions arose in all directions, and the result of this battle frightened everyone. Ha ha, a win, Mr. Chen has won. Zhao Ji's three men clenched their fists and shouted, the veins on their foreheads bursting out. God can see the mercy. The hearts of the three were in their throats during the great battle just now. This is a big gamble, but it concerns their lives. Now that we've won, a heart can finally be put down. Chen Yu is bullish, bullish. Yuan Cheng jumped high and danced around in excitement. The rest of the inhuman duro looked at Chen Yu, who stood proudly on the surface of the river, his face covered in awe. Even a veteran powerhouse like Xing Qian Lei knelt before Chen Yu. This first prefect of ours is really too strong. Sun Chandao's face was filled with a smile. He turned his head to look at Song Yuantu and arched his hand remotely. He he, Song family master, it seems that you can't burn your paper money. Song family, dead silence. Everyone's face was ugly. In his eyes, there was both shock and horror. Witnessing this great battle with their own eyes made them fear Chen Yu. Being targeted by such a powerful person, could the Song family really be safe and sound? The corners of Song Yuento's eyes jumped, and his face was as gloomy as water. His wishful thinking was completely miscalculated today. What's going on? This little bastard. How could he win against Xing Qian Lei? Xing Qian Lei, are you a loser? Can't even kill him? What's next? How do we deal with him? For a while, Song Yuento's mind was in turmoil. Xing Qian Lei stood up after a long time, cupping his fists at Chen Yu. He said, Mr. Chen, this is goodbye. Well, where are you going to go? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire, somewhat curious about Xing Qian Lei's movements. Xing Qian Lei looked into the distance, and an intense killing aura suddenly erupted in his eyes. I'm going to, uh, take a trip to Sakura country. I had a life and death feud with some of them in that blood and fire war back then. Today, some of them are still alive, and I'm going to see them off. Grinning, Xing Qian Lei said, killing their country, it's energizing to think about it. Chen Yu slightly nodded. Good luck. Many thanks. Please rest assured. Mr. Chen, I will discipline that little sinful animal Xing Sen. From today onwards, he won't have anything to do with the Song family. Clasping his fists again, Xing Qian Lei transformed into a stream of light and stepped on the river. Looking at Xing Qian Lei's departing back, the corner of Chen Yu's mouth gently hooked up. Not bad for that era. Hot blooded indeed. Realistically speaking, he and Xing Qian Lei didn't have a life and death grudge. If it wasn't for Hyung Sam, the two might have been friends. Now that's a pretty good ending. Cherry Blossom Country? I can take the time to visit it once I've finished with the Song family. Shaking his head, Chen Yu suppressed the tumultuous thoughts and looked at Song Yuan Tu from afar. Song family, Song Yuan Tu? Oh, gently smiling, Chen Yu stepped on the river and left under the watchful eyes of everyone. On the scene, there was a clamor. Many of them let out a long sigh, as if they were drinking incomparably flavorful old wine, and were very satisfied. Watching this battle, life is not wasted. Innate master, I finally understand why it is said that this kind of person is a land god. I didn't realize that human power could go this far. It's truly a miracle. Mr. Chen is truly like a god or a devil. The number one person in Jiangling province. The absolute number one. In this great battle, all the forces of the inhuman realm in Jiangling province had come. After watching it, they formed a consensus. Chen Yu is the number one person in Jiangling province. An existence that absolutely cannot be messed with. Sun Qian Dao sighed sadly and said, Since then, my Jiangling province in human realm should be considered to have completely subsided. Yuan Qing thought deeply and nodded. With Chun Yu, a great god, suppressing it, the majesty of the Inhuman Bureau was elevated no less than a hundred times. Let's go. Back to the Inhuman Bureau. I'm going to reminisce about this battle. Sun Qian Dao led the crowd of the Inhuman Bureau and left the scene. All forces have also left. Only the Song family crowd stood motionless at the river's edge. Song Yuan Tu gazed at the river with a worried expression on his face. Chen Yu's performance earlier had really frightened him. Jingle bells. Just then, his phone rang. It's his daughter. Song Yao. Calling. Dad. Is the duel over? Did that little bitch Chen Yu die? He's not dead. Oh, that's great. Let Xing Qian Lei do me a favor and waste Chen Yu before throwing him back to South City. 
This feeling of falling from the clouds is much more comfortable to me than getting him killed. Song Yao giggled and looked happy. Song Yuan too was slightly silent before he continued to speak. No, it's Xing Qian Lei who lost. What? Xing Qian Lei lost? That's impossible. Song Yao froze and immediately shouted. Hey, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, but it's true. Song Yuan too didn't hide anything and retold the battle. On the other end of the phone, Song Yao was silent for a long time. I didn't expect this bitch Wu Shaolan to give birth to such a son. I wish I'd let her have an abortion back then. Song Yuan to let out a long sigh and said, there's no need to regret what has happened. Next we need to think about how to deal with him. After all, he's trying to destroy my Song family. Song Yao let out a cold snort and said, destroy my Song family? With him? Dad. So what if he's even more powerful? My Song family isn't that easy to pin down. Second brother contacted me just now. He just got appointed and is now a senior executive of the Dragon Kingdom Inhuman Bureau, in charge of the Inhuman Bureaus in Jiangling Province and the four neighboring provinces. Doing the math, he's still Chen Yu's leader. A big official can't afford to make waves. Chen Yu can't afford to make waves. At those words, Song Yuan Tu's eyes snapped open. Really? That's great. Your second brother has been sent abroad for several years. I didn't expect that this time when he returned home, he would bring such a surprise? Good. It's precisely because he's had more contact abroad and has better insight than those dirtbags at home that he's been transferred back. Dad you don't have to worry. In front of my Song family, he Chen you can't make waves. Song Yuan Tu smiled and nodded, hanging up the phone in a good mood. Gangnam University of Science and Technology. Chen Yu had just rushed back when he received a call from Xiao Yunyue. Hey, great master, have you finished your duel yet? Do you have time to attend the games? On the other end of the phone, Xiao Yunyue's playful voice was full of flirtation. Chen Yu smiled and said back, Well, just went back to school. Where are you? I'll go find you? Yeah, I'm at the playground. Hanging up the phone, Chen Yu did not take long to arrive at the playground. Today Xiao Yunyue was wearing a sky blue sportswear, and her body was full of youthfulness. Yeah, the great master is here? Tell me, how was the duel? Xiao Yunyue folded her hands behind her back, her eyes narrowed into crescent moons. The two little white rabbits somewhat wanted to cross out. Chen Yu laughed. Who am I? Of course I win. He and I fought on the Jinchuan River. It's a shame you didn't see that scene. At that time the river rolled high into the air and the roar shook both banks. Everyone was shocked by the great battle between the two of us. Xiao Yunyue eyed her mouth and laughed lightly. With this eloquence of yours, it's a pity if you don't go write novels. All right, all right, hurry up and go get ready for the game. Watch out for you. Chen Yu smiled and went to the sports meeting as Xiao Yunyue requested. He was a small success in the foundation establishment realm and he was just storming to kill at the games. Whether it was long distance running or sprinting, Chen Yu was an absolute champion. Running a hundred meters, others are desperately trying to go faster. Chen Yu, however, had to carefully control his speed for fear of causing an unnecessary stir by going too fast. During the run, the second place finisher was an athletic specialty student. Chen Yu turned his head to look at him every now and then as he ran, always staying half a meter ahead of him. When he crossed the finish line, the man was paralyzed with exhaustion on the ground, and Chen Yu didn't even take two more breaths of air. Looking at Chen Yu, the man's face was incredibly odd. Is this a fucking contest? What kind of race have you seen where someone watches you run the whole time and then adjusts their pace? This guy, what kind of pervert is he? Later, Chen Yu participated in several more sports. Long jump. Well, control it. Just 20 centimeters more than first place. Throw the shot put. Well, control it. Just 20 centimeters more than first place. Throw tabs. Well, control it. Just 20 centimeters more than first place. High jump. Well, control it. Just 20 centimeters more than first place. Lifting weights. Well, keep it under control. Just 20 kilos more than first place. Chen Yu took part in all the programs and all of them achieved the first place. Several people from the organizing committee were confused when they saw the results. What's going on with this Chen Yu? What kind of fucking heaven defying physical condition is this? Usually, in these programs, the winner is the athletic specialists, and now it's all him? Strength, speed, reaction, bounce, in all dimensions, this guy is number one in all of them. It's unbelievable. Damn. It's a shame this guy doesn't practice sports. Several of the organizing committee members, in the past, were retired from professional sports teams and were employed as physical education teachers at universities. And in every program, there are athletic specialists they teach who participate. No one has ever been able to steal the title from these guys in any of the previous student games, not to mention one person contracting all the champions. Even when placed in a career as long as theirs, they had never seen such a bombastic presence. You are also ignoring one fact. 
A middle-aged man with hair that was already half-white pointed to the results tally sheet. Have you guys noticed that in all the events that Chen Yu participated in, he was higher than the second place finisher by the same number? 20? Hmm. At that, several people froze. After looking at it in comparison, he sucked in a breath of cold air and stared in disbelief. Hadn't noticed it earlier looking at it alone. Putting all of Chen Yu's accomplishments together. It does. In all the events, Chen Yu's score was 20 more than the second place. This, how could this be such a coincidence? What are the odds of that happening? It's almost impossible to happen, isn't it? If it didn't happen naturally, did it? When one person finished speaking, several people all shook in their bodies, looking at each other. Each person could see the shock and dismay in the other's eyes. In their minds, one word came to mind at the same time. Control points. That's right. If it wasn't, it would never have happened. That's nifty. I've only heard of doing papers to control your score. Can sports also control points? And, still, to make it this far on every single one? What the hell kind of concept is that? Sports are extremely brutal and highly contingent. Trying to control the lead is nearly impossible. Unless it exceeds the opponent by too much. Now in this situation, there is only one possibility. Chun Yu, well ahead of second place. It's a sublime gap that simply can't be bridged. He is, by nature, a monster. If he was in the sports business, he would definitely be a superstar. A few people looked at Chun Yu, their eyes fiery to the core. However, before several people could even look for Chen Yu, they were already arguing to the point of being at loggerheads over what projects Chen Yu would engage in in the future. There's no way. Who wouldn't want to pull that kind of unbelievable level of athleticism on them? It took the whole day for the games to be completely over. Chen Yu also became slightly famous. Several people later found Chen Yu and persuaded Chen Yu to engage in sports programs, all of which Chen Yu refused to accept. He's a hallowed immortal cultivator going into sports? Uh, that's more or less too big a talent. Xiao Yunyue's gaze at Chen Yu was filled with incredulity. Geez, it's hard to see that you're so good at taking so many firsts. That's right, I'm an expert. Wouldn't it be easy to take first place? Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Xiao Yunyue gave him a blank look. Stinky ass. I'll take you to dinner tonight and give you my congratulations. Yeah, after having a nice full meal with Xiao Yunyue, Chen Yu returned to the dormitory. As soon as we got back, the whole dorm blew up. My Chao, Lao Lu, you're really an old six. I didn't realize you were hiding so deeply. Damn. Seeing as you look like a fine dog, I didn't realize your body was so perverted. I want to laugh when I think of the looks on the faces of those gym students today. They were so dumbfounded by you. You know what? Old six. You've got a new nickname now. Jim Buster. Hearing these words, Chun Yu smiled helplessly. If Xiao Yunyue hadn't given the word, he wouldn't have participated in the games. That's right old six. Remember to go to the club activities tomorrow. The martial arts club from Suzunin University in Sakura Country has come to exchange ideas and wants to fight us. Zheng Ji opened his mouth and aroused Chen Yu's interest. Oh, Sakura Country? Yeah, don't you know? They're arrogant. There's going to be a big battle tomorrow. It'd be a shame to miss it. Zheng Ji's words made the rest of the dormitory interested in going to watch the battle. For some reason, the Dragon Nation guys always come with a series of buffs such as 100% strike, hot blooded, must kill, etc. When they face the Sakura Nation guys, no one will want to miss the big fight tomorrow. Chen Yu thought about it and nodded. He was also curious to see what the Sakura Nation was going to do when they came. Soon it was time for the next day. Gangnam University of Science and Technology Gymnasium. It is now overcrowded. The seats around the basketball court were all filled. There was a cacophony of voices. And on everyone's face, anticipation. Today was the day that the Sakura Country's Suzunin University Budo Club came to exchange ideas. And here, this is where the exchange takes place. At first, JLSTU didn't want to make such a big show. After all, it's just an exchange between clubs, which isn't particularly important. But this time is more special. Before the people from Suzunin University arrived, news had already appeared at the Gangnam University of Science and Technology. Soon enough, the exchange was spread to all and sundry. Even, it was labeled as the Battle of the Races. It was all so sudden, so sudden that it was a little weird. There seems to be a hand in the shadows that is building momentum, and that's what makes this exchange so extraordinary. The school side was helpless, which led to the arrangement of a special venue. Now that the Sakura Nation hadn't entered the arena yet, there was a heated debate going on. You guys, do you think we can win this time? Hey, what's the point? It's a sure win. That's right, on our home turf. Isn't it a sure thing to abuse the dogs of Sakura Nation? Damn, I don't know what the hell they've been smoking, that they would come to our exchange? I feel strange too. Could there be some kind of conspiracy here? 
Never mind the conspiracy, just fuck him and be done with it. The group is excited, since Zhang Ji, Yao Yujing, and Chen Yu are all from the martial arts club, the 604s, as well as Xiao Yun Yu as few others, all sat in the front seats. The cut and thrust later would take place on the basketball court in front of the crowd. Old Zhang, is the martial arts club sure this time or not? Wang Hao opened his mouth and inquired. If you lose, it would be a great shame. Young heatedly smiled with a confident look on his face. Put your heart in your stomach. There will be no problem. We still have experts in our budo club. Do you see a couple of guys over there? Zhang Ji raised his finger and pointed not far away. There, there were about 20 people, all dressed in black budo suits. There were a total of five people at the head of the group, of which Chang Hao Ming was clearly listed. They are the five top experts of our budo club. Chang Hao Ming, Sun Chang, Zhao Gang, Fong Hong Jian, Luo Zhan. All five are practiced, especially Zhao Gang, Fong Hong Jian, and Luo Zhan. They are even better. Zheng Ji looked at the trio with a touch of admiration in his eyes. Zhao Gang is the provincial Sanso champion, very strong, ranked third among the five. Fang Hong Jian has been learning Muay Thai since he was a child, and his fighting style is fierce and domineering, and he has once, in a street fight, triumphed seven or eight gangsters all by himself. Luo Zhan is even more remarkable. I heard that he learned authentic traditional martial arts, that is, Zhao Gang and Fang Hong Jian together. They are not his opponent. Hearing this, several people let out a gasp. Boy, that's awesome. Oops, I'm a bit worried. If the opponent is too weak, then won't this battle be nothing to watch? Gee, looks like a crushing innings. Chen Yu looked at the five people and was also somewhat curious. What surprised him was that the likes of Chang Hao Ming was also an expert? Uh, well, it's not obvious at all. As for the other three, well, Chen Yu took a closer look and shook his head without a trace. Perhaps in the eyes of ordinary people, these few were indeed considered masters. However, in Chen Yu's opinion, several people were ordinary and nothing conspicuous. I chow. Stop talking about this, you guys. Look at this. Suddenly, Li Pei, who hadn't been participating in the chat but was instead swiping his cell phone, let out a sharp exclamation, startling a few people. He pointed to his cell phone screen and said, Something strange is happening over the Jinchuan River. The cell phone is playing a video. The video shows a number of people, some of whom are crouching down and looking at the gap, while others are dancing around, explaining something to the reporter. The crowd around the room moved over and watched for a while before realizing what the video was about. In short, someone went camping near the Jinchuan River and unintentionally noticed a lot of strange things happening on both sides of the river. There were inexplicably many slash marks on the boulders by the river. It extends from the river and there are many extremely long cracks. Each crack, straight and unbelievable, was tens of meters long, half a meter wide, and only a few centimeters narrow. These cracks were crisscrossed and obviously not naturally formed. The discovery quickly alarmed the media. So experts and media came to follow up. In my opinion, this mysterious event may have something to do with an extraterrestrial civilization. In the video, an old man with gray hair and a somewhat frenzied expression pointed at the cracks on the ground and spoke rapidly. You guys, these cracks are extremely neat, as if they were carved out with a knife. This kind of thing is obviously not humanly possible. Now it seems that an extraterrestrial civilization should have visited this place, and these traces should be caused by those extraterrestrial civilization's flying machines. A reporter on the sidelines took the microphone and spoke into the camera. Okay, thank you Professor Qian for your analysis. And viewers, we will continue to follow up on exactly how these mysterious traces appeared. This is where the video ends. Li Pei's face turned red with excitement. Look at this. The extraterrestrial civilizations are here. The Sakura country is nothing. Hey, why do I feel that this is like the traces left behind by the sword chi and the sword chi mentioned in martial arts novels? After Yao Yujing finished speaking, she was immediately given a hard blank stare by the others. You're fucking stupid from reading novels. Come on, come on, tell me, what kind of martial arts master can leave such traces to come? Wang Hao sprayed a sentence that caused no small amount of resonance. Xiao Yunyue glanced at Chen Yu and hid a smile as she opened her mouth to flirt. Hey, great master, are these traces left behind by you? Chen Yu nodded with a bitter smile. These are still really left over from when I fought someone. At that time, he and Xing Qian Lei stood proudly on the Jinchuan River, and their powerful qi overflowed between the great battles. Quite a lot of the vigor that escaped, then washed up on the shore, leaving these traces. Rather, I didn't expect it to attract media attention. Xiao Yunyue spat softly. You have such a thick skin. Wang Hao's few people looked at Chen Yu with complex expressions. Damn. Old six mouth. If I could learn a tenth of that, I'd be off the hook by now. It's not bad to be able to talk about it like it's true. Old six. 
I can only say a bullseye. I'm convinced. Chun Yu shook his head helplessly. No one believes in telling the truth these days. Not far away. Chang Haoming's eyes almost spewed fire as he watched Xiao Yunyue flirt with Chun Yu. Damn it. Where am I inferior to him? Xiao Yunyue, why can't you just see me? On the side. Sun Chang noticed that Chang Haoming did not look right and smiled as he opened his mouth to inquire. Ho Ming. I heard you were outclassed by that kid? Chang Hao Ming grunted and didn't say anything. Sun Chong continued. It doesn't matter. Today is the day you show your face. Let Xiao Yunyue take a good look at what a real man is. At that point, she'll definitely come around. Chang Hao Ming's eyes lit up and he nodded heavily. And just at this moment, a cry of alarm resounded through the room. The Sakura Nation guy is here. Here we go. Just one sentence. And instantly the entire arena was silent. The cacophony disappeared completely. All eyes converged on the entrance to the stadium. A figure, striding into the gymnasium. A middle-aged man with a flat haircut. Behind them, a group of young men. Though it didn't seem to be any different from the crowd present who all had yellow skin and black hair. But somehow, just that feeling made them clearly distinguishable from the dragons. Here comes the Buddha Club of Suzunan University in Sakura Country. On each of their faces, there was not the slightest expression. Only indifference. The quiet arena immediately whispered. This is the Sakura Nation guy? Looking at them, it seems like they could. What's the matter with me suddenly being a little heartless? The five Chang Hao Ming stared straight at each other, their eyes boiling with battle intent. Hao Ming, how's it going? Are you sure? Sun Chang opened his mouth and inquired. Will you go first or me later? I'll do it. I'm enough for these dogs on my own. Chang Hao Ming swept his eyes at Xiao Yunyue and Chen Yu and spoke confidently. The crowd's minds were divided. It was in this situation that a middle-aged man with gold-rimmed glasses walked smilingly towards the Sakura Nation crowd. His name is Du Yuan Hua, and he is a vice principal in charge of the school sports and other duties. He was also in charge of this club exchange. Aya, Mr. Matsumoto, welcome to the Jiangling University of Science and Technology. On behalf of our school, I would like to welcome your arrival. Kenichi Matsumoto, vice president of Suzanin University, is of equal status to Du Yuan Hua. He pulled at the corner of his mouth and, speaking in stiff Chinese, said, Thank you, Principal Du. I hope we have a successful outcome of this exchange. He he, that's natural. But I'm curious. Suzunin University is a famous university in Sakura country. So why would it suddenly want to come for an exchange? Kenichi Matsumoto laughed out loud and didn't hide it in the slightest. We, the Sakura country, honor the spirit of Bushido. In order for them to grow into better men, we have organized this tour. We want them to relive the conquests of their forefathers on this tour. Jianling University of Science and Technology is just the first stop. We will also go to the famous academic institutions in the Dragon Kingdom next, so that these children can experience them one by one. After a few words, Du Yuanhua's face suddenly changed. The road to conquest? These assholes, are they even trying to do this kind of thing? Is this an attempt to suppress the younger generation of the Dragon Kingdom by using the Budokai Exchange? The scene, suddenly, boiled over. No one was stupid enough to understand exactly what that meant. Once they heard it, those years of blood and fire are a pain engraved in the genes of every dragon nation. Now, these assholes come to our turf and they're going to try to overpower us again? Chao Nima, what are you guys? Conquer your ass. Humph. Night and day. You guys also dare to say such words in my dragon kingdom land? Ridiculous. Come on. Battle. Let's bring you all to your knees today. Get them so they can't get out of this door. Who can stand that when they're hot and young? Just because we weren't born in that era doesn't mean we don't have that passion. If you guys are honest, we could care less about clowns like you, but if you guys want to fuck things up, I'm sorry, then hit hard, beat it until you know it hurts. Several people in dormitory 604 were furious. Chun Yu narrowed his eyes slightly as he coldly looked at the group of people from the Sakura country. The back and forth made everything clear to him. No wonder this one made such a big deal. It seems that everything was done on purpose by Susan in university. The purpose of creating enough momentum was to expand the influence of this Budo Club exchange. The ultimate goal, I'm afraid, is to use this opportunity to greatly suppress the younger generation of the Dragon Kingdom. Imagine the noise that will emerge from the media once Susanin University goes all the way across the board to the martial arts clubs of the major colleges. The younger generation of the Dragon Kingdom is the one that collapsed. At that time, it would be extremely unfavorable for the Dragon Kingdom, both at home and abroad. Their hearts are in the right place. If that's the case, then these people, looking at the young man behind Kenichi Matsumoto, Chen Yu was thoughtful. If this effect is to be achieved, then these young men must not be simple. I'm afraid that these few people from the martial arts club of Jiangling University of Science and Technology might not be able to resist. Xiao Yunyue also saw through the mystery and was a bit worried. 
Chun Yu, in case they lose. Chun Yu spoke indifferently, saying, There's no harm in that. At that time, I will make my move. Xiao Yunyue froze, then nodded firmly. For some reason, she was relieved when Chen Yu said this. On the side, a few girls, Jiang Boeing, laughed disdainfully. Yo, you're good. You don't have a shot though. Chang Hao Ming and the others are so powerful. They will definitely win. Do you know this? That's why you're talking big on purpose. Chun Yu glanced at Jiang Boeing, not bothering to talk nonsense with her. One more word with a stupid woman is an insult to your intelligence. Noticing Chen Yu's disdainful look, Jiang Boeing immediately became angry. However, because Xiao Yunyue was here, she couldn't afford to have a fit. She just snorted coldly and stopped talking. The scene, boiling over. Kenichi Matsumoto looked around. The corners of his mouth gently quirked up. He swept a few people behind him and admonished them in the language of the Sakura country. Did you see this? This is the wrath of the Dragon Nation. Feel this anger, and then crush them hard underfoot. Let them watch themselves get trampled under our feet. Use their humiliation to forge our glory. The group of young men from Sakura Nation nodded heavily. Hi, Kenichi Matsumoto was satisfied and looked at Du Yuanhua again. Principal Du, may we begin? Du Yuanhua's face turned blue as he stared at Kenichi Matsumoto dead in the face. Mr. Matsumoto, you are too arrogant. The boys of the Dragon Kingdom have a lot of fire in them, and you won't be able to withstand their wrath. Don't you think so? The final question, sounding like a bell, echoed throughout the arena. Yes, the whole audience shouted at the same time, and the sound waves were like waves beating against the shore, shocking the hearts of the people. Kenichi Matsumoto grinned, not caring. It's okay, it's for the best. Yes, Du Yuan Hua nodded. Next, the parties signed a legal declaration. There is no legal liability for all injuries or deaths that occur in the exchange, as long as they are not malicious. After signing the agreement, on the side of the Cherry Blossom Country, a special camera was set up. The meaning of this is also clear. As long as they win, then today's footage will be in the major media tomorrow. At that time, Jill Stu will be nailed to the pillar of shame. Everything is ready and the cut is officially on. As soon as Jiangling University of Science and Technology's Martial Arts Club side discussed the matter, Chang Hao Ming was the first to make an appearance. Whichever one of you comes first, I will grant him defeat. He looked at the Sakura Nation crowd and opened his mouth in a domineering manner. Inside the arena, there was a mountainous roar. The crowd swung their fists and yelled at the top of their lungs, their faces reddening. It's Chang Ho Ming. He's a black belt in Taekwondo. He's great. Go Senpai. Fuck him up. Our Jiangling University of Science and Technology is not a place where these dogs can run wild. Many girls had little stars in their eyes and looked at Chang Ho Ming adoringly. Not ugly. His family is rich. And he can fight. This kind of boy. Even if he was placed in Jiangling University of Science and Technology, he was a first-class existence. Chang Hao Ming enjoyed this feeling, his chest sticking out. He sneaked a look at Chen Yu and revealed a disdainful smile. This feeling of being worshipped is something you, Chen Yu, will never experience in your lifetime. Turning his head to look at the Susan in University crowd, Chang Hao Ming was filled with a domineering aura. Come on, who the hell is coming? A short, flat-headed man, stepped out from the crowd and stood opposite Chang Hao Ming. My name is Sanpei Fukuyama, please teach me more. The flat-headed man bowed deeply, speaking in a somewhat stilted Mandarin. Chang Hao Ming looked Fukuyama Sanpei up and down, the corner of his mouth glancing lightly, not even big enough to fit under his chin, and stumpy looking, he looked thin and scrawny. And that's the challenge? Waiting to finish the fight with a nice high leg sweep, Chang Hao Ming was not amused. A burst of laughter rang out from the crowd of onlookers, filled with mockery. Crap, little carrot ding. This kind of also come up to disgrace? Ha ha, isn't this a food delivery? Sadistic Bureau, Senpai, finish him in 10 moves or less. Chang Hao Ming extended his index finger and gently shook it. It doesn't need to be 10 moves. 3 is enough. Senior Bully, the crowd of onlookers was completely ignited by Chang Hao Ming's words. The atmosphere reached a crescendo. Du Yuanhua quietly watched this and did not drink, since the other party was a wolf. There was no need to show any mercy. With the referee's order. The bout began. With a loud shout, Chang Hao Ming jumped up in one step and lifted his right leg towards Fukuyama Sanpei's head. The crowd gasped. Look how stretchy and beautiful the movement is. Senior is so handsome. Chen Yu gently shook his head. These means of Chang Hao Ming really cannot enter his eyes. Fukuyama Sanpei looked at Chang Hao Ming, his expression as usual, without the slightest change. In the next moment, he shortened his body and took a bow step forward to avoid the high sweeping leg. At the same time, he threw out a horizontal punch, hitting Chang Hao Ming right in the small of his back. Bang! With a muffled sound, 
Chang Helming's entire body flew one meter in the air and fell heavily to the ground. The agitated gymnasium was quiet for a moment. All eyes converged on Chang Helming's body. He lay on the ground, curled up like a basil shrimp that had been struggling. Everyone's face was covered with consternation and surprise. What's going on? One punch, and it's over? Do you and was face changed? Not expecting this to happen. Sanpei Fukuda looked at Chang Haoming and gently shook his head. You are not strong enough to be my opponent. Please come up with another one. Chang Haoming's face turned red, itching to find a crack in the ground. Not only did he lose, but he was so humiliated. That's underestimating the other side. I'll do it. Sun Chan walked up to Chang Haoming and looked coldly at Sanpei Fukuda. I'll be your opponent. Pulling back, Sun Chang didn't have any nonsense and went straight to work. But, it wasn't more than three back and forth before Fukuda Sanpei exploded to his knees with a kick to the liver. Within the arena, it was quiet as a pin drop. Defeated again. Only three moves. What's going on? Is this little man from the Sakura country so strong? Next, Fong Hongjian and Zhao Gang went up in turn. Although he and Sanpei Fukuda exchanged offense and defense and fought for some time, he still lost. In the blink of an eye, the four people from the martial arts club of Jiangling University of Science and Technology all lost. The previous hot and exciting atmosphere, like being poured a pot of cold water on the head, completely extinguished, being beaten like this on his own turf, and the opponent is still a dog from Sakura Nation. It's just a strange shame. Do you and was face turned blue? And his back teeth were almost clenched. He turned his head to look. In the corner, the blackened camera lenses seemed to emit a silent mockery as well. On Susan in University's side, the crowd looked as normal, without the slightest bit of excitement. It seemed that all of this had been expected of them for a long time. Oh, Principal Du, it seems that you are still as sick today as you were in the past. Kenichi Matsumoto opened his mouth with a smile on his face. In a good mood, Du Yuenawa's face was gloomy and he didn't say anything? He was speechless in the face of the sight before him. In the audience at the very front, Zheng Ji and Ya Yu Jing were dumbfounded. They stared, filled with shock and dismay. How could this happen? Is that Fukuyama Sanpei really that strong? Shen Yu sighed softly in his heart. He watched the entire battle just now. Fang Hongji and Zhao Gang, who came on behind, were indeed considered very strong among the ordinary people. But that's just regular people. Fukuyama Sanpei, on the other hand, was a serious martial arts practitioner, an inhuman. Fang Hongzhuang and Zhao Gang, naturally, were not his opponents. Sure enough, Suzunin University has been ready for this for a long time. Shen Yu's heart was clear. Let's see how that Luo Zhan is doing. Really at the end of the day, he has to make a move himself. Oh, is there anyone else on now? Kenichi Matsumoto inquired with a smirk. On the martial arts club side of the Jiangling University of Science and Technology, Luo Zhan slowly stood up and walked over to Fukuyama Sanping. I'll give you five minutes to recover. And in five minutes, I'll defeat you again. The previous four consecutive losses had not affected Luo Zhan in the slightest. The scene has finally regained some vigor. The crowd looked at Luo Zhan with anticipation and even more worry. It's the last of the one and only. If he loses again, then Jianling University of Science and Technology really becomes a joke. Fukuyama Sanpei looked Luo Zhan up and down, and for the first time, there was a solemn look on his face. He could detect that Luo Zhan was different from the four people in front of him. Hi! With a break, Sanpei Fukuyama took the initiative to grab an attack for the first time. Luo Zhan stands up front and center, facing the enemy in a trisomy stance. With his eyes dead set on Fukuyama Sanpei, he fiercely took a step forward and blasted a fist from his ribs at his opponent as he rushed over. Zingi Ikwin, avalanche fist. Fukuyama Sanpei's entire body counted down the cold hairs and hurriedly dodged sideways. At the same time, his entire body flipped and leaped in midair, and a foot smashed into Luo Zhan's chin from the bottom up. Luo Zhan twisted his waist and dodged it, then clenched his fist with one hand, like a spirit snake coming out of a hole, drilling towards Fushan Sanping. Shape fist. Drill fist. The two of them went back and forth, fighting dozens of rounds, making the onlookers look dumbfounded. In the end, Luo Zhan seized an opening and landed a nesting kick, followed by a heavy-handed flurry of seven punches, defeating Sanpei Fukuyama. Within the arena, a shocking clamor erupted. The crowd swung their fists hard, venting their previously suppressed tension. Do Yuan Hua let out a long breath and his face eased a little? Luo Zhan looked at Fukuyama Sanpei, who was lying on the ground, and smiled coldly. You're supposed to be the strongest one at Suzunin University. You want to get a head start and crush us with a winning record? Naive. Now, it's my turn to sweep you all. Come on. Next, Luo Zhan broke off with an exuberant shout. When the crowd of onlookers heard this, they were all in a daze as well. Yes, this unimpressive Fukuyama Sanpei must be their strongest. 
That's when Suzunin University's tactic of opening with a king's bomb was aimed at crushing us. Luo Zhan won him, and there would be even less opponents behind him. At this thought, the crowd became even more excited. Shan Yu, however, looked at the rest of Suzunin University and narrowed his eyes slightly. Fukuyama Sanpei, is he really the strongest one? Just at this moment, a voice sounded quietly. Fu Shan, as a junior brother, you've already done a good job. Next, it's our turn to strike. A sentence that made Luo Zhan's heart jump hard. What does that mean? What does that mean? As the voice fell, a figure slowly walked up to Luo Zhan. This person was about the same size as Luo Zhan, with a pair of triangular eyes that looked a bit gloomy. Hello, my name is Shige Yamamoto. Please ask for more. Luo Zhan raised an eyebrow and looked Yamamoto Shige up and down. Your Chinese is quite good. To my surprise, Shige Yamamoto smiled faintly, looking like a gentleman. As the saying goes, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you will not be in danger in a hundred battles. As an old rival, I know you all very well. Why? What else do you guys have in mind? Oh, who can say in the future? Maybe one day, you and I will meet on the battlefield. There was an imperceptible trace of madness in Shige Yamamoto's eyes. I, for one, would love to recreate the great deeds of those who preceded me in the shrine. Boom! Luo Zhan's eyebrows went up and his eyes were instantly bloodshot. Humph! Don't think for yourself. Battle! Taking one step, Luo Zhan's momentum was like running thunder as he rushed towards Yamamoto Shige. Shige Yamamoto was still all smiles and in no hurry. His legs curled slightly as he similarly took a step forward, heading straight for Luo Zhan. The two were instantly at war. Fists and feet collided with a muffled sound. Many people stood up and stretched their necks to watch the battle between the two, with guttural shouts coming out of their mouths. A few of Zhang Ji's men were also driven by the atmosphere, yelling and screaming. Only Chen Yu frowned inside in his heart. The other side is really well prepared this time. Previously, Fukuyama Sanpei and now Yamamoto Shige are serious martial artists. And, Shige Yamamoto is even stronger. Luo Zhan is bound to lose this one. In the middle of the field, Luo Zhan wore a rough breath, clenched his teeth, and his heart shook. What's going on? This Yamamoto Shige, he's even stronger than Fukuyama Sanpei? My previous guess was wrong? Sanpei Fukuyama, not the strongest of them all? Thinking of this, Luo Zhan's heart sank. At the same time, Yamamoto Shige's attacks were getting more and more ferocious, making it difficult for him to fight. You're no match for me. Admit defeat. Yamamoto Shige spoke faintly, a touch of unconcealed contempt in his voice. Luo Zhan didn't say a word. He just struggled to hold on. Can't lose. Never lose. Even if I die in the ring, I can't lose. Otherwise the dignity of the young people of Longbo will be all fucking over. But, reality never shifts by one's will. The hard gap in strength is an insurmountable chasm. Yamamoto Shige seized an opportunity and threw a hard punch to Luo Zhan's stomach. Pfft wow. The sharp pain caused Luo Zhan to arch his back, and his stomach flipped. He fought back with a hiss of discomfort. Yamamoto Shige's eyes flashed as he struck again. Bang, bang, bang. In the blink of an eye, Yamamoto Shige kicked Luo Zhan several meters away. Luo Zhan struggled to get up, but was already at the end of his strength and ended up not getting up. You're tenacious. But unfortunately, tenacity doesn't change the outcome. Yamamoto Shige spoke faintly, towering over him. On the scene, there was dead silence. On every face, there was a grimace. What a shame to be rubbed on the ground by these dogs in their own territory. Do you and was face was ashen? His heart is cold as ice as he clenched his fists in death. He understood very well about the sinister intentions of Suzunin University. It's not simply communicating at all. Once this thing gets out today, it will definitely cause a big earthquake. Even those with ulterior motives would use this to make a big deal out of it and suppress the younger generation of the Dragon Kingdom. It's the Jedi's plan. This game, it can end. Yamamoto Shige spoke faintly, preparing to turn around and leave. No, it's not over yet. I haven't lost yet. Luo Zhan finally struggled to his feet. Only, his legs were already trembling uncontrollably. Luo Zhan, you've done enough. Do Yuan Hua hurriedly persuaded? If the fight continued, he feared that Luo would be seriously injured. Luo Zhan didn't say anything, just looked straight at Du Yuanhua with determination in his eyes. Grinning, Luo Zhan said, the body can be destroyed, but the will cannot be destroyed. Come on, keep fighting. Shige Yamamoto raised an eyebrow and nodded. Okay, I'll make you whole. He was like a horse stepping on a meteor, instantly rushing to Luo Zhan. A fist was raised and blasted at Luo Zhan's face. Some girls screamed in fear and covered their eyes, not daring to look at what was going on down there. Luo Zhan fiercely clenched his teeth roared angrily, and similarly blasted out a fist. And just at the same time, Chen Yu moved. 
He flexed his fingers and a true essence struck into Luozhan's body through the air. Bang! The two men's fists collided, and a miserable scream rang out abruptly. Yamamoto rearranged himself and flew backwards, landing heavily on the ground. His entire arm folded at a weird angle. Yamamoto, Kenichi Matsumoto, who had been smiling broadly, turned pale and rushed forward to check. Look no further. Yamamoto rearranged his entire arm, with all the bones broken, and it was a sight to behold. On Susan in University's side, the faces of the crowd changed for the first time. What's going on? Yamamoto Shige clearly had the upper hand just now, so why did he suddenly lose? What the hell happened? At the scene, the crowd was stunned, followed by ecstasy, roars, growls, cheers. The various voices intertwined and went straight to the sky. My chow, Luo Zhan deserves to be the number one expert. Bull, ha ha, that was a good punch. So damn good. Let these dogs try barking. Do you want Hua swung his fist fiercely? His face red. Luo Zhan, well done. Luo Zhan stood still, looking down at his fists in a daze. Something's wrong. Something's very wrong just now. That punch was not his own. Just now. It was an unrivaled force that borrowed his own body and threw this punch. Someone high up is helping himself. Luo Zhan, after all, was also a practitioner, and understood the cause and effect in just a moment. He looked around, trying to locate the man, but was doomed to futility. Chun Yu, the one who started it all, smiled slightly when he saw Luo Zhan in this state. This guy, he's got sharp senses. Originally, Chun Yu had wanted to get down and do it himself, but, these brats really didn't interest him much, and with so many people watching, I'm afraid that if I win, I'll cause another commotion. One is supposed to experience college life. Too much movement is unattractive. Since Luo Zhan was on stage, it would be good to lend him a hand to teach these Sakura Nation dogs a lesson. Next, it's time to see the reaction from Suzunin University's side. Chun Yu wrapped his arms around himself and looked at Kenichi Matsumoto and the others. Yamamoto's heavy defeat has turned the tables on the field. On the side of Jiangling University of Science and Technology, morale is high. Over at Suzunin University, the faces of the people from Sakura Nation were gloomy as water. Seeing this, Luo Zhan roared violently. Don't waste your time, little trash. Get it together. Since the Highlander was secretly helping himself, he was trying to win and didn't want to show his face. In that case, it's just as well to win and be a little more unrestrained. The entire gymnasium was ignited by Luo Zhan's words. Rise up, people who don't want to be slaves. Take our flesh and blood and forge it into our new great wall. I don't know who started it, but the song, full of the will of the nation, rose to the sky. The people of the Sakura country were suddenly uneasy when they heard about it. It seems that the awe of the soul surfaces with some trepidation. Kenichi Matsumoto subconsciously looked at a person behind him. I.G. Akuan. Now. What now? The man swept his eyes over the people present and the corner of his mouth gently hooked up. Things that are getting interesting yet. The man who opened his mouth was young and had previously been in the Suzunin University crowd without speaking. What do you mean? Kenichi Matsumoto addressed respectfully. No Igano, the main general of Suzunin University's Budo Club. But if that was the only status, it wouldn't be enough to make Kenichi Matsumoto so respectful. The reason for this is solely because, Iganoyo is the son of the current head of the IGA family. The IGA family, honored within the Sakura country. For centuries, the IGA clan has been the top clan in the Sakura country. The IGA Ryu ninja faction he founded is even more prestigious. Having assassinated many great figures, in the past, there had been a protracted war between the Dragon Kingdom and the inhuman realm of the Sakura Kingdom. IG Ariu Ninja, who had assassinated many of the Dragon Kingdom's martial arts experts. The IGA family was also behind this exchange of university budo clubs. Although Kenichi Matsumoto is the vice president and in charge of everything in plain sight, but the actual person in control is Iganoyo. People like Shige Yamamoto and Sanpei Fukuyama were not Suzunin University students before. Also for this operation, he passed the audition half a year ago and was specially recruited into Suzunin University. Upon entering, there are specialized martial arts powerhouses for training. The strength of his strength was naturally not something that could be compared to people like Chang Haoming. Since he has made this request, we naturally have to fulfill him. Let's go together and beat this man into a permanent cripple, so that these people in the Dragon Kingdom will know that our heavenly might is not to be offended. What? Together? But in that case, will people say we won't win? Kenichi Matsumoto blushed with some concern. But, Iganoyo just smiled contemptuously. History, it's all written by the victors. Afterward, everyone will only laugh at the arrogance and ignorance of the Dragon Kingdom. Moreover, this Luozhan is very eccentric. In order to ensure victory, we must go all in. Staring at Luozhan, Iganoyo sensed a hint of something wrong. Obviously, 
he had been suppressed without any power just now. So how did he suddenly burst out with such a strong power? Among them, there must be some unknown secrets. This time, he came to the Dragon Country University with the purpose of sweeping the Dragon Country University Martial Arts Club, using this to suppress the younger generation of the Dragon Country. To that end, there must not be a single slip in the process, that's the character of Sakura Nation. Regardless of the process, as long as they can win, they won't care at all what means are used. I see, Kenichi Matsumoto nodded and looked at Du Yuan Hua, switching to the Dragon Kingdom's Mandarin. Since you asked for it, we can only accept it reluctantly. Next, everyone from the Suzunan University Budo Club will be in the ring together. Du Yuan Hua was shocked and said, What did you say? You guys are too shameless. At the scene, there were loud gasps and boos. A martial arts competition must first be fair and just. Although Luo Zhan had just said that kind of thing, everyone didn't think that the Sakura Gakuya would really agree. Kenichi Matsumoto's words threw them for a loop. Kenichi Matsumoto smiled faintly and said, Principal Du, we're not wrong. You're the ones who asked us to come along for the ride. We're just fulfilling your request. Or is it that you, the Dragon Kingdom, will only talk about the scene, and the moment things come up, you will backtrack? You, Du Yuan Hua was choked speechless? The matter at hand, in turn, put him in a dilemma. Promising to go together. Can Luo Zhan handle it? But if you refuse, you'll end up with a reputation of being afraid and backtracking. He looked over at Luo Zhan. His brows furrowed. Luo Zhan, however, smiled confidently and grinned. Principal Du, please don't worry. I'll win this time. With the mysterious tall man behind him, Luo Zhan didn't have the slightest worry. Hey, no matter what, protect yourself. If it doesn't work, just, just surrender. Do you want Hua finished and stepped aside? Within the arena, the cacophony dissipated and disappeared. The crowd held their breath, staring at Luo Zhan with nervous expressions. Across the street, the Suzunan University Budo Club had all made their entrance. Iganoyo was among them. As far as the eye could see, there were 13 of them. These 13 people were like 13 vicious wolves, staring ferociously at Luo Zhan. Just seeing this image, all of them felt a strong pressure. Come, battle. Luo Zhan laughed and charged into the enemy lineup at the head of his horse. In the audience, Chun Yu smiled and shook his head. This guy is spontaneous. Knowing that I was there to help him in secret, he completely ignored it. In that case, your body, lend it to me. Thinking so, Chen Yu's lowered hand secretly made a seal, and with a point of both fingers, True Essence shot out and struck into Luo Zhan's body. Through this means, he could control Luo Zhan's movements and was able to drastically increase the killing power of Luo Zhan's punches and kicks. Luo Zhan's body trembled only to feel a strong and overwhelming power surge in. The body was also like a puppet on strings, not under his control. His heart was ecstatic, knowing that this was the higher power striking. Ha ha, little brats, come on. Luo Zhan laughed openly and slammed his fist into a person beside him. Baka, kill. Iganoyo broke off with a fierce look on his face. The others immediately responded by yelling and lashing out at Rashi. For a while, the scene was filled with people and shadows. Under the siege of 13 people, Chen Yu sat steadily in the audience, secretly maneuvering Luo Zhan to dodge and move around, coping with the situation with ease. The scene was extremely exciting. Even for an action movie, it was nowhere near as exciting as the live fight. The crowd of onlookers was shocked beyond measure, and many subconsciously gulped, their eyes unblinking. In the martial arts club, Fong Hongji, Sun Chang and the others froze. Our president, is that strong? Chang Haoming stared wide-eyed, his face full of doubt. Zhao Gang shook his head. I fought with Luo Zhan. His strength definitely can't reach this level. So what's going on here now? I, I don't know. But something must have happened. That's only something we'll have to ask him when it's over. Zhao Gang's words caused a few people to rise in curiosity. In the middle of the field, the battle continued. The faces of the Suzunan University Budo Club's crowd were becoming increasingly ugly. Everyone's eyes were filled with shock. Especially Igano Yu. His face changed wildly, and his heart set off shocking waves. What the hell is wrong with this guy? totally just a different person. Compared to before, Luo Zhan's performance is literally day by day. After fighting with him, Iganoyo even had the illusion. It seemed that instead of fighting, the elders of the clan were now instructing themselves. The opponent's experience, skill, comprehension of combat, and everything else was all far above his own. No matter how ferocious one's attacks were, in the eyes of the other party, they were as ridiculous as a child's playground. The Luo Zhan in front of him was not a person, but a mountain. A lofty Kunlun so high in the clouds that it is hard to see its top. Damn it. Why? Why is this happening? Iganoyo was completely flustered. At the same time, 
Shen Yu was unwilling to delay any longer and added a few more points of force to his hands. The situation on the field immediately changed. Under Chen Yu's control, Luo Zhan was in great power. In just a few breaths of time, all 13 people from Suzanin University were blown away, paralyzed on the ground and unable to get up. Everyone was breaking bones and tendons, suffering from extremely heavy injuries and wailing continuously. Iganoyo's left arm was twisted into a twist, and his dantian was hit so hard that he couldn't even stand up. Chen Yu secretly loosened his hand seals and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. This battle is considered to have ended successfully. What will be the next scene? Inside the gym, it was a mess. The 13 people from Suzanin University were lying on the ground, wailing. The students of Jiangling University of Science and Technology had all gotten up at this moment. The whole arena, quiet. Everyone stared at this scene with wide eyes and dead eyes. The sharp breaths converged with an unspeakable urgency. It seems to be reaching a tipping point. In the next moment, a deafening roar resounded abruptly. Reddened cheeks, wantonly snarling grimace, crazy swinging fists, everything about it speaks to the excitement and joy of a group of college students. Grass, win, win, ha 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 ha, bull, Luo Zhan is bull, one versus, thirteen and a complete takedown, what a fucking goddamned play, raise our country, raise our country, dogs, just you guys still want to sweep our dragon country's universities, you guys kneeled in the first battle, tsk, you were given a chance, but you're not up to it, hey goo, the way you guys are lying on the ground is really enchanting, see, your dad will always be your dad, on the 604 side, a few of Zheng Ji's people had joined the party. Xiao Yunyue clutched Chen Yu's arm tightly. Her small face flushed. Chen Yu. Win. We won. Oh yeah. We're definitely going to win. Chen Yu responded with a smile. Zhang Bo Jing watched, secretly saying that Chen Yu was too lucky. If it wasn't for Luo Zhan's great power, Chen Yu was going to go up there and lose face. Do Yuan Hua laughed out loud? His face red. Mr. Matsumoto. You see, there's a reason we let you all go together. You're all going to lose anyway. How much time will you save by going together? Kenichi Matsumoto grimaced, the muscles in his face twitching. Looking at the crowd of Iganoyo, he had mixed feelings inside. What the hell is going on here? Iganoyo's strength is such that even the world fighting champion is no match for him. The others were also handpicked and each had a good strength. How can you lose when you're surrounded together? What the hell is going on here? Humph. Today's exchanges end here. We have things to do. So we'll leave first suppressing the shock and confusion in his heart. Kenichi Matsumoto stepped forward to help Iganoyo up and left the gym in a sorry state. Louder jeers rang out. Get out of here. Ha ha. Welcome to be abused next time. Hey. 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 Don't ask us for reimbursement for medical bills and cab fare. Woohoo. Go back and remember to put up the video of the last fight for the guys. After the Sakura Nation's people left, the arena once again erupted in a shocking cheer. Luo Zhan. Luo Zhan. The entire crowd chanted Luo Zhan's name. In the middle of his voice, he was filled with admiration and excitement. At this time, a skinny boy, suddenly in tears, opened his mouth and sang, the five-star red flag flutters in the wind, and how loud the victory song is. Over the mountains, over the plains, across the rushing Yellow River and Yangtze, we love peace, we love our homeland, and whoever dares to violate us is called to death. At first, it was just a solo, followed by one, two, and even a million. The whole crowd sang at the top of their lungs at the same time. The waves of sound were overwhelming, stirring in the arena. Outside the arena, Kenichi Matsumoto and the others had just gotten on the bus and also heard the song that rose up to the sky. On their faces, a flash of incredulity and awe appeared. What's going on? Clearly we had conquered their forefathers. Why is it that now? They are like mountains, like great rivers, like that vast starry sky that we can only look up to? Go, go now. Iganoyo hissed lowly, like a wounded beast. The bus started up and fled the JLSTU at a rapid pace. Inside the stadium, it was still a sea of joy. Luo Zhan looked around the room, and under the watchful eyes of the crowd, he suddenly plopped down and knelt on the ground. And the direction of kneeling was coincidentally the direction of Chen Yu. Thank you for your help. Sir, without your help, Luo Zhan would have lost this battle. Luo Zhan kowtowed to sir. Knock knock. Luo Zhan kowtowed three times, then got up and left the gym without turning his head. It's been fully established. Among the people present today, there is definitely a high-ranking person. It was because of him that Susan and University's plot did not succeed. Otherwise, I really can't imagine what kind of furor it would cause if I lost. The reason why he left the scene was because Luo Zhan was a bit impatient. He was an outer disciple of a martial arts sect. When he encountered this kind of thing today, he had to go back and ask his master to see if he could find out. 
who this high person really was. On the scene, the crowd was stunned. What's the situation? Who is Luo Zhan kowtowing to? He said thank you sir for your help, and you say you lost without that guy's hand? Who the hell is that guy? How did he help Luo Zhan? This, for a moment, many people looked to those around them. Hey, were you the one who helped Luo Zhan? No kidding, I wish it was me. That said, how exactly did Luo Zhan's mention of coming to his aid help him? Discussions are in all directions. Chun Yu smiled gently and shook his head helplessly. This Luo Zhan is somewhat interesting. He was afraid of robbing himself of the credit for telling everyone in this way. The one who defeated Susan in university was not him, Luo Zhan, but someone else. In a state of disbelief, the scene dispersed. Chun Yu, Xiao Yunyue, and the 604 crowd were still discussing nonstop on the way back. Today was really thrilling. You guys, who is that gentleman that Luo Zhan mentioned at the end? Zhang Ji was filled with curiosity. Yao Yujing frowned and said, Indeed, the gap between Luo Zhan's performance before and after is too great. If someone helped him, that would explain it. Just how exactly does that help him? Wang Hao grinned and said, It's not that simple? Let me tell you. At those words, the crowd's curiosity was piqued. Even Chen Yu was no exception and was quite surprised. This kid is nothing special. Can he really know my methods? Wang Hao laughed. Who helps him? It must be our old six. He's a big brother who goes to duel with others. Helping Luo Zhan isn't easy? As for the means, Lao Lu is a master of martial arts. What in the novels of the air into the true qi? Soul taking magic and so on will certainly be ah. Do you think so, old six? Wang Hao looked at Chen Yu with a smile and raised his eyebrows, his face full of flirtation. Chen Yu froze and nodded with an odd expression. Rat you're so smart to have guessed it was me. But what I used wasn't the soul regeneration technique. But rather, I used my true essence to manipulate Luo Zhan to kill the four directions. He's like my puppet on a string. With a few words, he heard Wang Hao and the others in a daze. Xiao Yunyue covered her stomach and giggled, obviously not believing it. Damn, Lao Lu, the way you're bragging in a serious manner. I'm going to learn from you. Yao Yujing blinked her eyes, her face full of eccentricity. That's right, no wonder you were able to pick up Sister Xiao. This shameless spirit, it's awesome. Wang Wenjun gave a thumbs up. Look, why are we singles? Now do you know why? Chick, we don't have thick enough skin. Chen Yu spread his hands. I'm telling the truth, and I can't help it if you don't believe me. The group heckled and walked off into the distance. Chen Yu glanced at the direction that the Sakura Nations crowd had left and narrowed his eyes slightly. Counting the time, that Iganoyo should almost be dead. Since you've come to my China to count, you should always pay a price. Just take your life and tell everyone one thing. Ahead of China, sprites and goblins are forbidden. Almost at the same time, Iganoyo made a phone call. Lord Father, we have failed. On the way back to the car, Iganoyo held his cell phone, his face pained. The bitterness of defeat, the pain in the Dantian location, all intertwined together, causing his liver and guts to split. On the other end of the phone, it was the head of the IGA family, and the father of IGA Noio, IGA Kyubi. What's going on? How can the students in Dragon Kingdom's universities, weak as chickens, be your opponents? What the hell happened? Iganoyo didn't hide anything and told all the causes and consequences. There was a long period of silence before IGA Kyubi sighed quietly. We miscalculated this time. You guys didn't lose at the hands of Luojan, but at the hands of that expert behind him. What? The master behind you? That's right. Luojan's strength is not even comparable to Yamamoto Shige, but someone else stepped in, and that's what defeated you. Damn. Is that even possible? Iganoyo's eyes were red and he clenched his fists in death. I want revenge. I want revenge. He hissed in a low voice, his body trembling. Come back first. The plan has failed this time. Think long and hard. The most important thing right now is our cooperation with the Dragon Kingdom's Jinxuan Song family. Once it's completed, it will be helpful for our infiltration into the Dragon Kingdom. Song Yao, the Song family's eldest miss, will be coming to Sakura country in the next few days. You come back to meet it as well. As my son, it's time for you to start taking over the family's affairs. Hi, Iganoyo nodded vigorously, his face again somewhat hesitant. But father, I'm still not willing. My life should not be subjected to this kind of disgrace at a university in the Dragon Kingdom. No harm done. Once you cooperate with the Song family, there is still a chance to travel to Jinchuan City in the future. A few of the family's top ninjas will accompany you then. Whether it's Luo Zhan or the people behind him, it's hard to escape death. Iganoyo's eyes glowed, and then he became a little worried. But, assassinating Dragon Country people in Dragon Country, will this cause unnecessary trouble? The Inhuman Bureau of the Dragon Kingdom is troublesome. The IGA family is indeed very powerful, but that also depends on the place. 
In the Sakura country, they act without fear, but in the Dragon Kingdom, every aspect is restricted, so it's too difficult to do something about it. One slip up could even cause a major disturbance. Oh, there's no need to worry. The Song family has a lot of energy, and according to the news, Song Yao's second brother will become a high official among the Inhuman Bureau. With him around, it's not a big deal for us to kill a few dragons. Even if you play a few women to death in the Dragon Kingdom, it doesn't matter. After a pause, Iga Kubi smiled coldly, a flash of cruelty in his eyes. Remember, son, you are the young patriarch of the Iga clan. This ground under your feet now, once trembled under the feet of our forefathers. They're men, our slaves, they're women, our toys. We don't have to be afraid that toys will bring us trouble. Toys that don't obey, destroy them. Hi, Iganoyo roared, hanging up the phone. He slammed his fist on the armrest beside him with a sardonic grin. Baka, whoever you are, I will never let you go. Kenichi Matsumoto came up and looked respectful. Mr. IGA, it's three hours until our flight. No, cancel the tickets now and we'll go back tomorrow. Kenichi Matsumoto froze. Going back tomorrow? Not bad, since we've come to the Dragon Kingdom. How can we return empty-handed? Looking out the window at the scenery and the pedestrians coming and going, the corners of Iganoyo's mouth, surfaced a fierce smile. Hey, do you guys want a taste? The taste of a dragon country woman? A sentence that made everyone else in the car, all agitated. They are not very old and are in the prime of their youth, dreaming about that kind of thing on a regular basis. Now that we're in the dragon kingdom, it would be wonderful if we could really have some fun with the women over here. Kenichi Matsumoto understood and laughed. Then I'll immediately make arrangements to spend the most expensive money and get the best girl. But, Iganoyo shook his head. What's the point of spending money on a girl? No, it doesn't cost anything? Well, catch some couples and couples. Then wouldn't it be more fun to play with their women in front of the men of the Dragon Kingdom? After being defeated at the Jiangling University of Science and Technology, Iganoyo was suffocating. After talking to IGA QB on the phone just now, he immediately thought of this matter. He would watch these people in the Dragon Kingdom, desperate and helpless. Kenichi Matsumoto was startled. This, this isn't good. If we really do this, then the Inhuman Bureau of the Dragon Kingdom. Others were a little concerned. There's no need to worry. By the time they try to catch us, we'll be back in Sakura country. What's more, they'll help us with the aftermath. Iganoyo smiled unconcernedly. With the Song family around, what's wrong with him playing with a few dragon women? It's an honor for those women to be played by themselves, and even more so for those men. You should be thankful that this young patriarch is able to value your girlfriend, wife. Hey, will you guys? After a moment of silence, the crowd clamored. Baka, I'm going to get on them, to show them our majesty. Iganoyo was very satisfied and nodded. Yasi, in that case, tonight. Before the words were finished, Iganoyo suddenly let out a scream and collapsed in his seat. On his pants, there was black blood oozing out. At the same time, there were gusts of foul-smelling solid liquid mixtures that flowed out of his pants. Mr. Iga, Mr. Iga, what happened to you? Oh my god, what's going on? Matsumoto Kanichi's face suddenly changed and he hurriedly went forward to check. And when he saw Iganoyo's miserable condition, he sucked in a breath of cold air in shock. The others were confused, not knowing why it had suddenly turned out this way. The whole car was a mess. All of this was the work of Chunyu. Earlier in the gymnasium, although Matsumoto Kanichi and the others were conversing in Sakura, Chunyu could understand them all. It was also known that Iganoyo had an unusual status. So when he fought against him, he came down hard on Iganoyo. With his true essence, he had directly abolished both of Iganoyo's kidneys which had not kicked in until this moment. Not only him, but everyone else had also been undermined by Chin Yu and became eunuchs. When they go back to using them they will realize that they will be mollusks for the rest of their lives. Soon, Iganoyo was in extreme pain and his vitality was fading by the day. No, 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 quick, get to the hospital, Ken Matsumoto yelled, but only in vain. Before he even got to the hospital, Iganoyo was already cold. The young head of the IGA family died in the Dragon Kingdom. The other side. After Luo Zhan left Jiangling University of Science and Technology, he took a car and went straight to a broken Taoist temple on the outskirts of the city. In the Taoist temple, a middle-aged man dressed in a simple Taoist robe was cleaning up. He was surprised to see Luo Zhan. Luo Zhan, don't you have a match today? Why did you come here? Luo Zhan respectfully saluted and said, Master, in today's match, I met a high-ranking person. Oh, a tall man? Luo Zhan's master was named He Huang. Hearing this, he stopped his hand movements and looked at Luo Zhan with some surprise. Tell the master how high up your school is. By this time, 
He hadn't realized the gravity of the situation and smiled and snickered. Luo Zhan didn't hide anything and told all about the exchange with Susan in university. After saying that, He Huang's eyes widened, and he didn't even realize that the large broom in his hand had fallen to the ground. What do you mean? Manipulating your body? And a special influx of power? Are you sure? Yes. The disciple has never spoken half-heartedly. Luo Zhan's face was solemn as he arched his hand again. Disciple only wants to know what level this senior is at. Although Luo Zhan was also a practicing disciple, he was only an outer disciple. Strictly speaking, he could only be considered to have half a foot in the inhuman realm. The perception of strength is not really clear. Wait, I'll ask your master to come over right away. He Huang hurried towards the depths of the Taoist temple. Luo Zhan froze. This kind of thing, you even need to alarm the master? Luo Zhan had gained a chance since he was a child and worshipped under the Ming Yunguan. Although he was only an outer disciple all these years, he had learned a lot of skills. It was also for this reason that he had a deep understanding of Ming Yunguan. It's just a broken Taoist temple. But the people here are worldly men. One's own master was needless to say. And those senior brothers of the inner sect were also unimaginable existences in the world. As for master, it's more of a myth for Rosen. He had once seen his master subdue a rampaging bull with one hand. He had also seen his master jump to the top of a seven or eight meter tall tree in one leap. That is simply not a strength that humans can possess. Only later did he realize that his master teacher was called the Peak Hotian Realm. All these years, he had not seen his master. I heard that it was the one who had been practicing in the thatched hut in the back of the mountain, hoping to go further. On weekdays, if there were no major events, the master would not come out at all. It's even harder for outsiders to see one. Now, just asking about the strength of that mysterious tall man would have to alarm an existence like master? This, not long after, a group of people walked out from the Taoist temple. At the head of the group was a crane-haired, green-clothed old man. Behind him, there were seven or eight middle-aged men. Luo Zhan's eyes were wide with incredulity. These people, all of whom were the master's personal disciples, lived in deep seclusion on weekdays and were hardly seen. Why are they all here today? Luo Zhan, you said your university has a high-ranking person? Luo Zhan's master, Taoist named Zhong Yunzi. As soon as they met, he opened his mouth with a sharp inquiry. Yes, come on, tell us what's going on. Zhong Yunzi continued to pursue the question. Although Luo Zhan was surprised, he still retold what happened again. When he heard that Luo Zhan was being manipulated, Zhong Yunzi's fist secretly tightened. Master, I wonder if you know that high person? Luo Zhan inquired cautiously. Naka Yunko did not answer. Just remained silent for a long time. He then opened his mouth to inquire. Luo Zhan, have you ever seen a young man at the scene? He probably looks. Naka Yunko described the external looks. When Luo Zhan heard this, he blinked his eyes and was filled with surprise. Master, how do you know Chun Yu? Not bad. What Zhong Yunzi described was exactly what Chen Yu looked like. He had met Chen Yu once before when he joined the martial arts club. Wasn't impressed at the time. But then I heard that Chen Yu shone in the games and took many first places. This was what made Luo Zhan have a deep impression of Chen Yu. Chen Yu, Mr. Chen, so that's how it is. So that's how it is. He's actually at the Jiangling University of Science and Technology. This, Zhong Yunzi muttered to himself with an odd expression on his face. At that time, he went to the scene of the Battle of Jinchuan River. In that battle, Chen Yu and Xing Qian Lei traveled back and forth, stirring up the wind and clouds in a breathtaking manner. He had wanted to pay a visit to Chen Yu, only that Chen Yu left too quickly and didn't give him a chance at all. Later he inquired about that too, but the Inhuman Bureau never told him where Chen Yu was. Now that he heard Luo Zhan's words, he immediately reacted. That person who secretly helped Luo Zhan was Chen Yu. AI, Luo Zhan, this is really your creation. Zhong Yunzi looked at Luo Zhan and let out a long sigh. His expression somewhat complicated. Do you know who the person who stepped in to help you really is? Disciple doesn't know. Please ask master to explain. That one is the first prefect of the Jiangling province in human bureau. Now the first person in the inhuman sector in Jiangling province. The innate grand master. Mr. Chun. Boom. A sentence that left Luo Zhan dumbfounded. Chun Yu. The innate master? The first prefect? The first of the inhuman world? This. How is this possible? Isn't he a junior? When he joined the Budo Club, Zheng Ji even asked us to take care of him. How? Luo Zhan froze in place for a long time. Master, are you, are you sure? Could it be a mistake? I've seen him before. He doesn't seem too special. Zhong Yunzi sneered. With your eyesight, how can you tell how extraordinary that existence is? Do you know that the true Qi outwardly leaves the body and is still able to manipulate you through the air? Which cannot be done at all under the innate realm. If he hadn't stepped in. You guys would have gotten shaded by the Sakura nation this time. Luo Zhan listened in awe. 
Master, then, then should we pay him a visit? Confused, Zhong Yunzi broke off with a serious expression. Since Mr. Chen lent you a hand to teach Sakura Nation a lesson, it shows that Mr. Chen doesn't want to throw his weight around. Since that's the case, won't we be causing trouble for Mr. Chen if we go there rashly? Don't bother Mr. Chen. Luo Zhan was shocked and nodded, not daring to mention it again. Leaving the Taoist temple, Luo Zhan returned to the school. Along the way, he was still immersed in shock. When he returned to the martial arts club, Chang Haoming made a suggestion. Overall strengthening of the members of the Budo club with one-on-one -on -one instruction from the five of them. And Chang Haoming named and wanted to instruct Chen Yu. Call it instruction. But it's revenge. Having lost such a big face in front of Xiao Yunyue and Chen Yu this time, Chang Haoming was already furious. Now that Chen Yu had joined the martial arts club, it was a good time to take this opportunity to straighten him out. Luo Zhan sniffed, his eyes wide and his scalp numb with fear. He was aware of the feud between Chang Haoming and Chen Yu. I've never realized that Chang Haoming still wants to fix Chen Yu. You're going to get jealous with an innate master? Are you tired of living? Nonsense. Chang Haoming, don't think I don't know your thoughts. For the sake of one's own selfishness, you want to take hostage and take revenge on Chen Xian. No. Chen Yu, how does someone like you deserve to stay in our Budo club? As of today, you are no longer a member of the Budokai. In order to eliminate future problems, Luo Zhan directly expelled Chang Haoming from the martial arts club. Chang Haoming was dumbfounded. I make one fucking comment and I'm expelled from the Budokai? It's Nima. All of this was unknown to Chen Yu, and he didn't care. At the moment, he was looking at the message on his cell phone, and there was a flash of surprise in his eyes. Song Pengcheng of the Song family, Song Yao's second brother, became an inspector of the Inhuman Bureau of Five Provinces, including Jiangling Province? You're summoning me? Just after reading the message, Sun Qiandao's phone call came. Chen Yu ah, stop. There was a long sigh on the other end of the phone. He was aware of the feud between Chen Yu and the Song family. Originally, he didn't support this, but he didn't block it either. Personal grudges, as long as it does not involve public affairs, just how Chen Yu can get it. But now the situation has changed. Song Pengcheng unexpectedly came and became Chen Yu's superior. With this look, how could Chen Yu deal with the Song family? For Chen Yu's sake, he could only persuade. Elder son, tell me about this Song Pengcheng. Chen Yu was unconcerned and spoke with a smile. It's hard to tell over the phone. Do you have time? I'll come to you. Okay, then come to my house. Soon after, Sun Xiandao arrived at Chen Yu's villa. TSK, you're living a really comfortable life. This big villa is much better than my house. Sun Chan Dao scared. Chen Yu smiled and said, Elder son is polite. Tell me. Sun Xiandao's face stared and he let out a long sigh. With his words just now, he was trying to remind Chen Yu to cherish his life in the present and dispel the idea of dealing with the Song family. Unfortunately, Chen Yu had already seen through it and went straight to the point. After thinking about it, Sun Qiandao opened his mouth. I don't have too much contact with Song Pengcheng, but I do have some understanding. Song Pengcheng isn't from the inhuman realm. He's just an ordinary person. Chen Yu was a bit surprised. An ordinary person? Then he can even become a five province inspector? The inhuman realm was an existence that was completely different from the usual world. In this world, strength is honored. Without the ability to do so, you'll just be eaten without any crumbs left. It was a bit unbelievable that Song Pengcheng was able to become a five province inspector. Sun Xiandao's face was serious as he said. Precisely because of this, it highlights his extraordinary means. This person, Song Pengcheng, is extremely bureaucratic and very thick-skinned. Although he's not strong enough, He's especially good at slipping up and bullying his way to the top, and he comes from a good background, backed up by the Song family, and a background of studying and working overseas. Don't look at this person as just an ordinary person, but the strength of his heart and means is very powerful. Chen Yu raised an eyebrow and said, How powerful? Sun Xiandao's face remained grave as he spoke. In the past, there had been a sect whose headmaster was already at the peak of Hotian strength and didn't put Sun Xiandao in his eyes. Later on, Song Pengcheng used tricks that caused that person to be sentenced to 20 years, and the clan was disbanded. There's news that the man's daughter was also played by Song Pengcheng, and that the man learned of the news in prison, clashed with the guards, and was finally killed. Chen Yu's eyes narrowed slightly. In that case, this Song Pengcheng is indeed a villain. Sun Xiandao continued to speak. What deterred all parties the most was the story of Song Pengcheng's previous years with an innate master. At that time, Song Pengcheng had a beef with an innate master. And later on, he didn't know what means he used, but he actually forced that innate master to kneel down and apologize in public, and he became famous for a while. Oh, at those words, Chen Yu was a bit surprised. For martial arts cultivation to reach the innate master realm, 
The strength of one's heart and mind had reached an unimaginable point. This kind of character may fail, but it is a thousand times harder to make him kneel and apologize in public. What's more, to an ordinary person, it was indeed surprising that Song Pengcheng was able to make it this far. Interesting, the more I want to meet this Song Pengcheng. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Getting him to let go was naturally impossible. Since we're dealing with the Song family, let's start with Song Pengcheng. Seeing this, Sun Xin Dao sighed helplessly and shook his head. He could see that Chen Yu did not take his words to heart. You, be more careful. With a word of advice, Sun Xin Dao left Chen Yu's home. Chen Yu smiled gently and watched Sun Xin Dao leave. The time Song Pengcheng summoned Chen Yu was tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. In this regard, Chen Yu still had some expectations. Careful, tonight I will be able to break through to the foundation establishment realm's great success. Song Peng Chang, I'd like to see what means you'll use against me? These days of bitter cultivation, Chun Yu had already accumulated to a certain extent. After the battle with Criminal Thousand Thunder, he had finally reached the tipping point. Tonight, he would be able to break through the foundation establishment realm's great success, and his strength would skyrocket once again. He was eager to see how effective Song Peng Chang's power and tactics could be for him. The day passes quickly. The sun sets and the moon rises. Chen Yu sat cross-legged on top of the terrace, looking up at the vast and boundless starry sky, took a deep breath, and slowly closed his eyes. The heavenly chance technique operated automatically, and an arcane aura enveloped Chen Yu. The breakthrough, it's on. Meanwhile, the Song family, ha ha, Peng Chang ah, say you. You were appointed as the Inhuman Bureau's five provinces inspector, and you didn't say anything to me. If it weren't for your sister, I wouldn't have known you'd come this far. Song Yuan Tu was full of smiles as he looked at the middle-aged man in front of him. His own son, Song Peng Chang. Song Peng Chang wore a pair of gold-rimmed glasses, had a fair face, and looked very civilized. But a flash of cunning could still be seen in his eyes from time to time. Pushing up his glasses, Song Peng Chang smiled smugly. Oh, is it also to surprise you guys? This surprise is wonderful. That brat Cheng Yu. His expression must be wonderful right now. Song Yuan Tu cracked a smile. Chun Yu. Don't you want to take revenge on my son family? Now what? My son. It's your leader. He tells you to go east. You can't go west. He lets you chase dogs. You can't catch chickens. From now on, even if you have a thousand rages and ten thousand grievances, you can only endure them. Chen Yu? Song Peng Cheng laughed and shook his head. This guy is not enough to worry about. I have the means to clean him up. Well, but you can't be careless. That Chen Yu is very arrogant and you need to prevent him from turning on you at tomorrow's morning meeting. Song Yuan Tu opened his mouth to remind, but, Song Pengcheng just waved his hand. I've heard a thing or two about him. I would like him to turn on me. The only way I can clean him up is if he turns on me. I'm even certain that he's bound to be late for tomorrow's morning meeting to give me a hard time. Song Pengcheng smiled and opened his mouth, not caring in the slightest, with a feeling of being in control of everything. What are you going to do about him? Song Yuan Tu came to be interested and was filled with curiosity. Oh, dad just wait and see what happens. I promise you, he'll be on his knees begging me to leave him alone by then. How can he beat the word power with all his skills? Song Pengcheng's face was filled with confidence. Good, I'll wait for your good news. The night was quiet and all the family slept peacefully. Chen Yu slowly stood up and opened his eyes. A purple ghostly light flickered in his eyes. Trying to clench his fists, a satisfied smile bloomed at the corners of his mouth. Is this the great achievement of the foundation establishment realm? This feels so good. If I were to fight against criminal Qian Lei again, even if I were to do it casually, I would be able to kill him within 10 moves. One day, I will no longer have to worry about worldly rules. Song Peng Chang, I'm looking forward to meeting you tomorrow. In Human Bureau of Gangneung Province, third floor conference room, sunlight poured in through the glass, illuminating everything in the room. The long conference table was set in the center of the room. The sides of the conference table were filled to capacity. On the main seat, Song Peng Chang sat motionless, on both sides of the table, Sun Xiandao and a bunch of the backbone of the Inhuman Bureau were all sitting upright. Everyone's face was grave. They were all well aware of the grudge between Chen Yu and the Song family. Song Pengcheng called this meeting at the beginning of his term, the meaning of which is really intriguing. And in addition to the people from the Inhuman Bureau, Feng Suqiu and another guest prefect also arrived at the scene. Song Pengcheng was the inspector of the five provinces Inhuman Bureau, and the two of them did not dare to take the meeting he called lightly. I also wonder. What kind of sparks will Mr. Chen rub off on this Song Pengcheng? Feng Suqiu glanced at Chen Yu beside her and secretly speculated in her heart. Not only him, the others were thinking similarly, secretly casting their gazes towards Chen Yu. Chen Yu looked calm and did not have an overly excited expression. Song Pengcheng sat on top of the main seat, 
glancing at Chen Yu with a disdainful smile in his heart. I thought that when I learned that I had called for a meeting, Chen Yu would deliberately come a little late and give himself a hard time. I didn't expect to arrive on time? It seems he's not as carefree as rumors suggest. In the face of power, even the most powerful still dare not offend below. He had overestimated him earlier. Chen Yu also looked at Song Pengcheng, his eyes indifferent. This is Song Pengcheng? Sure looks like a pampered treachery. He had deliberately come a little early today, just because he wanted to meet. What kind of character the Song family member really was? Now it seems to be nothing more than that. Ahem. Well, now we're in session. I've just arrived and I don't know everyone very well yet. So please introduce yourself first. Song Pengcheng folded his hands and placed them on the table, opening his mouth with a smile. With Sun Xiandao at the head, the people were introduced in turn. Name, age, position, personal information is said without reservation. Song Pengcheng listened with a smile on his face the entire time, nodding slightly. Every now and then, he would follow up with a question or two. Other than that, it's a leadership pie to hold. After everyone had been introduced, it was Chen Yu's turn. The atmosphere of the entire room was instantly frozen. It was, sort of, the first official conversation between the two. Song Pengcheng smiled and looked at Chen Yu with some condescension. It's one of his usual tricks. The reason for having the crowd introduce themselves is also to make sure that everyone understands that I am the leader here. You have to tell me all about yourselves. It's a way of invisibly asserting your authority. Chen Yu? Oh, and as long as you make introductions, then innately I'm head and shoulders above you. I'll have the means to bring you to your knees later. Chen Yu glanced at Song Pengcheng and spoke faintly. Chen Yu, your old man Song Yu Ento's enemy. In one sentence, the whole room was stunned. This self-introduction is so raw. Savoring the words, the crowd had complicated looks. First, the fact that your own information is not even told to you means you are not entitled to it. Secondly, pointing out the identity of the enemy shows that he doesn't fear the Song family at all, which is considered to be an explicit hardline. The most important point is the third. I'm not talking about you. I'm directly mentioning your old man, which is, from a status standpoint, a direct oppression. The crowd looked towards Song Pengcheng, all waiting for Song Pengcheng's reaction. Song Pengcheng also froze. Although he had prepared before, he had not expected that Chen Yu would say such words. He had encountered many unruly people in the past, and had fought against many foreigners, and considered himself experienced. However, it was the first time he had encountered one like Chen Yu who did not follow the norm. Narrowing his eyes and coldly looking at Chen Yu for about 10 seconds, Song Pengcheng suddenly laughed. Aya, ah, this little comrade's self-introduction is still very interesting. That's good. As the first prefect of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province, it's all about having some personality. As your superior, I'm still happy to see you have this kind of character. We just have to have this kind of vigor that dares to go up to the nine heavens to catch the moon, and dares to go down to the five seas to catch turtles. Song Pengcheng spoke like a spring breeze and put on a high stance. Then, he spoke again. But well, your little comrade's pattern and understanding still needs to be improved. Since we work in the Inhuman Bureau, we can't be affected by petty personal grudges. We have to do our job from the perspective of contributing to the country. You're still young and not yet deeply experienced. But don't worry, as a five province inspector, I won't be biased against you because of personal matters. What should guide you to help you? I will still help you. As long as you cooperate with me and work together to make things better for the Inhuman Bureau, I will also truthfully reflect your contributions to the Dragon Kingdom Inhuman Bureau and will never suppress you. Song Pengcheng finished with a smile and stared straight at Chen Yu. On the side. Sun Xiandao raised an eyebrow and said in his heart that it was awesome. Although Song Pengcheng was just an ordinary person, this power play was sort of understood by him. Just now, some words had first clarified the relationship between each other's superiors and subordinates and affirmed Chen Yu's personality. He then showed his pattern, pointing out that Chen Yu was young and didn't have a strong sense of the big picture. Finally, he would then show that he was sure of him, and at the same time use the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau to hammer on Chen Yu. How can an ordinary person carry this operation of pulling and tugging? Chen Yu ah, don't be a jerk at this time. This song Peng Cheng, it's not easy to deal with. Sun Qian Dao let out a dark sigh in his heart. Though among the Bureau of Inhumans, those who converged were not ordinary people. But, after all, the Inhuman Bureau was an agency of the Dragon Kingdom and was still subject to jurisdiction. In today's society, no individual should ever be allowed to transcend the collective. And the country's military is not for show. Even if you are an innate master, if the country is determined to kill you, then it can still be done with modernized thermal weapons regardless of the cost. It was for this reason that even the Inhuman Bureau, which was above ordinary society, had to bow to power, even if, the one who holds this power is just an ordinary person. 
the crowd looked at Chen Yu and also sighed in their hearts. In this way, it was difficult for Chen Yu to move the Song family. Chen Yu stared at Song Pengchang, raised his eyebrows and smiled coldly. What are you? You deserve to be my superior? I'm just a guest of the Inhuman Bureau. You can't control me yet. Trying to suppress me? You can try instead. As a cultivator, you have your own dignity. Although nowadays, due to the limitations of strength, there are times when one still needs to act with some scruples. But Amir Song Pengcheng wasn't qualified to act high and mighty in front of him. Song Pengcheng frowned, then smiled. Little comrade, don't be so angry. If you talk like this, you are defying the Dragon Kingdom in Human Bureau. I will react truthfully upwards. Suit yourself. But I'll tell you something. Chen Yu stared at Song Pengcheng and said, Song family, I will exterminate it. This includes you. After saying that, Chen Yu left the conference room. Since he had already met Song Pengcheng, there was no point in staying on. The people present were all subdued by Chen Yu's words. In his heart, he couldn't help but sigh. Impulse. It's too impulsive. How can you say these things so bluntly? Song Pengcheng quietly watched Chen Yu leave with an ancient expression on his face. The next moment, he suddenly laughed lightly and shook his head. Gentlemen, you all saw it. It's not that I didn't give him a chance. It seems that the management of the Inhuman Bureau of Jianling Province is quite out of place. A prefecture Zun. All of them already disobeying orders from above? In that case, I'll just have to report what happened today. Up the chain of command. After saying that, Song Pengcheng took out a recorder from his pocket and placed it on the table. Sun Xiandao's pupils shrunk violently. No good. He's recording. Chen Yu is in big trouble. In the room, everyone's faces changed. No one expected Song Pengcheng to be so shameless as to secretly record. Once the content of the conversation just now was transmitted to the top, it would be extremely unfavorable for Chen Yu. Inspector Song, this meeting today, is an internal meeting, there's no need to go this far. Sun Chandao opened his mouth. Song Pengcheng leaned towards the back of his chair, slightly raising his chin, a smug smile emerging at the corner of his mouth. All of you can see, it's not that I don't give him a chance, but Chun Yu, this little comrade, is really too disrespectful well. Without rules, our inhuman bureau manages the world's inhumans, and we must first set a good example ourselves. Hustling the outside world must first secure the inside. People like Chin Yu who have no rules are extremely damaging to the image of the inhuman bureau. Knocking on the table, Song Pengcheng's tone was a few points heavier. An organization has to have discipline. No matter how strong a person is, he can't override the organization. I will truthfully reflect this matter to the top. Song Pengcheng smiled coldly in his heart. Chun Yu, you want to fight me even with your skill? You're really a rash person. I used a little bit of tactics, and you're not able to sink your teeth into it. People at the bottom like you don't know the rules of how the world works. Even if he had gotten a strong power by chance, he was still a waste of a man without having experienced official training. Strength? Ha! In the Dragon Kingdom, the greatest strength is power. Everything today, while a little choppy, was basically going his way. Using words to oppress Chen Yu, if he did not resist, that also established his authority. If he resisted, then he got proof that Chen Yu had no eyes for the organization. Either way, he or she is a sure winner. Next, Sun Xiandao and the others should be pleading for Chen Yu. Song Pengcheng thought so and looked at Sun Xiandao. Sure enough, Sun Xiandao slowly got up and arched his hand at Song Pengcheng. Inspector Song, Chen Yu is still young and inevitably impulsive. Please also be magnanimous and let Chen Yu go. Sun Xiandao sighed in his heart. This Song Pengcheng is so sinister. With this recording, Chen Yu is sort of taken for a ride. Everyone else also got up, arched their hands at Song Pengcheng, and began to plead for Chen Yu. Seeing the crowd, Song Pengcheng became even more complacent. A feeling of being in control was born. Oh, we're all comrades, I don't want to go that far. Since all of you are pleading for Chen Yu, let's give him a chance. Before tonight, as long as he apologizes to me and admits his mistake, I won't care. We still have to help our little comrade correct his mistakes. Director Sun, you can do the young comrade's ideological work. As long as he recognizes his mistakes, I will not pursue the matter. Sun Xiandao let out a long sigh and nodded. I know. I'll talk to Qing Yu. The meeting broke up and Song Pengcheng left the conference room and returned to the Song family. Sun Xiandao and the others looked at each other with a long sigh. AI. Chen Yu is too impulsive. Yes. Song Pengcheng is a Fai province inspector. No matter how strong Chen Yu is, it's difficult to fight against power. It seems that this time, Mr. Chen is going to bow down. Bureau Sun. Only you can step in and persuade Mr. Chan now. Sun Qiandao nodded. I know. I will persuade him. Shaking their heads, the crowd dispersed. The Song family. Ha 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 ha. Peng Chang, you're really powerful. 
This time Chen Yu was taken by you, and really had no temper at all. Song Yuan Tao laughed out loud. He was happy to hear what happened at today's meeting. Earlier on the Jin Chuan River, he had seen Chen Yu's terror with his own eyes. He also had no idea in his heart about how Song Pengcheng would deal with Chen Yu. After all, who wouldn't be terrified of facing such a land god? I didn't expect Song Pengcheng's words to be like a knife, and he directly took Chen Yu. Song Pengcheng took a sip of tea and smacked his lips, his face showing disdain. An innate master? Ha! How can a more powerful innate master be a match for power? It's a fool's errand for him to want to move my Song family. Song Yuan Tu frowned and said, Then if he really comes to apologize, are we really letting him off the hook? Oh, of course not. This is just the first step. Father just watch how I'll clean him up. I will, little by little, put him back into the bottom. The struggle in the officialdom, he, an ordinary person, doesn't understand the cruelty of it at all. At those words, Song Yuan Tu smiled and nodded. On the other hand, Sun Qian Dao had already arrived at Chen Yu's home. Why are you here just after the meeting? Chen Yu looked at Sun Qian Dao, took a sip of tea, and inquired with a smile, Hey Gu, my little ancestor, you're still in the mood for tea? Do you realize that you're in big trouble? Oh, what's that supposed to mean? At that moment, Sun Qian Dao didn't hide and told Song Pengcheng about the recording. Recording? I thought he'd have something up his sleeve, just this? Chen Yu put down his cup and shook his head, oblivious. And that's it? Do you realize how lethal this recording is? Sun Xian Dao took three steps and walked to Chen Yu with an anxious expression. He is a five province inspector, sent from above, and has a lot of power. In a sense, he represents the will from above. Once what you said at the meeting gets up there, it's going to have a big impact on you. The higher ups would never allow an uncontrolled powerhouse to stay in the Inhuman Bureau. At that time, it's possible that you'll even be stripped of your status as the first prefect. Not only that, you'll be completely falling out with the Inhuman Bureau Ah, Is that a price you can afford? You, you, why are you so impulsive? Sun Qian Dao paced back and forth, anxious as an ant on a hot pan. Chen Yu pressed his hand and smiled. Elder son, sit down first, don't be in a hurry. When Sun Qian Dao was seated, Chen Yu slowly opened his mouth. Since the beginning, I don't care about the identity of this first prefect. If you want to take it, then take it. As far as falling out with the inhumans? Chen Yu raised his eyebrows and his aura changed, as if he was a god sitting high in the clouds. So what if we have a falling out? Or perhaps the Inhuman Bureau should consider whether they can afford the cost of falling out with me. As the Foundation Establishment realm came to fruition, Chen Yu's mindset had also changed a bit, although currently not completely above the rules. But, trying to overpower him with power? That's not possible either. Sun Qian Dao froze and looked straight at Chen Yu. After a long silence, he let out a long sigh and spoke in a serious tone. Chen Yu, take my advice and go apologize to Song Pengcheng. Otherwise your future will be ruined. Chen Yu lightly laughed and shook his head as he slowly got up and walked to the door. He looked at the azure sky with his hands behind his back, his eyes sharp. Amir Song Pengcheng is worthy of ruining my future? My future is not something this red dust can influence. Sun Chan Dao's persuasion ended in failure. In the evening, Song Pengcheng was sipping red wine. When he got the news, he shook the glass of red wine in his hand and laughed silently, glancing at the recorder on the table. Young people, it's all about intent. In that case, you, the first prefect, don't be one. Early the next morning, Song Pengcheng submitted the recording to the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. The house sun was in the sky, and heaven and earth were clear. Villa 1. Chen Yu sat cross-legged on top of the terrace, his five hearts facing the sky as he quietly cultivated. Around him, a golden aura emerged in the air, in a special line, constantly flowing, very mysterious. A moment later, he opened his eyes and slowly got up. All the golden air currents were all collected within its body. The heaven's chance technique. It truly captures the creation of heaven and earth. Chen Yu let out a soft sigh. Overwhelmed with emotion. As far as he could remember. Even in the era when immortal cultivation was at its peak. It wasn't an easy thing to cultivate to the foundation establishment realm's grand completion. And those like him. Who had reached this realm in a short period of time. Were even more of a demon among demons. Not to mention the fact that this was the end times and the difficulty of cultivation had increased geometrically. I also wonder, within the Dragon Kingdom, is there anyone else who is my opponent? Chen Yu was a bit curious. The last time he fought against Xing Qian Lei, he hadn't used his full strength. Now that his strength had skyrocketed again, there were even fewer chances to have a sound battle. Shaking his head, Chen Yu made a call and asked Lu Ming, Xiao Gu, Gu Shan, and Gong Yan to come to his place. Regarding dealing with the Song family, it had also been a while and he had to ask about the progress. It didn't take long for the four to arrive. Greetings, Mr. Chun. 
The four men bowed respectfully, filled with awe. Sit down, all of you. Shen Yu greeted them and the four of them took their seats. Tell me, how far have we gotten in dealing with the Song family now? Lu Ming, you speak first. The three of you add. Lu Ming is the head of Tanchang Group's branch and Jinchuan, Zhao Ji's trio. On the other hand, were the underground triumvirate of Jinchuan City. In recent times, the four had joined forces and had been dealing with the Song family. Lu Ming arched his hand and spoke after some thought. Mr. Chen, commercially, our suppression of the Song family is still very effective. However, the power of the Song family is too huge, and we've encountered a lot of resistance. It would take a long time to completely overwhelm them, Zhao Gu said. The Song family is large and has deep roots in Jinchuan City. According to our estimation, I'm afraid it will take at least three years to really bring down the Song family. Dong Yan nodded and added, This is still the ideal situation. With the Song family's size, we have to be prepared for a protracted war. Chen Yu nodded slightly. These circumstances, too, were largely within his expectations. You guys have done a good job. Prepare to get ready. And within one month, take over all the Song family's properties. Chen Yu spoke faintly, his expression calm. The four of them, however, all jumped up with a loud bang as if they were electrocuted. Everyone was appalled. My little ancestor, did you just listen to us? When we say three or five years, that's a pretty aggressive estimate. Now you're saying you'll end the Song family in one month? What the hell is this? That, first, sir, are you mistaken? That's the Song family. Zhao Gu opened his mouth to remind. Gong Yin frowned, her face puzzled. Sir, could it be that you have some kind of ace in the hole? Chen Yu laughed. You'll all know when the time comes. He was already at the foundation establishment realm's great success. According to the current rate of cultivation, within a month, he would definitely be able to reach the foundation establishment realm perfection. At that time, his strength would once again skyrocket, and he would no longer need to act with too many scruples. Even if the Song family is destroyed, it's no big deal. As for the Inhuman Bureau, he didn't worry too much. If they can be fair and impartial and stay out of the matter, so be it. If they really have to take Song Pengcheng's side, then it's just a mess. What does one have to fear from the sky and the earth? Seeing Chen Yu looking like this, the four of them looked at each other, seeing how shocked they were with each other. Is this, is this going to be a death sentence for the Song family? Okay, I'll go get ready. Yes, the four left the villa. Chen Yu stood on the mountain and looked at the scenery in the distance. Song Yao, soon we'll be able to meet each other. What you did to my mother back then, I will pay you back a thousand times over. Chen Taiyi, I want to see with my own eyes what you really look like. The day passed quietly. The next day, Chen Yu hadn't been up for long when he received a call from Sun Xiandao. Chen Yu, come quickly, the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau is here. Oh, is it about me? Not bad. Song Pengcheng submitted recorded information. And the Dragon Country and Human Bureau sent an investigation team to investigate you. On the other end of the phone, Sun Xiandao looked haggard and full of helplessness. Chen Yu ah. You can't be impulsive anymore, count on me to beg you. Bow your head and admit your mistake. It's the best way out for you. Chen Yu didn't care and just smiled faintly. Wait until I get there. After going out and taking a taxi, it didn't take too much time for Chen Yu to arrive at the Jiangling Provincial Inhuman Bureau. It's the same conference room. It's full at the moment. All the members of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province were present. Besides them, Song Pengcheng also arrived. This time, however, Song Pengcheng did not sit in the main seat. Instead, he sat on the side. Above the main seat was a thin old man with a goatee. On the phone, Sun Xian Dao had mentioned this person to him, head of the criminal hall of the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau, Hu Mei. He is extremely rigid and ruthless, and is also an innate master. Beside Hu, there were four other people, the entire staff of this investigation team. Yo, little comrade Chen Yu is here. Song Pengcheng leaned against the back of his chair, shaking his legs, and opened his mouth with a smile. Elder Hu, this is Chun Yu, he's formidable. Humi narrowed his eyes and looked Chun Yu up and down. You are Chun Yu? Humph, what audacity. As the house dignitary of the Inhuman Bureau, you have no regard for the rules, and you have violated your superiors from below. Chun Yu, do you know your offense? Hugh let out a broken cry, and waves of sound rolled out. The people present only felt that their hearts seemed to have stopped violently at this roar. This roar of Hugh's was called the Secret Sound Lion's Roar, a method of sonic attack. If it is light, it can shock the human heart. If it is heavy, it can directly break the human heart chakra, and it is very terrifying. Hume's words were also meant to give Chen Yu a head start. Only, Chen Yu did not care in the slightest. He pulled over a chair and sat down with a big grin, crossing his legs and looking across the conference table from Hume. Seeing this, 
The crowd's pupils shrunk and they sucked in a breath. Sun Qiandao was even more filled with anxiety. Humei is here on behalf of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. Chen Yu how dare you do this? Song Pengcheng let out a cold snort. The corner of his mouth hooked up. Kid, keep being arrogant. The more arrogant you are, the worse your consequences will be. He swept his eyes at Humuo. And sure enough, Humuo's face was ugly. Chen Yu's behavior clearly did not place him Humei in his eyes. The following offense? Ridiculous. You were never considered tops in my eyes. Tell me, what are you going to do? The corners of Hu's eyes jumped straight out of the corner of his eyes, and anger churned in his chest. This kid, he's so arrogant. Chun Yu, if this is your attitude, then I see that an investigation is unnecessary. From now on, you, the first prefect of Jiangling province, don't be. Wow, everyone in the Jiangling province and human bureau all rose up. Elder Hu, please also think twice. Chen Yu is young and impetuous. He didn't mean to contradict you. Yes, please don't be angry. Elder Hu. Sun Qian Dao and the crowd of the Jiangling Provincial and Human Bureau had a word from you and a word from me. Pleading on behalf of Chen Yu. Shut up, all of you. Snap. Hu Mei slapped his hand on the table. And the aura of an innate patriarch suddenly erupted. Sun Qian Dao and the others. Only felt as if a huge mountain had violently pressed down. Filled with thick pressure. His throat seemed locked. And he dared not say a word more. If the old man is trying a case, how can he allow you to talk too much? If anyone is talking too much, don't blame me for taking them down together. Hu Mei's eyes glared, filled with dominance. Song Pengcheng smiled and applauded. Elder who is wise. Gentlemen, you must remember your identities. You are the people of the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province. The investigation team came. We have to do a good job of cooperation. What do you look like now? Hurry up and sit down and don't interfere with the investigation team. After saying that, Song Pengcheng looked towards Chen Yu with a soft grunt from his nose. Little thing, fighting me? You have no idea what it means to be in officialdom. What it means to be in a position of power. Idiots full of nothing but muscle. Do you really think that you and humans can be lawless in this world? Innocence. Today, I'm going to give you a good lesson in what it means to be powerless. Chen Yu, what else do you have to say? Humi looked towards Chen Yu and opened his mouth to inquire. Chen Yu shook his head, his face full of unconcern. This first mansion dignity was originally meant to be given to me by you, and it's up to you if you want to take it back. I have a question for you. Though, what's the problem? Hu spoke in a cold voice. Chen Yu raised his hand and pointed at Song Pengcheng. If I waste him now, what does the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau plan to do to me? Boom! The room seemed to explode with heavenly thunder. Sun Qiandao and the others were dumbfounded. Mi Chao? What did he say? Here, waste Song Pengcheng? Oh my god! Does he know the identity of Song Pengcheng? Scrapping Song Pengcheng, this was a head-on confrontation with the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. If he really wanted to do that, where would there be room for him in the Dragon Kingdom? Huben also froze. Having been in charge of the criminal hall for so many years, he had seen many arrogant people. But the one like Chen Yu was the first one. Ha 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 ha, you're going to waste me in front of Elder Hu? Song Pengcheng couldn't help but laugh repeatedly, as if he had heard a big joke. Chen Yu ah. What should I say about you? Brave, reckless, or brainless? Do you know what it means to make a move against me? And what the consequences are? Looking at the openly laughing Song Pengcheng, Chen Yu's face was like water, not moved in the slightest. No matter what the consequences are, I will definitely waste you. The feud with the Song family had been going on for a long time, although he had wanted to do it before. He was not strong enough for one thing. On the other hand, it was also dragged down by the status of the first house dignitary. Now that there is no such heavy restriction, it is a matter of having a grudge and taking revenge. As for consequences, it's already come to this. So if you hold back and leave like a dog, what's the point of cultivating immortality? If Song Pengcheng is killed, what if he's the enemy of the world? Past strength has to be slowed down a bit. But with his current strength, where in heaven and earth could he not go? The big deal was to hide and dive into cultivation, and then kill back again one day. Nowadays, although he wasn't completely above the rules, he wasn't something that the rules could completely restrict. Hearing Chen Yu's words, Song Pengcheng froze, his heart panicking for no reason. Things, it seemed, were a little different than he thought. Those people he had met in the past, as long as he used some means, the other party would always have such and such scruples and finally submit to him. But at this moment, he suddenly had a feeling. It seems that one's unrivaled power play has lost some of its effect. Humph. Big talk, do you think I'm a poser? Humi's face turned blue as he coldly looked at Chun Yu. Chun Yu looked Humi up and down and smiled faintly. Pretty much, you've got a good idea of where you stand. You're reckless. Snap. Humi slapped the table with a popping sound. 
His whiskers and hair were all agape as he glared at Chen Yu with a blood-red look in his eyes. Who is he? Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau, head of the criminal hall, looking at the entire Dragon Kingdom. Which of those feudal officials and top experts were not existences with their eyes high above the ground, overlooking all living beings? But who doesn't cower at the sight of him, not even daring to take a breath? There had never been anyone who dared to scorn him like Chen Yu did. But just as he was raging, a sudden aura flashed through his mind. Ha, huh, this kid's got the wrong attitude. How can he be fearless? Was he really not afraid of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau? No, that's not possible. There was no way he would actually dare to go against the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. Within the Dragon Kingdom, no inhuman has this kind of courage. Unless, of course, he has defected to a foreign power? No, if that were true, then he would be even more afraid to make a big deal out of it. What the hell was that for? Staring at Chun Yu, who may narrowed his eyes as his mind raced. The next moment, his eyes flashed with clarity. I get it. That was intentional on his part. For no other reason than to save face. It's just poor pride to put out these harsh words. He would never dare to make a move, but would instead play lip service to me. The better to make us all nervous that he would actually make a move here. When the time comes, I'm bound to threaten him with the Dragon Kingdom in Human Bureau. Even, in the process, he would cross my path a time or two. In the end, he said that for the sake of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau, he would no longer make things difficult for Song Pengcheng. That way, even if he left, he wouldn't be too embarrassed. Once the news got out, it would not only do no harm to his prestige, but would be of great benefit. Let the world think that he, Chun Yu, has no fear at all. This was much better than being taken away from the position of the first prefectural sovereign and leaving in a sorry state. It's a disguised attempt to get back on the scene by my hand. Good boy, you got me in on this? Hu Mei's mind raced, thinking that he had seen through Chun Yu. Immediately, a cold smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Trying to trick me? Kid, you're too young. Since you want to save face, I'm just not going to give it to you. I have to make a fool out of you. Suppressing the fire in his heart, Hugh clasped his hands in front of his chest, the corner of his mouth rising with a touch of teasing. Fine, since you say that old me is a poser, then old me will be a poser. Come on, take on Song Pengcheng. If you dare to do it, I will never stop you. And the Dragon Kingdom and Humans Bureau won't come after you. How's that? Hugh spoke faintly. No matter how tough you act, you still don't dare to make a move. Now that I've said that, if you don't do it, what face do you have? Sun Qiandao and the others were confused. What the hell is that about? What's with the sudden change in style? Song Pengcheng was also dumbfounded. Elder Hu. This. He's scared. What if Chun Yu really made a move on him? Humi gave Song Pengcheng a wink and secretly transmitted his analysis. At those words, Song Pengcheng's eyes flashed. So it is. Not bad. Although he is an innate master. How would he dare to really make a move against me? The five provinces inspector of this dragon kingdoms and human bureau? He, for pity's sake, is trying to save face. With this thought, Song Pengcheng no longer had any fear. Smiling at Chen Yu, Song Pengcheng pointed at himself. Come on, little comrade Chen Yu, get your hands on me and waste me. Bright sunlight, spilling through the windows throughout the conference room. A piece of light. The scene, however, was dead silent. The only dust in the air is the dust that dances gently in the light. The sound of breathing seemed to have disappeared. Everyone was tense. Song Pengchang and Humei, however, were full of confidence. Aren't you trying to save face? Delusion. If you want to get out of here today, don't try to be decent. Be a lost dog. When the news of your dismissal spreads throughout the entire inhuman community of Jiangling province, you will become the laughing stock of the heavens. Sun Qian Dao lamented repeatedly in his heart. Chen Yu Ah, my little ancestor Ah, how do you so bar ah? Now, how can this end? Chen Yu didn't say anything, but just looked at Song Pengcheng with an odd expression on his face. This Song Pengcheng, is his brain not working well? Do you really think you won't dare? After a moment, he nodded. As you wish. Closing his fingers together, he swung suddenly. In an instant, five streams of light went straight for Song Pengcheng's limbs and penis. The stream of light was extremely fast, like yellow lightning. Song Pengcheng had no time to react. On the contrary, it was Hu Mei, whose face suddenly changed. Never in a million years did he expect that Chun Yu would actually make a move. Unbridled, with a violent roar, Hu Mei swung his palm. A berserk true chi suddenly surged, transforming into a green transparent chi shield that was 20 centimeters thick, blocking in front of Song Pengcheng. But, useless, the five streams of light went on unabated, and after hitting the air shield, they only slowed down slightly before penetrating through. Pust. A muffled sound was followed by Song Pengcheng's heartbreaking scream. Ah ha 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 ha. 
Song Pengcheng fell to the ground, and four bloody holes appeared on his limbs, which were bleeding. The crotch had also been thoroughly drenched in blood. The intense pain caused Song Pengcheng's features to distort and he was sweating profusely. Hala, everyone all got up and looked at the scene in shock, their minds going blank. Chen Yu, really made a move? Hume stared at Chen Yu in death, his mind in disarray. What's going on? Did he really do it? How is that possible? Didn't he say that on purpose to save face? Also, my defense just now didn't have the slightest effect? This guy, he's so strong? Humi was shocked and angry, frozen in place. Song Pengcheng stared at Chen Yu, his eyes bloodshot. Damn it! Damn it! This guy, this bottom-feeding cunt, how dare he? How dare he lay hands on me? Isn't he afraid of my background? Isn't he afraid of the power in my hands? Ah, my hands, my feet, my penis, I'm a wreck. Looking at Song Pengcheng, who was constantly wailing hysterically, Chen Yu was still filled with indifference. He continued to tap his legs, raising his chin slightly with a contemptuous smile. Song Pengcheng, do you really think that your power tactics will be useful to me? One force can break all laws. Since the beginning, your so-called official experience and manipulation of power, I have not put it in my eyes. You, overestimate yourself and underestimate me. Chen Yu's words were like a sharp sword, poking hard at Song Pengcheng's heart. He was shocked and angry, and infinitely more afraid. After decades in the bureaucracy, how come the power tactics he was so proud of had suddenly failed? At that moment, he suddenly thought of what a past leader had told him. Peng Chang Ah, power plays can play with people's hearts and make them submissive. But there is one kind of person that you must be careful of. Those kinds of people are pikers. They have nothing to fear, nothing to desire, and naturally they have nothing to fear. If this kind of piker also has an amazing background in strength, then he would be even more invincible. You must not be offended if you meet this kind of person in the future. The Chen Yu in front of us. Isn't he this kind of pimp? Song Pengcheng had infinite regrets rising in his heart at this moment. He then looked at Hume. Elder Hu, didn't you say he wouldn't do it? Hume's old face flushed and he coughed lightly twice. I've read countless people in my life, but I didn't expect to look away today. Hearing this, Song Pengcheng was so angry that he almost spat out a mouthful of old blood. You've been looking over your shoulder? You fucking looked away and caused me to be wasted by him ah. Ah ha. Song Pengcheng completely collapsed and hissed mournfully. Being invalidated today, his greatest hobby, playing with women, was completely out of the question. Life, suddenly, isn't interesting. Hugh turned his head and looked at Chen Yu, anger surging in his eyes. Fine, making a move on a high official of the Inhuman Bureau in front of me. Chen Yu you are simply lawless. Chen Yu smiled disdainfully. What, wasn't it you who told me to make a move just now, and also said that even if I do it, the Dragon Country and Human Bureau won't come after me, is it possible, that your words are farts? A remark that left Hugh speechless, just now, it was indeed he himself who said this, but damn, who would have thought you'd actually dare to do it, I didn't do it to make you look bad, no matter what, old me is going to make a move to teach you a lesson today, who may slam the table and let out a low roar as he blasted out a palm at Chen Yu. Powerful true chi instantly surged out, transforming into a pillar of light that blasted towards Chun Yu. No! Sun Shandao shouted in shock, but it was already too late. The light pillar completely blasted Chun Yu's chest. Hu was about to bloom a smile, but the next moment was a sudden change in color. Scared white as snow. Even. He got straight up and took three steps back before he could stand still. You, 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 pointing at Chen Yu, Hu Mei's voice trembled as he spoke. Across the table. Chen Yu was still sitting on the chair, his posture not even half changed. That strike just now did not bring any damage to Chen Yu. Not even the corners of his clothes were broken in any way. This scene scared Hu Mei silly. A strike from an innate master that didn't work? Sun Qian Dao and the others stared wide-eyed and secretly gulped. Holy shit, what was that all about? Chen Yu, are you okay? What? That's it? Chen Yu smiled gently and dusted off his clothes. He was pleased with this outcome. Sure enough. After the Foundation Establishment Realm's great accomplishment, one's strength had skyrocketed a lot. As the head of the criminal hall of the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau, Hume's strength was not second to Xing Qian Lei. If placed before, it would be impossible for one to receive this strike so easily. But now, even if he let him fight, he couldn't break his defense. Slowly getting up, Chen Yu turned around and walked outside. Seeing as the Dragon Kingdom Inhuman Bureau has maintained the peace and stability of the world's Inhuman Realm for so many years, I won't kill you today. Feel free to come at me however you want to deal with me. But next time, with a footstep, Chen Yu turned his head and looked at Hu Mei. If you want to fight for the Song family, then fight. After saying that, Chen Yu continued to walk towards the outside. 
Hu Mei hissed as he blasted palm after palm at Chen Yu. A pillar of light rained down on Chen Yu's back. However, Chen Yu was not affected in the slightest. Waiting for Chen Yu to leave the conference room, Hu Mei propped his hands on the conference table, panting heavily, his face full of shock and despair. What? What kind of monster is this? My full force attack. Break. Can't break his defense? In the conference room, Song Peng Chang's miserable screams were unceasing. Hu propped his hands on the table, his face full of shock. Sun Qiandao and the others had been dumbfounded. Everything that happened today took them by surprise. I didn't expect Chen Yu to actually make a move. I didn't expect Chen Yu to be so strong. This kid, really, really monster. After holding his tongue for half a day, Sun Qiandao couldn't help but open his mouth. Chen Yu, Chen Yu ah, old me will never let you go. Never. Hu Mei yelled angrily and kept pounding the tabletop. He then looked at Sun Chen Dao, huffing and puffing. Sun Chen Dao, this is your no, one prefectural dignitary of Jiangling province, so majestic, so domineering. Sun Chen Dao looked at Hu Mei and smiled coldly. Hall master who is serious, if I remember correctly, he has already been removed from his position as a prefect by you. If we're talking about majestic and domineering, how does he compare to you? I'm not pretending. I'm playing a head on hardball. At this moment, Sun Qian Dao was no longer polite. The various mannerisms of the two of them, Humi and Song Pengchang, made him very uncomfortable. No matter what, he was also the director of the Inhuman Bureau of Jianling Province. And there's no mistake. So what's there to fear? Humi froze and looked at Sun Qian Dao in surprise, not expecting Sun Qian Dao to dare to treat him in such a manner. But after thinking about it, there really wasn't much he could do about Sun Qian Dao. Inside the Inhuman Bureau, the rules are strict. Although he was the head of the criminal hall, he had great power. However, it was also difficult to deal with a level like Sun Qian Dao, while others were subject to the rules. So was he. Good, good, good. I will truthfully report today's matter to the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. Hugh stared at Sun Qian Dao and spoke through clenched teeth. Sun Qian Dao was not afraid in the slightest and arched his hand. Be my guest. I will also report today's matter truthfully. We'll see if it's right or wrong. Humph. Hu Mei waved his sleeve and twisted his head. Song Pengchang shouted, Elder Hu, me, what about me? Hu Mian's feet lurched and he looked oddly at Song Pengchang. That, you get well and try to recover soon. Watching Hu Mei leave, Song Pengchang's entire body was dumbfounded. Getting well? Early recovery? How the hell am I supposed to recover from this? Can limbs grow back? Can the bird grow back? Ah, uh, Song Pengchang screamed even more miserably. Sniveling. Sun Xiandao and the others looked at Song Pengchang with odd expressions. Strange. Looking at him like this. What's with the inexplicable coolness? Hurry up and send Inspector Song to the hospital. Don't delay treatment. After sending Song Pengchang away, Sun Xiandao slapped his butt on the seat and let out a long sigh, rubbing his brows and being filled with helplessness. Chen Yu Ah, you've caused a monstrous mess this time, but no matter what, I'll try to help you. After taking a short break, Sun Xiandao tightened his fists. Someone, help me purchase a plane ticket to Dragon Capital. I want to go to the headquarters of the Dragon Country and Human Bureau. The Song family. Song Yuan too typed on his cell phone with a smile on his face. Yao Yao. Just don't worry. That brat can't make any waves. Don't you still believe in Peng Chang's methods? Ha ha. So what if that Chun Yu is even more powerful? Isn't he still being held to death by Peng Chang? Just rest assured. The Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau has already sent an investigation team. And it was Hu Mei who personally came. That Chun Yu. It's over. He he. Your second brother has gone through so many storms. How could Chun Yu be his opponent? Good. When you come back, let's go to Feng City together and visit the bitchy mother and daughter. Wu Xiaolan and Chen Yu. Ha 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 ha. Hanging up the phone, Song Yuan Tu hummed a little song and rhythmically slapped his thighs. It's a beautiful day. Just like my mood. Just then, the butler came flying in. Master. Master is bad. Something big is wrong. Song Yuan little song was interrupted. And he couldn't help but frown with an ugly face. I say, old Zhang. What's wrong with you lately? Why are you always taking risks when doing things? What big thing is bad? I see today's things are very good. Not in a hurry. Slowly say, in the end what happened? Old Zhang gulped and stomped his feet in a hurry. Master. It's second master he. He was injured by Qin Yu. Song Yuan too didn't care in the slightest. Picking up his teacup and taking a sip. Oh, injured? Oh, it's good to bruise. It's a heavenly offense to offend below. This must be a deliberate act by Peng Chang, to force Chen Yu's hand by provoking him to do something to further expand the situation. Oh, Peng Chang this child ah, when he was young, he was especially smart, with brains and means. Hey, it's a pity that he's too dashing and doesn't have a son or daughter. After this incident, 
We must force him to have a child. We can't let the fine genes of my Song family be cut off. A smile appeared on Song Yuento's face. Say, is Peng Cheng seriously hurt? Should we let him take two days off and rest at home? Song Yuan too wasn't worried in the slightest. With Hume around and in the inhuman bureau of Jiangling province, how big a deal can it be? Maybe, it's just a scratch or something. Old Zhang shook his head frantically, his face red with anxiety. No, no, the second master. He, his limbs were broken, and he was also sterilized. Now he is lying in the hospital law. Ah, oh, I told you it wouldn't hurt much. No, I chow. You, what did you say? Song Yuan too subconsciously opened his mouth. But he felt something was wrong before he finished his words. He jumped up and grabbed the old Zhang by the collar. Dead wide-eyed. Master, the second master is ruined. Ruined. Old Zhang's voice was mournful as he told all that had happened. Boom. Song Yuan too only felt like five thunderbolts had struck him, and his entire body was dumbfounded. He took several steps back and slapped his butt on the couch, his eyes losing focus. What's going on? My son. Wasted? Isn't who may here? Why didn't he stop it? Chun Yu. This dog, how dare he make a move on Pun Chang? Ah, my son. Quick, get to the hospital. Song Yuan too let out a scream and rushed to the hospital. After seeing Song Peng Cheng lying on the bed, Song Yuan too felt a wave of heavenly rotation. Doctor, I, how is he? My son? The attending physician let out a long sigh and shook his head. Mister, Song's limbs have been wasted and he'll be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Also, his reproductive system has been completely destroyed and he won't be able to staff up for the rest of his life. Every word was like a thunderbolt, wildly exploding in Song Yuento's head. Dad, I'm done, I'm done. Song Pengcheng cried loudly, incomparably desperate. Originally, he had a great future, powerful and scenic. It was thought that Chen Yu was nothing more than a fish on a chopping board, to be slaughtered by him. Who would have thought that it would end up like this? Chen Yu, I want you to die, I want you to die. An angry growl resounded throughout the ward. Today's events quickly spread throughout the inhuman world of Jiangling province, and even more so to the Dragon Kingdom Inhuman Bureau. Everyone was dumbfounded. Chun Yu, is this going to break the sky? In two days' time, the news of Song Pengcheng's invalidation had spread throughout the entire inhuman world of Jiangling province. For a while, public opinion was all over the place. The forces, from all sides, were terrified. Su Ming City, a city in the northern part of Jiangling province, as the junction of three provinces, Xuming people are tough and extremely martial. Many ancient martial arts sects are hidden in Su Ming. At this moment, a small hill on the outskirts of Su Ming City. Two old men were sitting under an ancient pine, leisurely playing Go. Old ghost, what do you think Mr. Chan was thinking? How dare he make a move on Song Pengcheng? An old man in black landed upon, his brows furrowed. On the opposite side, the white-clothed old man's face was expressionless as he similarly landed a son. Shouldn't someone like Song Pengcheng be taught a lesson? Have you forgotten about our old ancestor of the four wild sect? The old man in black cupped the chess pieces, his hand frozen in midair. A moment later, he sighed quietly. How can I forget? Back then, the old ancestor had half a foot in the innate master realm, and because of him, his Tao heart was destroyed in the end and he died of depression. The four wild sect, also a well-known ancient martial arts sect in Su Ming City, the old ancestor they spoke of was Li Wanshan. Li Wanshan was talented and his martial arts cultivation was extremely deep. Having reached the edge of returning to the innate afterbirth, in search of a breakthrough, he traveled around and realized life. It was in Jinchuan City that Li Wanshan saved a drunken young girl who was almost taken away. Later he realized that this little girl was actually looked at by Song Pengcheng. And because of this incident, Li Wanshan offended Song Pengcheng. In the end, Song Pengcheng used all sorts of means to suppress the four wild sect, and even forced Li Wanshan to kneel down and apologize in public. Because of this, Li Wanshan was so grief-stricken and angry that he failed to make a breakthrough and died. It's just that Chun Yu was too bold this time. Scrapping Song Pengcheng in front of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. What do you think will happen to him? Consequences? To do such a thing? I'm afraid that the entire Dragon Kingdom won't be able to tolerate him. If he dies, I will go to his grave and deliver a pot of strong wine. Old man. To him. I will go forward with you. There should be more people like him in the Dragon Kingdom. Both men fell silent as you and I dropped the word the banks of the river and the sea. A middle-aged man had his hands behind his back, looking away from the boundless sea. Behind him, a young man was filled with curiosity. Master, you've been standing here for half a day since you heard about Mr. Chun. Why? The middle-aged man let out a long sigh and said, Master is worried for Mr. Chun. Worry? But you and him? Master, don't know each other. Although we don't know each other, 
Our hearts have been yearning for it for a long time. Mr. Chen has done what we dare not do. Martial artist, martial artist. If you don't have a lone courage, what kind of martial artist are you? I've heard of that Song Pengcheng person a long time ago. Mr. Chen fought well. Well fought. Some people praised it. And naturally, some people despised and disdained it. Ha! What an idiot to do such a thing. It's really asking for death. TSK, young people, they are just indolent. Thinking that just because they have a bit of skill, they are not afraid of the sky and the earth. Offended the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau? This Chen Yu also has a bad brain. Really think that strength can be greater than power? Naive. Because of what Chen Yu had done, the entire inhuman world of Jiangling province had set off a large tsunami. All forces were discussing how the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau would deal with Chen Yu. The prevailing opinion is that Chen Yu is dead. This kind of offense will never be taken lightly by the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. Jin Chuan City, Purple Moon Stardust Residence, Villa 1. Chen Yu sat in the living room and looked at the few people in front of him, his eyebrows lightly raised. In the room, there were two other people besides him. One was Sun Qian Dao, the other was an older man in a suit. The old man was hale and hearty, with his back straight and a bun on his head. Sun Qian Dao sat beside him, his hands on his knees, respectful as if he were an elementary school student. The old man, on the other hand, kept sizing up Chen Yu with curiosity and amazement. Hello Chen Yu, let me introduce myself. My name is Yi Tsongsheng. I'm the head of the Special Affairs Division of the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau. This time, I'm here for the matter of Song Pengcheng, which is under my full responsibility. Yi Tsongsheng spoke softly, not a trace of fire could be heard. It was as natural as two old friends chatting and talking. Chen Yu nodded and laughed. I thought you guys would just arrest me, but I didn't expect you to be quite polite. Yi Tsongsheng smiled faintly and waved his hand. I've heard the cause and effect. You were too impulsive but it wasn't enough to put you under arrest. Blinking, Yi Tsongsheng flirted. If I wasn't in the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau, I might have even given you a nod. I can't stand the sight of Song Pengcheng's various doings. Chun Yu froze and looked at Yi Tsongsheng with great surprise. This guy's words really surprised him a bit. Yi Tsongsheng then spoke. Of course, it wouldn't be so polite to talk to you if that was all there was to it. There are two main factors. Chen Yu raised an eyebrow and said, I wish to hear more. Yi Tsongsheng raised a finger. First, you are strong, much stronger than we expected. We assessed it and realized that if we really had to do it to you, we'd have a lot to lose, and we may not catch you and push you out of the country. Chen Yu didn't say anything and just looked at Yi Tsongsheng. Yi Tsongsheng then spoke. Secondly, you have taught the four dragon dignitaries, Shen Yu Wan Chang, Du Sun, An Xia, and Zhu Xiao. After those four learned about you, they all let it be known that if they moved you, they would flip out. Chen Yu froze and shook his head with a smile. Rather, he did not expect that these four dragon zoons of the Dragon Kingdoms and Human Bureau would help themselves at this time. The third and most important reason. Yi Tsongsheng stared straight at Chen Yu. Chen Yu, you are a patriotic person. Earlier when Suzunan University came for an exchange, it was you who secretly wasted Iganoyo, wasn't it? You thwarted the Sakura Nation's plot and have great merit. And people like you, we call. Comrade. Chen Yu understood. Worthy of being the Dragon Kingdoms and Human Bureau. If they did all these things by themselves, they could completely find out everything if they wanted to. So, what are you going to do with me? Just let me go? Chun Yu smiled and inquired. Yi Sunshing shook his head. You acted too violently this time, and there's no way you can just let it go. To tell you the truth, the Song family is very powerful. They are still very energetic. Up there, those people, they want to deal with you very much. But, the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau didn't agree. It's just that despite that, after gaming the game, we had to make some concessions. So, you need to go do something. Chen Yu nodded, understanding all of this. What do you need from me? Yi Songqing's face suddenly changed, incomparably grave and serious. Even, there was a touch of grief. This matter is related to Xing Qian Lei. Xing Qian Lei is dead, dead in the Sakura Kingdom. Boom! A single sentence caused Chen Yu's mind to be shaken. Criminal Thousand Thunder. Is he dead? What the hell is going on? How did he die in Sakura Country? Chun Yu had some difficulty believing it. Earlier on the Jin Chuan River, although he hadn't used his full strength, he had fought a painful battle. Criminal Thousand Thunders for Extinction Thunder skill was also domineering enough. If it wasn't him, if it was another innate sect master, it really might not be able to resist. Later on, when Criminal Chan Lei was defeated, the reason why he himself did not kill him was also because in those past years, Criminal Chan Lei fought bloodily for the Dragon Kingdom against the Cherry Blossom Kingdom. He can be spared from death for his service to the country. 
It was also after that battle that criminal Chan Lei said he wanted to go to the Sakura country, but I didn't expect that it hadn't been a long time since then, and that criminal Chan Lei had already died. AI, the criminal public is a thousand years old. Yi Songsheng let out a long sigh, looking sad. Chan Yu, do you know the stories of the inhuman realm's past? Chen Yu shook his head. Technically, he was an immortal cultivator and not in the inhuman realm circle. There was a flash of remembrance on Yi Songsheng's face. In former years, foreign enemies invaded and the land was devastated. It took a bitter war to get us to where we are now. At that time, the Dragon Kingdom in Human Realm didn't stay out of it either, and had fought a bloody battle with the Sakura Kingdoms in Human Realm to the point of insanity. Chen Yu nodded. For what Yi Songsheng said, although he had never seen it, he could imagine it. And right now, what I'm telling you is that the world has never really been peaceful. Yi Songsheng's face straightened and a grave look emerged. As my Dragon Kingdom's fortunes rise and prosper, it will naturally cause many covets. They do not want to see us strong. So explicitly and implicitly, the two sides have been killing each other constantly. Yi Songsheng suddenly got up and walked to the door, pointing out the door with some excitement. Shan Yu, look at this world today. Although he still has a lot of imperfections, compared to decades ago, it's like one day at a time. How many people have thrown their heads in blood in exchange for all this? We, we must not let the people of the Dragon Kingdom, go back to those times. Our people should stand tall and should live with confidence and vigor. Shen Yu was somewhat emotional. From Yi Songxing's body, he could see the imprint of that era. Don't worry, it's come this far and will never go back. Shen Yu opened his mouth to advise. Yi Songlong let out a breath, a little embarrassed. I'm sorry to make you laugh, it doesn't matter. You mean that criminal Chan Lei's trip to the Sakura country was not only for the sake of past grudges? Chen Yu frowned and opened his mouth to inquire. Yi Songxing nodded. Not bad. This time, criminal Chan Lei traveled to Sakura country with a clear goal in mind. One is the younger generation of the Sakura kingdom, and the other is the older, stronger generation of the Sakura kingdom. Killing the younger generation is to break their roots, and killing the older generation of powerhouses is to weaken the Sakura kingdom's high-end battle power. In a short period of time, Criminal Chan Lei killed 17 young Sakura nation experts, as well as 6 Picotian and 2 innate masters. Chen Yu's pupils shrank and he could not help but let out a sigh of emotion in his heart. Criminal Thousand Thunder is really a fierce man. Such a record is not to be taken lightly. Sort of killed it from top to bottom. And how did he die? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. He was ambushed. There was a touch of sadness on Yi Songxing's face. After you secretly killed Iga Nokuma, Iga Kubi of the Iga clan went mad with anger. Later on, after learning about what happened to criminal Chan Lei, he had wanted to pull criminal Chan Lei against you, but he was trolled by criminal Chan Lei for half a day. In the end, the IGA family secretly joined with other forces on their side to ambush and kill criminal Chan Lei, using a female Chinese student as a lure. Chen Yu sniffed and was silent for a long time. Did he have any last words? Yi Songxing paused and said, I heard that before he died, criminal Chan Lei had laughed and cursed IGA Kubi and the others. It was also released that the Dragon Kingdom has you. You will, one day, be the king of Sakura and step on them. Chen Yu froze, and there was suddenly some indescribable feeling in his heart. To be fair, he wasn't considered a friend with interchiral thunder. But I didn't expect that criminal Chan Lei's last words would be about himself. And, to report so much hope and confidence in myself. Nonetheless, it should be a fellow feeling. So, what do you want me to do? Looking at Yi Songsheng, Chen Yu returned to the topic. Yi Songsheng was silent for a long time before he slowly spoke. We need you to travel to the Sakura Kingdom and retrieve the body of Interchiral Thunder. In the end, the killing of criminal Chan Lei was for the consideration of the Dragon Kingdom, and he could not be allowed to be buried in his country. But the matter cannot be put on a pedestal. After all, it can only be done privately. Chen Yu nodded. That much he understood. Anymore, after all, criminal Chan Lei had killed so many people on the other side. He was still somewhat justified. Where is his body? It's parked in the IGA family's Noonan Hall. Yi Songsheng's face turned serious as he said, This time, it's dangerous for you to go to the Cherry Blossom country. Do you know who designed this plan to ambush criminal Thousand Thunder? Chen Yu froze and said, Not the IGA family? No, this ambush plan is most likely the work of the Song family's oldest ancestor. Song Minghong? Song Minghong? Chen Yu was stunned for a moment. It was a name he had never heard before. Not bad. Song Minghong? Song Yuantu's grandfather, is now over a hundred years old. Many years ago, he broke through the innate realm and resided in the Sakura country for a long time. And the reason why the Song family was able to get to where they are now also has a lot to do with him. As a matter of fact, Song Minghong's relationship with the inhuman community in Sakura country has always been unclear. 
The above has long wanted to investigate the Song family, only that there has never been any clear evidence, coupled with the heavy resistance. This has been put on hold. This is also one of the reasons why the reaction from above wasn't as strong when you made a move on Song Pengcheng. Chen Yu narrowed his eyes, very slightly surprised. Originally, he thought that although the Song family was huge, it was nothing. It doesn't seem that way now. This Song family, it's very likely that they're a bunch of eaters ah. Chen Yu, this time, the reason why they deliberately kept the corpse of criminal Chan Lei is also a bait. And the fish they're trying to catch is you. Yi Songxing looked at Chen Yu and continued to explain. Domestically, there was a push for you to travel to the Sakura country to bring back the corpse of Inter Chilei. Abroad, they were already prepared for you to die in the Sakura country. So, this mission, it's very dangerous. You have three days to think about it. If you refuse, there will be a penalty for you, but it will never hurt the fundamentals. Yi Songxing looked at Chen Yu with anticipation and worry, expecting Chen Yu to be fearless, but fearing that something will happen to Chen Yu in Sakura country after he really goes next. Chen Yu shook his head and looked at the sky outside the door. There's no need to think about it. I'm going to Sakura country to bring Inter Chire home. I'm taking him home. One sentence made Yi Songxing freeze. He looked at Chen Yu in a daze and suddenly rubbed his eyes. Geez, I'm getting old, and the wind is hard on my eyes. Yes, 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 holding Chen Yu's hand tightly. Yi Songsheng spoke, this time, I'm counting on you, take criminal Chen Lei, home. Chen Yu nodded and looked at Yi Songsheng's hand with a somewhat emotional expression. Yi Songsheng, also an innate master, had the strength of a thousand pounds when he shook his arms, but at the moment, he was trembling. Chen Yu suddenly had a realization, perhaps, this is our dragon nation. It doesn't matter how much trouble you make at home, but when facing outsiders, sorry, no one can bully us. Yi Songsheng left. Chen Yu let out a long breath and looked at the distant sky with his hands behind his back. Sun Shen Dao looked at Chen Yu with a face full of worry. Chen Yu, you, you really want to go to the Sakura country? Aha, uh -huh, that's a dragon's den. No harm done. It just so happens that I've only seen Sakura Nation girls on movies before. So it's a good idea to check them out live. Chen Yu grinned and opened his mouth to snicker. You've seen that little movie too? Sun Shen Dao subconsciously opened his mouth. Then his old face turned red and he coughed heavily. Chen Yu froze and looked at Sun Qian Dao oddly. Elder son, you're playing quite fancy here. Ahem, never mind the details. After saying that, Sun Qian Dao's face was solemn again. When are you going to move? It's better to do this sort of thing sooner rather than later. Tomorrow, is there anything I can do? It's not necessary. Well then, if you need anything, feel free to ask. After chatting with Sun Qian Dao for a while longer, Chen Yu rushed back to Jiangling University of Science and Technology. He had already made an appointment with Xiao Yunyue before to go to the library to read books together. Just in time to get here now. In the midst of the university, youth abounds. The two walked side by side on the clean, straight, wide road. The willow trees on both sides swayed gently in the wind. And the sunlight shed dappled light through the branches. The young people coming and going on the road cast strong envy on Shen Yu and Xiao Yunyue. How about we go on a spring trip tomorrow? Xiao Yunyue made a suggestion. Chen Yu Dao's. I'm sorry. I'm going to make a trip to Sakura country tomorrow. Hey, why are you suddenly going to Sakura country? Well, go destroy them and bring freedom and democracy to them. Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Xiao Yunyue skimmed her mouth, clearly thinking that Chen Yu was bragging. Then you have to be careful. Oh, I heard that the last time they came to our school to exchange inside that Suzunin University, they were all injured, and one was killed. I heard that person was also an IGA ninja. You don't want them to know you're from our school. Otherwise you're screwed. Chen Yu laughed and said, when I go, the first thing I'll do is to end the old home of the IGA ninja. Che, just brag. Xiao Yunyue finished her sentence and then whirled around with a curious look on her face. But you said, at the time of the exchange, who exactly was the high person Luo Zhan was talking about? In these days, the school forum discusses this every day. And there are people who ask Luo Zhan face to face. And they all come up with nothing. Chen Yu pointed at himself, didn't I tell you a long time ago? I'm that tall man ah. Xiao Yunyue, can we talk properly now? You're not talking to me. Hey, these days, no one believes me when I tell the truth. I'm really high up. Chen Yu spread his hands out, his face full of helplessness. All right, since you're going to Sakura country, remember to stop by and get some makeup for me. So, I became a substitute? Well, it's a drop. I'll transfer the money to you on WeChat then. By the way, there's one more thing. Xiao Yunyue suddenly came to Chen Yu and stared at him with incomparable seriousness. The internet says that guys like to watch little movies from Sakura Nation. But you can only watch the movie, not experience it. The corner of Chun Yu's mouth twitched viciously. 
This little girl, what is she thinking? Spinning around, his eyes rolled and he too came up. So, why don't you let me experience it? Yikes, hooligans. Xiao Yunyue was like a frightened bunny, jumping away quickly, her face red. Wait until you get back from Sakura country. Xiao Yunyue clutched the book with both hands and ran along, swaying. Chen Yu stroked his chin and narrowed his eyes slightly. Well, some time, to eat this little ninny up. In a day's time, the news of criminal Chen Lei's death and Chen Yu's trip to the Cherry Blossom Kingdom spread rapidly. The inhuman world of Jiangling province had completely boiled over. Originally, there was a flurry of speculation about how the Dragon Country and Human Bureau would dispose of Chen Yu. Now that the results are out, there is an immediate shock. Traveling to Sakura Country? Isn't that looking for death? The Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau is really ruthless. This is forcing Chen Yu to die. TSK, TSK, this way of handling it is indeed highly skillful. He he he, I wonder if he can still be as arrogant as he was at home when he arrives in Sakura Country. Over in Sakura Goku, he'll be taught to behave. The Song Family. Shun Yu, Shun Yu, wait for death. You wait for death for me. Sakura Country, will be your burial place. Song Yuan Tu sat on the living room sofa, squeezing his teacup with one hand, his knuckles a morose white. Time passed quickly, and the night passed in the blink of an eye. Early in the morning of the second day, Chun Yu arrived at the Jinchuan International Airport and took a flight to Sakura Country. The two places weren't that far apart, and after more than three hours, they had landed. A man and a woman were waiting with bated breath at the exit location of the airport. Both of them, it seemed, were in their early to mid-thirties, rather ordinary looking, but with eyes that were very sharp. They kept pacing back and forth, turning their heads three steps at a time, looking toward the exit with a flash of excitement. What kind of character is that Mr. Chen, do you think? The woman inquired curiously. The man gave him a blank look and said, How would I know? The only thing I can say for sure is that he's got too much guts. Coming here, isn't it looking for death? The man sighed and shook his head helplessly. The two were named Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin, both overseas staff members of the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau, and had been in the Sakura country for several years. Yesterday, the two had received orders from the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau to act as Chen Yu's guides in the Cherry Blossom Kingdom, taking care of some daily affairs. As a staff member of the Dragon Kingdom's Inhuman Bureau, Sakura Nation wouldn't make a move against the two of them. But Chen Yu was different. Just by setting foot on this land, you are already shoulder to shoulder with death. While the two were chatting, a number of travelers were already coming out of the exit. Chen Yu came out with the flow of people and saw two people who were holding up signs and looking around. He came to the two men and said hello. Hello Mr. Chen. The two hurriedly bowed and looked curiously at Chen Yu in front of them. So young. Did he really do all that great stuff? It's incredible. After a brief greeting, Meng Shuang inquired, Mr. Chen, what are your next plans? Chen Yu looked around and slowly opened his mouth, leaving the two confused. Sakura Nation, Kyoto Mall, a wide variety of things are available. Chen Yu was at the cosmetic counter, holding a shopping list, and was frantically sweeping up the goods. The shopping list was compiled by Xia Yunyue and given to Chen Yu. There are a lot of nice cosmetics in the Sakura country which are harder to buy at home. Since Chen Yu was here, he naturally had to use this free labor. Behind them, Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yan were carrying a dozen or so handbags, stuffed to the brim. The two of them had odd faces, still somewhat unable to believe it. Brother, let's just say, what are we doing here? What a way to grab Xing Qian Lei's corpse. What a tense and exciting thing to do. Shouldn't we find a place to talk it over and make a plan? Even, as soon as you arrive in Sakura country, you should hide immediately to prevent being caught ah. What's going on here? Shopping at the Kyoto Mall with a big smile? Where are the defenses? Where's the tension? We're cooperating with your operation. Not doing this kind of thing. This script is not fucking right. Looking at what was in their hands, the two of them could not cry. That, Chen, Mr. Chen, let's hurry. Sun Yin Yin still didn't hold back and hurriedly walked over to Chen Yu's side, nervously swept her eyes around, and opened her mouth in a small voice. Chen Yu was holding a bottle of makeup remover and froze at the words. Why are you going so fast? I haven't finished my shopping yet. This is Sakura country. Sun Yin Yin's tone intensified quite a bit. Chen Yu nodded. I know. So all the more reason to get more while you're at it. You guys don't know. My girlfriend is at school. But she's clamoring for me to bring something back for him. Since he had come, he naturally had to fulfill Xiao Yun Yu's wishes. If he didn't buy it now, he wouldn't have much of a chance after recapturing Xing Qian Lei's corpse. Woman, girlfriend, school, the corners of the two men's mouths twitched hard. This guy, is he really an innate chief grandmaster? He's shaken the dragon kingdoms in human bureau? Why does that sound so unreal? 
Seeing that Chun Yu had no intention of leaving, the two could only follow along. At the same time, there were a dozen or so customers all around. Although they appeared to be purchasing goods, but they were all intentionally or unintentionally looking at the three of them. Chun Yu, they, all of them, were scouts from various forces in the Sakura country, the IGA family, the Koga family, and the Black Dragon Society. As early as when Chen Yu arrived at the Kyoto airport in the Sakura country, scouts from various forces had already received the news and were secretly trailing and monitoring along the way. After all, Chen Yu was an innate master, and according to the intelligence, Xing Qian Lei was not even its opponent. Now that he's here, naturally no one dares to slow down. And the news of Chen Yu's arrival at the Kyoto Mall was also passed back to the various forces, the IGA family, a wooden martial arts room. The room was large, with a thick tatami floor. Other than that, it's empty. A dozen or so people dressed in black ninja attire sat on their knees. On the left chest of the dress, the word IGA is embroidered. At the very front, IGA Kyuubi's face was cold and condensed as he slowly swept over the crowd. According to the news, Chen Yu has arrived in Kyoto. There was a commotion at the word. Although they had never met Chen Yu, they had all heard of his deeds. The shock Xing Qian Lei had given them was not yet over. I didn't expect Chen Yu to come again. This time, Chen Yu has come for Xing Qian Lei's corpse, so he will come to our hall of slaves. We must be completely prepared. We must not let him leave Sakura country alive. IGA Kyuubi gritted his back teeth in a pit. Iga Noyo, his own son who was so good. Ah, he was killed by him. Unforgivable. Absolutely unforgivable. Hi. A dozen people yelled in unison, their voices echoing more than a few times in the room. Knock knock. At that moment, there came a knock on the door. Come in. The door to the room opened and a masked man dropped to one knee and arched his hand. My lord. Scouts have transmitted Chun Yu's whereabouts. Oh, where did he go? IGA QB hurriedly pursued the question. The rest of the room tensed. Chen Yu was an innate master, and after arriving in the Sakura country, his every move touched the nerves of everyone. The masked man hesitated slightly and said, they went to the Kyoto Mall and are now buying cosmetics. Nani? IGA QB jumped up with a tingling, his eyes wide with disbelief. The others were dumbfounded as well, feeling a wave of absurdity. Nima, aren't you here to snatch the corpse? What does it mean to go shopping? What the hell is buying makeup? We're here as if we're on the edge of our seats, racking our brains, thinking about how you'd act. What about you? You went to the mall with a big grin? Do you have any fucking regard for us? The people of the IGA clan were all furious. Damn it, this asshole, he looks down on us, Sekshu, how dare you underestimate us like that, kill, he must be killed so that he will know reverence, IGA Kyuubi's eyes were red and he was breathing heavily, it was a full half minute before he calmed down, taking a deep breath, he waved his hand, go, invite those people over to discuss important matters, those few people were the same few forces that had previously ambushed Xing Chen Lei together, hi, the masked man let out a low gulp and quickly left, IGA Kyuubi's fists clenched, Chun Yu, you will pay the price for your arrogance. An hour later, Chen Yu bought everything and left them all. As payment, Chen Yu also bought something for each of the two. The Rokoku and Human Bureau has an office in Sakura Nation. The two men directly brought Chen Yu over. And inside the IGA family's parlor, sandalwood incense wafted languidly with smoke. The four sat still and silent. They, all of them, are big shots on one side. Koga School, Black Dragon Society, Society of Extreme Evil. Izumo Shrine. It could be considered the top group of forces in the Sakura country. It was also them that designed to ambush and kill Xing Qian Lei. IGA Kyuubi sat at the top, looking at several people with a frown on his face. It was a long time before he broke the silence. Several people. Chun Yu is here. A few words that had a special kind of magic power, causing a few people to look slightly moved. I'm sure a few of you already know that Chen Yu headed to the Kyoto Mall to do some shopping after coming to the Sakura country. What do you guys think? IGA QB opened his mouth to inquire. Several people spoke in turn. Oh, it's just a trick. It's called shopping, but it's really a means to do it to us. Not bad. It's a small trick to provoke us just to fish in troubled waters. It's psychological warfare. No need to be concerned. Hearing those words, IGA QB nodded. After calming down, he thought the same thing. Chen Yu could never really be going shopping. He did it solely to provoke us. As for the purpose? It must be to make preparations to snatch Xing Qian Lei's corpse. Don't know exactly how he's going to act yet, but surely that's why it's not running. Then how do several of you think Chen Yu will snatch Xing Qian Lei's corpse? Several people looked at each other and spoke at the same time. Tweak the tiger and make a nighttime raid. IGA QB grinned. Not bad for all smart people to think of one thing. That's right. Chen Yu would never dare to fight hard head on. What he most likely did was to use some means to lure all the experts away. 
then make a surprise attack in the night. Chun Yu, you're too naive. Same time, Meng Shuang and Sun Yan Nian asked Chen Yu the same question about what kind of plan they planned to set to recapture the corpse. Chen Yu froze, his face oddly colored. What more plans do we need to make here? Just go straight to the door and rob it. Up, door to door robbery? Meng Shuang and Sun Yan Nian's eyes widened and they stuttered. Brother, are you all right? Do you know where we are? This is Sakura country. What a home base for people. The place where the body of criminal Thousand Thunder was parked was bound to be heavily guarded. You're just going to rob it? Can you not be so arrogant? That, Mr. Chen. Ah, I think we'd better think long and hard. Meng Shuang opened his mouth to persuade. Sun Yan Nian nodded frantically. Yes, 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 Mr. Chen you probably don't know. The ninjas of the Sakura country, they're strong, very strong. The two of them frantically persuaded Chen Yu, hoping to disabuse him of the idea. No need to say anything, I've already decided. Tomorrow at noon I'll go and recapture the corpse of criminal Chen Lei. Just show me the way when you guys get there. Chen Yu finished speaking and left. It's a rare trip to the land of cherry blossoms, so it's a good time to wander around. The two men looked at each other with a long look. Hey, this, what can we do about this? It's already a difficult thing to do. And Mr. Chen even has to go and seize the corpse in broad daylight? Sun Yan Nian's face was full of sorrow. Meng Shuang did the same, shaking his head helplessly. But suddenly, Meng Shuang's body shook as if he had thought of something. Do you think it's possible that Mr. Chen, he, is deliberately going to snatch the corpse in broad daylight? Hey, what do you mean by that? Sun Yan Nian froze, somewhat confused. Meng Shuang said excitedly, think about it, that group of people from Sakura country, when do they think Mr. Chen will go to seize the corpse? It's a no-brainer. Surely a normal person would take advantage of the night, when the guards are lax. Yeah, I know. Sun Yan Nian let out a cry of surprise. Could it be that Mr. Chen guessed what they were thinking in the Cherry Blossom Kingdom, so he did the opposite? Nice, it must be. Meng nodded doubly. How can Mr. Chen be an ordinary person if he can have such achievements at this age? How could he be so reckless as to be so stupid as to rob someone in broad daylight? Inevitably, the actual situation has been fully considered. And that's why such decisions have been made. Sun Yan Nian got excited and nodded her head in agreement. Yeah, 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 it must be like this. Worthy of being Mr. Chen Ah, to think about this level. Yes, it's ridiculous that we thought that Mr. Chen was too impulsive just now. But now it seems that it's simply that we're too shallow in our ways and didn't comprehend Mr. Chen's intentions. He he, you're pretty good too, brother Meng, to have guessed Mr. Chen's thoughts? Meng Shuang sniffed and proudly puffed out her chest. With that, he looked at Chen Yu's departing direction, filled with admiration. Hey, after all, it's a ruthless person who dared to come to Sakura country alone, to be able to have a little bit of synchronization with Mr. Chen's thinking, it's considered that I've made some progress. Get ready, it's not going to be a good day tomorrow. Both of their faces were much more grave, no matter what the wisdom, tomorrow is going to be a bad one. Whether Chen Yu is alive or dead will be revealed tomorrow. That night, the IGA clan once again contacted the four directions of power to discuss matters regarding Chen Yu. Several people commented, how to arrange to set up traps, how manpower is equipped, how about an ambush, prepare what kind of weapons. It can be said that almost every detail, they have considered to the extreme. IGA QB looked around the room. Murderous. Gentlemen, the knight is Chen Yu's friend. He's bound to come and steal the corpse by night. We have to be on our game. The IGA clan has always had the weakest defense in the southern side gate. Chun Yu will definitely break through there. When the time comes, we'll lay a dragnet there. A few people nodded, full of sardonic smiles. I'd like to see if this innate master of the dragon kingdom will kneel before us and beg for mercy. He he he, as long as he dares to come, he'll definitely know that the Sakura country is not a place where he can be reckless. With our deployment, all he has to do is come, and he will surely die. Several people discussed the matter all night until sunrise in the east, when they each left. Early the next morning, Chen Yu slept until fully 10 o'clock before getting up leisurely. After washing up and eating briefly, he was ready to head to the Hall of Slaves. Go, Chen Yu greeted, and Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin immediately responded in a loud voice, their faces full of admiration. Going solo into the dragon's den and wisely choosing the best time to strike. Awesome, just awesome. Chen Yu froze. What's wrong with these two guys today? Why are you looking at me funny? Shaking his head, Chen Yu no longer thought much about it and rushed with the two to the IGA family slave man hall, the Hall of Slaves, also known as the Hall of Hong Kong. Among them were placed the masters that the IGA clan had killed as a way to show their majesty. Mr. Chen, in the Hall of Slaves, 
it is rumored that a number of Dragon Kingdom experts are included. All of them are people that the IGA clan killed in the Dragon Kingdom during those years of blood and fire. On the way, Meng Shuang opened his mouth. Chen Yu's face turned slightly cold as he nodded. No words on the way. Soon, the three arrived at the entrance of the IGA family. The IGA family is not a building, but a village within a city. All the core members of the IGA family, the captive dead soldiers, and the disciples who have joined the IGA school, all live here. How do we get in? Soon Yan Yan looked up, a little nervous. Meng Shuang frowned and said, The south side of the IGA clan has the weakest defense. We can start there. When the time comes, sneak in and wait for the opportunity to steal Xing Qian Lei's corpse. What do you think, Mr. Chen? Chen Yu shook his head. No, just take the front door. And another thing you got wrong. I'm not here to steal. I'm here to rob. Leaving behind the two people who were dumbfounded, Chen Yu took a big step towards the main entrance. Meng Shuang and Sun Yan Yan looked at this scene dumbfounded, blinking their eyes, somewhat bewildered. Just, just like that? God, are you that arrogant? What do we do now? Sun Yan Yan swallowed and opened her mouth to inquire. Their original mission was to do a good job of assisting and advising Chen Yu in retrieving Xing Xian Lei's corpse. There was no requirement for them to enter the IGA family, but from the time Chen Yu arrived in the Sakura country until now, they had done nothing but lead the way. Now that Chen Yu had forced his way into the IGA family, it left Sun Yin Yin somewhat at a loss for words. It was appropriate not to go in, but in that case, it didn't seem like the two of them had played much of a role. Meng Shuang gritted his teeth and watched as Chen Yu took a step towards the main gate of the IGA family and cursed in a low voice. Grass, I'll regret it for the rest of my life if I miss something like this. I'll go check it out. Sun Yin Yin's complexion was also a bit tangled. Go for it. It could be life-threatening. Not to go, but to miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Finally. Sun Yan Yan stomped her foot fiercely and quickly followed Meng Shuang. The two accompanied Chen Yu, striding towards the main gate. Stop, who are you people? Just as they reached the main entrance, two people suddenly flashed out, staring coldly at the three of Chen Yu with cold eyes. Both were dressed in power suits with masks over their faces and a taijutsu on their backs. Embroidered on the chest of the power suit was a small silver sword. Nakanishi, Meng Shuang let out a low cry. Ninjas are a specialty of the Sakura country, like martial arts. There were grades according to strength. Apprentice, lower ninja, middle ninja, upper ninja, heavenly ninja. Between each level, the strength gap is not small. Chen Yu looked up and the corner of his mouth gently hooked up. The dragon nation. Nani, Baka, no Rukoku or dogs allowed. Get out. Although the language was spoken in the Sakura country, several people understood it. Meng Shuang and Su Yan Yan's faces immediately changed. What kind of era is this? This guy, to be able to say such things? Naked discrimination. You guys, deserve to be killed. Chen Yu narrowed his eyes slightly, carrying his hands behind his back as he took a step to continue walking forward. Seek death. Seeing Chen Yu not stopping in the slightest, the two immediately drew out the long knives in their hands and slashed straight at Chen Yu. The long knife was extremely fast, without the slightest hesitation at all. To them, the law is nothing. Coming here, they are the only law. Chen Yu still took one step without stopping, as if he had not seen the long knife at all. Strangely enough, the two of them suddenly stopped just as the long knife reached the halfway position. Immediately afterward, two heads flew up and two columns of blood shot up into the sky, like a salute to welcome guests. Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin's pupils suddenly shrunk, on someone else's turf. Just kill? Man, what a burst of tactics. Moreover, he didn't even see how Chen Yu made his move at all. In the midst of the shock, Chen Yu had already walked through the gate. The two men looked at each other and hurried to follow. The village of the IGA family is overall very similar to the shinobi village in the anime. The entire village was surrounded by a ring of walls. Once you enter the gate, the sky opens up and building after building appears in front of you. However, it was much smaller in size compared to a real shinobi village. Do you know where the Hall of Slaves is? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire, and Meng Shuang shook his head. The IGA family has been rather closed, and we don't have a lot of information about them, either. So, Chen Yu rested his chin in his hand and after thinking about it, he made a fierce grab at a large tree not far away. The tree trembled violently, and a ninja hidden in it was grabbed in the air by Chen Yu and grabbed by the throat. Hiss. The two men sucked in a breath of cold air, looking at the small silver sword on his chest. This was another Nakanabu. Just now, the two hadn't noticed this person at all. Meng Shuang, ask him where the Hall of Slaves is. Ha, huh? oh, okay. Meng Shuang returned to her senses and immediately started asking in Sakura when he knew the directions. Chen Yu nodded and with a twist of one hand, he sent this Nakanabu to the Yellow Springs. Throwing it casually, Chen Yu greeted, Let's go. 
The two men looked confused. Brother, it's, it's not good to kill an Akanabu in someone's house and just throw it away like garbage. That, Mr. Chen, should we take care of it? This person was found out then. Meng Shuang opened his mouth to remind. Chen Yu shook his head and said indifferently, no harm done. It was meant to be a village slaughter today. Them, think of it as the paper money I gave to Xing Qian Lei. Slaughter the village. The two men's hearts and minds jumped hard at the news. The two men's scalps tingled as they looked at the large IGA family. Man, Mr. Chen is trying to stir the pot. Not daring to speak, the two of them followed Chen Yu and continued on their way, pointing straight at the slave man hall. Along the way, the trio also encountered many ninjas, lower ninja, middle ninja, and even two upper ninja. Every time he met, Chen Yu had only one action, wave. Every time he waved his hand, heads flew up. Soon, there were a number of sprawling bodies lying on the ground. Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yen were both stunned, breaking their heads. They didn't expect that today would be such a scene. Walking around randomly in other people's homes and exterminating one as you come across it. And every time it's still full of clouds and just a casual wave of the hand. It's not fucking arrogant anymore. This is total lawlessness. Both of them were originally prepared to fight to the death. But now, easy enough to be as laid back as an after dinner walk. This, this is Mr. Chen, my, my god. Sun Yen Yen covered her mouth and looked at Chen Yu with little stars in her eyes. Meng Shuang gulped and looked at the corpses all over the ground, his face incomparably odd. I never thought that one day we would be running rushout over the IGA clan like this. Mr. Chen is really smart, choosing to come during the day, so there really isn't much obstruction. While marveling, the two of them admired Chen Yu even more. Just as Chen Yu's trio was killing everyone, the southern gate of the IGA clan, one shinobi after another was hiding in every corner with their ninjutsu. These people, all of them, were on guard against Chen Yu's arrival. However, according to the inference, Chen Yu would not come over until the evening, so the crowd was in a more relaxed mood. There were even a few ninjas who were secretly communicating, exploring how to use their ninjutsu to get Chen Yu killed. Innate master? So what? It was nothing in the face of the great Sakura no Kuni shinobu. Just as he was getting bored, a sudden shrill, ear-piercing honk resounded throughout the IGA clan Shinobu village. For a moment, the crowd's color changed drastically. What happened? Damn it, why is the warning bell ringing? Or the special emergency warning bell? Not only at the south gate, but everyone in the IGA clan, was taken aback. The warning bell, a special setup of the IGA family, it was on standby during the weekdays, and would only go off to notify everyone when the entire family was in a critical situation. Depending on the ringing, warning bells are further categorized into four event levels, normal, expedited, emergency, and special emergency. Special emergency, representing the danger of village extermination. Just as he was surprised, an announcement spread to all corners of the IGA clan. Chen Yu infiltrated. Chen Yu infiltrated. Currently located on Wandering Soul Street. Heading towards the Hall of Slaves. He's heading towards the Hall of Slaves. A message that left everyone confused. Nani? Didn't Chen Yu come at night? How dare he come here in broad daylight? You haven't gone through the south gate yet. You've gone through the main gate? Why isn't this guy following the rules? At the south gate, the upper shinobi hidden in various corners showed up and converged in one place, surrounding a large, one-eyed man. Sanju Kuan, what should we do now? IGA Sanju, a top-level shinobi and the person in charge of guarding the southern gate. Though seemingly rugged, he has a delicate mind and is ruthless. He contributed a lot to the murder of Xing Qian Lei. Looking in the direction of the Street of Wandering Souls, IGA Sanju's face was cold and heavy. Quickly send a message to the head of the family, informing the head of the family and several other gentlemen to come back with all due haste. All the top ninjas go with me. Let's use our ninjutsu to tell him that this is not the Dragon Kingdom. It's not his turn to be arrogant. Roar. The crowd roared at the top of their voices and followed IGA Sanjo, rushing towards the Street of Wandering Souls, Sakura Country, within a secluded mountain resort. IGA Kyuubi and the others were gathered here, enjoying a delicious lunch and chatting with each other. Chen Yu wouldn't come over until the evening, and during the day, they planned to meet up again to discuss the progress. This time, the top experts from all the major powers had gathered here, a celestial ninja comparable to an innate master and the number one powerhouse in the society. Everyone was in good shape, and a few light laughs came to mind every now and then. It seemed that Chen Yu was already bound to die. Jingle bells. IGA Kyuubi was in the middle of a conversation when the phone rang. Moxie Moxie? Nani? Chen Yu is here? In killing my people. Tun Lung? IGA Kyuubi stood up abruptly. His eyes rounded and his face unusually ugly. Kyuubi, what's going on? What do you mean Chen Yu is here? IGA Kyuubi gritted his teeth. His eyes red. Damn it, 
Chen Yui came at noon today, is on a killing spree in our family. The faces of the crowd suddenly changed, revealing shocked expressions. I thought he wasn't coming until the evening? Damn it, how dare he come to rob a corpse in broad daylight? I didn't expect ah, this kid is so cunning. He must have guessed what we were thinking, so he did the opposite. Let's go, since he's here. It's the perfect time to kill him and use him as our next meal. Not bad, right away. He must be trying to make a time gap and take advantage of our absence to grab the corpse and escape. We must not let him go. The group immediately moved off and rushed to the IGA family. The IGA family. This moment has been like hell on earth. Shen Yu passed all the way here, and all along the way were the corpses of the IGA people. Soon he came to the end of the street of wandering souls. Up ahead, the hall of slaves. Just as he took a step, he gave a slight lurch and raised an eyebrow, with a light grasp in the void. The air, which was originally not special in any way, was distorted. A masked man was then in his grasp. The man raised his knife with one hand and made a downward chop. Looking horrified, on the chest of his shirt, a small golden sword was embroidered. Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yan's faces changed. Shinobu, an existence comparable to the peak of the Hotian. Is this the art of endurance? A blindfold? Smiling, Shen Yu pinched his five fingers and only heard a crunching sound. The man was lifeless. He casually flung the man like a discharged cannonball into a large tree not far away. Bang! A muffled sound. Seemingly ordinary tree. Suddenly a person was smashed out. All the tendons and bones around his body were broken. It looked like he was not going to live. This person had used a ninjutsu technique to conceal his form. Preparing to wait for an opportunity to make a move against Chin Yu. I didn't expect that he would be seen through by Chin Yu and directly smashed him to death with someone. Baka. It was at this moment that a person suddenly emerged from the ground. He raised his sword with both hands and stabbed diagonally upwards to sneak up on Chen Yu. Idiot. Shen Yu's expression did not change at all as he pressed down with one hand and collided with the tip of the blade. With a crisp pop, the long sword in the man's hand snapped in inches. Right in the middle of his shocked gaze, Shen Yu pressed his palm on the top of his head, directly nailing him into the ground again. Almost at the same time, hundreds of streams of light came from all directions, completely enveloping Chen Yu. Sword in hand, and it's coated with a powerful poison. Chen Yu stood in place, not moving at all, and only gave a gentle wave. All the shuriken then returned the same way, several times faster than a moment ago. A scream rang out. The previous attackers were killed in every way. Chun Yu looked around and frowned lightly. All jumped up clowns. Die. One hand was raised. And in an instant, dozens of streams of true essence erupted from its palm, blasting in all directions. All the ninjas hidden in the shadows were completely killed or injured under this move. Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yen stood dumbfounded, looking at the ground full of corpses. The two were completely confused. Those, just now, were the elite of the IGA clan. Just, just like that? One for one? My god, is Mr. Chen that good? The two looked at Chen Yu with eyes full of admiration. Chen Yu didn't feel much. He was now at the great completion of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Killing these people was not much more difficult than slapping a mole cricket to death. The three soon entered the Hall of Slaves. Throughout the Slave Hall, there were many spirit seats placed at high and low levels. The spirit tablets are not quite the same as ordinary tablets, and are overall very large, with a lot of cherry blossom text carved into them. In front of each spirit level, there is also a small black ceramic jar. Sun Yen Yen had learned and read them in order. Defeated General Gong Sun Bai, peak Hotian expert of the Dragon Kingdom, killed by Agawa in Zayajaya's Wang, took his skull and entered the new Ren Hall. The defeated General Ing Fian, a peak Hotian expert of the Dragon Kingdom, was heavily raped by Aigishan in front of her husband? who later beheaded his entire family on the banks of Huai Bin and took the dead fetus in his belly to be admitted into the slave hall. The defeated general Li Xiao Xiao, a peak Hotian expert of the Dragon Kingdom, will have his five limbs chopped off by Ig Chingda, kill his family in his face, and take a piece of his finger bone into the hall of slaves. Sun Yen Nian's blood pressure spiked up as she read. Here, the past sins of the Iga family are recorded. That's enough. No more reading. Chen Yu interrupted Sun Yen Nian. Take the body of criminal Chan Lei and go. The hall of slaves was not large, and the body of criminal Chan Lei was parked in the corner. Ascended masters, because they had returned to the present day from the latter day, were able to maintain their appearance in life for a long period of time, even after they had died. Chun Yu looked at criminal Chan Lei and secretly lamented. Criminal Chan Lei's body was covered in large and small wounds. The right arm was chopped off with just a bit of skin attached. A horrible stab wound spread from his left shoulder to his right crotch. Days. Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yen both sucked in a breath of cold air. Just by looking at these wounds, one could imagine what fierce battles criminal Chan Lei had experienced in front of him. 
Chen Yu didn't say anything and silently held up the coffin of criminal Chen Lei and left the slave people hall. Coming to the door, he looked at the slave hall and swung out with a palm. The hall of slaves collapsed and burst into flames. Mr. Chen, IGAQB and the others are probably coming back soon. Let's hurry. Meng Shuang opened his mouth to remind, full of admiration for Chen Yu. Go, why are you leaving? They're not back yet? They? The two froze and looked at each other in some confusion. Well, the IGAQB, and the ones who killed Inter Kyrii, a sentence that blindsided the two men. What does that mean? Does it? Mr. Chen, you, you don't want to wait for them to come back. Well, I'm going to use their heads to honor the sacrifice of criminal Thousand Thunder. Chen Yu spoke faintly. But, but didn't you choose to come in broad daylight in order to make a time difference? Why again? Chen Yu's face was a bit odd. What's the time difference? Come in the middle of the day because I'm going to sleep until noon. I just didn't realize that none of them were there. So I had to wait for them. Meng Shuang? Su Nian Nian? The truth is out. There was no scheming or deliberate choice at all. From the beginning, Mr. Chen never thought of avoiding them. He's, like, totally going for the hard recklessness. Let's go. Let's go wait for them at the IGA family's main residence. Chen Yu smiled faintly as he left the scene and arrived at the main residence of the IGA family. A quaint traditional Japanese building. It didn't take long for IGA QB and the others to arrive. Buzz. The car sped to a stop at the IGA family gate. IGA QB pushed open the door and jumped out of the car. Seeing the two headless corpses in front of him, his pupils shrunk and his eyes instantly turned red. Ah, uh, with a scream, IGA QB flew in. A few other people got off the bus and were shocked to see this scene. Looking at each other, the crowd rushed to catch up with IGA QB. The entire IGA family has been reduced to a purgatory. Above the streets, limbs were broken and blood flowed. The group arrived at the Hall of Slaves and found that the entire Hall of Slaves had been raised to the ground. Damn it, damn it ah, IGA QB roared up to the sky his forehead veins bulging. Beside him, the other people who had rushed here were all sucking in cold air. Chen Yu is so ruthless. I can't believe I copied someone's lair. This son's heart is really as deep as water. I didn't expect that the Dragon Kingdom had produced such a person. Caught us off guard by doing the opposite. The crowd commented. Chen Yu, I want you to die. I want you to die. IGA Kyuubi's body shivered. The IGA family's underbelly. IGA Anasuk, a heavenly ninja, also had a gloomy face at this moment. This time, when he went out to party at noon, he went with IGA QB. I never thought that the old home would be gone in the time it takes to eat a meal. Chen Yu must die, but not now. Looking around, IGA Anasuk's eyes glowed red. He's hit a time lag and is afraid he's already left the area. A few people next to him nodded. Indeed, he chose daylight because he feared being besieged by us. At this moment, he should have left. All we have to do is get together and kill him before he leaves Sakura country. IGA QB took a deep breath and nodded heavily. Chun Yu will definitely not be able to escape. He will be the first piece of my nun's hall's collection to be rebuilt. Everyone's face was filled with confidence. Killing Chen Yu was the nail in the coffin as far as they were concerned. If Chen Yu wasn't afraid of them, how could he deliberately avoid them? And Chen Yu wasn't scared because he couldn't beat them? IGA San, you guys clean up the current mess, and we'll be on our way. The president of the Black Dragon Society, Matsumoto Kawagai opened his mouth to inquire. No need. IGA Kyuubi shook his head. The most pressing task is to hunt down and kill Chen Yu. It's not too late to deal with these people from my IGA clan after killing Chen Yu. Looking at the wrecked scene, IGA QB clenched his cheeks. I'm going to bring Chen Yu's head back and show it to them. Please move to the main hall. We'll discuss together how to hunt down Chen Yu. A few people looked at each other and nodded. Soon, the group arrived at the door of the main hall. Just as he was about to enter, IGA QB's footsteps lurched and his pupils suddenly shrunk. The main hall is in the main seat. Chen Yu is sitting on it and is holding his cell phone, brushing the novel to read it. Next to them, Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin looked a little nervous. You, you, you. IGA QB's face turned red as he spoke through clenched teeth. The others looked at Chun Yu with slight curiosity. Who is he? Why is he here? They hadn't seen Chun Yu, so they didn't know that the person in front of them was their target. Yo, finally here? You guys have kept me waiting. Chen Yu put away his cell phone, raised his eyebrows and smiled gently. Baka. Chen Yu, surprisingly, you didn't leave. The bigwigs of the Black Dragon Society and several other forces froze at the words. Nani, he's Chen Yu, slaughtered the IGA clan? Why is he here? Didn't he leave already? Chen Yu slowly got up and stretched. Leave? Why should I leave before I've slaughtered you all? With a cold look on his face, Chen Yu said indifferently, I will also use your heads to accompany Xing Qian Lei's burial. Good, good, good. What a hero. Admire, admire. 
Suddenly, a man stepped out from behind Iga Kubi, speaking fluent Rukoku. The man had a white beard and hair, and his face had many folds. It was a smile, but the triangular eyes sunken into the wrinkles showed a touch of viciousness. Oh, you are? Chen Yu looked at the old man. The old man laughed and said, Old man Song Minghong. Chen Yu's eyes flashed. Song family's oldest ancestor. Song Minghong? TSK? I really didn't expect that you, a little doll, would know about old me. But it's also true. After all, you were bullied by that Song Yao girl for 20 years or so. It's not unusual to know me. Regarding Chen Yu's father, Chen Taiyi, Song Minghong also knew very well. To Chen Yu, this was a heavenly thing. But in Song Minghong's eyes, it was only as trivial as floating dust. After all, who cares about the feelings of a mole? If it wasn't for Chen Yu's sudden appearance, he wouldn't have cared about all of this at all. Why do you want to deal with Xing Qian Lei? You and he are both innate masters of the Dragon Kingdom. Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. Song Minghong froze at his words, then laughed out loud and couldn't help but shake his head repeatedly. The little friend is really young, but he still cares about the so-called bloodline family and country? He he, just as well. Today old me will teach you a lesson. Smiling proudly, Song Minghong said with his hands behind his back. In this world, there are no eternal enemies or eternal friends, only eternal interests. Xing Qian Lei's existence is not favorable to my interests, so he must die. As for bloodline nations, that's just a self-imposed framework. What national hatred? What does it have to do with me? Even if all the men of the Dragon Kingdom are killed and all the women are spoiled, as long as my Song family is unaffected. Anyway, no matter who wins, my Song family will be on top. Before Chen Yu could say anything, Meng Xuan was already furious. But those dragonborn who were killed were your countrymen. Compatriot? Song Minghong skimmed his mouth and smiled disdainfully. That kind of bottom tier trash is worthy of being my Song Minghong's compatriot? Like them, that's what counts as my countrymen. Pointing at Iga Kubi and the others beside him, Song Minghong spoke proudly. Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yen were so angry that their bodies were trembling. Shen Yu didn't say a word as he coldly looked at Song Minghong. Similarly, Song Minghong also looked at Chen Yu with a wide smile. Chen Yu, today, Six experts are joining forces to deal with you, so you have a card to play. With Song Minghong's voice, Iga Anasuk and the other four took a step forward and stood side by side with Song Minghong. Song Minghong, innate master, Anasuk Iga, Tenjin, the underbelly of the Koga school, Koga Yamaki, Tenjin, the Black Dragon Society's number one ferocious maniac, Kimura Jen, an innate master, the most evil in the history of the Society of Extreme Evil, Nagasawa God, the innate patriarch, Izumo Shrine's Grand Shriner, Haruaki Matsushima, the Ascended Master, a full six and eight patriarchs stared at Chen Yu in death. Chen Yu smiled gently and looked at a coffin on the side. Xing Qian Lei, I'll use them, as a sacrifice for you. Boom! With a burst of sound, the main hall of the IGA clan exploded, raising countless pieces of debris. Several streams of light rushed out of them and stopped in the square. Chen Yu stood in the center with the six and eight experts. Surrounding him, Meng Shuang and Su Yin Yin stood in the distance. Filled with worry, six and eight masters, the mere breath that had just been released made them feel almost suffocated, the kind of pressure that made their blood seem to freeze. Could Chen Yu really retreat in one piece when he faced these people? Across the room, Iga Kubi and the helmsmen of the various powers stood together. With their strength, they were not yet qualified to face Chen Yu head on. These people today are the underpinnings of the various forces. It's also the capital that they can look down on the Sakura country. A Miranate sect master of the Dragon Kingdom has caused us to make such a big fuss. Really, the president of the Black Dragon Society, Matsumoto Kawago, I couldn't help but feel emotional. A few of the others nodded in deep thought. On this scale, it's considered unprecedented. Previously, when Xing Qian Lei fought against them, at most, he only dared to fight one on two and retreat. When they encounter more than three people, they immediately retreat. Gentlemen, how long do you think that he will be able to hold out? How about, we make a bet? A man suddenly spoke, looking relaxed. A few others sniffed and froze before all agreeing. I bet 10 minutes. I'll bet 5 minutes. I bet 3 minutes. Ha! You guys think too highly of the dragon man. I bet he only has a minute. Hearing this, a few people smiled even more. Only Iga Kubi's face was blue as he stared at Chen Yu dead in the face. I hope he doesn't die too quickly, because then he won't experience despair and fear. He's going to die slowly and feel slowly. At the end of his words, Iga Kubi was trembling. Just at this moment, the situation on the field changed. Six people attacked Chen Yu at the same time. Song Minghong, innate master, the two of them, Iga Anasuk and Kobe Yamaki, swung their swords and slashed furiously at the same time. 
one on the left and one on the right. The two green-colored blades she blasted towards Chen Yu at an extremely fast speed. As the number one ferocious maniac of the Black Dragon Society, Kimura Jen majored in the physical body. With a roar, he swung a fist violently. The air was compressed to the limit, forming an air shockwave that blasted towards Chen Yu. Nagasawa God is known as the most evil in the history of the Ultimate Evil Society, and despite his small stature, he is no less vicious than Kimura Jen. He grabbed at the void with his five fingers, and a blood-colored flying claw flew towards Chen Yu. The Grand Magistrate of Azumo Shrine, Haruaki Matsushima, is dressed in a white magistrate's uniform with a tall hat. He made seals with both hands and recited words under his breath. Then he pushed his hands forward, and a dozen streams of light ran towards Chen Yu. The six people's attacks covered all sides, blocking off all angles. Awesome! Iga Kubi and the others rose up in alarm. Meng Shuang turned pale with fear, and soon Yen Yen directly covered her eyes, not daring to look again. Chen Yu had a relaxed look on his face, and there was even some curiosity on his face. It was honestly the first time he had encountered an innate realm expert from the Sakura country. Maybe there's something special about it. It's better to be careful. Chen Yu's mind moved, and with a low gulp, he mobilized the true essence in his body and condensed it into a protective shield. Boom! A popping sound. The six people's attack slammed into the shield at the same time. Terrifying smoke and dust instantly stirred up. The six men looked at each other the same and nodded in unison. Take advantage of your illness. This is a time to never relax. Kill. The six of them didn't stop for a moment and began to output wildly. A terrifying stream of light, like a storm, smashed towards Chen Yu. In the midst of the smoke and dust, Chen Yu held up his protective shield, his face full of oddities. Chen Yu did not feel anything at all as the attack bombarded the shield. This is the level of the Sakura country's innate masters? That bad? If it was one-on-one, -on -one, none of them were Xing Qian Lei's match. Wait to strike a little lighter first. Feel their way. Although his strength was not good, Chen Yu was still a bit curious and planned to take a look first. The frenzied attack lasted for tens of seconds. Matsumoto Kawagai and the others were all filled with admiration. What a magnificent sight. What incredible power. Sparasi, that's a famous scene. Our Sakura nation's strongest. So powerful. Who else could survive such an attack? Looks like we all guessed wrong. He didn't even have a minute. Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yen showed despair on their faces. Never in a million years would I have expected the IGA Anasuk 6 to unleash such a ferocious attack as soon as they came up. This was simply like six mobile batteries that were bombarding Chen Yu furiously. Mr. Chen, why are you so stubborn and refuse to leave? Meng Shuang slapped his thighs and shook his head repeatedly. If Chen Yu had left earlier, he wouldn't have ended up in such a situation. Sun Yen Yen was about to speak when her eyes suddenly whitened and her small mouth grew into an O shape. Meng, look, quickly look, Mr. Chen is fine. What? Meng Shuan was startled and immediately looked up. Chen Yu stood in the center of the field with a calm expression, not the slightest bit injured. For a moment, everyone was stunned. No way, Matsumoto Kawaga yelled, unable to believe the image in front of him. The six people were also shaken to their core. That round of attacks just now. This guy was unharmed? How the hell did he dodge that? Just as he was thinking about it, Chen Yu's figure flickered and had already disappeared in place. Appearing again, he was already in front of Iga Anasuk, and blasted out with a fierce palm. Hi! Iga Anasuk's eyelids fluttered wildly as he raised his sword with both hands and blocked horizontally with all his might. Bang! A huge force came. Iga Anasuk retreated a dozen steps, only to feel that the tendons and bones around the body seemed to fall apart, and the internal organs of the five viscera and six bowels of the body turned over. His face changed drastically, and his heart was appalled. What a terrifying power! Is this kid's full force strike so terrifying? Chen Yu frowned inside in his heart. After the breakthrough, his own 20% power was still too strong. It seems that to learn more about them, you have to push your power down a bit. Chen Yu took a step out and instantly arrived in front of Kobe Yamaki, slapping out another palm. Kobe Yamaki did the same with a block. This time he wasn't as bad as Iga Anasuk. He just swayed slightly. Chen Yu secretly nodded in his heart. Such force should be just right. As he was thinking, a violent roar came from behind him. Kid, don't be too cocky. Kimura Jen appeared behind Chen Yu. He was as tall as a small mountain, casting shadows that completely enveloped Chen Yu. The air made a sharp popping sound as he raised his fist and slammed it. Chen Yu raised an eyebrow and raised his arm to block. Filed under, the arms touched each other, surprisingly making a sound of gold and iron. Jen Kimura was filled with amazement. I didn't expect that there would be someone in the Dragon Kingdom whose physical body could compare to mine. Chen Yu skimmed his mouth with some disdain. This guy, underestimated himself. Right after clashing with Kimura Jen in a single blow, the remaining few immediately rushed in. 
The six of them surrounded Chen Yu and launched a frantic attack. Chen Yu's face was stoic as he circled the six. Matsumoto Kawagai and the others were joyful and confident. Meng Shuang and Sun Yin however, were already nervous to the extreme. Looking at this scene, Chen Yu will lose at any time ah. In the middle of the field, Chen Yu was somewhat helpless. It's so hard to get the power down to the same level as them. One slip up could kill them all at once. Their path, however, is pretty much understood. Boom boom boom. A loud noise echoed throughout the IGA clan. A building that was reduced to smoke and dust in the exchange of blows between several people. The six hissed continuously, using what they had learned in their lives. Light flashed chaotically, dragging out a terrifying stream of light. Waves of air fluttered and rolled up rocks through the air. Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin stood aside, looking dumbfounded. Heavens, Mr. Chen He, is actually this strong? Facing the attacks of six people, he was actually able to resist for so long? Good, so powerful. No wonder he was able to win against Elder Xing. Maybe, maybe Mr. Chen really did manage to escape. Meng Shuang clenched his fists and suddenly opened his mouth in excitement. Sun Yin Yin froze, and then her heart was also on fire and her face was red. If, Chen Yu was truly able to get out from under the siege of six people, what a feat that would be. If word gets out, the Sakura kingdom will be dishonored, and Chen Yu's prestige would reach an unimaginable level. IGA Kyuubi and the others had ugly faces. The anticipation of the two Meng Shuang people was exactly what they were worried about. At this moment, they were suddenly a little less confident. In case, Chen Yu really ran away. What then? Damn it, how could this Chen Yu be so strong? He's obviously so young. He must not be allowed to leave the Sakura country alive, or our face will be disgraced. He is a scourge. If we let him grow, who else will we be able to suppress him in the future? Looking at each other, the killing hearts of the crowd grew firmer and firmer. IGA Kyuubi took a step forward and shouted, Seniors, stop catfighting and use your full strength to kill Chen Yu. Never let him escape. When the six of them heard this, all of their bodies shook and their faces were filled with oddities. A cat playing with a mouse? With all your might? I'm sorry, but right now, we're at full strength. What shocked them even more was that Chen Yu was too comfortable and had too much combat experience. Their generation, having been baptized by blood and fire and having fought hundreds of battles, how rich in experience are they? The youth of today, even the likes of IGA QB, were severely lacking in real combat in the eyes of the six of them. Despite the empty strength, the real world experience is too poor. But Chen Yu was completely different. Obviously so young, but in this battle of life and death, the performance was so old-fashioned. Timing of moves, choice of stances, control of rhythm, control of mind, all of it, so perfect. It was as if, instead of a young man in front of him, it was a monster who had fought unceasingly all his life and killed his way out of a mountain of corpses. What made them feel even more incredible was that they actually had a feeling. It wasn't that they wanted to prevent Chen Yu from escaping. Rather, Chen Yu was preventing them from escaping. What a monster. IGA Anasuk had just finished speaking when he suddenly heard Chen Yu softly chant. It's almost time to finish. Nani? IGA Anasuk subconsciously opened his mouth, but his hand movements were not slowed down at all, and he slashed straight down. However, Chen Yu merely stretched out his two fingers and clamped the long blade. Hit the road. With a shake of both fingers, the long blade broke off in inches. In IGA Anasuk's shocked gaze, Chen Yu threw his backhand and the broken blade shot out, piercing through his heart. Pust. IGA Anasuk's body shook, and when he looked down, there was a bull-sized empty hole in his chest. A feeling of dizziness and powerlessness struck suddenly. He could feel that his vitality was draining away at a rapid pace. I'm, I'm dying? What's going on? Obviously just now. We and him, still in the middle of awe. As the thought flashed by, IGA Anasuk fell to the ground with a loud thud. His eyes darkened and he was completely lifeless. The five men of Kobe Yamaki had a shocked look on their faces. Never would I have expected such a sudden turn of events. The onlookers were also dumbfounded. What's going on here? Just now. The six were still evenly matched. How come? All of a sudden, Chen Yu had killed one person? IGA Kyuubi's eyes bugged out. What's going on? My IGA clan's backbone. The invincible Oni sword. IGA Kinsuk. Just, just like that, is dead? In the middle of the field, Chen Yu, however, did not give the crowd the slightest time to react. He didn't stop for a moment. And after killing IGA Anasuk, he turned around and threw a punch, blasting at Kimura Jen. Baka. Kimura Jen let out a roar and swung a similar punch, only to see that his arm instantly became pitch black and was fully twice as thick as it was a moment ago. A fist blasted out, and because of the intense friction with the air, it unexpectedly ignited a blazing flame, wrapping the entire arm in golden flames. At first glance, 
It looks as brilliant as a meteorite. Upanishad, Black Dragon Meteor Fist. The two of them, Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin, changed their faces abruptly. The Black Dragon Meteor Fist, they had all heard of it before. It's a top-notch boxing art, stripped down to extreme true karate. The martial artist uses his true chi to catalyze and burn his life, giving the user's arm strength and power beyond its limits. Even the heavy armor of a tank can be pierced through with a single punch. In the past, during the years of blood and fire, there was an innate master of the dragon kingdom who perished under this punch. Surprisingly, it has reappeared now. Can Mr. Chen block it? Chen Yu raised his eyebrows and snorted coldly, his face showing disdain. The fist that was blasted out, without the slightest change, clashed fiercely with Kimura Jen's black dragon meteor fist. Click. Ah, uh, the sound of broken bones rang out, followed by Kimura Jen's heartbreaking scream. As the crowd watched, Kimura Jen's arm exploded by inches, then the shoulders, torso, and head. With a single punch, Kimura Jen was blown into a mist of blood in the sky. Days. Meng Shuang and Su Yin Yin looked dumbfounded. A flat A from Mr. Chen. Breaking the opposite side's big move not to mention sending the opponent away? This, but right at this moment, Song Minghong, Koga Yamaki, Nagasawa God, and Matsushima Haruaki simultaneously blasted at Chun Yu from behind and on both sides. Bang! The attacks of the four men ruthlessly smashed onto Chun Yu. Koga Yamaki's long sword slashed at the back of Chun Yu's head. Song Minghong and Nagasawa God slammed a fist and a palm onto Chun Yu's shoulders on both sides. Matsushima Haruaki's five fingers grasped Chun Yu's back heart position. The four had just revealed their smiles, and immediately afterward, their hearts fluttered and they were almost stunned. What's going on? He, how is he okay? Not even a single strand of hair fell out? If the four of us join hands to strike, even an ancient Tyrannosaurus Rex would be beaten to a pulp. But how come he's not hurt at all? Chun Yu swept his cold eyes and said indifferently, You guys, you've disappointed me. Raising his arm, Chen Yu's palm faced downwards and pressed violently against the Nagasawa god. Not good. Retreat. Song Minghong yelled at the top of his voice. A few others were extremely fast, catapulting out like arrows. Nagasawa God also wanted to run, but he was shocked to realize that he was actually as if he was imprisoned, and it was difficult to move the slightest bit at all. His eyes were bloodshot as he raised his arm to hard receive this strike from Chen Yu. Click. A palm smashed down, and Nagasawa God's arms were shattered to pieces, and his entire body, like a nail, was smashed into the ground by Chen Yu, with only a head exposed. Nagasawa God. Dead. In just a few short breaths, the six experts, three of them had already died. On the scene, there was silence. Everyone was staring at this scene with white eyes, dumbfounded and completely dumbfounded. What? What the fuck is this monster? Song Minghong's face was pale. His heart contracted dramatically, and his hands and feet trembled uncontrollably. He, he hid his strength earlier. He's the cat. We're mice. He's the cat. We're the mice. When these words came out, the entire scene was dead silent. IGAQB and the others had their mouths open and their gazes frozen. What? What does this mean? Could it be that? Instead of us hunting him, he hunts us in this one? How could this happen? Everyone is an innate sect master. How can the gap be so wide? Meng Shuang and Sun Yen Yen had also frozen. Mr. Chen is a cat? Man, is that why Mr. Chen didn't leave? Got it. Now that's a complete understanding. In the middle of the field, Chen Yu raised an eyebrow as he looked at Song Minghong. Cat and mouse? Well, that's a pretty graphic analogy. Congratulations on recognizing reality. Now, all on your way. A single sentence caused the hearts of several people in Nagasawa God to suddenly contract, and the blood in their entire body seemed to freeze at this moment. Run, run. Song Minghong shouted at the top of his voice and had already transformed into a stream of light, rushing into the distance. Baka, kill. With a roar, Kobe Yamaki made a seal with one hand bit the tip of his tongue, and spat out a mouthful of blood towards the long sword. In an instant, a demonic red aura flashed above the long blade. Forbidden technique. Five elements transportation. Break the sky and chop. Kobe Yamaki instantly swung 108 blades in a single breath. 108 red blade ons rushed up into the clouds and sky, bombarding Chin Yu from all directions with a swooping momentum. This was a forbidden secret technique of the Kobe clan, using the cost of burning one's life to maximize the power of the chopping attack. What's even more terrifying is that this chop has a lock-on function. No matter where the opponent flees to, Chopper is able to give chase. However, Chen Yu did not have the slightest intention of dodging at all. Taking one step, Chen Yu pulled out a long string of phantoms and arrived in front of Kobe Yamaki. Pust. A punch blasted out, directly piercing Kobe Yamaki's chest. Kobe Yamaki froze, and in the next moment, with a fierce expression, 
He grabbed Chen Yu's shoulders. Come down to the Yellow Springs with me. As the words fell, all 108 blood-colored blade awnings blasted into Chen Yu's back. Only, it didn't work in the slightest. The incomparably sharp blood-colored blade awnings all crumbled as if they had crashed into impenetrable steel. No way. Kobe Yamaki deadpanned and lost his voice. He had already planned to sacrifice himself and kill Chen Yu before. But he didn't expect that his own attack that surpassed the limit couldn't even break through the defense? This young man, why is he so perverted? Kobe Yamaki was filled with despair. Chen Yu smiled faintly, and with a tremor of his arm, the Kobe Yamaki exploded into a roiling mist of blood. Chen Yu gently waved his hand, preparing to chase after Song Minghong. But just as he stepped out, his footsteps lurched, not far to the side. Matsushi Maharawaki was forming seals with both hands, his fingertips pointing directly at Chun Yu. Humph. Chun Yu, I have to say that your fleshly body is very impressive, but you're not qualified to act recklessly here. My divine soul attack. Let's see how you can resist it. Forbidden technique. God's ghost heart slaughter technique. Hearing this, Iga Kyuubi and the others all had their pupils drastically shrunk. The legendary God's ghost heart slaughtering technique. Heavens, I didn't expect to see this kind of secret technique one day. The usual attacks are directed at the physical body. As for the divine ghost heart slaughter technique, it was formless and faceless, a means of directly attacking the divine soul, which was extremely rare. The caster is able to use this to directly probe into the other party's divine consciousness, obtaining the other party's memories, and at the same time erasing the other party's divine soul. The means is extremely domineering. I thought that I would definitely lose this time, but I didn't think that Matsushi Maharawaki would use this kind of tactic. Now that's a win for them. Only, before he could be happy, Matsushi Maharawaki suddenly let out a miserable scream and retreated several steps, looking at Chun Yu in horror. You, it can't be, it can't be. Chen Yu smiled faintly and said, Looks like you saw it? Well, is it a surprise? Is it unexpected? Just now, Matsushi Maharawaki had seen Chen Yu's memories with his divine ghost mind slaughter technique. Just after reading it, he was confused. What the hell is the Skype system? There are immortal emperors in this world? He's an immortalist? The Foundation Establishment Realm Grand Achievement? What's going on? We're fighting an immortal? How can we win? Looking at Chun Yu's smile, Matsushi Maharawaki despaired. There's no way we can win. There's no way we can win. Muttering, Matsushi Maharawaki suddenly pulled out a dagger and cut himself on the spot. There is no fear for the ignorant. But once the brutal truth is known, the unparalleled despair is enough to destroy one's will. Instead of dying at the hands of Chen Yu, it would be better to end himself. For a moment, everyone was confused. Iga Kyuubi and the others had their eyes glazed over. I'm yet. Suicide? An innate master. Scared to suicide? Just now. It was clear that he had the advantage and used a forbidden art. And the next moment it's just crunching itself? What the hell happened? What did Haruaki Matsushima see? Everything, everything is a mystery. Chen Yu glanced at Iga Kyuubi and the others before departing to pursue Song Minghong. In less than a minute, Chen Yu turned back. In his hand, he carried Song Minghong's human head, still dripping with blood. Iga Kyuubi and the others stood dumbfounded, their minds buzzing. Dead? Just die? Six and eight masters. Such a terrifying lineup, and they were all killed by him? So, are we really just rats? Iga Kyuubi laughed to himself in despair. Chen Yu turned his head and took a step towards Iga Kyuubi and the others. A few people stood still for a moment. It's not that they don't want to run, but they can't run. What Chen Yu had just done had already scared him out of his wits. Everyone was feeling weak in the legs now, and it was good enough to stand. They just watched as Chen Yu walked in front of them. Iga Kyuubi, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank me? Well, thanks for getting the six of them together so I don't have to bother looking for them one by one. The corners of Iga Kyuubi's mouth twitched wildly. You don't have to thank me for this kind of fucking thing. Now, it's your turn to be on your way. When Chen Yu finished speaking, Iga Kyuubi's heart shrunk. Chen Yu, you committed such atrocities in the Sakura Kingdom. Aren't you afraid of my Sakura Kingdom's retaliation? Upon hearing this, Chen Yu merely smiled gently. Compared to what you guys did back in the day, I'm not doing too much. If you want revenge, you're welcome to come to me in the Dragon Kingdom. Raising his hand, Chen Yu prepared to end a few people. Iga Kyuubi suddenly yelled. Chen Yu, you have to think about the consequences. Behind the Sakura Kingdom, there's the Hawksbane Kingdom. You can't possibly take on the entire world with your own strength. Are you trying to start a war between the Dragon Kingdom and Human Realm and the entire world in Human Realm? Chen Yu's hand lurched and he smiled gently. War, doesn't it never stop? As for picking off the world with one man, that's not a bad challenge. Just a shame you won't get to see it. Hands up. Several heads shot up into the sky, the bigwigs of several major powers, 
towering existences, all died in Chen Yu's hands, arriving beside Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin, looking at the dumbfounded two, Chen Yu grinned, come on, go home, go home, Meng Shuang and Sun Yin Yin were shocked at the same time, before he could speak, Chen Yu had already carried the coffin outside, the two men looked at each other, then at the corpses that littered the ground, and left right after them, at this moment, their hearts felt as if they were turned upside down, it's incredible, it's magical, it's that simple, taking back Xing Qian Lei's corpse, six and eight masters, as a result, in Chen Yu's hands, no one could last past the second move, what kind of monster is Mr. Chen, after leaving the IGA family, the three of them drove back to the office, next, it's time to think about how to return to the dragon kingdom, in the room, Meng Shuang scratched his head, rather embarrassed, to go back from Sakura Goku, you either have to take an airplane or do a ship, but what about Xing Qian Lei's coffin? You can't take this stuff on an airplane. It's not easy to bring on a ship if you want to. Why don't we just bring the ashes back after cremating Elder Xing here? Sun Yen Yen opened her mouth, causing Meng Shuang to freeze. Frowning in thought, he nodded. That seems to be the only way now. Mr. Chen, do you have any comments? Chen Yu shook his head. We Chinese, we talk about going back to our roots. It's better to take Xing Qian Lei's corpse and bring it back to the Dragon Kingdom. From your side, how long is the drive to the nearest beach? The two men froze. The beach? What's Mr. Chen up to? It's only an hour's drive if you go this way to the beach. Mr. Chen you are? Chen you got up and said, let's go, to the beach. Ha, huh? well, that's okay then. Although they did not know what Chen Yu was up to, since it was brought up, the two could only comply. With Chen Yu in tow, the three of them drove to the beach. Chen Yu sat in the back row and closed his eyes. Meng Shuang and Sun Yan Nian peeked at Chen Yu from time to time through the rearview mirror in the car. In his eyes, he was filled with incomparable admiration. Thinking about their previous worries and speculations, the two felt only a little amused. What with Chen Yu's unparalleled planning, choosing to go over at high noon, he was able to avoid the IGA clan. What a well thought out plan on how to bring back Xing Qian Lei's corpse at the least possible cost. It's all bullshit, with absolute strength to back it up. Meng is finished. Soon the trio drove to a cliff by the sea. The sea is boundless and the waves gently surge. There was something salty in the air, carrying the coffin on his shoulder. Chen Yu stood on the edge of the cliff, quietly looking at the boundless sea. Mr. Chen, what are you? The two froze, not knowing what exactly Chen Yu was going to do. You two book your flights back. I'm leaving to go back as well. Ha, huh? going back? How will you go back? The two froze, a little confused. Chen Yu pointed to the sea and said, Go back from here. I chow. From? From here? Meng Shuang stared in disbelief. Sun Yen Yen was also dumbfounded, her brain somewhat unable to react. Here? Isn't this the ocean? How do we get back? Is it hard to get a small boat and drive back? Chen Yu looked natural and nodded. Good. It's back from here. I've already navigated. The journey isn't too far if I go back here. I'll be able to return to the Dragon Kingdom in about half a day. Chen Yu took out his cell phone, opened the map, and showed the navigation to the two. The journey is not far. Half a day. No, brother, we are saying, how are you going to go back? And soon, they knew Chen Yu's ways. Well, I'll be heading back first. You guys get your tickets early too. Saying hello, Chen Yu carried the coffin and leapt down from the cliff. Ah, the two men exclaimed in fright and hurriedly looked down. Chen Yu had nothing going on and was standing on the surface of the sea. Choosing a direction, Chen Yu dashed out furiously, his speed extremely fast. The boundless pale sea, Chen Yu was a small black dot gradually disappeared in the vision of the two men, until it completely disappeared in the junction of the sky and the sea. Seeing this, the two were completely dumbfounded. So, the way he went back, was to run from the ocean. To run back? Meng Shuang muttered. Sun Yen Yen subconsciously opened her mouth in confusion. This, this is something a normal person could do? Do you think, Mr. Chen is considered normal? Uh, not really. When they finished, the two men looked at each other and could see the shock. Consternation and adoration they felt for each other. Hey, I've read in a book before that innate masters were land deities in ancient times. I now, at last, understand what exactly a god is. Meng Shuang let out a long sigh with a complicated expression. Who would dare to challenge the whole ocean with human power? Jingle bells. Just then, his phone rang. After connecting, Meng Shuang's face changed, and he immediately became incomparably respectful. On the opposite side, it was Yi Tsongshan. Elder Yi, please instruct. Meng, how's it going over there? Have the plans been finalized? You must be extremely careful. I've gotten word that they are extremely well prepared this time. IGA Anasuk, 
Nagasawa God, and Matsushima Haruaki. All of these long-lost innate masters are waiting for Chen Yu. You must not be careless. On the other end of the phone, Yi Songqing's face was incomparably grave. In his eyes, there was a vague hint of regret. Perhaps it was a mistake to let Chen Yu travel to the Cherry Blossom Kingdom. Meng Shuang listened to the phone call, his face incomparably odd. That, Elder Yi, there's something I need to report to you. Actually, Mr. Chen has already recaptured Xing Qian Lei's corpse. The mission is over. Yi Songqing froze. All recaptured? So fast? How did this happen? IGA Anasuk and the others. Did they not make a move on Chen Yu? Meng Shuang said. They did strike at Mr. Chen. However, they were all killed by Mr. Chen. What do you mean? All? All killed? Yi Songqing rose up in shock, blinking his eyes, a little confused. Quickly tell me, what kind of scheme did Chen Yu use? And how did he split them up and machine strike them? In Yi Songqing's thought, Chen Yu should have taken some means to kill these people one by one. Meng Shuang then said, Elder Yi, in fact, Mr. Chen, he's useless in any scheme. He took a nap and went to the IGA clan when he woke up. After capturing Elder Xing's corpse, he waited there for the IGA Anasuk 6 and killed them. Meng Shuang didn't hide anything and told Yi Songqing everything that had happened. Yi Songqing had been completely dumbfounded. How the hell does that work? Six fucking innate masters. One for each? A nightmare level life and death game was played by Chen Yu as a sadistic crushing game? Where's Chen Yu? Put him on the phone. Yi Songqing opened his mouth, wanting to speak to Chen Yu. Elder Yi. Mr. Chen has gone back. Eh. He is carrying a coffin on his shoulder and treading the sea. Tonight, he should be back in the Dragon Kingdom. Yi Songqing held his cell phone, blinking his eyes as his brain buzzed. Treading the sea? Damn it. Chen Yu. Are you so showy? The sea is vast and boundless as far as the eye can see. There is only sea water in heaven and earth, filled with an unspeakable loneliness. The sun was setting at the end of the day, coloring the clouds gold and shedding an endless golden glow over the ocean. A cruise ship that is sailing above the sea. Gusts of laughter drifted away from above. Many people stood on the deck, looking at the sunset in the distance, taking out their cell phones to take pictures. Gee, this feels really good. A girl closed her eyes and let the sea breeze blow on her cheeks with immense enjoyment. Next to him, several people nodded in succession. That's it. We've come out to play this time. We've come to the right place. Aya, isn't this thanks to our Chen Chen's charm? This Li Feng is also willing to put down money. In order to chase after Chen Chen, he directly invited our dormitory to play on the cruise ship. Yeah, Chen Chen you should either accept Li Feng or not. That Chen Yu, don't even think about it. A few girls were laughing and joking. They were no one else but Tang Chen Chen and his party. Tang Chen Chen, as one of the school flowers of Jiangling University of Science and Technology, her face value was no less than Xiao Yunyue. Hearing a few people talking, Tang Chen Chen coped with a couple sentences and looked towards the distant sea again, her heart a little sour. Chen Yu already has Xiao Yunyue, it's useless even if I want to. What are you doing here? A couple of beauties? Not far away. A handsome looking boy, walked over. Yeah, Li Feng you're just in time. Come on, come on, take some pictures for us. Okay, happy to oblige. Li Feng took out his cell phone and took pictures of a few people before chatting with them. Hey, Li Feng, aren't you from the martial arts club? What do you say about our Dragon Kingdom's martial arts? Is there such a thing as treading water or not? A girl looked at Li Feng and inquired curiously. Ever since the last time Susan in university came to pick a fight, the Budo Club had become the hottest topic at Jiangling University of Science and Technology. Many people are curious about martial arts. Li Feng laughed. You guys are really asking the right person for this. Honestly, I've never seen that kind of character, but I've heard of them. Luo Zhan he is practicing traditional martial arts. I've heard him say that there are indeed those kind of high level people in this world who can do all kinds of incredible things. A few girls got interested and all looked at Li Feng. It was Tang Chenchen who also cast a curious gaze. Li Feng immediately came into the spirit and laughed. You guys probably don't know that there are actually grades in martial arts. The likes of us, in the eyes of the truly elevated, are nothing at all. Even Luo Zhan, according to his own words, He's only just begun in the martial arts. If martial arts cultivation reaches high depths, one will be able to return from the Hotian to the innate realm. At that time, anything like treading water, blasting rocks with a palm in the air, and so on, would be able to be done. A few of the girls gasped at what they heard. They had never heard of these things. If there really is such a person, wouldn't this be a god? Li Feng nodded and said, Yes, in ancient times, this kind of innate masters were known as land immortals. And I wonder, in our lifetimes, if we'll ever see such a character? In Li Feng's eyes, a touch of yearning emerged. A few girls murmured and shook their heads. 
they always felt that such things were too bizarre to be true. How is it possible for a human to do such a thing? What innate master? It must have been made up in a novel. As he was thinking, suddenly on the other side of the deck, there was a gasp of surprise. Oh, God, look at that. Oh my God, what am I seeing? The crowd on deck was quickly drawn in. Tang Chen Chen and the others did the same, gathering over full of curiosity. After just one look, a few people froze. Above the vast ocean, a straight wave of water suddenly appeared. It's not very clear due to the distance, but it was vaguely visible that at the forefront was a man, racing across the sea, and that straight wave of water was caused by this man. Many people took out their cell phones to capture the incredible images. Tang Chen Chen and the others looked dumbfounded. A man, running on the ocean? Is this something that can happen in reality? This, this, is this an innate sovereign? Li Feng suddenly spoke in excitement. Ha ha, we're really lucky that we've actually seen an innate master. Look, you guys, this is a martial arts master. Pointing at Chen Yu in the distance, Li Feng's face was flushed with excitement. A few of the girls stared, their brains buzzing. It was at this moment that they realized. It turned out that in this world, there really was something that existed beyond their perception. Tang Chen Chen stared, looking at the wave of water, and suddenly her pupils shrank. This figure, why does it look familiar? I think I've seen it somewhere before? Tang Chen Chen thought for a moment, took out her cell phone, turned on the camera, and adjusted the focus to the maximum. Ah, Tang Chen Chen looked at the screen, her cell phone dropped in shock, and her entire body sat on the ground. Mourn, what's wrong with you? Several people rushed forward and helped Tang Chen Chen up. I I am fine. Tang Chen Chen waved her hand, but her heart had already set off shockwaves. Just now, by zooming in on the focal length, it allowed her to look at the other side more closely. Although it was vague, Tang Chen Chen had already discovered the end. She could be 100% certain that that person was Chen Yu, Chun Yu, carrying a coffin, running wild on the sea. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she wouldn't have been able to believe it. But now, I, I can't believe I know someone like that. Tang Chen Chen muttered. Mourn, what did you say? Li Feng stepped forward and looked at Tang Chen Chen worriedly. Tang Chen Chen looked at Li Feng and shook her head. The heart sighed softly. To be honest, Li Feng was very good. His family, looks, personality, and ability were all better than the majority of boys. This time, Tang Chen Chen accepted Li Feng's invitation to come and play on the cruise ship, but she also wanted to try to forget Chen Yu and give Li Feng a chance. But the moment she saw Chen Yu, she knew that she was wrong. Chen Yu was too mysterious, too incredible. He was like a black hole with an unrivaled fatal attraction to sink into, and all the boys are nothing compared to Chen Yu. On deck, the crowd was still shooting video on their cell phones, but Chen Yu's speed was too fast, but after tens of seconds, it had disappeared from the crowd's view. For a while, everyone was talking. Who the hell is this guy? What's he doing? Is he really human? Is it our collective hallucination? No one knows the answer. After a small interlude, Chen Yu's next trip was calm and he did not meet anyone. Until the sun set and the moon rose, Chen Yu stepped onto the land of the Dragon Kingdom, treading the sea, finally home. When I came back, everything was great. Chen Yu first returned home and made a phone call to inform Yi Sangsheng, then returned home to have a beautiful sleep. Early the next morning, Yi Sangsheng rushed to Jinchuan City in a hurry, and the repercussions of Chen Yu's slaughter of the six and eight masters began to ferment. In Human Bureau of Gangneung Province, a conference room, the coffin of criminal Thousand Thunder was laid out on the ground. Yi Sangsheng stood on the side, rubbing his hands back and forth, looking at Chen Yu several times, wanting to speak. After a long time, he let out a long sigh. Elder Yi, what's wrong? This shouldn't count as me not accomplishing my mission, right? Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Yi Sunshing shook his head. Of course you completed the task. It's just that you're accomplishing it in a way that is way beyond my wildest dreams. Chen Yu, I, I don't even know how to describe you. Let Chen Yu travel to the Sakura Kingdom to retrieve the body of criminal Chen Lei. This was extremely dangerous in the eyes of the crowd. One might even say nine deaths. Earlier, after Chen Yu had wasted Song Pengcheng, the Song family had moved around in order to bring death to Chen Yu, and it was only after learning that Chen Yu was going to the Sakura country that they subsided. The reason for this is that, in their opinion, it has served its purpose. This kind of nightmare level mission was enough to kill Chen Yu, but who the hell would have thought that Chen Yu had been there for less than three days and had gotten it all done, slaying the six and eight sect masters and forcefully reclaiming the corpse of criminal Thousand Thunder. Everything is just like playing? It's not dangerous. It's just a breeze. Chun Yu smiled and didn't make a comment. It was better to let Yi Sangsheng digest this kind of thing on his own. It was only after several minutes that Yi Sangsheng's mood was completely calmed down. Chun Yu, I heard that this time, 
The Song family's oldest ancestor, Song Minghong, is also in the Cherry Blossom country? Chen Yu nodded and told Chen Yu about his encounter in the Sakura country. It can be said that the death of criminal Chen Lei was also planned and promoted by Song Minghong. Bang! Yi Sunqing slapped his hand on the table and gritted his teeth. This eaten up thing. How dare he help the dogs of the Sakura kingdom against us. They had also heard about some of the Song family's affairs, but never thought that in front of this kind of great justice, Song Minghong would still dare to do such things. Looking at the criminal Chen Lei in the coffin, Yi Sunqing sighed deeply again. What an iron bone of steel criminal Qian Lei was back then, fighting to the death with those people from the Cherry Blossom Kingdom. I didn't think that in the end, I would die at the hands of one of my own. Chen Yu didn't say anything and pulled out a USB flash drive from his pocket and handed it to Yi Songsheng. I found this when I killed Song Minghong. Inside this flash drive is a record of the accumulated crimes committed by the Song family. This includes the suicide of a martial arts genius in Jiangling province, the annexation of domestic enterprises by Sakura Nation Enterprises the leakage of secrets, and many other things. The Song family is, after all, a life and death enemy. Therefore, when he killed Song Minghong, Chen Yu purposely kept an eye out and searched Song Minghong, and then finally this YouTuber was found. He was also shocked when he got home and took a look. The Song family and foreign powers have been colluding for a long time, even in the dark. He helped foreign forces assassinate many of the young celestials of the dragon countries in human realm. Yi Songxing took the flash drive. His eyes red. Damn it. Damn it, these bastards of the Song family, their hearts are black, old me will never let them go, never let them go, hissing in a low voice, Yi Sanxing was out of his mind with rage, Chun Yu, don't worry, as long as it's verified, no matter what heavenly connections the Song family has, they will all die, towards the end, Yi Sanxing's face was already covered with a murderous aura, after chatting for a while, Yi Sanxing had to return to Dragon Capital, before he left, Yi Sunqing looked at Chen Yu with a suddenly much more serious expression. Chen Yu, you are an unearthly genius that has shocked everyone. But, when wood shows in the forest, the wind will destroy it. You killed so many innate masters from the Sakura country. This is a big event that shocked the inhuman world. The Cherry Blossom Kingdom will definitely not let you go. And it's not just them, it's also those European forces of the inhuman world behind you that will be on to you. You must not fail to defend yourself. Chen Yu's eyes flashed as he smiled and nodded. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. I'm also interested in seeing the inhuman world in Europe and America. Gently clenching his fist, a cold light flashed in Chun Yu's eyes. Good. Take care of yourself. I'll inform you of the outcome of the Song family's matter later. After saying that, Yi Sunqing hoofed it and left Jinchuan City, returning to Longdu. Half a day later, the Song family, Song Yuan Tu sat in his study. He watched with a zygote in one hand and a cigar in the other. The room was filled with smoke and the scent of cigars. Bang. With a loud bang. The door to the room was slammed open, and old Zhang stumbled in and fell to his knees. Song Yuan Tu was so scared that his cigar fell from his fingers. He frowned at Lao Zhang and tapped the tabletop hard. Old Chang, I say what the hell is wrong with you lately? Panicking all day long? What's the fashion? The face of my Song family is being disgraced by you. Old Zhang waved his hands frantically, sweating in a hurry. Master, something big has happened. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Putting down the book in his hand, Song Yuan Tu said indifferently. You also need to read more books. If you can familiarize yourself with this Ziji Tanjian, and realize this rolling torrent of history, you will know that there is no great thing in life, and that all things must be calm. Tell me what's going on. Song Yuento's tone was smooth and slow, and he picked up his cigar with a peaceful expression. Master, your father, your father is dead. Pust, cough cough cough, crap, Lao Shang, you, what did you say? Song Yuan Tu stood up with a prancing sound and looked at old Zhang with wide eyes. The calmness and composure from earlier was now gone. Master, it's your father. He, he was killed by Qin Yu in the Cherry Blossom Country. Ah, boom. Song Yuan Tu was completely confused as if he had been struck by lightning, slapping his butt on the table. Song Yuan Tu looked disoriented. I, my dad is dead? He was an innate patriarch. Six innate masters. All dead? No, it can't be. It can never be. How could this happen? How is this possible? Unable to accept this. Song Yuan Tu smashed everything in the entire desk onto the floor. Master, you, your book. Lao Zhang picked up the dropped Zizi Tong Jin, his voice timid. Book, I'll read your paralyzing book. Song Yuan Tu's eyes were bloodshot and he cursed profusely. At the same time, a deep fear gripped him, to a large extent. The Song family was able to come to this point because of Song Minghong. But now, this prime wood has fallen. What does the future hold for the Song family? Can you hide all the things you've done in the past? When he thought of this, 
Song Yuento's heart pumped and chills ran through his body. Old Zhang. Quick, go get rid of all the assets. Book a flight to Eagle Jam Country. Right now. Old Zhang nodded in a panic and turned around. Ready to leave. Just as he turned around, a group of people rushed into the study. Mr. Song. Hello, we are the special affairs team of the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. Please go back with us and assist in the investigation. Poof. Song Yuan Tu planted himself on the ground, his face pale. He knew that the Song family was finished. On the very same day, the news of Chen Yu killing the six great masters spread throughout the Dragon Kingdom and the Sakura Kingdom. The inhuman community in both countries, completely boiling. Cherry Blossom Country. The news of the destruction of the six great innate sect masters spread throughout the entire inhuman realm. There was a public outcry. When it was learned that all of this was the work of a dragon nation, it was even more of a collective explosion. Inside a Japanese-style building, a group of people sat motionless. Everyone was dressed in black mourning clothes and their faces were incredibly grave. This is the Black Dragon Society, which is holding a funeral for Jen Kimura. Baka, a mere dragon countryman has come to our land and killed our innate master. It's simply a strange shame. A man rose with a roar, his eyes red. Kill him, must kill him. The crowd around him looked at him and did not speak. An older man glanced at the man and spoke faintly. Yamada Kuen, all of us want to kill that man, but can we? He, however, killed six innate masters. Yamada's breath hitched and he sat down in dismay. Baka, how could such a monster appear in the dragon kingdom? Everyone in the room sighed. Yeah, this kind of monster, how did it come to be? That six innate masters. Xing Qian Lei could only flee in a sorry state when faced with such a formation. As a result, Chun Yu actually directly annihilated the other side? Throughout the hearth, there was a dead silence. This kind of scene appeared in the major powers of the Sakura country. Honestly, everyone was confused at first when they learned the news. The first reaction that followed was to question the veracity of the news. After all, this kind of thing is incredible. Some even suspected that it was a smokescreen put out by the IGA family. But eventually the news was confirmed. The various forces of the Sakura country were all numbed by this news. Shock, fear, anger, and disbelief. All sorts of complex emotions surfaced in everyone's mind. Dragon Kingdom. Shan Yu. These words were like a mountain, weighing down everyone in the Sakura country. On the internet, the Sakura country and human realm also had forums dedicated to discussing big events in the inhuman realm. Previously, Xing Qian Lei's murder had caused a huge uproar on the forums. There was a lot of hooting and hollering on the forums at that time. All thought that Xing Qian Lei's death had emphasized the majesty of the Sakura kingdom. However, he did not expect that in the blink of an eye Chen Yu would come and destroy six. The whole forum, it's a woeful mess. Shame, we have become sick men, I have despaired, and my heart of martial arts is completely destroyed. That man is like a mountain in front of us. This is a great wound that we in the inhuman world have never known. That man, is a nightmare, it's a plague. Why would a character like that exist in the dragon kingdom? When you've seen the scene, you know, what the hell. For the first time, I realized that the people of the original Dragon Kingdom were so powerful. A lot of people who have posted on the forums have just plowed their way through and killed themselves. There were also martial artists who couldn't accept such a great shame and chose to quit the inhuman realm. There were also some martial artists who planned to carry out Operation Jade Crush and travel to the Dragon Kingdom to assassinate Chen Yu. On the social side of the Sakura country, there were also violent fluctuations. The six great innate masters, although they were all figures of the inhuman realm. But, Several of the most prestigious consortiums in the Sakura country were actually the ones standing behind them. The IGA family is more obvious. It is a great business empire with many industries under its banner, including real estate, finance, medicine and so on. A number of people from the IGA family served in it. And so the comical scene unfolded. What's it like to go to work and realize that more than half the executives in your company are gone? Upon inquiry, these executives hung up. Then, the vast majority of the executives of the entire consortium were all gone. This kind of thing immediately became big news in the Sakura country. The whole community, they're talking about it. In the end, the heat was only suppressed under the strong pressure of the Sakura country's government. Even so, it still triggered a violent commotion. And besides the IGA family, several other consortia, though less affected, also experienced tremors. Stocks fell across the board as a direct result of the Sakura nation stock market crash. On the Dragon Kingdom side, the inhuman world was also very shocked. All the major powers are buzzing about it. Heavens, is this true? Mr. Chen alone, directly picked off the entire IGA clan? One to destroy six. This, this is a feat that will go down in history. Hiss, such behavior is simply a martial arts myth. Ha ha, Mr. Chen is truly a model for our generation.
I have a feeling that a peerless giant has been born on this. On top of a mountain forest, a one-armed old man knelt down on both knees and cowed out in the direction of Jingxuan City. He burst into hot tears and cried out, Mr. Chan Ah, thank you, thank you, oh son. Back then, father watched those beasts invade us and spoil your mother. Father is incompetent and has no way to avenge your mother's death. Father hates it. Father has been hating for so many years. Killing as many Sakura Nation dog things as possible isn't enough. Now, Mr. Chen has helped us take revenge. Son Ah, so many years. Father living is the remnants of thoughts have not yet disappeared. Do not dare to go to see you too Mother Ah. Now I'm going to see you. The old man laughed loudly and leapt down from the cliff. Laughter, quick and bold. A small wooden house by the sea. The wild laughter rose up to the sky, seemingly silencing the sound of the waves of the entire ocean. The door to the cabin's room was opened and an old man waved his fist at the sea. Ha 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 ha, good job, Mr. Chen is really good. I shall be strong, I shall be strong. Learning about this today is enough to comfort my life. Ha 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 ha. The old man picked up a jar of old wine with one hand and gulped it down. A luxurious mansion. A middle-aged man paced back and forth in the room, constantly rubbing his hands together. On his face, there was an uncontrollable shock. Off to the side, there were secretaries standing still. It was awesome. That was awesome. Mr. Chan Ah, how can he be so strong? Quickly, immediately reach a strategic cooperation with Tian Chang Group. All the conditions they proposed are met. Aya, uh, what's the point of talking about judgment? This kind of character, even if you give him money for nothing, because of Chen Yu, the Tian Chang Group had also risen. Lu Tianhao was simply overjoyed. For that matter, though, Many people are feeling excited, but others showed disdain. Humph, one to destroy six? This must have used some unseemly and dirty means. Hey, can't my Dragon Kingdom martial artists duel in a dignified manner like the Sakura Kingdom? There's no way around it. We're rotten from the roots. He he, this Chen Yu is really brainless. Hasn't he ever considered how this will make others view our Dragon Kingdom and human realm? That's right. Isn't this destroying the image of our Dragon Kingdom? On the internet, two groups of people spat at each other everything, Chen Yu did not know. After returning from the Sakura country, he went back to the university and lay on his dormitory bed, swiping his cell phone and enjoying a rare moment of relaxation. Wang Hao and the others pushed open the door and walked into the dormitory, full of excitement. Old Six, big news, big news, what's the big news? Chen Yu was a bit uncertain. Wang Hao said, quickly look at the school forum. I chow, I really didn't think that there would be such a thing. Chen Yu was a bit curious and opened the school forum. Forum? Hearing this, Chen Yu froze. I opened the forum and found several threads that were read and topped. The IGA group is overthrown. Joy to the world. What is the reason for the death of a giant? An in-death analysis. The past life of the IGA group. Several of the posts are extremely hot, and the number of people participating in the threads is at a scary level. After clicking on the post and reading the contents, Chen Yu realized what had happened. It's easy to say. The giant of the Sakura country, the IGA group, was gone in one night. The vast majority of the IGA family behind it died mysteriously. The IGA school, extremely famous. Many anime involving ninjas have mentioned this clan. So immediately after this happened, it caused a great deal of attention on top of the internet. Many people are exploring the reasons for the mysterious demise of the IGA family. And the official version of this incident in the Sakura country is food poisoning. But then some sneak peek videos broke. The image showed dried blood and limbs that hadn't yet been cleaned up at the place where the IGA family was. Because of this, it makes it all the more curious as to what really happened. And for some historical reasons, the demise of the IGA family has caused a great deal of repercussions in the Dragon Kingdom. The school forums are all over the place. Too, as to what's going on. Gee, what a surprise that this would happen. Old Zhang. I remember that IGA Nobuo. Isn't he from the IGA family? Boy, I didn't realize they were all gone. Wang Hao grinned straight. Zheng Ji nodded. Well, it's really confusing how this IGA family is suddenly nothing. Yao Yu Jing laughed and said, who cares how he didn't get it. Anyway, Lao Zi had a great time watching it. But all that speculation on the internet is really hilarious too. So it's no wonder the discussion in the forums is so heated. Chen Yu's mind moved and he asked, what did the internet say? Li Pei Yi walked up, patted Chen Yu on the shoulder, and laughed. I'm telling you, this session of netizens, it's really talented. Some say it was caused by our fallen generals from the Dragon Kingdom's past, who attacked the IGA family at night. Others say it was a mysterious virus that caused the IGA family personnel to go mad in mass and then kill each other. Chen Yu looked odd. These guys, they really dare to guess. Wang Hao said, to say that I, the most bullish thing is still this man's answer. 
Damn if I didn't know he was fake. I would have thought he was real. Following Wang Hao's guidance, Chen Yu opened a post in the forum. The post was reprinted from the internet. An in-depth analysis of the reasons for the destruction of the IGA clan. The poster claims to be a martial artist. It is pointed out that from the video analysis, the destruction of the IGA family was due to a major battle. There should have been an expert who came to the IGA family to carry out a massacre and caused all of this. Based on the scene, this expert is extremely strong and almost always kills in one move. You guys, look at that destroyed building. It should have been chopped off hard by someone with a supreme sword chi. Pay attention to the bloody footprints on the ground. This should be someone trying to escape. And after stepping out 10 meters, they were shattered by a move. Look at that piece of rubble. Based on the condition of the scene, it looks like a person should have been knocked out of the way, smashed the rock, and blew themselves up, which is why this kind of trace was left behind. And there, looking at the description in the post, Chen Yu raised his eyebrows in surprise. I didn't expect to meet a connoisseur. Some of these analyses are not accurate, though the general picture is correct. But in the follow-up posts below, one side was mocking. Damn, are people this good now, making it up like that? Boy, I have a feeling this guy isn't going to be a screenwriter. Is he? Gee, that would be a great action scene if this story was made. All that can be said is, 6. So looking forward to the story coming to the screen. This guy must not be an ordinary person. This level of screenwriting, an absolute god. Wang Hao walked over and put one hand on Chun Yu's shoulder. He he he. With this look on old Six's face, he shouldn't have been fooled by this guy. Gee, I really admire this guy. This story is made up as if it were true. Chen Yu laughed. Maybe it's either made up or true. A few people froze, then let out bursts of laughter. Yao Yu Jing snickered. I can see a touch of clear stupidity in old Six's eyes. Damn. Worthy of old Six. With that sense of humor, you deserve to have a girlfriend. Old Six is truly a model for my generation. I admire and admire. Chun Yu sighed helplessly and shook his head. Gotta. As always. No one will believe me if I tell the truth. That's not the only thing that's fun. By the way, Li Pei took out his cell phone and opened a video. Look at this. Guys, the shooter is on a sailing cruise ship. Instead, the shot shows a straight wave appearing in the distance. In the midst of the waves, a blurry silhouette could be vaguely seen, running wildly at high speed. But because it was late and dimly lit, and because it was so far away, it wasn't clear to see. In the video, gushes of shock can be heard and a number of people can be seen saving up. The title is also bluffing. Shocking. A real lightweight, real life version of flying on water. The number of likes has exceeded a million and the number of comments has exceeded a hundred thousand. Among the comments, it says everything. Masterful. An absolute master. Holy shit. Is this for real? It looks fake. How could such a thing happen? Oh, it's obviously made to be a video. If there really is such a person, I'll eat Shang upside down. Come on. It's the ocean. Who could pull something like this off here? Self media nowadays really don't have any face for eyeballs. No way. No one really believes this stuff, right? Now that I think about it, there are so many stupid people in this society. Chen Yu froze. Never in a million years did I realize that not only was I caught on camera, but I was on the video hit list. I was in a hurry to get going and didn't care. It seems like I should be a little more careful in the future. Otherwise, it's not good to be seen. In the dormitory, Wang Hao and the others couldn't stop talking. Everyone agrees that the video must be fake. After all, how can a person run on the ocean? Say, little feather, is this video real or not? A few people looked towards Chen Yu and smiled as they opened their mouths to inquire. You guys really want to hear it? Chen Yu blinked his eyes. Well, come on. Chen Yu let out a long sigh and was about to speak. Wang Hao's few people snatched the first to tease. We know. You must have said that the person in that video was you. Chen Yu froze while several people looked at Chen Yu with smiles on their faces. Chen Yu let out a long sigh and laughed. All right, then I'll show my cards. It's me. For a while, the 604 dormitory resounded with laughter. Just at this moment, a message came from Chen Yu's cell phone, sent by Yi Songxing. Chen Yu, the Song family has fallen into the net. Do you want to meet them? The Songs have fallen off the grid? Chen Yu's eyes flashed and he nodded. Yi Songxing and the others moved extremely fast. It didn't take long to have taken care of the Song family. Good. That's fine. There are two other things I need to tell you. What is it? First, regarding the handling of the Song family's assets, the word has been sent from above to give it all to you. Secondly, for your reward, the above is also studying it and will announce it in a matter of days. Chun Yu raised his eyebrows and spoke with a smile. I have a reward? That's natural. Yi Songqing smiled back. Your action this time has had a tremendous impact. Not only did you purge the Song family of this tumor, 
but you also greatly re-inflicted and deterred the Sakura countries in human realm. The effect is very good. Chen Yu raised an eyebrow and said, Aren't you guys afraid that I'll go too far this time and make them take the opportunity to turn on us? This question was also intentional, to see how the inhuman Bureau piece reacted to his actions. On the opposite side, Yi Songcheng laughed out loud, Sentiments? Then let them do it. The small Sakura country. So what if they make an issue of it? Chen Yu, remember one thing. After a pause, Yi Songcheng slowly spoke. We are strong. Chen Yu's eyes flashed as he felt a powerful confidence. You can't exactly just relax though. This time, the implications are very far-reaching. If it was just the Sakura Kingdom, it wouldn't be enough to fear. But behind the Sakura Kingdom, there can be many other forces. For example, Eagle Sauce. Chen Yu nodded slightly. It was all, and he was somewhat aware of it. Cherry Blossom Country. Cold Stick Country. It's safe to say that all of these small countries have Eagle Jam behind them. I just didn't realize that even the inhuman world was like that. At that moment, Yi Songqing's voice sounded once again. You probably don't know that the global inhuman community hasn't been peaceful lately. They are all secretly targeting us. According to the information I've gotten, they're already working on how they're going to deal with you. You must be careful. Against me? Chen Yu sniffed and froze, then puffed and laughed. Then let them work on it. All right then, wait for my notice. I'll arrange a meeting between you and Song Yu Wan Tu tomorrow. After hanging up the phone, Chen Yu squinted his eyes and looked out the window. As one's strength increased, one was exposed to more and more things. But thankfully, everything is okay. At the very least, the dragon countryside was on the same side as himself. It's time for the days of keeping us suppressed and ostracized to come to an end. A flash of cold light flashed from Chen Yu's eyes. He then made a call to Jogo. Mr. Chen, what is it? The Song family has fallen. So the three of you join the Tianchang group and take the Song family. A comment that made Zhao Gu directly confused. Song, the Song family has collapsed? Is this, is this true? Well, go do it. After saying that, Chen Yu hung up the phone. Zhao Gu stood frozen in place, and after a long time he leapt up violently and let out a wild laugh. Excited hearts, trembling hands. Zhao Gu immediately called Gong Yin, Gu Shan, and Lu Ming. On the phone, Zhao Gu didn't tell the three of them anything specific and waited until they arrived. Zhao Gu, what the hell are you up to? Gu Shan was grumpy and full of displeasure. Zhao Gu laughed and said, Gentlemen, I have good news for you. The Song family has been brought down by Mr. Chen. Now Mr. Chen has arranged for us to do a good job of acquiring the Song family. Boom. The three of them rose up with an open mind. Their faces full of incredulity. You, you're telling the truth? A thousand times over. Several people. We followed the right person. From now on, not only Jinchuan, but the entire Jiangling province. We'll be one of the top existences. Ah. Zhao Ji's face was red and his voice was trembling with excitement. The three looked at each other. After a dozen seconds of silence, laughter rushed through the air. Ha ha, great, great, my, Mr. Chen is mighty, Mr. Chen is mighty, I really didn't expect it, I really didn't expect it, it's like a dream that this could happen, incredible, just incredible. After calming their excitement, the several people's admiration for Chen Yu had simply reached a point of no return, that's the Song family, such a behemoth, they didn't know how to deal with it, as a result, Chen Yu said he'd get killed? This tactic is like turning your hand to the clouds and your hand to the rain. Guys, let's make sure we make this look good. When Zhao Gu finished speaking, the remaining three immediately nodded their heads in agreement. With that, the three of them began to discuss how to divide the Song family. Chen Yu stopped paying attention to these specific matters. The next day, Chen Yu arrived at the Inhuman Bureau of Jiangling Province and met Song Yuan Tu at the detention center. At this moment, Song Yuan Tu, with both hands and feet in shackles, no longer had the spiritedness he had when he first met, and his body was permeated with a touch of death. There is no greater sorrow than the death of the heart. When Song Yuan Tu was arrested, he was so utterly desperate that he couldn't straighten his back. Seeing Chin Yu outside the fence, Song Yuan Tu hissed and grabbed the fence with a death grip, staring at Chin Yu with crimson eyes. Shun Yu, Shun Yu, it's all you. It's all you who victimized my Song family. Ah, you little bastard. I should have killed you and your mom 20 years ago. I should have killed you and your mom 20 years ago. A mournful voice, like an evil spirit. Chen Yu looked calm as he gazed at Song Yu Wan too. You no longer have a chance. Where is Song Yao? Where is Chen Taiyi? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. This time, the entire Song family was arrested. But Song Yao was abroad and did not fall into the net. She was the culprit for her and Wu Shaolan's miserable 20 years. It's not over until she's in the net. Ha ha, Chen Yu. Do you think you can catch Yao Yao? You're delusional. I'm telling you, 
Yo-Yo is in Eagle Sauce Country. You'll never catch her. Chen Tai? Oh, that dog is also in the Eagle Sauce Country. You too, father and son, will never meet. Chen Ye's brows furrowed and his expression turned cold after hearing Song Yuento's words. What's going on? Didn't Chen Taiyi abandon his mother back then to be with Song Yao? Why did it sound as if Chen Taiyi had a low status in the Song family? And, Song Yuan too loathes him? Why did Chen Taiyi abandon my mother back then? What really happened back then? At those words, Song Yuan too froze, and then Jie Jie laughed. Is that so? Ha ha, I'm laughing my ass off. So back then, this is what Chen Taiyi told you guys. Ha ha, he's really a good man to lie to you guys like that. One sentence made Chen Yu freeze. What do you mean? Back then, Chen Taiyi he lied to his mother? Song Yuan too then spoke. Come on, come on, let me tell you the truth about that year. Chen Yu looked straight at Song Yuan too. His body subconsciously tensed. Seeing this, Song Yuan too was filled with smugness. He he, you think, back then, it was really Yo Yo who fell in love with your father. That's why she crossed the line? Bullshit. How could a child of my Song family possibly look at a lowly trash like Chen Taiyi? Back then, Chen Taiyi's special physique happened to be the sample material needed by a foreign research institute. That's why Yao Yao wanted to take him away. At those words, Chen Yu froze. It's all, and it's nothing like what one thinks. He was, by force, taken by you? Chen Yu inquired in a chilling voice. Oh, we didn't force him, he volunteered. Song Yuan too opened his mouth with a cold smile. At that time, Yao Yao did want to get Wu Shaolan killed and directly take Chen Taiyi away. He was tough though. Said he'd kill himself if he touched you mother and son. The institute needs live experimental material. And we have to compromise. This, for the first time in more than 20 years, is the first time my Song family has compromised. At the mention of this, Song Yuento's eyes showed a look of remembrance. With a faint touch of admiration, Chen Yu's heart shook and his pupils shook. The truth, actually, is that so? In other words, Chen Taiyi, no, father he, in fact, did not betray his mother at all. In the beginning, it was to protect my mother and me that I had to leave after the Song family, and knowing that he would surely die if he went there, he deliberately poured sewage on himself, saying that he had moved on and made his mother hate and loathe him, to break my mother's heart. Chen Yu lowered his head and clenched his fists in death, his body trembling gently. So, it turns out we were wrong about you. So you've been protecting us mother and son all along. He he, although my Song family promised Chen Taiyi not to kill you, but how could I possibly let him do whatever he wants? Yao Yao has suppressed you guys for 20 years, and this kind of torture is much more interesting than getting you killed. Song Yuan too laughed coldly. Chen Yu slowly raised his head, his eyes blood red, with a baleful aura that surged wildly and unchecked. The entire room, it seemed, had all of a sudden turned into a sea of corpses and blood. Chilling, Yi Sanxing stood aside, his heart and mind shaking. What a horrible fury. No wonder he was able to kill the six Iga Anasuk six with one. It's really hard to imagine. How on earth did this kid cultivate to be able to reach such a realm? On the opposite side, Song Yuan too was so scared that his face turned pale. Facing Chen Yu, he felt like he was standing in front of an overwhelmingly ferocious beast. This instinctive fear made him shiver. My father, where is he? Song Yuan too's body trembled, but the next moment he gritted his teeth with a dead pig's face. Shit, I must be dying. Why should I tell you? You want to know? Go and find out. It's such a big country, so go and check it out. Ha ha. Chen Yu, so what if you are strong, in your entire life, you will never be able to see Chen Tai. right now he's probably in some place where he's being tested like a guinea pig on a test bed, ha 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 ha, Song Yuan too laughed maniacally, Chen Yu's eyes had become completely red, in that case, go to hell, five fingers grasped in the void, and the bones of Song Yuento's entire body were snapped one by one, emitting clicking and crunching sounds, the extreme pain caused Song Yuan too to scream miserably, in the end, Chen Yu violently clenched his fist, and Song Yuan too then exploded with a loud bang, completely shattering into a mist of blood. From the beginning to the end, Yi Sanxing had never spoken up to stop it. Elder Yi, I've made you laugh. After Chen Yu calmed down, he spoke faintly. Yi Sanxing shook his head. There's no harm in it. He's always going to die. It won't matter if you kill him. Right. This time, Yi Sanxing was about to speak. When on a side table, the cell phone left behind by Song Yuan too suddenly rang. The caller ID showed that it was Song Yao calling. Chen Yu's eyes flashed as he took a step out to the table and picked up the phone. Dad, how's the family doing now? Across the street, came Song Yao's urgent voice. Song Yao, I really want to meet you. Who are you? Song Yao froze and opened her mouth to inquire. Chen Yu, son of Chen Taiyi and Wu Shaolan, 
What? It's you little bastard? Where's my dad? What did you do to him? In Song Yao's voice, there was a touch of panic. She'd heard all about what had happened in the Sakura country. Six and eight masters. Ah, and among them was his own grandfather. Upon learning the news, she knew that it was bad. For the past two days, she had been calling Song Yuento's phone, but there was never any answer. This worried her even more. I didn't expect that although it was now connected, the opposite side was Chen Yu. Your father is dead. Killed by me. Chen Yu spoke faintly, his voice icy cold. And, all of you Song family will die. Across the room, there was a long silence. Little bastard. I regret that I didn't get you killed back then. Who would have thought that back then? In his own eyes, it was just a thing that was just a mole. Now, it's overthrown the entire Song family? Yes, you should indeed regret it. I will find you, and I will find my father, and it is time to make an end to a 20-year feud. Oh, find me? You can try. By the sound of your voice, you also know about Chen Tai? I'm telling you, he suffered a lot for you mother and son these past 20 years. Across the room, there was a sick laugh. Every time I see him in so much pain that he can't hold on and wants to die, I take you mother and son. I said if you die, I'll kill you both. Guess what? He held on through his teeth. Giggling. He tried to run away. But all I had to do was mention you two and he crawled back to me like a dog. You two, mother and son, are so well used. Click. 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 Chen Yu's fist squeezed and popped incessantly. Ha. But let's survive until we find me. Operation Feather Hunt is about to begin. Chun Yu. I look forward to hearing about your death. Tu Do Lu. The phone hung up. Chen Yu stared at his cell phone. His eyes slightly red. Chen Tai, you bastard, for the sake of me and my mother, did you even suffer so much? I, on the other hand, have blamed you for over 20 years. Don't worry, I'll find you. You must live well for me. Elder Yi, do me a favor. You say, help me find out about Song Yao and my father. I want to know where the hell they are. Yes, after listening to the phone call just now, Yi Tsangsheng also roughly understood the causes and consequences, to which he sighed softly in his heart. But Chen Yu you have to be careful. The feather hunt operation he mentioned just now should have been proposed by a foreign power against you. No harm done. Chen Yu waved his hand, his voice incomparably solemn. I'm not in a good mood and I'm tempted to kill someone. I'd be happy if they came to me. Hearing Chen Yu's words, Yi Tsangxing clearly froze. The next moment, he let out a long sigh and shook his head. Who can keep a calm heart when encountering such things? Don't worry. Your matter is the matter of our Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. We will definitely do our best to help you. Chen Yu was a bit surprised, then nodded. Thanks, I owe you guys a favor. You're too kind. We're all family. Yi Tsangxing smiled and waved his hand. By the way, the reward for you this time has been finalized. The Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau has decided to appoint you as the Dragon Kingdom and Human Bureau. The first dragon Zun. A remark that surprised Chen Yu. Me, the first dragon father? Not bad. It's the first dragon father. Dragon Zun. Similar to how Zun. It's the guest secretary of the Dragon Kingdoms in Human Bureau. Previously, several people, Shen Yuan Chang, were the identity of Dragon Zun. I didn't realize that I, nowadays, had been given this title. Moreover, it's still the first dragon dignity. There shouldn't be any tests this time. Should there? Shen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. The last time he became the first prefectural dignitary, he was also subjected to an examination. Yi Sanqing smiled and shook his head. There is no examination. You killed six and eight masters with one against six. That's a solid battle record. It's already enough. In that case, thanks a lot. Chen Yu didn't push back either. It's always good for you to have that kind of name around. On top of that, the above also gave you the decision to grant you the position of Dragon General. And the rank, if you will, is that of a Major General. Chen Yu's pupils shrunk slightly. This thing, but it's not the same as Dragon Father. Although the Dragon Father was extremely high in status, his limitations were great. First of all, Dragon Zun was only limited to the inhuman realm, and the ordinary world was not known, thus the influence was naturally much weaker. Secondly, although the Dragon Dignitary had an esteemed status, in the end, it was only a guest secretary and was not considered to be within the official establishment. While there is freedom, there is also a lot of power lost. But the position of Dragon General is different. This was an office in the ordinary world, far more awe-inspiring to ordinary people than the position of Dragon Honor. Moreover, at this level, the resources that could be mobilized in the secular world were simply unimaginable. Basically, you can kind of do whatever you want. This is, in fact, a good thing. But Chen Yu frowned and had the presence of mind to excuse himself. Dragon generals have a lot to offer. Naturally, when it comes down to it, 
but at the same time, it brings a lot of constraints. The path of immortal cultivation seeks to live a long and free life, free and unconstrained. Accepting a secular position also goes against the heart of immortal cultivation. Seeing Chen Yu's intention to refuse, Yi Songqing hurriedly continued to speak. Hey, don't be too busy rejecting it yet. Hear me out. Although the position of dragon general is granted to you, it is still the same as that of a guest minister, and there are no binding requirements for you. That is to say, you enjoy the power, the treatment, but you don't have to accept the bondage. Chen Yu froze. That good? It's that good. Because you're worth it. How's that for acceptance? Chen Yu was silent for a moment and nodded his head in agreement. The fact that the conditions were set at this level showed that the top was keen to have themselves on board. It would seem a bit ungrateful if he didn't receive it himself. Ha ha, great. Yi Sunqing slapped his thighs and was filled with excitement. Elder Yi, despite saying so, you guys, I'm afraid you won't let me do nothing, right? Chen Yu looked at Yi Sunqing with a smirk on his face. Yi Sunqing hemmed and hawed and gave Chen Yu a thumbs up. You kid, you really see through. Not bad. In fact, this time, there is indeed a task that the above wants to give to you. I don't know. Have you ever heard of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces? Chen Yu frowned in thought and nodded slightly. Rather, I've seen some of it online. The Dragon Tooth Special Forces, the most elite unit in the Dragon Kingdom. It is said that the conditions for entering it are extremely harsh. Anyone in there who pulls up outside is a king of soldiers. Yi Songxing nodded. Not bad. The Dragon Teeth Special Operations Team is, indeed, a legend. All along, in military competitions such as the Special Forces Joint Exercises of various countries around the world, the Dragon Teeth Special Forces have always been at the top of the list, and we have the strength to take on Eagle Jam and the rest of them. But not too long ago, something happened that caused the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team to suffer an unprecedented disgrace. Chen Yu raised his eyebrows and said, What is it? Yi Songcheng let out a long sigh. Not long ago, the 14 countries organized a small military competition, and the chief instructor of the Dragon's Teeth Special Warfare Team and the 10 elites who were selected for the competition were surprisingly beaten into a lifelong disability. And the ones who beat them up like that were the Han Tiger Special Forces of the Cold Stick Kingdom. This incident has caused a great deal of repercussions, seriously damaging the image of our dragon nation. Chen Yu was filled with surprise. How is this possible? Although I don't know much about the military aspect, I know that there's a huge gap between the Han Tiger Special Forces and the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Yi Songxing nodded. Yes, if we go by normal, the Han Tiger Special Forces are completely unworthy of being our opponents. But that time was different. Their players had an exaggerated increase in strength. Simply unlike humans. At that time, they challenged us by name. And the results surprised everyone. We later conducted an investigation and realized that it was all premeditated. All of the people in the Han Tiger Special Forces had taken special biological reagents from the Eagle Sauce Country. This kind of stuff, equivalent to a kind of super stimulant, over a period of time, is able to enhance the human body's functioning to a terrifying situation, which is completely incomparable to that of ordinary people. Chun Yu understood. The world today is not exactly a peaceful place. So letting me take over as chief instructor is going to change all that? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. Yi Songxing nodded. Not bad. You are an innate patriarch. And you have even instructed Xin Yu Wancheng and the others. In a little while, there will be a major military competition involving 50 nations special operations teams. The higher-ups hope that during this period of time, you can properly train those lads in the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team and salvage the dignity of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. Chen Yu sniffed and grinned. I see. I'll take the job. This kind of thing that concerned the dignity of the country. Chen Yu naturally would not shirk. On the other hand, regarding Song Yao's matter, there was still a need for the Dragon Country side to step in and help with the investigation. It was something he was obligated to do, both in love and in reason. Good. Then I'm counting on you. In the next two days, you prepare and get ready. Someone will come to Jinchuan City to pick you up and go to the training base of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. After agreeing, Yi Sunxing left Jinchuan City. And the day after Yi Sunxing left, the entire Jinchuan City was shaken. Because, the Song family fell. The Song family, in Jinchuan City, is a single-handed existence. Its power is vast and deep-rooted. Before this, no one had ever thought that one day, the Song family would fall. And right after the fall of the Song family, the four forces led by Zhao Gu, Gu Shan, Gong Yen, and Lu Ming quickly divided up all the assets of the Song family. The speed is so fast, it's almost like it's on. The entire high society of Jinchuan City was surprised and amazed by this. Many people have secretly been poking around to find out what's going on. In the end, they finally learned that all of this is the work of a mysterious mister. Shun. What's more, 
he was told that this Mr. Chen had heavenly means, and that he was behind the destruction of the IGA family. For a while, discussions rose, and all forces smacked their lips. In a moving villa, a middle-aged man had a complex expression and was overwhelmed with emotion. Awesome, really awesome. This Mr. Chen, he's really terrifying. The middle-aged man's name is Ji Tao, and he is also a prestigious figure in Jinchuan City with a rich family. In the living room, a middle-aged woman frowned and bristled. Old Ji, you've been chanting about this Mr. Chun for half a day since you found out about him. Is he that powerful? Ji Tao's son, Ji Zining was also somewhat helpless. Dad, isn't it just bringing down the Son family? Why are you so shocked? Ji Tao's footsteps lurched as he looked at the two, hating them. Not just bring down the Song family? Stupid. You too. You have no idea what this means. You guys think that the Song family is that easy to bring down? Kaiserman was full of it. Isn't the Song family just a bit rich and powerful? It's not that exaggerated. Is it? I feel like our family isn't so bad. And we have people in the court. Maybe if we want to, we can fight the Song family as well. Snap. Ji Tao slapped Ji Zimying directly in the face. Jeez, old Ji, what are you hitting the kid for? I beat him for his own good, so he'll learn a lesson. Ji Tao hated it. With a brain like yours, how will you inherit the family business in the future? I'm afraid I won't even know how to die. We're fighting the Song family? Then we won't even know how to die. Let me tell you, our volume, even if we were to double it tenfold, would still be far inferior to the Song family's family business. As for the connections behind it, even if the one in our dynasty rises another three levels, the Song family can still crush him. Hiss. A statement that made both the woman and Ji Zining dumbfounded. Since ancient times, the people have not fought against the officials. Who doesn't have contacts in the business world? Ji family in Jinchuan City can now have this step, but also thanks to the care of the one behind. Ji Zining had accompanied Ji Tao to pay his respects a few times. He had watched his father, groveling before the man. In Ji Zining's eyes, that being, was a towering figure that could only be looked up to. But now, Ji Tao said that even if he was promoted three more ranks, he would not be in the eyes of the Song family? Then how terrifying is the real Song family? The Song family is so horrible. That Mr. Chen who made the Song family overthrow. At that thought, Ji Zining shivered, suddenly giving birth to infinite awe. Mr. Chen, it seemed, had transformed into a mountain. He, on the other hand, was an ant at the foot of the mountain. That Mr. Chen, unexpectedly, unexpectedly so strong. Humph, you're not too stupid. Grow more brains in the future, or you won't even know how to die. Ji Tao's lingering anger chided his own son. He then let out another long sigh, and a strong sense of awe and admiration surfaced in his eyes. This Mr. Chen, what a legend. Similar scenes are playing out all over Jinchuan City. Mr. Chan, has become the most discussed topic in high society. A small cottage. Dad, really? That Song family, it actually fell? Chang Haoming stared blankly at his father. Chan DFA, just now. Chang DFA had already told Chang Haoming about the collapse of the Song family. After hearing this, Chang Haoming felt like he was dreaming. That's the Song family, the sky of Jinchuan City. Gone just like that? This Mr. Chen, what kind of divine figure is he? On the side, Chang Haoming's mother, Zheng Yushan, was also filled with astonishment. DFA, what's going on? Who is this Mr. Chen? Chang DFA rolled his eyes. A little person like me would be lucky to hear some insider information. How can I still be qualified and know who this Mr. Chen is? Hey, too. Zheng Yushan nodded in agreement. Their Chang family, although their family was not bad, but in the end, there was still a considerable gap from the upper class. Well, this matter is too far away from us after all. So let's just chat about it. Hao Ming, seeing as you've been in pretty good shape lately, it seems like you've stopped staying with that Xiao Yunyue. Chan DFA opened his mouth to inquire. Chang Hao Ming nodded. Well, I've thought about it too. It's just a woman, isn't it? She doesn't like me. Why should I have to die? With my qualifications, wouldn't it be easy to find a female? Chang Defa nodded. You're finally getting the hang of it. In the future, learn more from me to learn things on the student's intention. Women, as long as you have money, want to find what kind of all have. Aha. Uh -huh. Dad, didn't you say that you wanted me to get closer to Uncle Ding's son? Ding Yuan? My recent relationship with him shouldn't be too good. And after I showed him Xiao Yunyue's photo, he took an instant liking to it, and has already looked for a relationship to hook up with the Xiao family. Preparing for a blind date with Xiao Yunyue, he's already said that as long as the blind date is successful, we'll have absolutely no problem with that cooperation. At those words, Chan Dfa's expression was delighted. Really? Great. The Ding family, 
whose strength was far above the Chang family, and was the object that Chang DFA had always wanted to flatter in the business world. Only, the Ding family had always been relatively high in their stance, and hadn't even agreed to Chang DFA's request for cooperation. Recently, Chang Defa has been trying to find ways to make the cooperation work. Only little has ever been achieved. I didn't expect Chang Haoming to use Xiao Yunyue to open a breakthrough. Ha ha, worthy of being my son. If this ratio comes to fruition, I'll buy you a Lamborghini. Really? Thanks dad. Chang Haoming was overjoyed. There was a sick pleasure in his heart. Chan Yu, you think you've really beaten me? I'm telling you, no way. Absolutely not. Even if I can't have Xiao Yunyue, you don't deserve him. The person who can get Xiao Yunyue must be a man with better conditions than me. A young handsome man like Ding Yuan will definitely abandon you if Xiao Yunyue meets him. I'm going to watch you die of heartache. GG Jai Ji. Jianling University of Science and Technology, on a green path. Chen Yu and Xiao Yunyue were taking a leisurely stroll. At this time, Xiao Yunyue's cell phone rang. Whom? Dad's phone? After connecting, Xiao Yunyue was a bit surprised. Dad. What's up? What? A blind. Blind date? Xiao Yunyue's footsteps lurched and her eyes widened in disbelief. A blind date? Chen Yu also froze in place when he heard this. Dad are you kidding me? I have a boyfriend. I don't want to go. Xiao Yunyue was furious. Glancing at Chen Yu, she stepped aside and had a heated confrontation with her father on the phone. Ten or so minutes later, Xiao Yunyue walked back to Chen Yu. Her eyes red. What's wrong? Chen Yu softly inquired. My family is forcing me to go on a blind date. Little feather. I didn't know. Don't you ever mind. I'm not going. Xiao Yunyue's voice was a little choked. Fearing that Chen Yu would misunderstand, she hurriedly explained. Chen Yu just smiled and rubbed Xiao Yunyue's hair. It's okay. Just go and meet. After the blind date, just say you don't feel anything. Looking at the situation just now, Shen Yu's heart was clear. Xiao Yunyuan must have refused harshly and had a conflict with her family. In this situation, there wasn't much point in stopping Xiao Yunyue. Therefore, Chen Yu did not stop it. Xiao Yunyue looked at Chen Yu, a flash of gratitude surfacing in her gaze. In the next moment, she gritted her teeth and said, Little feather, why don't you accompany me on a blind date? Accompany you on a blind date? Chen Yu froze. This girl can ah, bring a boyfriend to a blind date. This operation is no one. Aha! Looking at Xiao Yunyue's puffed up appearance, Shen Yu smiled and nodded. Yeah, let's go on a blind date together then. Shen Yu didn't push back. The blind date was scheduled for noon the next day. That night, Xiao Yunyue was called back home. As soon as she entered the house, Xiao Yunyue froze. Inside the home, there was not only his father Xiao Wanshan and mother Zhang Yuan, but also his second aunt Zhang Fang's family. Several people smiled when they saw Xiao Yunyue. Yo, look at that. Miss Goddess of our family is back. Zhang Fang was all smiles as she walked forward and held Xiao Yunyue's hand. Hello auntie too. Xiao Yunyue coldly greeted. On the phone Xiao Wanshan mentioned that this blind date was contacted by Zhang Fang's husband. As a result, she didn't have a good face for Zhang Fang's family. Zhang Yuan frowned and said, You child, what kind of attitude is this? Your second aunt's family has been busy for your sake. Look at you. Aya. Sis, don't blame you you. This time it was indeed very sudden. It's normal for her to have some emotions. Zhang Fang smiled and spoke, saying, You you, you'll know later. I'm doing this for your own good. For my own good? Auntie too. I already have a boyfriend. Have you guys ever thought about me when you're forcing me to go on a blind date? Xiao Yunyue was a bit agitated and her voice was much louder. Zhang Fang laughed and said, Then you you let me ask you, are you and your boyfriend married now? Xiao Yunyue froze. Of course we're not married. That's not it. If you're not married, everyone has a choice. Besides, when you're married, there's divorce. You're so pretty and you're a senior. How does the average boy deserve you? A comment that made Xiao Yunyue freeze. It had to be said that in front of a middle-aged woman, a young girl's fighting ability was still too weak. But, gee, nothing but. Zhang Fang waved her hand, interrupting Xiao Yunyue's words. You don't know how good this boy your second aunt's husband introduced you to this time. That boy. But the young master of the Ding family, Ding Yuan, do you know the Ding family? It's the Ding family that's in the automobile trade business and has assets of over a billion dollars. In the living room, other than Xiao Yunyue, everyone else looked a bit agitated. That's the Ding family, a powerful family. Ding Yuan's father, Ding Chuan, started with nothing and was even on local TV. This kind of character was not something they could even come into contact with on a normal day. Hey, 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 quickly tell me, that Ding Yuan, how does he know are you you? Zhang Yuan's eyes glowed as she opened her mouth to inquire. Zhang Fang looked smug and patted the man beside her. This is also thanks to my family's Lao Dai. 
the boss of their company, who happened to have dinner with Ding Chuan and got to know each other. Then Ding Chuan's son, Ding Yuan, said he had a friend who went to school with Yu Yu, and then he hooked up. Gee, never mind how we met, if you have this opportunity, you must seize it. Zheng Fang looked at Xiao Yunyue and said, Yu Yu, I can tell you, this pair of father and son of the Ding family, ah, that's too capable. Ding Chuan started from nothing and created the Nuota family business. I've heard that their family, alone, has three or four sets of villas, and a dozen sets of large flat floors in the city. Not only that, but their family has about 20 stores, and this Ding Yuan Ah, uh, is also a talented man, a big man of 1 meter 8, works out all year round, and has studied abroad. After he came back, he started his own business, opened a network company, and now it's also developing very well, with dozens of people under his hands. In the living room, there was a gasp. Xiao Wanshan and Zhang Yuan looked at each other, their faces reddening. The condition, it's a ceiling, if it works out, you will have no worries for the rest of her life. Aya, Wanshan, this this this, we must treat Xiao Fang's family to a big meal. Xiao Wanshan nodded his head repeatedly and was happy. Definitely definitely. Yu Yu, why don't you thank your second aunt? Xiao Yunyue's face remained stoic. After listening to Zhang Fang's introduction, her expression did not fluctuate in the slightest. Auntie too, I told you, I already have a boyfriend. Moreover, when I, Xiao Yunyue, look for a boyfriend, I don't look at his wealth, but at him as a person. What I like, I like even if I'm poor. What I don't like, even if I'm rich, has nothing to do with me. The atmosphere plummeted. Zhang Fong froze, then laughed and shook his head. You you ah, you still don't understand things. This thing called feelings, it also needs a material foundation. You go and see how many relationships in school end up working out? Let me ask you, that boyfriend of yours, can he compete with the Ding family? Xiao Yunyue bit her lower lip and said, In my heart, no one can compare to him. Really? Well then, how about this? How about tomorrow you bring your boyfriend and accompany you on a blind date? Zhang Fang's words, however, made Xiao Yunyue hesitate. Earlier, she had thought the same thing, but after hearing the introduction, she had some regrets. If we really have to bring Chen Yu here, will he feel inferior? What? Don't dare anymore? Look, you also know that your boyfriend is not as good as Ding Yuan, right? Humph. Just bring it. What's there to be afraid of? Xiao Yunyue spoke stiffly. A few people looked at each other and all smiled softly. In the end, they are children and can't be provoked. Bring that Chen Yu tomorrow, and when he sees Ding Yuan, he should know the gap and will quit voluntarily. At the same time, the Ding family. Ding Yuan looked at a photo on his phone with a shocked expression. Dad, is this the legendary mister? Chen, looking at the photos in his cell phone, Ding Yuan's eyes showed admiration and shock. The three words mister. Chen were like a myth in Jin Chuan City's high society. Ding Chuan also talked to Ding Yuan, but it was the first time he had seen Chen Yu's picture. In Ding Yuan's imagination, Mr. Chen should be a middle-aged man. Without anger, his gaze was like thunder, making people not dare to look at him at all. But now that he looked at it, it was so different from what he had imagined. This was clearly a fluttering, turbulent young man. Even if he made a debut on the spot, he would definitely be able to attract a large wave of face fans. And, even though there was only a side-by-side -side photo, Ting Yuan could tell something was different. Mr. Chen's eyes, they're too deep. It seems that in it, there is a sea of stars. This kind of look was simply not something a normal person could have. Yes, this is the legendary Mr. Chen. Ding Chuan let out a long sigh of emotion. I also didn't expect Mr. Chen to be a young man. It's also a coincidence this time. One of my past brothers, who happens to be one of Zhao Ji's men, got this photo. Xiao Yuan, if you meet this Mr. Chen in the future, don't be blind and offend him. Ding Yuan smiled at his words. Dad, what kind of status is Mr. Chen, how could I possibly meet him? Ding Chuan shook his head and said, nothing is absolute. I heard that this Mr. Chen, now hiding his identity, is attending the Jiangling University of Science and Technology to experience life. Maybe you've come across one. It's never wrong to always pay more attention. Ding Yuan froze, Jiangling University of Science and Technology? Uh, what's wrong? It's nothing, it's just that I'm asking you to help me out. Dad, with that blind date that's from the Jiangling University of Science and Technology. Oh, that's a coincidence. Ding Chuan was also a bit surprised and smiled as he patted Ding Yuan on the shoulder. You kid, don't chase after Mr. Chen's woman. Hearing the snark, Ding Yuan rolled his eyes. Dad, how is such a thing possible? Ha ha, I was just kidding. I won't go on your blind date this time. Well, you don't have to go for such a small thing. 
Ding Yuan waved his hand. The two were in agreement. The Ding family is a big family, and Ding Chuan is busy with daily affairs. How can he spend his energy for such a trivial matter? The Xiao family, not yet to the point of making the Ding family look at each other as equals. Okay, when the blind date works out, bring it back to me. But I can tell you, it's not going to be easy for me. It's not that easy for her to enter the gates of my Ding family. Ding Yuan nodded. I know. Don't worry dad. I'm just going to take a look. If it didn't work, I wouldn't have brought it back for you to see. Aha. Uh -huh. The time soon came to the next day. Xiao Yunyue brought Shen Yu and went directly to the restaurant. Feather, you can go back now if you don't want to come. Xiao Yunyue opened her mouth, still somewhat torn. Shen Yu gently laughed and scraped Xiao Yunyue's nose. I know you're worried about me, but it's okay. I also want to experience what it's like to accompany my own girlfriend on a blind date. Xiao Yunyue gently hammered Chen Yu's shoulder, gently biting her lower lip. You badass. The two soon reached the door of the box. Xiao Yunyue held Chen Yu's hand, took a deep breath, and walked into the box. Xiao Wanshan, Zhang Yuan, and Zhang Fang's family of three had already taken their seats. Seeing Xiao Yunyue bring Chen Yu in, several people simultaneously cast their gazes. After a quick look around, a few people were a bit surprised. This young man, he is so handsome. If you go by looks alone, it's also worthy of Suzuki. Unfortunately, if you compare it to family conditions, it's a far cry from Dinwon. You, what's gotten into you? Xiao Wanshan frowned when he saw Xiao Yunyue holding Chen Yu's hand. Xiao Yunyue clenched tighter. Hoomph, he's my boyfriend. I'm happy with that. Xiao Yunyue shook Chen Yu's hand as if she was gambling and sat down with Chen Yu. Seeing this, Zhang Feng smiled and said, Yu Yu has grown up. She doesn't even listen to her brother-in-law anymore. Yo, but the lad is a handsome one. Luna, aren't you going to introduce everyone? Xiao Yunyue said. His name is Chen Yu. He was in the same major as me and is now my boyfriend. Hearing Zhang Feng praise Chen Yu, Xiao Yunyue was slightly pleased and spoke proudly. Hello everyone. Chen Yu nodded and greeted a few people. Seeing this, several people were slightly stunned. Wan Shan, this young man, why does he feel a bit unusual? Zhang Yuan came up to Xiao Wanshan's ear and muttered in a low voice. You feel it too? This young man's temperament. It's quite extraordinary. They were both middle-aged and had seen many characters of all shapes and sizes. To be fair, everyone has a unique temperament. There are only two ways the average young person can behave when this happens. One is nervousness, the other is deliberately trying to show herself off. But Chen Yu was different. Although it was just a greeting, anyone could see Chen Yu's bland and self-assured appearance. Xiao Wanshan had seen many characters, but he had never seen anyone with this kind of calm temperament. For a while, he came to be interested in Chen Yu. Where is your family from? Young man, what do your parents do? I'm from Phoenix. My father left home when I was a child and I've never seen him. As for my mother, she is no longer working. At one point, the crowd's brows were furrowed. This young man, his family is not well off. So what did you get on the college entrance exam? Zhang Yuan opened her mouth to inquire. I didn't take the college entrance exam when my mother was seriously ill and I dropped out of school to work in a factory. It was only by chance that I recently enrolled in JNTU. Chen Yu's demeanor remained flat, without the slightest hint of embarrassment. Put, Xiao Wan Shan had just taken a sip of tea, and when he heard this, he spat it all out. You, you dropped out of school to work in a factory? Xiao Wan Shan's eyes were wide open and his entire body was confused. Immediately afterward, his face was an iron blue color. You is a highly talented student from a 985 university. How could she hang out with this kind of people? The others didn't look good either. Zhang Fang even felt like the sky was falling. God, my baby girl, with all those suitors at school, how did she find someone like this? In the room, the atmosphere was sullen to the core. When Xiao Yunyue saw this, her heart shrunk slightly. Inexplicably nervous, Shen Yu remained open and composed without the slightest embarrassment. That's the bottom line that comes with strength. The current Shen Yu didn't care about the so-called family lineage or power. His mind has long since transcended the world. Xiao Wanshan glanced at Chen Yu, and the more he looked at him, the more displeased he became. How can one's family's cabbage be given away by such a person? Jiang Wan, how long before he arrives at Ding Yuan? Xiao Wanshan opened his mouth to inquire. Zhang Yuan froze and looked at her watch. He should be downstairs by now. Xiao Wanshan nodded and looked towards Chen Yu, his gaze carrying a touch of oppression. Chen Yu, do you know the Ding family? Hearing Xiao Wanshan's words, the crowd's gazes were playful. Is this? Is this going to put pressure on Chen Yu? Chen Yu thought about the two and shook his head. Haven't heard. He didn't know much about Jin Chuan City. At the top, it would be Zhao Gu and the others. As for the others, he really didn't have time to find out. Seeing this, 
The disdain in Xiao Wanshan's eyes intensified. That's right. It's unlikely that someone at his level would have heard of the Ding family. Zhang Feng, talk to Qing Yu. Yeah. Zhang Feng answered with a smile and looked at Chen Yu. Chen Yu ah, this time when Yu Yu called for you to come, you should also know what's going on. You young people are all about free love. These ants know that. But after all, Yu Yu is our treasure in the palm of our hand. We have to be responsible for him as well. That's why this blind date was arranged today. It also allows you to make her own choice. What about the Ding family? The other party to this blind date. Chen Yu nodded. Zhang Fong spoke clearly, making him a little curious about this Ding family. Uh, go ahead. Zhang Fong froze. How come this guy is still in this state now? So cloudy? And he's not worried at all? Suppressing the disbelief in her heart, Zhang Fong slowly opened her mouth and introduced the Ding family. So many sets of houses. There are several luxury cars. The store collects rent up to its eyeballs. The industry is incredibly profitable. In Zhang Fong's description, the Ding family was like a famous family in Jinchuan City. Ding Yuan was even better. Praised by Zhang Fang as a flower. Young and handsome. Young and talented. Handsome and one of a kind. It's like a male protagonist out of a manga. Xiao Wan Shan and Zhang Yuan. Smiled so much that their eyes curved out of the crescent moon. Just hearing Ding Yuan's conditions. It's completely impossible to refuse ah. Xiao Yunyue's brows were furrowed. And there was a strong sense of impatience on her face. She quietly looked at Chen Yu with some concern. Chen Yu's wealth, naturally, could not be compared to the Ding family. Would he feel inferior because of this? However, seeing that Chen Yu's expression remained calm, Xiao Yunyue secretly breathed a sigh of relief. After listening to Zhang Fang's introduction, Chen Yu probably knew the situation. It turned out to be a merchant family with rich assets, but all aspects of networking are still quite a bit off. Overall, the overall strength of the Ding family was still a bit poor, so it was no wonder that he wasn't quite sure. Chen Yu, now that you know, what kind of person is Ding Yuan? Zhang Fang looked at Chen Yu and spoke seriously. She wanted Chen Yu to know what to do, but he was disappointed. Chen Yu just nodded lightly. I see, a nice young man. Chen Yu gave his assessment. In all fairness, Ding Yuan does count himself as an up-and-comer. Zhang Fang froze, looking at Chen Yu, and for a moment, she unexpectedly did not know what to say. In her thoughts, Chen Yu might have low self-esteem and might be angry. There may even be a cry of 30 years. 30 years, 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 30 years. But what's going on here? How does he manage to be so blasé? How can you say such a thing? Like critiquing a junior? The others in the gallery froze. Like Zhang Feng, they were somewhat overwhelmed by Chen Yu's performance. Everyone stared and looked a little silly. Xiao Yunyue snorted when she saw this. Feather, it's worthy of you. This calmness, it makes them not calm. Originally, he was still worried about how Chen Yu would cope. Unexpectedly, Chen Yu's sentence directly allowed them to break their defense. Knock knock. Just then, there was a knock on the door of the room. Din turns up at the door. Excuse me, is this Uncle Shaw's family? Xiao Wanshan turned his head to look, his eyes flashing. Ah, it's Ding Yuan. Ha ha ha. We've been waiting for you for a long time. They had seen Ding Yuan's picture before and immediately recognized it. Seeing Ding Yuan, several people couldn't care less about Chen Yu, and they all got up and came to the door, surrounding Ding Yuan. Today, Ding Yuan is wearing a high fashion suit that is very classy. Her hair was also styled and she wore a little cologne. At first glance, it sells extremely well. Xiao Wanshan and Zhang Yuan looked up and down, left and right, and the more they looked, the more they liked it and they couldn't stop smiling. Aya, I've long heard that you're a talented man, but now that I've seen you in person, the rumors are still a bit conservative. That's right, Obara really looks like the hero of a movie. So handsome. Gee, well, 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 well. Hearing the compliments from the crowd. Ding Yuan smiled in response. Your uncles and aunts are flattered. My father had some business today, so he didn't come over. So please forgive me, uncles and aunts. At those words, Xiao Wanshan and the others waved their hands in succession. It's fine. It's fine. Chairman Ding is so busy. It's okay if he didn't come. Yes. 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 As long as you're here. Obara. Xiao Wanshan and the others also kept making excuses for Ding Chuan's absence. By the way. I heard that you you and his boyfriend are also here? It's just as well that we're all young people. Exchanging ideas together. Ding Yuan smiled and opened his mouth. Revealing a mouthful of large white teeth. He had heard about it before he came. 
Xiao Yunyue is bringing her boyfriend over. To this, he was totally unconcerned. So what if you have a boyfriend? What woman wouldn't be confused when she sees her condition? Even if she has a boyfriend, with her charm, she can change her mind. Even, Ding Yuan had some expectations. Getting Xiao Yunyue and crushing the other boy should feel pretty good too. Ah, well, 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 you young people talk more. Xiao Wanshan and the others immediately smiled and nodded. Oh, it's not bad to come back from studying abroad. Look at the temperament. The quality. That Chun Yu. It's not comparable to him at all. Suzuki, why don't you come over and meet Kohara? Zhang Yuan hurriedly turned back and greeted the house. Xiao Yunyue and Shen Yu were sitting with their backs to the door. And when they heard this, they got up and looked at Ding Yuan. Xiao Yunyue's face was filled with impatience. Shen Yu's face, however, was somewhat curious. Accompanying your girlfriend on a blind date is fun to think about. Upon seeing Xiao Yunyue, Ding Yuan's eyes lit up. Beauty, it's so beautiful. And the temperament is so unique. It's nothing like those Netflix models and such. It was the right trip. With just one glance, Ding Yuan fell. After staring for several seconds, he turned his head to look at Shen Yu. Come on, come on, let me see. Who am I up against? Yo, so handsome? Ha, huh, wait a minute. Wait, why do I feel? Something looks familiar. Like I've seen it somewhere? It's looking more and more familiar. Where the hell have I seen it before? I chow. Come to think of it. Damn last night. My dad showed me. Mr. Chen's picture. Nima. He he he. He's. Is he. Chen. Mr. Chen. Boom. Ding Yuan was like five thunderbolts. And his entire body stayed in place. Ding Chuan's words last night echoed wildly in his mind. I heard that Mr. Chen is experiencing life at the Jiangling University of Science and Technology. You kid. Don't steal a woman from Mr. Chen. At this moment, Ding Yuan's body was cold, like falling into an ice cellar, and his mind was blank. What the hell? I'm going to steal a woman from Mr. Chen. Hey, Ohara, what's wrong with you? Suddenly so pale? Come on, come on, do it. You and Luna sit together and have a good conversation. Off to the side. Jiang Wan greeted with a big smile. Zhang Yuan was incredibly enthusiastic and had already treated Ding Yuan as her own son. To the side. Xiao Wanshan nodded repeatedly. Yes, 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 sit down, sit down, let's drink Mao Tai today. Zhang Feng's family also kept saying hello. In the room, there was a lot of laughter and the atmosphere was so good that it exploded. But, Ding Yuan remained frozen in place, his hands constantly trembling. Fear that took his breath away. God, how did this happen? Dad, you hit the nail on the head. Xiao Yun Yue's boyfriend is really Mr. Chen, this, this, this. How can this be fun? Ding Yuan wanted to cry. He's very self-aware. This is a good fortune for yourself. Among ordinary people. But what is that in Mr. Chen's eyes? No shit. It's really like playing when people want to destroy themselves. I don't want to sit with him. Xiao Yunyue leaned towards Chen Yu's side and stared at Ding Yuan with a mischievous expression. Din Wan. I was forced to come here. I have a boyfriend. Xiao Wanshan's face immediately sank. Why don't you have any manners? You child? No manners at all. Ding Yuan, however, was so frightened that he wanted to cry. It's over. It's over. Mr. Chen's woman has a big problem with me. If I don't handle this well, my Ding family will be finished. And by the looks of it, they didn't know Mr. Chen's identity. I can't tell either. Or Mr. Chen will never spare me. Not forward. Not backward. At this moment, Ding Yuan was like an ant on a hot pan. Sweating anxiously. After a quick turn of mind, he hurriedly opened his mouth. I think MS. Shaw has a very good point. Actually, I didn't come here today for a blind date. Ding Yuan was righteous and suddenly became incredibly solemn. Zhang Yuan and the others froze. Ha, huh, this, not a blind date? Ding Yuan's face was serious and he nodded heavily. Yes, I'm actually here to wish MS. Shaw and her boyfriend well. As soon as I saw the two of you, I felt that you were a match made in heaven and earth. And it couldn't have been more fitting. You are soulmates. A golden couple. A man and a woman a beautiful pair. I came here to bless you too. And in the future you two will surely be able to grow old together and tie the knot forever. At this moment, Ding Yuan used all the words he could think of. In the box, the crowd stared in disbelief. What? What the hell is this? He he he. Why did he suddenly come and say that? Come to bless? Soulmates? What's this all about? Xiao Yunyue stared in disbelief. In her mind, a big question mark surfaced. From the time before the blind date, she was ready to fight. When we went into battle, the other side didn't have any weapons. And drag yourself to dance? Shen Yu looked at Ding Yuan, pondering, 
Little, Ohara, what are you talking about? Today you are the main character. Come on, sit down first, let's talk slowly. Zheng Fan pulled Ding Yuan's arm and tried to drag him to the table. Maybe Ding Yuan just minded Chen Yu. So he said this on purpose. After sitting down and talking, he naturally let go. No, 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 no. Ding Yuan broke away from Zhang Fang and waved his hands repeatedly. Sit here and eat? What's the difference between that and looking for death? If he really sat down, he would definitely look like the kind of cannon fodder villain in novels, and be stepped on by Mr. Chen without even a crumb left Ah, By the way, I've got things to do at home, so I'll leave you to it. By the way, M.S. Shaw, I've never wanted to go on a blind date with you, so please don't ever misunderstand. I always maintain the utmost respect for you. With that, I, I'll leave you. Ding Yuan scattered his legs and scurried out of the hotel in a puff of smoke. Standing in the doorway of the hotel, he thrust his back and gasped for breath with a startled look on his face. Damn, it's been a hell of a day. Luckily, I had seen Mr. Chen's picture last night, or else I really wouldn't know how to die. Chang Hao Ming, how the hell do you dare to trap me? You wait for me. Thinking of Chang Hao Ming made Ding Yuan furious. And you said you'd introduce a beautiful woman to yourself? This is trying to screw up your own family. Getting in the car, Ding Yuan kicked the gas and sped out. In the box, the people looked at each other, wide-eyed. What's this? What's this? What's going on? Zhang Yuan was dumbfounded and asked Zhang Fang who was at the side. Zhang Fang was filled with consternation. I don't know about that either. It was clearly all set up earlier. And somehow this whole thing came up. Hey, I can't believe I missed such a good opportunity. Xiao Wanshan slapped his butt on the seat, slapped his thighs, and let out a long sigh. Xiao Yunyue let out a long breath, her face full of smiles. I don't know exactly what it was, but the day was finally successfully passed. Chen Yu watched through the window as Ding Yuan drove away. The corner of his mouth hooked into a smile. It seems that this guy should know his identity? Nice young man indeed. Immediately conceded and ran. For Ding Yuan, Chen Yu couldn't talk about any feelings. It's like seeing a mole on the side of the road. There will be no love or hate. If the mole doesn't bother you, then leave it to its own devices. If it disturbs, just run over it. Now that Ding Yuan had left, he had no intention of pursuing the matter. Dad. Mom. It looks like this blind date is yellow today. So we'll leave first ha. Huh? Xiao Yunyue smiled and opened her mouth, pulling Chen Yu away from the box. In the box, a few people's faces were gloomy. Until now, they hadn't understood what was going on. A good blind date. How come it's yellow? Did you guys notice that Ding Yuan's behavior just now? Was very off. Xiao Wanshan frowned and opened his mouth. Zhang Yuan blankly eyed Xiao Wanshan. Why do you need to say this? Even a fool can see it. I mean, he was normal when he first walked in the door. But what changed all of a sudden? Ding Yuan seemed particularly scared and flustered. Eager to clear the air with you? When exactly did it start? Several people sniffed and all frowned in recollection. Well, as he entered, Ting Era greeted him warmly. And then there's a good exchange with Moon's boyfriend. Then greeted Luna and Ting Era in greeting. After saying hello. And so on. Suddenly, with a simultaneous pang, several people looked at each other and spoke in unison. Say hello. Everything. Happened after Ding Yuan had greeted Xiao Yunyue and Chen Yu. But, why did Ding Yuan change after just a quick hello? Is it, is it because of Chen Yu? Xiao Wanshan was shaken and filled with incredulity. But what is Chen Yu's status? How can he make Ding Yuan afraid? That doesn't make sense. While several people were thinking hard, a car pulled into the hotel's parking lot. From the car, a few people stepped off. Each man was straight-backed and very exuberant. One of them was none other than Yi Tsongqing. Elder Yi, is Mr. Chen really here? On the side, a middle-aged man asked Yi Tsongqing. Yi Tsongqing nodded. Chen Yu's cell phone hasn't been answered, and it was only through multiple inquiries that I learned that he was eating here with his girlfriend. Let's go. Let's go upstairs and pick up the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, the Dragon General of our Dragon Kingdom. Rubbing his hands together, Yi Tsongqing grinned. On the way back to school, Xiao Yunyue bounced around like a happy lark all the time. After today, she felt lighter all over. Little Feather, what do you say about that Ding Yuan? Why is he so abnormal all of a sudden? Does he look like he's scared? Am I that scary? Chen Yu gently laughed and said, I guess I scared him. You scared him? Xiao Yunyue froze. Chen Yu nodded. Yeah, I'm a martial arts master with a powerful aura. And I'm also the Dragon Zoon of the Dragon Kingdoms in Human Bureau and the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. Do you think he's afraid of seeing me? Xiao Yunyue put her hands behind her back and came up to Chen Yu with a smirk on her face. Do you think I believe that? Chen Yu shook his head helplessly and spread his hands. 
No one believes in telling the truth these days. Okay, I believe it. Okay, our little you can be powerful at. High status, powerful. Ding Yuan was scared as soon as he saw you okay. Xiao Yunyue walked forward and suddenly looked at Chun Yu extremely seriously. Feather, you must become a writer in the future. It's too bad you don't write about these ideas of yours. Chun Yu, for the first time, he had the urge to press Xiao Yunyue on the bed and spank her. The kind that slaps you in the face. Ha ha, let's go. Big writer, what do you want to eat? I'll treat you. Well, I want to eat you. Oh, so I'll go run a couple laps and warm up your food? Hurrah. He he. Nice try. I'm teasing you. Hotel box. Looking at the dishes that had come up, Xiao Wanshan and the others had no appetite at all. They were puzzled, but what they felt most deeply was loss. Ding Yuan, like a lottery ticket worth billions of dollars. But when it comes time to cash the ticket, you suddenly realize that you can't cash the ticket? The fallout is palpable. Hey, let's eat first. We can't waste these dishes. Xiao Wanshan took a bite of the dish and let out a long sigh. Knock knock. At this time, there was a knock on the door. Immediately after the door to the room opened, Yi Sungqing several people walked in. Who are you guys? Wrong box, right? Xiao Wanshan looked at the few people and was a bit surprised. Zhang Yuan and a few others did the same. But even though it was the first time they met, several people felt out that Yi Sungqing several people were extraordinary. They had that special aura about them that ordinary people couldn't have. If I had to say, it would be obvious at a glance that these people are human beings. And, still, very high up on the list of people, Yi Songxing looked around the room, a little puzzled. Smiling softly, he asked, Excuse me, has Mr. Chen not arrived yet? Mr. Chen, which Mr. Chen? Today is my Xiao family's family banquet. There's no such thing as Mr. Chen. Xiao Wanshan and the others froze. The Xiao family, the family feast? Then you must be Xiao Yunyue's father? Yi Songxing smiled and said, Mr. Chen is your daughter, Xiao Yunyue's boyfriend. Boom! A comment that blew a few people's brains out. These imposing people are here to find Chen Yu? This, how is this possible? What the hell is going on? Wasn't Chen Yu a working class dropout? How is it connected to these people? Beside Yi Songsheng, a middle-aged man with a stalwart face frowned slightly. Elder Yi, General Chen is not here? Yi Songsheng shook his head. It should be right here. Turning his head and looking at Xiao Wanshan, Yi Songsheng once again inquired. I wonder how long before your daughter and Mr. Chen and the others, arrive? We have some urgent matters for Mr. Chen. Ha, oh, he, they've gone. Gone? Well, they didn't stay for dinner and rushed back to school. Rush back to school. Yi Songsheng sighed and clasped his fists at a few people. I'm sorry to interrupt. So we'll take our leave. Wait. A few people were about to leave when Xiao Wanshan called out to them. That, I would like to ask. Chen Yu, what does he, what exactly does he do? A question that froze Yi Songsheng. After a brief moment of reflection, he returned, Mr. Chen doesn't have to do anything. There will naturally be someone to do everything for him. Zhang Yuan and the others froze. That's a lot of information in that sentence. Generally speaking, only the kind of people in high positions of power have this kind of treatment. Did. So, I have to ask, who are you guys again? That you don't need to know. All you need to know is that we're from the state. Xiao Wanshan's heart shook. People from the state. Isn't that institutionalized? Chun Yu. Two, several people. What level is Chun Yua? Unable to resist his curiosity, Xiao Wanshan continued to ask. The corner of Yi Sunjing's mouth hooked up slightly. Level? Well, it's a very high level. In Human Bureau of Dragon Dignity, Dragon Kingdom Dragon General, Chief Instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, if these few casually took out one of them, it would be an existence that ordinary people would need to look up to. Xiao Wanshan was a bit confused. That young man, Chun Yu, still, Still has this kind of status? Eh, a few of you. I wonder if you recognize the Ding family. Xiao Wanshan suddenly inquired. Perhaps the strange behavior that Ding Yuan had just displayed was because of these people? The Dingas? What's that? Yi Songxing's few people looked at each other with puzzled faces. You guys don't recognize it? It's the Ding family in Jinchuan City. Ding Chuan is worth more than a billion dollars and does the automobile trade business. Their family is awesome. Just now, Ding Yuan he even met Chen Yu. Xiao Wanshan was in a hurry to explain. HM, an ordinary person doing business is qualified to meet Mr. Chen. Yi Sanxing was surprised. Xiao Wanshan, Zhang Yuan and the others also froze. This, what kind of talk is this? The Ding family, in the eyes of these people, is just an ordinary businessman? It sounded as if it was an honor for the Ding family to meet Chen Yu. Heavens, Chen Yu, what kind of identity is he? In the end, 
to make a few people say such things? Could it be that Chun Yu is that much higher than the Ding family? For a while, the hearts of Xiao Wanshan's few people all set off shocking waves. That, Chen Yu's status, is it high? Xiao Wanshan did not die and continued to pursue the question. Yi Songxing nodded. How high? Yi Songxing put his hands behind his back, looked up at the ceiling and let out a long sigh. Unattainable. Okay guys, we have business to attend to. See you later. Yi Songxing's few people left and traveled towards Chen Yu's school. In the box, Xiao Wanshan and the others had frozen. Unreachable. The Dingas are just ordinary people. Listen to this. It's all about the words of the tiger and the wolf. By the way, did you guys hear how that person shouted at Chen Yu just now? What he said, is General Chen. Boom. Xiao Wanshan's body trembled. His face full of incredulity. Could it be that Chen Yu? He, is, is a general? Right, that must be it. Ding Yuan must have known about Chen Yu's identity. That's why he suddenly became like that. Man, Suzuki he, got a young general for a boyfriend. Xiao Wanshan's eyes lit up. The feeling is like missing a $10 million ticket and scratching out a $10 billion jackpot. Jang Wan's brain buzzed. Moon's boyfriend, so powerful? The entire box was shrouded in an eerie atmosphere. Everyone's face was incredibly complicated. A general in his 20s? Is that possible? But what those people said just now was by no means false. After all, the temperament is there. It seems we were both wrong. Xiao Wanshan let out a long sigh and spoke. Actually, the one with the best vision is Yu Yu. The others were silent. Indeed, previously, they all thought that the Ding family was already unattainable. But according to the words of the man just now, it was an honor for him to even meet Chen Yu. How big should the gap be? No wonder. As soon as I saw Chen Yu, I felt that this young man was not ordinary. He he, a general ah, can it be general? What we did just now. In his eyes, I'm afraid it's all a joke. Several people blushed slightly in embarrassment. Thinking of all the previous events, they could not wait to find a crack in the ground to burrow into. By the way, did you guys notice that the person who shouted General Chen just now seemed familiar? Hey, from what you've said, I have a feeling I've seen it somewhere too. Yeah, 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 me too. Xiao Wanshan's few people stared wide-eyed, trying to recall. Wait, I seem to recall that it was a military program on TV. He, seems to be called Du Yuan Ming, a major general of the Dragon Kingdom. Xiao Wanshan exclaimed violently. Really? Zhang Yuan was in a bit of disbelief. Gee, wouldn't you know if you looked it up on the internet? Zhang Yuan didn't hesitate and pulled out her cell phone, searching for Du Yuan Ming. At once, all of his information was presented in front of everyone's eyes. Major General of the Dragon Kingdom, highly decorated. Upon seeing the introduction, several people were confused. Heavens, this legendary big shot had personally come to find Chen Yu? This, 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 what kind of face is this? The Ding family was simply a small shrimp compared to this kind of character. Quick, call Luna. Zhang Yuan suddenly opened her mouth in surprise. Xiao Wanshan froze and hastily nodded. Hello, the number you have dialed is in the middle of a call. Please dial again later. On the phone, there was a beep. Xiao Wanshan's face was odd. This girl, hanging up on me. Hey, forget it, let them be. Let's eat. Aya, uh, I feel like this meal ah, uh, is suddenly delicious. On Zhang Yuan's face, she was full of smiles. The crowd laughed and were in a good mood. When one man gets a government position, he gets a government position. Xiao Yunyue has such a boyfriend. So in the future, all of them, won't they take off? On the other side, Shen Yu and Xiao Yunyue had returned to the university, finding a random small restaurant. The two of them ordered two orders of duck leg rice and wolfed it down. During this time, Xiao Yunyue saw Xiao Wanshan's phone call and directly hung up. Not answering? Well, don't answer it. And you're not allowed to answer the phone if you don't have anything urgent to do. Give me all your time today. Chen Yu smiled and nodded. Yeah, no problem. Chen Yu took out his cell phone and showed Xiao Yunyue that the phone was turned off. Xiao Yunyue smiled, her eyes curving into a crescent moon. The two ate and went back to school to hang out. Jiangling University of Science and Technology entrance. An SUV drove up slowly and attracted a lot of attention. Because, the SUV was photographed in black and had a very specific license plate. A student saw it and sucked in a breath of cold air. My goodness, this license plate is not ordinary. It's all those big shots from the army. Hiss, what's this kind of person doing in our school? I don't know, maybe there's some kind of mission? The crowd speculated and watched the SUV enter the school. In the car, a man was a little hesitant. I say, would it be a bit too flashy for us to just come in here and look for Mr. Chen? Yi Songxing smiled helplessly. There's no way. Invite Chen Yu to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces as soon as possible so those brats can train for one more day. Now that his cell phone is off, 
That's the only way we can find him. Do you want Ming nodded, his face full of seriousness. Soldiers are quick. There's no time to lose at all. Let's go straight to the principal. Soon, the group arrived at the principal's office and found Gua Heping. After identifying himself, Gua Heping was terrified. A big shot like Du Yuan Ming came here? I wonder what a few of you are here for. Gua Heping accompanied the caution and opened his mouth to inquire. Yi Sanqing smiled and waved his hand. There's no need to be nervous, Principal Gua. I'm here today just to ask you for a favor. What favor? Help us find someone. Looking for someone? Du Yuan Ming opened his mouth to explain. Well, we're going to ask General Chen to hurry back with us. Chen. General Chen? Gua Heping blinked his eyes, a head full of questions. Looking for a general? How did you find the university? Oh, it's like this. This General Chen. His name is Chen Yu. I don't know if you know. What? Surprisingly, it's Chen Yu. Gua Heping screamed in terror. When Chen Yu came to Jiangling University of Science and Technology to study on loan, or he personally arranged it, he naturally knew. At that time, it was the province that made the call. Although Gua Heping knew that Chen Yu's identity was not ordinary, he never thought that Chen Yu was a general, on the same level as Du Yuan Ming. Oh, my god, is this fucking real? He's in his twenties, he's still a kid, and please ask Principal Guai to do us a favor. We have something urgent to find him. Ah, well, 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 no problem at all. That, I know the dormitory building where Chen Yu lives. I'll take you there. It's possible that he's in the dormitory. Thanks a lot. The few people didn't nag, and followed Gua Heping, heading to the dormitory building. On the way, there were also some students who recognized Du Yuan Ming and couldn't help but exclaim, Major General, you've come to our school? God, what happened? Or did Principal Kwok bring it himself? Soon, the group arrived at dormitory 604. Wang Hao and the others were hacking collectively. Seeing Gua Heping and the others coming, they were scared and got up in a hurry. Hello Principal. Uh, where's Chen Yu? Gua Heping opened his mouth to inquire. Ah, uh, little feather he didn't come back. Didn't come back? Gua Heping frowned and said. Then do you guys know where he usually goes? Eh, at this time of the day, it's possible that he's staying with his girlfriend Xiao Yunyue, right? Wang Hao scratched his head. Gua Heping frowned and thought and said. I know. After saying that, he made a pleased gesture to Yi Sanxing and the others and prepared to leave. At this time, Zhang Ji suddenly pulled Gua Heping, looking nervous. Principal, what's going on? That person just now. Is General Du Yuan Ming, right? He he he. Why is he here? Feathers nice. Never done anything bad. Gua Heping glanced at the several people with a complicated expression. You guys are really something. Do you guys realize that the little feather you're talking about is a major general of the Dragon Kingdom? General Du and the others are here to invite Chen Yu back. Several people were struck by lightning. Their eyes almost glazed over. My ass. Old Six. He's a major general. Dormitory 604. A dead silence. The five Wang Hao people looked at each other. Their face is full of astonishment. Do you want Ming? Principal Guay. Everything that just happened. Was it real or a dream? Ouch. Rat. Why the hell are you pinching me? Yao Yujing rubbed her arm and inquired angrily. Wang Hao blinked his eyes and gave a dull smile. Well, I can feel the pain. I'm not dreaming. Ha, ha, I'm yet. Can't you pinch yourself? Yao Yujing grimaced. Furious. Afterward, he looked at the direction that Gua Heping's few people had left, and was again filled with excitement. Damn, I really didn't expect that old six is so bullish. It really deserves to be old six. Zhang Ji turned red and rubbed his hands together. Shit, old six and I have even eaten pig's head and gotten drunk together before. I'm fucking bunkered. Yao Yujing's face showed disdain. Che, what are you doing? I've been sharing all the little movies I've been collecting for years with old six. I took a dragon general to a small movie. Hell, my life is worth it. A few people gave a cheer. Li Pei's eyes rolled and he said, Brothers, why don't we go look for old six now? A comment that made a few people light up and immediately agree. After a little bit of packing, a few people left the dormitory. Both Chen Yu and Xiao Yunyue's cell phones were turned off, so they could only call Xiao Yunyue's roommate, Jiang Boeing. In a small restaurant, Jiang Boeing and a few other housemates were gathering to eat and chat about gossip. Hey, you guys, what a nice girl Yu Yu is. Why did she fall for Chen Yu? A woman couldn't help but mutter. That's right. I really don't know which string is wrong with Yu Yu's brain. So many suitors, but she picked the worst one. However, Chun Yu is really quite handsome. Che, what's the use of being handsome? How can handsome be food? Don't forget. He dropped out of high school and is a factory worker. That's right. This kind of person ah. How can he be worthy of Yu Yu? If you ask me, it's still Chang Hao Ming who suits Yu Yu the most. 
So good conditions, why can't you you see it? Yeah, now Chang Haoming doesn't take much initiative either. It seems like he's been hurt. Several people were on good terms with Xiao Yunyue, and they were all fighting for her. Although a few people had fallen out a bit before because of setting up Xiao Yunyue and Chang Haoming, it did not affect their feelings for each other. Zhang Boeing shook his head helplessly. Forget it, the path was chosen by Yu Yu himself. I hope he doesn't regret it is all. Jingle bells. At this time, Zhang Boeing's phone rang. Hmm, Young Ji, what's he looking for me for? With doubts, Zhang Boeing picked up the phone. Hello, Zhang Ji, what's up? Looking for Chun Yu? How would I know where he is? What are you guys so anxious to find him for? You, what did you say? How is this? How is this possible? Hiss, my god, you're not fooling me, are you? Zhang Boeing's expression was quite normal at first, but gradually, as she answered the phone, she began to lose control. When she hung up the phone, she looked blank, her eyes staring blankly ahead as if she'd lost her mind. Park Jing, what's going on? What happened? The next person inquired with concern. Zhang Bo Jing shivered and looked at the several people, saying, Do you, do you know, what Chen Yu is, what man? A few people froze, looking at each other with some uncertainty. Isn't he just a working man? Yeah, what else could he be? Bang! Zhang Boeing slammed the table and stood up, his face flushed red. He, he's a dragon general. Just a short while ago, Principal Guo brought dragon general Du Yuan Ming and came to invite Chen Yu. Boom! In the small box, several people were struck by lightning and their minds went blank. Chen Yu, the dragon general? Can these two words, can they, can they be joined together? How is that possible? Have you been fooled? Chen Yu, how can he, how can he be a dragon general? A girl frowned and spoke. The others, after being shocked, became skeptical. Chun Yu was about the same age as them. How could he reach that level? I've been snubbed? Zhang Boeing froze, his shock subsiding slightly. On second thought, that does seem to be the case. This kind of thing is too magical to seem real in any way. Hmph. It must be the guys in dorm 604 playing truth or dare so they're teasing you on purpose. A girl spoke decisively. So, it must be. Never mind. Let's get on with the food. Zhang Boeing nodded and slowly sat down. Although it felt like this explanation was a bit far-fetched, it sounded more reliable than Chen Yu being a dragon general. A few people didn't care and continued to start eating. Just after taking two bites, Zhang Boeing's phone rang again. Ha, huh, Principal Kua? At an earlier event, Zhang Boeing and Gua Heping had been in contact and happened to have saved each other's numbers. Hey, Principal Gua, what do you want to see me about? Where are Chen Yu and Xiao Yunyue? This, I, I don't know. What is it that you are looking for Chen Yu for? S.H. What? Barta. The chopsticks in Zhang Boeing's hand fell, but she didn't notice it at all. She just looked dumbfounded. Oh, oh, I, I know. Okay, again, bye. After hanging up the phone, Zhang Boeing was in a daze. That's strange. How come Principal Gui is also looking for Chen Yu? Pa Jing, what the hell happened? What's wrong with you? Zhang Boeing trembled and looked around the room, his face incomparably complex. What I just said is true. Principal Guo said that Officer Du Yuan Ming is looking for Chen Yu everywhere. Boom. A comment that left several people collectively confused. This, how is this possible? How can a dignified officer be so young? And, to come to a college class? This, this is just not scientific. But Guo Haping's phone call has come. How can this be fake? Even if it's magical, it's still real. So that means that I, we think, not as often as how Ming. A girl muttered to herself. Her face incredibly odd. Not only her, but the rest of the few had the same expression. Shocked, dismayed, and odd. I now feel that it's not that he doesn't deserve you, you, but that you you has found him and is high on the list. A few people fought deeply. The ceilings of ordinary people don't reach people's feet. As soon as they thought that they had tried to split up Chen Yu and Xiao Yunyue, they felt a wave of fear. If they really made Chen Yu angry, a small shrimp like them wouldn't even know what would happen to them. What do you guys think Chang Hao Ming would feel if he knew? A girl suddenly asked. Several people froze, all of them looking odd. Zhang Boeing looked complicated and said, I guess, his feelings will be very complicated. In the Chang family, Chang Haoming crossed his legs and was eating grapes and watching the TV with immense complacency. Alas, by this time, Ding Yuan should already be on a blind date with Xiao Yunyue. Chang Haoming ate grapes and shook his legs, relaxed and at ease. I'm so smart, that's a great way to drive a tiger to swallow a wolf, both out of the heart of anger but also to bring a large order for the family. Gee, why am I so talented? Xiao Yunyue, you have to thank me for giving you such a chance to marry into a rich family. Bang! There was a loud bang and the door to the room was kicked in hard. 
Chang Haoming was startled, got up and looked back, and couldn't help but freeze. Chan DFA was currently standing in the doorway, gasping for air, his eyes covered in blood. Dad, what's wrong with you? Come on, come on, have some grapes to lower the fire. Chang Haoming walked over with grapes in his hand, all smiles. Our family will soon become partners with the Ding family. You can't be angry on such a good day. Chang De Fa's eyes flashed. He gritted his teeth and slapped the grapes away. I'll eat your ass. Cursing, he gripped the collar of Chang Haoming's clothes and opened his arms left and right, smacking seven or eight mouths in a row. It was all your stupid fucking idea. You bastard. You're a fucking idiot. A big idiot. Damn you're such a pussy. Chang Haoming fell to the ground. His face was hot and painful, and his brain was dizzy. The sudden turn of events left his entire body confused. What the hell is this? Why? All of a sudden. Is that? Dad. What's wrong with you? What the hell is going on here? What's going on? Let me ask you. Did you let Ding Yuan and Xiao Yunyue go on a blind date? Yes. Didn't I say before that as long as they succeed, we'll be able to cooperate with the Ding family ah. How good of a thing is this? Good thing? Good nigga. Chang De Fa pointed at Chang Haoming and cursed. Do you realize that Ding Chuan has just called me? He says we're screwing them over. That we're letting them offend that kind of big shot. Now not only will they not cooperate with us, but they will use all their connections to screw us over. Just now, several clients have already called me and cancelled their cooperation with us. Damn. Our Chang family is in danger of extinction. Boom. Chang Haoming was confused. His brain buzzing. The dingas aren't cooperating? And destroy us? We caused them to offend the big boys? Crap. What is this all about? Dad. Is there some kind of misunderstanding here? Misunderstanding? I damn well hope it's a misunderstanding. I explained. But they said they wanted me to come back and ask you. They said you knew all about it. What the hell is the identity of that boyfriend of Xiao Yun Yu's? Chen Yu's identity? What identity can he have? Isn't he just a wage earner? Chang Haoming stared in disbelief. A wage earner? A wage earner who can make the Ding family like this? Are you a fucking idiot? Jingle bells. Just at this moment, Chang Haoming's cell phone placed on the coffee table rang. The caller was Jung Boeing. Chang Haoming hurriedly picked up the phone. Haoming, you must stop chasing Xiao Yunyue. You don't even know. What kind of identity Chen Yu has? Another fucking identity of Chen Yu? Chang Haoming was confused and hurriedly turned on the external playback. What the hell is going on? What the hell is Chen Yu's identity? Hey, saying it out loud is like a dream. Do you know? Chen Yu is a general. General. What? What did you say? General. General? Chang Haoming stared with wide eyes and a head full of questions. On the side. Chang DFA was also dumbfounded. Xiao Yun Yue's boyfriend. Isn't he a student at their university? This student's family was not yet well off and had worked in a factory. How come all of a sudden? You're a general? It's true. On the other end of the phone, Zhang Boeing's tone intensified a few points. Chen Yu is really a general. You don't know. Just now Principal Guo and the others came. In short, absolutely do not offend Chen Yu. He's just too lazy to bother with us because his status is too high. But if we piss him off, it's over. To Dolu, Zhang Boeing hung up the phone. In the living room, there was dead silence. Chang Dfa and Chang Haoming looked stupefied. Their mouths open like two idiots. At this moment, their brains went blank. General, Chen Yu is actually in this capacity? I, I'm arguing with a general. Chang Haoming muttered, feeling like his three views had collapsed. How magical is this nifty thing? Who would have thought that such a character could exist in a university? So it is, so it is. Chang DFA completely understood everything. Why is Ding Chuan so furious? The Nima Ding family is a big family, and they are called a powerful family in Jin Chuan City. But, in front of Chun Yu's identity, what was it? People can hold you down if they want to, even if it only takes a little bit of work. What's more, how old is Chun Yu now? At this age, to come to this point, what kind of terrifying potential should one have? Does he have some kind of counterintuitive background? If he's on to us, are we still alive? As soon as he thought of this, he felt a chill go straight from the soles of his feet to the sky, terrified and unable to control his rage. He slapped Chang Haoming and knocked him to the ground. For fuck's sake, you sinful bastard, you screwed our family over, I'll beat you to death. Chang Difat turned on Chang Haoming and punched and kicked him. In the living room, there was a series of screams. Gangnam University of Science and Technology, Xiao Yunyue held Chen Yu's hand, humming a little song as she walked down the road. She was very happy with a smile on her face and squinting her eyes. What a joy to have no outside distractions and no confusion about dating yet. The pedestrians on both sides all looked at Chen Yu and Xiao Yunyue with envy. As they walked, the two saw the jeep parked in front of the office building. Wow, black license plate, or such a nice plate number. I wonder whose car this is. 
Why did it come to our school? Chen Yu's eyes flashed with some surprise. This vehicle came to the university. Did. Although he had a guess. Chen Yu didn't care too much about it though. Feather, what do you think they're doing here? Well, I guess it's because it's coming to get me. I'll let you in on a secret. I'm a general of the Dragon Kingdom. Xiao Yunyue rolled her eyes. She silently spat in her heart at this kind of humor from Chen Yu. After the small interlude, the two of them came to the downstairs of Xiao Yunyue's dormitory. Little Feather, you did very well today. This girl has decided to reward you. Xiao Yunyue carried her hands behind her back, and her two small white rabbits protruded out. Slender two long legs, under the sky blue jeans, curvy and moving. A pair of big, watery eyes playfully looked at Chun Yu. Under the evening sun, Xiao Yunyue's body exuded an amazing charm. For a while, Chen Yu looked a bit mesmerized. What reward? He he. Xiao Yunyue carefully looked around, then flew to give Chen Yu a kiss on the cheek, biting her lower lip. She looked at Chun Yu, her face red with shame. Reward for you, big dummy. After saying that, she ran back to the dormitory building like a frightened bunny. Chen Yu touched his cheeks and a smile was drawn on the corner of his mouth. This little ninny, I love it. Xiao Yunyue returned to the dormitory and the others weren't there. She kept fanning the wind with her hands, feeling her cheeks burning. Oops, too active, too active. In the middle of the shyness, the cell phone, which had just been turned on, rang. Xiao Yunyue took a look and it was Xiao Wanshan calling. Seeing the caller's number, Xiao Yunyue pouted, her brows filled with dissatisfaction. But dissatisfaction is dissatisfaction. Xiao Wanshan is his father after all. With a sigh, Xiao Yunyue picked up the phone. Hey, you you, are you back in school, with Chun Yu? On the opposite side, came Xiao Wanshan's slightly urgent voice. Dad, please stop interfering with my feelings. I like Chun Yu, regardless of whether he has money or not, and what his family background is. Do you want to see your daughter, become a snob? I will be very unhappy if you are breaking us up like this. Xiao Yunyue gathered her courage and opened her mouth. On the opposite side, Xiao Wanshan laughed out loud. Xiao Yunyue was confused. What's going on here? Is it funny what I'm saying? Gee, my good daughter. Daddy won't stop you. Absolutely not. You fall in love with Chun Yu properly. This son-in-law. I, Xiao Wanshan, recognize it. Ha 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 ha. On the other end of the phone, came Xiao Wanshan's incomparably cheerful laughter. Xiao Yunyue was even more confused. Agreed? Still so happy? What's going on? Could it be that dad was so stimulated that his nerves went off the rails? Dad. Don't scare me. I didn't mean to piss you off. Xiao Yunyue's voice, a little flustered. Aya, uh, you girl, you don't need to think blindly. I truly agree that you two should be together. My son-in-law is a dragon general. I'm overjoyed. How could I stop you two? Moon your vision is so good. I still feel like I'm dreaming. Xiao Yunyue blinked her eyes, her head full of fog. What the hell is this? Dragon general? Dad, what are you talking about? Why can't I understand any of it? Hey, we... Ah, we've all been fooled by Ching Yu. Xiao Wanshan didn't hide anything, and told the truth about what had just happened. Xiao Yunyue's eyes gradually widened, and a small ink peach mouth, opened into an O shape. On her face, an incomparably strong shock surfaced. Oh, my god, is this, is this real? Feather, he's a general? A general in his twenties? Suddenly, Xiao Yunyue's body shook. The words Chen Yu had just spoken to him surfaced once again. God, he didn't lie to me? Is he really a dragon general? Then, what he said before is true too. The so-called martial arts masters, the so-called duel on the river. Could it be that the jeep with the black license plate was really here to pick him up? You you ah, you and Xiao you must be good ah, we can see that he really likes you. Bring him over to the house sometime and I'll apologize to his face. Tu do lu. After the phone hung up, Xiao Yunyue sat dumbfounded on the bed, blinking her eyes in confusion. Her mind was a mess right now and she needed a good slowdown. Suddenly, she sprang up and trotted out of the dormitory. The jeep. She was going to see for herself if that was going to pick up Feather or not. Under the office building. By the jeep. Gee, my little ancestor. You've made us look for you. Yi Sanxing looked at Chun Yu. Patting his thighs and laughing and joking. They had searched around just now and hadn't found Chun Yu. After giving up and returning to the jeep. He didn't expect Chun Yu to already be waiting here. Elder Yi. Sorry about that. The cell phone hasn't been turned on. Chun Yu smiled and opened his mouth. Yi Sanxing waved his hand. It's okay, it's a bit of a rush. Let's go? Okay. Chun Yu looked at Gua Heping and smiled. Principal Gua, I've troubled you during this period of time. Looking at Chun Yu, Gua Heping was shaken and hurriedly stretched out his hands and held Chun Yu. Aya, Chun Yu ah. Oh no, General Chen. Heaven, 
It's me who has eyes and doesn't recognize MT. Ty, it's a real honor for our school to have you here. What happened was incredibly excited and blah 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 a whole lot. Chunya managed to pull out his hand with great difficulty, smiled a greeting, and prepared to get into his car and leave. I chow, old six. Chun Yu had one foot already on the jeep and came to a hard stop, turning his head to look. Wang Hao's several people were not far away, looking at themselves dead on. Yo, what's with the brothers? Chun Yu smiled and greeted. Wang Hao several people trotted over and looked at Chen Yu with wide eyes. Everyone was in a state of shock. God, everything is real. The oldest six in the dormitory was actually walking side by side with a character like Du Yuan Ming. Old six, you fooled us so badly. Wang Hao opened his mouth and finished his expression incomparably complicated. Chen Yu spread his hands. I told you guys before, but you didn't believe me. It was only then that a few people remembered that Chen Yu had indeed said that, but at that time, who dared to believe it all? If they hadn't seen it with their own eyes today, they would still think that it was nothing more than a joke by Chen Yu. Yao Yujing rubbed her hands together, a little formal and worried. Lao Lu, then, then we'll still be brothers from now on? Zheng Ji's few people looked at Chen Yu, although the contact time was not long. But over this period of time, they all treated Chen Yu as their own brother. But, friends aren't that good. It's too hard to be friends when you're so different from each other. Chen Yu was full of smiles as he approached Yao Yu Jing's ear. We haven't finished watching all those treasured love instructional movies of yours. We'll continue to study them when I come back. Yao Yu Jing's eyes lit up, grinned a hefty smile, and patted her chest vigorously. Don't worry, I'll keep it all for you. Updated every day. Guaranteed fresh. Shen Yu gave a good brotherly look encountered by getting into the car. The jeep started up and was far away. Old six, remember, the 604 bed is always reserved for you. Wang Hao roared. Chen Yu stuck his hand out of the window and gave an okay gesture. Several people stood in place and watched Chen Yu leave with incomparable emotion. It's so damn dreamlike. Wang Wenjun couldn't help but feel emotional. A few others nodded. Zhang Ji spoke, from the very beginning I felt that old six was not ordinary, and now it seems to be true. Che, you're a typical horse's ass. A few people blew off some water and were about to disperse when Xiao Yunyue came panting. What brings you here, sister-in-law? Xiao Yunyue held her hands on her knees and gasped several times before she straightened her back. Looking around, the jeep had already driven off, and he couldn't help his pupils shrinking. Where's Chen Yu? Him, he just left. Followed the jeep? Hey, you know about it too. Sibling? Yup. My Chao. Old Six is really awesome. He's actually a dragon general. Wang Hao rubbed his hands and turned red with excitement. Boom! Xiao Yunyue's brain exploded viciously. Really? My boyfriend? Really general? At this moment, Xiao Yunyue felt incomparably unreal. This kind of thing is even more incredible than a bully falling in love with me. Pulling out her cell phone, she called Chen Yu. Little feather. You? You're really a dragon general? Yo! Our silly girl. Finally realized? In the jeep, Chen Yu deliberately made a surprised appearance. Xiao Yunyue froze and gritted her teeth. So you've been lying to me all along? Hey, 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 hey. You can't accuse someone so wrongly. I didn't lie to you from the beginning. Xiao Yunyue was speechless for a moment. Looking back, it was indeed as Chen Yu had said. From start to finish, Chen Yu had not lied to her. Martial arts expert. Dragon general. Jeep to pick him up. Chen Yu did tell her all about it. But who hears something like that and doesn't think it's a joke? Who would have thought that it would all be true? That's incredible. Seeing Xiao Yunyue stop talking, Chun Yu smiled. Well, I'm out on a mission and it's going to take a while. I'll treat you to a big dinner when we get back. Then it's a deal. When you get back, I want duck legs on rice and two poached eggs. Yeah. Hanging up the phone, Chun Yu smiled and shook his head. Yi Songshin glanced at Chun Yu and laughed. Young people's love. It's so enviable. I think back in those years, the old man was once suave too. It's just a pity that she stayed forever at the age of 19. That age, eh? Chun Yu was slightly stunned and somewhat silent. Yi Tsongsheng, who had experienced that time of blood and fire. In those times, it was not easy to survive. It's hard to have a beautiful love. That 19-year-old girl, if she had lived, would have been a senile old man. Elder Yi, is the global and human world still not peaceful today? Chen Yu opened his mouth to inquire. Although he had heard Yi Tsongsheng mention it before, he had never talked about it in detail. It's a good time to ask. Yi Songxing nodded. In your current position, sooner or later you will know these things. Actually, the global and human community has never been peaceful. One might even say, bloodier and darker. Except that ordinary people have no way of knowing such things. And just recently, the foreign and human community has been stirring again. 
The last time Susanan University came to Jianling University of Science and Technology for an exchange, it was also the Sakura Nation in human sector that was behind the push. Only no one expected you to come out of nowhere and do something like that. Yi Songsheng had a smiling face when he thought about what Chen Yu had done in the Sakura country. He was so cool. Immediately, Yi Songsheng's face suddenly turned solemn and grave. But you must not be careless. Last time you made a big mess in the Sakura Kingdom. Although you killed several experts, there are still some reclusive old monsters in the Sakura Kingdom. Back when I was young, those guys were already 60 or 70 years old and stepped into the innate realm, and they should still be alive today. So I'm afraid they're even more terrifying. Oh, there are still such people in the Sakura country? Chen Yu raised his eyebrows in surprise. Earlier, he had thought that by killing Iga Anasuk and the others, he had sort of swept away the top end war power of the Sakura country. Now it seems to be the wrong idea. Yi Songxing nodded. The population of Sakura Nation today is also as large as 120 million. Although innate patriarchs are extremely rare, there are still some with this population base. Chen Yu nodded and whirled around with a smile. It's better this way. Kill the young ones to come to the old ones, just to get them all in one go. Yi Songxing looked at Chen Yu, a little stunned. Eyes full of relief followed. Sure enough, he was a demon. And when he heard this kind of news, not only was he not afraid, but he was filled with wariness. Perhaps, after he grew up, he would really be able to lead the dragon kingdom in human realm and stand proudly at the very top. In Yi Songxing's heart, a flash of strong anticipation rose. Elder Yi, how much do you know about the inhuman realm in the Eagle Sauce Country? Chen Yu suddenly opened his mouth to inquire. Eagle Sauce Country. Yi Songxing's face was terribly gloomy, and there was a thick trace of scorn. To be honest, they've been largely inactive for nearly two decades. Oh, they're actually that honest? Chen Yu was surprised. Yi Songxing hummed, honest? That word just doesn't go with them. They've been behind all the wars you've seen on the internet over the years. Only, they don't do it themselves. They reach these things through the horsemen under them. The inhuman realm of Sakura country is the horse boy. Chen Yu nodded his head slightly, although he had already made some guesses in his mind. But hearing Yi Songxing confirm it was still a bit of a shock. Little feather, you have to be extremely careful. In fact, the reason why the inhuman realms of the neighboring powers have made such frequent moves against us over the years is because the inhuman realm of the Eagle Jam country is making small moves behind the scenes. The exchange at Suzunan University was like that. And this military drill competition in the Cold Stick country, too. The Hawk Jam Kingdom has taken notice of what you did in Sakura country, and they won't let you go. Operation Feather Hunt, the dominant force behind it, is most likely the Eagle Sauce Nation in human realm. Chen Yu smiled coldly. Ah, just as well. I have no intention of letting them go. He had a hunch that his father, in all likelihood, was in Eagle Jam country. Looking at Chun Yu, who was full of battle spirit, Yi Song grew a breath of relief and at the same time, he was also a bit worried. Luckily, he wasn't intimidated. But that was the Eagle Sauce country in human realm. Could he resist? With a long sigh, Yi Songqing's heart was a little messed up. Elder Yi, are we going directly to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base now? Yi Songqing froze and shook his head. No, the place we're going to now is Special Zone B-54, which is about 100 kilometers away from the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base. Special District B-54? What's the point of going there? Chen Yu was a bit curious. Yi Songxing blushed slightly, a little embarrassed, glancing at Du Yuan Ming, who was sitting in the co-pilot's seat. Yi Songxing said, Old Du, talk to Ching Yu. Du Yuan Ming laughed and scratched his head. Mr. Chen, truth be told, apart from inviting you this time, there are also several other candidates for the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. They were also recommended by some of the other generals as being high up, with very strong strength. So the top got a draft and wanted to see a couple of guys who would be the best fit. Please don't ever mind. After all, this matter is a big deal. And the latter directly affects the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team's performance in the military drill competition. So it's very prudent. Chen Yu nodded in understanding. It's not too much to say that this kind of thing is a matter of statehood and it's normal to be so cautious. This is the information of a few competitors. So take a look and familiarize yourself with it. It's also good to have a response. Yi Songxing took out a thick pile of information and handed it to Chen Yu. Chen Yu, however, just shook his head. No need. None of them are as good as me anyway. So it's useless to watch. I'll squint for a while. After saying that, Chen Yu closed his eyes. Yi Songxing and Du Yuan Ming looked at each other with a slight look and both smiled helplessly. That's confidence and there's no one else. Four hours later, the jeep arrived at a base in an unoccupied wilderness. B-54 Special District. B-54 Special District. A secret base in the Dragon Kingdom. Located in the middle of nowhere. 
far from the city. The entire perimeter of the special zone is surrounded by barbed wire. At intervals, there were guard posts, soldiers with loaded guns, guarding the perimeter. A building of various shapes and sizes, spread out in a regular pattern. Chen Yu looked around, very slightly surprised. I really didn't expect that there is such a place more than 300 kilometers away from Jinchuan City. Do you want Ming smiled? You will know more secrets of the Dragon Kingdom in the future. Arranging for Chen Yu to rest here for the night. Early the next morning, Du Yuan Ming brought Chen Yu to an outdoor training ground. Brought me here for? Chen Yu was a bit curious. Du Yuan Ming said, Mr. Chen, it is going to be here later on that the selection of the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team will take place. Chen Yu nodded slightly in understanding. The three waited a little while before people came one after another. Ha ha, old Du, you've arrived early enough, not far away. There was a hearty laugh. When the three of them turned their heads to look, they saw a middle-aged man with graying temples, walking with a big smile. The man was dragon-like and fast. A pair of large eyes gleamed and his back was straight. The army clothes were worn on his body, held full by his muscles. With just one glance, one could feel a sense of oppression coming at them. His name is Pang Xiangwen, and he's on my level. This time, he also recommended someone to run for chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. Do you want Ming introduced himself to Chen Yu in a low voice? Chen Yu nodded slightly and looked Pang Xiangwen up and down, feeling slightly emotional in his heart. Although nowadays is the era of peace. However, in the peace of strict governance of the military, it can be seen that there has never been any relaxation. Pang Xiangwen had obviously gone through a lot of training to have this kind of aura today. Beside Pang Xiangwen, there was an accompanying adjutant and another middle-aged lean man. Ha, where's that mister? Chen, he hasn't come yet? Arriving in front of Du Yuan Ming, Pang Xiangwen looked around and froze slightly. Although he had heard of Chen Yu's name. However, Pang Xiangwen had not seen it before. Du Yuan Ming rolled his eyes. Old Pang, your eyes are bad. This is Mr. Chen, pointing at Chen Yu beside him. Du Yuan Ming spoke with a smile. Tay motherfucker, he's that Mr. Chen. Pang Xiangwen's eyes widened violently as he stared at Chen Yu with an unbelievable expression. That Mr. Chen, who did that great thing in Sakura country, is, is that much bigger? It was nothing like he had imagined. Next to him, the lean man looked at Chen Yu, his pupils shrinking dramatically, and he could tell that he was also very shocked. He he, not bad. This is Chen Yu, the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. This time it's not him. Du Yuan Ming was full of confidence and spoke proudly. When Pang Xiangwen heard this, he first froze, then laughed and couldn't stop waving his hands. Old Du Ah, you're a bit overconfident here. Just because Mr. Chen is great doesn't mean he's necessarily good. I'm looking for someone who's not so bad. Pointing at the lean man beside him, Pang Xiangwen grinned. Lu Bo, you know, there's no need for me to say more. Lu Bo gave a standard salute to Du Yuan Ming. Lu Bo meets the general. Du Yuan Ming looked at Lu Bo and his face was quite heavy. Lu Bo, I didn't expect ah, you disappeared for 10 years, but you actually appeared again. 10 years ago, you left the army and went into the Golden Triangle all by yourself, wiping out a 400-man army over there, and we all thought we'd never see you again. Chun Yu looked at Lu Bo with some surprise. That place, it's supposed to be an unregulated area, with a mix of dragons and snakes. It's so normal for people to die and stuff there. It's not too much of a stretch to say it's Ashura. Some of the larger powers have their own private armies that are extremely powerful. This man went alone and wiped out a party. It was truly extraordinary. Lubo smiled faintly, with a strong sense of vicissitude. It was too impulsive back then. After the incident, I was also a bit weary, so I went into seclusion. Pang Xianguan laughed, his face full of triumph. This ten years Lubo can't be idle. He was originally gifted, and then he worshipped a master to learn ancient martial arts. Now he can be powerful. Oh, you've stepped into the inhuman realm too? Du Yuan Ming was surprised. Lu Bo nodded and shook his head. I'm also just practicing alone, but I have no contact with the other forces in the inhuman realm. So what realm are you in now? According to the inhuman realm, I am now at the peak of the Hotian. Lu Bo didn't hide it and spoke truthfully. A remark that made Yi Tsangxing suck in a breath of cold air. It was Chen Yu who was startled. The peak of Hotian is not so easy to reach. Many people go their whole lives without ever getting this far. Even for Yi Tsangxing and these innate masters, that was still cultivated since childhood. It took decades of hard work to reach the peak Hotian realm. This Lu Bo, after only 10 years, has come this far? And, still, it's halfway there. This Lu Bo, looking like this is really a monster. Lu Bo, you're really something. Du Yuan Ming's expression became even more grave. He looked towards Chen Yu and spoke with incomparable solemnity. 
Chun Yu, let me formally introduce Lu Bo to you. Lu Bo, male, 41 years old, was in the army until he was 31 years old, the king of soldiers, gifted and strong since childhood, broke many records in the army, participated in many special missions, has extremely strong military literacy. At the age of 31, he ended his military and martial arts career and traveled alone to the Golden Triangle region to eliminate the most vicious hegemonic guessing armies in the region because his own brother was killed in the Golden Triangle. Since then, Lu Bo, in the Golden Triangle, has left a title, God of Death. After saying that, Di Yuan Ming looked at Lu Bo and opened his mouth to introduce Chen Yu. Chen Yu, that, the innate master, had traveled to the Sakura Kingdom and killed six of its experts. Lu Bo looked at Chen Yu, smiled gently and extended his hand. Hello, hello. Chen Yu shook hands with Lu Bo and greeting and his mind moved slightly. Just now, he secretly probed with his true essence, and Lu Bo was really gifted. This kind of person is born with a strong physique. Others need to train hard to lift a hundred pounds of words. He doesn't practice anything and casually lifts two hundred pounds. With one more workout, the strength would be unimaginable. This is, sort of, the ceiling of the average person. Just at the same time, Lu Bo was secretly shocked. So young and already an innate master? It's incredible. Ha ha, old do. Let me tell you, the chief instructor this time, must be Lu Bo. Pang Xiangwen opened his mouth with a big smile. But, Lu Bo shook his head. No, the chief instructor, this time, is not me. Pang Xiangwen froze with a smile. I say Lu Bo, it's not good for you to chicken out before the battle. Although Mr. Chen is powerful, he may not necessarily be steadily overpowering you. Lu Bo looked at Chen Yu and shook his head once again. The chief instructor isn't him either. A comment that froze several people in their tracks. Who could that be? Do Yuan Ming looked puzzled? Lu Bo said. In the information, there is a person named Sun Fei. Actually, he has another nickname. Magic Gun. What? He's the demon gun. Suddenly, Yi Songxing screamed in shock. Hmm. Seeing Yi Songxing's reaction, Chen Yu froze. Yi Songxing was an innate master. And the people who could make him react like this were too few and far between. This devil gun Sun Fei. What kind of person was he that he was so surprised? Elder Yi. You know this Sun Fei? Chen Yu inquired curiously. Yi Songxing shook his head. This person, Sun Fei, I don't recognize, but the name of Devil Gun, I have heard of it. You've read novels, right? You know that in some novels, the concept of magic and martial arts being practiced together is mentioned, right? Chen Yu looked odd. This old gentleman, who still reads web novels, is really surprising. Devil and martial arts were practiced together. He did know that. In general novels, magic and martial arts can only be one or the other and cannot be practiced at the same time. However, some geniuses were able to break the demon martial barrier and cultivate both at the same time. A magic gun is another sense of dual cultivation of magic and martial arts. He's a peak Hotian powerhouse. But if that's all, it's nothing. The most chilling thing about him is his marksmanship. The pistol shot. Yi Songqing's voice was cold and deep as he spoke quietly. Shen Yu could not help but stare. Pistol? Good. It's a pistol. Yi Songqing nodded and continued. Generally speaking, Martial arts are not compatible with modern kin technology. One's energy and time are limited. If one cultivates the martial arts, one has to devote oneself to it wholeheartedly, and it is difficult to have the energy to delve into anything else. If one chooses to exercise their spearmanship, then it would be extremely difficult to make a breakthrough in the martial arts again. But the demon gun is different. Not only is he at the peak of the Hotian, but the one pistol technique is out of this world. With a long sigh, Yi Songsheng said, I have to say, the power of technology is strong. In the face of firearms, even an innate master wouldn't dare to take it hard, but would have to rely on his reflexes to fight against it. But, what if the one using the firearm is a peak Hotian powerhouse? The power of these two when combined is far more than 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Hearing this, Shen Yu also felt a surge of surprise. This was the first time he had ever, ever heard of someone practicing both martial arts and modern gunnery. That's refreshing. Chen Yu smiled. His complexion did not change much. Yi Sunqing saw Chen Yu's disinterest and said with a straight face, Little Yu, you must not be careless. Devil Gun he is very powerful. There are already more than a dozen Picotian experts who have died at his hands. Even innate experts have had a few seriously injured in his hands. I also didn't expect that Sun Fei would be the demon gun. Yi Sunqing was somewhat emotional. Originally, he was still full of confidence in Chen Yu. But in this moment, he faltered. No matter how high the Kung Fu is, it's still afraid of a chopper. Not to mention, a strong man with high kung fu and modern firearms? Chen Yu still didn't care much. Pang Xiangwen was a bit reluctant and looked at Lu Bo. 
you really don't have the slightest chance? Lu Bo nodded. There really isn't the slightest chance. I've seen the demon gun strike before. If I were to fight him, I could escape within 10 moves. I could stay alive within 20 moves. And by 30 moves, I would surely die. A comment that caused Pang Shangwen's face to collapse. A hey, Gu, I was counting on you to give me some face. Come on, now you've already lost before you even entered the competition. Lao Du, let's stop playing and watch you guys perform. Pang Xiangwen was spontaneous and waved his hand, then stopped talking. Do you and Ming's face was slightly ugly? Chun Yu, what do you think? Between the words, there was no more confidence. Chun Yu smiled, but it's just a small path. It doesn't matter. Ha, the trail? What a big mouth. Suddenly, a cold laugh came from behind them, attracting the attention of several people. Turning his head to look, the two men came side by side. One man, like Du Yuanming and Pang Xianguan, was wearing a uniform and was of similar age. The other, on the other hand, had a sprightly and cynical look. Old Bai, long time no see. Du Yuanming greeted and introduced himself. Old Bai, this is Chun Yu. Mr. Chun. Chun Yu, this is Bitu, an old comrade of mine. Next to him, should be the demon gun. Sun Wan. Chen Yu nodded and looked Sun Wan up and down. Not too tall, 175 or so, with shaggy hair and a slightly upturned mouth. The whole person takes on an air of confidence and bravado. Sun Wan had also been sizing up Chen Yu. TSK TSK, the little friend's breath is not small. After so many years, it's the first time someone has judged me like this. What? You think there's a good chance of beating me? Chen Yu shook his head. His expression bland. It's not so much the odds as the fact that I'm sure to beat you. What? Sun Wen's face turned cold, and his eyes suddenly became incomparably sharp. Humph, the last person who was so arrogant in front of me has been dead for three years. I'm curious to know, where's your bottom line? Chen Yu's face was calm as he faintly said, Strength, strength, ha 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 ha, so it's another fool. Sun Wen smiled broadly and shook his head. Is your so-called strength your martial arts? Come on, what era is it now? Do you really think that with the power of the flesh, you can still fight against modern technology? With that, Sun Wen pulled out the gun on his waist and waved it in front of Chen Yu. See, this is the future. Times are different. And if you can't move with the times, you'll just end up being out of business. That's how I was back then. Seeing the future clearly. And that's why I diligently studied the art of spear at the peak of the Hotian. And have the achievements I have today. There was a touch of pride on Sun Wen's face. Back then, I dueled with a peak Hotian and fought for hundreds of rounds. Exhausted. And was still defeated by him. But a year later, when I was fighting him, it was only 10 rounds before I forced him to bow his head and admit defeat. As for innate masters, to tell you the truth, I've already fought against several innate masters since my demon gun became a great success, and I haven't lost a single battle. They've practiced hard so far, but they're not as good as me with a gun in my hand. If that's your bottom line, well, I'm going to have to teach you what it means to move on today. A statement that left the crowd speechless. These are real battles that can't be refuted. Chen Yu looked at Sun Wen and for the first time revealed a contemptuous smile. I thought you were something, but I didn't realize you were just a waste. What did you say? Unbridled. Am I wrong? Chen Yu did not let up in the slightest and said, The reason why you switch to practicing spear techniques is simply because you have lost confidence in the martial arts and believe that you cannot make another breakthrough. After all, you have no confidence in yourself, and that is why you have to resort to a pistol to give yourself security. As a martial artist, what is this kind of behavior if not waste? You. Sun Wen's face turned red all of a sudden and he couldn't hold his words for a while. Bitta stood aside and grunted. White cat, black cat, catching a mouse is a good cat. Who's a loser after all? Won't we know by comparing them? Come on, let's see if you, Mr. Chen, or Sun Wen are stronger. With a few words, the atmosphere of the scene was steeply tense. Old Bai, calm down. Do you on Ming frowned? There are still a few contenders who haven't even come. It's not too late to fight when they arrive. Humph, there's no need to wait. They've all already said that they've given up on the competition after realizing that Sun Wen is a demon gun. A look of pride surfaced on Bitu's face. He couldn't help but recall the scene. When the other party learned of Sun Wen's identity, that shock and surprise made him very pleased. When the other party gave up with a bitter smile, he was more than happy to stretch every pore. See, this is the man I brought. Don't compare yourself to me, because none of you can. But now, Chen Yu's attitude made him very upset. Do you really think that no one in the world can cure you? Chen Yu, in this day and age, still fantasizing about being able to fight off weapons and ammo with a body of flesh? Ridiculous. He couldn't wait for Sun Wan to beat Chen Yu into submission. What do you mean? They've all given up? Do Yuan Ming's eyes widened in shock? 
Yi Songxing's pupils also shrunk. On the side, Pang Xianwen looked at Lubo with a grimace. Boy, you're not the only one who's feeling so wimpy, either. That makes me feel better inside. He looked at Du Yuan Ming and laughed. I say old Du, since it's come to this, let's do it. Just in time for us all to have some fun. Pang Xianwen clasped his hands and looked like he was watching a good show. Du Yuan Ming's face was grave as he glanced at Chen Yu. Feather, your opinion is. Chen Yu shrugged, his face full of indifference. Could be. That's good. In that case, let's do it. Under the watchful eyes of the crowd, Chen Yu and Sun Wen walked out into the training ground and stood opposite each other, spaced about 10 meters apart. Elder Yi, what do you say? Chen Yu, can he win? Du Yuan Ming had some no confidence and opened his mouth to ask Yi Songsheng. It's, I don't know, although Chen Yu was an innate master, but facing a peak Hotian expert with a weapon in his hand, could he carry it off or not? In this regard, Yi Songsheng couldn't make up his mind. Seeing that Yi Songsheng didn't even have much confidence, Du Yuan Ming became even more worried. Seeing this, Bitta smiled triumphantly and raised his chin. Old Du, if you're afraid, it's not too late to admit defeat. Otherwise, if we fight later, I can't guarantee that Chen Yu will not be injured. Humph. We'll see. Du Yuan Ming spoke faintly with a cold face. Pang Xianwen poked Lu Bo with his elbow. Lu Bo, who do you think will win this bout? Lu Bo froze slightly and frowned and thought before speaking. I'm afraid, Sun Wen has a better chance of winning. But this Chen Yu, he has a big reputation. Broke into the Cherry Blossom country alone. And killed six and eight masters. That's it. And you can't win against Sun Wen? Modern weapons that suppress innate masters so strongly? Pang Xiangwen was a bit shocked. Lu Bo let out a bitter smile and said, If it's an ordinary soldier, holding a firearm against an innate sect master isn't much use. Ascended masters step into the ascended realm and have all sorts of incredible means. Before an ordinary soldier can take aim, an innate master can already kill him. But, peak Hotian powerhouses are different. Up to this point, although it is still far inferior to an innate sovereign, it is not as if one is unresponsive to the actions of an innate sovereign. At the very least, one is able to dodge. If you have a pistol in your hand, you have a powerful long-range killing power. In this case, it's hard to say whether the winner will win or lose. At those words, Pang Xianwen nodded. You make a very good point. To be honest, I've actually always wondered if human power can actually stand up to firearms. Perhaps this battle today will give us a copy of the answer. A flash of anticipation surfaced in Pang Xianwen's eyes. In the middle of the field, Sun Wen raised his eyebrows towards Chen Yu and took out the gun in his hand. Kid, don't blame me for not warning you, you don't want to die later. Chen Yu looked indifferent and said, do it. Yes, Sun Wen's eyes flashed and he immediately moved. Boom. With one step, Sun Wen was like a cheetah as he rushed towards Chen Yu. At the same time, he raised his pistol, aimed at Chen Yu's brow, and pulled the trigger. Bang. There was a crunch and the hearts of the crowd jumped. Chen Yu raised his eyebrows slightly his head slightly tilted to the side, dodging the bullet. Hey! Sun Wen grinned, thinking that Chun Yu was afraid and became even more flamboyant. Kid, let me teach you what it means to move with the times. With his knees slightly bent, he rushed to Chen Yu's body. A palm went straight to Chen Yu's head. The other hand held a gun, aiming at Chen Yu's lower body. The whole movement was a single, unbelievably natural one. Awesome! Pang Shang Wen's pupils shrank and he couldn't help but marvel. With this move, it attacked both of Chen Yu's vitals at the same time, making it difficult for him to do both. Chen Yu's eyes flashed as his figure flickered, pulling out a series of residual shadows to avoid Sun Wen's attack. Sun Wen was not the least bit flustered. A smile appeared at the corner of his mouth as he once again bullied his way up and attacked Chen Yu. His attacks were very harsh, and every move and every style was aimed straight at Chen Yu's vitals. With a gun in his hand, he was confident and threatened with his pistol in every instance, very forcefully. Chen Yu, on the other hand, kept dodging and did not engage head-on. The crowd on the side couldn't help but gasp in shock when they saw this. Sun Wen has the advantage. He's going to win this time. Is this the magic gun? It's really powerful ah. Chen Yu was beaten back at all and had no power to fight ah. Pang Xianguan inquired of Lu Bo. Lu Bo, what do you think of this battle? What is the final outcome? Lu Bo observed carefully and said, now it seems that the pistol in Sun Wen's hand is a huge threat, and coupled with his strength at the peak of the Ho Tian, it has deadlocked Chen Yu. It seems that Chen Yu is bound to lose this one. On the side, Du Yuan Ming's brows grew even more worried when he heard about it. Elder Yi, is that really the case? Chen Yu, he, will really lose? Yi Sengsheng's brows were tightly locked as he looked at the two warring parties in the field with a touch of confusion in his gaze. Strange, although Chen Yu is losing ground, but the chapters are not messed up in the slightest. It seems that, it is not powerless to deal with it. 
Hmm, what do you mean? I can't see through it right now. But even though Sun Wen has a big advantage by suppressing with his firearms, I always feel that Chen Yu may not lose. Do Yu Enming's eyes lit up as he looked at Chen Yu with much anticipation again? In the middle of the field, Sun Wen attacked while smiling smugly. He he, what innate master. Can't you even fight back? Or is it that under my attack, you can't even fight back? Chen Yu, see, this is the power of a firearm. How do you resist? Who are you to compete with me for the position of chief instructor this time? The more he said, the redder Sun Wen's face became full of ambition. Suddenly, Chen Yu's footsteps lurched and he stopped dodging. At the same time, he grabbed Sun Wen's hand and put the pistol against his head. What are you doing? Sun Wen was startled and his heart fluttered. Chen Yu just grinned and looked at Sun Wen. Come on, I'll show you how I can resist. On the scene, there was a gasp. Chen Yu's operation shocked everyone. What's he doing? Looking for death? That's a pistol. Right there on your forehead? Sun Wen was terrified and used all his strength to break free from Chen Yu's restraints and withdrew a few meters. You kids don't want to live? He looked at Chen Yu, shocked and angry. Chen Yu had a smile on his lips and pointed to his forehead. Here, try it. The words were filled with thick contempt. He had been dodging earlier, not because he was afraid of Sun Wen's pistol. It was only that he was curious about this means of martial arts plus firearms, so give Sun Moon some showtime. Now that the show is over, it's almost time for it to end. Du Yuan Ming and the others stood on the sidelines, sucking in cold air in fear. The corners of Sun Wen's eyes jumped, and anger flared in his eyes. You seek death. After saying that, Sun Wen flicked his wrist sharply and fired three shots in a row. Instead of dodging as before, Chen Yu stood still with one hand behind his back. With the other hand, he waved it casually in front of his body. The next moment, he let go of his hand and the three bullets fell to the ground. I yet, catching bullets with one hand? Pang Shangwen's eyes widened in shock. Do you want Ming sucked in a breath of cold air? His face full of incredulity. Bit his face suddenly changed as he stared at Chen Yu with a deadpan expression of incredulity. Lu Bo's fists tightened and his expression was shocked. Yi Sanqing's heart jerked hard and he subconsciously said, Good. Sun Wen's pupils contracted dramatically, and waves of shock were set off in his heart. No way. How could you possibly receive a bullet from me? Those three shots just now were extremely telling. The time intervals before and after, and the distance control between each other were all calculated with extreme precision. It could be said to have sealed off all of Chen Yu's movements. It was one of his famous stunts. Three-gun fighting technique. At that time, many peak Hotian experts were defeated by his move. Even an innate master would be in a sorry state if he came across this move. In his thoughts, even if Chen Yu was able to cope with this move, he would still reveal no small cracks, and he had already prepared a follow-up set of attacks, but never thought that Chen Yu would catch a bullet with his bare hands? What kind of divine operation is this? At this time, Chen Yu pointed at his forehead again. I said, hit it this way. Sun Wen froze, then his face turned red. This asshole, how can he look down on me so much? Fine, I'll do as you wish, don't blame me if you die. With a roar, Sun Wen leapt up. His entire body was like a hunting tiger hunting for food. And in an instant, he arrived in front of Chen Yu. With a low gulp, he aimed a gun at Chen Yu's forehead and pulled the trigger. Bang! A crunch. Chen Yu stood in place his head tilted back violently. Chen Yu, do you want Ming yelled anxiously, and the others were frightened. Sun Wen had a jolt in his heart. He did it in the heat of the moment. Now that the gun went off, he immediately regretted it. After all, wouldn't it be too much to mess up something like this just to compete for the chief instructor's seat? But he had just risen with a flicker of remorse, and the next moment he was stunned. Chen Yu's head, which was tilted back, gradually returned to its proper position. A bullet, bearing down on the ground. He looked at Sun Wen with a flirtatious smile. What? That's it? There was not the slightest damage to Chen Yu's forehead. What? You? 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 Sun Wen retreated several steps in a row, his eyes almost glaring out. Just now, it was only half a meter away. He didn't resist anything. He just got hit in the forehead. And it didn't even hurt him in the slightest? Is this something that can happen in fucking reality? Do Yuan Ming and the others also looked dumbfounded? Holy shit. Is this a movie? Is he the Terminator? Pang Shangwen's mouth was wide open, and his entire body was almost dumbfounded. Bitu was dumbfounded and completely confused. Everyone was shocked. A gun, and it's useless against Chen Yu? Elder Yi, this, what the hell is going on here? Du Yuan Ming opened his mouth to inquire. Yi Sangxing stared at Chen Yu in death for a long time before letting out a long sigh. It's the body protecting deity. Body protectors? A few people were a bit stunned when they heard that. This stuff, isn't it something made up in a novel? Does it really exist in reality? Yi Songsheng said, Innate masters, 
They can externalize the true chi in their bodies, use it for attack and defense. Body protection astral chi is a way of using true chi outwardly. A martial artist spreads his true chi all around his body to form a protective film, so that he is able to defend himself against attacks. It's just that it's never been heard of that the body protecting deity can withstand attacks from firearms. How strong of a true chi density should this be? Yi Sanqing marveled in awe. Although the body protecting deity has defensive power, it has its limits. Attacks like punches and kicks can still be resisted. Even a knife or sword type of chopping is not a problem, but the opposite side is using a gun. It was unbelievable that such an attack could be blocked. How? How is it possible? Innate master, how can it be so terrifying? Sun Wen retreated several steps in a row, his entire body mumbling, having been completely dumbfounded. Chun Yu smiled disdainfully. How could you possibly know the terror of an innate master? Now, do you still want to fight? Chun Yu put his hands behind his back and coldly looked at Sun Wen. Sun Wen was shaken. His fists tightened and loosened, loosened and tightened, repeating several times, but finally hanging down powerlessly. But then, Sun Wen raised his head and looked at Chen Yu with a burning gaze. I lost. I didn't think that people would actually be able to make it this far. But wait, what you can do, I, Sun Wen, will definitely be able to do as well. If you can become an innate master, so can I. At that time, I will definitely be able to beat you. Sun Wen was energized by Chen Yu and filled with ambition. Chen Yu glanced at Sun Wen, didn't say anything, and left the training ground. Yi Songxing caught up with Chen Yu and said, This person, Sun Wen, belongs to the type of person who becomes more courageous the more frustrated he gets. Having lost this time, perhaps one day in the future, he will really be able to stand in front of you and challenge you again. Chen Yu, however, just shook his head. He'll never get that chance, but all those who cultivate, do so against the heavens. Since he is acting against the heavens, he must have absolute confidence in himself. He switched to practicing spearmanship halfway through. To put it bluntly, he's just not confident and wants to resort to side roads. It is impossible for such a person to achieve great things, much less stand in front of me. Yi Songqing nodded thoughtfully. After Chen Yu left, several people in the arena were still there. Du Yuan Ming laughed and came to Bitu. Old Bai, it seems like Chen Yu is still more powerful. How about it? Convinced? Bitu let out a long sigh and gave a thumbs up as he looked in the direction Chen Yu had left. I'm truly convinced this time. I didn't expect that this legendary Mr. Chen would be so powerful. Pang Xianguan looked at Du Yuan Ming and scared. Old Du, your vision is venomous enough. I'd like to see what the other few will look like when they know the result. The rest of the few people he referred to were the ones who had been intimidated by Sun Wen's name earlier and had given up the competition. The men, however, had already reached the entrance to the special area. B-54 special area entrance. Several people stood side by side. Each was accompanied by a general in uniform. Hey, you guys gave up too soon. A man looked at a few people and shook his head. His face filled with pity. Several other generals did the same. These few people, they were all strong people that they had expended their efforts and spent a great deal of money to find. Everyone's experience, so to speak, is a legend. I had thought that this time, the competition for the chief instructor of the dragon's teeth would be a wonderful dragon fight. However, he did not expect that several people would all choose to give up after learning that Sun Wen was a demon gun. A black-skinned man with a face full of vicissitudes grinned and fanned his large bushy hands. Can't beat it. Really can't. Old sure you don't know. That demon gun is fierce. That doesn't scare you enough to quit. Hey, if I can't win, why don't I quit? A man next to him nodded. There's no way. With the demon gun out, none of us have a chance of winning, so we can only withdraw. Several generals looked at each other with complex expressions. Is, is he that good? Very impressive. He's, like, a legend. Only when you fought him will you realize how terrifying he is. The black-skinned man's smile withdrew and his expression was incomparably grave. Pulling up his sleeve, he revealed the scar on his lower arm. This is the mark left to me by the magic gun. At the time, if he was going to kill me, I would have been dead already. Do you think I can still fight him? A statement that left several generals speechless. One frowned and suddenly spoke with some uncertainty. This time, there's also a Mr. Chen, who had caused havoc in the Cherry Blossom Kingdom, killing six experts. If he goes up against the demon gun, who will win or lose? A comment that made the few people who had retreated froze. And after looking at each other for a few seconds, they all laughed. Mr. Chen, he's very good. He's very strong, but not compared to the demon gun. The black-skinned man laughed and said, even if one's martial arts skills are high, one is afraid of a chopper. What's more, not only is the demon gun highly skilled in martial arts, he also has a gun in his hand. One of the people next to him nodded and said, can you imagine how lethal Zhang Wuji, 
who possesses supreme martial arts, would be with two pistols in his hands, he he, can't beat it, absolutely can't beat it, although Mr. Chen is an innate master, he has no chance of winning against the demon gun, yes, devil gun sun one, he's the only man who can end the legend of the innate patriarch land divine immortal, in other words, he is the god slayer, god slayer, once the three words were uttered, the crowd all shook fiercely, but having said that, I'm sure that among us, only Mr. Chen will be able to fight against the demon gun for a while. Upon hearing this, the retiring few nodded their heads in agreement. Several generals looked at each other for a long time. Afterward, one person let out a long sigh and said, It seems that the position of the chief instructor of the dragon teeth this time is considered settled. Yes, but since I'm here, seeing Sun Wen and Chen fight is not a bad trip. Let's go. Let's go together and see how the future chief instructor of dragon teeth performs. With that said, much anticipation was born in the crowd. The group quickly arrived at the training ground. Yo, old Du, old Pang, and old Bai, you guys came early enough. Upon seeing Du Yuan Ming and the others, several generals greeted them warmly. Old sure, you guys are here too? What are these? Du Yuan Ming looked at the black-skinned Han Yu several people and was a bit puzzled. Hey, the contender for chief instructor of Dragon's Teeth this time, but it's been abandoned. I heard that the demon gun was here, and they all thought there was no chance of winning, so we came here to watch the show. Old Sher smiled and said, we can't miss the battle between Mr. Chen and the demon gun. Hey, where's that Mr. Chen, why didn't he come? Could it be? Lao Sher swept his eyes and couldn't help but stare. Could it be that Mr. Chen was also frightened by the name of the devil's gun, so he didn't dare to come? The black-skinned man's few people looked at each other with odd expressions. Get this, they are backing out of the race, but Chen Yu is directly afraid to come. It seems that this so-called Mr. Chen is a bit of a misnomer. Pang Xian Wen stood and shook his head. Hey, you guys are late. The battle is over. Chen Yu he's all gone. What? It's over? Gone? That fast? Sure blinked, full of consternation. The other few people looked at each other and were also appalled. Is Magic Gun Sun Wen so powerful? You took care of the innate master so quickly? And made the other party leave in anger? Mom, martial arts plus technology, is it so fierce? Lao Shi looked at Pang Xian Wen and opened his mouth to ask. Sun Wen won so quickly? Pang Xian Wen froze. What are you talking about? Sun Wen lost. It was Chen Yu who won. After he won, he felt there was no point in staying here. So he left. Look, Sun Moon is over there right now in self-imposed isolation. Pang Xian Wen pointed to a corner of the training ground. There, Sun Wen stood frozen under a large tree. His pistol dropped aside. His expression dull and full of disorientation. He had also heard Chen Yu's words when he finally left. Originally, he thought that he would still be able to catch up with Chen Yu now that he had given up his gun skills and specialized in martial arts. But when he thought about it more carefully, he broke down. Yes, wasn't it because of his timidity in the past that he had switched to gun arts when he was at the peak of his Hotian? In the end, it's because of a lack of confidence in yourself. Such a self is simply a coward. And how could he be Chen Yu's opponent? At the thought, Sun Wen broke down. The black-skinned man and the others stared in disbelief. Sun Wen actually lost? What the hell is going on? Lubo sighed lightly and said, you guys don't know, that shocking scene just now. At that moment, he did not hide anything and told Chen Yu and Sun Wen about the battle. Therefore, Chen Yu he could have directly defeated Sun Wen right from the start. But it's just that I've been dragging it out for a while in order to take a look at the so-called magic gun. He's really strong. So it turns out that the power of a human being can reach that kind of height. On Lubo's face, a burst of amazement surfaced. The black-skinned man and the others looked at each other in dismay, and it was difficult to speak of the shock in their hearts. It's okay to catch bullets with your bare hands. You can't even break the defense by standing there and letting Sun Wen shoot? I feel as if we have underestimated this Mr. Chen too much. Why do I feel like, this is like a dream? This Mr. Chen, what kind of height has he reached? I thought it would be an exciting duel, but I didn't expect it to be a one-sided crushing. Just as the crowd was chatting, another person came to this place. This person's face was majestic, and he had a hidden aura that was hard to describe. Even Du Yuan Ming and the other generals, when they saw this person, their faces were solemn and they solemnly saluted. The person who came, named War Chenya, was the superior of Du Yuan Ming and the others, and was a legendary figure amongst the Dragon Kingdom. He spoke slowly, his low voice like he was carrying a subwoofer. Well, are all the people here? Then let's start the selection contest for the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team. As soon as he finished speaking, Du Yuan Ming and the others looked at each other with odd expressions. Pang Xiangwen took a step forward and scratched his head. That, actually, just now, the auditions were over. 
What? It's over? Jia Chenya froze. This selection for the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team was to be presided over by him. It's just arriving now. And you're telling me it's over? What the hell is going on? With so many people, even if they arrived early, they couldn't have gotten there so fast. War Chenya frowned and swept his eyes over the people present. With a bitter smile on his face, Do Yuan Ming told what had just happened again? Even though Battle Chenya was rich in experience, his eyes were wide and full of astonishment after hearing this. Everyone else gave up when they heard the name of Magic Gun Sun Wen? Magic Gun Sun Wen was beaten by Chen Yu to the point of autism? Chen Yu was able to catch bullets with his bare hands, and he was also able to harden himself against pistols disliking his face output? How does each of these things not sound real? Where's Chen Yu? Where is he now? He's gone. Do you want Ming spoke with a bitter smile? Go, take me to him. With a group of people, Battle Chen Yu went forward to look for Chen Yu. Whether it was Old Shur, or the black-skinned man and the others, they had never seen Chen Yu and were filled with curiosity. You guys, what kind of character is that Chen Yu? On the way, there were whispers. I don't know, but with such means, it's bound to be extraordinary. This kind of person is like a pearl of the night, and one move of the eye will be able to discern his or her extraordinary temperament. I have a feeling that may be the reason why he left in a hurry. It's possible that he went to cultivate. Otherwise, at his age, how could he have this kind of strength? That makes sense. It must be that after finishing the battle, he didn't want to waste the slightest bit of time, so he hid to cultivate. The more Lu Bo and the others discussed it, the more they felt so. The admiration in his heart grew stronger. Hey, it's true. People succeed for a reason. Yes, he has come this far at such a young age, and would never have done it without a million percent effort. AI, I think that although we are quite hardworking, we are much worse compared to him. Yes, when I was young, I was often lazy in practicing kung fu, and now, I am even more slack. Compared to him it's really too far. After we meet later, we must ask Mr. Chen for advice on how he can have such strong willpower and maintain hard work. Making small talk along the way, the crowd soon found Chen Yu in a bedroom. The moment they saw Chen Yu, Lu Bo and the others were all dumbfounded. At this moment, Chen Yu was lying on the bed, his head resting on his arm, crossing his legs and playing with his cell phone. Do you know about the forged blade competition? On his cell phone, came the sound of a short video of Du Yo. Chen Yu's legs wobbled as a smile appeared at the corners of his mouth, obviously looking very happy. Crap, what happened to practicing hard? What's going on here? After playing tryouts, you're laying down? Brother, it's daytime. How can you be so lazy? Hmm, why are so many people here? Seeing Du Yuan Ming and the others coming, Chen Yu froze and rolled over. Chen Yu, what are you? Du Yuan Ming had an odd expression on his face as he opened his mouth to inquire. Oh, bored, just swiping through short videos. And these people are? Looking at the person beside Du Yuan Ming, Chen Yu was somewhat puzzled. Du Yuan Ming explained a little, and Chen Yu nodded slightly, indicating that he knew. War Chen Yu walked up to Chen Yu and looked him up and down, nodding his head uncontrollably. Yes, 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 truly a hero. The Dragon Kingdom Dragon General is truly a name to be reckoned with. General Chen, Dragon Teeth Special Forces, it's all yours. I hope that in your hands, the dragon's teeth will be even sharper, tearing apart all enemies. Chen Yu looked solemn and nodded heavily. From War Chen Yu's words, he heard a strong sense of honor and a peace of heart for the country. Please don't worry, General Battle, I will not dishonor my mission. Good, get ready. We'll go to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base this afternoon. Those new recruits will be thrilled to see you. I'm sure. The time passed quickly and it was afternoon. Chen Yu hadn't brought anything with him when he arrived. So at this moment, he was all alone when he went over. Chen Yu, the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base, is about a hundred kilometers from here. Before departing, Du Yuan Ming opened his mouth to introduce himself. Chen Yu nodded and said, Are we going there by car? Du Yuan Ming shook his head, grinned, and pointed to the helicopter not far away. Let's do this over. Chen Yu raised his eyebrows, very slightly surprised. Soon, though, he laughed and leapt a little. He hadn't been on an airplane since he was a kid. After a little bit of packing, Du Yuan Ming took Chen Yu and boarded the helicopter. This time, when he went forward to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base, he was also accompanied by Du Yuan Ming. Little Feather. I have to remind you that the soldiers in the Dragon Teeth Special Operations Team are all pricks and are not easy to teach. Although you're strong, you haven't received professional military training after all. I'm afraid I still need to scare up some effort if I want them to be completely convinced. Chen Yu sniffed and nodded. I understand. It's good that way. These people have to have some temper since they're from the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Don't worry Elder Yi. I'll give them a meeting of a lifetime. 
At the corner of Chun Yu's mouth, an odd smile surfaced. Aha! Seeing that Chun Yu was not intimidated, Do Yuan Ming said no more? Soon, the helicopter took off and flew towards the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base, over a hundred kilometers away. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces base, this place, even more isolated than the area where B-54 is located. There aren't too many buildings and the overall appearance is rather empty. Instead, there was an open-air training ground filled with all sorts of training equipment. Everything, all painted in military green camouflage. On the training ground, there was a group of shirtless, lean and strong men, roaring and working out non-stop. Some people are pushing dumbbells, others are deadlifting deep squats, others were doing pull-ups and others were sprinting for 100 meters. Just by looking at it, one was able to feel a dragon and tiger essence rising up to the sky. If one looked closely, one could see that on each face, there was a touch of anger and resentment. Ever since the last time the people from Han Hu's special forces team, scrapped their chief instructor, all the people from Dragon Teeth's special forces team had been holding on to their anger. Training so frantically now is also about getting stronger. After training, the crowd gathered to chat. I heard that we're going to be given a new instructor this time? I heard that too, like a young man only in his twenties? My chow, putting us in with these young bastards? What's going on up there? Has the top given up on us? Shit, if this kind of person really comes to be our chief instructor, I won't be convinced. I'm not convinced either. Soon, the crowd of Dragon Teeth Special Forces was restless. The crowd was unconvinced by Chin Yu, a new instructor they had never met. At this time, a somewhat lean young man in the crowd, heatedly smiled and said, Do you guys know, this new instructor? What's his origin? What's coming? The crowd looked curious. The lean man scanned the room and cleared his throat. Don't be shocked when I tell you. This chief instructor. Ah. Can be powerful. He is. He's a martial artist. When the man finished speaking, the entire training ground was silent. An odd gaze was cast. A few moments later, cacophonous laughter erupted suddenly. Ha ha ha. Martial arts master? The dancing kind? A goo. My god. Really? In this world nowadays, there are still people who believe there are such people? That chief instructor, does he know how to flash five lashes? It's over. We've really been given up. To send this kind of person to be our chief instructor? Hey, I don't know who's the son of the family this is, using us to brush up his resume. The crowd's reaction was mixed. Some people laughed so hard that they fell to their knees and hammered the ground so straight they couldn't stand up. Others let out a long sigh, full of bitterness and helplessness. Others looked on coldly, with sadness in the depths of their eyes. The Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, as a top combat unit, learned and practiced all modern combat arts. It's about the killing technique of a single move. As for the martial arts in the community, they can't even look at it. And in addition to their fighting abilities, they are trained in a variety of integrated combat techniques. Includes firearms use, wilderness survival, group cooperation and much more. What could a young egg in his twenties teach them? It's a joke. Seeing the crowd in such a state, the man who had spoken earlier became a bit anxious. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I heard this guy is different this time. He's awesome. Even ran off to the Sakura Kingdom to make a big mess. And I've heard that real martial arts masters are awesome. Awesome? How powerful can it be? Can he fly in the sky? Or can he vanish? A muscular bald man smiled and flirted. His face full of disinterest as he looked to the side at a man who never said anything and asked. What do you say? Vice instructor? The crowd all turned their heads to look. The man was wearing a camouflage undershirt and was sitting on one of the steps. From just now until now. He never said a word. It was at this moment that he finally raised his head. His name was Yule. He was the deputy instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. After the battle with the Han Tiger Special Forces, he was like a wounded tiger, quietly licking his wounds. The chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team is not someone who can be an ordinary person. Yule slowly spoke. No matter what he is or what background he has, if he can't convince us, he can only get the hell out of here. When these words came out, the scene was a buzz. That's right, Trash doesn't deserve to be our chief instructor. Shit, when he gets here, I'm going to run 5 kilometers with him under 50 kilograms of weight and shit him. Damn it, Dragon Tooth cannot be insulted. I'm going to have a fighting match with him. Just as the hollering started, in the distance, the roar of helicopters came. Yule turned his head to look, his face solemn, all in formation. Seeing this, the crowd immediately got dressed and in a very short time they were in formation. Everyone stared at the helicopters approaching in the distance, their eyes glowing with a burning intent to fight. The chief instructor, they knew, was in there. Yulei narrowed his eyes and secretly clenched his fists. Could it be that we've really been given up? No, I will not allow anyone to tarnish the name of the dragon's teeth, no matter what the cost. 
A touch of determination surfaced in Yulei's heart. Soon the helicopter was over the base. Feather, get ready, we'll be landing soon. Do Yuan Ming greeted him, but was stopped by Chen Yu waving his hand. No need. I'll just give them a meet and greet. Just as Du Yuan Ming was surprised, Chen Yu grinned and leapt down from the helicopter. I chow. Du Yuan Ming screamed in fear. The people from the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, who had also seen this scene, all cried out in shock. Shit, what's going on? A guy fell out of a helicopter? He's our chief instructor? Nima, is this going to land in a box? Just as the crowd watched, Chen Yu crashed to the ground with a loud bang, accompanied by the loud sound. Rolling smoke and dust surged in all directions, obscuring the crowd's vision. After 10 seconds or so, the smoke slowly cleared, revealing the scene inside. With just one glance, everyone froze. In the middle of the field, a handsome and compelling young man was standing there quietly, looking at the crowd with his hands behind his back. Beneath his feet, the earth cracked. A crack spread out in all directions like a spider web. On the scene, there was dead silence. A pair of gazes that were shocked to the core were cast on Chen Yu. Each one of them had only one expression. Horror. Incredibly appalled. Nima. Jumping from dozens of meters in the air and nothing happens at all? Is this still human? The scene in front of them completely subverted their perceptions. On the helicopter, Du Yuan Ming let out a long breath when he saw the scene and couldn't help but grin. I didn't realize that this was this kid's meeting ceremony, but violent enough, direct enough, good enough, ha ha, let's land. Du Yuan Ming had spent his life in the military and knew the psychology of being a soldier. In the army, strength is honored. Only the strong can earn true respect. Chen Yu this jump, is considered to be the prestige, to completely set up. Soon, the helicopter landed and Du Yuan Ming walked over to Chen Yu. Hello chief, Yu Lei led the crowd of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces and saluted Du Yuan Ming. Alright, to introduce you guys, this is Chen Yu. As of today, he is your chief instructor. Chen Yu smiled gently and greeted the crowd. The crowd of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces were all shaken physically and mentally. He, our chief instructor? For a moment, everyone looked like fools their brains buzzing and unable to speak properly. All right, you guys are free to move around. Yu Lei, you come with me for a moment. Do you want me greeted and led Chen Yu and Yu Lei into the office building on the side? The training ground immediately exploded. The crowd of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team all talked excitedly. My Chow, did you guys see that? He he he, he jumped out of the helicopter. Nima is this still human? This is too fierce. Oh my god, look at those cracks in the ground. What the fuck could a human being do that? If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I couldn't fucking believe it. Ha ha, I told you, our chief instructor is a martial arts expert. You guys believe it now, don't you? Who would have fucking thought that a martial arts expert would be this fierce? Rocco, aren't you going to fight him? Why don't you go and try? What the hell is wrong with me? This kind of fierce man, one punch won't knock the shit out of me? I suddenly have the feeling that there's no problem at all with him being our instructor. Uh, I feel the same way. Soon. The crowd unified their opinions and no longer had any dissatisfaction with Chen Yu as an instructor. In the office, Du Yuan Ming sat on a chair and looked at Yu Lei across from him with a smile. Yu Lei, are you still satisfied with this chief instructor I chose for your dragon teeth? Hey, hey, good for you, good for you. Yu Lei grinned straight up. Just now, Chen Yu had completely conquered him with his leap from the helicopter. Can't be happy to have such a fierce man as chief instructor. Well, as long as you're satisfied, I hope you guys train well under Chen Yu. Du Yuan Ming nodded, show our dragon teeth's sharpness well at the large-scale military competition of the 50-country special operations team. Barta, Yu Lei violently stood upright and performed a military salute with incomparable solemnity. Promise to finish the job. Okay, Chun Yu, do you have anything to say? Du Yuan Ming looked at Chun Yu and opened his mouth to inquire. Chen Yu shook his head. Well then, I won't bother you much. Standing up, Du Yuan Ming solemnly looked at Chun Yu and saluted. Chun Yu. Please, take the dragon's teeth and shake the four directions. Chen Yu's eyes flickered, and with a wordless smile, he nodded. Du Yuan Ming left the room and flew away in a helicopter. Chief Instructor, what are your next plans? Yu Lei opened his mouth to inquire. With a touch of adoration, Chen Yu thought briefly before speaking, let everyone rest first and start training in the afternoon. Yes, Yu Lei saluted before exiting the room to the training ground. All the people from the Dragon Teeth Special Forces did not leave. When they saw Yu Lei come back, they all gathered around. Deputy Instructor, tell us about the Chief Instructor. Brother Lei, Chief Instructor is he really only in his twenties? Brother Yu, just now the Chief Instructor jumped from the helicopter. What on earth was he thinking? Looking at the crowd as if they were curious babies. Yu Lei rolled his eyes. I'm not a worm in the Chief Instructor's stomach. 
how would I know? I'll hurry up and get ready. The chief instructor is going to give me my first training session this afternoon. The crowd gasped when they heard about the training session. The chief instructor must have some special workout if he's so strong at such a young age. I wonder what will be taught in the afternoon training session. This topic immediately caused everyone to talk about it. What do you say? Will the chief instructor teach us martial arts? I don't know. But I have a feeling that the afternoon training session must be devilish. Right? Hey. I wonder if we can resist. Che. What can't we resist? Don't forget. We're the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. That's right. As long as you can't die from practicing, practice to the death. In a military career, training is a constant theme. The amount of training that goes into each day's workout is beyond the imagination of the average person. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces, as the most elite elite within the country, its selection and training, is even to an exaggerated point. It can be said that every day, they are undergoing devilish training, and that made them. When Shen Yu came, he displayed that extraordinary strength. It also gave them a lot to look forward to for the next training session, while also being a bit nervous. Can you, yourself, in the end, afford it? Soon it was afternoon. The Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, totaling 342 men, had all assembled at the training grounds. All of them stood upright, their eyes fiery as they looked at Chen Yu in front of them. Gentlemen, I know that you are all the elite of the Dragon Kingdom. Chen Yu slowly spoke. It wasn't too loud, but strangely enough, the entire training ground was able to hear it clearly. Yu Lei's heart shook fiercely, surprised and amazed. Is this what is called internal strength in martial arts? Today, I have come here to make you the strongest warriors. Now, follow your past training patterns for one hour. Yu Lei, you lead them in training. Yes, Yu Lei immediately yelled and looked at the crowd. All hands on deck. Start training. For the next hour, Yu Lei followed the daily training program for the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. It starts with a 5 kilometer sprint with 50 kilograms of weight. Then there was the carrying of logs in the water, followed by push ups, pull ups, and double bar arm extensions. The number of each item is measured in hundreds. Soon, an hour had passed. The crowd of the Dragon Teeth Special Operations Team was already panting like a cow. However, in front of Chen Yu, everyone was trying their hardest to hold on, not wanting to show the fatigue of not being able to. Chief Instructor, please instruct. Yu Lei spoke aloud. However, Chen Yu just shook his head. Do you guys think that such a workout will be able to outperform the Han Tiger Special Forces who are on super stimulants? A statement that made everyone in the Dragon Teeth Special Forces team freeze. Everyone's face went bad. They're not stupid and they weigh it. According to the news brought back, even if the current training volume was doubled again, there was no way it could be a match for the cheating Han Tiger Special Forces. Now that you know, listen to me next. Chen Yu looked at the crowd, his heart already knowing. All of you, do as I do. Yes, the crowd shook with excitement. The chief instructor is going to make a move. I wonder, what will the devil's training really be like? All eyes converged on Chen Yu's body. Chen Yu's legs were forked and he slowly squatted down, like a horse stance, yet somewhat different. The upper body was twisted into a 90 degree angle, and the hands were propped up on one hand. The eyes are rounded. The lower valley channel is closed, while the upper part of the body is emptily led and lifted, and the tongue is pressed against the palate. The whole person's posture was beyond weird, but, this was not a secret martial arts technique, but a proper immortal cultivation technique. After inheriting the immortal emperor's memories, Chen Yu had an incomparably deep understanding of the path of immortal cultivation. The feats it mastered were even more vast. After watching the training of the Dragon Tooth Special Forces just now, Chen Yu finally chose such a set of feats after some thought. In the past, the hegemony sects Jinzong School, the hegemony nine absolute scriptures, and this pose is one of the nine refining poses for getting started. Although this was only the most basic of the hegemony nine absolute scriptures, it was also something incomparably explosive when placed in today's end times. It could be said that as long as these nine maneuvers were practiced, the combat power of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team would have a terrifying increase. It's, the crowd of the Dragon Teeth Special Operations Team was stunned and filled with doubt. Still not done? Chen Yu lightly shouted, scaring everyone with a jolt, not daring to be slow. All of them posed according to Chen Yu's movements. Chen Yu stood up after finishing all the details such as breathing. Stay in that position for half an hour. Everyone froze, but Chen Yu was the chief instructor after all, and they could only follow orders. Just stood like that for half an hour. During the process, many people feel physically weird. The whole body was aching and itching, and the feeling was coming from the bones. It made it hard at first, but as time went on, surprisingly, it felt a little more comfortable. Half an hour later, Chen Yu taught a second movement, then proceeded to let the crowd stand for half an hour. In this way, until the sun set, 
Shen Yu taught the crowd a total of four movements. Well, that's the end of today's training. After dinner, everyone goes back to their dormitories to sleep. Dismissed. Everyone froze. Training. Over? That's it? You call this training? Sure it's not relaxation? Chief Instructor, wouldn't this training volume be a bit small? One person opened his mouth to ask a question. Shen Yu revealed a wacky smile. In an hour? I hope you still think so. Go eat. The crowd could only obey the order and go forward to the cafeteria to eat. Time is fast. In the blink of an eye, an hour had passed. Then the whole cafeteria exploded. Crap. Me? Why am I on my knees? In the cafeteria, a soldier was just about to stand up when suddenly his legs went weak and he fell to his knees. His eyes were wide with disbelief. He was about to get up when suddenly all over his body, an unspeakable soreness swept over him, causing him to wail. The soreness, which was bubbling up from the bone, was nothing like the usual muscle soreness. Everyone froze when they saw the scene. Two men tried to go up to help him, but just as they left their seats, they plopped down and knelt down in succession. The same intense pain directly swept through their entire body, causing them to wail as well. Immediately afterward, everyone in the cafeteria did the same. Intense aches and pains stimulated everyone's nerves. The wailing was loud and clear. A group of people were paralyzed, using all their strength against the soreness and pain, and just rolling over onto their backs. Want to stand up? Not at all. Shit. What's going on? Holy shit. It can't be those four moves the chief instructor taught us, can it? This nasty aftertaste is so strong, I've never been so tired in my life. Ah, I feel like my body isn't my own anymore. Crap, I'm tired of sweating when I lift a finger. Man, what the hell is the chief instructor teaching us? How did this happen? Everyone was stunned. Earlier, they also felt that the amount of training was not enough. That mysterious smile at the end made them think that Chen Yu was underestimating them. So just now during dinner, a number of people were discussing going to the training ground for extra practice in the evening. But I didn't realize that I didn't even have to wait for extra practice for everyone to be limp like this. It's just four simple moves. How can it have such an effect? Lei, are we still going to the extra practice? Someone asked Yu Lei. Yu Lei was currently on all fours, lying on the floor of the cafeteria, panting heavily, not caring about his image at all. Extra practice? Extra my ass. Now whoever can walk to training standing up, I'll call him a father. No one scoffed at that. Because, indeed, no one can do it. So, what about us now? Now, crawl back to your dormitory and get some sleep and rest. Like the chief instructor said, all of you, follow me and crawl towards the dormitory. Yes, all of them roared and began to move. A comical scene emerges. More than 300 members of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, without any image to speak of, all crawled towards the dormitory. They tried to get up too, but they simply couldn't. The unmistakable sourness of it simply sent them into a frenzy. The dormitory and cafeteria are very close. If you walk, it's only two or three minutes. But for such a short distance, a group of people climbed for more than 30 minutes. By the time they were lying in bed, everyone was completely exhausted. Five seconds later, it was already snoring. The effect is much stronger than a shot of anesthesia. Dragon Teeth Special Forces General Division. The three middle-aged men frowned, looking confused. Old Xiao, do you think Chen Yu is good or not? Teach those few simple moves all afternoon and then send them to bed? This amount of training is too little. The person who opened his mouth was named Hu Ru, and the other two were Xiao Hua and Yu Cheng Lei. The rank of the three, two, had reached the highest rank under generals, ranked as majors. Here, it is responsible for arranging all matters of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Earlier, after Chen Yu came, they were also frightened, so full of anticipation. He went to the training ground and watched the training that Chen Yu had arranged for the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, but after reading it, they were confused. Crap, you call this training? What about playing? It's not even a warm-up for the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. So after training, they came back to the office and got together to discuss it. Xiao Hua frowned in confusion and disbelief. Chen Yu is strong, so maybe he has some strange tricks up his sleeve. Don't forget that when he came, he jumped straight down from a height of tens of meters. Hearing this, Hu Ru's tone stalled, not knowing how to retort. Yu Cheng Lei, however, let out a long sigh and said, Those who can fight, don't necessarily teach. Although he is strong, training such things does not have much relevance to one's own strength. Right now there is not much time left before the 50-nation mega military joint competition. Sakura Country, Eagle Jam Country, Cold Stick Country, and all these, have been eyeing us. I'm really worried that if we keep this up, the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team will make a big fool of themselves in the competition. Upon hearing this, Huru and Xiao Hua's brows became tighter and tighter, and the worry on their faces, also became more and more intense. Shit. I can't, 
I can't stand it. Let's go. Let's go and drag you lace brats to the training ground and get some extra practice. Xiao Hua was a little hesitant. This isn't good. After all, Chen Yu is the chief instructor now. He won't be happy if we meddle in his training. Huru got anxious and slapped his thigh. Aya, what's the time to be concerned about this? For the sake of the competition, it's fine even if we fall out with him. Originally I thought he had something when I saw how shocking his entrance was, but now that I look at it, I can't exactly put my hopes on him. After all, too young to have any training experience? The three of us have been in the military half our lives and are much more experienced than he is. Yu Chun Lei also spoke up. I also agree with old Hu's idea. At this moment, there must be no hesitation. It must be decisive. Xiao Hua thought for a moment before nodding heavily. Good, let's go. Let's go get Yu Lei and the others to practice extra hard first. Then we'll go find Chen Yu and discuss with him how to train next. The three nodded in agreement. He was about to go out when an orderly threw open the door with a bang and rushed in. Li, what's going on? So flustered? Xiao Hua inquired curiously. Li gulped, and there was a flash of shock on his face. Chief, big news, you have absolutely no idea what really happened in the cafeteria just now. The cafeteria? What can happen in the cafeteria? Xiao Hua froze with a surprised look on his face. The two of them, Hu Ru and Yu Chun Lei, looked at each other in the same way and were also filled with questions. Xiao Li danced with his hands and spoke. Just now, Vice Instructor Yu and the others went to the cafeteria to eat after training. While they were eating, they were discussing how they didn't have enough training and were going to add on. But after eating, all of them were so tired that they were paralyzed on the ground and couldn't even stand up. In the end, they crawled for half an hour before returning to the dormitory. At first, the trio was deeply relieved to hear that Yu Lei and the others had taken the initiative to ask for extra practice. But then the three were confused. Paralyzed? Can't stand up? Climbing for half an hour to get back to the dorm? Is this shit really true? Are you? Are you sure? A thousand times true. They say it's hard to even move a finger. This, the trio stared, their brains a little dazed. Chen Yu had taught them to do just four moves in one afternoon. And he had practiced them like this? These guys, they're the best of the best. Let's go. Check it out. The three of them were in a hurry and rushed to the dormitory. The three quickly rushed to the dormitory. Standing in front of the building, the trio was dumbfounded before they even entered. Because, the purring was just too loud. Even standing downstairs, you could hear the thunderous sound. I wonder how loud the snoring would be if this went in. How can you sleep in this environment? The three looked at each other, nodded, and entered the dormitory building. Upon entering, the three hearts and minds jumped. The grunts of more than 300 warriors, converging into one, rose and fell, like a continuous thunderclap, not to mention sleep. I feel a brain ache if I stay a little longer. Go on, get in there. Find a random dorm room and open the door. All were lying in bed, sleeping soundly. Each of the three Xiao Hua then walked over to a bed. A pat on the face? Not awake. Shout out twice. Not awake. Kick some ass. Still not awake. All three froze. The warriors of the Dragon's Teeth Special Warfare Team are well trained and have also received specialized sleep training. Even in deep sleep, the slightest stirring of the wind wakes you up immediately. This is also to ensure that you can get into battle as fast as possible. But now they're getting it like this and they haven't even woken up yet. How tired should this be? And check out the other dorms. Suppressing the shock in their hearts, they looked over from dormitory to dormitory. Without exception, all of them slept extremely deeply and could not be woken up at all by shouting. Out of the dormitory, the three of them had complex faces and were silent. It was only after a long time that Xiao Hua spoke quietly. What do you guys think? Are we, like, going to go give them extra practice? Hu Ru rolled his eyes. Extra practice? How can we practice? These brats, sleeping like dead pigs, can't get up at all. Yu Cheng Lei nodded and looked back at the dormitory with a complicated expression. Perhaps, we were wrong. It's too much to train them to this level. Xiao Hua nodded. Come on, let's go find Chen Yu and ask him what's going on. The three didn't hesitate and came to Chen Yu's office. Yeah, crawling back to the dormitory? A bit better than I expected. Not bad for an elite. After listening to the description, Chen Yu smiled and opened his mouth. The Hegemony 9 Absolute Sutra was a supreme immortal cultivation dharma. One of the body refining techniques is the most thorough cleansing of the human body from the inside out. Not only the muscles, but the deeper fascia, blood veins, and even the bone marrow, were able to be practiced. Although the nine movements are simple, every detail is polished in countless ways, combined with breathing and intention. The effect is so strong that it is simply unimaginable. That's why, the crowd reacted the way they did. Originally, Chen Yu thought that Yu Lei and the others were going to sleep in the cafeteria for the night. I didn't expect to be able to return to the dormitory, which is indeed a good performance. 
but it's understandable when you think about it. After all, they were elites selected from the sea within the Dragon Kingdom, and it was normal to have this kind of performance. The corners of Xiao Hua's three mouths straightened. Look at that. Is that human? Crawling back to the dormitory is considered elite? Instructor Chen, we would like to ask, what is it that you taught them? Why did they have such a great reaction? Xiao Hua asked his doubts. Chen Yu smiled. Just some means of refining the body. Body refining? Is that just exercising your body? What effect can it have? Hu Ru hurriedly pursued the question, full of curiosity. Effect? Chen Yu thought about it and smiled. Physical quality will improve. The three froze, blinking, a little stunned. Just, just this? Well, here it is. Well, it's getting late, so go back and rest early. After giving the expulsion order, the three could only leave. On the way, the three of them looked complicated. You guys, what instructor Chen said, is it true or not? Huru had a tangled look on his face. Xiao Hua said, it should be true. He has no need to lie to us. Yu Changlei said, but how much can four movements improve physical fitness? Xiao Hua shook his head slightly. I don't know. Everything, can only wait for tomorrow, ask Yu Lei and the others. With matters of the heart, the three returned to their residence. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces, have always had a tradition of night training. But this night, the entire base was quiet, except for the dormitory building. Early the next morning, as the sun rose, the soldiers woke up one after the other. Ah, it's so damn comfortable. Someone made it out of bed and stretched. Full of coziness, I fucking feel lighter as a whole. Everyone feels like they've been reborn. The aching, swelling bitterness that had flooded his bones yesterday dissipated at this moment. The body was so relaxed that it even had the illusion of floating. Suddenly, one of the men turned his shoulders with a surprised look on his face. Hey, strange, how come my frozen shoulder doesn't seem to hurt anymore? Ouch, when you put it that way, my migraine is gone. Crap, guys, my, my back injury feels better. Shit, what's going on? I think my right ear got better? There were cries of alarm. Everyone was shocked, followed by endless ecstasy. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces, although all of them were elite, had been training at overload for so many years. So everyone's body, in one way or another, has quite a few dark wounds. Today they are still young enough to be able to hold down these injuries. But once you get older, all sorts of old injuries flare up. The four styles taught by Qing Yu were authentic immortal cultivation techniques. After the training, all the old injuries left from past accumulation were completely eliminated. Crap, this must have been caused by what the chief instructor taught us yesterday. Ha ha, awesome, so awesome, boy, I was feeling silly about those poses, but I didn't realize it worked so well. That's right, to have that effect, even if it's more humiliating, I can take it. Hey, I feel as if my body is filled with endless power, why don't we go to the training ground and try it out? Someone spoke up and offered. The crowd nodded after they froze at the words, good good good, let's go try, saying yes, a group of people rushed to the training ground in great numbers, doing pull-ups, crap, why is this so easy, it feels like I can do twice as much, as a result, an extra one and a half times was made, running, ha ha, too fast, what, 9 seconds and 51, then I've broken the world record, haven't I, are you fucking misremembering, strength, damn, I, I actually got to 200 kilos on the bench press, 100 kilograms higher than yesterday? Agility. Man, is this, is this really me? Surprisingly, I dodged all the attacks. Everyone found themselves horribly elevated. Before today, no one would have even thought about it. The more so, the more they worshipped Chen Yu. What kind of divine means is this to bring about such a big change in them? At the same time, the general service. Xiao Hua looked at Huru. Yu Chun Lei, come on. Let's go to the training ground. Together, Xiao Hua, Hu Ru, and Yu Cheng Lei quickly arrived at the training ground. The crowd of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces team is currently undergoing a test. Various calls of excitement rose and fell. Even from a distance, one could hear the excitement. Hey, what the hell is going on? Xiao Hua pulled a warrior and asked curiously. The man immediately saluted, followed by a grin. Chief, happy news, great news. You don't know, the chief instructor. He's just divine. After we practiced those four moves yesterday, all of the brothers' dark wounds have healed and their physical fitness has improved greatly. The three Xiao Hua people were shocked. Dark wounds all healed? Qualities improved? How much? Geez, how can I put it? I'm twice as powerful now as I was yesterday. Also, it's a lot faster. By the way, my long jump was a meter longer than before. Hiss. The three of them sucked in a breath of cold air as they heard this. They even wondered if they had heard wrong. Four moves, a day and a half can make that much of a difference? 
Without hesitation, the three rushed to take a closer look. At this look, they were dumbfounded. Indeed, as the man had just said, everyone's physical quality had been greatly improved. No, even what the man said was a bit conservative. The largest increase in power was a full 2x power boost. The fastest has run into the nines. The most standing jumps have been over 4 meters. My, my god, this, these people, have they all turned into monsters? Huru stared wide-eyed and muttered. Although the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team was elite, their physical fitness wasn't to this kind of explosive level. The way it is now, it's an exaggeration. Yu Cheng Lei swallowed his saliva, his complexion incomparably. The ones taught by Instructor Chin, are they really that terrifying? Xiao Hua was full of bitter smiles. These people are right in front of us. It's hard not to believe it. This kind of enhancement is really exaggerated. It's not scientific at all. Originally, the dragon's teeth training was already extremely heavy. The physical qualities of each warrior were also developed to the limit. It's tough to improve even a little bit more. Even if these warriors were allowed to start learning ancient martial arts now and set foot in the inhuman realm, it would still require a long period of accumulation and honing. Today's scene is something they never expected. Yo, you guys are here? Chen Yu walked with a smile, somewhat surprised. The trio's bodies shook as they immediately jogged to Chen Yu. Instructor Chen, he, they are now. Oh, these are normal. Chen Yu looked at the crowd that was training and opened his mouth with a smile. Normal. You call that normal? These guys, they could break a world record if they pulled it out. The three men's eyelids fluttered. At this time, the others also discovered Chen Yu, and immediately their eyes glowed. The chief instructor is here. A call to arms. With you lay at the head. All the warriors immediately assembled in formation. Hello chief instructor. Each man yelled desperately. His neck bruised. On their faces, a strong adoration surfaced. Yesterday's initial meeting and today's training results had made them completely convinced of Chen Yu. Xiao Hua's three pupils shrunk as they looked at each other, all seeing the shock in each other's hearts. This group of rabbits were completely subdued by Chen Yu. For the first time in Dragon's Teeth's history, this was an unprecedented first. In the past, no matter who came as an instructor, it was impossible to make this group of pricks so worshipful without a year and a half. Chen Yu, that was awesome. All right, today, I'll teach you the remaining five styles. Chen Yu did not nag and taught the crowd once again. Just like yesterday, Chen Yu would explain every move in detail. Breath, intention, gaze. This time, everyone was exceptionally obedient, and they did whatever Chen Yu said without any hesitation. Why don't we try that too? The three Xiao Hua looked at each other and came to an agreement. As taught by Chen Yu, they also began to train. This kind of magical gong method, they also wanted to carry out the experience themselves. Soon, the day slipped by. When the sun set, Chen Yu carried his hands behind his back and looked at the crowd. That concludes today's training. After everyone has eaten, go back to your dormitory and sit on your knees and exhale according to the breathing method I have given you. Yes, Chen Yu nodded and looked at the three Xiao Hua people again. Smiling, Yu Lei, carry the three back to the dormitory. Yu Lei looked at the three and held back his laughter as he saluted. Promise to finish the job. An hour earlier, the three had been paralyzed on the floor, unable to move. The five styles taught by Chen Yu today were even more effective than the four styles of yesterday. Xiao Hua's trio didn't follow the training yesterday, and they were already completely paralyzed with exhaustion after working out these five styles directly today. By the time the crowd got back to the dormitory from dinner, it was only 7 o'clock in the evening. All the warriors of Dragon's Tooth were sitting on their beds to meditate and exhale. The sound of breathing was so connected that it had a surprisingly special flavor. Early the next morning, when Xiao Hua and the three of them woke up and felt the unusualness of their bodies, they were all stunned. My, 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 this, this, this effect is simply too much, isn't it? I didn't expect it, but I have the feeling of returning to the top again. No, surpassing the top? Old Xiao, old who? I, my eyesight has returned, ha ha, it's incredible. The three gathered in the office chatting away, their faces full of excitement and exhilaration. When the excitement subsided, the three of them couldn't help but feel emotional again. Hey, I was a bit skeptical yesterday, but now that I've experienced it for myself, I realize what an exaggeration it is. Huru let out a long sigh and said, It is truly a blessing for the dragon's teeth to have Mr. Chun. Xiao Hua nodded and said, If this continues, we will definitely be able to avenge the Han Hu special forces. In the eyes of the three, a flash of fury erupted at the same time. Yu Chang Lei snorted coldly. This time, I'd like to see if their super stimulants can match Mr. Chen's divine means. Jingle bells. At this time, the office phone rang. Xiao Bai's picked up the phone. Xiao Hua, I'm Feng Su from the War Research Office. 
How is the training of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team going now? Has the training program been formulated? Report a copy as soon as possible. We have specially invited a number of experts to make additional improvements. War Studies Office. Subdivided into elite training. The Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team's past training programs were all researched and formulated by the War Research Office. Xiao Hua scratched his head and said with some embarrassment, General Feng, right now, Instructor Chen has already started training and has not formulated a training program. What? You've started training without a program? Isn't that nonsense? On the opposite side, Feng Su's tone was bad. All things come to an end. And can training be effective without a training program? Tell me, what have you been training for the last day and a half? Xiao Hua froze, his face full of oddities. Well, practiced a total of nine moves, then ate, slept, and meditated. You, what did you say? Just, just this? Feng Su was confused, thousands of thoughts, but also did not expect. Chen Yu actually led the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, practicing this kind of thing. Yes, this is it, but rest assured, it's good training. Xiao Hua was about to explain when Feng Su had growled. Nonsense, it's just nonsense. Xiao Hua, are you three out of your minds? How dare you let a young waif act so recklessly? You guys are trying to destroy Dragon's Teeth, just wait. I'll bring someone to settle the score with you guys right away. Tu Do Lu. The phone hung up. Tu Do Lu. Listening to the busy tone on the phone. Xiao Hua looked odd. Old Xiao. What's going on? Hu Ru. Who was on the side? Opened his mouth to inquire. Xiao Hua wore a bitter smile on his face. It's Feng Su from the War Research Office. He disapproves of Mr. Chen's training methods and is coming to settle the score with us. Come to settle a score with us? There's something wrong with him. Hu Ru was not happy and opened her mouth to squeeze. I'll call him right away. Never mind. It's better to say something a thousand times than to see it in person. Didn't we? At first, not believe it? We'll see when he comes to visit. Hu Ru and Yu Cheng Lei nodded. He he he. I'd love to see what Feng Su will be scared of when he sees the physical quality of the current group of young waifs from Dragon's Teeth. A wacky smile appeared on Hu Ru's face. Office of War Studies. Snap. Feng Su slammed the phone on the table, gasping for air constantly. In the room, a number of people were seated. It was all a bit of a surprise to see this sight. What's going on? Such a big fire? A middle-aged man with glasses opened his mouth to inquire. His face puzzled. Feng Su gritted his teeth and said, It's that new chief instructor of the Dragon Tooth Special Forces. Shen Yu, do you guys know what this kid has done since he went to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces? Training, not even a training program or plan. And already training. And, instead of practicing any serious subjects, it's posing and meditating. At the mention of this, Feng Su was out of his mind with anger. All along, the training program of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team had been formulated by the War Research Office. In Feng Su's opinion, the reason why the Dragon Teeth Special Forces had reached such a powerful point as it was today had a great deal to do with their targeted training program. But now what? Chen Yu hadn't even taken the initiative to contact them since he took office. Even so, he even took it upon himself to start training directly on the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Is there a War Research Office in his eyes or not? What did you say? How dare you mess around like that? The glasses man's brow tightened and his face fell. Xiao Hua and the rest of them, just letting this new chief instructor run amok? Humph. The three of them? I'm afraid they've long been intimidated by Chen Yu's reputation. On the phone, the three of them were still putting in a good word for Chen Yu. It simply pissed me off. Feng Su became more and more angry, picked up a cup on the side and gulped a large amount of water. Chen Yu's identity was not generally known, though it was not a secret to them. They had long known that Chen Yu was an innate sect master who had caused havoc in the Sakura kingdom and was exceedingly powerful. But so what? Can you teach if you can fight? As far as training is concerned, it's their war research office that's the professional. That was why from the beginning until now, they had been quite critical of Chen Yu's assumption of the position of chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth. In his heart, he was not convinced. Now Chen Yu's approach was even more upsetting to Feng Su. Perhaps, he really has some special means? In the martial arts path, isn't it all about a breathing and exhaling, and practicing with specific movements? Elder Yen, what do you few think? The man with the glasses looked to the four men seated off to the side. Among the four, there were three middle-aged men and an old man with a white beard. It's all about the inhuman community. The war research office was also greatly shaken after the Dragon Teeth Special Fighter Team was defeated by the Han Tiger Special Fighter Team. They are also ready to change their training strategy in order to combat super doping. Yen Lao and several others were the ones who were brought in as expert advisors to participate in the development of the new training program. This is also to draw on some of the means of martial arts practice. Elder Yan's name was Yen Yuan, a strong person with peak Hotian strength. Over the years, 
he has taught many people and has a great deal of experience. Upon hearing this, Yen Yuan frowned with a pensive expression. There are indeed such means in martial arts cultivation. Through special movements, in conjunction with breathing and intention, it is possible to enhance a practitioner's strength. For example, this is the case with Shaolin's two supreme techniques, the Yi Jin Jing and the Marrow Cleansing Sutra. There are two components in it, dynamic and static. Jing Gong is some movement, breathing, meditation, etc. But, there are two problems with Jing Gong. Feng Su immediately pursued. What problem? Yen Yuan said. Firstly, generally speaking, Jing Gong is an auxiliary means. As a complementary existence, the cultivation of the most important, or to rely on the dynamic gong. Secondly, the cultivation of Jing Gong requires a long period of time before the effects can be manifested, a short period of three to five years, and a long period of one to two decades. Right now the 50-nation military drill competition is about to begin, and it's to rely on Jing Gong alone to improve. Snap! Feng Su smashed the cup to smithereens as he huffed and puffed wearing a rough breath. Hateful! This Chen Yu, wronging my dragon's teeth, Speaking in excitement, Feng Su's body was trembling. The man with glasses frowned and said, Could there be any misunderstanding in this? After all, Chun Yu, he's also an innate master. He shouldn't have made this kind of mistake, right? Yen Yuan shook his head and smiled gently. An innate master, in terms of strength, is indeed a terrestrial deity that all people look up to. But, that doesn't make him all powerful either. For Chen Yu to have this kind of strength at such a young age, he must have focused all his energy on cultivation and his qualifications are incomparably heaven-defying, but he is so lightly read that what suits him is not suitable for ordinary people. Likewise, he doesn't have any teaching experience. It can even be said that he is a novice when it comes to teaching others. After saying that, Yen Yuan's chest was slightly raised with a touch of arrogance. In terms of strength, I'm not as good as him, and in terms of teaching, he's not as good as me. Next to him, a man nodded and spoke slowly. Perhaps, this time, Teaching the Dragon Teeth Special Forces is just a flat addition to his resume for him in the future. The Dragon's Teeth, not on his mind. A remark that completely triggered Feng Su's anger. Motherfucker, I mustn't watch Dragon's Teeth be destroyed in his hands. Let's go. To the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. I don't care what kind of innate master he is. I must slap him two times to his face. He doesn't even take Dragon's Teeth. Or the honor of my Dragon Kingdom seriously. Dragon Teeth, the pride of Feng Su. When he was defeated by the Han Tiger Special Forces, Feng Su was drunk and crying at home. He would never allow anyone to destroy the dragon's teeth. Now that he had heard those words, he could not sit still any longer. After a little bit of packing, the group quickly set off towards the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. That afternoon, they arrived at the Dragon Teeth Special Forces base. Instead of informing Xiao Hua and the others, he rushed directly to the training ground. In the past, Feng Su also came. From afar, you could hear the training ground the hot hooting and hollering, but when today came, everything was quiet. From afar, one could see that the entire training ground was filled with a bunch of warriors in odd poses, not moving a muscle. Feng Su picked himself up on the car window and watched the scene, his heart bleeding. Dragon's teeth. Ah, dragon's teeth have turned out like this. Upon arrival, just after getting out of the car, training was over. You lay and the others were cheeky and hooked their shoulders as they walked towards the cafeteria. Stop the fuck all. Feng Su's eyes were bloodshot and he roared, causing Yu Lei and the others to be startled. A roar that froze everyone in their tracks. Chief, what are you doing here? When Yu Lei saw Feng Su and the others, he couldn't help but stare. As the developer of the training program for the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, Feng Su had been here quite a few times, so Yu Lei was no stranger to Feng Su. You, you guys, how could you, how could you? Feng Su pointed at Yu Lei and the others with a look of hatred. You're the Dragon's Teeth, and you just struck such a funny pose. It's ridiculous. This is your training? Ha, huh? have you ever thought about the honor of the dragon's teeth? Feng Su ranted on and on, spittle flying. Yu Lei and the others were scolded. Xiao Hua, Hu Ru, and Yu Cheng Lei came and said, Feng Su, don't get excited. It's not that bad. What not to? You guys are messing around. Nonsense do you understand? Stop this stupid training regimen immediately. Reformulate the training program. At those words, Yu Lei was a bit anxious. Chief, the training is good now. It's the chief instructor's own training method. Feng Su's eyes glared. Pro transmission? Pro passage P. You guys aren't from the inhuman world. You don't even understand. Come. I'll let a true martial arts expert of the inhuman realm tell you what he is. Elder Yen. Tell these stupid boys what this bullshit training can do? Looking towards Yen Yuan. Feng Su had just finished roaring angrily when he suddenly froze. What's going on? 
Why was Yan Yuan's expression so serious? What was he frowning about? Why did it feel like he was vaguely shocked? Elder Yen, what's wrong with you? Ha, huh? oh, nothing. Yan Yuan snapped out of his contemplation and frowned at Yu Lei. Boys, could you do that pose you guys struck earlier in training again? Just now, in the car, Yan Yuan had seen Yu Lei and the others' postures. At first, he didn't care, but out of a martial artist's intuition, he subconsciously thought about it. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that the pose was extraordinary. It seemed that it was not quite the same as the Jingong he had originally thought. That's why after getting off the bus just now, he hadn't said anything, but was secretly thinking. It wasn't until he heard Yen Yuan call out to him that he was awakened and opened his mouth to inquire. Feng Su was a bit surprised, not understanding why Yen Yuan suddenly looked like this. Yu Lei did not refuse and after nodding, he pulled back and assumed a pose as taught by Qin Yu. Hands to the sky, the lower half of the body presents a left-right lunge. The body was slightly twisted and the head was tilted to the right about 30 degrees. One eye was wide open. The nose is still for 3 seconds for every 5 seconds of breathing, followed by 7 seconds of slow exhalation. The abdomen squirms regularly as you breathe. Feng Su inclined his head and covered his face as soon as he could not bear to look at it again. My god, my dragon's teeth, to make such a godly mess in public. Is this still a warrior? Is that any semblance of warrior's dignity to speak of? However, Yen Yuan was staring at Yu Lei's posture. His eyes were wide open and his breathing was getting short. On the side, his three middle-aged juniors were also looking at Yulei with furrowed brows and suspicion. Strange, how do I feel? This posture, has a special flavor? Ha, huh? you feel it too? I feel it too. The posture doesn't seem quite the same. I'm the same. I always have a feeling that it's not simple. I wonder if he, Elder Yen, can see some way out? Feng Su stared at Yen Yuan, growing more and more surprised. Elder Yen, you, what's wrong with you? Yen Yuan ignored Feng Su and instead stared at Yulei with a deadly stare his face turning red due to too much excitement. Suddenly, under Feng Su's shocked gaze, Yen Yuan made a shocking move. He stood with his legs in a bow and arrow stance, his palms holding up the sky. Surprisingly, he learned Yu Lei's posture. Elder Yen, what are you doing? Feng Su's eyes were wide and full of stupefaction. What's going on? What's the deal with suddenly mimicking the opposite side? Well, I asked you to come as an expert consultant. It's a little embarrassing for me, the way you're acting right now. Yu Lei froze, he was also surprised by Yen Yuan's actions. Xiao Hua's three looked at each other and laughed silently. Gotta, looks like the old gentleman, has noticed the unusual nature of the pose. Well, let him experience it again. Time, minutes and seconds pass. Yen Yuan didn't move a muscle and even carefully asked Yu Lei about some details. Yu Lei didn't hide it and told him the truth. According to what Yu Lei had said, Yen Yuan completely replicated from his breathing to his intention to the angle of each movement. On the surface, he looked as normal without the slightest fluctuation. Inside, however, waves had risen. Shun Gong, it's a fucking miracle. Mimicking this posture, he clearly felt that the true chi in his body began to rush up ferociously. Marrow, blood, meridians, sinews, flesh. The true chi flushed all parts of his body for a change. With these flushes, he could clearly feel that the inner part of his body had gotten an excellent workout. When practicing kung fu and practicing kung fu, the deeper you practice, the more you have to go inside yourself. From the very first muscles, keep working your way up to the fascia and bones. In this way, it is possible to grow stronger and stronger from the roots. But, it is not easy to practice kung fu towards the body. And the deeper you practiced, the tougher it became. The reason why the Shaolin Temple's Yijin Jing and Marrow Cleansing Sutra are regarded as the holy texts of martial arts is that they are able to exercise the inner self and have outstanding effects. But, both are nothing compared to this pose. Simply working out in this position has such outstanding results. It's something you can't even dream of thinking about much. After 10 or so minutes, Yen Yuan slowly got up, somewhat reluctantly. Elder Yen, what the hell is going on? What just happened? Yen Yuan let out a long breath, his expression incomparably complex. Mr. Fong, it seems that we were wrong. I didn't realize that there were such wondrous feats in this world. Mr. Chen is simply a genius. No, genius is not even enough to describe him. He is a god. With a few words, Feng Su was dumbfounded. Damn it, I asked you to come here to help me teach Chen Yu a lesson. So you posed for 10 minutes and you fucking backfired? Get the word out. Feng Su was anxious and spoke loudly. Yen Yuan let out a long sigh of emotion. This posture, it is not an ordinary jingdong, but a supreme strange art. Practicing such techniques is of great benefit to cultivators. The effect is so strong that no training method can achieve it. Although Yen Yuan did not know that this was the basic body refining technique in the Hegemon's nine absolute scriptures, 
but still saw that he was extraordinary. Can't reach any training method? How is this possible? Just, just by striking these shitty poses? Feng Su was full of disbelief. At this time, Xiao Hua laughed loudly and patted Feng Su's shoulder. Since you don't believe me, why don't you see for yourself? You lay, come on, show Feng Su, showcase? Hearing this, Feng Su froze. Yen Yuan's eyes lit up as a flash of intense anticipation rose on his face. He was also eager to see what would be different after practicing such a feat. Okay. Yu Lei grinned, saluted, and turned to look at the crowd of Dragon Teeth Special Forces. All hands, line up and show. Yes. A violent roar went straight to the sky. Feng Su and the others' hearts were shaken. Just this roar could be heard with incomparable confidence and pride. Could it be that this kind of training really has some special effect? Feng Su muttered in his heart and paid a little more attention to the next display. The Dragon Tooth Special Forces were in action and began to make a display. The demonstration is about some of the prescribed training subjects on a daily basis. But after Feng Su read it, his entire body was confused. Nima, running with weights, you doubled your weight and you're still going 10 seconds for 100 meters? Crap, how is it that the weakest of the bench presses is over 150 kilograms? Man, what's with the standing long jump and averaging 5 meters? Grass, this kid's not a martial artist. He's all alone. Jumping three meters in place? Seeing these inhuman displays, Feng Su's brain buzzed. He even wondered if he was dreaming. Beside them, Yen Yuan's four pupils shrunk violently as they looked at each other. Elder Yen, look at this. Generally speaking, anyone who could achieve this kind of physical quality was already considered a figure in the inhuman world. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces are the elite of the elite though. But in the eyes of the inhuman world, it also still belonged to the category of ordinary people. At best, it's considered top-tier average. In terms of comprehensive combat power alone, it was not weaker than some ordinary martial artists. But in their eyes, it wasn't enough. But now this performance was clearly beyond the realm of ordinary people. Yen Yuan clenched his fists and looked at Yu Lei and the others without blinking. Breathing was like a bellows, a rush, a face full of uncontainable excitement. Awesome, awesome, it's worthy of being a divine skill. It's really strong. For an ordinary person to reach this level in just two days is nothing short of a miracle. Mr. Chen. Mr. Chun Yu. What kind of godly being are you in the end? Speaking later, Yen Yuan had trouble controlling himself and burst out in foul language. Sometime later, the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team had finished showing and rearranged themselves. Please instruct the chief. Yu Lei lifted his chest and roared with immense pride. Everyone in the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team was grinning with pride. Feng Su opened his mouth, but he couldn't say a word. What more can be said about watching this display? Even if this is a fucking dream, I wouldn't dare to dream like this. Hey, hey, old phone, how's it going? How do you feel now? That training wasn't bad, was it? Huru walked over to Feng Su and slapped a song on his shoulder. Grinning, the corner of Feng Su's mouth twitched and he couldn't help but roll his eyes. You, you fucking asked me what it felt like? The old man feels good, so good. After Feng Su roared, he suddenly laughed up to the sky laughing so hard that tears fell from his eyes. Ha 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 ha. Yes, that's great. Damn with fighters like this. Even if those bastards use some kind of super stimulant, they won't be able to win against us. Ha 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 ha. The 50 nation military drill competition. We must be the strongest. The strongest. At this moment, Feng Su was a little crazy and incoherent. But, no one laughed at him. Xiao Hua's few people looked at Feng Su and let out a long sigh in their hearts with some emotion. Feng Su and the Dragon Teeth Special Forces had a long history. From the beginning of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, all the training programs were created by Feng Su. It could be said that the success of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces had Feng Su's shadow all along the way. And Feng Su also took the Dragon Teeth Special Forces as his greatest pride. It feels like raising your own son with your own hands. But, the last time he was defeated by the Han Tiger Special Forces, it left Feng Su devastated especially after realizing that the other party had used underhanded tactics. It was even more angry and hateful, as well as incomparably worried. He was afraid, afraid that the glory of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces would dissipate. Fear of being trampled under the feet of those foreign powers after years of honor. Afraid to see the disappointed look on the nation's face. So during this period of time, he had been thinking about how to change the training plan to maximize the enhancement of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces as fast as possible. This, in turn, puts a great deal of pressure on him. This was precisely the reason why he was so furious when he heard about Chen Yu's training. But now, it fucking smells good. What kind of plan that could elevate Yu Lei and the others to such an inhuman level in two days, doesn't exist. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he wouldn't have believed it. That, old phone, know you're happy, tighten up. Huru laughed and said, 
happy from the bottom of his heart. Feng Su laughed for a few more moments before he slowly collected himself. Wiping the tears from the corners of his eyes, Feng Su opened his mouth to inquire. Where's Chen Yu? I want to see him. Okay, follow me. The three of them, Xiao Hua, led Feng Su and the others to Chen Yu's office. Mr. Chen, this is Feng Su, the head of the war research room. In the past, all the training programs of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team were formulated by him. After Xiao Hua made a slight introduction, Feng Su rushed to Chen Yu with an arrow step. Snap! Feng Su slapped himself three times, blinding Chen Yu. You're going to give yourself a double whammy first? There's something about this guy. Feng Su rubbed his hands together and smiled shyly. Mr. Chen, these three slaps are to make amends to you. I admit that I had a bit of an attitude problem before. After looking at you lays and their watches, I realized that as the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, you deserve it. Feng Su looked at Chen Yu, his eyes fiery and full of admiration. Chen Yu nodded and looked towards Yen Yuan. They are? With a jolt, Yen Yuan immediately stepped forward and held Chen Yu's hand. Hello Mr. Chen, my name is Yen Yuan. Yes, Yen Yuan introduced himself. In front of outsiders, he was a highly respected person, but in front of Chen Yu, he appeared a bit nervous and rushed. That's normal. Although Chen Yu was young, the things he did were all astonishingly great. Moreover, the current status was unattainable both in the inhuman realm and the secular world. Invisibly, there was already the majesty of a higher power. After everyone exchanged slight pleasantries and sat down, Yen Yuan still didn't hold back his curiosity. Sir, the training methods you teach are unearthly, and to teach them just like that, and to teach them so atmospherically, is really something I admire. Yen Yuan praised from the bottom of his heart. In the inhuman realm, the inheritance of feats was extremely strict. Even for ordinary feats, they were basically in a state of secrecy. Like this magical training method taught by Qin Yu. If known by the families, it is even more important to strictly control the scope of knowledge, and will never be easily spread out. But Chen Yu just made it public. This shocked Yan Yuan greatly. Chen Yu froze and said, It's fine. It's just an ordinary gongfu. I still have many more. Crap. A lot. A lot? Yan Yuan jumped up excitedly. Yan Yuan's brain buzzed and his eyes almost glazed over. It would be a thousand times more difficult to have one of such marvelous feats. But now, you're telling me there's a lot? And, it's still considered an ordinary feat? Brother, we can't joke around like that. Indeed there are many. Chen Yu said it again with certainty. The Hegemon's nine absolute scriptures were indeed not bad. But to Chen Yu, it was just ordinary. In the immortal emperor's memories, there are more than thousands of feats. There were quite a few techniques that were better than the Hegemony Nine Absolute Scriptures. However, it was only after a comprehensive comparison that the Hegemony Nine Extremity Scripture was the most suitable before it was given to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. It was only after a long time that Yen Yuan accepted this fact. Looking at Chen Yu, he made a deep bow. Mr. Chen, thanks for opening my eyes today. In his words, admiration overflowed. Ha ha, well, well, don't even bother being polite. Xiao Hua snorted. Feng Su, now you shouldn't have any more worries, right? Feng Su grinned and nodded uncontrollably. But then he frowned. Worry, naturally, there's no need to worry. But the next thing to do is to keep it a secret. Looking at you Lei and the rest of the group, Feng Su said, such a miraculous gong method must not fall into the hands of those people abroad. Chen Yu shook his head. Don't worry, even if it gets out, it won't have any effect. The Hegemon's nine absolute scriptures, which contained many ideas and theoretical foundations, were very much in line with the culture of the dragon kingdom, so there is no barrier to understanding for the dragons. For example, major and minor circumference, acupuncture points, etc. But for foreign powers, these things are hard to figure out. Secondly, the cultivation of the Hegemon's nine absolute scriptures also had a threshold. The reason why the dragon teeth special forces were able to cultivate was because these people were the elite of the elite, waiting to be screened before practicing. Thirdly, it was because the Hegemony Nine Absolute Scriptures had to be taught by a master personally. It takes a great deal of ability to be able to correct the mistakes of the practitioner at any time during the teaching process. And it takes a great deal of ability to want to correct the mistakes. The only one who could do all of this was Chun Yu, the only immortal cultivator. If one simply cultivates to a book, any amazement in any detail will lead to failure in the end. In severe cases, it can even cause a strong backlash. Even if you lay and the others had already learned it now. It was simply impossible for them to spread it. Therefore, it was simply impossible for the Hegemony Nine Extremity Scripture's body refining technique to be promoted in this end times era. It was for this reason that Chen Yu was not worried in the slightest. After the explanation, Feng Su completely put his heart down. 
Had had. This time, those foreign powers, in order to humiliate us, have put a lot of effort into propaganda. Xiao Hua smiled and opened his mouth, having a smirk of anticipation. The last time he fought with the Han Tiger Special Forces, although it caused shockwaves within a certain range, it didn't cause too many waves on the social level, but this time is different. In order to suppress it, so foreign forces have created a lot of noise this time. Many people have learned about the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team's participation in the 50-nation military exercise grand competition from the internet, even under the guidance of those who are interested. This battle is actually hooked up with the dignity of the national body. Once Long Tooth lost, the public opinion consequences could be imagined. And before that, the reason why Xiao Hua and the others were so worried and nervous was also an important one. But now, please, 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 make it louder. If you guys don't make it louder, it won't sound good when we punch you in the face in the future. Feng Su snorted coldly with a disdainful expression. They're lifting a rock and stoning themselves. After chatting for a while longer, Feng Su and Yan Yuan, with immense anticipation and pride, left the training base. Chen Yu's training still continued. The outside world, on the other hand, has been in the wind for a long time, above the network, under the continuous promotion of people with the intention. The 50-nation military drill martial arts competition has become the number one hot search. The amount of related talk, even more so, has reached an exaggerated point. What kind of views are there? Some were full of anticipation. Some were not at all optimistic. And there was a lot of debate. On the Dragon Kingdom's largest Dragon Sky Forum, it was even more so that the whole thing was a discussion of the military drill competition. Flying Pig, this time, the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team will surely be able to show the national prestige. Looking forward to it. I'm not a good person, heh? Show national prestige? I think it's a shame to throw people out of the country, isn't it? Don't you know that in terms of innate conditions, those people abroad are better than us? The moon is fuller over there, agree with upstairs. We still need to put ourselves in the right position. Worse than others is worse. Go and study hard. Angrily chopped a thousand soldiers, damn can't see some cartilaginous dog things, just can't see us good? The Qing dynasty is dead, still can't fucking stand up? Not with mortals, hey, helpless, after so many years, the quality of the people of the country is still so low ah, let's be realistic, can we face up to the gap with foreign countries? Xiangruan, yeah, with people of that caliber, what kind of good fighters can there be? It's all fucking bullshit, White Rabbit, the Dragon Tooth Special Warfare Team, founded 20 years ago has always been the Dragon Kingdom's supreme elite. Defeating the Eagle Sauce Kingdom's White-Headed Eagle Special Warfare Team and the Woolly Bear Kingdom's Stormy Bear Special Warfare Team in many international competitions. What gap do we need to face up to? Is it the poor posture of defeating them? Zhao Chiyu, laughing your ass off. And an elite? You've just forgotten about being need by the Han Tiger Special Forces of the Cold Stick Country some time ago? Well, sure enough self-deception. Specializing in all kinds of disobedience, didn't you read the news upstairs? The other team is using super dope. A sheepdog, Che. So what if I use it? If you're not convinced, the dragon's teeth can also be used, but it's still not in this condition? Optimization, agree with the upstairs. I'll be fair. Our backwardness is all round backwardness. Training means, technological capabilities, personnel quality. Humbly bow your head, say sorry to the world, and then like a child seeking to learn, follow your teacher well. Above the network, the agitation reached a white hot stage kneeling down on all sorts of disparaging things about the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. The ones standing were desperately angry, but they couldn't wake up the moochers at all. The whole thing, which has attracted the attention of people from all sides. The crowd grew more and more excited about the upcoming 50-nation military drill competition. And the very next day, a photo appeared that pushed the entire Dragon Teeth Special Operations team into the limelight. The photo, was the photo of Yulei and the others training in the Dragon Teeth Special Forces training base. In the photo, Everyone is in a slightly comical pose. It was precisely the ninth movement of the Hegemony 9 Absolute Scripture Body Refining Technique. The accompanying text, below, reeks of sarcasm. God, the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, utilizing the mysterious power of the East. Mysterious Eastern power. Incredible pose. Shilling tactics. In the story, it's all about those words. Even a fool could hear the thick mockery in it. The internet was completely set off by this one photo. Families, who gets it? I'm just dying of laughter. This is fucking training? This is inviting God, right? Nima, blame me. Blame me for thinking of dragon's teeth as too high end. This pose, absolute. This is the dragon teeth's training? It's a fucking laugh. Other countries develop their training programs scientifically. We do everything as we please. Bull, at this level, you're still going to participate in the 50 nation military drill competition? It's a new world of disgrace. I fucking broke defense. 
Is this the level of the elite? This posture is fucking disgusting. All sorts of curses, like a tidal wave raging. There were also rebuttals. Could this be a new training method? Feels a bit like the stance inside a martial art. Ha, huh? after all, it's the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, so it shouldn't make any jokes. Only, the voices made no waves at all. Dragon Teeth Special Forces became the object of ridicule across the internet. Others have taken comments from foreign networks and brought them home to make another whole lot of broken defenses. It's unimaginable that in this day and age of technology, there are such backward ways of training. Oh, the East, the mysterious East, always brings me so much joy. I'm curious, don't they really laugh when they pose like that? What a stupid pose. It's ridiculous. I've heard that there are mysterious martial arts in the East. Could this be their martial art? Oh God. Are they going to rely on something like this? Against us? Once again, I am shocked by the stupidity of the dragons. Inside the war research room. Bang. The door to Feng Su's room was pushed open viciously with a loud bang. An old man was furious. His eyes red. Behind him, there were three middle-aged men, all with ugly faces. When Feng Su saw the visitor, he immediately rose and saluted. Elder Qian, what brings you here? The visitor's name was Qian Chuan, already over 70 years old and retired for a long time. Feng Su was his old subordinate. On weekdays he had ceased to. Why am I here? You still have the face to ask me? Have you seen? The public opinion on the internet? Online opinion? What's going on? Feng Su froze. In the past two days, he had been immersed in the fantasy of the Dragon Teeth special fighters killing it all, and hadn't paid any attention to what was going on online. See for yourself. Xian Chuan let out a roar, and a person beside him handed Feng Su his cell phone. Feng Su took it and saw the online training chart of the Dragon Teeth special forces. Seeing this, Feng Su raised his eyebrows and grinned. Yo, these buggers training got their pictures taken? TSK, those dogs abroad, that's well informed enough. Agu, these people's comments are interesting. Thinking that Dragon Tooth must lose? He he he. Seeing Feng Su like this, Qian Chuan's eyes went wide. What the hell is going on here? How can you laugh when you see these comments and then look at the training photos of Dragon's Teeth? Feng Su, old me gave you the war research room so that you could build a better training program. You're laughing now? Have you been kicked in the head by a donkey? How did you come up with this bullshit training program? Chen Chuan couldn't help but roar angrily. Feng Su. However, Hamden Hod and hurriedly invited Chen Chuan to sit down. After making the tea, Feng Su then spoke. Elder Chen, you're wrong to blame me for this. I don't have the skill to come up with this kind of overwhelming training method. What? Chen Chuan froze. Such a comical pose, yet it received such high praise from Feng Su? With a frown, Chen Chuan felt that something was wrong. Tell me honestly, what's going on? This training program, what does it say? Feng Su smiled and nodded. Elder Qian, do you think that there are any training methods that will allow the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team to be upgraded? In a short period of time, to the point where it is strong enough to fight against the Eagle Sauce Nation's biogenetic agents? Qian Chuan froze, then let out a long sigh and shook his head. It's hard. He had also watched the video of the last battle with the Han Tiger Special Forces. He was shocked at the time. The Han Tiger Special Forces are acting like less than human beings. After the battle was over in, he was also thinking about what he could do to counter the biogenetic agents of the Eagle Sauce Country. But the more he researched, the more desperate he became. It was basically impossible to get the Dragon Teeth Special Forces to get a significant boost in a short period of time. Elder Qian. It's not difficult. Not difficult at all. Feng Su rubbed his hands together excitedly. Did you know? Actually, this training program was formulated by Chen Yu. Chen Yu? That's the one who was the newest Dragon Zoon of the Inhuman Bureau. The one who wreaked havoc in the Sakura Kingdom and ended up becoming the chief instructor of the Dragon Teeth? Qian Chuan was a bit surprised. Feng Su nodded, and no longer hiding, he told what he had seen and heard before when he went to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. What the fuck did you say? Qian Chuan got up violently and could hardly believe his ears. Feng Su laughed. Elder Qian, this is all true. I couldn't believe it at first either, but the facts are right in front of us, so we can't afford to disbelieve them. Don't worry, this time, the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team will give the world a big surprise. Ha ha, good, good, good. Qian Chuan let out a long breath and laughed openly. This Chen Yu, what a fucking talent. Surprisingly, he was able to raise the Dragon Tooth Special Forces so much, smacking his lips. Qian Chuan was overwhelmed with emotion. Yeah, Chen Yu he's really great. Elder Qian, do you still care about those opinions on the internet now? Qian Chuan smiled broadly and waved his hand. Don't care, not at all. Ha ha, what a surprise. There is such a thing. After getting up, Qian Chuan didn't drag his feet and headed for the door. Elder Qian, 
It's not easy for you to come here. So sit for a while longer. Sit down for what? I have things to do. Something? Feng Su was a bit curious. Qian Chuan grinned. His face filled with an odd expression. Since there's so much noise on the internet, let's make it even more so. I'm going to the War Neglect Bureau right now. So that Bureau Chief Shan can give a hard time. Ha 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 ha. With immense pleasure, Qian Chuan left. That afternoon, Bureau Chief Zhang of the War Neglect Bureau was on the line. In fact, they are quite profound. These poses, they are an updated type of training method. Everyone has to trust the dragon's teeth. Eh, I've never seen it either, but it must have special effects. Sincerity, always, is the best surefire way. Bureau Chief Zhang's speech pushed online public opinion to another peak. The skepticism about dragon's teeth is even greater. Cold Stick Country, Han Tiger Special Forces Training Camp. A loud laugh rang out uncontrollably. Shiba, these people from the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, have they been beaten silly by us? A member of the Han Tiger Special Forces, sitting on the ground with his knees crossed, looked at the news on his cell phone and laughed out loud. On the cell phone screen was the very picture of Yu Lei and the others in odd poses. Next to them, the other members of the Han Tiger Special Forces were all full of smiles. ACI, I guess, it's the fault of a few seniors who hit too hard before the Dragon Teeth Special Forces got their brains knocked out. That's right, these are all the sins created by our predecessors. We should pool our money and show those people in the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team their brains. The group kept taunting, but the gene potion last time, the effect is really great. It's just that the side effects are too great and it takes a year to fully recover. Several seniors, none of them will be able to participate in the 50 nation military exercise competition this time. A man spoke, looking somewhat regretful. The side immediately laughed. It doesn't matter if there are a lot of side effects. As long as we can rub the Dragon Teeth Special Forces on the ground. Don't forget, if normal conditions prevail, we're no match for the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. But the last time we faced off, we managed to crush them. Someone nodded in agreement. That's good. As long as we can win against them, let alone for a year, even for three years, we'll show everyone that we, the Great Cold Stick Kingdom, are the best. One fought and swung his fist. A cheer went up all around. The country, Cold Stick Country, is very small not much stronger in terms of power, and has a very shallow history, and right on the edge of the Dragon Kingdom, in every way, it can't be compared to the Dragon Kingdom, but for the sake of the Cold Stick Nation's self-esteem has reached a perverted point, always think you are the center of the universe and invincible, the reality of being suppressed by the Dragon Kingdom for a long time is in strong conflict with the power of one's fantasies, it was also for this reason that the Cold Stick Kingdom wanted to suppress the Dragon Kingdom whenever there was any slightest chance of doing so, for example, the traditional festival of the Dragon Kingdom, which he said was his own. A historical figure from the Dragon Kingdom. He said he was from the Cold Stick Kingdom. Even a random antique found in the Dragon Kingdom was said to have been handed down from the Cold Stick Kingdom. And after using the gene potion and defeating the dragon's teeth, it further caused the entirety of the Cold Stick country to fall into a kind of manic excitement and joy. For this 50 nation military drill competition, the Cold Stick country is even earlier to create momentum and even called it to be the decision of the men of the dragon country to submit to the battle. As for the Han Tiger Special Forces, they are also called national heroes, the manliest of men, but this time it always feels a bit strange. Is dragon's teeth really that bad? One of the Han Tiger Special Warriors frowned with some confusion. A big man next to him laughed and patted him on the shoulder. Ashy it is, that's how bad they are. They'd messed up after losing to us last time. Young man, don't worry. At the 50 Nation Special Warfare Team competition, You'll see then how we stomped dragon teeth under our feet. After a few laughs and jokes, the deputy chief instructor of the Han Tiger Special Forces, Cho Park Sung, stood up and patted his butt. Well, yesterday Eagle Jam Nation has sent the second generation of Gene Potion. It's rumored that not only us, but several other countries have been arranged by the Eagle Sauce Kingdom to receive genetic agents this time. Upon hearing this, the group of Han whose special combat team could not help but exclaim in shock. Deputy chief instructor, what's this about? The corners of Joe Park Sung's mouth curled into a smile. Naturally, it's for the purpose of rounding up the Dragon Tooth Special Fighters. So this time, we must strive to be the first to take on the Dragon Tooth Special Fighters. We can't let others steal our thunder. Once we win, then we'll be the heroes of the entire Cold Stick Kingdom. Money, power, at our fingertips. Zhao pushing outlines a beautiful blueprint. Afterwards, he ordered 20 special warriors who participated in the great competition of drill and martial arts to head to the laboratory to undergo experiments with second generation genetic agents. Unlike the first generation, the second generation genetic agent needs to be injected in three separate injections because of its stronger effects and fewer side effects. 
Under the envious gazes of the crowd, the group left the training ground. Eagle Sauce Country. Western Wilderness Area. A military base. Fuck. You softies. Keep fucking up. A blonde man with a fierce face was reprimanding a group of soldiers. Not far away, there was a beautiful woman in uniform, twisting her waist and walking. General Wells, you are still so stern. The woman opened her mouth with a smile. Wells raised an eyebrow and immediately replaced it with a smirk. Oh, Catherine dear, is something the matter with you? Yes, the second generation gene potion has been given to the Han Tiger Special Forces as requested. Mr. Smalls asked me to inform you that the Bald Eagle Special Warfare Team will be injected with the third generation Battle God genetic agent this afternoon. At that, Wells nodded. Okay, let's talk in my office. When the two arrived at the office, Wells poured Catherine a cup of coffee. Sitting against his desk, Wells laughed. I didn't realize that the lab side was progressing so fast. Even the third generation of the God of War genetic potion has already been developed. Catherine smiled and said, with the special experimental body provided by Song Yao, the research and development is progressing very quickly indeed. I really didn't expect that ordinary Dragon Nation person called Chen Taiyi would contribute so much to our research. I heard that the Song family has been destroyed? Wells inquired absently as he sipped his coffee. Catherine nodded. Yes, just a fight between a few little ants. The conversation turned, and Catherine continued to speak. But you have to be more careful. This time the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team seems to be using a very novel training method. And according to the analysis of our experts, it could be the mysterious martial arts cultivation method of the Dragon Kingdom. Their so-called Budo and Inhumans are very powerful. There was also a time when they made a lot of noise. In the Sakura country, Wells laughed and waved his hand. I've seen the pictures on the internet and it was a hilarious workout. I didn't realize it's been this long. And there are still people who believe that any martial art can compete with technology? The inferior bunch in the east only deceive themselves with such things. Don't worry. This time they will only become the laughing stock of the world. With the war god potion, our white-headed eagles, they will teach them a good lesson. Catherine sniffed and shrugged with a grin on her face. I'm looking forward to it. With that, Well stepped forward and wrapped a hand around Catherine's thigh. At her fingertips, came the smooth touch of black silk. Dear Catherine, how do you think I would behave if I were injected with the warlord's potion? A flash of eagerness burned in Well's eyes. Catherine raised an eyebrow and slid her fingers over Well's chest. General Wells, do you even need that kind of thing? You're supposed to be the god of war. Following the dress, Catherine's fingers slid slowly and landed on Well's belt. She bent over in a crouch and tilted her head, her eyes drawn. Behind the closed door of the room, a faint sound rang out. Dragon Teeth Special Forces Training Base. Chun Yu was sitting in his office and Du Yuan Ming was sitting across from him. Little Feather, are you going to the military drill competition this time? Chen Yu smiled and nodded. I'm the chief instructor. Naturally. With that, he picked up the information in his hand and pondered. Wells, the Bald Eagle Task Force? I'd like to meet them. Naturally. Time flies. It didn't take long, and it was already approaching the day of the 50-nation military drill competition. The Dragon Tooth Special Forces, after Chen Yu's build, had already had a stripped-down difference. Nowadays, Yu Lei and the others, casually pulling out one person and placing them in the society. They were all existences that could cause news. Think about it, can a monster that can sprint 100 meters and get into 5 seconds be called human? With a long jump, he was directly able to jump up to the second floor. Strength to be able to push more than 400 kilograms. Reactivity. Agility. Vision. Endurance. All the physical fitness indicators, they all exploded right out of the gate. Not only that, Shen Yu had also taught some of the basic battle techniques of the Immortal Cultivation Sect to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces after weakening them. Although it was a weakened version, it was already the upper limit of what the Dragon Teeth Special Forces could accept. Any higher, and they would not be able to withstand it with their physical fitness today. Even so, in the midst of the secular world, this was quite a bombastic existence. After all, these martial arts were handed down among the immortal cultivation realm after countless real-life battles and killings. Xiao H, Phone X, and Du Yuan Ming. When these people realized the state that you lay and the others were in nowadays, they were all shocked for a long time. And on the social plane, the discussion about the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team had also gradually dissipated after that initial wave of mockery. After all, who wants to discuss this kind of blockage every day? even if they are no longer angry about it? So much for out of sight, out of mind. It's just that, as the 50-nation martial arts competition approached, some well-intentioned people began to stir up public opinion again. The heat, too, soared once more. This time, the training footage of a number of foreign special operations teams was revealed. Cherry Blossom Kingdom, Ghost Sword Special Forces, on Mount Fuji, katanas in both hands. 
fighting with bare shoulders, eyes fierce. In the country of the cold stick, the Han Tiger Special Forces team, wearing tight camouflage uniforms and holding daggers, flickered through the jungle with a powerful aura. In the Eagle Jam country, the white-headed Eagle Special Forces team was in full tactical gear, bulging muscles holding up their clothes almost to the point of bursting open, and everyone was menacing, as if they were about to storm out and hurt someone. The videos and images, carefully manipulated and set to stirring music, have a great impact. Even through the screen, one could feel the appalling aura. At the same time, some training footage of dragon teeth kept being exposed. You lay and the others were in a strange position. Some of the sneak peek videos also show the Dragon Teeth Special Forces team chasing and fighting on the training grounds. The style of painting is completely different from the rest of the country. Completely different. Above the internet, the comments are extreme. Holy shit, that's what I call a fucking soldier. Hey, although I don't want to admit it, but between us and others, the gap is too big. So what do we have to win? Shit, might as well have knelt earlier. Ha, I've been saying for a long time that Dragon Men don't work. I'm so envious of those who are reincarnated abroad. Hey, it's hopeless. You call this an elite? Ridiculous. On the internet, a video interview with Bureau Chief Zhang was also released. Bureau Chief Zhang, the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team has currently been preparing for the 50 Nation Military Exercise Competition. What are your thoughts on the training of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team? In the video, Bureau Chief Chung smiles coyly. Actually, ah, the training of our Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team is very advanced. Their training, which incorporates many training methods unique to the Dragon Kingdom, has a very special efficacy, although it is different from the foreign training methods, but in my opinion, our training methods are, he is more effective, listening to the king is like listening to a conversation, the statement was met with verbal abuse by netizens, later, another piece of news that spread across the internet, this 50 nation military drill competition will be simulcast globally, within the Dragon Kingdom, everyone was able to tune in, when the news broke, the whole internet shook. Shit, it's going to be a public execution. Ah, uh, this, that means the whole world is going to see the images of our disgrace? Hey, I decided not to watch it to save myself the grief. Office of War Studies. Ha 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 ha. Great, these guys would even think of a global broadcast? Ouch, this is killing me with joy. Fong Su bent over, covered his stomach, and laughed so hard that tears fell down his face. The news about the global broadcast was not known to them beforehand. It was also after the news spread online that this is how they understood. As for why this is the case, it's quite understandable. To put it bluntly, someone is deliberately fanning the flames. Use public opinion to hold upper level decisions hostage. After all, last time, the Dragon Teeth special fighters lost badly. And this time, if the Dragon Kingdom is asked to broadcast live, the Dragon Kingdom may not agree. So go ahead and spread the word on the internet. Wait until public opinion has festered and pushed back the Dragon Kingdom to have to agree. The purpose, is to make a fool out of the Dragon Kingdom. Du Yuan Ming was also here and was also full of smiles. These foreign devils, thinking we are bound to lose, have done this. Actually, they can totally ask us. They'll know if they just try it, and we're not refusing at all. After laughing enough, Feng Su let out a long breath and stood up straight. Old Du, how do you think we should respond to this now? The two were on good terms and didn't have too many qualms about talking. Du Yuan Ming grinned and said, since they want it, then we'll just give it to them. Not only do you have to give, but you have to mean it. The two looked at each other and their smiles grew wider. On that day, Duro Chief Zhang of the Neglect of War Bureau was once again urgently on the line. About this live broadcast thing ah, actually, we were prepared to say yes at first. Only, considering the Dragon Teeth Special Forces team ah, this strength is really too strong. Once the live broadcast defeated the other Special Forces team, it will damage the face of other countries. So what? We just weren't going to broadcast it live. A statement that immediately created a buzz. Soon, several countries, such as the Cold Stick Country, the Cherry Blossom Country, and the Eagle Jam Country, responded to the remarks. We want to show everyone in Dragonland what we're made of. Hopefully, the dragons will drop the baggage and open up the airwaves. On the internet, the noise of the opening of the live broadcast is also growing. Bureau Chief Chang spoke again. Aya, we're really doing it for their own good. They don't know how strong the Dragon Teeth Special Forces are. We also suggest that they don't turn on the live stream either. Otherwise it's too demoralizing for the people of their own country to see their own Special Forces team lose. Many netizens can't hold their breath. Secretary, let's just say, can the war office not be so sincere when it tells lies? After several consecutive back and forths, the Eagle Sauce Nation joined with 23 other countries to release a statement demanding that the Dragon Nation go live. Otherwise, disqualify Dragon Nation from the competition. 
Duro Chief Sheng concluded with a helpless sigh. In that case, fine. However, I hope you won't regret it. The day after the war of words, the military drill competition officially began. Fifty special forces teams, gathered on Naran Island. Naran Island, an island in the Atlantic Ocean, is not owned by any country. It was also for this reason that it was chosen as the venue for this joint military exercise competition. The whole island is quite small, with lush vegetation and excellent natural beauty. In the central part of the island, a large open space had been opened up and a number of buildings had been constructed. This time, the great competition was co-hosted by 12 countries, led by the Eagle Sauce Country. All logistics, personnel accommodation, live signal and so on, are handled by the 12-nation joint security mission, and the head honcho, named Palace, a native of the Eagle Jam Country. At the moment, in the one movement building on Naren's Island, Palace was staring intently at the big screen, his brow furrowed. Signal 32nd commissioning. Full access. The staff was immediately nervous and busy. Signal access. Communication detection. Sound detection. Picture detection. 32nd commissioning complete. All clear. Yes. Palace sniffed and let out a long breath, nodding in satisfaction. A few minutes later, Wells walked in and found Palace. Dr. Palace, is everything okay? Oh, don't worry general. After many rounds of testing, everything is normal. That's good. This time make sure that this broadcast is received within the Dragon Kingdom. Wells smiled coldly and said, We can show the Dragon Kingdom that the Dragon Teeth Special Forces have failed. Palace nodded. No problem. This time, the live broadcast, using a combined satellite signal, is excellent and stable. Well, also pay attention to preventing hacking. On the Dragon Countryside, it's likely that they'll resort to off-dish tactics to interfere with the normal live broadcast. Ha ha, General. Don't worry. Our technical support staff. They've been ready for a long time. There's no way anyone can influence this broadcast. It's like we're abusing their women and they have to stand in the room and watch us use every position. Well smiled and nodded. That's a good analogy you have. It also shows them how strong we really are. After checking that everything was in order, Wells left the room satisfied. In the afternoon, the special operations teams from the 50 nations arrived at Naran Island one by one and were given accommodations. According to the regulations of this great martial arts competition, each special warfare team could come with 20 people in addition to the chief instructor and vice instructor. The Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, led by Chin Yu with Yu Lei as his deputy, selected 20 people to come to Naran Island, because the scope of this live broadcast is too large. Chen Yu does not want to affect the subsequent life because of the exposure of identity. That's why he purposely wore a mask. After boarding the island, according to the guidelines, the Dragon Teeth crowd arrived at the arranged dormitory. As the organizer, Palace purposely arranged the dormitories of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces and the Han Tiger Special Forces to be adjacent to each other. So, the Han Tiger Special Fighters and the Dragon Teeth Special Fighters met that night. Nishihachi, it's those guys from Dragon's Teeth. A man pointed at Chun Yu and the others and waved his hand with a big smile. Hey henchman, don't let us scare you out of sleep tonight. As soon as these words came out, the entire Han Tiger Special Operations team immediately erupted into bursts of laughter. All around. The special operations teams of various countries were watching with a look of amusement, and the live stream went out to the world at that moment. Many people within the cold stick country were glued to their screens, laughing with unbridled glee. Ha ha, Han who was bullish, ACI bar we are the strongest, that's the man, let the dragon's teeth recall the fear of being dominated by us. Hey, will both sides just fight now? So looking forward to seeing them fight. Anger stormed out over the dragon kingdom network, cursed next door, stupid stick. What a thing. Fuck. Fuck him. Fuck him. Damn it. Do you really think you're a cosmic nation? Dragon teeth. It's time to show your sword. The crowd is stirring. Yulei was the first to be unable to hold back, taking a step out and preparing to make a move, but was stopped by Chin Yu. Don't forget. Doing it now is grounds for disqualification. Tomorrow on top of the grand competition is the best time for you to make your move. Upon hearing this, Yulei then held back his anger and nodded. Seeing that the Dragon Teeth Special Forces had no intention of making a move, bursts of laughter resounded around them. Han Hu Special Forces, laughing even more recklessly. Over in the cold stick country, the internet has gone completely crazy. As she it is, cosmopolitan nation, we are the cosmic state. Long live the great cold stick country, long live the Han Tiger Special Forces, that's our deterrent. Laughing their asses off, they don't even dare to make a move. On the Dragon Countryside, the internet was already abusive. You can put up with this? What a fucking coward. Shit. Who is this guy? Wearing a mask and being a wimp like this? Cursed next door. Is this still a man? Shame on you. Shit. 
I'm going to be tougher than him. Oh, that's why I don't look for dragon men as boyfriends. Too soft and bloodless. Hey, the sick man really does have a tradition. It's no longer bearable. The comments swiped wildly. Do Yuan Ming and Xiao Hua, the remaining members of the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, were also guarding the screen at the moment, watching the scene with furrowed brows. Not right. This isn't like Chen Yu's style. Do Yuan Ming couldn't help but chant. Fong Su spoke. He must have his own reasons. So we'll see. Naren Island. Seeing that the Dragon Teeth Special Forces didn't make a move, the Han Tiger Special Forces became even more rampant. Zhao Puxing giggled and waved at Chen Yu. Yo, Ashi it. Don't let us scare you into wetting your bed at night. Chen Yu's footsteps lurched as he glanced at Zhao Puxing and then at the three-story dormitory building of the Han Hu Special Forces. The corner of his mouth slightly hooked up. Don't worry. We'll sleep well tonight. But you guys, I'm afraid you won't have a place to sleep. Saying that, Chen Yu's foot secretly lashed out. Joe Park Sung froze, somewhat unsure. But the next moment, only a loud bang could be heard coming from behind him. The crowd was taken aback and turned their heads sharply to look. The small three-story building that was originally supposed to be the accommodation for Han Hu's special combat team suddenly had a huge crack that ran vertically through it at this moment. As the cracks appeared, the entire small three-story building collapsed. Endless smoke and dust rose, and a tremor came from the ground. By the time the smoke fell, the small three-story building was in ruins. At this moment, there was a dead silence. A pair of shocked eyes stared at the ruins with dead eyes. The building? The building collapsed? What? What's going on here? In front of the screen, it was the same. Audiences of all nations. Brains buzzing. The dormitory building of the Han Tiger Special Forces collapsed before you could live in it? Is it an earthquake? Or something? How did this happen all of a sudden? Almost at the same time, many people's bodies trembled as they looked violently at Chun Yu. Wait, something's not right. Just now, he said something. It's you guys, on the other hand, who are afraid you won't have a place to sleep. Chen Yu's words still echoed incessantly in his ears. Looking over the ruins, a crumbling mess of exposed steel, cluttered and scribbled. Another look at Chen Yu. The expression was bland, not panicked or surprised. Could it be that he had something to do with the collapse of the building? This, this can't be right? A special forces team from another country, gulped and muttered. The others were also mind blown. The group of members of the Ghost Sword Special Operations Team were looking at Chen Yu at the moment with awe. They had all heard about the IGA family in the Sakura country. Later, it was even more tragic to have seen the scene. There was a saying that they didn't have much doubt that Chen Yu could collapse the building. On the Dragon Kingdom network, all the abuse had disappeared. In front of every screen, there were dull and excited faces. Holy shit, is this for real? My god, if it's really man-made, that's awesome. Hiss. What's with the sudden feeling that the Dragon Teeth Special Forces are a little hungover? Ha ha, I told you, the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team are all bloodthirsty men. How could they possibly endure? He he he, did you see the faces of those cold stick country guys? They all look like fucking idiots. A goo, to laugh at the master. Look at that short cold stick country guy. His mouth grows, a dull face. All I want to know now is, is this a coincidence or is it intentional? Hey, don't care if it's a coincidence or intentional. Just be cool. Everyone is talking about why this is happening. Some people think it's all Chun Yu's doing. Others think it's just a coincidence. The internet over in the cold stick country completely exploded at the sight of this scene. Nishihachi, how did this happen? Damn it. Why are we so unlucky? Could it be that the heavens saw that our Han Tiger special forces were too strong and sent down a heavenly punishment? Damn it. I can't believe I was blindsided right by that guy from the Dragon Teeth special forces. He must know something. He must be made to pay. Naren Island live. Ha 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 ha. This fucking retribution is coming too soon. Yu Lei laughed out loud and secretly swept his eyes at Chen Yu, giving a thumbs up in his heart. Damn. Our chief instructor is awesome. If I say I'll let your building fall, I'll let your building fall. Hey, you bastards from the cold stick country. How are you feeling? Are you happy? The special operations teams from each country had brought simultaneous translation earplugs with them before they arrived, so there were no barriers to communication. Zhao Puxing's face turned red. And suddenly his body trembled as he stared at Chen Yu. His eyes bloodshot. Ashy bar. Say, did you get it? Chen Yu's eyes were indifferent as he nodded. Well, I got it. What's the problem? A phrase that once again set off a global broadcast. My chow. See this look? Even with the mask on. I feel like I'm seeing his arrogant expression. Ha ha. That's a damn relief. TSK. So arrogant and domineering. Guys. What's up with me suddenly feeling hot blood burning? Cold stick countryside. Saihachi, this guy, how dare he talk to our hero like that? What is he? Just a defeated man under his command. Ha, 
How shameless. And to say that he brought down the dormitory building? Ridiculous. Did the building fall down when he stomped his foot? Hit him. Make him kneel down and apologize to our special forces. Aside from the general public, there were also many forces watching this scene. Inside the Dragon Kingdom in Human Bureau, Shen Yuanqing's few people looked at each other and all grinned. He he he. As expected of Mr. Chen, this hand of dismounting is really good. Ha! The Han Tiger Special Warfare Team took a genetic potion last time and won by a fluke. Do they really think they're invincible? I don't know how thick the sky is. The more I look forward now, the more I look forward to tomorrow's exact martial arts performance competition. Overseas, Crest Country, a group of senior generals, frowning at the live feed. Gentlemen, could it be that this dormitory building? Was it really the man from Dragon's Teeth who brought it down? A man's brows were furrowed, full of doubts. Beside them, a burst of murmurs immediately resounded. This is impossible. Human strength can never do this. Only the movement of the Earth's crust could have collapsed this dormitory building. But I've heard that there are mysterious martial arts practitioners in the East with incredible powers. So perhaps, they can really make it this far? Oh, the East not only has mysterious powers, but also mysterious deceptions. They must have used some method to foresee the movement of the Earth's crust in advance. There is a wide range of opinions. In the end, though, everyone agreed that only the power of nature could do such a thing. Human power could never make it this far. Shen Yu must have predicted the movement of the Earth's crust through some means. The scene was, at the moment, a mess. When Zhao Puxing heard Chen Yu's words, he didn't know what to say for a moment. He himself had merely made a casual remark, and did not think that Chen Yu had done all this at all. But Chen Yu even admitted it? What the fuck is so shameful? Such an unexpected answer caught Zhou Park Singh off guard. Chen Yu swept his eyes and smiled gently. Come on, go rest. Okay. Yu Lei was all smiles as he waved his hand at Zhao Puxing. Hey douchebags, grandpa we're going to bed. You guys have a good training night out there. Under the watchful eyes of the crowd, Chen Yu and the others walked into the dormitory building. Seeing this, there was no need for the special operations teams of the various countries to continue to stay, and they left one after another. The moon and stars were thin, and the sea breeze was cold with a wet, salty scent. Zhao Puxing, a group of people, stood frozen in place, foolishly looking at the ruins. Insects chirped from time to time, and there seemed to be a touch of mockery as well. Instructor, I, what do we do now? Han Tiger Special Forces, a member of the team cried out. Zhao Puxing's face trembled, and he indignantly looked at the dormitory building of the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Let's go and find other places to stay. Next, the Han Tiger Special Forces team searched around with dismal results. The dormitory buildings are all one-to-one -one and there are no extra dormitory buildings. The performance martial arts competition venues and the like are all currently on lockdown as well. Borrow a room in another country's dormitory building? Sorry, no lending in order to get a good night's rest. In the sullen sea breeze, Zhao Puxing, with his Han who special forces team, had to sleep in the open. And since the logistics of this big game commitment had been arranged, they didn't bring camping equipment. Things, too, reached the ears of Wells and Palace. What the hell is going on? How come the dormitory building of the Han Tiger Special Forces collapsed? Could it be? Is it really the dragon's teeth that did it? In the office, Wells looked at Palace with a frown of puzzlement. Palace smiled softly and spoke slowly. Dear General Wells, have you had your courage and intelligence sucked out of you by Catherine Zabaloni? That was a three-story dormitory building with reinforced concrete throughout. How could human power destroy him? Palace had a flirtatious grin on his face. Wells blushed slightly, picked up the red wine at the side, and took a gentle sip. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces, after all, heck yeah, and they have this chief instructor who comes from a very powerful place. Maybe, he really does have that kind of strength. Palace still smiled and shook his head. Whatever strength the tower has, it can't do this. I've arranged for an analysis to be done. And this would be a dormitory building collapsing due to geological activity on Naran Island. Wells frowned and lowered his head, a little puzzled and uncertain. Is it really because of geological activity? Oh, my dear General Wells, have you been brainwashed by the Dragon Kingdom? Believe in science not the foolishness of the East. Pallas smiled and spoke. Do you have any idea what kind of maneuvering would be required to cause that kind of damage if it weren't for seismic activity? Even if a tank crashed into it, it wouldn't collapse the whole building. Only God, perhaps, possesses this power. At that, Wells nodded and smiled to himself. It seems that I still think too highly of those guys in the Dragon Kingdom. Pallas shook his glass of red wine, a smile on his lips. Relax, my dear friend. A small Dragon Teeth Special Forces team isn't worth all the fuss. You're right. I'm the one who's too sensitive. As Wells spoke, he suddenly spoke. By the way, 
Are there any problems with the live signal? We're going to make the World Watch Dragon Kingdom lose face tomorrow. Ha ha, don't worry, Palace tapped his chest. In terms of technology, the Dragon Kingdom doesn't even deserve our shoes. After opening the live broadcast today, there were indeed hacker attacks from the Dragon Kingdom, but they were all easily defended by us. Just, just what? Seeing Palace linguistic hesitation, Wells had a flash of curiosity. It's just that this hacking is weird. According to my analysis, all the attacks have come from the civil population of the Dragon Kingdom. As for the official attacks, there was not a single one, which is a bit incomprehensible to me. It's like, they're not even afraid of being embarrassed on air. Well sniffed and frowned. The room, suddenly, became quiet for a moment. The clock on the wall, ticking away, annoyed Wells a little. Why aren't they afraid of losing face on air? Do they think that the Dragon Teeth special fighters will definitely win? Dear Wells, there's no need to think much about it. Palace was full of confidence. With the addition of our technology, the Bald Eagle Task Force will definitely be the winner in the end. Furthermore, the Han Tiger Special Warfare Team, the Ghost Blade Special Warfare Team, and the other seven Special Warfare Teams were given second-generation genetic potions. There's no way they can win this siege against the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. At that, Wells was a little more at ease. Not bad, no matter what preparations they have. In front of absolute strength, it's all a joke. This time, they'll lose face for sure. Palace laughed. That's right. What you should be thinking about now, is how to put them down in public opinion across the board when you get back home. Wells was all smiles. Oh, don't worry about that. The press release is ready. Over in the Dragon Kingdom, we still have a lot of dogs, and as soon as the Dragon Teeth Special Forces fail over here, they'll start tearing it up over there. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces, will become the joke of the world. Palace was a little disbelieving. The Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team, after all, is owned by the Dragon Kingdom, and those people of the Dragon Kingdom, will they really accuse them? Ha ha, you know them too little. Those people, ah, they all still think that our Eagle Sauce Country's moon is rounder than theirs. As soon as we give them a compliment on a good dog, they can't wait to get down on their knees and add to our toes. Even if it was their parents, they wouldn't hesitate to insult them, let alone the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Palace nodded, a look of emotion on his face. What a bunch of crazy softies. Here, a toast to tomorrow's success. The two men raised their glasses and clinked them together. Tinkerbell. The crunching sound of the scarlet liquor stirred and shook, refracting the grimly smug smiles of the two men. After one drink, Wells went back to his room to rest. The henchman came at that moment and reported that Zhao Pushing had requested to enter the white-headed Eagle Special Forces Accommodation Building to borrow a room. Due to the strong position of the Eagle Sauce Nation, the accommodation building of the Bald Eagle Special Operations Team this time was far more luxurious than other dormitory buildings. Inside, there are not only many empty rooms, but also with audiovisual rooms, chess and card rooms, swimming pools and other various facilities. Even if it was two Han Tiger Special Forces, it would be completely livable. But, upon hearing the news, Wells was furious. Damn it, to disturb my rest for the sake of these lowly creatures. Who are they to live here? They are nothing but our dogs. Should dogs be allowed to go to bed and sleep with their masters? They're the same as those guys in the Dragon Kingdom. The only difference is that they are more obedient. But even an obedient lowly dog is just a dog. Tell them to get lost and not disturb the rest of my soldiers. After a thunderous outburst of anger, Wells slept peacefully in the plush, soft king-sized bed. Zhao Puxing and the others found an open space and made do for the night. Early the next morning, the military drill competition officially began. At 8 o'clock in the morning, the drill ground slowly opened its gates under the watchful eyes of all the special operations teams. The martial arts arena was large, with an overall circular shape, similar to the gladiatorial arena in ancient Rome. In the center is an open area surrounded by stepped seating. It is divided into 50 regions according to nationality. The crowd looked a little surprised. There are many items in this military drill competition. Multi-terrain off-road practical, obstacle crossing, teamwork race, among other things. There are also individual battles to showcase each other's strengths, but this is only a part of the big military drill competition, and by arrangement, it comes later, that's when Wells spoke up. Oh, gentlemen, I'm sure you're all wondering why we're here first today, there's no need to rush, I'll give you an explanation. After a pause, Wells said, among the special operations team, there are all elite personnel, who need to have extremely strong comprehensive combat qualities, as well as superb personal strength and resilience. So based on the discussion, we have a special opening program today before the big military drill competition, the game of the brave. Whether it was the special forces team on the scene, or the audience who was watching the live broadcast, all of them had curious faces. A game for the brave? 
What's that? Seeing the puzzled look on the crowd's faces, Wells smiles faintly. As you all can see, this is a gladiatorial arena. Since we are the elite of each country and represent the top level of each country, wouldn't it be a shame not to exchange a fight? So based on the organizing committee's research, it has been decided to temporarily hold a fighting tournament. After the fighting competition, continue to start the other programs of the evolutionary martial arts competition, a comment that caused quite a commotion. The crowd whispered and their eyes went to the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. People aren't stupid. Wells did this to target the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. In front of the screen, the audience was thrilled. Crap, is this a fight? Boy, the elite of the Special Forces. I wonder what kind of scene it would be if they were to move. Last time Dragon's Teeth was a flop. I wonder if they can turn it around this time. Inexplicably, I'm looking forward to it. Expecting grossness. Can't you see that this is aimed at Dragon Tooth? It's clearly meant to humiliate Dragon Teeth. Not bad. Think about it. If the Dragon Teeth Special Warfare Team's people lose, then what about the next great martial arts competition? There were also a number of very knowledgeable characters among the netizens who saw right through Wells' true intentions. Cold Stick Country. At this moment the internet has set off a buzz. Ha ha, Shiba, let the Han Tiger Special Fighter Team beat the Dragon Teeth Special Fighter Team to their knees in front of the global military fans. Good. This time, we'll show the world that the Han Tiger Special Forces are the strongest in the universe. TSK, this is a great opportunity that must not be let go. Hey, hey, what do you guys think about the Dragon Teeth Special Forces? Will they just freak out and forfeit later? Office of War Studies, Fong Su, Xiao Hua, and the rest of the crowd were currently watching the big screen live broadcast with odd expressions. No way. How come Wells is so cute? We're still thinking about how to teach the Han Tiger Special Forces a lesson and you're giving it a chance? Damn. I suddenly have a bit of a crush on this Wells. Damn. I feel the same way. If he comes over, I'll buy him an old white dry. No drunkenness. Hey, hey, count me in. I'll add a plate of peanuts. Then I'll add a side of pork. The crowd had put together a table full of food while they talked and laughed. The crowd could see that Wells was making this move to create an opportunity. Wells, I hope you won't be intimidated by those boys from Dragon's Teeth. When you wait, a smile bloomed at the corner of Feng Su's mouth. Naran Island live. Well stood in front of the entrance to the arena and looked around. Gentlemen, what do you think? I agree. Joe Park Sung immediately raised his hands high and was the first to speak. Immediately after that, the Sakura country and a dozen other countries also nodded their heads in agreement. These countries, all of which were the Eagle Sauce Nation's little brothers, naturally wouldn't object to the boss's proposal. The many other national special operations teams, looking at each other, also nodded. This one has nothing to do with them anyway. There's no need to oppose it at this point and piss off the Eagle Jam Nation. Afterwards, many people looked at the Storm Bear Special Forces of the Woolly Bear Nation. Their captain, a bearded hulk of a man named Yelashenko, we don't agree or disagree. When he finished, he said no more. Wells looked deeply at Yelashenko and exhaled darkly. The only ones here who could break bread with them were the Storm Bear Special Forces. Now with this kind of stance they are taking, they are kind of doing both and removing a big piece of resistance. Next, Wells looked at Chen Yu and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Dragon Teeth Troopers, what's your opinion? Swish, the scene was suddenly quiet as everyone looked at Chen Yu in unison. The global audience watching the live broadcast was also glued to the screen at the moment, waiting with bated breath. On the screen, a close-up of Chen Yu was given. Underneath that black mask, only a pair of eyes as calm as the deep sea could be seen. I disagree. Chen Yu shook his head and spoke softly. There was an uproar, yet some understanding. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that this was a conspiracy against the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, and it was normal to oppose it at this moment. It's just that it's a bit cowardly to say that at this time. Yelashenko glanced at Chen Yu and grunted through his nose, a flash of disdain in his eyes. What a weak and incompetent man. Above the web, it's even more polarized. On this side of the network, a tirade of abuse was hurled, rebuking Chen Yu and the Dragon Teeth Special Forces for being cowardly and unmanly. On the other hand, the side of the Cold Stick Kingdom was full of mockery. A smile appeared at the corner of Well's mouth. No, is that up to you? Dragon Teeth, this time I'm going to make you lose both face and face. Last night, Wells and Palace, after deliberation, decided that the reason for the temporary addition of this brave man's game was to abolish Dragon's Teeth. Straight off the bat, it kept Longtooth out of all the programs that followed. This is the way to maximize the effect of the suppression. Chen Yu's current reaction was also within his expectations. Having already made a plan, clearing his throat, Wells was about to open his mouth when Chen Yu spoke first. The reason why I don't agree is because it's not brave enough to do so. A sentence that froze everyone in their tracks. Him, what does that mean? 
Not brave enough? What are you trying to say? Wells inquired with a frown. Chun Yu looked at Wells and laughed. How can it be called a brave man's game if no one dies? Why don't we sign a life and death contract for this competition? Boom! A sentence that directly triggered everyone's nerves. A pair of shocked eyes looked straight at Chen Yu. Sign a life and death contract? Dead people? He? What the hell is he talking about? The sergeant's drill competition does have a casualty target. But, that's only very rarely the case. All times various sizes of military maneuvers and competitions. There has never been a precedent of signing a life and death contract. Because once that happens, the military drill competition will become unmanageable. When the time comes, these thousand hardened elites are likely to fold up. This is something no one wants to see. So after hearing Chen Yu's words, everyone was dumbfounded. Only Yu Lei and the others from the Dragon Teeth Special Operations Team stood in place, grinning. Damn, I knew the chief instructor wasn't soft. Don't you want to play? Then let's play big. Otherwise, what's the point? Now why are you all freaked out? Come on, let's play poker together. On the internet, public opinion was immediately polarized and reversed. I chow. I knew it. The Dragon Teeth Special Forces aren't wimps. Damn. Life and death. Lifting. So lifting. Good. Don't you want to play? Let's play with blood to the end. On the side of the cold stick country, all of them were cursing Chen Yu as a madman. There were also people who looked like they were having a seizure and said that they wanted to slaughter the Dragon Teeth Special Forces. Well stared Chen Yu dead in the face, pondering why Chen Yu would suddenly say such words. Suddenly, an aura flashed through his mind. Shit. I get it. He does. Oh. Awesome. Just awesome. Wells kept applauding and looked at Chun Yu rather appreciatively. The crowd had a question mark on their faces. What's going on here? Why is Wells suddenly clapping? Chen Yu also froze. This Guilo, what's wrong with him? General Wells, I wonder what you are. Oh, gentlemen, let me explain. Glancing at Chun Yu, a smile appeared at the corner of Wells' mouth. I've seen through this guy's little mind a long time ago. I don't know if you all have ever heard of the ancient empty city plan of the Dragon Kingdom. At those words, Many people nodded. In the history of the Three Kingdoms, this is an extremely famous story. Zhuge Liang faced by the Sima E army pressure. Although the city's strength is weak, but he did not panic. Instead, the gates of the city were opened wide, so that Sima E could not feel the reality and finally left in fear. But what does that have to do with what he just said? Zhou Park Sung looked confused. Wells whitened his eyes at Zhou Park Sung. This idiot, being a dog isn't even the smart type. At best it's a douchebag. He's now. 2. Singing about empty cities. Wells let out a broken, decisive cry. The pupils of the people at the scene shrunk, exchanging words with each other with astonished expressions. An empty city? Murphy. Hiss. I see. So that's it? Boy. I didn't expect it. This kid still has this kind of mind? Wells looked around the room and nodded slightly as he saw that a number of people had responded. Good. He knows that once he starts the game of the brave, he's bound to lose. But if you don't participate, then you lose your dignity. It's a dilemma. In this situation, there is no way in, no way out. So what should we do? After a slight pause, Wells sneered and snapped his fingers. Then come up with a particularly scary offer that will make us voluntarily cancel this game. Life and death. That's his means to scare us. As long as we take the initiative to cancel, he'll retain his dignity and won't lose. Two birds with one stone. At those words, many people who had not yet reacted immediately understood. Looking at Chun Yu, his eyes were filled with astonishment. This guy, does he even have such a meticulous mind? But alas, meet the wily old Wells. Now the scheme was punctured by the middle, and was directly hit in the face. A sudden realization dawned on the crowd watching the live stream. My chow, is that even possible? Fake? Gee, then I wasn't excited for nothing? Hey, I told you, those cowards from Dragon's Teeth, how could they really dare to sign a life and death contract? Now it's good. They've been seen through. How can this class end? Hey, that's some idea for an empty city. But it's just a shame that Eagle Jam's people aren't stupid. Over at Cold Stick, there was a mockery. Ha ha, laugh me to death. Strength doesn't work brains come to the rescue? Now even brains don't work. Ashiba, they're afraid of meeting Han who's men. Hey, hey, trying to avoid us? Sorry, you guys are destined to be disappointed. Be a good little baby and get down on the floor and let us spank you. Office of War Studies. Feng Su was looking at the live feed. A close-up of Wells was given on the screen. He held his head high in the sunlight, and there was wisdom in his eyes. A see-through smile tugged at the corners of his mouth. Blonde hair fluttered gently in the wind. The corners of his eyes were slightly raised, skewering Chen Yu. Arrogant, smug, and not at all concealed. The corner of Feng Su's mouth gently twitched, and the corner of his mouth quirked for a moment. 
highlighting four words. This dumb ass. On the side, Xiao Hua's few people looked at Feng Su with odd expressions. On weekdays, Feng Su was such a decent person. Not smiling and not swearing. I didn't expect to say that. However, that is so damn apt. Wait until you see Chen Yu hit his face. A few people nodded and continued to stare at the screen. On Naren Island, Chen Yu looked at Wells and froze for some time. God, what kind of brain is he to think of such things? Is he paranoid? What am I singing about? That's what I'm trying to do to you. What? Intimidated by my seeing through your schemes? Seeing Chen Yu's expression. Wells smiled smugly. Good, I'll agree to your request. And we'll sign a life and death contract. Gentlemen, if any of you dare not participate, you can withdraw now. But if you sign a life and death contract, then you can't go back on it. Joe Park Sung was the first to jump out. We're in. Hey, hey, life and death? Just what I need. Other minions jumped in to show that there was no pressure. As for the other special operations teams, after a little deliberation, they didn't quit either. Anyway, this fight has nothing to do with them, so it's okay to sign it. Soon after, the life and death statement was drawn up. All special operations personnel were signed and presented on the live screen. For a time, the world was rocked. No one had expected that the military drill competition would turn out like this. Once the life and death contract is signed, the nature is completely different. Next, they may see a bloody battle. Now, enter, with a greeting from Wells. All of the special forces teams entered the drill hall and took their seats in their respective areas. On the way, Wells rubbed shoulders with Chun Yu. With a soft smile at the corner of his mouth, Wells spoke. Little friend, the dragon's teeth. I'm afraid they'll be broken today. Chen Yu's footsteps lurched as he indifferently swept his eyes at Wells. I hope you walk out of here. Today, alive. As the words fell, Chen Yu walked away. Wells' eyes went cold as he looked at the direction Chen Yu had left, killing intent boiling in his eyes. Hey, innate sect master? That's ridiculous. In front of technology, any innate master is a joke. As for Chen Yu's identity, Eagle Sauce's side had also investigated. Wells generally grasps the situation as well. He had heard about that battle on the Kanagawa River and the massacre of the IGA family in the Sakura country. But, he never believed it and always thought that it was nothing more than an exaggeration. What trekking on the sea and what sword chopping the Great River are all things only found in the Dragon Kingdom's metaphysical novels. This is the real world. There's no way that could have happened. The so-called innate master was nothing but a self-deception. It is the ignorant reverence of the foolish dragon nation. And today, he was going to strip down the so-called innate master's true colors in front of the whole world. Soon everyone was seated. Wells announced the rules of the game. A game for the brave. A challenge race. Everyone can get in the ring and designate a special forces team to challenge. Challenges can be one to one or many to many. If you don't accept the challenge, you need to kneel and kowtow before you admit defeat. If the challenge is accepted, it will only count if one side concedes defeat or dies in battle. And after one round of combat, if the winner is challenged again, he or she can unconditionally choose not to accept without kowtowing and admitting defeat. After the rules were read out, the game of Bravehearts officially began. Zhao Puxing looked at the Han Tiger Special Forces crowd and nodded. In the next moment, the entire Han Tiger Special Warfare team rushed onto the center ring. The challenge, the Dragon Teeth Special Forces, and it's a regimental battle. Yu Lei and the others looked at Chen Yu with fiery eyes. Beneath the mask, Chen Yu grinned happily. Go ahead and fight to the death. I say, 